Among Ponies. Written by Wolf Blood. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Princess Celestia. Princess Luna. Original Character. Other. Main Six. Romance. Sex. Gore. Adventure. Anthro. Crossover. Human. Alternate Universe. Description. What do you do when you're a human living a life on Earth in a life filled with nothing but pain and loss? But, is then suddenly sent to a world with talking ponies and is turned into a wolf. What exactly does fate have in store for me and why me? All I know is this is going to be one hell of an adventure and will it lead me to happiness or hell? Song for opening credits. Table of contents. Chapter 1 Arrival. Chapter 2600 Feet Drop Creatures from Myth What Else Could Happen? Chapter 3 Destiny and Proper Introductions. Chapter 4 The Grand Galloping Gala and Painful Memories. Chapter 5 Return of Chaos. Chapter 6 A Day in Ponyville and New Friends. Chapter 7 Nightmare Night. Chapter 8 Into the Arena of Hell. Chapter 9 A Roam Through Canterlot and A Painful Reunion. Chapter 10 The Alicorn Among Alicorns and Meeting the Beast Within. Chapter 11 Reunited at Last. Chapter 12 You're Here for A Reason and A Day Out with Luna. Chapter 13 Hearts Warming Even A Home to Call Home. Chapter 14 The Crystal Empire. Chapter 15 Tricks and Ancient Devices. Chapter 16 A Trip to the Past and A Blood-Filled Secret. Chapter 17 My Friends Are Not Targets. Chapter 18 High Flying Adventure. Chapter 19 An Old Score to Settle. Chapter 20 All Hail Twilight and Rebirth of the Assassin's Brotherhood. Chapter 21 The Return and Old Friends. Chapter 22 A New Year to Remember. Chapter 23 First Target in the Tomb. Chapter 24 Testing Myself. Chapter 25 Mayday Mayday. Chapter 26 Moving in, Bats and the Pale Horse. Chapter 27 Operation Hive Breaker and Family Decisions. Chapter 28 Tyrex Return. Chapter 29 Deja Vu. Chapter 30 Training with the Masters and Dream Walking. Chapter 31 Nothing Like Being Home and Delivery. Chapter 32 Lust from Heat and Awesome Rides. Chapter 33 Friendship Games. Chapter 34 Return of the Queen. Chapter 35 Another Night of Trick or Treating. Chapter 36 OK Who Unleashed the Apocalypse. Chapter 37 Night Out in Frozen Tears. Chapter 38 Making Your Mark. Chapter 39 Just What is Going On. Chapter 40 Fractured and Alone. Chapter 41 Recovering on Hearts Warming Eve. Chapter 42 Beware You Anger the Beast. Chapter 43 Then It'll Drown You in Your Own Blood. Chapter 44 Royal Duties and I'm a What Now. Chapter 45 A Time Forgotten and A Cursed Encounter. Chapter 46 Virtual Reality Training and Vacation. Chapter 47 Artifacts and Unexpected Visitors. Chapter 48 Seeking Answers and self reseration Chapter 49 Sunny Town. Chapter 50 Rescue from Limbo. Chapter 51 Returning to Dream Valley and Saying Farewell. Chapter 52 Mission in Zebra Africa and a Birthday. Chapter 53 The Return of the Prince. Chapter 54 Diplomatic Meeting, Blood Thieves and Coronating. Chapter 55 Shadows from the Past. Chapter 56 An Army of Nightmares and a Battleground for Gods and Monsters. Chapter 57 Thieves of Trottingham. Chapter 58 Hollow Shade Horrors. Chapter 59 Will You. Chapter 60 Cold Lantis. Chapter 61 Bad Blood. Chapter 62 Family Ties, Miracles and Heat. Chapter 63 Journey to Libertalia Part 1. Chapter 64 Journey to Libertalia Part 2. Chapter 65 A Small Errand and an Invitation. Chapter 66 The Battle Beneath the Eclipse. Chapter 1 Arrival. Author's Notes. Hope you all enjoy. When I arrived in Equestria, introductions could have been better, but hey I can't blame them. I mean it's not every day a wolf suddenly appears out of nowhere. So it's understandable that the guard's first reaction was to try and put spears in my face. After evading the guards for some time, I... Oh wait, I need to introduce myself first, nice job idiot. My name is Ash Blade, but a name everybody uses to pick on me in my old world is Nightmare from Hell or Pyro Psycho. Because of an incident that involved fire, it is why I never had any friends. So anyway, why don't we get on with it? Ooh, ouch what happened? I thought. I shook my head to shake off the dizziness and slowly opened my eyes to an amazing sight. I was lying down in a large room with beautiful large stained glass windows and a large throne. I guessed it was a throne, because of the intricate detail craftsmanship. When I went to stand on my feet I quickly became unbalanced and fell on my back with a large thud. I was about to get up to try again, but then I saw one of the most shocking things I had ever seen. Instead of hands. I have pause. I screamed in my head. Why do I have pause? I saw a mirror in the corner of the room, I tried to walk on my hind paws again but ended up on my face I groaned in pain as I picked myself up on all fours I decided to crawl towards it and found easier to do. After a few falls, I made it to the mirror, only to gasp in shock at what was staring back at me. Looking at my reflection, instead of seeing my familiar image, I was confronted with the image of an ash-gray wolf with bone-white tribal tattoo-like markings running along the sides of my chest. This wolf also had olive-green eyes and sharp teeth and claws. I started freaking out about this. Don't get me wrong, wolves are my favorite animals, but being one is a bit of a twist. Why am I like this? What happened? I thought, last thing I remember before waking up here is walking by the harbor trying to release my anger and forget my pain and injuries from the fight with the alley boys. Then all of a sudden a bright light appears I shielded my eyes so I didn't go blind. The time has finally come, I hear a voice like a ghostly whisper say. He isn't ready, another voice calls. Are you sure he is the one? A third voice asks. It is I can sense that he's the one, a fourth answers. Are you sure we must send him now? When the time is so close at hand he needs years of training, a fifth and final voice added. I'm certain he will be able to do what we could not the first voice said. I lowered my hand to the slightly dimmed light and I was just able to see five ghostly-like silhouettes. 
I stared in awe at the five figures slapping myself out of it. I looked at the figures thinking of what to do in this situation. Wait, hang on, who are all of you and what are you talking about? I asked in a calm voice I could muster. I couldn't see their faces, but I could tell I got their attention and they were looking at me. No need to be scared. We are not here to harm you. Who we are you will know in time, but now the time has come. The first voice said with a calm voice after that the light grew brighter once more enveloping me. After that I wake up here and... Hey you what are you doing here? My thinking was cut off by loud deep voice. I looked to see who shouted at me. At first I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, but I took a second look to see the same thing, a human but with horse-like features and clad in purple and gold armor he had white fur and a mane and tail and three different shades of blue and instead of feet he had hooves. He was giving me a stare that could bore a hole into my soul. I was shocked to see such a sight but what really puzzled me was the horn on his head. He asked me again, only with more anger in his voice. I slowly backed away when he saw what I was doing, he called for more guards. I didn't want to be around when his friends showed up, so I looked for an escape. The only doors here were the ones the guard came from. Hearing the hoof steps getting louder and louder I panicked and decided to make my own exit. I sprinted as quickly and carefully as I could so I didn't fall over to one of the windows and jumped through it to land on the roof of a hallway. I slid down the roof taking tiles and glass from the window with me, I continued to slide without any signs of stopping but before I went over the edge I managed to use my claws to stop me in time. I looked down at the courtyard below to see more horse-like humans looking up at me, maybe because they either heard the window smash or because some tiles or glass fell into the yard. But right now I didn't really care because from the window I could hear the guard bellowing orders to go after me, so I had to think quickly. There was a banner laid between two flagpoles that would hold my weight. So I jumped onto the banner and landed in the fabric but one of the flagpoles came loose I managed to grab a hold of the fabric in my teeth before I could fall into the yard below. I tried to turn my head to look around but I saw a pair of guards with wings circling above me like vultures. I looked around and found a plain glass window, which was my only chance to escape, so I jumped through it and landed on my side. I grunted in pain as I stood up and looked at my right shoulder to see a shard of glass sticking out of it I looked around to see two surprised guards wearing gold armor they had white fur and blue manes and tails, and also had a pair of wings. Without thinking twice I bolted down the hallway away from them. They were still in a state of surprise as I ran away from them. Snapping out of it, one of them called out. Hey you halt, the guard shouted at me. I didn't reply, I just ran. Soon they started chasing me. I ran as carefully and quickly as possible through the twisting hallways which led me to more rooms filled with more horses and guards, until finally I came to a door that led to a garden balcony with no one in it. So without thinking I went in and found a large bush at the back of the garden next to a tree. I winced in pain as, I curled up in a ball beneath the bush because of the wound brushing against the leaves I lay and waited for the guards to pass or give up looking for me. Someone came into the garden and when they came near I held my breath so as to not give away my position. Soon they left and I was safe for now. I crawled out of the bushes and looked at my injury the glass shard was as big as my wound so not much blood leaked out. Luckily I also discovered a large piece of cloth stuck in one of my hind paws I realized it came from the banner from my escape earlier using a piece of the banner as a bandage. I pulled the shard out of my shoulder and quickly tried to tie the makeshift bandage to my wound. After I managed to tie the bandage to the injury and relax a bit I looked at my surroundings. I was standing on a lush green lawn with a tree growing out of it and bushes with flowers around the edge behind it was a low stone wall curios I looked over the stone wall at the city. The view was breathtaking, it was calm and relaxing and quiet. All of a sudden I heard a small tweeting sound coming from behind me. I looked to find a baby crow. Puzzled I looked at the tree to see a nest overstuffed with baby crows. The bigger crow, I assumed was the mother, flew down at first I thought she was going to see if he was alright and carry him back up but what I saw shocked me she started pecking the baby bird leaving cuts on him. The poor guy was injured enough. I stared, stunned at the mother crow's actions at first I decided to turn my head away and ignore the two but that didn't stop the baby bird from crying I looked back and then I saw something I saw myself in him I saw a child being punched and beaten crying out for help that would never come seeing enough I decided to do something about it. I padded my way over to them and gave a low growl. The mother turned and squawked in shock and flew back to the nest. I stared at her, then to the baby bird. I gave him a little nudge with my paw and he responded with a weak chirp. So I used my nose to lift him onto my muzzle and brought him over to the bush. At first the little guy was scared of me and cold. I decided to try making him more comfortable, that way he might start to trust me. I made a nest out of some more remnants of the banner. After that I let him get comfy in his new bed. He seemed to relax a bit and start to trust me. Soon I started to clean his injuries using flower petals which still had drops of dew on them. I gave him some water using my teeth to pick up a garden hose and filled an old bowl one found. I then decided to dig up a few bugs for him. I managed to feed him with these paws which wasn't the easiest task to grab things with but useful for digging. Afterwards he fell asleep I watched him, he looked calm which made me smile. Now I had to figure out what to do with him. I couldn't put him back in his nest and he didn't look well enough to fly. So what do I do? I thought to myself. I looked back at him to see what I thought was a smile and that made me smile even more. That helped me to reach a decision and I didn't think twice on it. I would take care of him, he needs someone to look after him and I needed someone for company. It's perfect, I thought with a big grin. He needs a name. I thought out loud, I think I'll call you Dust. I don't know why but it just feels right. I looked at the sky to see it was turning twilight and I felt tired after the chase. With that I let sleep claim me. My head was filled dreams about that guard and why he could talk and had that horn on his head and why some had wings and why some had neither and why I was brought here. I woke up the next morning hoping everything was a dream but alas I was still a wolf dust was looking much better with most of his wounds closed. I went got some bugs for breakfast for him which he chirped happily at the sight of his meal. After that I inspected my injury it is still open slightly but I cleaned and dressed it with some leftover cloth then starting practicing with my walking I tried to stay off my wounded shoulder my first thought should be rest to let my wound heal but I still need to take care of dust also I need to get comfortable walking like this. After 6 hours I got the hang of it then took care of dust and then took a break and rested for the rest of the day. The next day was the same check my wound feed dust practice walking on 4 legs. After the quick walk I crawled into my makeshift bed made up of leftover cloth and rested my head and looked over at dust who fell asleep after I fed him. 
I haven't left Dust's side after that except only to find bugs for him to eat later and refill the water bowl which I drank from too and he didn't seem to mind at all. But there was one more problem I had to eat too but there was no food in this garden for me. Dang I need to get something to eat otherwise I will starve, I said to myself I looked over at Dust's bed and saw him waking up and staring at me with what I thought was a smile I smiled and crawled out of the bush want to come along Dust I just need to get me something to eat. With that he stood on his bed and I placed my muzzle close to him so he can get on my back or head as soon as he was on we left the bush I looked up at the nest in the tree it looked abandoned which I was happy for. Now I don't have to worry about Dust getting hurt by that crazy mother bird not to mention all the squawking during the night, I thought. I padded my way over to the doors and opened it and stepped into the hallway closing the doors behind me. I heard hoof steps coming from down the hall so we ducked behind a pillar to avoid being seen. A charcoal fur servant with a horn came walking down the hall and passed without noticing me pushing what seemed to be a trolley with food on it sniffing the air and licking my lips I waited for the servant to pass until we crawled out from behind the pillar and were off following the trolley of food. After a few lefts and rights and close calls with some guards we finally came to a brown oak door the servant's horn glowed a tan color along with the door I stared dumbfounded as the doors opened on their own he entered the room first and I followed close behind. I walked inside and found a place to hide dust remained on my head staring around the room I signaled him to be quiet and he nodded. I looked around the room it appeared to be sort of some study or reading room I saw a beautifully crafted desk at the far end of the room with a door next to it, a stunning large fireplace with a couch in front of it, and books crammed into every shelf of the bookcases all in the room. The servant placed the trolley next to the couch and left. I left my hiding spot with dust still holding onto my fur with his claws I made my way over to the trolley of food and I saw a large silver lid covering the food with a silver knife and fork and a glass of water beside it. I lifted the lid with my nose to see the dish I stared at the food licking my lips it was a salad and a side of fruits honestly I wasn't surprised to see these things they are talking horse like humans after all I guess they only eat fruit and veg I dug in while dust watched me eat on the handle of the trolley. After eating the salad and fruit not even bothering to chew I looked at the shelf below on the trolley to reveal another dish covered by a silver lid I lifted the lid again and it revealed a double layer chocolate cake I looked at the desert in awe before shaking my head and dived in. I was on the last piece I stared at it licking my lips. I grabbed the last piece in my jaws savoring the sweet taste of chocolate. Ahem. I stopped mid-chew and swallowed the last of the cake I looked over at Dust who was still sitting on the handle of the trolley only he looked frozen as stone staring at something behind me I slowly turned around to face what was there only to see a tall alabaster white horse like human with a horn and wings with a green blue and pink mane and tail that flowed in a non-existent breeze wearing a white dress with gold trimmings and a picture of the sun on it that also flowed like her mane and tail looking at me with a face that was devoid of any expression. Why is a wolf eating my cake she said. Chapter 2600 feet drop creatures from myth what else could happen. At first everything is calm and silent we stare at each other for what feels like an eternity. I snap back into reality thanks to dust as he lands on my back. My eyes widen at the sight of the white mare in front of me. She seems to be staring at my bandaged shoulder. Without warning, she takes a step forward and slowly reaches out to examine my shoulder closely. I step back just as slowly, giving a low angry growl, maintaining eye contact and waiting for her to make a move. She locks eyes with me and pulls her arm away slightly, the look of fear in her eyes was unmistakable. I still do not trust anyone in this place at all and I am still on edge from the chase. I'm surprised when she takes another step towards me and speaks in a calm motherly tone. It's alright I am not going to hurt you. I just want to have a look at your injury so it can be tended to. So, if you will calm down and let me look at it she said as she went to pat my head and reach for my makeshift bandage. Thanks for the offer but I don't trust you. Also it's not wise to pat a wolf, I replied. As soon as the words left my lips her eyes widen as big as saucers and she flinches away from me. She seems surprised by the fact that I can speak. Thinking quickly, I decide to take this opportunity to get the hell out of here. I dash through the doors to my left and slide across the hallway knocking into the opposite wall. I check my back to see if dust is okay. I see and feel him gripping my fur for dear life. I turn my head back to the room to still see the mare on the floor staring at me in confusion. Suddenly, two guards come around the corner and stop and stare at me for a moment before they draw their swords. Frightened, I run in the direction of the garden balcony, hoping to take refuge there. But unfortunately my path is blocked by a patrol of guards coming in the opposite direction. In between the patrol and I was another hallway, so I run in this direction, away from both sets of guards chasing me. The hallways twist and turn and led me all over the place. I keep on running into guards and feel like I'm almost out of energy. I had to think of something fast as I continue to run through the endless maze of hallways, hoping to find a way out. I see a pair of doors that lead to the outside, but it isn't the same balcony as I had hoped for. This balcony has a completely normal stone balcony. Below, is a path that runs alongside the cliff face I can hear the guards getting closer, so with my options limited I jump onto the path. I cringed at the landing because of my shoulder, I look back at dust to see if he was alright, he is still clinging to me and gives me a tentative chirp to let me know he is alright. I look at the path and see that it is sturdy and wide enough for me to walk on. There it is. I hear a shout come from the balcony. I quickly peer over my shoulder to see a guard pointing at me. Before he jumps down I ran along the path hoping it leads me somewhere safe. I continue to run along the path until it comes to a waterfall with a ledge hanging over the edge which I luckily notice before losing my footing. I turn around and see the guards block the way back, so I take a step back, my hind paw just at the edge. We got you now, there's no place to hide, a guard said while panting from all the running. I looked over my options quickly, option 1, I can surrender and pray they show mercy, chance of survival at 15%, option 2, a 600 foot drop into the misty unknown, chance of survival 0.5%. I carefully consider these two options, neither one very appealing. I look at Dustin he looks back at me with worry in his eyes. I then look at the guards who are getting close to us. I think fighting might be a good way out of this but I'm outnumbered and outmatched, the only thing I can do was pray for a miracle. All of a sudden the ground beneath us gives way, dropping dust and I into the foggy abyss. Uh, what happened, am I dead? I woke up to a light pecking on my head as I open my eyes and search my surroundings. I am in some sort of forest it seems. At first I had no idea how I got here, but then the memories from the night before come flooding back into my head. 
Hold on, Dust. Where are you, Dust? I yell, snapping my head upwards, looking for my friend. I hear a chirp next to me and turn to see a ball of black feather staring up at me. I scoop him up in a hug, not too hard to crush him. Not letting go for a while. I finally let go after what feels like a lifetime. I look in the direction of the waterfall from which we fell, giving a low whistle at the distance of our fall. How did we survive that? I shrug, thinking, we survived it, that's the important part, not how. I then look at the sky, it looks to be noon at that moment. I feel my throat and realize that I am thirsty. I walk over to the river and dust follows me, I stare at the water and it looks crystal clear, so I dip my muzzle into the river and take as much water as I can. Dust is the same. I pull my muzzle out of the river licking the last drops from my face and look at dust, who just looks at his stomach. Knowing what he wanted I dig a hole in the ground and find some bugs for dust's lunch he gives me a happy chirp after I feed him a huge worm. This fills me with happiness when he gives me a chirp and seeing him smile too. Movement in the river catches my attention and I see some fish swimming by. My staring was interrupted by my growling stomach. Dust stares at me with his head tilted to the side in confusion, it took everything I had to not move at all. I was standing in the river hoping for some fish to pass. I may have been like that for half an hour until some fish got close enough for me to use my claws. I knocked two fish out of the water and onto the shore, I smiled at my catch and dust seemed surprised. I step out of the river and shake myself dry, spraying dust with tiny water droplets he glares at me while I chuckle at his misfortune and continue to my wriggling prey and use my claws to kill them so they wouldn't suffer anymore. I decide to eat them raw because I can't light a fire with paws and it would take too long to gather the materials to create one, not to mention the cooking tools to cook the fish. Also a fire would be an open invitation to those guards and who knows what else, I don't want to take unnecessary risks. After I finish eating the last fish and look at the forest, getting this eerie feeling that we are being watched. I stare at the tree line keeping an eye out for any movement, then all of a sudden a pair of yellow eyes are staring right back at me. I quickly grab dust and lift him onto my back and turn my attention back to the pair of eyes. But there's a problem, the pair of eyes turn into three pairs of eyes. My heart skips a beat at what may come next. The eyes move closer and step out of the trees, a paw made of wood appeared and attached to the paw was the rest of the creature. It was a wolf, only instead of flesh and fur, the wolf was completely made out of wood. I was dumbstruck, my mind was filled with so many questions about the creature in front of me. The wolf took a breath and when it released it, I smelt the most disgusting thing I had ever smelled it made me want to puke. Man, has that thing ever heard of a toothbrush and toothpaste, I thought. The wolf turned his head back to the trees and let out a loud bark signaling to another two to join him. I crouched low and got ready to attack, and I let out a threatening growl telling them to back off. But instead of moving away they only got closer and I didn't want to risk dust getting hurt. So I grabbed him off my back and set him down behind me. I turned my head back to face the wooden wolves and extended my claws in readiness of their attack. The wolf on the left attacked first by pouncing in the air to strike over me. I ran underneath it and turned around just as it landed. I attacked using my four claws aiming at its hind leg. My claws struck its mark turning its hind legs to splinters. Tree sap started oozing out of the wound where his leg used to be, making it look like blood. The wolf howled in pain then turned to look at me, pure anger filled its eyes as it started circling around me waiting for an opportunity to attack. I looked at the wolf's wound then looked at its shattered leg I was surprised how fragile the limb was. All of a sudden, I heard a growl come from behind me, I turned and leapt out of the way just in time for another wolf's paws to make a swing at my head. I turned to look at the wolf before I crouched preparing to leap. I leapt at the wolf catching it off guard knocking it onto its back. I opened my jaw wide and bit down on its chest, once I got a firm grip I ripped the front of its chest off. Tree sap started spilling out of its chest like there was no tomorrow. The wolf twitched a few times before it lay on the ground lifeless. I stared at my kill for a minute then looked at the injured wolf who was now cowering away from me with a look of fear in his eyes. I turned my head to face the wolf still standing strong, it was snarling at me, angry that I killed one of its own. I got into a crouching position and got ready to attack we stared at each other for an unknown amount of time, it seemed like forever. The wolf finally charged at me, but I stood my ground waiting for the right opportunity. It opened its jaw to bite me but I sidestepped it and jumped onto its back just as he ran past me. I used my claws to get a grip, once my claws were secure I went to bite its neck. As soon as my jaws got a grip at its neck it immediately tried to shake me off, it even tried to slam me into trees but my grip only got stronger. I must have looked like a cowboy riding an angry bull, I decided to end our fight. I gave a hard pull and ripped its head from its body along with a large stick that looked like the wolf's spine. I spat out its head and retracted my claws and leapt off the wolf's back just as it collapsed. I looked around for the last wolf but all I saw was a tree sap trail that led back into the forest. I looked back at Dust who was looking back at me with both fear and awe in his eyes. I walked over to him and lay down on the ground in front of him. We stared at each other for a while as I tried to think of something to say to him but what do you say in a situation like this? Thankfully I didn't need to because he got up and hugged my paw. I used my other paw to rub his back and comfort him, suddenly, my paw began to feel a little damp. I looked down and I saw Dust's eyes were filled with tears the look of concern for my safety was unmistakable. We stayed like that for what felt like an eternity just clinging to each other as if we would disappear if we let go. After the embrace I dried his tears and picked him up, and placed him on my back and set off into the forest to either find shelter or a settlement. I walked for hours and the sun was starting to set so after digging up some food for Dust and picking some strawberries from a bush for me I climbed into a tree to rest for the evening. I placed Dust onto a leafy branch and said goodnight before I went to sleep on a branch just below him. I awoke the next morning, well that's what I thought it was but it still looked like the middle of the night. I shrugged it off as me wakening up early so I looked around for any predators but saw none, and decided that we should get an early start. I looked at the branch above me and saw Dust with his eyes closed and snoring lightly, I smiled at his cuteness and gently nudged Dust with my paw to get him to wake up. But he only shifted a bit before he started snoring again I shook him a little harder this time, and he woke up and gave a little yawn before he looked up at me. I picked him up with my paw and placed him on my back then I climbed down the tree and got us some more food before we set off again. I walked for half an hour before I heard a roar come from nearby I was about to walk away from the noise because I didn't want to fight so early in the morning while it was still dark. 
But all of a sudden, I heard a scream. I quickly turned around and went to investigate the sounds. I didn't have to walk far before I came close to the location where I heard the scream. I stumbled upon a fight. I looked closer to see more of those horse-like human hybrids. They appeared to be fighting something. I cautiously moved closer without making a sound to see that the six hybrids were all mares and each in a different color. I leaned in closer to try and see who or what the opponent was. I reached out to move some bushes out of my vision. Once they were cleared, I looked to see. A manticore. Why is a creature from Greek mythology here in this messed up place? I thought in panic. I was startled out of my thoughts by one of the mares riding the beast like a bull. She had orange fur with a blonde mane and tail tied at the end to make the hair look like a loop. She also had emerald green eyes and was wearing a brown stetson on her head, a red and white check shirt with a brown best coat and blue jeans that went well with her figure. The beast threw the mare off, and as the mare sailed in the air, she saluted another mare, and the mare saluted back. This mare had cyan blue fur and a rainbow mane and tail and had a pair of wings with magenta colored eyes. She was wearing a white tank top and blue jacket and black pants that hugged her athletic curves. She dashed at the manticore with amazing speed and spun around the beast, creating a rainbow hurricane. It looked like the manticore was getting annoyed with the rainbow pegasus, so it used its tail to swat her away like she was a fly. Rainbow, I hear the others shout out as the rainbow main pegasus skidded to a stop in front of them. I watched as the rest paw at the ground and charged at the manticore. The monster cat did the same as well. Wait, I looked to see a butter yellow fur mare with a pink mane and tail. She also had wings with blue eyes, wearing a green sweater and blue jeans. She stood in between the mares and the manticore, stopping their charge. I was confused as to why the mare told everyone to wait, so I sat still and watched as the yellow pegasus went over to the manticore and gently rubbed its paw. The manticore looked at the yellow pegasus and showed her the thorn that was stuck in the paw's padding. I was surprised the pegasus was able to see it. I continued to watch as the mare went to pull out thorn. As soon as it was removed, the manticore grabbed the mare and let out an ear-splitting roar. Fluttershy, the mare screamed in union concerned for the pegasus safety. I was about to charge in and attack the creature before it could harm the pegasus, but what I saw next made my jaw drop. The manticore was grooming her while purring. It looked like a mother cat grooming her kittens. I smiled at the sight and looked back at Dust. Even he was surprised to see what was happening. The manticore released the pegasus called Fluttershy before it walked off back into the forest. A lavender fur mare with a purple and pink streaked mane and tail walked over to where Fluttershy was standing. She had a horn and magenta eyes wearing a purple skirt with a white undershirt and lavender sweater. The mare and Fluttershy spoke with each other for a bit but I couldn't hear what they were saying because they were too far away. After they talked they left to catch up with the others. I stepped out of the bushes and decided to follow them because they might lead me to a settlement. I looked at Dust and told him of the plan. He nodded his agreement so I looked in the direction they were heading and ran off to catch up with them. I caught up with them and followed them at a safe distance. Suddenly, the trees began to block out the moonlight shrouding the path in darkness. We stumbled around in the dark for a bit unable to see the path but suddenly, I heard a scream I ran in the direction of the scream and came across a few trees with terrifying faces on them and the mares were screaming at the trees in fright. The screaming was stopped by the sound of laughter I looked around and saw a pink fur mare with a pink puffy curly mane and tail that looked like cotton candy, she had blue eyes and was wearing a pink skirt and top and was making faces and laughing at the menacing trees. The lavender unicorn said something to the pink mare but I couldn't hear what she said because the screaming was still echoing in my ears. Suddenly, the pink hyperactive mare busted into a song. After the song all the mares were laughing including Dust and I. We walked some more until we came to a raging river and heard crying, the mares started looking around for the source of the noise and disappeared behind some bushes. I poked my head through the bushes to see a crying purple sea serpent with gorgeous blonde hair and a mustache. Well at least half a mustache. A white fur mare with a curly purple mane and tail started talking to the wailing sea serpent, she also had a horn with light blue eyes and was wearing a white button-up shirt and a skirt that matched the color of her mane and tail. She walked up to the sea serpent and pulled off one of his scales and used it like a knife to cut off most of her own tail and attached it to the missing end of his mustache. The serpent was absolutely thrilled by the gift and as a thank you he turned his body into a makeshift bridge so everyone could cross the river. I managed to get across just in time before the sea serpent dived back into the water and swam away. After some more walking we came to a gorge. I could barely see the outline of a building that lay on the other side because of the thick mist. I watched as the rainbow main pegasus who is called Rainbow Dash dive into the gorge to retrieve the fallen rope bridge. She flew out of the gorge with the bridge in hand and disappeared into the fog to reach the other side. After a few minutes her friends started calling out to her to see if she was okay, she finally reappeared out of the mist smiling and beckoned the others to follow her. Everyone entered what turned out to be the ruins of an old castle. Dust and I separated from the mares to explore the place. We continued to explore when we came across some stairs that led us to what used to be a throne room. Old tapestries were rotting away with age while stone bricks were falling out of the walls, large stone pillars towered over us and were covered in both vines and moss and glass windows were either cracked or shattered. At the back of the room sat a stone throne covered in weeds and crumbling away with time. But what really got my attention were the five dried blood stains on the floor I looked at them for a second. But then, a bright light appeared, I quickly hid in the shadows of a still standing pillar and put my paw to my mouth to signal dust to be quiet. He gave me a nod and I peeked out to view the scene, I saw the lavender unicorn from earlier on the floor coughing, she looks around and gasped in shock. She was staring at the other end of the room, I shared her shock when I saw what she was staring at. In front of the throne was a tall black fur mare with a billowing purple mane and tail with a few dim speckles of light that twinkled like stars on a cold winter night. She had both a horn and wings and slitted cyan eyes with razor sharp teeth the size of kitchen knives and she was wearing blue battle armor. She laughed as lightning bolts struck all around her to make her look intimidating. I looked at her and noticed that five stone spheres were being levitated in her mane. The lavender unicorn looked at the black mare with determination and pawed at the ground ready to charge. You're kidding, you're kidding right. The black mare said as her mane placed the stone spheres on the ground around her. As soon as the words left her lips, the lavender unicorn lit up her horn and charge. Once she saw the lavender unicorn charge at her, the black mare did the same, but the black mare created a spear out of midair. It was dark blue with a crescent moon, under the tip the two points were facing upward to help stab or slice. It didn't really take much to figure out that the black mare planned to impale the lavender unicorn. As they drew close the lavender unicorn disappeared in a flash of light only to reappear behind the black mare, where the stone spheres were placed. 
I turned my head back at the black mare as she raised her spear ready to throw it at the lavender unicorn. The lavender unicorn looked back at the black mare with a look of horror on her face as she saw what the black mare intended to do. I saw her sit there completely frozen in fear, I grabbed dust from my back and placed him on the floor and sprinted over to both of them. As soon as I ran out of the shadows the black mare threw the spear at the lavender unicorn, time slowed down as I ran to reach the spear before it hit its mark. I thought I wasn't going to make it so I poured on more speed and jumped into the air and caught the spear in my jaws. Both the black mare and lavender unicorn stared at me in surprise and awe as caught the spear, I turned my head to stare at the black mare and dropped the spear and growled at her. You dare stand in my path to victory, you filthy animal. Leave now or face death at the hands of me, Nightmare Moon. She screamed. Her voice was as loud as thunder. I flattened my ears against my head and placed my paws over them to try and block out the noise. I rubbed my ears and looked at Nightmare Moon. I crouched low into an attack position and growled at her while showing my teeth to show her that I wasn't scared of her. The lavender unicorn continued to stare at me slack-jawed. The wolf, I thought that the only wolves around here were the timber wolves, not flesh and fur wolves. What's a wolf doing here anyway and why did he save me? Twilight thought as she continued to watch. As I was having a staring contest with my opponent, we continued to look at each other for a few minutes, neither of us willing to make a move. As I looked into her eyes, I could sense fear in them. She took a step away from me while I stepped forward still growling at her. Wait a minute that look in your eyes, I've seen it before, a long time ago, but where? Nightmare Moon said while lifting her finger to her chin and started tapping it. I raised an eyebrow at what she said and tilted my head to the side in confusion as Nightmare Moon looked around the room as if she was searching for something. It looked like she spotted what she was looking for because her eyes widened in realization. I followed her gaze and saw that she was staring at the blood stains on the floor. After I looked at the patches of dried red liquid I turned my head back to Nightmare Moon. After a few more seconds of staring she finally turned her head back to face me. Ah now I remember those five humans had the same look in their eyes before I killed them, Nightmare Moon said before letting out a laugh. Both the unicorn mare and I stared at her in shock at what she just said. I couldn't believe it there were other humans here and she killed them. My shock turned to anger and then my anger turned to pure rage. I pounced at her and bit into an unarmored part of her arm Nightmare Moon let out a scream of pain as I drew blood from her arm. Instead of the blood being red like normal blood it was as black as coal. I turned my head only to see an armored fist collide with the side of my head forcing me to let go of her arm and knocking me a few feet away from her. Umangey Kerr you just dug your own grave. Nightmare Moon screamed at me while holding her arm to try and stop the bleeding. I got back on all fours and checked for any injuries she might have inflicted. The wound on my shoulder had opened up and was bleeding quickly, and a little blood spilled out of my mouth. Nightmare's horn was surrounded by a cyan aura. A blast shot straight from her horn speeding towards me. I dodged out of the way just in time. The blast impacted into a smoking crater where I had been standing moments ago. Nightmare Moon charged towards me, her horn in readiness to fire at me again. I dashed towards her dodging each blast as she fired them. I ran under her legs and grabbed one of her hooves in my jaw and pulled, causing her to fall over. I started to spin around with her hoof still in my jaws picking up speed. Once I got enough speed up, I let go of her hoof and she flew through the air towards the entrance and landed skidding along the ground. She picked herself up and looked herself over before she turned her head and glared at me in anger. I crouched once more to get ready to either dodge or attack. Nightmare Moon looked behind me to see the lavender mare seeming to arrange the five stone sphere as if to activate something in them. I noticed her looking behind me and was about to turn around but Nightmare Moon turned herself into a purple cloud of smoke and flew off behind me. As the lavender unicorn continued to arrange the spheres, she was suddenly thrown into me. We rolled along the ground turning us both into a ball of gray and lavender fur. We came to a stop and the lavender unicorn was lying on top of me. She looked at me and I looked at her it seemed like time stood still and she started apologize to me as she scrambled to get off. We turned our attention over to Nightmare Moon who was looking at the stone spheres in a panic as they started to glow and spark. Suddenly, the sphere stopped glowing and went back to being stone spheres. The lavender unicorn seemed to have a look of horror and confusion on her face. But where's the sixth element? She said, while Nightmare Moon just laughed and she brought up an armored hoof and slammed it on the ground shattering the spheres to pieces. You little foals thinking you can defeat me. Now you will never see your princess or your son. The night will last forever. Nightmare Moon roared letting out a laugh. I was about to charge when I heard voices come from behind calling for someone named Twilight which I figured was the unicorn beside me. I looked at the mare in question only to see her looking at Nightmare Moon defiantly. You think you can destroy the elements of harmony just like that? Well you're wrong, because the spirits of the elements of harmony are right here. Twilight said, as her friends came up the stairs and the remains of the stone spheres began to glow. I ran as fast as my body would allow as my injury was slowing me down somewhat to where I had hid dust while Twilight was talking. I grabbed dust and placed him on my back and stuck my head out from behind the pillar. I watched as five of the six mares were wearing necklaces while Twilight wore a tiara. All of a sudden, I felt a large surge of power and saw a rainbow spiral launch upward and then come down on Nightmare Moon. The rainbow spiraled around Nightmare Moon enveloping her in a rainbow tornado. Then, there was a bright flash that blinded me for a few seconds. Once I regained my sight I looked to where Nightmare Moon was standing, only to see a young mare in her place. She was sleeping peacefully with pieces of Nightmare Moon's armor laid out around her. I then turned my head to see all six mares laying on the ground unconscious. I decided that it was time for both Dust and I to leave. I took a step but fell on my still bleeding shoulder, I cursed myself but then heard a noise and saw the mares start to wake up, I picked myself up and moved back behind the pillar and silently watched. One by one, the mares began to awaken. They each looked at each other, some checking each other for injuries and others complimenting each other's accessories. I even saw the white unicorn's tail back at to its original size and beauty and I was about to reveal myself to them. But all of a sudden, a bright light appeared within the room. I had to shield my eyes away from the light otherwise, I would have been blinded. After the light dimmed it revealed the white mare I saw when I first arrived here. I looked at the six mares and saw them bow to the white mare while twilight walked over to her. Princess Celestia, Twilight said as she got closer to the white mare. 
I was confused as to why she called her princess at first but then I saw the crown behind her horn and remembered the mare's bowing, then everything clicked into place. Twilight Sparkle, my faithful student. Celestia replied giving her a hug. While both of them were talking I started looking for a way out but decided I should wait for them to leave and pray they didn't find me. I peeked out of my hiding place to see Celestia begin to walk over to the still sleeping mare. Princess Luna, Celestia said just as the young mare awoke and sat up. She had blue fur and a light blue mane and tail she also had a horn and wings and cyan eyes but hers were more rounded instead of slitted, she was wearing a blue dress with black trimmings and her dress had a picture of a crescent moon on it. I was awed at her beauty, but slapped myself out of my trance and focused back in the conversation. We were meant to rule together little sister. I sat there surprised by the fact that those two were sisters. Will you accept my friendship? Celestia finished. We all went as silent as the grave waiting for her to give her answer. I'm so sorry. I missed you so much big sister, Luna jumped up hugging her sister with tears in her eyes. I missed you too, Celestia said as she returned the hug, her eyes filling up with tears. I let out a huge smile and felt some tears run down my face at the reunion of the two. But the moment was ended when I heard a gasp of shock and horror. I looked at the six mares to see the white unicorn was the one that had cried out. I looked her over to try and see what was wrong. It seemed that her hooves were standing in a puddle of red liquid. At first I was confused but then I realized she was standing in a puddle of my blood. Ew what is this stuff? The white unicorn cried while trying to look away from the liquid. Twilight walked over to her and looked at the puddle and placed her fingers in it coating them in red. She looked at it for a few minutes before her eyes widened in shock and looked up at the white unicorn. Rarity, don't freak out but you're standing in a puddle of blood, Twilight said in an uneasy tone. Everyone gasped in shock and moved away from puddle while staring at it. As soon as the word blood reached her ears Rarity started hyperventilating. Celestia summoned a bag for her to breathe into while Fluttershy turned pale and everyone else looked at the puddle with a mixture of fear and disgust. Why exactly didn't ya tell us you were bleeding TWI? The orange mare said in a southern accent. Because I am not bleeding Applejack, Twilight replied. Then if you aren't bleeding, who in Tarnation's blood is this? Applejack asked with worry in her voice while pointing at the puddle. Twilight was silent for a minute trying to think of an answer to the question. She started pacing back and forth while rubbing her chin. Well after Nightmare Moon grabbed the elements I went to grab them but I got teleported here and saw Nightmare Moon standing over there while holding the elements. She said while pointing at the throne at the back before she continued. So I activated my horn and charged at her. As soon as I charged Nightmare Moon summoned a spear and charged at me. Before I got impaled I teleported behind her so I could activate the elements of harmony but when I looked back I saw Nightmare Moon getting ready to throw the spear at me. I was so scared, I couldn't move when. She threw the spear at me and my whole life flashed before my eyes. I closed my eyes and waited for the pain but it never came, I opened my eyes to see oh my Celestia where is he? Twilight screamed as she looked around as if she was searching for something. Where's who Twilight? Applejack asked. The wolf, he was right here. Twilight yelled. Twilight calm down, take deep breaths and explain, Celestia said. Twilight took a deep breath before she continued. There was a wolf here but not a timber wolf a wolf that had flesh blood and fur. He managed to catch the spear before it could impale me, he's the reason that I'm still alive. He even took Nightmare Moon head on in combat and wounded her. He was fast strong and Nightmare Moon looked scared of him, Twilight said, while the five mares had their mouths open in shock and surprise upon hearing how the wolf took on Nightmare Moon and managed to wound her, as Princess Celestia looked at Luna with concern. Wait, hang on, this wolf had flesh and fur and he took on Nightmare Moon all by himself, and managed to wound her. Twilight is you sure you weren't seeing things? Besides, Nightmare Moon is fear itself. She doesn't have any fear, Rainbow Dash said. Rainbow I know what I saw, he was here. How else would you explain the blood on the floor? Twilight said. Rainbow was about to answer but closed her mouth deciding best not to speak. Are you alright my faithful student? Celestia asked in a motherly tone. I'm fine but the wolf was injured during the fight with Nightmare Moon, we have to find him, Twilight replied. As soon as I heard the words, find him, I crept from my hiding place. While they were still occupied with talking, I made my way to the exit. But suddenly, I felt an itch on my nose and needed to sneeze. I quickly covered my nostrils with my paw and waited for the sneeze to pass. Once the sensation passed, I removed my paw from my face and continued onward. But the itch came back and before I could react. Ah chew. I quickly covered my mouth and cursed my luck under my breath and waited for them to turn around and spot me. Bless you, I heard everyone say in union. I sighed in relief and continued towards the exit, I was halfway there when I heard Twilight speak up and I froze. Wait a second, who sneezed? Everyone shook their heads in reply. Twilight continued, well if none of you sneezed, and I didn't sneeze, then who was it? Twilight said and everyone turned their head to my direction. They all stared at me as if I was the strangest thing they have ever seen in their lives and I looked back at them waiting for anyone to say or do something. Some noticed my injury and cringed away from it but Fluttershy and Twilight looked at me with concern. Celestia stared into my eyes and froze, the room was completely silent for a few minutes. Fluttershy broke the silence and began to walk towards me staring deep into my eyes. Breaking out of my trance I ran for the exit taking them all by surprise at the sudden movement in my speed. I reached the exit and turned around to look at their still surprised faces, I gave them a firm nod and ran down the stairs. Hey get back here, Rainbow Dash cried out as I disappeared down the stairs but I did not reply I just ran. I made it to the bottom of the stairs and shielded my eyes from the sudden light. My eyes adjusted to the light and I could see it was daytime. I looked around at my surroundings. Searching for the exit, I found my goal and ran to it but I was startled by a rainbow blur. Rainbow Dash zoomed in front of me to block my path but, I wasn't going to let her stop me. She reached low to try and grab me, I jumped over her and cringed as I landed because I landed on my wounded leg. Instead of stopping for a rest, I continued to run. I ran as fast as I could ignore the pain while dust was still clinging to my fur, as we ran across the bridge and into the trees. I continued to run for a good distance before the adrenaline wore off and I felt exhaustion and pain. I stopped for a rest and looked at my shoulder. I had lost a lot of blood and I was still bleeding. 
I'd lost the cloth bandage in the castle while I was fighting Nightmare Moon. I lay on the ground and waited to catch my breath. I felt dust jump off of my back and onto the ground, he rested there while looking at me with worry. I quickly looked for something to use as a bandage, I saw some large leaves and some vines. I looked back and forth and deciding between the two I had an idea. All of a sudden I heard a snap come from behind me. I turned around to find nothing there. I stared into the trees for a bit but nothing moved. I shrugged it off as maybe a bird or falling branch. I stood up and grabbed the largest leaf and a good strong vine. I wrapped the leaf around my wound and then I went to tie the leaf to my shoulder using the vines. I heard another noise but didn't turn around, instead I tied the last knot to hold the leaf to my shoulder and waited as the sounds got closer. I waited, and as soon as they came in range I turned around in a flash and pounced on my prey. I landed on top of my target taking it completely by surprise. I got a better look at my catch only to realize it was twilight and she appeared to be gasping for air. I realized that my forepaw was crushing her windpipe. I immediately climbed off of her and backed up so she had room to breathe. She took a sharp inhale of air and started coughing. After the coughing subsided, she looked at me and stared into my eyes for a few minutes. She then turned her attention to my patched up shoulder, then she looked at me with caution as if I would attack at any moment. Well it seems you're going to be fine. I was worried there for a minute, she said with relief as she went to pat my head. Hey, I prefer if you didn't do that thanks. I mean seriously what am I a pet? I said backing away from her hand, her eyes then widened and she began to open her mouth to scream. I quickly shoved my paw over her mouth to stop her from screaming. Whoa, hold on. Now listen, you can't shriek or scream, otherwise you will bring every predator in the area down on us. And I'm not exactly fit enough to be able to fight right now. She nodded her head in agreement as she let out a muffled okay. All right I am going to let go of you now. I said as I removed my paw from her mouth and backed away sitting opposite of her. How can you talk? I mean wolves don't talk, that's just impossible, it is simply impossible. She exclaimed. Well I guess it's because I'm not a wolf to begin with Miss Twilight Sparkle, I replied. Wait, you're not a wolf? She asked in shock. I held up my paw to silence her which she complied with. I lowered my paw and said, well Miss Twilight. Oh please just call me Twilight, she corrected. Well Twilight I want some answers as well, so let's take it in turns, that way we both get some answers but I am only going to answer four questions about myself because I don't trust you yet. But, I will answer each question truthfully and you will also answer my questions truthfully okay. She nodded her head in agreement. Right I will go first because you asked last time and that also counts as a question by the way. So my first question is what species are you? Because I have never seen anything like you before, I asked and waited for her answer. Well I'm basically a unicorn pony, she answered and looked at me for a minute thinking of a question for me to answer. Okay my second question is how did you know my name? I overheard your teacher call you it along with some of your friends, I said. My second question is where I am. You're in Equestria, she said. Looks like I'm not on earth anymore, I thought. My third question is where you come from, she asked while she shifted into a more comfortable position. I come from a planet called Earth, I answered. Twilight's eyes widened in surprise by my answer. I let her take it all in before I spoke. Third question, why were those two princesses the only ones that have wings and a horn? Well, they are both alicorns and they represent all three nations of ponies. The Earth ponies don't have wings or horns and they grow food for every pony. The Pegasus has wings and controls the weather, the unicorns have horns and can use magic, she answered. All right, next question exactly why are you here? I thought carefully about my answer to this question, I don't really have a purpose here. Someone or something brought me here, I answered in a sad tone. Twilight seemed surprised again, hearing this and looked at me with pity. I'm sorry, she said. You don't need to be sorry for something you didn't do, I said with a smile on my face reassuring her. All right, last question what did Nightmare Moon was it? Twilight nodded. What did she mean when she said she killed five humans when they were here? Twilight looked away from me in shame. I'm sorry I wish I knew the answer to that but I don't, she replied with regret. I walked over to her and placed my paw on her shoulder. You don't need to be sorry for not having all the answers just as long as you are honest with me, there is no harm done. I said as I released her shoulder. She gave me a smile and I smiled back. We sat there in silence for a few minutes but the silence was soon interrupted by a chirping coming from beside me. I looked down to see Dust looking up at both of us. Oh, I'm sorry Dust, I completely forgot about you. Dust I'd like you to meet Twilight Sparkle. Twilight Sparkle I would like you to meet my companion Dust. Twilight slowly reached out with her hand and held it in front of the baby bird. Dust looked at me nervous I gave him a little nudge with my muzzle encouraging him to go on. Dust hoped forward once, then twice and continued until he was standing on her hand. Twilight lifted him close to her face and they stared at each other for a bit, she smiled at him and went to use her free hand to pet him. At first he cowered away from the other hand but when he saw nothing dangerous he moved closer and snuggled into the hand. Oh look at that, he likes you already, I said as Dust snuggled in closer and let out a happy chirp. He is absolutely adorable, where did you find him? Twilight asked. Sorry Twilight, I said only four questions and you used them all. But if I can learn to trust you and your friends I will tell you everything you want to know about me okay? Oh alright, Twilight pouted as she handed Dust back to me. Well take care Twilight, until we meet again. I said and I turned to leave but stopped as I heard Twilight gasp in surprise. What is it Twilight? I asked with concern in my voice looking back to Twilight. You have a cutie mark, she said in surprise while pointing at my rear. A cutie mark what are you talking about, I asked with a raised eyebrow in confusion. I looked to where she was pointing and stared confused at what I saw. It was a picture on my rear of a sword facing downward sheathed in a blue shield with a pair of wings sticking out the sides of the shield. The wings themselves had feathers like a bird on the top half and webbed on the lower half like a bat. I looked on the other side to see the same image before I looked back at Twilight confused. A cutie mark shows a pony's special talent and only ponies get them when they discover their talent, she said as she lifted her skirt up a bit to reveal a magenta six-pronged star with five white smaller ones around it. I felt my checks warm up at the action so I quickly looked away. Wow you just get more interesting by the minute. I can't wait to learn more about you, she squealed as she looked at my cutie mark once more, completely unaware of my reddening cheeks. 
Well, thanks for telling me that, so I guess I'll see you around twilight, I said as I turned to leave. Trying to stop the burning feeling from spreading all over my face. Wait, how will I find you? She called. You won't, I will find you. I said as I disappeared into the trees. Twilight sat there for a minute smiling before the realization hit her. Oh Celestia, I forgot to ask for his name, she said face palming while turning around to walk back towards the castle. He can talk. Five mares screamed as Twilight told them of her encounter with the wolf. Twilight darling, maybe you imagined it, wolves don't talk. It's impossible, Rarity said. Yeah TWI, a wolf with flesh and blood and fur is one thing, but a talking wolf. I think you're full of it. I mean what's next, he has a cutie mark, Rainbow Dash said laughing at the end. I can vouch for the fact the wolf can talk, Celestia said causing everyone to gasp in shock. You heard him speak when princess, Applejack asked. Three days ago, he'll tell you on the way back to Ponyville if you all would be interested. Celestia asked. I'd be glad to, Applejack replied. So Twilight did you get the name of your canine savior? Rarity asked while letting out a small giggle. Sorry Rarity, I didn't, but I did learn some other things about him, she replied. Well tell us then, I am quite curious, Celestia said all eyes turned to Twilight eager to learn more about the wolf. Well first off he isn't from Equestria, he comes from a distant planet called Earth. Every pony gasped in shock at this. He also says he wasn't a wolf all his life but was changed when he arrived here, every pony looked at each other in confusion. Wait did you say he was turned into a wolf? What in Tartarus is he then? Rainbow Dash asked. I don't know, I didn't ask but he seemed interested in what Nightmare Moon meant when she said something about five creatures called humans. This grabbed the attention of both Celestia and Luna, while every pony else looked at each other in confusion after hearing the word human. He seemed anxious to know about it but now that I think about it he seemed really mad when Nightmare Moon said she killed them, at those words the five mares gulped. Princess is everything okay? Twilight asked looking at her mentor in worry. Celestia snapped back to reality and looked at her student and subjects. I'm fine just lost in thought, she said. Twilight nodded before she continued. Well he had no idea where he was and he said he has no purpose in coming here. He told me he's here because some pony or something forced him to be here. Oh and Rainbow, the rainbow maned flyer perked up at the mention of her name. I forgot to mention, he does have a cutie mark. At these words Rainbow's jaw hit the dirt while every pony else stared at Twilight in amazement. Could you draw us a picture of what it looked like? Celestia asked handing Twilight a roll of parchment a quill and an inkwell. Twilight took the quill parchment in her hands and the inkwell in her own magic she dipped the quill into the inkwell and started drawing a mark on the parchment. When she was done she showed it to every pony. The five mares stared at the mark in awe as Twilight showed them. She then handed the drawing over to Celestia. As soon as Celestia's eyes saw the picture her eyes shrunk and handed the parchment over to Luna whose reaction was the same. Sister, do you think? Luna asked looking up at her older sister. I believe so little sister, Celestia replied. Princess what's wrong? Twilight asked. Celestia looked at Twilight and her subjects and spoke in a calm voice. Every pony, that wolf is more important than you can possibly imagine. I believe I know what his species is and why he has been called here. Author's Notes. Well here it is let me know what you all think. And if there are problems you wish for me to change then please let me know. Chapter 3 Destiny and Proper Introductions. He survived a 600 feet drop from the C-A-N-T-E-R-L-O-T -E waterfall how is that possible? Rainbow Dash yelled as the royal carriage made its way to Ponyville. The six mares and Princess Luna were listening to Celestia's tale of how she meet the mysterious wolf. I don't know how he survived all I know is that he survived the fall, Celestia said in a calm tone, as the main six and Luna stared at Celestia, hanging on every word of the tale, looking at her with awe in their eyes. What happened then princess? Twilight asked looking up at her mentor with expression to learn more on her face. I sent my guards to go look for his body but the only thing we found were some fish bones and two dead timber wolves, one had its chest ripped open the other had its head and spine torn from its body, and there was a tree sap trail leading into the forest. Celestia finished with a grim expression on her face while the others looked like they were going to be sick. That's horrible, how can he kill creatures like that? Fluttershy asked her face turning green. Then what princess? Twilight asked swallowing her breakfast before it could leave her mouth. I called off the search, it would have been too dangerous for my guards to follow, Celestia said. Twilight do you think we will be able to see him again? Because I need to throw him thanks for saving Twilight and helping stop Nightmare Moon, and a welcome to Equestria party, a pink mare said. I don't know Pinky, he told me he doesn't trust any of us right now, but he did say when we have earned his trust he will come to us, Twilight said as she turned her head back to the Everfree Forest. Oh, by the way princess, what did you mean when you said you know what his species is and why he is here? Does it have something to do with those creatures called humans? Twilight said turning her head to face the white princess. Celestia looked at everyone present in the carriage inside. I think it's best to start at the beginning. After the three tribes came together, a dark force rose from the shadows to try and take over Equestria. The dark army would have overwhelmed us, if it weren't for our mother who searched the universe for help. When she returned she brought five heroes to our world, a race called humans. They were a group of intelligent bald apes that stood on two legs, had small eyes and muzzles, and their clothing was different from ours along with their weapons. I have never seen such strange creatures before, but how they performed in battle was extraordinary, it only took one of them to bring down an army of 300 demons. The six mares had their mouths open in both shock and awe after hearing how much damage one of them could do. Over time the war ended and they stayed in Equestria. Luna and I became close with them, they had a kind and gentle side to themselves and often showed it when they weren't in battle, and were great protectors and kept our lands at peace. They eventually became known as the Five Knights of Equestria. What happened to them and why haven't I heard of them before? Twilight asked. Hearing this Celestia's face fell. The last event involving them was when Nightmare Moon appeared. I watched when they fought but they didn't attack her because as you know, Luna turned into Nightmare Moon, and they would not attack the ones they swore to protect. So instead they tried to reason with her but failed. Eventually Nightmare Moon claimed their lives and I thought it'd be best I erase them from history. After listening to the story Luna broke down into hard sobs burying her face in her hands. 
Celestia placed a comforting wing around Luna, softly speaking soothing words to calm her sister. It's my fault. It's entirely my fault. Luna wailed. No Luna, it's not your fault, Celestia said. Yes it is Tia, if I hadn't turned into that monster then they would still all be alive and well, Luna half said and half sobbed. The carriage was silent for a few minutes, listening to the sobs of the Luna princess. Eventually she stopped and sat in silence, only to be broken when Twilight spoke. Princess what exactly do these humans have to do with the wolf? She said everyone looked at the princess awaiting her answer. Celestia looked at Twilight and sighed, one day as Luna and I were walking in the halls of our old home I saw Starsworld the bearded speaking with one of the knights about there being another knight. Starsworld showed him a picture of the mark you drew Twilight and he said that this symbol will let him to the one he seeks. Before he died the knight asked me to look for the sixth knight in their place, and said he would be able to achieve what they couldn't and that mark appears to be on our mysterious wolf. So that wolf is a human and one of these so-called legendary knights Rainbow Dash asked with a smug grin. Yes that is correct Twilight, you said he would reveal himself to you if you earn his trust correct. Celestia asked turning her attention to Twilight. Yes princess that's what he said, why? Twilight asked. As soon as he shows himself contact me immediately, I must speak with him, Celestia instructed. Three weeks later. It's been three weeks since the incident with Nightmare Moon and life has been the same. Wake up find food, explore the forest, avoid beasts and keep eyes out for the six mares. Dust has also learned how to fly and is learning how to find his own food. But he won't leave me, it's like I'm a big brother to him and I wouldn't have it any other way. We have been staying in the castle and I managed to find a library and have done some research on the humans. But my results so far have come up as zero. I gave a frustrated sigh and slammed my latest red clothes. This doesn't make any sense there should be some info on these humans Nightmare Moon mentioned. Unless she was lying, but still I need to find out. Squawk I nearly jumped out of my chair when I heard a familiar black bird squawking and flying through a broken window. Oh, dot hey dust how was the flight? I said as dust landed on the table letting out a positive squawk. I'm glad, sigh dust took a hop over to me and tapped his beak on the book one was reading. Not going so well but I need to take a break and grab some food. Care to join me? My response was a nod, so with that dust flew onto my back and we were off. We came to the river and I caught some fish while dust grabbed some bugs. I just finished and sat down and looked at the sky and stared thinking about the six mares. I closed my eyes and listened to the sounds around me and became completely lost in thought. Ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
That's really dangerous, you could have been killed, you know that you three are lucky I came along. Otherwise you would have been his lunch, I said in a stern voice. Yeah, I guess we didn't think that one through, the yellow filly said in a sad tone. Well the important thing is you're alive and that you learned a valuable lesson. Never mess with a dangerous animal okay? I said with a smile and the yellow filly smiled back. So you guys are looking for your cutie marks am I right? My answer was nods from each filly. Yep, I'm Apple Bloom, the yellow filly said. I'm Sweetie Belle, the white unicorn said. And I'm Scootaloo, the Pegasus said. And we are the cutie mark crusaders. They screamed in union. So you guys go around and do stuff to get a picture on your thighs? I asked. Yeah how do you know that? Scootaloo asked. Because I have a cutie mark, I answered. Liar, only ponies get cutie marks, not wolves. Sweetie Belle said. Oh then what's that on my thigh? I asked them all with a smug grin. The three fillies looked at me in confusion before looking at my thigh and gasped in astonishment. Whoa, that cutie mark is totally wicked. What does it mean? Scootaloo asked. Don't know, but I'll find out, I said with a smile. I saw light up ahead which told me we were coming close to exiting the forest. I stepped into the light and shielded my eyes from the brightness. Once my eyes adjusted, I looked around at a vast field filled with grass. Looking beyond the field I saw a village. Is that it over there? I asked looking at the fillies. Yeah that's Ponyville over there. Let's get Scootaloo over to my house, I'm sure my big sister can help her, Apple Bloom said. Nodding my head in agreement I walked over to the path that led into town. As we got closer I started to see more bipedal ponies going about their daily business. Some of the locals gave me looks of fear, while others ran inside and locked their doors and closed their shutters. But I just kept walking, following Apple Bloom's directions until we came to a vast orchard of trees with apples growing on them. I followed the dirt path until I came to an old farmhouse. On the porch, sitting in an old rocking chair asleep was an elderly mare with green fur and a white mane done up in a bun. Her brown and cream dress hid her tail and she was wearing an orange scarf with pictures of apples on it and white frills. She was also wearing a frilly white apron with a picture of an apple pie on it. Granny we got company. Apple Bloom cried as she helped the injured Pegasus off my back, waking the old mare from her slumber. Wah, dot who is it? The old mare replied. Granny I would like you to me underscore, Apple Bloom started. Girls get away from that monster. The old mare cried as she reached for a broom to hit me. Back to the forest with ya. The old mare yelled, as she made a swing at my head with her broom. Luckily I was able to dodge her swing. Wait granny, he saved this. Apple Bloom said, grabbing the old mare's arm before she could take another swing. This grabbed the attention of the old mare as she lowered the broom. Apple Bloom started to tell the tale of how she and her friends were saved from a manticore and how I brought them home. Once Apple Bloom was finished, the old mare scolded Apple Bloom about going into the forest. What incarnation is going on out here? Another voice from inside the house got everyone's attention. The door opened to reveal Applejack with a look of anger on her face. But her face turned to one of surprise when she saw me. Um hi, I said as I looked at the mare. What are you doing here? Applejack asked. Wait, you two know each other? Apple Bloom asked. Sort of, we meet in the forest when she and her friends defeated Nightmare Moon. And to answer your question Applejack, I was dropping these three off. I managed to stop them from becoming food for a manticore when they were in the forest. I replied. At these words Applejack turned to look at the fillies her face red with anger. I'll deal with you later Apple Bloom. As for you two, you should know better than to go into the Everfree on your own. Y'all should be thankful to this here wolf for saving your fur. Applejack said, while the three fillies looked at the ground in shame. Thank y'all kindly for saving my sister mister, I'm sorry I don't know your name, Applejack said turning back to me. Oh where are my manners, I'm sorry name's Ash Blade, but you can call me Ash for short, I said while extending a paw for the mare to shake. Applejack looked at my paw then me and smiled and reached out for my paw. Nice Tom eat y'all Ash. As you know, I'm Applejack. This here is Granny Smith and you already met Apple Bloom. My brother should be around here somewhere, she said while shaking my paw with insane grip and speed. Well, I can't wait to meet him. He sounds like a swell guy, also that's quite a handshake you got there, I said as I rubbed my paw from the pain throbbing through it. Oh sorry, sometimes when I meet new people I tend to get a little excited and I forget my strength, Applejack said with a sheepish grin. It's alright, I replied with a smile. Ah, there you are Big Mac, we got company. Applejack said turning her line of vision just behind me. I turned my head to see a red-furred stallion with an orange mane and tail, large muscles, a plain red button-up shirt with half an apple picture on it and blue jeans. He looked at me in confusion before he looked at Applejack. Ash this is Big Macintosh or Big Mac or Mac for short. Big Mac this is the wolf I told you about, Ash Blade but call him Ash for short, Applejack said while pointing at me. Nice to meet you Big Mac, I said while extending my paw like before. Mac looked at me with a blank expression before he smiled and grabbed my hand. Nice to meet you Dash, thanks for helping AJ with Nightmare Moon, he said with a firm shake of his hand. No problem. Oh I completely forgot Scootaloo's leg is injured, you think you can help her? I asked with concern. Everyone turned their attention to the three girls and the Pegasus in question. Applejack walked over to Scootaloo and placed her hands on her leg. As soon as Applejack put pressure on her leg, Scootaloo cried out in pain. Looks like you sprained it sugar cube. Mac can you carry her inside and place her onto the couch? Granny can you tend to her wound while I take care of our guest? Applejack asked looking at everyone. What about us? Apple Bloom asked. You two can stay by her side like the good friends you are, Applejack said. The two fillies gave Applejack a smile and ran inside to check up on their friend, leaving Applejack and I outside. You have a nice family Applejack, I said breaking the awkward silence. Thanks, you have no idea how hard it is to worry about a family member like her, she said glumly. Oh believe me I know what it's like, I thought. Well we best be on our way, I said as I turned to leave. We, oui, Applejack asked tilting her head in confusion. I gave her a smile and whistled to a tree close by. I heard a squawk and dust flew out of the tree and landed on my back. Applejack, this is my companion Dust. Dust, this is Applejack, I said pointing at both of them. Well, nice to meet you Dust. 
How would you both like to join us for some brunch before you go? Applejack asked while walking over to the door and opening it for us. As tempting as your offer sounds, I think I should head over to Twilight's, no doubt you and everyone else wants answers from me correct? I said. You're right, Twilight won't stop talking about you. I'll show you where she lives and on the way I'll give you the tour and pick up the girls, Applejack said closing the door. Really, that would be great. That way I don't have to ask for directions and I can introduce myself properly to your friends, I said with a smile. Just let me go tell my family where I've gone off to, she said disappearing inside the house only to appear again seconds later, all right let's go, she said. We reached the town and we received some weird looks of confusion and fear as we walked. Applejack pointed out some landmarks and important buildings. I noticed the pink mare from the castle where I'd fought Nightmare Moon. Hey Pinky, over here. Applejack yelled and waved the pink mare over. The pink mare took one look at me before she jumped into the air with a gasp and held it there for three seconds before she disappeared. What just happened? I asked Applejack. Don't worry, it's just Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie. I looked at her confused and was about to ask what that meant when I was cut off as a familiar rainbow blur cut across the sky and come down to land in front of us. So, you finally show yourself after three weeks of living in the Everfree Huh? Rainbow Dash said as she landed. There you were Rainbow. I was just giving Ashblade here a tour of Ponyville and taking him to see the girls, Applejack said. Ashblade Huh? Nice name. You know, I would have caught you the last time we met right. Rainbow Dash said folding her arms. Nice to see you again Rainbow Dash, you might have caught me if your thinking was as fast you're flying. I said with a smug grin, causing Applejack to stifle a laugh while Rainbow Dash grumbled something under her breath. Oh Rainbow, can you find Fluttershy and bring her over to Twilight's place? Applejack asked, calming down from her laughter. Sure and is for you, this discussion isn't over. Rainbow Dash said glaring at me. I'm counting on it, I said as she flew off. We continued our walk and came across a white circular building. Applejack walked up to the door and opened it and I heard a bell ring when as the door opened. Coming. I heard a familiar voice say in a sing-song voice as I walked inside the building the room was beautifully decorated and filled with mannequins. Some had outstanding clothes on them. As I looked around the room, the white unicorn known as Rarity, made her appearance from a room at the back. Oh Applejack's a nice to see you in. Um Applejack darling, the wolf is standing right behind you, Rarity said looking at me nervously. I know Rarity, he came and dropped off Apple Bloom, Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle at the farm, Applejack said. Gasp, are Sweetie and the others all right? What happened? Rarity asked in a panic. Calm down, the girls are fine, but Scootaloo has a sprained leg and is getting it fixed up as we speak, Applejack said in a soothing tone. What happened? Rarity asked, a little calmer. I managed to stop them from becoming lunch for a manticore, I said plainly. Sweetie Belle, you are in so much trouble when you get home. Rarity said with anger in her voice, thank you for bringing my sister home safely. It's no trouble. By the way my name is Ashblade or Ash for short. This is my companion Dust, I said gesturing to the crow. He is simply adorable, Rarity cooed stroking the blackbird's wings. Rarity, we're heading over to Twilight's right now. Care to join us, Applejack said. But of course, I would like to know more about Ash as well. Just let me lock up and then we'll go, Rarity said with a smile. Knock knock knock. Applejack knocked on the door of the library which turned out to be a tree and waited for someone to answer. I could hear shuffling coming from the other side of the door and sat patiently. I'm coming. A voice said on the other side, the door opened to reveal a teenage purple and green dragon with green slitted eyes sharp teeth and a grey long sleeve shirt and white overtop and blue cut up jeans. Hey Applejack, hi Rarity, the young drake said, with hearts in his eyes as he said the latter's name. The two mares walked in before me and as I was about to walk inside when the door came in contact with the end of my muzzle. Ow, what the hell was that for? I yelled at the drake while holding my muzzle. Oh sorry I didn't see, the dragon started, but when he looked at me he slammed the door shut. What's going on down there? I hear a familiar voice say from behind the door. Twilight there's a wolf outside and you won't believe this but it can talk. The dragon yelled. Gasp, open the door, hurry. Twilight cried. Are you crazy? What part of, there's a wolf outside, don't you understand? The dragon snapped. I heard you spike, now open the door. Twilight yelled. A second passed before the door slowly opened and I walked into the tree. I looked around the room and saw books along each shelf. There was also a wooden figure head of a horse in the center and a staircase that led upstairs to the second and third floors of the tree. You're here. I'm so glad to see your shoulder has healed. Twilight said as I strode into the library. Nice to see you to Twilight. How are you feeling? I asked. Better than when we last meet. Oh I forgot to ask for your name, Twilight said. It's Ashblade, but call me Ash for short, I said. Nice to finally get your name. Would you like to have a seat, something to eat or drink? Twilight asked. Nah, I'm alright, but I didn't catch your name, I said looking at the dragon. Who me? I'm Spike, Twilight's number one assistant, he said puffing up his chest with pride. Nice to meet you Spike, this here is my companion, Dust, I said gesturing to the crow still on my back. Hi there Dust, I think Olicious will like you, Spike said with a smile. Olicious, I asked tilting my head in confusion. Twilight's owl, she helps out Twilight while I sleep during the night, Spike said. Okay, I said. Suddenly, the door swung open and Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy walked into the library. Hey guys, an ash Rainbow Dash said as she hovered in the air. Back at ya Rainbow, I replied. Um hi I'm, Fluttershy, Fluttershy said hiding behind her mane. You don't need to be afraid of me. I'm not here to hurt you, I said with a smile trying reassuring her, my name is Ash Blade, but please call me Ash for short and this is my companion Dust. Gasp, you have a crow. Where did you find him? Fluttershy said with excitement. Well, I met him when I first arrived here. His mother was pecking him, leaving cuts on him, so I saved him and have been taking care of him ever since, I said. Oh you poor thing, Fluttershy said while stroking Dust's back. Dust squawked at the mare in happiness as he had his back stroked. I smiled at the bird and all the love he was receiving. Spike, I need you to take a letter for the princess, Twilight said. On it, Spike said pulling out a parchment and quill as Twilight cleared her voice to speak. 
Dear Princess Celestia, I'm writing to you to inform you that the wolf we meet three weeks ago has suddenly appeared. We are awaiting your response and how to proceed further. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. As Spike finished writing he rolled up the parchment and blew on it with his fiery breath. Um Spike, I think Twilight said send it, not burn it, I said to the drake. I did, he replied. Huh, I said with a raised eyebrow. Allow me to explain, dragons have two flames, they can use one for transporting items to some pony, and the other to burn items, Twilight explained. Handy, so can items be sent both ways, even if they aren't a dragon. Is there another way of mail besides dragons? I asked. Yes there is a spell that allows us to do that and yes we have the Pegasus mail carriers in case we don't have dragons, Twilight answered. All of a sudden, the room was lit up from a bright light causing everyone to shield their eyes. The light dimmed to reveal Princess Celestia. The six mares and Spike bowed to the princess, leaving me standing looking at the white mare. Rise my little ponies and Spike, Celestia said. On cue, the mares and Spike stood and smiled at the princess. It is good to see your injuries from our last encounter have healed, Celestia said looking at me with a warm smile. Thanks for the concern your majesty, sorry I ran off without introducing myself first, I said rubbing the back of my head with my paw. Well, let's start this thing over then. I am Princess Celestia, co-ruler of Equestria and Razor of the Sun. But please call me Celestia, she said. I'm Ash Blade. No fancy titles like yours I'm afraid, but call me Ash for short, I said. It's nice to finally meet you Ash Blade, and thank you for helping save my sister Princess Luna. Also for saving my student Twilight Sparkle from Nightmare Moon, Celestia said. It wasn't a problem your majesty, I replied. He also saved my sister Apple Bloom, as well as Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo from a Manticore Princess, Applejack said, patting my back. What? Is Scoots all right? Rainbow yelled, inches away from Applejack's face. What about the Manticore? You didn't kill him like the Timberwolves did you? Fluttershy asked. Calm down, Scootaloo got a sprained ankle from running from the Manticore, and the worst the Manticore got was a headache and a some light scratches on his face, I replied to both mares, causing them to let out a sigh of relief. I'm glad those three are all right, safe and sound. Again, thank you for saving them. Now Ash Blade, the reason why I am here, is because you are curious about why you are here. Well, I'm here to answer those questions, Celestia said lowering her head down to me. Really, I said looking up at the princess with happiness. Celestia nodded her head and looked at the others in the room. I must show Ash Blade something and I think it would be best if you all stay here and wait for Ash's return. Everyone looked at each other in confusion before they looked at the princess. But princess, why can't we come with both of you? Twilight asked with disappoint in her voice. I'm sorry Twilight, but what I am going to show Ash are for his and Alicorn eyes alone, Celestia said looking at Twilight. I understand princess, Twilight said, sighing in defeat. Don't worry, he won't be gone for long. If Ash Blade is willing to, he can show you a piece of info I am going to show him, Celestia said, causing Twilight to beam with happiness. Are you ready to go? Hang on, I walked over to Fluttershy and handed her dust. Can you look after him while I'm gone? Once I return, I'll come by to pick him up. I'd be happy to. I always love meeting new animals, Fluttershy said excitedly. He gets his own food, just make sure you let him out to stretch his wings. He is very well behaved so I don't think he will cause any trouble, I said as I turned to look at Dust. Now Dust, Fluttershy here is going to look after you until I get back, okay? Dust nodded his head in understanding and I did the same before I walked back to Celestia. I'm ready, I said. Wonderful. Before anything happens, a quick warning, you may feel sick after this, she said as her horn lit up in a golden aura. Oof. Ooh, you weren't kidding when you said I would feel sick. I mean, it's not every day your body feels like it's being disassembled, then reassembled in the blink of an eye. I said while swaying on my paws trying to maintain balance. Don't worry, you'll get used to it, Celestia said with a chuckle. Where are we? I asked looking around the hallway. Ash Blade, welcome back to Canterlot Castle, Celestia replied gesturing to the empty hallway. Why are we here? I asked. Follow me and I'll show you, Celestia said walking away. I followed closely behind. As we walked, Celestia told me the legend of the five knights and their defeat at the hands of Nightmare Moon. We came to a wall with a shield design mural. It had a picture of a moon in the center of the sun. Celestia pushed a stone brick next to the image, like a button. But nothing happened. Suddenly, the wall gave a low rumbling noise and retracted deeper into the castle. Then, it split in half to reveal a secret room. I followed Celestia inside and looked around. The room was filled with books and had five stained glass windows along the back of the wall. With a picture and a word fashioned in each window. Celestia, what were their names? I asked looking at the windows. Celestia smiled at me and sat in a chair, before she looked at the windows inside. The first night was Link, the Knight of Courage, she said pointing to the center window. The second night was Altair, the Knight of Peace, pointing to the window on the left next to the center window. The third night was Ezio, the Knight of Order, pointing to the window on the far left. The fourth night was Arno, the Knight of Hope, pointing to the window to the right of the center window. The fifth night was Corvo, the Knight of Honor, she finished pointing to the window on the far right. What were they like? I asked still looking at the windows. Each one was just as great as each other and treated each other like brothers. Luna and I even looked it up to them like uncles. The time we spent together was incredible. They were always there for us, like the time Lulu and I played pranks on our mother and the guards. They always hit us when we got into trouble and a search party was sent to look for us. They were there when we played tag and hide and seek, even when we were hurt and to stop danger. They were always there for us and for every pony, Celestia said letting a tear roll down her face. I'm sorry, it's just been so long since I thought about them, she said drying her face. Hey, it's all right to cry. It means you miss them, right? I said giving her a smile. You know, Corvo once said the same thing, Celestia said smiling. We sat in silence and looked at the windows my mind filled with thoughts and their actions. I decided to break the silence with the most important question. You said you knew why I am here. Can you tell me what the reason is please? I asked looking at Celestia. Celestia got up from her chair and walked over to one of the bookshelves and pulled a book from the shelf. It looked like it was ancient. She opened it to a certain page before she handed it to me. 
I looked at the page and saw my cutie mark. My mark, but why is a picture of my mark in a thousand-year-old book? I asked. Before Nightmare Moon, Link asked an old friend of mine called Starsworld the Bearded, about a sixth knight. Starsworld was always talented with magic and proficiency, so he drew this picture to help them find the knight. But before they could complete their task, Nightmare Moon took their lives. As Link lay dying, he asked me to look for this mark instead. So I looked and looked for a thousand years, but with no results. I was about to give up, until Twilight drew me a picture of what your cutie mark looked like, Celestia said pointing at my cutie mark. So you're saying, I started. Yes, you are destined to be the sixth knight of Equestria. You shall bring peace to this land once more, Celestia finished. I was in a state of shock and surprise. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I think you may have made a mistake, I'm not a hero. I lost almost every fight I was ever in. How am I any match for what those five did? Also, I have been turned into a wolf. Those five were humans, not animals. How can I do anything in this form? I said looking at Celestia in denial. If it were true, then you wouldn't be here and also wouldn't be wearing that mark, she said in a matter-of-fact tone. Good point, I said in a defeated tone. As for the wolf situation, when the knights first entered our world they were also turned into animals until they proved themselves worthy to change back into their original forms. Celestia said. What do you mean prove themselves? I asked. I'm afraid you will have to find that out on your own. Another reason I wanted to bring you here is because, if you want to learn more about them, come by the castle, pick out a book but only one book to take back to Ponyville. Just make sure you bring it back before you pick out another. I will also be placing you under the care of my student Twilight Sparkle, until we can get you a home of your own, Celestia said. That's very kind of you princess thank you, I said with a bow. I walked over to the bookshelves and looked at the books stacked neatly in each shelf. I looked at the age-old books covered in dust until, a purple book with gold binding caught my eye. I pulled the book out and blew the dust off the cover and looked at the title. The Five Knights Guide of Magic Spells and Enchantments. The knights could use magic. I've got to read this, I said excited. The contents in this book is only for humans to use not for ponies, Celestia said. So there is some magic the knights used that you ponies couldn't written in this book. I asked. Yes, the results of failed attempts to use some of the magic in this book are in this room, Celestia said. This keeps on getting more and more interesting. I'll bring it back in perfect condition, I said with excitement in my voice. Very well then, come, I think it's best I get you back to Ponyville and also teach you how to open and close this room's door from outside and inside, Celestia said turning back to the entrance. I smiled and followed. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to get used to that, I said as we arrived back at Twilight's home. You're back, Twilight said looking up from a book she was reading. Twilight Sparkle, I'm glad you're here, I must ask something of you, Celestia said noticing her student. Anything princess, Twilight said bowing to her mentor. I'm requesting that Ashblade live under your roof until a home can be created for him, Celestia said formally at her student. Me, I thought but, it would be an honor princess, Twilight said stuttering in excitement. I'm glad, and remember Ash, stop by Canterlot when you have time, Celestia said as she disappeared in a flash of light. I looked at Twilight and she looked back at me, I tried to think of a conversation starter but couldn't think of anything. So, I guess we're roommates now, Twilight said nervously. Yeah, I guess we are, I said looking down at the ground. How about I show you around the house? Twilight suggested. Sounds like a plan, I said. Well this is the library, she said gesturing to the room we were standing in. That door leads to the basement, Twilight said pointing to a wooden door at the back of the room. That's the kitchen, she said gesturing to a doorway next to the basement door. Follow me, she said, as she started walking upstairs. I followed closely behind until we came to the first floor, this is my room. Nice place, I said with a low whistle. Thanks, she said with a giggle, follow me I'll show you the rest of the house. We left the room and walked up more stairs to the second floor. We entered a small hallway with two doors on either side. This is Spike's room, she said gesturing to the door on the left, and here is where you will be staying, she said as she approached the door on the right and opened it. The room was simple and had light blue walls, a large window at the back of the room and a bed, a writing desk and empty bookshelf in its own bathroom. What do you think? She asked with a nervous smile. Thank you Twilight, it will do just fine. Oh I forgot, I need to go get dust, I said as I placed the book one brought with me from my back onto the desk. What's that? Twilight asked pointing at the book. That well, it's a, sigh, it's a book that tells and shows me how to use some magic that the five knights used, I said. Really, I have got to read that, she squealed in excitement and she went to grab the book. Oh no you don't, listen, I'm the only one here that is going to read this book, one said as I stepped in between her and the book. But, 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 all the untold knowledge in that book, Twilight stuttered. Calm down Twilight, it's just that I would like to read it first. Besides, you can't perform any of the spells in this book anyway because Celestia said these spells are only for humans, not ponies, I said. Fine I'll wait, she said pouting. Thank you for understanding Twilight. Don't worry, you'll get a chance to read it, I said to reassure her. Twilight smiled at me as we walked out the door. Well I'd better go get dust. Would you like me to come with you? I can show you the way, and we can invite Dust and Fluttershy and head over to Sugar Cube Corner for some food afterwards, Twilight asked. Sure, all that teleporting made me hungry, I said as I lifted a pot to my stomach. We arrived at Fluttershy's place and I found it surprising that the meat Pegasus lived so close to the Everfree Forest, considering all the dangers I'd encountered in the forest. We came close to her cottage and I saw animals all over the place and Fluttershy talking to Dust. As we came closer, the animals looked at me and ran away in fear. Hello Fluttershy, Twilight greeted the Pegasus. Eep, Fluttershy squeaked as she greeted her. Oh hi Twilight, hi Ash, I'm sorry I didn't see you both, Fluttershy said hiding behind her mane and blushing. It's fine, we came to pick up. Dust I trust everything went well, I said as dust flew onto my back. It was splendid, all my animal friends really liked dust and warmed up to him right away, Fluttershy said smiling. I'm glad to see that he is welcome here. I just wish I got the same treatment, I said gesturing to the frightened animals. Oh don't worry, I'll take care of that, Fluttershy said, walking over to the animals. 
It's all right, you can come out now. Ash here isn't going to hurt any of you, he just came to pick up dust, Fluttershy said in a soothing voice causing the animals to appear one by one. You can communicate with them. I asked in wonder. Yes, it's my special talent, Fluttershy said as the last of the animals revealed themselves. That is quite impressed. Ouch. I was interrupted as a piece of a chewed carrot hit me in the back of my head. I looked to see a white rabbit hop in between me and Fluttershy. The rabbit shot a glare at me telling me that I wasn't welcome here before he turned to Fluttershy and started squeaking something to her. Gasp, Angel Bunny that is no way to talk about Ash. Fluttershy scowled at the rabbit. Angel glared at me before he hopped away. I'm sorry about him, he isn't normally like that. Fluttershy apologized. It's alright, you can't be responsible for everybody's opinions on others, I said. Don't you mean every pony? Twilight asked. No, I meant everybody, I replied. Well, here we say every pony, Twilight said. Okay, I'll try to remember that, I said. Anyway Fluttershy, Ash and I are heading over to Sugar Cube Corner, care to join us? Twilight asked turning her head to look at Fluttershy. I'd love to, that is if you don't mind. Fluttershy queried. We arrived at Sugar Cube Corner and I was amazed at the building's design. It looked like a giant gingerbread house. We walked up to the door and opened it only to reveal a dark room. Why is everything so dark in here? I asked. Surprise. Suddenly the lights turned on to reveal ponies, streamers, tables and food all sitting in the dark, almost making me jump out of my fur. All of a sudden a pink furred object filled my vision. Were you surprised? Well, we were a fairy, yeah, pinky, and you know, so lovely, a bearpony in town, women each other off the castle, we were a folk nightmare, moon, and saved twilight, and when I saw you in town with Apple Jack, I thought you didn't know any pony here, and if I didn't know any pony, you didn't have any friends, and that madame Asad swore I should off to get your part, I ready, and to found out you saved the cutie mark crusaders from Amon to Coruscant. The pink mare's mouth was muffled by an orange hand that belonged to Apple Jack. Pinky, how is the poor guy going? Understand, ya, yeah, if you're talking as fast as Rainbow Dash can fly, Apple Jack said, removing her hand from the pink hyperactive mare. So your name's Pinkie Pie, right? I asked. Yep, that's right, and who are you? Pinky asked. I'm Ash Blade, but you all can call me Ash for short. This is my companion, Dust, I said, gesturing to the crow. So did you enjoy the surprise? Well did ya did ya, Pinky said. Wait this party is for me, I asked. Well yeah, is there something wrong with it, Pinky said. Well it's just, this is my first party I've ever had in my life, I said meekly. G-A-A-A-S-S-S-P. The entire party went deathly silent as soon as the words left my lips. Every pony looked at me in pure shock. Pinky looked to be in the worst condition, she looked like she'd seen a demon or something. Ash how can this be your first party? Twilight asked in disbelief. Well, I didn't have anyone to celebrate with, I said sadly. Didn't you have friends before you arrived here? Rarity asked. I shook my head in reply. What about family? Applejack asked, scared of the answer. I tensed up and winced at the word family. I simply closed my eyes, looked down and shook my head again. Does this mean you're an orphan? Rainbow Dash asked surprised. Worse, I'm a street urchin, I said. What does that mean? Spike asked putting a claw in my back and rubbed it. Instead of being placed in an orphanage, a street urchin is where a child is abandoned on the street and left to fend for themselves, I said letting a tear fall from my eye. All of a sudden I was wrapped in a hug by all six mares and Spike, each one letting out a few tears. How can some pony be so cruel? Fluttershy asked tears drenching my fur. I didn't answer instead, I just looked at Pinkie Pie. To my surprise instead of her usual puffy mane it was straight and flat. Hey Pinkie you organized this party for me correct? I asked getting the pink mare's attention. Yeah, she said as she wiped away a few tears. Well, I don't want my first party to be such a downer. Especially since you put so much hard work into preparing it for me, I said getting every pony to look at me confused. What do you mean? Pinkie asked. I mean, if this is going to be my first party, then I want every pony having fun. Not sad and mopey. What kind of party is that anyway? I asked with a smile on my face. It's not, Pinky said, her expression changing from sadness to happiness and her mane and tail becoming puffy and curly in a flash. What are we waiting for? Let's get this party started. Immediately the atmosphere in the room changed from sad and depressed to happy and joyful. I was impressed on how quickly they could forget their sadness and go back to being happy. Pinky showed me the party games like pin the tail on the pony and the pinata. Applejack showed me the food she and her family prepared, along with the treats the cakes Pinky's employers and landlord prepared for the party. I was introduced to some ponies from around town, like a mare called Rose and her sisters Lily and Daisy, the florists, the spa twins Aloe and Lotus, a cross-eyed mare called Derpy Hooves and her daughter Dinky Doo and a strange stallion that goes by the name Dr. Hooves. I even saw the cutie mark crusaders having a ball. I was glad to hear Scootaloo will make a full recovery but for now needed crutches to stay off her injured hoof. The party started to die down as the sun began to set. Soon every pony went home leaving Dust, Spike and the main six along with myself to walk back towards the library. That had to be the most fun I've ever had in my entire life, I said laughing as we walked in the door. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Pinkie Pie said pulling me into a bone-crushing hug. Ah Pinkie, can't breath, I said desperate for air. Luckily Applejack saw the situation and pried me away from the pink party mare. As soon as I was released I sucked in enough air to fill a tire. I looked at Applejack and nodded in thanks, then turned to Pinkie who offered me a sheepish grin. Sorry about that Ash, Pinkie said. It's alright Pinkie, just take it easy with the hugs okay. I said still gasping for air. You alright partner, Applejack asked patting my back. Yeah just need a minute. Oh um, every pony, thanks for the hug at the party, you have no idea how bad I needed it, I said offering a small smile. Don't worry about it, you would have had to been super tough to survive on your own as a child, Dash said giving me the thumbs up. Believe me when I say road you have no idea, I said. Say Ash darling, where are you going to be staying while you're here? Rarity asked. The princess has set me up here in the library with both Twilight and Spike, I said gesturing to the two. You're staying with us that's underscore, Burb Spike was interrupted as he burped out green flames. The flames swirled around and turned into a scroll. Good one, I said as Spike picked up the scroll. A message from the princess, what does it say Spike? Twilight asked. Well it's for Ash, Spike said handing me the scroll. 
Every pony looked at me confused. I took the scroll gently in my jaws and placed it on the ground and unrolled it and out fell a golden ticket. Every pony gasped with surprise when they saw the gold bit of paper. I looked at it confused before I turned my attention to the scroll. Dear Ash Blade, I hope you are doing well so far and are making friends with many of my little ponies. I am writing to you because I forgot to invite you to the Grand Galloping Gala in a few days. If you don't feel like attending I understand your decision, but if you do come, but don't feel like attending the party, you can go into the room I showed you earlier today and do some more research on the nights if you wish. I hope to see you there. Princess Celestia. Ah oh guys, can I ask you something? I said. Every pony leaned in closer to listen to the question. What's the Grand Galloping Gala? I said flatly. Author's notes. I'd like to say thanks for everything to those who have posted comments on my story. And I hope everyone enjoyed this chapter and are ready for the next one so don't be shy when you have something to say and I will try to answer your questions when I can. Till next time stay 20% cooler. Chapter 4 The Grand Galloping Gala and Painful Memories What? Every pony screamed. I said I'm not going simple as that, I replied, turning to walk up the stairs to my new room. But why? The Grand Galloping Gala is the best party of the year. The dresses, the food, the decorations and the music. How can you not want to go ash? Rarity asked in a state of shock. That's just it Rarity, I don't belong at some fancy party, at some fancy city with some fancy rich snobs, okay. It just isn't me. Besides, what would the other guests think of me, huh? Not to mention the fact I can talk. I said looking back at the white fashionista. I'll give you a hint. Ah, who let that disgusting animal into the party? Guards. And before you know it I will be chased by guards all over the castle again during the night and I'd rather not do that again. Oh, you're just overreacting, Rarity scoffed at me. I'm not overreacting thanks, I said as I face pod. Come on darling, please. She said as she gave me puppy dog eyes. Bigger eyes have failed Rarity. My answer is still no. Now if you'll excuse me, I said as I walked up the stairs to my room. As I walked into my room, dust flew inside and settled onto the bed. I walked over to the desk and opened the book to look at the index. Wow, I've got a lot of reading to do, I said as I saw the long list of contents. Good morning Spike, Twilight said as she walked into the kitchen groggily. Morning Twilight, there are some pancakes over there, Spike said as he poured some pancake batter in a pan. Thanks, Spike, is Ash up yet? Twilight asked. Don't think so, Spike said as he flipped the pancake. I'll get him, Twilight said as she left the kitchen. Twilight walked up the staircase to the second floor and came to a stop at Ash's door she knocked on the door and waited for a response but there was none. She knocked again and waited but again nothing happened. She placed her ear by the door and tried to listen to hear any movement but only heard a few groans so she opened the door to check. She peered around the room to find Dust was the only occupant in the bed. She looked at the desk to find me sitting in the chair lying on top of the still open book, she walked over to me and gently nudged me. Go away Razor it's too early, I said half asleep. Razor, I wonder who that is. Twilight said as she shook me a little so she could wake up. Razor, I told you it's too early. I said as I opened my eyes to look at the reason for my disturbance, Twilight what are you doing here? Trying to wake you up, she replied. Oh, yawn well thanks for the wake up call. Looks like I fell asleep while I was reading, I said as jumped off the chair and stretched out my joints receiving a few audible pops. Um, Ash, can I ask you something? Twilight asked nervously. Sure TWI, what's on your mind? I asked as I stood up straight. Who's Razor? Twilight asked, concerned. Who told you that? I snapped at her. You said it while you were sleeping, Twilight said taking a caution step backward. I took a deep breath before I looked at Twilight. Razor was my brother, I said looking at the ground. But I thought you said you didn't have a family and that you were a street urchin, Twilight said puzzled. I did, but I never told you how I became a street urchin, or what happened while I was a street urchin did I? I asked. Twilight was taken aback by this. She looked like she was struggling to find words. What happened to him? Twilight finally said. I really don't want to talk about that, I said looking at the ground once more. I see, I'm sorry if I opened an old wound, Twilight said her voice was full of sorrow. It's alright you didn't know. Why did you wake me up anyway? I asked. Oh, I forgot, I came to let you know that breakfast is ready, Twilight said. Great, I walked over to Dust and shook him until he awoke. Come on Dust let's go get something to eat, I said as I placed him on my back and walked off down to the kitchen. Twilight stayed behind in my room and watched as Dust and I walked out the door. She turned her gaze to the book one was reading and was about to go over to read it but suddenly, don't even think about it Twilight sparkle. I shouted back to the room. Twilight jumped backward and looked at the open door and pouted as she walked out of the room. Good morning Spike, as I entered the kitchen. Morning Ash. I made pancakes, Spike said. Pancakes, never had them, I said. You've never had pancakes, Spike said looking at me in disbelief. Spike, when you lived a life like mine you don't really get to taste good food, I said plainly. Well you are going to love these then, he said as he served me a plate with some pancakes. I looked at the pancakes and picked one up in my jaws and tasted it. As soon as the pancake touched my tongue I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Spike, these are amazing, I exclaimed. I know, right, Twilight said as she sat down to eat. Ah oh, gee, you guys are making me blush, Spike said as he too sat down. We finished breakfast and let Dust out to stretch his wings. Hey Ash, Spike and I are heading out to meet the girls for a picnic at the park, do you want to come? Twilight asked as I exited the kitchen. Nah, you go ahead, I want to finish reading that book Celestia lent me. But I'll probably stop by later. Tell them I said hi, I said as I walked up the stairs. Okay see you later, Twilight said as she walked out the door to the library. I walked into my room and over to the desk. I sat in the chair and continued to read, but for some reason my mind kept focusing on the Grand Galloping Gala and me going there. It does sound like fun, I thought. My mind kept swirling about the thoughts of having fun at the gala, uh, alright fine, I'll go. But before I tell anyone, I am going to read this first, I said to no one in particular. Hi girls, Twilight said as she sighted the girls. Hi Twilight, they said in union. Hey, where's Ash? Rainbow asked. 
He decided to stay behind and read the rest of a book that shows him how the five knights used magic, Twilight said. Wait those guys can use magic. That is so awesome, Rainbow exclaimed. Sounds like someone I know, Spike said under his breath. Did he change his mind about the gala? Rarity asked. I don't know, I didn't ask him. But, I found out something about him, Twilight replied. Everypony leaned in closer to make sure they could hear what Twilight was about to say. He had a brother, Twilight said. What? Everypony gasped in union. He has a brother but didn't he say street urchins don't have families? Applejack asked. I said the same thing, but he just said that he hasn't told us how he became a street urchin or about his time as a street urchin, Twilight said. What's Ash's brother name? Fluttershy asked. Razor, Twilight said. How did you find out he has a brother? Rarity asked. He mumbled it while he was sleeping, Twilight said. While he was sleeping, gasped Twilight you didn't did you? Rarity said in shock. WH, no, I just went into his room to wake him up for breakfast. But, when I tried to wake him he said something about Razor while he was still asleep. Twilight explained while she blushed. What happened to him? Pinky asked. I don't know, when I asked him he looked sad and said he didn't want to talk about it, Twilight said. Everyone looked at each other in worry before they looked back at Twilight. Come on, don't we have a picnic to enjoy? Twilight asked. It was noon when I finally finished the book and placed it on the shelf and walked down to the kitchen to prepare some lunch for myself. I found some apples and ate a couple, disposing of the apple cores. I noticed that Spike and Twilight were still out. I've got nothing better to do right now, maybe I can go see the girls and tell them I might attended the gala. I opened the door and stepped outside and breathed in the fresh air and saw Twilight and the girls step into Carousel Boutique, Rarity's home and shop, smiling, I walked over to the store and opened the door. Hey everypony, I said as I entered the room. Well look who decided to get his head out of a book, Rainbow said jokingly. Have you finished it yet? Twilight asked with pleading eyes. Yes I have Twilight yo, I didn't get to finish my sentence before Twilight raced past me back to the library. I stared at the door and rolled my eyes and looked back at the remaining girls. Also, I've decided that it might be a nice idea to go to the gala, I said. Really? Rarity exclaimed. Yeah, I mean, I had nothing better to do that night and I didn't want to waste the tickets so it looks like I'm going, I said plainly. Oh, I have to make something for you to wear, I always wanted to try making clothes for animals, Rarity said as she levitated several items around the room. Whoa, hang on a second, what do you think you're doing? I asked. Why I'm making you some clothes for the gala darling, you can't possibly be expected to go like that, Rarity said. Ah uh, thanks but no thanks, I'm not going dressed up, I said. Not going to dress up. Every pony will be in their best, so why not you? Rarity scoffed at me. First off, I'm not a pony, I'm a wolf and wolves don't wear formal attire. It would be just weird. Secondly I am trying to go unnoticed, not be the center of attention, I said with a stern gaze. Fine, but at least wear a tie, Rarity said. Alright fine, so what are you guys doing? I asked. Rarity is just making some last minute changes for the gala tomorrow, Fluttershy said. I see, well I'm going to look around Ponyville, I said as I turned to walk out the door, but was stopped by Pinky. Why don't you stick around and see our dresses for tomorrow? Pinky asked. Well, I don't want to see them till tomorrow, that way they will be more of a surprise, and besides if Rarity designed them they'll be worth the wait, I said smiling as I walked out the door. Well he's certainly a gentle stallion isn't he? Rarity said while her checks turned crimson. Gosh Rarity, that's the first time I've ever seen you blush from a compliment like that, Applejack cooed while smirking. I am not blushing. Now, where were we on those dresses? Rarity said while her cheeks still had some pink in them. Sure, Applejack said sarcastically. We arrived at Canterlot on time while the main six sat in the carriage while Spike and I sat in the driver's seat. Spike and I dismounted the seat to stand beside the door to let the girls out, we both bowed humbly. When I looked at the girls I was gobsmacked at how beautiful they all looked. Twilight was wearing a blue dress with stars along the bottom that made her look like she pulled out a piece of the night sky and she turned it into a dress. Rainbow looked like she was wearing a Greek dress with golden leaves looking like a crown on her head. Fluttershy looked like her dress was made by nature itself the dress looked like it was made of leaves and along the bottom were different kinds of flowers and on her chest was a big pink butterfly. Applejack didn't have anything too fancy but it still didn't make her any less gorgeous she still wore her Stetson but the dress was a dark brown and it looked like some pony cut up rodeo clothing and turned it into a breathtaking dress. Pinkie Pie's dress was pink as usual and had bits of candy stuck to it and Rarity was the most beautiful. Her dress was a dark pink and gold and she wore an opal necklace and a gold tiara. Wow, I'm speechless Rarity, you must have outdone yourself, I said as I stared at the dresses. Why thank you Ash, come now, let us go inside, Rarity said. We walked to the castle and along the way the girls and every pony started singing. Yeah this is going to be great, you know why, because we're all gonna spend time at the gala together, Spike said but the girls already sped off in different directions. Or not Spike said. Hey, you've still got me, why don't you show me around? I'm still trying to get used to this place, I said trying to cheer Spike up. Thanks Ash, he said perking up a bit. Spike and I walked into the gala and it was just like I suspected. Boring. Talk about a downer from what the girls were singing about, I said looking at Spike. Yeah even I was expecting something better than this, Spike said chuckling. We walked around the gala and I received quite a few weird looks from the nobility. Some even called me names until I couldn't take any more. Hey Spike, let's get out of here before I do something I'll regret, I said with venom in my voice. Agreed, but where should we go? Spike asked. I thought about it then an idea hit me. Follow me, I said as took the lead and Spike following close behind. We walked the twisting hallway that lead away from the gala to a familiar hallway with a familiar mural. I stopped in front of the image and looked at Spike. Why are we here? Spike asked. Spike, before I say or do anything, can you keep a secret? Like a huge secret, I asked. Ah sure, why? He asked again. I walked over to the mural and pushed the button. Like before, nothing happened. But then the door opened revealing the secret room. A secret room, Spike yelled. Shish, keep it down Spike. Listen, what I'm about to show you, because I trust you, stays in that room, okay. 
Not a word about this to any pony, especially Twilight, am I clear? I said sternly. Crystal, but why can't I tell Twilight? Spike asked. She isn't ready for all the info in this room, okay. If she found out this place exists, she will tear this castle apart brick by brick until she finds it, I said. Got it, Spike said. With that we walked inside and I closed the door behind me, so no one would get curious. What is this place? Spike asked as he looked around the room. This is where all the info on the Five Knights of Equestria has been placed, I said. The Five Knights of Equestria? Spike asked confused. No one told you, I asked. Told me what? Spike asked. You may want to get comfortable, I'll tell you the legend of the Five Knights of Equestria, I said. After I finished the legend and told Spike about me being the sixth knight Spike's expression looked like he had his brains melted by too much awesomeness. That has to be the most awesome thing I've heard in my life. Spike said. Yep those guys were truly awesome weren't they? I said. Well I'm gonna head over to Pony Joe's, wanna come? Spike asked as he opened the door of the room. Nah, I'm good, someone needs to stay behind and tell the girls where you've gone. Oh and Spike, this room must stay hidden, if any pony found out then who knows what or who will try to get in here and steal this knowledge, I said. You can count on me, I won't tell a soul, he said as he left. I smiled and walked over to a shelf to pick out a book. What art thou doing in here? I jumped three feet in the air when I heard someone shout. I looked at the entrance of the room to see a navy blue furred alicorn. Her mane and tail flowed in a non-existent breeze like Celestia, but unlike Celestia's mane and tail the color was a deep blue and twinkled like stars in the night sky. Her eyes were baby blue and she wore a blue dress that twinkled and blew in a breeze like her mane and tail, her dress also had black trimmings and a picture of a crescent moon and she wore a black obsidian tiara. I looked closely at the mare and she looked familiar, then realization hit me. P. Princess Luna, I stuttered. The mare looked at me confused but then, looked closer at me. It's you, thou art the one that was injured at my sisters in our old castle after thou fought us, Luna said. Yes that's me, I never got to introduce myself. My name is Ash Blade. But please, call me Ash, I said offering a pot to the princess. We are Princess Luna ruler of the night and co-ruler of Equestria. We hope you don't intend for us to kiss your paw, she said sternly. Wait, what, why would I want a princess to kiss my paw? I asked with a raised eyebrow. You're holding your paw out as if you expect us to kiss it, Luna said pointing to my outstretched paw. What, no, you misunderstand, I'm offering my paw for a handshake, it's a sort of greeting, I said. A handshake, Luna said puzzled. Here allow me to show you, I said. First you grab my right paw with your right hand, I said, the princess following my instructions, great, then you shake it like so, I said gently shaking her hand. Like so, Luna asked shaking gently back. There, you got it, I said as she released my paw. Ha, huh, your princess enjoyed that, thank you for teaching us this handshake, she said smiling. My pleasure princess, if I may ask what brings you to this part of the castle. Shouldn't you be enjoying yourself at the gala, I asked. Luna's happy expression turned into a frown and she turned away from me. Princess, is something wrong, I asked concerned. It's nothing, Luna said. Your majesty, the tone in your voice tells a different story. Do you want to talk about it? I asked. Luna took a deep breath and sighed before she looked at me. You probably won't understand, but after we returned our subjects still see us as a monster, Luna said grimly. I actually do understand. I left the gala for the same reason really. I'm a talking wolf, how natural is that? But what I don't get is, what do you mean when both you and Nightmare Moon returned? I asked. You don't know of our legend? Luna asked. No I don't, but you don't have to tell me about it if you don't want to, I said trying to stop the situation from taking a bad turn. No it's alright, you deserve to know. You may want to settle in, this may take a while, Luna said. Doing as Luna instructed I made myself as comfortable as possible on one of the chairs, while Luna sat in another and told me her tale of how she and Celestia were both the rulers of the land and controllers of both the sun and moon. I was speechless when I heard that they could do control the sun and moon, but didn't say anything and let her continue. She smiled when she told me about the knights and how fond she was of them, but her smile faded when she told me how she grew jealous of her sister and how the ponies ignored her night sky but played during the day. Then turned into Nightmare Moon and killed the five knights and how Celestia used the elements of harmony to banish her to the moon for 1000 years. After she told me the story she broke down into tears. It must have been hard to go through that all by you, I said climbing off my chair to place a paw on her knee to comfort her. Thou hast no idea, Luna said through her sobbing. You're right, I don't know what it's like to be alone on the moon for a thousand years and I doubt I will, but I do know what it's like to be alone, I said Luna looked down at me puzzled. What dost thou mean? Luna said wiping away some tears. I looked at Luna and took a deep breath. I've never talked to anyone about this before but I was abandoned as a baby in the middle of a forest and left for dead, I said in a sad tone. Princess Luna gasped and held her hand in front of her mouth in shock at what she just heard. That's horrible, why wouldst some pony do something like that? She asked. I don't know and I would have died to if it weren't for my other family, I said. Your other family? Luna asked. Yep, my other family was a pack of wolves really, I said grinning. Thou were raised by wolves, Luna said surprised. Yeah, if it weren't for them I wouldn't be here. They took me back to their cave and fed me kept me warm and they taught me everything I needed to know about how to survive, tracking, running, even my sense of smell and hearing was heightened. Through it all, it's a wonder I can talk instead of howl. They all took me in, even though no one asked them to. I loved them and they loved me back. They were my family, my real family, I said with a sad smile. What happened to them? Luna asked with worry in her voice. I looked at the ground before I continued. We were out hunting for elk and I was on my own when I heard a loud bang in the distance, followed by several more. I ran in the direction of the noise and to my horror I saw my family lying on the ground dead, with the hunter responsible for it standing over them. I looked at the scene in pain, shock, horror and anger I wasn't going to let him get away with it. I grabbed a nearby rock and drew my knife, I had made from a sharpened stone, and ran at the hunter. He didn't see me coming because when he turned around I smashed him in the face with the rock, knocking him onto his back. I kicked his gun away from him and climbed on top of him and held my blade to his throat. His eyes were filled with fear when he saw me. 
I was about to end his life but my eyes caught sight of a photo in his coat. I grabbed the picture and looked at it to see the man and a woman a little boy and girl in a wheelchair. I stared at the picture before I looked back at the hunter, with my knife really close to cutting his throat. My mind was telling me to take my revenge but instead I let him go, I said with a few tears in my eyes. Why? Luna asked surprised. Because if I didn't let him go, I wouldn't have been any better than he was. I'd be a monster that took a father away from his family just like he is did, so I let him go but not without a warning, which was, if I ever saw him enter the forest again, I would kill him. After that, he ran as if the devil himself was chasing him. I buried my family in the cave and left. I couldn't stay there, it was too hard with all the memories, I said. How old were you? Luna asked tears in her eyes. I was seven seven years old when it happened, I said sadly. Next thing I knew Luna wrapped her arms and wings around me in a deep embrace. She was weeping into my fur, dampening it but I didn't care. I lifted my paw onto her back and rubbed it gently as I started crying too. We stayed like that for what felt like hours, neither of us willing to move until I took my paw off Luna's back and stepped out of her embrace. Thanks for listening to that, I really needed to tell someone, I said drying the remaining tears from my face. And thank you for listening to ours, Luna said with a small smile as she wiped away a few tears. Glad I could help your majesty, I said with a bow. Please Ashblade, you don't need to bow to us, she said with a calm tone. Aluna, uh, would you like to take a walk with me, you know just around the castle, just to clear our heads? I asked in a nervous tone. Yes that sounds delightful, Luna replied, blushing. We walked out of the room and into the hallway. As I closed the door and headed down the hallway we remained silent until I looked out the windows at the night sky. Beautiful night tonight, I said still looking at the sky. Thou enjoy the night sky, Luna asked in a happy and surprised tone. Yeah, the night sky is one of the most beautiful sights I have ever seen. My family and I always enjoyed howling at the full moon. What about you princess, what do you like? I asked. Well we've never told anyone this except Tia, but we enjoy sketching. Really, I enjoy that as well, I said with a smile. How marvelous, we must draw together sometime, she said with a large smile. I'd love to, I said. We stayed silent as we walked down until Luna broke the silence. So what brought thee here tonight? Luna asked. Well, I received an invitation from Celestia and the girls brought me along tonight, along with Spike, I said. Who are these girls and Spike you speak of? Luna asked. Well you already know the girls as the bearers of the elements of Harmony Twilight Sparkle, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Pinkie Pie and finally Rarity. Spike is a dragon and Twilight's number one hash assistant, I replied. Oh yes, we remember seeing a dragon in the hallway before we saw the door to the room of the five knights opened and met you. But, we were not aware of the element bearers attending this evening. Do you know where they are? So we can thank them for freeing us, Luna asked. But of course, I believe that Twilight was going to see Celestia, Applejack was going to try and sell some apples to some of the nobles, Pinkie Pie was going to try and make the gala more entertaining, Rainbow Dash was going to try and hang out with a group of elite flyers called the Wonderbolts, Fluttershy said she was going to try and see some of the animals in the Canterlot Garden, and as for Rarity she kind of has a crush on some guy called Blueblood and wants to meet him, I said. I pity Miss Rarity, Luna said shaking her head. Why's that? I asked. Blueblood is not exactly a gentle stallion. He's rude, obnoxious and can't stand to be unclean, and he is Celestia and my nephew, Luna said glumly. Wow I can see how this is going to end for those two tonight, I said. And, as for Twilight Sparkle I don't think she will get much time to talk with my sister because of the other guests, Luna said flatly. I was about to respond but was cut off as I heard someone yell from down the hallway. You're going to love me. At first I thought it was Fluttershy, but then I remembered that Fluttershy never shouts and also the shout sounded angry. That didn't sound good, I said as I turned to look at Luna. Indeed, let us investigate, Luna said as she ran down the halls with me close behind. We ran through the hallways and were just about to turn a corner but stopped before I could run into a stallion. He had white fur and a blonde mane and tail, his eyes were blue and a white tuxedo covered in cake frosting. Ah another filthy animal in the castle, he cried as he kicked me in the ribs. I let out a cry of pain as I clutched the area of the impact. I looked at the stallion as he was about to deal another blow, but this time to my head, only to be interrupted by Luna. Blue blood what dost thou think you're doing? Luna shouted at the stallion. But Auntie Luna, this much shouldn't be here. Also, it almost ran into me so I'm going to beat some sense into it said Blue blood as he looked at Luna. You will do nothing of the sort, are we clear? Ash here is more important than you can possibly imagine, Luna scowled at him. This thing, this animal has a name, Blue Blood said pointing at me. Yeah I have a name and I suggest you use it in the future. I said with enough venom to kill a manticore. The prince took one look at me before he screamed and ran down the hall. Are the all right Ash? Luna asked kneeling down to look at the area Blue Blood's hoof made contact. I'll be fine, worst will probably be a bruise nothing more, I said as I looked down the hall in the direction where the stallion ran off to. So that was Blue Blood, correct? Indeed, she said plainly as she stood tall once more. PFFT, that guy needs to learn some proper manners before some pony beats them into him, I said. Personally we'd like to see some pony beat manners into him, Luna said. I'd be happy to do just that, I said before I looked down the hallway where the prince emerged. We had better check to see if everything is alright, I said as we set off down the hallway. We reached the door that lead to the party, I opened them and to my surprise the place looked like a tornado had hit it. Animals of all kinds were causing a panic, stone pillars lay in a broken heap and every pony was in a panic trying to flee the area. I saw Applejack, Pinky, Rainbow, Fluttershy, and Rarity looking miserable just as Twilight walked in with a gobsmacked Princess Celestia. Oh boy, was the only thing to describe this situation. Thou hast better leave here before this becomes an even bigger problem, Luna spoke to me wisely. Right, until next time Princess Luna, I said looking at Luna. Until next time Ashblade, Luna replied as she disappeared behind the doorway. I ran into the room and tried to avoid as many of the stampeding ponies and animals as possible. My cello. I hear some pony cry out, I looked to see a grey furred pony with raven black mane and tail with mulberry eyes. She was wearing a black concert suit with a pink bow around her neck. 
She appears to be looking at something in distress. I look to where she is looking to see a black cello case lying on the ground amongst the stampeding animals. Realizing the situation I run for the case while dodging ponies, animals and falling pillars. I managed to reach the case and it looked unscratched. I grabbed the handle in my jaws and ran over to the gray mare and placed the case at her hooves. The mare looked astonished at my actions. All of a sudden twilight whistled to the five mares and I and gestured for us to follow. I gave a nod to the still stunned mare and ran for the exit, along with the main six. We passed Celestia and I gave her a quick nod while continuing the run for the exit. Wait where's Spike? Twilight asked. He said he was heading to someplace called Pony Joe's, I said as we ran. I know the place come on, Twilight said. We continued to run until, we were outside Canterlot Castle and into the sleeping town where we slowed to a walk with Twilight leading the way. We walked until we came to a small diner with the words Pony Joe with a donut and bright neon lights. Everyone stepped in and we were met with a friendly voice. Twilight sparkle ha ha long time no see. I looked over at the counter to see the owner of the voice, a yellow furred unicorn with a red mane and tail with brown eyes. He was wearing a white work uniform and was wearing an apron above it. Also sitting at the counter was Spike, he looked depressed about something but when he saw us, he cheered up immediately and walked over to us and asked us about the gala. Twilight gestured for us to sit down at a large table so she could tell her story. Um Twilight, you aren't allowed to have pets in here, the stallion at the counter said while pointing to me. Hey, I'm not a pet pal, you'll do well to remember that, I said giving the stallion a hard stare. The stallion looked at me in surprise before he said, another one of your magic spells Twilight. Because this one sure takes the cake. Um no, this isn't a magic spell Joe, Ash here is a sentient being from another world and was turned into a wolf when he arrived, Twilight replied with an awkward smile. The stallion was dumbfounded when he heard that and just stared at me until Twilight snapped him out of his trance with a question. Joe, can you can bring out a plate of donuts for us please? Twilight asked. Alright, the stallion replied as he left still looking at me. We sat down at a table and waited for the donuts to arrive. As we waited, Twilight told us about how she tried to talk to Princess Celestia, but kept getting interrupted by the other guests. Fluttershy told us about how she tried to meet all the critters, but they kept running away from her so she started setting up traps to try and catch them. I was completely surprised by the shy Pegasus actions. Just then the stallion returned with a plate of donuts, I managed to grab one in my paws and bit into it. These have to be the best donuts I have ever tasted, I said in delight as I looked at the stallion. Thanks, I'm glad you like them. By the way, name's Pony Joe, the stallion said with pride. Ash Blade, but please call me Ash for short, I said. Nice to meet you Ash and welcome to Equestria, he said formally before he went behind the counter once more. I turned my head back to listen, poor Applejack had only managed to sell one apple pie throughout the entire night and Rainbow Dash tried to talk to the Wonderbolts, but the press kept getting in her way and as for Pinky, she tried to get ponies to dance and have fun, she even asked the orchestra to play the pony pokey, but no one seemed to enjoy her enthusiasm. As for Rarity she meet Blueblood, but found out who he really is and I laughed when she said that after Blueblood used Rarity as a shield to protect himself from a falling cake that Pinky sent flying into the air, she covered Blueblood in the frosting by shaking it off her. Ha 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 ha, that explains why Blueblood was covered in cake frosting when I ran into him in the hallway, I said wiping a tear of laughter from my eye. You ran into Blueblood, when? Rarity asked. Well when I heard Fluttershy yell I ran to investigate and ran into Blueblood and that guy knows how to land a kick on some pony, I said as I rubbed the side of my ribs. He kicked you. Rarity cried in shock. Oh gosh, are you okay? Fluttershy asked. Don't worry, I'm fine. The worst I'll get is a bruise, I've taken worse punishment than that, I said calmly. I looked at the girls and they all had different expressions, some of shock. Some of confusion, but Rarity's was pure anger. Calm down Rarity, the matter has already been solved and I'm fine, okay. I said soothing Rarity's anger. That sound like the worst night ever, Spike said. It was the main six set in Union. I just hope Princess Celestia isn't mad at us for ruining the gala, Twilight said in a worried tone. That was the best grand galloping gala ever. Back quote every pony turned their heads in the direction of the voice to see who spoke. Princess Celestia, every pony said in Union. Pardon me princess, but tonight was just awful, Twilight said. Oh Twilight, the grand galloping gala is always awful, Celestia said. It is, Twilight asked. And you all wanted to know why I didn't want to come tonight, I said to the group. That is why I was thrilled you were all attending. I was hoping you could liven things up a bit but you Ash, you helped me with something even more important, Celestia said. And what would that be your majesty? I asked. You helped my sister Luna build confidence in herself this evening by making her your friend, Celestia said. Oh, I didn't do anything special princess I just listened to her problems and told her my interests. Turns out we have a lot in common, I said taking a bite of another donut. Yes and even revealed your past to her, Celestia said. Pfft cough 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 she cough she didn't tell you did she? I said almost shocking on the donut. Celestia simply shook her head, the others looked at me simply stunned that I made friends with the moon princess and my reaction to when Celestia said I told Luna about my past. Sugarcube, is everything alright? Applejack asked in concern while patting my back. Yeah AJ, just fine, it's just that my past is a dark one and I need to be the one to reveal it to every pony and Luna's the only one I've ever told, I said. Every pony gasped in shock upon hearing that Luna and I were the only ones who knows of my past. How much does she know? Twilight asked. Just the beginning, up until I was seven years old, I said. Can you tell us? Rarity asked. I looked at every pony and took a deep breath, I suppose it's only fair that I tell you guys but not a word about this to any pony am I clear? I said in a stern voice. Cross my heart and hope to fly stick a cupcake in my eye, the six mares and Spike said and did gestures in union. Celestia and I looked at them in confusion. Um what was that? I asked. It's one of my special promises called a pinky promise. Pinky promises are never broken, Pinky said. So what happens if you do break it? I asked. You don't want to know, Pinky said. All of a sudden, I felt a cold chill run down my spine causing me to shudder. I'll take your word for it. What about you Celestia? I asked. 
Upon my word I will not reveal your past to a soul, she said placing a hand over her heart. I nodded to her, satisfied with her promise and took a deep breath. Before I begin it's only fair I warn you, this isn't going to have a fairy tale ending, I said before beginning my tale. After I finished every pony looked mortified, some had tears in their eyes, even Celestia looked heartbroken. That's just horrible, how can you live after seeing something like that and at such a young age as well, Twilight said, tears running down the sides of her face. I don't know, there were a few times I wanted to end my life but something always told me to keep going. In the end I stopped mourning them and continued living my life for them, because it's what they would have wanted for me, I said. Everyone sat up and gathered around me and wrapped me in a hug each one releasing a few tears. We stayed like that for an unknown amount of time not caring who saw us. Thanks everypony, I said as everypony released me from the hug. I'm surprised you had to go through that all by yourself. I'm impressed, Rainbow said. There is nothing really impressive about it, Road. I nearly lost my sanity when I went through that, it's a miracle I didn't, I said. Everypony was silent before I broke the silence. It's getting late you guys. Shouldn't we be getting back to Ponyville? I asked. My answer were nods from the girls and Spike, Celestia called for a carriage to take us back to Ponyville. We said our goodbyes to both Pony Joe who also heard my story and Celestia before boarding the flying chariot and flew back to Ponyville in silence. Chapter 5 Return of Chaos It's been a month since the Grand Galloping Gala and life has been peaceful. I was either reading a new book on the five nights or strolling around town getting used to my new home and meeting new ponies. Twilight was bugging me to tell her where I keep getting the books from and looking up new spells. Spike is still going googly eyes over rarity. Applejack is bucking apple trees with Big Mac, who has become a really good friend to me. Fluttershy is feeding her animals and taking care of dust. Rainbow Dash is doing some fancy tricks to impress the Wonderbolts and busting clouds. Rarity is up to her waist in orders and Pinkie Pie as well, being Pinkie Pie. Scootaloo's leg has healed and she and the rest of the Cutie Mark Crusaders are on a field trip with their class up in Canterlot so they won't be in Ponyville to cause trouble. Yep, life is good or so I thought. I was walking by Sweet Apple Acres, stopping in to see if Applejack needed help on the farm when I spied Rainbow Dash racing across the sky, chasing a rogue cloud. But something was off about the cloud. Instead of it being white, it was pink. All of a sudden it started raining, but instead of it ordinary rain it was raining chocolate milk. Rainbow Dash, what's going on with this here rain? I mean chocolate milk. I mean chocolate milk rain. Applejack asked. Yeah Dash it's not supposed to rain until tomorrow, what gives? And why is it raining chocolate milk? I asked joining the conversation. There's crazy weather all over Equestria. Cloudsdale is getting soaked by a major cola storm right now, but don't worry I'm not leaving till I get Ponyville back under control, Rainbow explained. All of a sudden the corn in the cornfields started popping into popcorn completely covering me and Applejack but Pinky seemed to be having fun. Why would you want to stop this? Pinky said as she dived and popped out of the corn like a dolphin. Rarity appeared next wearing a bright violet raincoat and carrying an elegant umbrella with gems on it. I heard about your troubles Applejack and I came to see if there is anything I could do to help, except get wet or dirty, Rarity said. Wow, word spreads fast around here, I said as I climbed out of the mountain of popcorn. Suddenly the apples on the trees grew ten times their original size causing the trees to bend over threatening to snap them in two allowing all sorts of animals to take a bite of the oversized apples. Fluttershy appeared next and was surprised about what was happening. Fluttershy do something, Applejack shouted to the yellow pegasus. Now Angel you really shouldn't, but Fluttershy never got to finish because his ankle was eating one of the enormous apples his legs suddenly grew longer. No, it's not possible. I must be seeing things. Fluttershy exclaimed as other rabbits' legs extended. Okay, I really want to wake up now because this dream is getting too weird, I said as I stared at the mess around me. Just then Twilight appeared over a hill carrying a book with Spike in tow. Don't worry every pony, I learned a new spell that will fix everything, she said as she charged her horn sending out a large burst of energy that blinded me for a few seconds. When my vision returned, the area was still in the same mess, my failsafe spell failed what we do. Twilight asked surprised. Twilight don't you have a plan B? I asked. Twilight brought her hand to her chin and thought before she said, Rainbow can you collect all of those clouds in one area of the sky? Rainbow saluted her before she flew off to she cut through the air like a knife and collected all the clouds into a large ball. Applejack, I need you to bring those cotton candy clouds down to earth, Twilight said. On command Applejack threw her lasso around the ball of fluffy goodness and dragged it closer to the ground while Twilight whispered something into Fluttershy's ear. Oh dear, I hope none of the animals notice these delicious chocolate-filled cotton candy clouds. I'd hate to have to share them, Fluttershy said in a low enough tone for all the animals nearby could hear. Oh you and me both sister, Pinkie Pie said with her face stuffed inside the clouds, only to be knocked out of the way by a large group of animals. Hey, she pouted. Twilight then whispered an idea in my ear which I thought was brilliant. I gave a loud whistle and waited. In about ten seconds dust landed on my outstretched paw. Hey dust, I've got a treat for you. Here, you see all this popcorn. Why don't you grab some friends and eat as much as you want? Dust looked at me in glee and nuzzled his head against mine before he flew off to grab some friends to chow down on the popcorn everywhere. All of a sudden, Spike burped out green flames which turned into a scroll. Twilight picked it up opened it and read through it. Come on girls and Ash Princess Celestia wants to see us all in Canterlot, immediately, Twilight said in a panic-filled tone. We arrived in Canterlot and ran straight for the palace. Canterlot wasn't faring any better than Ponyville. It was as chaotic as the Grand Galloping Gala a month back. We arrived at the palace and ran for the hallway one of the guards had said Celestia was in. We ran through the halls and came to the doors of the hallway, Twilight flung them open and we ran inside. Princess Celestia, we came as fast as we could, Twilight said, as we stopped at the foot of the stairs while Celestia stood at the top in front of three stained glass windows. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Celestia said in a worried tone. Is this about the crazy stuff that's happening? What's going on? Why isn't my magic working? Twilight asked frantically, but Celestia just held up her hand for silence. Follow me, she said as she led us through some doors that took us up a tall staircase to a long hallway with stained glass windows in each one. 
I've called you all here for a matter of great importance, it seems an old foe of mine, someone I thought I had defeated long ago has returned. His name is Discord. I looked at one of the windows to see a creature with a pony head, a short black mane with an eagle talon as his left hand and a lion paw as his right. He had a snake tail with white fur at the end, a dragon claw as his right leg and a cloven hoof as left. He also had a deer and antelope antler, one purple bat wing and one bird wing. He had yellow where the whites and his eyes should be and red pupils. These fierce eyes were framed by white bushy eyebrows and his beard framed in a single snaggle tooth. He ruled Equestria in an eternal state of unrest and unhappiness. Luna, the knights and I saw how terrible life was for the Earth Pony, the Unicorn and Pegasi. The five knights went to face Discord in battle, giving Luna and I enough time to find and use the elements against him, turning him to stone, Celestia said. All right princesses, you, Luna and the five knights kick serious flank. Rainbow Dash exclaimed. The real heroes were the knights. If they didn't hold off Discord, he would have succeeded in turning our world. It would have been overrun with chaos. The spell we cast should have contained him forever, but since Luna and I are no longer connected to the elements the spell has been broken, Celestia said as we continued through the hall to the back to see a large set of doors with banners on the sides, some even had suns and moons and the five knights marks on them. This is where the elements are stored. Since all of you recovered them, I need you girls to wield the elements once again and stop Discord. Ashblade, you must protect them at all costs, Celestia said. But why us, why don't you, Twilight was cut off before she could finish. Hey look, we're famous Pinkie Pie, said pointing to one of the stained glass windows. The window showed a picture of the main six in an X formation, firing a beam at a black mare in armor above them, which I identified as Nightmare Moon, she also appeared to be fighting an Ash Grey Wolf which was me. You six showed the full potential of the elements by harnessing the magic of your friendship. Ash, your heroics and strength to fight and beat a mighty foe, although Luna and I once wielded the elements. It is you six who now control them and Ash to stand by you to defeat Discord, Celestia said. Princess Celestia, we won't let you down. Just help us get started and we'll take care of the rest, I said with a determined look. Hold on a second, eternal chaos comes with chocolate rain you guys, chocolate rain. Pinkie Pie said millimeters from my face. Don't listen to her princess, we'd be honored to use the elements again, Twilight said, pulling Pinkie away from my face. Celestia walked over to the doors and placed her horn in the lock and channeled energy into it. She pulled her horn out and the door made a few clicking noises before it lit up and opened to reveal a box covered in gems. Sitting atop a stone pedestal, I looked over at Rarity staring at the case in awe. Have no fear everypony I have total confidence you will defeat Discord with these, Celestia said as she levitated the case closer to us. But when she opened it the case was empty. Everypony gasped and stared at the empty case in shock. Oh well if anyone needs me, I'll be outside in the chocolate puddles with a giant swingle straw Pinkie Pie said completely unfazed by the situation and began to walk off. Hold it Pinkie, you need to stay with us, I said causing the pink mare to stop in her tracks and turn toward me. Okie dokie Loki, she said as she bounced back over to the still shocked group as if nothing happened. That chamber is protected by a powerful spell that only I can break, this doesn't make sense, Celestia said while she paced all of a sudden an evil laugh echoed through the hallway. Makes sense. Ah oh, what fun is there in making sense? A voice called out. Discord, show yourself. Celestia demanded searching the halls for the source of the voice. Did you miss me Celestia? I missed you, Discord said as one of the window murals of him came to life and started moving from window to window, just to stop on a picture of the main six standing around a pedestal with the elements of harmony resting atop of it. It's quite lonely being imprisoned in stone, but you wouldn't know that because I don't turn ponies into stone. Enough. What have you done with the elements? Celestia demanded. Oh I just borrowed them for a teensy little while, Discord said, snapping his fingers to make the picture of the elements disappear. You'll never get away with this Discord, Celestia said pawing at the ground with her hoof. Oh I forgot how grim you can be Celestia, it's really quite boring, Discord said with a yawn. Hey, no pony insults the princess. Rainbow yelled charging at Discord, only for Discord to disappear in a flash of light, with Rainbow smacking her face into the window where he once sat. Oh you must be Rainbow Dash, famed for her loyalty. The element of harmony you represent, Discord said as he reappeared. That's right I'll always be loyal to the princess, Rainbow said in an aggressive tone. We'll see about that, Discord said as he disappeared once more. I can't believe we're wasting time talking to a tacky window, Rarity said. The beautiful Rarity, representing the element of generosity, Discord said appearing in a window right next to Rarity. So you know who we are big deal, Applejack said. Oh I know much more than that honest Applejack, Discord said as he enlarged himself to fit the window. You seem to know our strengths too, Twilight said just as Discord disappeared and reappeared in the window with the main six standing around the empty pedestal. Yes Twilight Sparkle and yours is the most powerful and elusive element, magic. Fluttershies is kindness and Pinkie Pie is a personal favorite of mine, laughter, Discord said. Pinkie, Twilight yelled at a laughing pink party mare. He's dancing on your head, Pinkie said through the laughs and pointed at Discord doing a backwards shuffle on a glass painting of Twilight. But there is one name in this room I don't know, the wolf, who is he Celestia? Is he your new pet? Discord asked pointing at me. I swear the next pony or whatever, that calls me a pet again, I'll tear their lips off their face. I yelled. Well, I certainly didn't see that one coming, a talking wolf. You haven't been playing around with forbidden magic have you Celestia? Discord mocked. Stop hiding in windows you demented jigsaw puzzle and face me like a whatever you are. I yelled. They'll have you know, I'm only slightly demented thank you and for the record I'm a draconiquist Discord said in an annoyed manner. Stop stalling Discord, what have you done with the elements of harmony? Celestia demanded. Oh so boring Celestia really, fine, I tell you, but I'll only tell you my way to find your missing elements. Just make sense of this change of events, twists and turns are my master plan, then find the elements back where you began, Discord finished as the picture of himself returned to its proper place and stopped moving. A riddle, great, I said in a sarcastic tone. Twilight walked over to the window while muttering twists and turns under her breath and peered outside to see the castle labyrinth, twists and turns, that's it. I bet Discord hid the elements in the palace labyrinth, she said excited. 
Good luck, my little ponies and Ash Blade. The fate of Equestria is in your hands, Celestia said. Thanks, Princess, we won't let you down, Twilight said before we ran towards the labyrinth. We ran outside and towards the giant maze's entrance. The hedges were filled with thorns to prevent anyone from climbing over the massive hedges. We, we have to go in there. Fluttershy asked, trembling at the intimidating entrance. Nope, Dopey, Discord forgot about these babies, Rainbow said, extending her wings. I just fly over and we'll have the elements in no time. But as Rainbow was in the air, her wings disappeared and plummeted to the ground. My wings, she cried out, looking at the place her missing appendages once were. I looked at the remaining girls to see not only Rainbow's but Fluttershy's wings as well, including Rarity and Twilight's horns also disappear. All of a sudden, a bright ball appeared and grew and got brighter until it disappeared and left Discord in its place, cackling like a madman. You should see the looks on your faces, priceless. Discord said while laughing. Give us our wings and horns back, Twilight demanded. You'll get them back in good time. I simply took them to ensure there is no cheating. You see, this is the first rule of our game, no flying and no magic, Discord said. The first rule, Rainbow Dash asked. The second rule is every pony has to play or the game is over and I win. When I say every pony, I only mean the ponies, so that excludes you my young canine friend, as a precaution, Discord said as he clicked his fingers hitting me with a spell. Ah, I cried as the spell hit me. Ash, the girls cried out in union worried for me. Good luck every pony, Discord said as he disappeared and I started to feel drowsy and started to tilt to the side and feel my eyes close. My head was aching with horrible pain and my body felt like it had pins and needles stuck in it. Uh, my head, did anyone get the license plate of the truck that hit me? I asked to no one in particular. As I got on all four paws, I opened my eyes and looked at my surroundings, only to see a vast void of stars and planets. Where am I? I said as I looked at the empty space. In the world between worlds, a voice said behind me. I spun around at the sudden noise, but nothing was there. Who's there? Show yourself. I yell into the void. As if on command, a bright light appeared then disappeared, leaving behind the five silhouettes that sent me to Equestria, you again. Why are you here? I asked warily. You did well stopping Nightmare Moon and saving not only Twilight Sparkle, but Princess Luna as well, one of the silhouettes said. I didn't do anything, Twilight and the others were the ones that saved her, I said. Wrong, at the gala you became her friend. If it weren't for you at the old castle, Nightmare Moon would still be roaming around and Luna would still be trapped. If you didn't become her friend at the gala, she would have turned into Nightmare Moon once more, just like a thousand years ago. We can't thank you enough, another said as they bowed to me. Wait, how did you know all that? I asked. Because we fought Nightmare Moon a thousand years ago along with Discord, one of the silhouettes said. But that means you're, I started. Yes, we are the ghosts of the five knights of Equestria. I am Link the Knight of Courage, one of the silhouettes spoke. I am Altair, Knight of Peace, the second said. I am Ezio, Knight of Order, the third said. I am Arno, Knight of Hope, the fourth said. And I am Corvo, Knight of Honor, the last one said. It's a pleasure to meet you all, but I have so many questions, I said. We understand that and we will be happy to answer them, but now is not the time. Your friends are in danger and you must help them, Link said. Huh, how what happened? I asked. Discord has manipulated them to become their opposite selves, Twilight Sparkle is the only one that remains of their group, you must stop Discord, Corvo said. Where do I start? I said. You must help Twilight from becoming her opposite self, Ezio said. But before you leave Ash Blade, it's time to unlock your magic abilities, Altair said. Wait, unlock is in I can now use magic. But I thought only you guys could do that. I asked surprised. Anyone can do it, you just need to learn how to activate your magic core. But be warned, using too much magic will deplete your stamina and you must wait before you can use it again. But the more you practice, the longer and more powerful your magic will become, Link said as he walked over to me. Our books will teach you many techniques and as you go through life here in Equestria, you will gain new skills and abilities, Arno said. Are you ready Ash Blade? Link asked, standing in front of me. Do what you will, I said. Link reached and placed his hand on my chest, his hand felt cold but at the same time it felt warm. I felt him reach into my soul and then everything went dark. Say hi to both Celestia and Luna for us and tell Luna welcome home, Link said as I once more slipped into sleep. I woke up with a start and I found myself in Twilight's library. You're up, Spike said as he entered through a hole that used to be the front door. Spike where are the girls? I asked as I shot to my paws. They're outside, Spike said pointing to the hole. Spike, send a message to Celestia, tell her the five elements have become corrupted by Discord and ask if she can assist us, I said as I ran to what used to be the front door. I went outside, only the place was consumed by chaos. I saw the girls, but Applejack looked shifty, Rarity was obsessing over a boulder saying it was a diamond, Fluttershy was acting mean and Pinkie Pie was grumpy and was all grey, Rainbow Dash was missing and Twilight was still lavender purple but was arguing with the girls. Soon they all went in different directions leaving Twilight, as they left Twilight turned grey. TWI please don't give up on me, I said as I walked over to her. Where were you? Twilight asked. What? I asked. Where were you? Why didn't you help me when I needed it the most? She screamed at me. I, I, I stuttered. You, thought you were asleep, what kind of pathetic excuse of a night are you, huh? Maybe it would have been better if you never came here. She scowled at me before she turned to the library. To say I was hurt would be an understatement. I was shattered and it hurt that someone I called friend would say that. I sat on the ground in misery, but as all hope seemed lost, a familiar squawk broke my trance. I looked around to see Dusk sitting in front of me. I reached my paw out to him and he hopped onto my arm, I lifted him close to my face and stared at him and he nuzzled me under the chin and I nuzzled him back. You're right Dust, I can't let this beat me and I won't. Even if it's just me against Discord, I will fight till I draw my last breath, I said smiling at the crow. I ran back to the library with Dust flying behind me, I walked inside and upstairs to Twilight's room. As I reached the door, it opened on its own to reveal a lavender purple mare. Ash, you're here, I thought. Twilight started. You thought a few words would make me leave. It hurt yes, but force me to leave no, I said with a smile. Ash, I'm so sorry. I was just so angry and I thought Discord got to you too, she said, tears welling up in her eyes. 
Twilight, did I ever tell you how I started to trust you? I asked. Twilight shook her head in response. The reason why is because I have been watching you and the girls ever since we met in the forest. I saw the adventures you went on and I learned many things. I even learned that even if you're different and you don't fit in and the whole world is against you, you must never give up hope, no matter what that things would get better and it did because I met you and the girls, and became friend with all of you, I said wrapping Twilight in a hug. Thank you Ash, now let's go get our friends and defeat Discord, Twilight said as she wiped away a few tears. I wouldn't have it any other way, I said as I released Twilight. We ran out of the library leaving both dust and a groaning spike behind. As we ran, Twilight told me of how Celestia sent all the letters she'd written back to her, which gave Spike a stomach ache. She was also reminded by her friendships with the girls and about the plan, to return them to their true selves. We ran to Sweet Apple Acres and saw Big Mac digging holes in the ground like a dog and Granny Smith came dancing like a professional and Applejack lying up against the barn. Applejack, we're here to fight for our friendship, Twilight said with confidence. Oh now you want to help. Where were you both when I was battling Discord? Ash you're useless, why were you sleeping when we were in danger? Some friend you are. I mean, what kind of friend goes off to sleep and leaves the others to the dirty work? Applejack complained. At that second, I pounced on top of Applejack and held her down. Stop it the Applejack. I know you would never tell a lie. Twilight now. I yelled. Twilight rushed over charged her horn and taped it on Applejack's head. I climbed off Applejack and waited for the memory spell to take effect. Applejack started to gain her color once more, freeing her from Discord's spell. WH. What happened? Twilight, Ash I saw a vision of us fighting with each other. I couldn't face the truth so I started to tell lies. Ash, I'm so sorry. I called you useless. Can you both ever forgive me? Applejack asked hiding behind her hat. There's no need to ask because we already have, I said warmly placing the hat back on her head. Come on, we need to find the others, Twilight said running to the exit. We went around town freeing the other girls from Discord's enchantment until only Rainbow Dash was left. Huh, she's not here, Fluttershy said while we stood outside Rainbow's cloud home. We've got find her, we need her element to stop Discord, Twilight said. But Equestria is huge, where could she be, Applejack said. She's right there silly Billy, Pinkie Pie said pointing at a cloud with a gray Rainbow Dash on it. Rainbow Dash, we've been looking everywhere for you. Discord's still on the loose, we need you to help us defeat him. Twilight yelled so the Pegasus could hear. Have you guys seen Ponyville? It's a disaster zone. I'm staying up here in Cloudsdale where everything's awesome, Rainbow said. Time for plan B, Twilight said. It took us a while but to find a hot air balloon and wait until Rainbow was asleep. Okay Fluttershy, you grab Rainbow Dash and hold her down. Meanwhile, Applejack will lower me down with a rope so I can cast the memory spell on her, Twilight whispered the plan. Got it, said Fluttershy as she flew down towards Rainbow Dash. Ah Twilight, you do realize this is Fluttershy right? I asked. Yeah why? Twilight asked. I simply pointed down at Fluttershy. She was about to grab hold of Rainbow Dash but stopped, instead she tapped Rainbow, disturbing her from her slumber. Um, I'm just wondering, if it's alright, can I hold you down against your will for a little bit? Twilight slapped the side of her head and groaned. I've got this, I said as I jumped out of the balloon and landed on Rainbow while she was distracted by Fluttershy. Gotcha. Rainbow didn't seem happy to see me and flew off at breakneck speed. She did loop-de-loops, spins and made tight turns to try and throw me off. We zoomed left and right and as we passed the balloon, Fluttershy was pulling, Applejack threw a lasso around us. I suddenly heard screaming coming from behind us. I looked to see Rarity and Pinky dangling at the other end of the rope. Hang on, y'all are slowing her down. Applejack cried out to us. Trust me AJ, I wasn't planning on letting go. I cried back. Oh Fluttershy, would you be a deer and fly faster please? Rarity asked in an annoyed tone. I can't, Fluttershy whimpered. If you can't catch her Discord wins, Twilight said. That big dumb meanie. Fluttershy yelled suddenly gaining a burst of speed catching up to us in no time. All right Applejack, last rope make it count, Twilight said tossing up the rope. Applejack caught the rope and made another lasso and threw it at us catching Rainbow and I, jerking us to a halt. We gently brought Rainbow down to earth while she struggled to get away. Once we were on the ground we tied some more rope around her wings so she wouldn't fly away. Twilight walked over to her and lowered her horn to Rainbow's to perform the spell once more. After she finished, color returned to Rainbow. Wah, what happened, how's Ponyville? Where are the elements? Did we stop Discord? Rainbow said as she tackled me. Welcome back road, I said while every pony group hugged the Rainbow main flyer. All of a sudden a group of pink tutu wearing buffalo danced their way past us. Maybe it's a little early for a group hug, Twilight said. Agreed, I said. We ran back to town to fight Discord. He wasn't that hard to find, he was sitting on a throne in the middle of town laughing like a madman. Chaos is a wonderful thing, Discord said. Not as wonderful as friendship, Twilight said triumphantly. Oh this again, Discord said. That's right, you couldn't break apart our friendship for long, Applejack said. Oh Applejack, don't lie to me. I'm the one who made you a liar, Discord said as he grabbed a hold of all six girls with his magic. I watched as each one of the girls tried to squirm out of his magic grip and tried to think of something. Then I remembered that the five knights had activated my magic. I decided to use a simple levitation spell I'd read in the book and use it on Discord's throne. I channeled my energy and a gray aura lit up around the throne. I managed to pull the seat out from under him twirl it around a few times and use it like a bat and send him crashing into a building, forcing him to drop the girls. I released the throne with my magic, letting it fall with a clatter, after I released the throne I felt exhausted. Wow TWI that was close, nice swing too, Applejack said. But I didn't do anything, Twilight said. Oh then nice one rarity, Applejack said. I'm afraid it wasn't me either, rarity said surprised. Then who was it, Rainbow asked. Twilight looked over at me while I was still panting with exhaustion. Ash did you do that? Twilight asked. Yeah, I said still tired from my first use of magic. How? Twilight asked. Let's just say you can learn a lot from a nap, I said. Twilight opened her mouth to speak but was interrupted when a beam of wood was thrown into me knocking me back a few feet. 
Out of the smoke and rubble emerged Discord brushing dust off of himself. Well this is truly surprising, a talking wolf that has the ability to use magic. I must say you are just full of surprises aren't you? Discord said with a maniacal grin. I decided to try a few spells from the book. I used my magic to levitate a large flat cylinder made of dirt and lift it above Discord, then I stamped my paw on the ground and a small pillar launched Discord upward to crash into the cylinder above. I then used my magic to slam the cylinder downward burying Discord under it. I grew even more exhausted after I released my magic, but Discord wasn't done with me yet. Next thing I knew, Discord blasted the rock off of him, he was as flat as paper when he crawled out of the hole, he stuck his thumb in his mouth and blew until he was 3D again. You want to play rough huh? Fine, I can play rough, Discord snapped his fingers. All of a sudden all sorts of objects rushed at me as if I was a magnet. Some were sharp, others were blunt and some were even soft. I dodged and weaved my way through the objects getting hit a few times. The girls could only watch and stare at how I moved. After the objects stopped flying at me, Discord snapped his fingers and flouting houses started dropping on me. I ran my way through the falling disaster, nearly getting crushed twice, until I got close to Discord. I pounced at him to bite him, only to be batted away by an iron-studded club. I flew into a building's window and landed on the floor I felt something warm run down my face, I lifted a paw and touched my face to see it was blood. Suddenly I was pulled out of the window by Discord's magic and brought face to face with him. You know you remind me a lot of those five nights they put up quite a fight like you have. You have that same look in your eye, Discord said tilting my head with his paw. I didn't answer I yanked my hand from his grip and bit his paw. Ah, Discord cried out as he pried my jaw apart with his talons so he could release his paw. Discord looked at his paw before he looked at me. Still trapped in his magic grip he slammed me on the onto the ground, then picked me up and threw me into a building. He threw me around like a rag doll before he brought me in front of him again. Ash, the mayor screamed my name as they saw my badly bruised and cut body. He slammed me onto the ground and I started to stand up, only for Discord to put his clawed foot on my throat pressing lightly against it. You've got spirit I'll say that much but it's best if you stop playing hero unless you want to die, Discord said. I will not give up Discord. I will continue to fight until there is no more breath in my lungs, I will stand and fight, either until I draw my last breath or until every pony is free from evil such as yours, I said. All of a sudden the elements started glowing until it sent out a shockwave knocking Discord off me. I looked towards the main six who were looking at the elements in surprise. The gems disconnected from the necklaces and tiara and floated over towards me, they started spinning around me getting faster and faster, my body was lifted off the ground and started glowing. The elements glow got brighter until it could be seen from space. After that they stopped glowing and spinning and floated back into their proper places on the necklaces and tiara the girls were wearing. The girls uncovered their eyes and looked at a form lying on the ground. I picked myself up and brought a paw to my head to rub it. But, when my paw came in contact with my head my paw felt like it was wrapped in cloth including my head. My paw didn't feel like a paw at all anymore. I brought my paw to my vision only to find, to my surprise instead of a grey fury paw, it was a hand wearing a black fingerless glove. I looked at my other arm to see the same thing. I looked at my body to see I was wearing a grey hooded jacket with a few tears in it from age, along with dark grey jeans that also had a few rips in them and a pair of white runners. I placed a hand on my face to feel it, I no longer had a muzzle and my ears nose and mouth were all back to normal and I was no longer bleeding. Ash is that you? I heard a voice say behind me. Twilight, I said as I stood up and turned around to see the main six staring at me in surprise and awe and a little bit of fear. Ash Blade, what happened to you? What are you? Twilight said looking me over. I proved myself worthy to change back to my human form Twilight, I said with excitement. Your human form. So this is what you looked like before you arrived, Rainbow said as her eyes looked like they would pop out of her skull. I was about to answer but a boulder hit me in the side knocking me onto my back. I looked in the direction from where the boulder came from to see Discord, up for round two. I stood up and got ready, I knew how to fight in this body and I felt I could do more with magic in this form. I charged at Discord but just as he was going to attack, I teleported in front of him and started landing punches on him as fast as possible on his chest. I reared my left hand back and hit him in the face knocking him a couple of feet away from me and onto his back. As he picked himself up he fired some beams of magic at me, but I teleported behind Discord and wrapped him in a binding spell. Twilight, use the elements, I can't hold him forever. I yelled. Twilight and the girls got into formation and the elements started glowing. Discord struggled to get free of my spell, but was failing. Who do you think you are? Discord said looking at me with anger. I am Ashblade and I'm the sixth knight of Equestria, I said. Discord looked at me in surprise. I released my spell just as the rainbow came down on Discord turning him to stone once more. The beam turned into a dome that covered Ponyville wiping away the chaos. When the dome disappeared, Ponyville was returned to normal. I smiled at the shining sun before I collapsed to my knees, exhausted from the fight. Twilight and the girls rushed over to me. You girls alright? I asked removing my hood from my face. Are we alright? You not only took on Nightmare Moon by yourself but now Discord. How you fought him in your human form you are totally 20% cooler than when we first met. Rainbow exclaimed. Are you alright Sugarcube? You look plum tuckered out, Applejack said offering a hand. I'm alright AJ, just exhausted from using magic for the first time, I said accepting the hand. Oh my, you should get some rest Fluttershy said. Your clothes, they're in a terrible state, I insist we go back to my boutique so I can restore them, Rarity said in a horrified tone as she pulled at my clothing. No time Rarity, we need to report to the princess. She must know about Discord and what happened to Ash, Twilight said. I think it's a wise idea we tell the princess first. She must be worried and if we have time Rarity, you can fix my clothes, I said. Very well. With that, we walked back to the library and I saw Spike feeling much better and sitting with Dust. When they both saw me Dust just stared at me and Spike cowered away from me. Twilight and Fluttershy explained everything to them so they could understand why I looked the way I did. Once they were done, Dust flew onto my shoulder and nuzzled my head. Spike was hesitant at first but when he got closer he warmed up to me. Twilight asked Spike to write a letter to the princess about Discord's re-imprisonment. Damn Ash, you look awesome, so this is what you humans look like, Spike asked. 
Ain't at the truth, Rainbow said as she punched my left arm. Clang. Ouch. Rainbow cried as soon as her hand hit my arm. Are you alright, Road? I asked looking at the injured hand. What the hell is your arm made of rock? Rainbow yelled holding her hand. No it's made of iron, I said plainly. Every pony stared at me in confusion, then at my arm. Maybe I'd better show you instead, huh? I said as I unzipped my jacket, I took a deep breath and pulled my arm out of my sleeve, every pony gasped. What they saw was the cold iron arm emerge from the cloth. I knew they wanted to hear the tale, so I sat on the floor before I began. After my family's death I was walking through a town when I saw a supermarket on fire I rushed over and I heard some firefighters pulling people out of a fire. A couple caught my eye, they were telling a firefighter that their son was still inside. The firefighter said it was too dangerous to go in, but once I saw the parents start to cry, I placed my hood over my head and ran past the firefighters and into the burning building, determined to find the child. I searched the burning aisles until I found the boy sitting alone in the toy section, trying to get away from the fire. I ran toward him and checked for any injuries. When I saw none I picked him up and carried him back to the entrance, only to see it covered in fallen debris. I searched for another exit, only to see a window that led to where the firefighters were. I grabbed a brick and threw it through the window shattering it and I ran to the window and handed the boy to a firefighter who came to investigate. I heard a slight hissing noise down across my left I looked at it to see a barbecue gas bottle ready to explode. With split seconds to think I pushed the firefighter away from the window and I dove away from the bottle. Just as it exploded, the blast catapulted me into a shelf and I fell onto the floor, the shelf fell on top of me pining the right side of my body while my left arm was on fire. I screamed in pain and tried to wiggle my way out from under the heavy shelving, but failed. All I could do was scream myself to sleep. I woke up a day later in a hospital, with a missing arm. The doctor said that after the fire was stopped firefighters found me buried under a lot of rubble that protected me from the fire, but my arm was burned to cinders, he also told me that because of my selfless act the family of the boy I saved wanted to reward me. I found out that they worked for a bioengineering company that specializes in replacement limbs and prosthetics, and that they would pay for the hospital bills and the operation for my new arm. I accepted their kindness with gratitude. When they attached my arm to my nervous system, I was screaming bloody murder for half an hour. When I finished, every pony looked at me with surprise and awe and sadness. This is amazing, think of what we could do if we had the technology to do something like this, Twilight said going googly eyes over my arm. I must say, even I am surprised by your technological advancements, a familiar voice said. Every pony turned to the entrance to see the ruler of the sun. Princess Celestia, how much of that did you hear? I asked. I arrived when you started to tell the part about how you ran into a burning building to save a child. You were very brave, how old were you then? Celestia asked. Unlucky thirteen your majesty, I said plainly. Celestia nodded her head in understanding before she looked at the girls. Well done my little ponies. Ash, congratulations on regaining your true form, Celestia said. Actually princess, Ash was the hero today, he saved us from discord and fought him one on one. He is very skilled and he was even was able to use magic, Twilight said looking at me. It was no big deal really. If it weren't for the knights ghosts and books, we all would have perished, I said. Every pony stared at me in disbelief. Ash ghosts don't exist. There is no proof that they do, they're make believe. You must have hit your head or you're too tired from using magic for the first time, Twilight said placing a hand on my shoulder. Twilight, I saw them, I wouldn't lie to you about this. They are also the reason I'm in Equestria, they appeared when the portal opened and they unlocked my magic core, I know I saw them, I said turning my head to look at Twilight. He's telling the truth, don't ask me how, but he really did see the knight's ghosts, Applejack said dumbfounded. Indeed, I can sense a strange presence around you Ashblade, when and where did you see them? Celestia asked. When Discord hit me with a sleep spell, I was dragged into a place called the World Between Worlds, where they have been watching over Equestria. Oh and Celestia, they asked me to say hi to you and Luna and to also tell Luna welcome home, I said. Celestia was taken completely by surprise, she started crying tears of joy. I stood up and she wrapped me in a hug which wasn't hard because I was almost as tall as her. Thank you Ashblade, I'm sure my sister will be happy to hear that, Celestia said as she hugged me. I'm sure she will, I said rubbing her back. I still don't believe in this really, I'm going to need some solid evidence or see these ghosts myself in order to believe in them, Twilight said. Fair enough, you're entitled to your own opinion Twilight, I said calmly. I think it's time we let the kingdom know about Discord's imprisonment and to introduce Ashblade as the sixth knight, Celestia said. Um Celestia, are you sure about that? I mean you kept us hidden for a thousand years, how will you explain to every pony about me and the five knights? What will every pony think, and what will those nobles say? I asked with concern. Fear not Ashblade, I plan to answer any questions ponies may have about you and the knights. I plan to also release the legend of the knights and you don't need to worry about the nobles, I'll deal with them. Soon every pony will know the legend and you will be welcomed with open arms, Celestia said with a warm smile. Boo, boo, but your highness, Ashblade's clothes are in a terrible state and what will he wear for formal attire? Rarity asked. Celestia just summoned a scroll and handed it to Rarity. Those are ancient robes from Ash's world that knights wore when they were knighted, Celestia said. Rarity took the scroll and opened it. When she saw the contents she let out a sharp gasp of surprise. There are no words to describe how beautiful these are, Rarity said swooning over the scroll. May I see? I asked trying to get a look at the scroll. Absolutely not, you will just have to wait, Rarity said pulling the scroll away from me to prevent me from seeing it. You can begin once we arrive at Canterlot. I'll have a carriage sent for you. All of you now must excuse me, I have some preparations to make, see you all at Canterlot, Celestia said as she turned and left. We arrived in Canterlot and as soon as we landed Rarity grabbed my arm and dragged me into a room filled with fabrics and sewing needles and thread, along with three other ponies I had never even met, who were asked by Celestia to assist in making my new cloths. Rarity placed me on a podium and started taking measurements of each and every inch of me. All right darling, now sit down over there and wait for me and Celestia's helpers to finish with your new clothes, Rarity said gesturing towards a nearby seat. I sat in my seat and waited. After half an hour I got bored, and then I remembered that the family that gave me my arm also installed an iPod as a bonus. 
I reached for the retractable earphones that were placed in my arm's shoulder to reach them. I placed them in my ears and looked at the iPod screen on my wrist and selected a slow and gentle song to listen to. As the song played I began to drift off to sleep. I awoke to someone nudging me. I looked around to see Rarity shaking my leg in an effort to wake me up. What's up Rarity? I asked as I pulled the earphones out of my ears. I came to let you know your clothes are finished, Rarity said. I looked at the clock in the room to see it had been an hour and a half since they began. You guys work fast, I'll give you that, I said as I pressed the button to retract the earphones. Um darling, what were those? Rarity asked pointing at the spot my earphones retracted to. Oh just my earphones, I use them so I can listen to music, I said. How can your arm play music? Rarity asked. I'll show you all later, right now don't you want me to get into the new clothes you made? I asked. Oh yes, right this way, she said as she led me to a change room to get changed. The throne room was filled with ponies of all kinds, standing on either side of the red velvet carpet that led to the throne and from the back of the room to the double doors which were used as the entrance. The doors opened to reveal the main six, they walked down the carpet towards the throne where Princess Celestia stood. We are gathered here today to once again honor the heroism of these six friends who stood up to the villain Discord and save Equestria from eternal chaos, Celestia said. The audience let out cheers of applause before Celestia raised her hand for silence. As the crowd grew silent the royal guards lined up alongside the red carpet. Some held either the Equestria flag or a banner with a sword sheathed downward in a shield, with a pair of feathered and webbed wings which sprouted out the sides. But they did not fight the threat alone, for there is another who fought not only Discord, but Nightmare Moon in combat. He is part of a species from a different planet, called humans. Five of them became the five knights of Equestria the most powerful force to use in combat until Nightmare Moon appeared. I have kept their species secret since then, but now a new knight has come and has earned his place as one of our greatest warriors. Mares and gentlest allians, I give you the sixth knight of Equestria Ashblade, Celestia said. As Celestia finished the doors swung open to reveal me, wearing a grey tunic with my cutie mark on it and a black cape and pants and brown leather boots. My face was in complete view for everyone to see as I walked down the carpet, some of the guards drew their swords and raised them in an arch for me to walk through as they started singing a chant in a language I do not understand but the sound itself sent chills up my spine as the voices echoed around the room. I continued to walk and I received a few looks of fear and disgust but mostly awe. I walked until I reached the stairs, and strode up them. The main six moved to either side to make room for me. I looked at Rarity and smiled at her, and thanks for the clothes, she puffed out her chest with pride. I looked at the others, they all smiled at me before I knelt in front of Celestia and looked down. Celestia summoned a gold blade with a diamond studded handle and tapped my shoulders and the top of my head with the blade. Rise Sir Ashblade Knight of Freedom, Celestia said when she knighted me. As I stood the audience thundered into applause and Celestia pointed at two windows covered by curtains. Her horn lit up and the first window revealed a window similar to the window of us fighting Nightmare Moon, only it showed Discord and I in my human form, wearing my grey jacket with the hood over my face, jeans, runners and gloves battling together. The main six positioned below us in an X formation. The curtains on the second window pulled away to reveal me once more in my old clothes with the hood over my face. On my left shoulder sat dust and my right hand had a grey magic aura around it. Below the picture of me was a scroll with the word freedom written on it. Below the scroll was a grey wolf and above the picture of me was my cutie mark. I looked at each of the girls before I turned to the still cheering audience and smiled. Author's Notes Happy heat swarming and a Merry Christmas see you all soon and hope you enjoyed this chapter. Chapter 6 A Day in Ponyville and New Friends Fire was everywhere I looked. Ponyville was burning in the blades of grass and the trees were as black as coal. I was running down the street trying to look away from the body parts and blood that littered the streets, it looked a lot like Armageddon had arrived. I continued to run down the street to Twilight's house but as I arrived I noticed the library was burning as well. In front of the tree which used to be the library, were seven corpses, each one belonging to my friends, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Spike and Twilight. I looked at the corpses with pain and horror and I heard a noise come from the library. I looked at the burning remains to see something walk out of the flames, it was another human but this one wore the same clothes as I did and wore the hood over his head, his left hand was ablaze with fire, and his right arm was covered in sickly green splotches that made him look ill. He looked bony, like he hadn't eaten anything for a while. I stood there frozen in place, then he extended the skeletal wings attached to his back and he lifted his right arm and pulled the hood off his head. I watched as the hood fell from the creature's head allowing me to see his face. I stared at him in horror as he looked exactly like me except the right side of his face showed his skull ablaze with fire and blood leaked from his right eye, his teeth were sharp, long and serrated. No, it can't be. I was rid of you. How are you here? I shouted at the creature. It didn't respond, but walked toward me. I walked backwards staring at it, why do you have to constantly destroy everything I care about? These ponies haven't done anything to you. Why did you do this? I shouted at him again, but again the creature didn't answer. What do you want? This got a reaction out of him, he was an inch in front of me, in an instant I recoiled in surprise and landed on my back. My double stood above me and I stared into his eyes filled with murder and fury. He grabbed my shirt with his left hand and as soon as he grabbed the front of my shirt he lifted me off the ground. He held me above him and summoned a dagger out of thin air and brought me close to his face. Blood, he whispered, as he split my face with the dagger. I woke up panting, cold sweat dripped from my body and drenched my new blue summer pajamas. I sat upright and looked at my surroundings I was in my room in Twilight's house. I looked at the nest sitting on the window still, the one that Rarity helped me build for dust. I could see the black bird still asleep, I breathed out a sigh of relief and placed my head back in the pillows. It was only a dream but why did he have to show up, I thought. All of a sudden a bright light appeared in the center of the room. I looked away from the light and held up my hand, the light began to dim. When I turned to the source of the light to see Princess Luna, I got out of bed and kneeled to the princess of the night. Please rise Sir Ashblade, Luna said formally. Your Majesty, it is a pleasure to see you again, but why are you here? I asked as I stood. Thou nightmare, she said in a sad tone. Wait, you saw that. How? I asked. We forgot to mention that we guard other ponies' dreams from nightmares. 
But when we saw thou dream, we tried to rid you of the nightmare. However, it felt alive and we want to know what thou meant when thou said you met the creature in your dream before. When was it? Moon asked. He first appeared when I was ready to take the life of the man who killed my family. He wanted blood and revenge and he has been there ever since. One day he just stopped. But now he's back, he's the voice that hides in the darkness of my head, he keeps whispering thoughts and feelings when something happens. He is thirteen years of pain, hate and anger that have been bottled up inside me, I said. Just like Nightmare Moon, Luna said looking at the floor. I guess so, only he is my double, I replied. We stood there in silence looking at the floor for a couple of minutes. Um princess, if I may ask, why do you speak with we instead of I? Are you referring to both you and Nightmare Moon? Because if you are, you don't need to because the elements destroyed her right. I said. We thank thee for thou concern, but Nightmare Moon still lives. The elements can't kill any pony or anything, but we don't feel her anymore. We can only hope she is banished someplace where she won't harm anyone again. As for our way of speaking, it has always been tradition to speak using the royal we, Luna said. I see, I just thought I might ask because some ponies might find it a bit strange if you speak in the old language because I have never heard Celestia speak like that, that's all, I said. Yes, we have noticed that Celestia's speech is rather different. We are curious about this new style of speaking. Perhaps thou could teach us, Luna asked. Well I'm not really a teacher for that sorry, but I'm sure there are others that could help you. Also, right now is not really the time because I think I should be in bed, I said rubbing the back of my head. We understand. We apologize for keeping thee from thou slumber, but we shall ask sister if she can help us with our speech, Luna said. Don't worry about it princess and I wish you good luck in your speech lessons, I said. Good night Ashblade. Thank thee for thou concern for us, Luna said kissing my cheek. And, no problem your highness, sleep well, I said as I felt my cheeks heat up as Luna disappeared in a flash of light. I looked at the spot where Luna stood, I placed a hand on my still burning cheeks and touched the spot where Luna kissed me. I smiled before I climbed back into bed to sleep. Twilight finished her breakfast when Spike walked in with bags under his eyes. Morning TWI, Spike said letting out a yawn. Morning Sleepy, stayed up too late again, huh? Twilight asked. No, it's Ash, I heard a lot of movement last night coming from his room, Spike said rubbing his eyes. I'll check on him. You take the day off and get some rest, Twilight said placing her dishes in the sink. Thanks Twilight, Spike said walking upstairs to his room to rest. Now to find out what's going on with Ash, Twilight said. She walked upstairs to my room and knocked on the door, but like last time there was no answer. She opened the door and looked inside to see if I was asleep but to her surprise the bed was abandoned and the window was open, dust was gone as well. She looked at the desk and found a brown book which was open with a pencil and eraser next to it. She walked over to the desk and looked at the page of the open book. It was a picture of an 12th century ship beautifully drawn. Twilight was too stunned by the picture to see the bathroom door open. Twilight what are you doing in here? I asked. Twilight almost jumped out of her fur when she heard my voice and spun around to look at me. When she did, she blushed and gasped in shock. I looked at what she was staring at and saw she was staring at my exposed torso completely littered with scars. Luckily I was wearing blue jeans, I looked back at Twilight and rolled my eyes. See something you like, I said placing my hands on my hips. Twilight's face got as red as big macintoshes, she ran out of the room without a word and slammed the door behind her. I smiled and looked at my sketchbook closing it before I went over to the closet and picked out a leaf green shirt, I quickly placed it on in some white socks and my shoes and with that I opened the door. I walked down the stairs to the kitchen and served myself up some cornflakes, then Twilight walked in her face had a few water droplets on it. She must have splashed some water on her face to stop the blushing, I thought. Sorry about that Twilight said apologetically. Don't worry about it, what did you think of the drawing I drew yesterday? I asked. I, I have no idea what you're talking about Twilight stuttered. TWI you can hide a lie as well as Applejack and I know you can't resist looking at an open book. Come on Spill, I said. Sigh, alright, you caught me. That picture is by far the most well-crafted drawing I have ever seen. How did you learn to draw like that? Twilight asked. A lot and a lot of practice, I replied. What is the drawing of? Twilight asked. A 12th century sailing ship. I'll tell you more about them if I find a book about them, I said. Alright, an ash, Twilight said. Yeah TWI, I said. Why were you making all that noise last night? It kept Spike up, Twilight asked. Oh sorry, bad dream that's all, I said looking at my almost empty bowl. About what? Twilight asked. I think it's best you don't know because of two things. First, it's kind of personal info that I don't like to share and second, it will give you nightmares for a month, I said as I took my bowl over to the sink to wash it. Alright, I won't pry about that but what about the scars on your chest? Twilight asked. Thirteen years of fighting for survival in a large city, I said as I placed a hand on my chest. I see, I was going to meet the girls today at Sugar Cube Corner want to come. Twilight asked standing at the doorway that leads to the library. I was actually planning on going for a walk around Ponyville, I said. Well have fun, Twilight said as she walked out of the now repaired front door. Twilight walked through Ponyville towards Sugar Cube Corner. As she stepped inside she saw the other five girls sitting in a booth waving her over. Hi girls, Twilight said as she sat at the table with the others. Howdy TWI, how have ya been? Applejack asked. Good thanks, but Spike and Ash didn't sleep well last night, Twilight said. Why hasn't Spikey Wikey and Ash slept well? Rarity asked. Spike couldn't sleep because Ash was moving around too much. Ash said he was restless because of a nightmare, Twilight said. He had a nightmare, what about? Pinky asked. He said it's personal and it would give me nightmares for a month if he told me, Twilight said. PFFT, can't be that bad, Rainbow Dash said waving her hand dismissively. I don't know Rainbow, he had a bit of fear in his eyes when I asked about it. I wonder if it has something to do with the scars on his chest. Twilight said. Wait, his chest. You caught him without his top on. How did he look? Rarity said with a mischievous smile. And what's this about scars on him, like how many? Rainbow asked. Well he actually caught me looking at his sketchbook in his room, when I went to wake him up and ask about the noise during the night. 
His entire chest was covered in scars big and small and burn marks from when he lost his arm. The scars from the fire covered part of his neck and side of his chest. Rainbow was startled by the news and could just imagine the scars that covered Ash's body. But his build was something else, it looked like his muscles were as big as Mac himself, Twilight said causing the girls to look at Twilight in surprise. Most of them had red faces while Applejack was very surprised by the news. It took Mac years of apple bucking and hauling apples to get that fit. Well next time I see him I want to find out what that nightmare is all about, Rainbow said with determination. Agreed, I want to find out about that dream of his as well, Twilight said. Twilight darling, you said you were looking at his sketchbook, correct? Did he draw anything by any chance? Rarity asked. Yeah he drew a picture of something called a sailing ship, it was beautiful. It had to be one of the best drawings I have ever seen. After we're done today why don't we ask Ash if he can show us? Twilight suggested. It appears that Ash Blade is just full of surprises. He is as fit as Big Macintosh, he is an amazing artist, his arm can play music and Rarity was cut off by Twilight as she grabbed Rarity's shoulders. His arm can do what? Twilight asked. It can play music, didn't I tell you? Rarity asked. How'd you find that out Rarity? Pinky asked. He had some device in his arm called an iPod that plays music. It was a gift from the family for saving their son from the fire. I saw him use it when he was waiting for his new clothes in Canterlot, Rarity said. Humans are incredible. How they can make such things is amazing. I have got to get a better look at his arm and the books he keeps on getting from Princess Celestia, Twilight said, as she released Rarity's shoulders and summoned a notepad and quill to take notes about Ash. Say where Ash is anyway? Rainbow asked. He said he was going to take a walk around Ponyville, Twilight said. I was walking through Ponyville calmly enjoying the sunshine. I received a few waves from some ponies and others a bit of a look of fear with a bit of disgust, others ignored me and I was okay with it. I walked along the dirt road and came to what looked like a school. I saw children playing on the play equipment and with some toys. Watching the kids run around and play brought a smile to my face. I watched the kids for a while, then I saw a white and brown colt with a dark brown mane and tail wearing khaki pants and a blue shirt. He walked towards the tree and grabbed hold of it, he started to climb, but fell onto his back. Are you alright? I asked, as I walked up to the colt. Hey, you're the guy that got knighted last week right? The colt asked in a British accent. Yep that's me, my name's Ash Blade, what about you? I asked. Pip squeak at your service Ash Blade, he said proudly. If I may ask, why were you trying to climb this tree? I asked. My kite got caught in the branches and I'm trying to get it down, Pip said. I'll get it, I don't want to get hurt if you fall, I said. Ash Blade. I turned around to see three small fillies run up to me. Well if it ain't the cutie mark crusaders. Got your cutie marks yet? I asked looking at the smiling girls. Not yet but we ain't given up, Scootaloo said. So why are you here? Sweetie Belle asked. I'm about to get Pip's kite out of the tree, care to watch? I asked. My response was met with smiles and nods from all three fillies. I turned towards the tree and grabbed a hold of a low thick branch and pulled myself upward with ease. I climbed around inside the tree and found the kite, it was shaped like a dragon. I gently removed the kite from the branches, and I looked down to see the cutie mark crusaders and pipsqueak talking with two other fillies, one wore a tiara and wore a yellow jacket with a black top and white skirt. The other wore a pair of glasses and a purple top and pink dress. I climbed down the tree so I could listen to the conversation. What do you guys want? Scootaloo asked, glaring at the two fillies. Nothing. What are you blank flanks doing, trying to get your cutie marks by tree watching? That is Salame, the one with the tiara said. Actually, we're waiting for a friend of ours to get Pip's kite out of the tree, Sweetie Belle said. Oh and who is this friend of yours? Another blank flank like you four. If so, that pony must be lame, the pony with the glasses said. He actually isn't a pony at all, Apple Bloom said. Then he must be a freak, the pony with the glasses said. Hey leave him alone. Ashblade has more heart than the two of you put together, Pip Squeak said in anger. Ashblade, the sixth knight of Equestria. Please, why would someone so important hang out with a no good blank flank orphan like you? The tiara wearing pony said. Pipsqueak started to cry as the cutie mark crusaders comforted him. I watched the entire situation in the tree and when I heard the words, no good blank flank orphan, my anger skyrocketed. I jumped out of the tree and landed in between the cutie mark crusaders Pip and the two ponies. I looked at the two fillies in anger and any pony could see they were scared out of their mind. Beat it, I said in a dark tone. The two fillies nodded frantically before they ran off leaving a cloud of dust in their shape where they once stood. I turned back to the four foals behind me, they stared at me in awe. You are so cool, like Rainbow Dash cool, Scootaloo said with a large smile. Yeah, you jumped out of that tree and scared off both Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, just by glaring at them, Sweetie Belle said. PFFT, I've jumped from higher places than a tree, I said. Really? Where? Apple Bloom asked. I fell from Canterlot Waterfall, I said. C-A-N-T-E-R-L-O-T -E Waterfall. All four yelled in surprise. Whoa, not even Rainbow would do that. Scootaloo exclaimed. Yeah, but where did you learn to climb like that? Pipsqueak asked. I trained for a very long time until I could climb buildings and cliffs and do tricks as well. We call this technique Parker. Parker, they said in union. Can you show us some Parker? Apple Bloom asked. All of a sudden the bell rang and the fillies and colts started to go back inside. Maybe some other time you guys. If those two cause trouble again, let me know okay. I said. We said our goodbyes and I handed Pip back his kite and we went our separate ways. I walked back into Ponyville and decided to listen to some tunes. I scrolled through my list of songs until I found something to listen to. I placed the earphones in my ears and hit play. I bounced my head in time with the beat, as I turned a corner I ran into a white fur mare with two-toned electric blue mane and tail. She had white fur and a horn, she wore a white jacket with a musical note on the right pocket, purple pants and shades that hit her eyes and light blue fingerless gloves that reached her elbows. Sorry about that, I should have been paying more attention to where I was going, I said as I picked myself up and reached out to help out the mare. No trouble, the mare said as she accepted my hand so I could pull her up. 
I took my earphones out of my ears and placed them back in my arm slot and hit the pause button on my iPod. The mayor looked at my arm in wonder and confusion. What were those and that thing in your arm? She asked. Just my earphones and iPod. I use them so I can listen to music on the go, I said. No bucking way, she said as she grabbed my metal arm and looked at every inch of it. This is so awesome. I have been trying to find out how to do something like this for like, ever. She said as she glided her hand over the iPod screen. Final. I looked around for the source of the noise to see a familiar gray furred and raven black mane and tail mare. She wore a dark gray skirt with a lavender treble clef on it and a white button-up shirt and matching gray vest with a pink bow on the collar. What do you think you're doing just grabbing some pony by the arm like that? The gray mare scowled at the white mare. Tabby, you have to see this device in this guy's arm. It can play music on the go, it's incredible, the white mare said. That does sound amazing, but you are being incredibly rude to the gentlest stallion here, the gray mare said. She grabbed the white mare's tail and pulled her away from me. I'm sorry about my mare friend, she can be like that when she discovers something new about music, the gray mare said. It's no trouble, by the way, didn't we meet at the gala? I asked. That night wasn't my best I'm afraid. My career was ruined by a pink hyperactive pony asking me to play the pony pokey, she said glumly. I face palmed and dragged my hand downward pinky what did you do? I muttered under my breath. Pardon me, what did you say? The gray mare asked. I know the pink mare you are talking about. I'm sorry she messed up your career, I said. I see. Well it's not your fault and actually I'm happy. I don't need to play for any more nobles, they were always criticizing my work, she said with a smile. I'm happy to hear that miss up, I said, lost for her name. Oh how rude of me. My name is Octavia Melody and the white unicorn here is Vinyl Scratch, she said gesturing to herself and her mare friend. Sup, Vinyl said. Nice to meet you Vinyl and it's nice to finally get your name at last Miss Octavia. We never got to introduce ourselves after I saved your cello from getting crushed from that stampede, I said smiling. That was you. You're the wolf that saved my precious cello, she asked in shock. Yep that was me, name's Ash Blade, but just call me Ash for short, I said as I extended my hand to Octavia for her to shake. Wait, Ash Blade is in the Ash Blade, the one who took on both Nightmare Moon and Discord and was knighted with the title Knight of Freedom. The only human seen in a thousand years, final ask, gobsmacked. Took you long enough to figure out I'm human, I said with a smirk. Whoa dude, my mind is completely blown, Vinyl said making gestures with her hands of her mind exploding. I chuckled at the action before I turned my head to the sun to see its position. Well it was fun meeting you both but I must be on my way, so take care, I said as I walked around them and continued down the road. Hey, if you can stop by our music store in town I would like to listen to some music you humans play, Vinyl called after me. Will do, I yelled as I waved back towards them as I continued down the street. I continued to walk down the street until I walked into the market area. I could hear a banging noise coming from somewhere nearby, I decided to investigate the sound. I changed my direction and walked toward the sound and continued to follow until I saw a forge. Curious, I went inside and saw a tan earth pony with a chestnut brown mane and tail. He wore a brown shirt with a red vest with three blue horseshoes and blue jeans and a brown apron to protect his clothing from sparks. He was hammering at a piece of metal. I walked closer into view to see what he was creating. It was a sword, suddenly the sword broke in half. Damn it, the stallion cried as he threw the sword into a scrap pile with other broken blades. He then walked over to his desk sat on the stool and buried his face in his hands. Everything alright pal? I asked. No, I have an order of swords for the royal guards to fill by end of the day because the canterlot blacksmith has closed. Yet I can't even make one. He yelled as he dropped his head on the table. I looked at the broken sword and walked over to it. I picked it up and tapped my hand against the blade which caused the blade to let out a dull ring. It would help if you used a stronger metal than this stuff, I said. What do you mean? The stallion asked. Well the metal you're using is far too weak for a blade. If you went to slice some pony with this thing it will break on contact, I said as I broke the blade further with ease. Of course why didn't I think of that? I normally use that metal to either create horseshoes or jewelry but it still won't matter, I need to make 20 swords by the end of today, there's not enough time, he said. Hey, maybe I can help you. I know how to operate a forge from both reading and experience, I said. That would be very kind of you. My name's Caramel, he said smiling. Ashblade, I said. Ashblade you're the human that was knighted a week ago, right? He said. That's me. Now let's get to it shall we? First things first do you have an extra set of tools, an apron to protect myself and stronger metal than that stuff? I asked. All in the back Caramel said pointing to a wooden door. I walked inside and found everything I needed. The apron was hanging on a coat rack, the tools were wrapped in a cloth and the metal sat in a pile of neatly stacked ingots. I put on the protective apron and picked up the tools and loaded some ingots into a trolley and pulled it into the forge. Right let's get started, I said as I placed down the tools. Time went by quickly as we worked. Caramel and I made a great team. I finished sharpening the last sword and placed it on the sword rack and looked at the clock, it read 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I looked at an exhausted Caramel and smiled. Hey thanks, I thought we weren't going to make it, he panted. No trouble Caramel, so when are you supposed to deliver these? I asked. A chariot will come down to pick these up, so don't worry about it, Caramel said. And at that moment, a gold wagon landed outside and the two Pegasus guards pulling it walked in. Mr. Caramel, we're here for the blades we ordered, one of the guards said. Of course, they're right over here, Caramel said walking over to the rack with the blades, with me standing beside it. Sir Ashblade, we weren't aware you were here sir, the other guard said as he noticed me causing both of them to salute to me. At ease boys, I was just helping Caramel with his order, I said as both stallions lowered their hands. One of the guards walked over to the rack and examined one of the blades he swung it a few times to test it before he smiled. This weapon has to be one of the best I have ever seen and held, you certainly have a talent for this, the guard said as he looked at Caramel. Thanks but it was Ashblade who forged that one and helped me complete the order on time, Caramel said gesturing to me. Well either way, these swords are the best built so far, I will have to show Princess Celestia this craftsmanship and see if we can see about a new shipment of both weapons and armor from you, the guard said. 
Here let me help you both get these on the chariot, I said. Oh don't trouble yourself, we can manage, the other guard said. I insist, I said as I grabbed a couple of blades and carried them towards the wagon. We finished stacking the blades and the guards handed Caramel a large brown bag and said farewell. Caramel walked back inside and poured the contents of the bag onto the table to reveal gold coins. He counted out the coins and divided them into two piles. He placed one pile into a different bag and the other into the one it was previously in. For your help, Caramel said handing the bag to me. No I couldn't do that, I said holding up my hands in protest. Cash I would never have been able to do this without you. Plus, I could use a guy with your talents around here if you like, I can give you a job here, Caramel said grabbing my hand placing the bag of coins in it. I placed a hand on my chin and thought about the offer. Sounds like a plan, I don't have a job here yet so I accept your offer, I said. Great, I'll swing by your place to let you know if I need your help with an orders. Where do you live anyway? Caramel asked. I'm staying at Twilight's library until a place for me can be built, I said. Great, oh and if you can stop by the Bucking Bronco later today at 3, there are some friends I'd like you to meet, Caramel said. Sounds like fun, I'll see if I can make it. You don't mind if I bring some friends of mine as well to you? I asked. Heck no, Caramel said. Great see you later, I said as I exited the forge. I continued through the marketplace and looked up at the cloudless sky. All of a sudden, I was tackled from behind and landed face first in the dirt. At first I thought I was being attacked, but when I looked at the pony who tackled me I saw Rainbow Dash. Dash what are you doing? I asked pushing the cyan blue pegasus off of me. Oops sorry Ash, I was trying out a new trick but lost control, Rainbow said with a small sheepish smile. You're lucky I'm made of stronger stuff, but if you hit anyone else or an object, you could severely injured some pony, I said as I picked myself up and dusted myself off. Are you okay Rainbow? Fluttershy asked, walking over followed by Twilight and Pinkie Pie. I'm fine, I actually managed to land into Ash, Rainbow said gesturing to me. What are you all up to? I asked. Looking for you, Pinkie said bouncing around me in a circle. Why me and where is Applejack and Rarity? I asked. They're picking up their sisters and Scootaloo for me. Um Ash, I was wondering about this nightmare you had last night, Rainbow said. When Rainbow said nightmare last night, I shot Twilight a glare that could frighten off a Hydra. It's nothing you need to concern yourself with. If you want my advice you won't pry deeper into the matter, am I clear? I asked in a cold tone. Gee, dot got it, Rainbow said shuddering. Howdy y'all. I turned my attention to the orange farmer and white fashionista and waved them over. Behind them were the cutie mark crusaders and pipsqueak. Hi you lot, I said hiding my previous anger as best as I could. Hello darling, Rarity said. Hi Ash, thanks for sticking up for us today against those two bullies, Pip said smiling at me. This got every pony's attention and they all looked at me. Bullies, was it diamond tiara and silver spoon again? Applejack asked. Yeah, but Ash was there. He jumped out of a tree after he got Pip's kite, and boy did he scare both of them off good, Apple Bloom said smiling at me. You didn't hurt them did you Ash? Fluttershy asked hiding behind her mane. Of course not Fluttershy, I never harm kids, I said in a calming tone. Hey Ash, can you show us some of the Parker you were talking about earlier? Scootaloo asked with excitement. Parker, the main six said in union as they looked at me. Sure you guys are going to like this, I said. I looked at the surrounding buildings until I saw a pair of two-story houses standing side by side of each other, with a large gap between both of them. I smiled, then turned my attention back to the group. You guys see those two buildings over there? I said pointing to the buildings in question, I bet I could ninja jump to the top of one of them in eight seconds flat. What's a ninja jump? Rainbow looked at me confused. Watch and learn road, I said before I ran at the buildings and started counting. I jumped onto the first wall and kicked off it and onto the next wall and continued my way upward until I did a backflip and landed on the roof as soon as I counted to eight I looked at the ground to see ten jaw dropped faces. Told ya, eight seconds flat, I said with a smug grin before I walked over to a water chute and slid downward and walked over to the still surprised faces. That was so awesome, Rainbow said as I reached them. How did you do that sugar cube? Applejack asked. A lot and a lot of practice. I started off with running then, tree running, then finally started climbing building scaffolding and construction yards. It is something that I enjoy and I just feel free when I do it, I said. Totally cool. Hey, maybe all four of us can get our cutie marks in Parker, Sweetie Belle said. Wait for, am I a crusader as well? Pip asked. Yeah, you're one of us now. We'll have a ceremony for you later, but right now, Apple Bloom said. Cutie Mark Crusaders Parker, yay, the Cutie Mark Crusaders and Pip yelled in union before they ran off. I shook my head and smiled at their enthusiasm. Those four are going to get along just fine, I can see it, I said. No doubt over here, but I still worry about Apple Bloom she is still just a filly, Applejack said, watching the direction the four ran off in. Yeah but not forever, you just got to give her some space to let her do her own thing, and if she needs you, all you need to do is make sure you'll always be there for her, okay? I said placing a hand on her shoulder. Thanks Ash, Applejack said. I smiled and nodded to her then I looked at the time on my iPod and saw it was 2.30pm. Hey girls, I'm heading to the Bucking Bronco at 3 o'clock to meet my new employer Caramel and his friends. I was wondering if any of you would like to join me. I asked. Wait, you got a job. Where? Twilight asked. At the forge. Caramel was having some trouble with an order, so I decided to give him a hand he paid me with these. He gave me a job there, I said showing them the bag of coins. Nice haul of bits for your first day Ash Pinky said. Bits, I said with a confused tilt of my head. It's what the coins in the bag are called Ash, Twilight said. Got it, I said. You know I think I might go with ya Ash. I haven't been to the Bronco in a long time, Applejack said. Cool, what about you guys? I asked. Each mare responded with a nod. Great see you all there at 3 o'clock, I said as I walked back to the library. I walked down the street following the directions Twilight gave me and arrived at the Bucking Bronco. It looked like one of those wooden medieval taverns. It was two stories high and had a wooden mug as a sign with the words Bucking Bronco carved into it. I saw all six girls standing out front waving to me. 
I smiled and waved back at them and picked up my speed. Hey everypony, I said as I joined them. Hi Ash, they said in union. I can't wait to down a good mug of apple cider, Rainbow said drooling. Okay, but first let's go inside, I said opening the door. As soon as we entered I looked around at the inside of the tavern. It looked like one out of the Lord of the Rings movies, with wooden floors, stools by the bar and a stone fireplace in the center. Booths ran around the edge and musicians played old tavern music. There were other ponies in the tavern either eating, drinking, singing, talking or dancing. All of them enjoying themselves. I looked around the tavern and spied Caramel sitting in a booth with Big Mac and three other stallions. I pointed the booth out to the girls and we walked over. Hello Caramel, hey Big Mac, I said as we approached. The two stallions turned their head towards me when they heard their names. As soon as they saw me, they climbed out of the booth and walked over to me and the girls. We shook hands and patted each other on the back before Caramel noticed the girls behind me. And who are your friends? Caramel asked pointing to the girls. Caramel I would like you to meet Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Fluttershy, and finally Applejack I said while pointing toward each mare. Pleasure to meet you all, come on, I'll introduce you all to the guys, Caramel said placing an arm on my shoulder and pulled me towards the booth, Ash Blade, I'd like you to meet Comet Tail, he said as he pointed to light yellow furred and purple mane and tail unicorn with blue jeans and yellow top with a white long sleeve underneath. Pokey Pierce, he said as he pointed to another unicorn with dark blue fur and white and baby blue mane and tail. He wore dark gray pants, a nice shirt and dark gray vest with a safety pin on it. And last but not least, Thunderlane, he said while pointing to a dark furred pegasus with a white mohawk wearing a black jumper with a white shirt underneath. He wore green combat pants and black combat boots. Guys, I'd like you to meet Ash Blade. He's going to be working with me at the forge. Also, Ash brought some friends with him so why don't you introduce yourselves, Caramel said. When the introductions were over, I found out that Comet Tail runs the Ponyville Observatory and Pierce, like his name, dis piercings. Thunderlane is a member of the weather team. As our time in the tavern continued every pony had a smile on their face and was laughing and having a good time, then another song started playing. I taped my foot in time with the beat until Pinky pulled Pierce out of his seat and dragged him onto the area for people to dance. They spun around and danced while we watched and laughed. I started clapping my hands in time with the beat, everyone in the tavern started to join in the clapping and watched. I saw a smile on both their faces as they danced, I then turned my attention back to the group of friends and saw Fluttershy leaning on Max's arm and Max for getting darker because he was blushing. I decided to not say anything and went back to watching the dancing Pinky and Pierce. The music ended and the two dancers walked back over to us and sat down. Pinky still had that large smile on her face but Pierce looked exhausted. Wow, you can dance really well, Pinky said leaning on Pierce's shoulder. Thanks, but I have no chance keeping up with you, Pierce said while panting. Glad to see every pony is having fun. I'll get us some drinks in fact, first round of cider is on me, I said as I got out of my chair. Dude you rule, Rainbow said raising her arm in praise. You don't need to do that for us man, Comet said. I know, but I want to, I said as I left and walked over to the bar. I ordered 11 drinks the barkeeper asked for 22 bits. I handed the bits to him and waited for the barkeeper to return with our drinks. The barkeeper returned and placed the drinks on a tray so I could carry them. I walked back over to our booth with the drinks in hand and handed a mug to every pony. I brought my drink to my mouth and tilted the mug allowing the taste of apples to run down my throat I emptied the mug and placed it on the table. Tastes pretty good, I said wiping my mouth with my hand. Yeah, but as apples make the best cider in Equestria, Applejack said proudly. True that, Pinky said. All of a sudden, a brown fur with a black mane and tail pegasus with a bigger build than both Mac or I stumbled over to our group along with his six friends. He wore a white singlet and black gym pants. Hey baby, don't you want to hang out with a real stallion instead of these losers? The stallion said looking at Rarity, his breath reeking of alcohol. Thanks, but I'm happy here with my friends, Rarity said in a polite tone. Ah oh, come on, I promise I'll be gentle, he said grabbing Rarity's arm. When I saw him grab Rarity's arm I grabbed his arm and pried him from Rarity and pushed him into his friends. Hey, stay out of this freak, the stallion said as he and his friends glared at me in anger. The lady said leave her be asshole, so you can either walk away and clean up your act, or have some manners beaten into you, I said as his friends circled me. Tear him apart, the stallion cried. The band sensing a fight was about to happen started to play music appropriate for this situation. Two stallions went for either side of me trying to punch me in the head. I grabbed the stallion on my left and pulled him in between me and the charging stallion on my right using him as a shield, resulting in the charging stallion knocking out his buddy. I dropped the unconscious stallion and punched the other stallion in his chest knocking the wind out of him. I raised my fist and brought it down on the stallion knocking him out. Another stallion tried to hit me from behind with a chair but I grabbed his face and pushed him, knocking him off his feet. Then, I pushed him into the ground with full force breaking the wood beneath him. I turned around to see another stallion draw a folding knife and try and slice my chest open with it. I dodged backward and grabbed the chair the previous stallion dropped and used it as a shield against the stallion with a knife. When he made an attempt to thrust at me with the knife the blade went through the seat and got stuck. As the stallion tried to yank it out, I used this as an opportunity to lock the legs of the chair around the stallion's arm and twist it forcing his arm to twist in an awkward direction, I heard a cracking noise come from stallion's arm. He let out an ear piercing cry of pain. I released the chair and let it and him fall to the ground. As he gripped his broken arm with his still good one, I looked at the last three stallions and saw they were looking at me with surprise. What are you two waiting for? Get him, the pegasus shouted at the two stallions. The stallion circled me for a bit then one of them charged at me. I grabbed hold of the stallion and then saw the other stallion out of the corner of my eye begin charge at me. I threw the stallion in my grasp at the charging stallion's feet causing him to trip and land on his back. I stomped on the stallion's head knocking him out and turned my head to see the stallion I threw start to stand up. I kicked this stallion in the side of his head knocking him out. I then turned around to see the pegasus start to charge at me so I charged as well. He made an attempt to hit me in the face but I sidestepped him and banged my hands over his ears stunning him. 
I then grabbed the back of his head and pulled him downward like he was bowing and I swung my left hand upward and gave him a firm uppercut to his jaw, sending him a few feet into the air and knocking out a tooth before he fell to the ground with a crash. I looked down at the unconscious stallions around me and walked over to the barkeeper and pulled out my bag of bits. I'm terribly sorry about that, how much do I owe you for the damages? I said as I reached into my bag only to be stopped by the barkeeper. You don't owe me a thing son, you took care of those thugs for me. They have been becoming a problem for this place for a while now. I'll collect the damage payment from them, he said smiling. I gave a smile and a nod and put my bag of bits away and turned back to my friends. The looks on their faces was hilarious. I couldn't help but laugh at them. Th, th, the looks on your faces is just priceless, I said as I struggled to keep my balance from laughing. Where in the name of Tartarus did you learn how to fight like that? Thunderlane asked in shock. Yeah partner, I've never seen any pony fight like that before, Applejack said in awe. I had to fight for my survival when you're living on the streets. It was either fight or die, I said. Um Ash, not that I'm ungrateful, but why did you stand up for me like that? Rarity asked. Are you kidding me Rarity? No one messes with my friends, not while I'm around, I said. Well thank you Ash, Rarity said. It was scary when that one used that knife on you, Fluttershy said in a shaky tone. Isn't the first time someone pulled a knife on me, I said pulling the collar of my shirt to the side to reveal a medium-length jagged scar on my shoulder. I got this from the last guy who pulled a knife on me. The blade went right through my shoulder. Luckily I took care of the problem before it got any worse, I said as I released my grip on my collar letting it fall back into place. Whoa, tough life you lived, Comet said. Buddy you have no idea, I said calmly. I have never seen any pony take on so many people like that not since. Gilda, Rainbow said with a frown. Who's Gilda? I asked. Someone I once called my friend, Rainbow replied. I thought it best to not ask anything more because I didn't want to bring up any painful memories. I looked at the clock on the wall to see it was 6.30 p.m. Well I think it's best we head home, I said as I rose from my seat. Yeah, Mac and I have chores to do tomorrow and we need to be up at the break of dawn, Applejack said. With that we said our goodbyes and left for home. I walked into the library along with Twilight and we were greeted by Spike, Dust and Olicious. Hey guys, how was it at the Bucking Bronco? Spike asked. It was alright Ash got into a fight with seven stallions, one bigger than him but the rest great Twilight said as she walked past the dragon. Really, how did it start? Did you win? Spike asked me as I walked towards the staircase. The Pegasus tried to make Rarity do something she didn't want to do, so I beat him and his friends up and came out and top, I said as I started to climb the stairs to my room. Is she alright? Spike asked with worry. Don't worry she's fine it's the stallions you should be worried about, and Spike, you have a crush on Rarity don't you? I asked. You know I have a crush on her. Spike asked. It's kind of obvious, I said. Yeah, but she didn't return my feelings when I told her, Spike said. I'm sorry about that but you shouldn't give up. You'll find someone, okay pal, I said. Really, Spike said with a smile. Guarantee it, I said smiling. Thanks Ash, I needed that, Spike said. Don't worry about it yawns well, I'm off to bed come on dust, I said and dust flew over and landed on my shoulder. Aren't you going to have dinner? Spike asked. Nah, lost my appetite. Night Spike, I said as I walked upstairs. Good night Ash, Spike called after me. Chapter 7 Nightmare Night. I awoke to the sound of chirping birds and warm sunlight. I sat up and looked at the window sill to see dust looking out the window. I got out of bed and walked over to the window and stroked dust's wings. Morning dust, I said as receiving a squawk from him. You want to go out to grab some food? I asked. Dust nodded his answer. I opened the window and Dust climbed out of his nest and stretched his wings. I watched him fly off until he disappeared from view. I looked down at the ponies going about their daily lives, but this time most of them were either setting up carnival tents or hanging up decorations that went over the streets. There were some carved pumpkins in the streets, paper bats were hanging from the streamers that hung over the streets and black banners that had a silver picture of a moon and a mare. I stared at the picture in confusion before I went to complete my morning rituals. After I finished, I got changed and looked myself over in the mirror. I was wearing gray pants, a white top, and my gray hooded jacket. I looked at my face and saw my hair was a mess I grabbed the comb on the bathroom sink and straightened the black disaster out. I looked at myself in the mirror and looked down inside. I looked back at the mirror to see my double from my dream staring back at me. Before I could react he disappeared in an instant, leaving me to stare at my reflection. I stepped away from the mirror and walked out of the bathroom and then I walked out of my room and down the stairs to the kitchen to see Twilight and Spike eating breakfast. Morning guys, I said as I stepped into the kitchen. Hey Ash, Spike said. How'd you sleep? Twilight asked. Much better than last night, I said as I fixed myself a bowl of cereal and sat down. Glad to hear that because when you have nightmares it keeps me up, Spike said. Oh yeah, sorry about that, I said. Don't worry about it, Spike said. Hey guys, what's up with the decorations outside? I asked. It's nightmare night, Spike said with a large toothy smile. Nightmare night, I asked. It's a night where foals dress up in costumes to hide from Nightmare Moon. They then go door to door trick or treating, and later they offer her some of their candy so she doesn't eat them, Twilight explained. It sounds like a pony version of Halloween, I said with a chuckle. Halloween, Twilight asked. One night a year the spirits of the dead return to the land of the living. We dress up in costumes to blend in and go trick-or-treating, I said. Wow, that is something. Who knew our world had so much in common with yours, Spike said as he lifted another spoon of food to his mouth. Something sparkling caught my eye and I looked at Spike's food to see he was eating gemstones. Um Spike, are you eating gems? I asked. Yeah, why? Spike asked. It's just, I've never knew dragons ate gemstones that's all, I said. Don't you have dragons where you're from? Spike asked. I'm not going to lie to you Spike, but dragons only existed in myth. If they did exist, they were driven into extinction by humans thousands and thousands of years ago, I said. Both Twilight and Spike looked at me with a horrified expressions on their faces. How is that possible? Dragon scales are harder than steel. Why did they do it? Spike asked. 
maybe because the dragons became a threat to the humans' survival, or because the humans wanted the dragon's horde. We humans are a violent race, I said in a sad tone. How violent? Twilight asked nervously. Let's finish breakfast and then I'll tell you, they nodded in agreement and after we finished and cleaned up I heard a knock at the door. I'll get it, I said as I walked over to the door. I opened the door to see Applejack, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, along with Big Mac, Caramel, Comet Tail, Pierce and Thunderlane. Hey guys what you all doing here, I asked. The girls and I were planning to go over to Rarity's to get our costumes ready, Twilight said. And the guys and I came over to check on you. It's been a week since the fight and we have hardly seen you and we were kinda worried about you, Thunderlane said. I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really, I said smiling. So what are you up to? Comet asked. I was about to tell Twilight a bit about human history, and how violent we can be during times of war, I said. Warrior stuff huh, this I need to hear, Rainbow said. Well you're welcome to listen, I said as I moved out of the way for them to enter. I walked over to the center of the library and relaxed into a chair and took a deep breath. I looked at my audience staring at me waiting for me to begin. So where should I begin? I asked. The earliest time you can think of Twilight said holding a parchment and quill to take notes. Well, I think I should begin with our best warriors, the ancient Spartans. You guys had better get comfortable because this is going to take a while, I said as I began. When I finished telling them about World War II and how society is today it was 12.30 p.m. You humans are simply astonishing it is incredible how far you have advanced especially in space travel, Twilight said buried in a mountain of parchment. True, but the brutality of the Spartans at a young age and the Black Death you mentioned is horrible. How can a species like yours continue like that? Rarity asked. Well, our tough history is proof that we are survivors and that we can overcome any challenge, I said. I'm surprised that your best warriors had hard lives like yours, Thunderlane said impressed. One Spartan had the strength and ability of 20 men. I would want to try and spar with one if I got the chance, Rainbow Dash said throwing a few air punches. You know Dash, I think you helped me figure out my costume for tonight, I said. Costumes, I completely forgot. Girls, we must leave now if we are going to get ready, Rarity said frantically. Hey Rarity before you go could you help with my costume? I asked. Of course darling, what do you need? Rarity asked. I ran upstairs and disappeared. I repapered a minute later scribbling something into a brown book. When I finished scribbling I tore the page out of the book and handed it to Rarity. She took the page from my hand and when she looked at what I scribbled onto the page she gasped. Ash, is this? Rarity began. Yep that's what the ancient Spartans looked like, I answered. Let me see that, Rainbow said as she grabbed the page. It's not my best because I started it off yesterday and quickly had to finish it just now, I said. Are you kidding he looks surreal you clearly have got a talent for that, Rainbow said passing the paper around. Every pony looked at the paper each one giving me a compliment on the drawing when they saw it. I felt my cheeks heat up from each compliment before the drawing was handed back to Rarity. So Rarity, I can take care of the armor and weapons. Can I leave the clothing to you? I asked. Of course Ash this will be easy for me, Rarity said. I'm surprised by the lack of armor on these fellers, Applejack said. You know AJ sometimes the Spartans went into battle without the chest armor, I said. Really? Well I dare you to go out tonight without the chest plate, Rainbow said with a smirk. Why? What's in it for me? I asked. 100 bits, Rainbow said. Fine, you're on. I cried as I extended my hand for a shake. Rainbow spat in her hand and grabbed my hand and shook it. Well, I better go and prepare part of my costume. Oh and Rarity can you drop the clothes off here when you finish and I'll pay you next I see you. I asked as I walked over to the front door and opened it. Very well Ash, Rarity said. Those Spartans must be crazy taking off the chest armor. It's the most important piece of any armor. Were they trying to get themselves killed? Applejack asked in a bewildered tone. Applejack, these guys did not fear death. Instead, they wished for a glorious death, I said as I pulled the hood over my head and walked out the door leaving eleven stunned faces. I walked down the road over to the forge and looked at the decorations but kept my face hidden under my hood. I looked at the sky to see Pegasus clearing the sky. All of a sudden, I was knocked over by a mint green unicorn. She wore a light blue dress with a white t-shirt which had blue sleeves, also a gold necklace with a lyre on it. Sorry I should have been paying more attention to where I was going, the unicorn said as she climbed off the top of me. It's alright, I said as I stood and helped the mare up. Thanks, she said as she stood. Where were you off to in such a hurry? I asked as I dusted myself off. I was heading over to my mare friends too, she didn't get to finish as a gust of wind blew my hood off, exposing my face to the mare, why? Why? You're the human, Ash Blade, the mare said wide-eyed. Yeah I am. Uh, are you alright? I asked as she started twitching. Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. I was right, humans do exist in your proof. Let me get a look at you, the mare said excited as she started poking and pulling at parts of my face and prying my jaw open to look at my teeth, 8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 premolars, 12 molars including 4 wisdom teeth, that's 32 teeth in total everything is as it says it is. Wait how did you know all that? I've been trying to find some info about humans when I arrived. How did you find info about humans? I tried to speak with an open jaw. Oh I found some old scrolls in the old ruins in the Everfree and took them home with me, she said still looking at my teeth. Okay, can you please let go of my jaw it kind of hurts, I said. Oops, sorry, I guess I got carried away, she said as released my jaw. It's fine, but I don't know your name, I said rubbing my jaw. Gasp, a human wants to know my name. It's Liar Heartstrings, she said. Nice to meet you Liar, I said shaking her hand with my left hand. Why does your hand feel cold and hard? Liar asked. I lost my arm in a fire, so this one is a replacement for it, I said revealing the cold iron arm. Oh my Celestia, you humans are more technologically advanced than I thought. I have to introduce you to Bonbon. Bon. Are you coming to the festival tonight? Liar asked. Yeah, I was about to go and prepare my costume for tonight, I said. I guess I'll see you there then, Liar said as she turned to leave. Take care, I said as I waved before turning back to my walk to the forge. I was in my room placing the clothes Rarity had made for me over my body. 
I looked in the mirror and smiled, the scars on my chest went well with my costume, they made me look like I was in a full-on war. I grabbed a wooden sword and sheath which I'd made and tied the sheath to my hip and sheathed the sword in it. I then grabbed the wooden shield and spear and looked over at Dusk sleeping in his nest. I walked out of my bedroom and walked down the stairs and I saw Twilight and Spike talking in the library lobby. Spike was wearing a dragon suit and Twilight was wearing a cape and hat with pictures of moons and stars on it with bells on the edge and a long white beard. Am I interrupting something? I asked as I reached the bottom of the stairs. Whoa Ash I must say nice build you got there. But I think you overdid it with the scars, Spike said looking me over. What do you mean? I asked. Well I think you painted too many on, Spike said. Spike these are real scars, I said. Oh, Spike gulped. Wow, you certainly look intimidating Ash, I'll say that but what do you think of mine? Twilight asked. It looks great Twilight but I don't know who you're supposed to be, I said. I'm Starsworld the bearded, Twilight said in an annoyed tone. Starsworld, I've heard of that name before, he was the one who showed Link my cutie mark. Celestia said he was a powerful unicorn and was gifted with foretelling profishes, right? I asked. Correct, Twilight said. All of a sudden there was a knock at the door Spike walked over to the door and opened it. Nightmare night what a fright give us something sweet to bite four familiar voices came from the door. I walked over to the door to see Scootaloo dressed up as a werewolf, Apple Bloom was dressed as Frankenstein's bride, Sweetie Belle was dressed as a vampire, Pip Squeak was dressed up in a pirate outfit and Granny Smith was standing behind them, she was going to be supervising the four foals during the night. Wow, you four look terrifying, I said with a smile. Ash, is that you? Pip asked looking up at me in awe. Yep you guessed it, I answered. Well what are you supposed to be, Apple Bloom asked. I'm a Spartan, my world's strongest and most feared warriors, I said with pride. Wow even the scars on your chest look real, Sweetie Belle said. That's because they are real, I said. There are so many, Scootaloo gasped as she looked at them in shock. As we talked, Twilight handed a piece of candy to each of the Crusaders. All of a sudden, Pinky jumped up out of nowhere wearing a chicken costume. Enough chit-chat, time is candy, Pinky said with a cluck at the end. Pinkie Pie, aren't you too old to be doing this? Twilight asked. Too old for free candy cluck never, Pinky said. Twilight rolled her eyes and groaned then handed a piece of candy to the pink chicken. Do you like it? Twilight asked gesturing to her costume. Yeah, great costume Twilight, you make a fantastic weirdo clown. But Ash, you look totally hot in that getup, Pinky said with a wink before she pecked at the bowl full of candy emptying it in seconds and dashed off before anyone could react. A clown, look at the borders on these robes. These are hoof-stitched. Twilight cried holding her robe as we exited and locked the library door. I said goodbye to Spike because he wanted to go try out the party games before I acknowledged Twilight. It looks fantastic Twilight, just a lot of ponies won't be interested in history, I said as we walked. I know but Star's World the Bearded was only the most important conjurer during the pre-classical era. He created 200 spells, he even has a shelf in the Canterlot library named after him, Twilight said. Sounds like Leonardo da Vinci, I said in my best Italian accent. Who? Twilight asked. One of the greatest minds from my world, I said. Can you tell me more about him? Twilight asked with eagerness. Maybe another time, I said. Hi Ash, a familiar mint green unicorn wearing a musketeer costume said as she walked over to us along with a cream furred pony with a curly pink and purple mane who was wearing a zombie outfit. Hi Liar, who's your friend? I asked pointing to the other mare. Ash, this is Bonbon, bon, my mare friend. Bonbon, bon, this is Ash the human I told you about, Liar said pointing to each of us. Liar how many times do I have to tell you, humans don't exist, Bonbon bon said in a tired tone. If humans don't exist, then what am I? I asked as I removed my helmet to reveal my face. Bonbon bon looked at me, then stood stock still with a look of shock, frozen on her face. I waved my hand in front of her face to get her attention but nothing happened. Uh, I think I broke her mind, I said with a nervous tone. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. See you later Ash, Liar said as she lifted Bonbon bon onto her back and carried her away. We walked until we reached town square. The place was alive with ponies and music and games. I received many odd looks from ponies. Most of the mares looked at me with a blush on their face, some of the stallions looked at me in awe at my muscles, others in anger. I am really starting to regret my decision of going without the chest plate, I said to Twilight. All of a sudden Pinky and the cutie mark crusaders and other foals came running up to us. Twilight, Ash look at our hall. Can you believe it? Pinky said showing us the overstuffed bag of treats. Well, seems you lot have been busy, I said. All of a sudden, a thunderclap rang out above us causing Pinky to cluck and run away in fright with the crusaders and Pip not too far behind. I looked up at a storm cloud looming above us to see Rainbow Dash laughing her head, off wearing a black flight suit with yellow lensed flight goggles. Rainbow, that wasn't very nice, Twilight said. Lighten up Twilight, this is the best night of the year for pranks and I must say Ash Mares are going to be going nuts for you tonight. Twilight wasn't exaggerating when she said you look as fit as Big Mac, not to mention the scars look awesome on you too, Rainbow said as she flew off of her cloud and started tapping my muscles to see how hard they were. So that is why you made this bet. You know Rainbow, you could have just asked me if you wanted me to remove my top, I said with a smug grin causing Rainbow to blush. I think I see another group to prank over there, Rainbow said still blushing as she flew back up to her cloud and pushed it away. Come on, let's go play some Nightmare Night games, Twilight said. We walked through the streets and arrived at the games. I saw Applejack wearing a scarecrow outfit running an apple bobbing stand. Happy Nightmare Night Applejack, Twilight greeted as we got close. Howdy Ash. Hey Twilight nice costume, with that beard I reckon you're some kind of country music singer and as for you Ash Twilight was right about your muscles, boy do you look handsome. I'm just surprised at how many scars you have, Applejack said rubbing the scars on my chest. My muscles seem to be the main topic of the night, honoring the Applejack, I said in a sarcastic tone. Applejack removed her hands from my chest just in time for Mac to come round the corner. He was wearing a black cloak with a skull in the shape of an apple on it, along with a top hat. Howdy partner, Mac said as he walked over to us, giving a low whistle when he saw my build and the scars that crisscrossed it. Hey Mac, seen the boys? I asked. Nope, he replied. 
Suddenly, Mayor Mayor walked onto the stage in the center of the carnival wearing a clown costume with a rainbow wig. While the audience let out cheers of applause the four of us walked over to the stage and mingled with the group and stood next to Spike. Thank you everypony and welcome to the Nightmare Night Festival, all the little ponies who have been out collecting sweets should follow our friend Zikora to hear the legend of Nightmare Moon, the mayor said with an evil laugh. The spooky voice may work better if she wasn't dressed like that Spike said causing me to stifle a laugh. All of a sudden the stage was filled with green smoke and out of the smoke appeared a familiar zebra I met in the Everfree Forest, the only one that wasn't frightened of me when we first met. She wore a black robe with a white wig with spiders in it, along with her golden neckband and loop earrings similar to what one would find in Africa. Follow me and very soon you'll hear the tale of Nightmare Moon, Zikora said. We walked towards the Everfree Forest and came to a clearing, not too deep inside the forest and inside the clearing was a statue of Nightmare Moon. Listen close my little dives, I'll tell you how got your fears of Nightmare Night, so dark and scary of Nightmare Moon who makes you wary, Zikora said as she reached into her pocket and pulled out some green powder. She blew on the powder and it spiraled around and turned into a green smoke version of Nightmare Moon diving out of the sky at us. I raised my shield for show, when Nightmare Moon came in contact with it the fake Nightmare Moon turned into a puff of green smoke that surrounded us. Every year we put on a disguise to save ourselves from her searching eyes but Nightmare Moon just wants one thing, to gobble up ponies in one quick swing, Zikora released another cloud of mist and the mist took form of Nightmare Moon searching for something. Hungrily she soars the sky and if she sees no pony she passes by and if she comes and all is clear Equestria is safe another year, Zikora finished as the fake Nightmare Moon dispersed into specks of light. Um Miss Zikora if we wear costumes to hide from Nightmare Moon so she won't gobble us up, how come we still have to give her some of our candy? Pip asked. A perfect question my little friend, for Nightmare Moon you must not offend, Zikora said as she blew on some more dust that turned into Nightmare Moon once more, this time she stopped Pip and the other foals and Pinky and me. Fill up her belly with a treat or two so she won't return to come eat you, the fake Nightmare Moon pounced at as the kids ran behind me, I raised my shield again and let the fake Nightmare Moon slam into it disappearing into another smoke screen. Oh yeah, I say bring her on. Ashblade can take her on no sweat Scootaloo said behind me. Zikora tilted her head in confusion before she turned to look at me I reached for my helmet and took it off to reveal my face. Hello Zikora, I said with a smile. Are my eyes and ears playing tricks on me or is that you Ashblade standing before me, she said as she looked at me in surprise. I was about to answer but then the wind picked up and dark clouds filled the sky forming a tunnel around the moon. A flash of light went off inside the tunnel. Out of the tunnel appeared a dark chariot driven by two dark grey pegasus. The pegasus wore dark armor, they also had fangs and instead of feathered wings like ordinary pegasi, these guys had bat wings. The passenger wore a long brown cloak that hid their face, the carriage stoked above us and the dark figure looked down on us. It's Nightmare Moon Run. Pinky yelled causing every pony but me to run. I looked back up at the carriage to see the cloaked figure give orders to the two pegasus. They gave a nod before they flew off in the direction of Ponyville with me running close behind. The chariot flew over the fields leaving me behind. I was still in the field when I saw the chariot stop above Ponyville and saw the cloaked figure leap out of the chariot. I ran as fast as I could to see if the new arrival was a threat. All of a sudden I heard yelling coming from Ponyville forcing me to fall to my knees and cover my ears in pain. Citizens of Ponyville we have braced your tiny village with our presence so that you may behold the real princess of the night. Comma quote. The sound of the voice sounded all too familiar to me. After I recovered from the large amount of volume one ran into Ponyville Square to see every pony shacking in fear and bowing. I looked around until I spied the cause of the yelling, it was Princess Luna, I was about to go over to her and say hi to her but something grabbed my foot causing me to trip. I looked at my foot to see Spike grabbing and putting a finger to his lips and twilight next to him giving me a shrug. I pulled my leg out of Spike's grip and looked back at the deep blue alicorn. The creature of nightmares is no longer but INSTEDA pony WHO desires your love and admiration. Together we shall change this dreadful celebration into a bright and glorious feast. As Luna finished lightning flashed behind her causing her to look terrifying. Did you hear that every pony? Nightmare Moon said she's gonna feast on us all, Pinky said causing all the foals to run away screaming. What? No children no, you no longer have reason to fear us. Screams of delight is what your princess desires, not screams of terror, Luna said stamping her hoof on the ground causing the earth to crack before she turned her head to the crowd shaking in fear. Very well then, be that way, we won't even bother with a traditional royal farewell, she said as she walked off towards the Everfree Forest. Well that could have gone so much better, I said as I stood up and walked after her. Where are you going? Twilight asked. To comfort her like any friend would, I said. I'll come with you, Twilight said. Are you both crazy? You can't talk to her, she's Nightmare Moon, Spike said grabbing Twilight in my cape. No she's not both Ash and I saw the elements of Harmony change her back to good right, Ash. Twilight said. Yeah and if you forget Spike, she even became my friend at the Grand Galloping Gala. When I last saw her she was having trouble adjusting, she just needs some help, I said as I walked off in the same direction Luna had gone, with Twilight close behind. Twilight and I walked down the path that lead to the statue of Nightmare Moon. I saw the statue and in front of it sitting in the shadows was Princess Luna. Are you going to sit around in the shadows of that thing all night? I asked. Leave us be whoever you are, Luna said without looking at me. Ah oh, come on that's no way to treat a friend, I said lifting the helmet from my face. Luna turned around and when she saw me she let out a gasp and quickly looked away from me. Are you alright your majesty? I asked. Yes it's just that thou torso is exposed, she said with a blush. Sorry it's a dare from Rainbow Dash. I told her that ancient Spartans sometimes went into battle without any chest armor and she dared me to go out tonight without the chest piece, I said scratching the back of my head. For what purpose? Luna asked. I think it's because she and every other mare in Ponyville wanted to see how fit I am and also my scars, I said placing my helmet over my head. We see, Luna said still blushing. I brought another friend along with me tonight princess, I said stepping out of the way for Luna to see Twilight. Princess Luna, hi my name is, Twilight started. Stars world the bearded, commendable costume thou even got the bells right, Luna said as she stood and walked over to the purple unicorn. 
Thank you, finally some pony who gets my costume, but I just came along with Ash to welcome you to our celebration. My real name is Twilight said. Twilight Sparkle IT was thou WHO unleashed the elements of harmony upon US and took away our dark power. Looney yelled with enough force to cause a gust of wind. And that was a good thing, Twilight said recovering from the blast of wind. But of course, we could not be happier is that not clear? Luna said in a slightly raised tone. Well you kind of sound like you're yelling at her your highness, I said. But this is the traditional royal canterlot voice it is also tradition to use this much volume when addressing our subjects. Luna said raising her voice again blowing off my helmet. You know that might explain why your appearance was met with mixed results, Twilight said. Indeed your majesty, didn't anyone want to help you with your speech? I asked as I picked up my helmet and placed it back on my head. Luna just shook her head in reply. Maybe if we change your approach a little you might be met with a warmer reception, Twilight said. Change our approach, Luna yelled. For example lowering the volume, if you're using the canterlot voice it will make you seem like you're yelling at your subjects, I said rubbing my ears. Oh, we have been locked on the moon for 1000 years, we're not sure if we can, Luna said. Well that's why we're here to help princess, I said with a smile. We walked out of the forest towards Fluttershy's cottage. Don't worry princess, Fluttershy can give you some great pointers. She's delicate and demure with the sweetest little voice, Twilight said as she walked over to the door and knocked on it. Go away, no candy here. Visitors aren't welcome on Nightmare Night, Fluttershy yelled from behind the door. Ha 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 Fluttershy it's me Twilight, Twilight said. The door opened slightly to reveal the butter yellow Pegasus. It is you, Fluttershy opened the door further and saw both Luna and I. Ah and both Ash and Nightmare Moon gasped Nightmare Moon, Fluttershy shrieked before she slammed the door closed. Oh wait right here, Twilight said as she walked inside. I heard a loud clatter of objects come from inside before the door opened to reveal, Twilight pushing Fluttershy toward the princess. Fluttershy you remember Princess Luna, right? I said gesturing to Luna. Charmed, Luna said raising her hand. As soon as Luna lifted her hand Fluttershy tried to run back inside. But not before I grabbed a hold of the mare's tail and dragged her back to stand in front of Luna. Likewise, Fluttershy squeaked. Twilight Sparkle has told us of the SWEATNESS of thy voice. We ask thou to teach us as thou speaks, Luna said. Okay, Fluttershy whispered. Shall our lessons begin, Luna asked. Okay, Fluttershy whispered again. Shall we mimic thy voice, Luna asked. Okay, Fluttershy whispered again. How's this, Luna asked. Perfect, lesson over, Fluttershy tried to run back into the safety of her home, only for me to push the door closed and for Fluttershy to run straight into the door. Try a little quieter princess, I suggested as I caught Fluttershy and stopped her from hitting her head on the ground. How is this? Luna asked. Better, right Fluttershy? Twilight asked. Yes, Fluttershy said before she fell unconscious. How about now? Luna asked. Now you're getting it, Twilight said. And how about now? Luna asked. Perfect, well done princess, I said. Luna charged her horn and wrapped Fluttershy in a light blue aura and brought Fluttershy over for a hug. I think the dear Fluttershy, our normal speaking voice will surely win us the hearts of your fellow villagers, Luna said. Fluttershy, you've got to hide us. Nightmare Moon's here and Pinky said as she and the foals walked up to the cottage to see Fluttershy still in Luna's embrace. Nightmare Moon put Fluttershy under a sleep spell so she can't struggle or scream when she gobbles her up. Pinky yelled once again causing her and the foals to run away screaming. Nay children wait, I mean, nay children wait, Luna cried after them but they were already out of earshot, Luna then looked at the ground in sadness. Come on princess I have an idea, I said as I walked out of Fluttershy's cottage after I placed Fluttershy on her couch. We walked through town and ponies cowered on the ground in terror as we walked by. It is of no use Ashblade and Twilight Sparkle, they have never liked us, Luna said as we walked through the cowering ponies. Applejack is one of the most liked ponies around your highness, I'm sure she can help you, I said with a smile trying to cheer up the princess. We approached the apple bobbing stand and I saw Applejack placing some more apples into the water. She turned around and saw Luna and started to cower like the rest. I looked at Applejack and rolled my eyes with a groan. I kneeled downward to get close to the shaking Applejack. Uh, Applejack Princess Luna is looking for a little advice on how to fit in, I said. Fit in, really? Applejack said in a sarcastic tone. I growled at her in response and showed my teeth. Uh, I mean that's easy. All you have to do is have the right attitude, loosen up a bit, play a few games, have some fun. Fun, what is this fun thou speak of? Luna asked. Twilight, Applejack and I pointed to the variety of games. Pray tell, what purpose do these serve? Luna asked as she walked over to a game with rubber spiders and a web. You have to land the spiders on the web, I said while pointing at the web. Luna grabbed one of the spiders and tossed it toward the web the spider landed in the center of the on the first try. Some of the frightened ponies walked over to the stand to view the princess at play. Your princess enjoys this fun. In what other ways may we experience it? Luna asked. We lead Luna over to the pumpkin toss. Luna loaded a catapult with a pumpkin and fired it the pumpkin landed right on the target. The fun has been doubled, Luna said allowing every pony to cheer and joy. Why don't you try bobbing for an apple? We got the best apples in Equestria Princess, Applejack said. I asked that thou callest me Luna Fair Applejack. Hear me villagers call me Luna, Luna said. The crowd was filled with excited murmurs. Show me to these bobbing apples, Luna said. As we neared the stall I saw Pinky and the foals walk around the corner. Nightmare Moon is here, she's going to eat every pony in Ponyville. Run for it, Pinky said when she saw Luna causing not only the foals but the crowd to run away and terror leaving only Twilight, Applejack, Luna and I. I looked at Luna to see her eyes fill up with tears. Luna, I said. They tricked me, they did love me and they never will. Very well then, since E-V-E-R-Y-P-O-N-Y chooses to fear U.S. and dishonor U.S. with this celebration we decree that Nightmare Night shall be cancelled forever. Luna yelled in the royal canterlot voice and made her eyes glow white gaining the attention of nearly every pony in town before she walked off. I looked around at the carnival to see so many faces sad and depressed. Some of the foals were even crying. 
Shoot, everything was going so well. Luna was happy, every pony in town was happy. Now look, Applejack said. I'd better go talk to Luna, I said as I started to walk towards the Everfree. Um, Sugar Cube, I don't think that's a good idea, you might anger her further, she is a princess, Applejack said. Say Applejack under the title she's still a pony just like you are. She has a heart and feelings as well and right now she needs someone to talk to, I said. Alright, I'm gonna find Pinky and try and get her to make peace with Luna, Twilight said. With that we went our separate ways. I ran off after Luna, hoping to catch up with her. I followed her tracks that led me to the edge of town. I followed the tracks towards the Everfree Forest and I ran into the forest to see Princess Luna glaring up at the statue of Nightmare Moon. Luna charged up her horn and fired it at a tree turning it to dust. She then sat down on the ground brought her knees to her face and let the tears flow. I walked over to her as gentle as I could, without disturbing her. When I was close I saw she was shaking from the cold. I took off my helmet then set it on the ground and removed the cape from my shoulders and gently placed it on her back. She flinched at the touch and looked at me with a charged horn. When she saw me the aura around her horn disappeared, and she wrapped her arms around my chest and pulled me into a hug. Are you alright Luna? I asked. No, I just want to be accepted by my subjects but the only thing they see is a monster, Luna said. You know Luna, even I wasn't accepted back on my own world, so I know what it's like to be called monster, I said. How? Luna asked. My blood parents didn't want me and left me to die. Nearly every single day of my life I have been beaten and kicked, leaving me with these scars, pain and blood. I was also called monster but a couple of names that always stuck was Nightmare from Hell or Pyro Psycho. Why would anyone call you that? Luna asked. Well, Nightmare from Hell I guess it's because of my appearance, they describe me as a nightmare that crawled out of hell because of my build and my arm. As for Pyro Psycho a lot of people accused me of being the one who caused the fire I lost my arm in. I said rubbing my left arm. What? But that's not true you're innocent, Luna said with tears in her eyes. Yeah but they didn't know that. At first I didn't fare any better here than in my world. A lot of ponies looked at me in fear. There was even that one time where they tried to chase me out of Ponyville with pitchforks and torches, I said. Why would they do that? Luna asked, completely gobsmacked by what she heard. Well I can't exactly blame them, a talking wolf is hard to believe and understand. But then it changed after I fought Discord I became more accepted by others, some ponies still disapprove of me but all I'm saying is you should give these guys some time, they're a little slow but they'll warm up to you, I said with a reassuring smile causing Luna to smile. Princess Luna the first finally figured out why you're having trouble being like, Twilight said as she came running into the clearing. Forgive me if I withhold my enthusiasm, Luna said glumly. Allow me to explain, Twilight said as she told us her plan. I waited in the bushes at the edge of the clearing for Twilight to give me my cue, the foals of Ponyville were lining up in front of the statue of Nightmare Moon. Twilight managed to convince the mayor and Luna to do the candy offering to Nightmare Moon. Pipsqueak was the last pony to place his treats in front of the statue. Goodbye Nightmare Night Forever, Pip said as he placed his candy. After he did I looked at Twilight and she gave me a nod. I channeled my magic and let out a thunderclap, and created a mist that crept around the pony signaling Luna to begin. All of a sudden the statue of Nightmare Moon came to life. Citizens of Ponyville you were wise to bring this candy to me I am pleased with your offering so pleased that I may just eat it instead of eating you. Nightmare Moon said. Every pony screamed and ran off, I looked back at Nightmare Moon to see her change back into Luna. I'm not certain that did what you meant for it to do Twilight Sparkle, Luna said as she spat out the fake teeth she was wearing. I have to agree with Luna TWI, what was the point? I asked. Just wait, Twilight said. For what? For them to scream some more? Luna asked as she jumped of the statue's altar. A oh, Princess Luna, I know there's not gonna be any more Nightmare Night. But do you suppose maybe you can come back next year and scare us again anyway? Pip asked as he lightly tugged on Luna's dress. Child are you saying you like it when I scare you? Luna asked. It's really fun, scary, but fun, Pip said. It is, Luna asked surprised. Yeah Nightmare Night is my favorite night of the year, Pip said. Well then we shall have to bring Nightmare Night back, Luna said. You're my favorite princess ever, Pip said as he hugged her leg, then left to tell the others. See, they really do like you princess, Twilight said. Can it be true, oh most wonderful of, I mean, oh most wonderful of nights, Luna said with a small smile. We returned to the festival and ponies were cheering for Luna's decision about uncancelling Nightmare Night. Ponies were having fun everywhere, as we walked I saw Rarity wearing an undead princess costume. Hi Rarity, I said as I walked over to her. Hello darling, I must say you look handsome without a top on, Rarity said blushing. Um, thanks I guess and thanks for your help with the costume. How much do I owe you? I asked as I pulled out my bit bag. Ten bits, she said. I grabbed the right amount of bits and handed them to Rarity. Ah, you must be Rarity. Bearer of the element of generosity, Luna said as she walked up to us. P, P, Princess Luna, I was not aware of your presence tonight, Rarity stuttered as she bowed. Ah uh, Rarity, if I may ask, where have you been all night? I asked. Oh I've been busy preparing my costume. What do you think? Rarity asked. Very undead, I said. All of a sudden, Mayor Mare appeared on stage once more. Hello once again everypony. I'd personally like to welcome both Princess Luna and the sixth night of Equestria, Ashblade for the first time to our Nightmare Night Festival, Mayor Mare said as everyone cheered for Luna and I. So will everyone give a hand to DJ Pawn 3? As the mayor finished, a familiar shades wearing white unicorn, who was also wearing a vampire costume, stepped over to a DJ turntable and played a track. Everypony started dancing and enjoying themselves. I separated from my group of friends who had gathered around Luna and I. I walked over to the side of the stage to reach Vinyl. Hey Vinyl, why didn't you tell me you're a DJ? I asked as I reached her. Hi Ash, man you are looking hot. Nice set of muscles you got there, but what are you supposed to be? Vinyl asked. A Spartan, our strongest and most fearsome warriors ever, I said. Cool, so what do you need? She asked. Thought you might want to play a song of mine, I said as I disconnected the iPod from my arm. Would I ever, Vinyl said as I handed her my iPod and plugged it into the system. 
I then showed her the song I wished to play. After vinyl's track ended I walked out on stage with a microphone in hand. Is everypony enjoying their nightmare night tonight? I asked. Yeah, the audience responded. Awesome. I figured every one of you deserved a treat tonight so I'm gonna play a song from where I come from. Hope you all enjoy, I said as I placed the microphone back on its stand and walked back to the center of the stage. I gave a nod to vinyl to start. As the song began I clicked my fingers and a flash of lightning and thunder went off. After the flash, a pair of ghost-like ponies stood either side of me, causing everyone to jump and move away from the stage. Just one thing I need to ask, you're not afraid of ghosts are you? I asked as I began to dance with the ghosts following my lead. As I danced with the two ghosts bits and pieces of my skin started to fall off until all that remained was my skeleton along with my metal arm. The skeleton me started doing the moonwalk and all sorts of moves. Everyone was so entranced by the music and my dancing they no longer were scared of my skeletal appearance and the two dancing ghosts. When the song ended the two ghosts disappeared into ashes. My skeleton then jumped down off of the stage and walked through the crowd towards my friends and Luna. You scared yet? I asked with a chuckle causing both Pinky and Rarity to faint. I snapped my fingers and once again I resumed my former appearance including my Spartan costume. Too much. I asked looking at the two unconscious ponies. That was awesome Ash Pip said as he walked up to us. True that and here's the 100 bits I promised you, Rainbow said tossing a bag of bits at me. How did you do all that? Twilight asked in a surprised tone. The skeleton part was an illusion spell and is for the ghosts, magical holograms, I said. That was quite the show. I've never seen anything like that, Luna said. Hey Ash, that was some awesome dancing and totally awesome music. Who wrote that anyway? Vinyl asked as she walked over to us and handed me my iPod. Glad you guys enjoyed it and the man who wrote that was Michael Jackson, the king of pop music in my world, I said. Nice, well can't wait to hear more. See ya, round Ash Vinyl said as she walked away. The party continued until midnight and every pony started to leave for home. Luna walked back to the library with Twilight Spike and myself. So this is the where you are staying at? Luna asked looking around the library. Yep, Golden Oak Library, follow me I'll show you around, I said. You two do that both Spike and I are heading off to sleep, Twilight said as the two walked up the stairs. Okay, night you two, I said. I showed Luna the house and finished at my room. I must say you certainly have an impressive room. I didn't get to see much of it last time I was here, Luna said as she looked at the room. It is quite nice, I said as I placed my helmet, spear, sword, shield and cape in a corner of the room and grabbed my pajamas. What is this? She asked looking at a brown book on my desk. My sketchbook, you can have a look at it while I take a shower, if you like, I said. After my shower I walked back into my room fully dressed in my pajamas and saw Luna asleep on my bed with my sketchbook in her hand. I smiled at her and grabbed the book and placed it back on my desk and tucked the princess of the night into my bed. Good night princess Luna, I said as I finished placing the blanket over her. Love you, Luna mumbled in her sleep causing me to blush. After I turned off the light I curled up on a rug on the floor and fell asleep. Chapter 8 Into the Arena of Hell I woke to something shifting on top of me. I lazily opened one of my eyes to see I was sleeping on the rug next to my bed. At first I was confused, why was I down here? Then I remembered the events from last night. I was showing Luna the house and finished at my room and she found my sketchbook and I allowed her to read it while I had a shower. When I returned Luna had fallen asleep on my bed so I gave her my bed for the night. All of a sudden, I felt something tighten around my waist, squeezing the air out of me and heard a moan and some light snoring. I looked down at my chest to see the source of the noise, it was Princess Luna, she had fallen out of my bed sometime during the night and was using my chest as a pillow and was cuddling me like an oversized stuffed toy. I tried to wiggle out of her grip without disturbing her, I was halfway out before she grabbed my legs and pulled me back towards her and rested her head in the crook of my neck and began to nuzzle it. Just then, Luna brought her face up to mine and kissed me on the cheek. I almost started to panic and tried to push her off me but accidentally pushed her in her right breast causing her to let out a moan once more and kiss me harder on my cheek. She started to stir awake I immediately noticed this and pulled my hand away from her chest before she fully awoke. Luna opened her eyes while she was still kissing me. When her eyes adjusted to her surroundings and she saw was kissing me, her wings shot outwards like a spring and shot upwards into a straddling position with her eyes staring at me in shock and confusion. I took a deep breath and sighed. I take it that you slept well, I said in a blunt tone. We are, Luna almost yelled in the royal canterlot voice but before Luna could finish, I covered her mouth with my hand and brought a finger to my lips to signal her to keep quiet. I'm pretty sure all a ponyville does not want to be awoken by the royal canterlot voice, so shall we keep to our indoor voices Luna? I asked as I removed my hands from both of our lips. Agreed and I sincerely apologize about. Well that, Luna said as she blushed then looked away from me. Damn she looks adorable when she blushes. Wait, what am I doing, I can't think of her like that, I thought. Let's forget it Luna, perhaps you could possibly climb off of me please because this position is really awkward. Luna looked and saw she was straddling me, then let out a squeak that would have made Fluttershy proud before she scrambled off of me. I stood up and stretched my arms out and looked at the selling and yawned. Suddenly, a small cloud of green smoke appeared and turned into a scroll tied with a red ribbon with a gold seal with Celestia's sun. It dropped into my still open mouth. Gak, P-T-E-W cough cough well that's a cough fine way to stretch, I said as I spat out the rolled up parchment. Are you alright Ashblade? Luna asked as she gently patted my back. I'll be fine but I wonder why Celestia sent a letter here and why it didn't go through Spike like normal, I said. Maybe it's because it's for me. Tia and I have a spell that allows us to message each other, Luna said. Now that's a spell I should learn myself, could come in handy, I said. Perhaps I can teach you sometime, Luna said as she picked up the scroll with her magic and opened it. As she read it she let out a sharp gasp. Is something wrong Luna? I asked in a worried tone. I'm four minutes late to set the moon, Tia is going to kill me, Luna said running around in frenzy. Luna calm down, I said as I grabbed her shoulders and turned her to face me. Now all you need to do is lower the moon okay no problem. You're right thank you Ash, Luna said as she took a deep breath and turned her head towards the window and looked at the sky, I require complete concentration please. 
Of course, I said as I stepped into the bathroom, after I closed the door I walked over to a mirror and stared at my reflection. Well look at you, you've been here for two months and a bit and already you got a princess hitting on, ya congrats pal. Keep quiet you, she kissed me while she was asleep, that doesn't count at all. But you like her right? Yeah but so what? You play your cards right and you may even end up in bed with her. I continued to stare at my reflection until I looked at my hands. A princess wouldn't want a guy like me, I said as I clenched my fist. All of a sudden, I heard shrieking and squawking coming from the bedroom. I rushed to the door and opened it to see dust flying around Luna while pecking at her head. Luna was trying to defend herself from the black bird. Dust stop it, I shouted. Dust stopped and looked at me while staying in place and flapping, Luna stared at me in surprise. What's going on here, I asked. This bird appeared out of nowhere and attacked while I finished lowering the moon, Luna accused pointing at dust. Dust's response was a few squawks towards me. I see, well as you can see I'm unharmed Dust and Luna here was a guest here during the night so there is no reason to worry about me, I said. Dust gave a nod before he flew over to me and landed on my shoulder. Oh how could I forget, you two haven't met each other yet. Dust I'd like you to meet Princess Luna. Princess Luna I'd like you to meet my companion Dust, I said gesturing to the both of them. Dust extended a wing for the princess to shake. Luna started to slowly reach out to touch the wing. When she did she gave it a gentle shake. Nice to meet you Dust but I demand to know why you attacked me like that, Luna said. I'm sorry about that Luna but Dust is a bit protective of me, and when he saw you alone in here instead of me he thought you may have harmed me, I said as I patted Dust. I see, well I can assure you Dust, I would never dream of harming Ash, he's too good a friend to me, Luna said. Ash are you ALR, suddenly, both Spike and Twilight slammed the door open. Spike was armed with a broom and Twilight's horn was charged with magic and ready to fire but when they saw Luna they froze in surprise. Hi you two what's up? I asked in a casual tone. We heard shouting and came to see if you're alright Twilight said while the aura around her horn disappeared, still in shock staring at Luna and I. Don't worry, it was just a misunderstanding between Luna and Dust, I said. I see, well we're about to get breakfast ready, come on Spike, Twilight said. Right, Spike said as he lowered his broom and turned to leave. Oh and Spike can you make Luna some of your delicious pancakes, I asked. Sure thing Ash, Spike said as he and Twilight disappeared from the doorway. Oh no, I couldn't possibly stay. Celestia wants me back at Canterlot as soon as possible, Luna protested. Well I don't think you'd get far on an empty stomach, so I suggest you stay and get something to eat, namely, Spike's pancakes, I said. Very well, Luna said in a defeated tone. Speaking of food I believe I should let you out to find your own food, correct? I said to Dust who squawked happily in response. I walked over to the window and opened it and let Dust fly off. He's a faithful companion, Luna said. He is isn't he? I saved him from his own mother when he was a baby when I arrived here and have been taking care of him since. He's become like a little brother to me. What about you Luna, do you have a companion like I do in Dust? I asked. Yes I have a possum named Tiberius, Luna said. Tiberius, wasn't that the name of a Roman emperor? I asked. Yes Uncle Ezio told me about him once, so I decided to name Tiberius after that emperor, Luna said with a smile. I see. Well I'm going to take a shower and get changed, or do you wish to use the bathroom before me? I asked. No, need I shall ask Twilight Sparkle if I can use hers, Luna said. If that is what the princess wishes, I said as I grabbed some clothes and went back into the bathroom. After the shower I stepped out of the bathroom wearing a pair of blue jeans and a white shirt. I walked downstairs into the kitchen to see Twilight, Spike and Luna at the table eating their pancakes. Luna had a look of pure bliss on her face as she ate her food. I told you they were awesome. Are you glad you stayed for breakfast, Luna? I asked. Em hum, Luna said with a mouthful. I smiled at the answer before I sat down to eat. Oh Ash, can I ask you something? Twilight asked. Sure, what's on your mind Twilight? I asked. Well, uh, the, dot did you sleep with Luna last night? Twilight said with a blush. The question forced Luna to spit out her orange juice she was drinking and caused both Luna and I to look at each other then look away with burning cheeks. Okay first off TWI, no I didn't sleep with Luna she just fell asleep when I went to have a shower and I didn't want to wake her so I gave up my bed to Luna. I slept on the rug so we weren't even in the same bed. Secondly TWI, it's none of your business if I did or not okay. You don't go into someone's life like that unless the pony tells you willingly, am I clear? I asked in a cold tone that could rival Antarctica. Crystal, Twilight said as she shivered. After breakfast we said our goodbyes to Luna and watched as she flew back to Canterlot I left for the forge to see if I could hammer away at something. As I walked past an alley I was grabbed and pulled into the darkness of the alley. A pair of arms held my wrists to try and stop me moving my arms but I threw my head back and hit my attacker in the jaw forcing him to let me go. I turned around and grabbed my attacker's shirt and used my magic to make some light in the dark alley so I could see their face. Only to see. Thunderlane, what the hell man I could have killed you. I yelled at the black pegasus. Sorry but I had to think of some way to get you in here. Good hit by the way, Thunderlane said rubbing his jaw. You could have walked up to me and told me you had something to talk about. Also, a word of caution, last time someone spooked me like that he had every bone in his body broken okay, I said. Noted but we needed to talk to you about something, Thunderlane said as he stood. What do you mean we? I asked puzzled. Just then Rainbow, Rarity, Comet, Pinky, Applejack, Pierce and Fluttershy stepped out of the shadows. What are you lot doing here? I asked. So is it true, is it, is it, is it? Pinky asked. What's true? I asked. That Princess Luna spent the night with you in your bed, Rainbow said with a smug grin. What the hell? Who told you that? I almost screamed. I saw Luna leave the library today and she looked very happy and thanks to those words we know that it's true, Rarity said with mischief dripping from her voice. Are you all out of your minds? I didn't sleep with Luna, I was giving her a tour of the house and we finished with my room because it was on the top floor. As I went to have a shower, Luna fell asleep on my bed so I gave up my bed to her and slept on the rug in my room. The reason why she was happy is because she tasted Spike's pancakes, I said. 
Applejack grabbed a hold of my face and turned me towards her and stared at me for a few minutes. He ain't lying he's telling the truth, Applejack finally said. Of course it's true, what kind of princess would want someone who's so broken, I said. Broken, what do you mean Ash? Comet asked. It's nothing you need to concern yourself with Comet. Best you forget it and is for the rest of you, does anyone else know about this? I asked. No, why? Applejack asked. The last thing that is needed is crazy rumors running around saying Luna and I are together. So can you Pinky promise me you won't say anything please? I asked. But it's no fun then, Rarity said with a whine. Rarity if the nobles hear any of this it will mean huge trouble for Luna and I, I said. Oh alright, Rarity said. After everyone Pinky promised we left the alley and I continued to the forge. When I arrived I saw Caramel standing next to a two large crates with an angry look on his face. Caramel, what's up you look pissed at something? I asked with concern. I was expecting a new shipment of metal for us to work on and they were giving away this useless crap for every order of metal. I told them I didn't need it but they didn't listen and dumped these here, Caramel pointing to the two crates. What's inside? I asked. Feel free to take a look but it doesn't change the fact that it's useless, Caramel said kicking a stone. I walked over to the crates and lifted the lids on both crates what was inside truly surprised me. The crate on the left was filled to the brim with diamonds and the crate on the right was filled with obsidian. Caramel, do you have any idea what this stuff is? I said in surprise. Yeah, diamonds and obsidian. Why, is this stuff worth much on your world? Caramel asked. Is it worth much caramel? If you combine these two as they are and take it to my world you'd be as rich as Celestia herself. Why the heck is this stuff useless here? I asked. Because it keeps on popping up all over the place, it's really easy to come by here, Caramel said. I see, well Caramel, there is one thing you're wrong about. This stuff can be forged into one hell of a blade. If you allow me, I'd like to give it a try, I said with excitement. Go ahead, use as much as you want Ash. I can't wait to see what you'll cook up, Caramel said. Sweet, now this is going to take a while because it's my first time using these materials. So I would appreciate it if we kept this project between ourselves, until it's finished please, I said. Sure Ash, show me what you can do, Caramel said. After three weeks of sweat, obsidian and diamonds my hard work was complete. I held my project in both my hands and smiled. They were a pair of handheld folding sides that had a sparkling diamond handle with a black obsidian blade that made it look like it would suck the soul out of anyone who touched it. So what do you think? I asked Caramel. I'm speechless, there is absolutely no way to describe them, Caramel said. Thanks, this is the result when you combine diamond and obsidian you get the strongest and sharpest weapon of all time, I said. All of a sudden Spike, Map, Comet, Thunderlane and Pierce walked into the forge. Hey guys what's happening? Caramel greeted the stallions and young dragon. Pierce says he has something to tell all of us. Fancy sides you got there Ash, Comet said. Just finished them today. Anyway what did you want to say Pierce? I asked. Well it's just that Pinky and I are seeing each other now, Pierce said shyly. The room was filled with absolute dead silence at that moment. None of us knew what to say until I spoke up. Dude, my congratulations for you both. How long have you been seeing each other? I asked. After we all met at the Bronco. Guess you could call it love at first sight, Pierce said with a sigh of relief. Awesome news Pierce. Oh Ash, I came by to give you a letter from Celestia, Spike said. Thanks Spike, I'll read it after I put these away, I said as I flicked the sides causing the blade to fold towards the handle. I then walked into the back room and placed the sides on the workbench before I walked back to the others. So where's the letter Spike? Right here Ash, Spike said handing me the letter. I grabbed the letter and opened it and began to read. Dear Ash Blade. I am writing this to inform you that we have summoned the bearers of the elements of harmony to Canterlot Castle and will return later today. In two days they will be summoned again for an unknown amount of time so please don't worry if you believe your friends are missing. Hope you are doing well. Yours sincerely. Celestia. So what does it say Ash? Comet asked. It's just informing me that the girls have been summoned to Canterlot for some reason. But something feels off the writing looks like it was written in a hurry and it's kinda sloppy. Spike has Celestia ever written like this? I asked showing Spike the paper. No never and I should know, she and Twilight taught me how to read and write, Spike said. Maybe I should head over to Canterlot just to make sure everything is alright. Does anyone know when the next train is? I asked. Sorry Ash but you missed it and the girls are on board as well, Spike said. They left without a goodbye okay. Now I know something is not right. Is there any other way for me to get to Canterlot? I asked. A guard chariot is about to arrive to collect the spears you and I made during the week when you weren't busy with your sides. You can hop on board when it arrives. And speak of the devil, Caramel said as he pointed to the landing chariot. The chariot flew towards the castle and landed just outside the royal armory. Thanks gents, I said to the two driving guards as I ran towards the castle. As I ran the first dodge crowds of ponies, I made it to the castle and ran inside and asked a guard where Celestia was. Princess Celestia is in the throne room with Princess Luna and the bearers of the elements of harmony just arrived right now Sir Ash Blade, the guard said. I nodded in thanks to the guard before I ran towards the throne room, I reached the door and was about to open it but heard Celestia, Luna, and the girls muffled voices coming from the other side. I placed my ear on the door and slowed my breathing so I could listen to the conversation better. Celestia you can't be serious. This must be some sort of joke, Twilight said. I'm afraid it's no joke and I have no choice in this matter Twilight the other kingdoms have agreed on this. If I don't agree to this then all of the kingdoms will wage war on us. The only kingdom that doesn't want anything to do with this is Zebrafrica, Celestia said. But to have all of the kingdoms use both the elements of harmony and the bearers as a prize in a competition is preposterous, Rarity scoffed. If I'm gone who will take care of my animals? Fluttershy asked in worried tone. And my family and the farm, Applejack added. Not to mention Sweetie Belle and Opal, Rarity sniffed. Scootaloo and Tank as well, Rainbow Dash said. Also Spike and Olicious, Twilight said. Also Gummy and I just found my special sumpony as well, Pinky cried. I am so sorry my little ponies, if I could change this I would, but I can't, Celestia said as I could hear her letting out tears of her own. Can't you send someone to fight for our freedom like Ash? Rainbow asked. 
I'm afraid we cannot do that because the kingdom's leaders have banned us from entering our fighters, even if we were allowed to enter fighters, we wouldn't dare send anyone to fight in that damned arena, Luna said. Why not? Rainbow asked. Because the only way to win the competition is to kill your opponents and no doubt the kingdoms will send their best warriors to this and there will also be many rouges in there and we could not bring ourselves to ask someone to risk their lives and also kill some pony. Imagine what Ash would think if we asked him to do this. I believe killing would just add more pain to him, Luna said causing the girls to look at Luna in both horror and sadness. So a bunch of gladiators are going to be killing each other to claim us as a prize. Applejack shouted. And there is no way for us to get out of it and to think I almost thought of getting Ash involved without thinking, Rainbow said starting to sob. Celestia is there any way to prevent this? Twilight asked. Both Luna and I will come along to try and convince the leaders to reconsider but I'm afraid that's all we can do I'm sorry. I suggest you leave and spend as much time with your families as possible and get ready to leave. The leaders will be arriving in two days to escort us to the arena in the Griffin Kingdom. But remain calm my little ponies I will try to fix this somehow, Celestia said trying to boost confidence. After the conversation I didn't know what to think, a part of me felt disgusted by the actions of the kingdom leaders another part of me felt rage against them and sadness because they planned to take my new friends away. The throne room doors began to open so I teleported out of the castle and into the chariot parking bay. A pair of Pegasi guards walked ahead of me and gave me a salute. Gentlemen, I need to get to Ponyville immediately and I require transportation, can you please assist me? I asked. We're at your disposal sir, they said as they led me over to a chariot. We arrived in Ponyville in no time at all, I quickly thanked the guards and ran to the forge. I ran into the forge and grabbed my protective apron my tools and several ingots of metal. All of a sudden, Spike and the others walked in. Ash you're back, what happened? You look like Twilight during the Smarty Pants incident, Spike said. Sorry Spike, but I got some really bad news right now. I think the girls are going to tell us when they get back. But if they don't we'll all meet in the barn at Sweet Apple Acres at 11.15pm while everyone in a sleep so I can tell you okay. I said. Okay, they said in union as they turned to leave. Oh two things guys, if they do tell us then prepare for a very nasty shock, and Caramel I need your help with this, I said. What are you making Ash? We don't have any orders for anything right now and why do you need my help? Caramel asked. They'll tell you later, I said. Everyone left except for both me and Caramel, we went on working for two hours until Spike walked into the forge and told me that Twilight and the others had returned. I reminded Caramel to meet us in the barn before I left the forge and ran over to the library with Spike. Before we entered I put on my best poker face and walked inside. Hey TWI, I said as we walked in the door. Hi Ash, I'm going to go to bed early today, Twilight said as she walked upstairs. Hi TWI, it's 2pm, what's wrong? Long trip, I asked. You could say that I'm just tired right now, so I'll see you both tomorrow, Twilight said as she disappeared up the stairs. It was 11pm when Spike woke me up I quickly got changed and followed Spike to Sweet Apple Acres. When we arrived Comet, Thunder, Pierce, Mac and Caramel were all there waiting for us. So did any of the girls say anything to you lot? I asked. And nope, Mac said. Me either, Pierce said. Comet, Thunderlane and Caramel all shook their heads in reply. So what's going on Ash, what's this bad news? Spike asked. Well before I tell you, be warned every pony, this is going to be a shock, I said as I began to tell the boys about the leaders of the neighboring kingdoms, all wanting the main six and how they are going to be offered up as a prize for the winning kingdom and that Celestia and Luna don't have a choice in the matter, otherwise Equestria would be threatened with war. When I finished they all had looks of shock, horror and anger on their face but Mac was angrier than the lot the look on his face was just screaming for blood. This just ain't right, they have no right to do this. Comet shouted in anger. I just admitted my feelings to Pinky, now only to have her taken away from me. This just isn't fair, Pierce sobbed burying his face in his hands. Ash what exactly are you making in the forge and why do you need Caramel's help in making it? Thunderlane asked. I'm making armor for myself and I need Caramel's help so I can get it done in time, I said. But why do you need armor? Spike asked. I decided on my way back to Ponyville that I'm entering the tournament and I'm going to win back my friends, I said. What? They all yelled in union. Guys I'm the knight of freedom, it's my responsibility, I said. I'm going to enter this fight too, Mac said. I'm sorry Mac but I can't allow that, I said. Why in the name of Tartarus not? That's my sister in there and I'm going to fight to bring her home. Mac yelled flaring his nostrils. And she's my friend too Mac, but the reason you're not fighting is because you have to kill your opponents and if you and I enter Mac, sooner or later one of us will have to kill the other. I snapped back at him. The barn was silent for a few minutes, the occupants taken aback by my outburst until Spike spoke up. S, so you have to kill to get Twilight and the girls back. Spike said terrified of me all of a sudden. I'm afraid so Spike, I said as I calmed down. Um Ash, have you killed any pony before? Thunderlane asked. Only woodland creatures but sentient beings. No never, I said. You have some serious balls if you're willing to go against some of the best fighters known today and kill them to save your friends, Comet said patting my back. Hey Ash, I'm sorry for snapping at you. I had no idea, Mac started. It's alright Mac, I'd feel the same way in your position, I said. So what happens now? Pierce asked. There is some stuff to do before I leave and I'll need your help Comet. I need you to look after Fluttershy's animals and the girls' pets, as well as Dust. Mac, I need you and Granny Smith to take in Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo while the girls and I are gone. Pierce I'll need transportation to the Griffin Kingdom. Thunderlane, can you get another Pegasus to help you fly the chariot? Spike, I need you to look up any weak points on any sentient creature in Equestria and beyond. Caramel, I need you to help me finish my armor, we've only got two days to get this done so can I count on you? I asked. Yeah, they all replied. It's been two days since I found out about the fight for the main six and things have been busy. The royal chariot came by to collect the girls earlier today and they told us that they would be going away for a long time, but made brilliant poker faces to hide their sadness. After they left I went to grab the now finished armor that Caramel and I finished yesterday and sides and placed them in a gym bag. I then ran as fast as possible to meet up with the boys on the outskirts of Ponyville. 
When I arrived I saw a well-crafted brown carriage and the boys prepping it, along with a light blue furred pegasus with a purple spiky mane and tail wearing a blue flight suit with a yellow lightning bolt pattern on it. Hey Ash, I'd like you to meet someone. This is Soren of the Wonderbolts Elite. He's going to help me pull the chariot, Thunderlane said, gesturing to the light blue pegasus. The Wonderbolts huh? So you're the guys that Rainbow Dash is always going on about, I said. So you know Rainbow Dash huh? I owe her for saving my pie back at the gala, Soren laughed. Yes Rainbow told me about that. Before we leave, did anyone tell you about what we're doing? I asked. You need to get to the Griffin Kingdoms and you need two Pegasus to fly this carriage right. Soren said. Correct, but what about what I'm doing there? I asked. No idea sorry, Soren said. Well I'm entering this tournament where the opponents kill each other for a prize, I said. Wait you're going to kill. Sorry pal, but I'm not taking part in a plan where ponies are killed, Soren said as he began to walk away. Before you leave Soren, I think you should know I have a damn good excuse for this, I said. And what's that? Soren said as he stopped and turned around to face me. The bearers of the elements of harmony have been offered up as the prize for the tournament and I plan to bring them home. Max's sister is one of the elements, along with Spike's caretaker, Pierce's lover and Rainbow Dash. Each one of the bearers of the elements of harmony are my friends. And I'll be damned if I leave them like this, and if that reason isn't a good enough one to fight then, I don't know what is, I said. You're willing to become a killer to save your friends. Soren asked surprised. Yes I am, I said with determination. Well I can't argue with a reason like that, wouldn't even know how to. Those element bearers must be some really nice friends if you're planning to kill to save them, Soren said as he walked over to the carriage and placed the harness on along with Thunderlane. Thank you Soren, I'll pay you if I get back, I said. No need, I'm going to do this because you're going to save Rainbow Dash and because it's a noble cause and I can respect that, Soren said. I walked over to the carriage and opened the door. I was about to climb inside when I saw Mac, Spike, Comet, Pierce, and Caramel line up behind me. Where are you all going? I asked. Don't you think for a second that we aren't coming with you, so don't even bother saying no, Mac said. Yeah, the others agreed. But what about Fluttershy's animals and Granny Smith will need help with Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo, I said. Already taken care of. I got someone to take care of the animals, Comet said. And Granny Smith said she can handle those three fillies, so are we coming or what? Mac asked. Sci fine, just don't blame me if you all pass out at the sight of blood, I said as we entered the carriage. I gave Soren and Thunder the okay to go. The two Pegasus ran forward and flapped their wings. The carriage soon rose off the ground and we were airborne. We flew over the border and into the Griffin Kingdom as Spike finished telling me the weaknesses of every sentient being on the planet, while I changed into my armor and placed my new sides onto the hooks on my waist. The boys were stunned at how fierce and awesome I looked. Now one last thing, I said as I pulled out a silver ring. What's that for? Pierce asked. It's a disguise for myself it will also disguise my voice in the process. I don't want the girls to know it's me fighting in the arena. How do you think they would react to something like this? I asked. As I placed the ring on my finger my appearance immediately changed to a black furred unicorn with a black mane and blue eyes. Looking good there Ash, Comet said. Now remember guys, we were never in the Griffin Kingdom okay, I said in a much deeper voice. Got it they all replied. All right boys, we're here, welcome to the Griffin Kingdom Coliseum, Thunderlane shouted to us. I looked out the window and saw a large circular coliseum that looked like the one from my world, only completely intact rather than in ruins. Thunder and Soren landed on the ground in front of the coliseum, we hopped out of the carriage and gathered around each other to go over the plan. Okay, I'm going to go and sign up for the fight. Soren and Thunder, you hide the carriage while the others can go find some seats. After the show I'll hand the girls over to both Celestia and Luna, then we all leave for home. But first, are all of you absolutely sure you want to see this? I asked. Ash we all knew what we were going to see when we wanted to join you so stop worrying about us, Spike groaned. Sorry I just want to be certain. Don't forget to keep yourselves hidden from the girls and we'll meet back at this spot after the fight, I said as I left the group and walked over to the booth where the contestants sign up. Excuse me, I'd like to enter the match for the elements of harmony please, I asked the female griffin at the booth. Lucky you, we have one more slot to be filled, but be warned you will be fighting against 20 of the best fighters from our kingdom, 10 from the diamond dogs, 25 from the minotaurs, 1 from the dragon kingdom and 50 rogues like yourself, the griffin said. Don't worry about me, there's no way I'm going to die today, I said. Someone with confidence finally, that stuff will get you far. Now there are no rules here, just survive by any means. Good luck handsome, the griffin said with a wink as she opened the cage door to let me in. I walked inside and a pair of coliseum guards escorted me to the waiting bay. I looked around the room and saw many fighters either sharpening their weapons or checking their armor. There were some ponies here along with some centaurs and ape-like dog creatures that reminded me of the main villain in Rainbow's favorite book Daring Do. I received looks from all the contestants when I entered but no one said a word and went back to what they were doing. I walked past the contestants over to the cage door that led out into the arena. The arena floor was covered in golden sand, there were also six other cage doors all around the arena. I didn't have to wait long before five of the doors opened including mine. The fighters from each of the cages walked out into the arena, the largest of the fighters was a dark blue dragon with yellow scales and damaged webbed yellow wings and scared body. There were also many other warriors, each from a different kingdom and wearing heavy armor. I looked around and saw thousands and thousands of spectators watching us. As we walked out I saw the royal box with a large dark green dragon sitting next to it. He wore a crown made of rubies and chest armor that looked like it had seen many battles and two horns were on the sides of his head and went downward before curving upward. Inside the box I was just able to see Princess Celestia and Luna talking with the Griffin King and Diamond Dog Queen and Minotaur King. I looked around once more and I saw an altar outside the walls of the arena, where the main six were all sitting in a cage with miserable looks on their faces. All of a sudden a loudspeaker boomed to life. Welcome ladies and G-E-N-T-L-E-G-R-I-F-F-I-O-N-S to the battle for the elements of harmony. As you all know whoever wins this tournament will claim the elements of harmony. We have the Griffin Kingdom's best fighters going up against the best fighters from the Dragon, Diamond Dog and Minotaur Kingdoms, along with some rogues who think they've got what it takes to be the best. 
In total we have 107 fighters here today, the announcer yelled causing the crowd to let out a roar of applause eager to see some blood. The gates closed behind us sealing me inside the arena with the other fighters. Everyone started to spread out, each one ready to kill. I drew my sides and got into a fighting stance. Suddenly, a bell rang out signaling the match to start. As the bell rang out all hell broke loose. Many of the rogues went after the kingdom's best fighters, some others turned on other rouges. The kingdom's best fighters went to fight the other kingdoms and the rogues but each one was slaughtering each other like a pack of hydras going for a scrap of meat. I knew I would have to join the fight to win so I placed my earphones in my ears and selected a song to suit the situation. Just then, a minotaur came running at me wielding a large axe, he made an attempt to split me in two but I dodged left and drove one of my sides into his stomach and pulled on it tearing his side out spilling blood and gore onto the sand. The minotaur fell on his side dead. I then saw a centaur charging at me trying to impale me with his spear but I ran at him and jumped onto his spear and jumped over him and landed on his horse back in a standing position. Before he could turn his head I shoved both my sides into the back of his head killing him. As the song went on I killed many enemies, each death more horrifying than the last. Many were cut in half, others had severed limbs and large holes in them the list of deaths went on. As I approached the final chorus I was locked in combat with a griffin. He was using a pair of swords and was about to swing at my head. I rolled towards the right along the sand and ended up rolling behind him as the chorus said I'll take your broken wings and learn to fly. I grabbed the griffin by the base of his wings and placed my foot on his back and pulled on his wings tearing them off. The griffin screamed out in pain so I sliced off his head with my scythe ending his pain. Out of the corner of my eye I saw another minotaur wielding a trident running at me. I connected the scythe's hilts together to form one large scythe, one of the blades remained the same shape as a scythe while the other end of the scythe straightened out into a spear. I ran at the minotaur and stuck the main blade into the ground and pole vaulted over the minotaur I held onto the blade, so as I went over the minotaur, the blade wedged into the ground, rose up and dug itself in the minotaur's chin. When I landed, I pulled on the scythe and tore the minotaur's head off just as the song ended. Ladies and G-E-N-T-L-E-M-A-L-E-S this battle has to be the most brutal held in the Colosseum. Yet the fighter from the Dragon Kingdom is still holding out against his enemies. The Diamond Dogs only have 5 fighters left and the Minotaurs have 10 and the G-R-I-F-F-I-O-N-S also have 10 and all but one of the Rouges have been killed and this one Rouge also has just finished his 48th kill. This fighter has a strong chance of winning if he can get past both the Dragon Fighter and the Sand Demon. The announcer said. Just then I saw a metal door slowly open and I heard a growl come from inside the darkness but nothing came out the sand in front of the cage shuffled around and started to move. Fighters then started to run at me ignoring the cage and determined to end me. I got into a stance and ready to fight but before they could reach me a scorpion stinger burst out of the sand and stabbed one of the fighters and threw him away like an old glove. The fighters that were running towards me stopped and looked around at the sand, suddenly four scorpion claws grabbed at least one of the fighters before it pulled them into the sand or sliced them in half and grabbed another fighter. One of the fighters grabbed onto the last fighter, but was soon pulled into the sand. After that everything went still for a minute. Suddenly, the stinger appeared in front of me and looked ready to strike I stood there frozen waiting for death but the stinger didn't move, we stood frozen for what felt like hours then the stinger disappeared into the ground again. I let out the breath I didn't realize I was holding and looked at the remaining fighters all ganging up on the dragon, but the stinger and claws made short work of the fighters. I then realized that the creature responded to vibrations, that's why it ignored me and attacked the fighters closest to the dragon, because of the dragon trying to stomp his prey. The dragon tried to grab a hold of the stingers and claws but they disappeared too fast. The stinger and claws disappeared into the sand once more. After a minute the sand in the center of the arena started to bulge outward until it burst, revealing a large black and red scorpion with two extra pincers on its back and a large white and blue eye with a white pupil. The creature looked between me and the dragon before it looked at me and began to charge. Realizing the scorpion was charging at me I ran towards it and connected my sides once more. Once I was within range the scorpion tried to impale me on his stinger, but I twirled around and in one swift blow I cut off half of its stinger and used the spear-like end of the scythe to stab it through its eye. I rammed the spear further inwards until half of the scythe disappeared inside of the beast, purple blood leaked out of the creature decorating the sand in more blood. I pulled the scythe out of the dead arachnid and disconnected the sides and looked at my handiwork. Just then, something wrapped around my leg and lifted me off the ground I looked to see the dragon had wrapped his tail around me and brought me towards his face. You fight well for a pony young warrior, but I'm afraid this is the end for you, the dragon said as he lifted me above his head and opened his jaws wide and dropped me. As I fell into the dragon's mouth I saw his jaws close around me. The audience let out gasps of shock as the dragon swallowed his meal, Celestia and Luna were disgusted by the tournament's ending. The main six looked on with pity for the poor soul that got eaten alive and the six stallions and dragon were shocked by the defeat of their friend while the audience cheered. It APERS we have a winner the lone fighter of the drag. Wait AMINIUTE, the announcer said cutting off the audience's cheering. The audience looked at the coughing blue dragon banging on both his chest and neck with his claw but started coughing up blood. Everyone looked on as a bulge appeared in the dragon's neck. Suddenly, a black obsidian blade pierced the dragon's scales then cut a line across the dragon's throat. The dragon's neck then spilled gallons and gallons of blood per second, making it look like a waterfall of blood. The dragon grabbed his throat to try and stop the blood flow but it was pointless, not long after he fell on his side and died. The audience was shocked by what happened, everyone was silent. Then someone shouted to look at the blood that fell from the dragon's throat. Everyone turned their eyes to the small lake of blood to see something moving in it. The moving blob of blood stood on its two feet and revealed itself to be the fighter that was eaten by the dragon. I stood on my two feet and folded my sides and placed them on my waist. As I walked out of the lake of blood I tried to wipe most of the blood off of myself. The audience let out cheers of applause for my victory. And our winner for real this time is the unnamed Rouge WHO has made a kill of 50 fighters including the undefeated Sand Demon. This young fighter is incredible, I never would have thought someone like this would be capable of defeating so many including 4 kingdoms best fighters and now, the time has come to give the prize to this very lucky fighter. The announcer said. As he finished stairs appeared out of the sand at the edge of the arena that led up to the altar where the 6 girls were. A coliseum guard walked over to me and handed me the key to the cage I walked up the stairs until I was in front of the girls. More Coliseum guards appeared with shackles. Those won't be needed, I said and the guards nodded before they left. 
I opened the cage door so they could climb out but when I opened the door and looked inside the girls were terrified of me. Even Rode, Fluttershy was horrified by the amount of blood that covered me, so I took a few steps away from the door and waited. After a while the girls stepped out of the cage and were still shaking in fear of me. I led the girls down the steps then Princess Celestia and Luna appeared in front of me. Congratulations on your victory, you have truly earned the right to the elements but I just ask one thing, that we can say goodbye to them please, Celestia said with sadness in her voice. Would you like to say goodbye in a private area? I asked. Yes, thank you, Celestia said. We left the arena and were almost at the exit where the royal carriage was parked before I stopped and spoke up to the princesses. This is where we separate, I said to the princess. I see, Celestia said to me before she turned to the main six, farewell my lit, Celestia started before I cut in. No princess Celestia, I mean this where I separate from the rest of you, I said causing the girls and the princesses to stare at me in surprise. What do you mean? Luna asked. It means you take these girls back to Equestria with you, I said. But the rule said, Twilight started before I cut in. That the winner decides what to do with the elements and since I won, I decide what to do with you and I decide, that you get to go home, I said. What's the catch? Rainbow said. No catch I promise, I said with a hand on my heart. He's telling the truth but what I want to know is why, Applejack said. I'm afraid I can't tell you that and I'm sorry you had to see all that out there, I said in a guilty tone. You have done much for us and yet there must be something we can do for you, Celestia said. Just have a safe journey home your majesty, I said. All of a sudden Pinky wrapped her arms around me in a hug. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pinky exclaimed. No problem, but Pinky, you do realize that I'm still covered in blood, I said. I don't care, thank you so much, Pinky said as she released me. Hang on, how do you know that her name is Pinky? Rarity said, causing everyone to look at me. Take care every pony, I said and bowed before I teleported away from them. I reappeared at the meeting area and I saw the boys arrive with the carriage, they opened the door and I stepped inside and we were off. We arrived back in Ponyville after a very long trip. The entire carriage ride was spent in silence. I removed my disguise ring and blood-soaked armor and weapons, then placed them in the gym bag. As we flew I tried my best to clean off the blood that clung to my skin and put on some clean casual clothes. When we landed on the outskirts of Ponyville I grabbed my gym bag and climbed out of the carriage and started my walk back to Ponyville. You all right partner? Mac asked breaking the silence. I'll be all right Mac, just a lot to take in right now, I said. So what will you do now? Comet asked. Go home, clean myself and my armor off then hide the armor, then eat some dinner and go to bed early, I said. Oh, Ash, how did it feel to you know take a life? Caramel asked. It felt easy, but afterwards it feels horrible. You think about the family and friends that will never see their loved one again, I said as I walked back to Ponyville with Spike. When I was out of sight Caramel got a smack to the back of his head from Thunderlane. Oh what the hell was that for? Caramel asked. How did it feel to kill, are you an idiot or something? You don't just ask something like that after he killed 50 fighters in a match to save his friends, Thunderlane scowled. E up Max said glaring at Caramel. If anything, what happened here today, it's gonna haunt Ash for the rest of his life, Soren said looking at the direction I walked in. Spike and I arrived back at the library, the door was locked so it meant Twilight wasn't home yet. I went upstairs to clean the leftover blood off of myself and clean my armor and sides and clothes I wore. After everything was clean I grabbed a fresh set of clothing and went into my wardrobe and placed my gym bag containing the armor sides and disguise ring on the top shelf. I walked downstairs to see the main six sitting in the library talking to each other about what happened today. None of them noticed me and I wanted to keep it that way. I continued past them and made it to the kitchen and grabbed some vegetables for dinner. After I finished I walked back into the library and was bombarded with hugs from all six mares. What the, what's with all of you? I asked as I pulled myself out of the group of friends. It's just we went through the most horrible thing ever, Rarity said with tears in her eyes. Whoa calm down Rarity, now tell me what happened, I said wiping away her tears. The main six told me everything about when they were called to Canterlot and then about the gruesome events in the Colosseum and the mysterious Rouge and how he fought and that he gave the girls back to Celestia so they could go home. Well all I can say is this Rouge fighter is something else and the important thing is you're all back, I said. Yeah, but I'm still confused as to how he knew Pinky's name though, Rarity said. Yeah it is strange, I said. Hey, maybe that guy was wearing some special ring that turned him into some pony completely different so we wouldn't recognize him, Pinky said. At these words I tensed as still as a statue. Oh Pinky, that sounds a little far-fetched don't you think, Applejack said. No, she's right there are such enchantments for situations like that. So what if he was wearing some sort of charm that disguised himself, Twilight said. Well I don't know about you lot but it's starting to get late and I had a long day so I'm going to turn in, night girls, I said snapping out of my shock and walked over to the stairs. Night Ash the girls said in union. I walked into my room and got changed into my pajamas and looked at my bed, I knew my night would be filled with nightmares about the arena. Chapter 9A Roam through Canterlot and a painful reunion. I was back in the arena in the Griffin Kingdoms, I was in my armor but I didn't have my disguise on and my sides were missing. I looked around to see the arena was abandoned and the sky was a blood red and the sand was white. Weapons were either half buried or sticking out of the sand from previous battles. I looked at my surroundings and I saw my double from a few nights ago, staring back at me. You again, are you going to be doing this to me every time I try to get some sleep? I asked. Perhaps if you kill me then I might disappear for good, my double said, with a voice that would make Nightmare Moon's nightmares seem like a nice dream. Certainly left plenty of weapons to do that, I said gesturing to weapons that surrounded us. Actually no, your mind created this place and decided to send us to it, my double said. Guess my mind has had enough of you and wants you gone, I said. My double let out and laughed at my statement. Perhaps you're right but I don't plan to go anywhere anytime soon, he said. Well I want you gone as well you're sick and twisted, just like they were, I said. Don't you dare drag me down to their level. They were nothing but monsters and you know it, my double screamed at me. You're one to talk, if I remember correctly you wanted to hang all of them by their own entrails. 
I just wanted justice, not vengeance. I shouted back. It appears we won't be able to have a pleasant conversation so why don't we end this now, my double said. That we can agree on, I said as I picked up a sword and held the blade at the ready. Before we get started do you have a name? I asked. Odd time to ask don't you think? My double said. Well if I am about to kill you I would like to know your name, I said. Burning rage, he said. Suits you, was all I said before I ran at him. Rage did not move at all, I was about ten feet away before I tripped and fell onto the sand. I looked down at my feet to see what I'd tripped on only to find a rotting griffin talon had grabbed a hold of my leg. I yanked my foot away from the talon but only broke the talon off of the rest of the griffin. I pried the talon from my leg and held it the claw started wiggling and tried to grab a hold of me while detached from the rest of its body. I threw it away from me and then looked at the ground, corpses of fighters in the arena started crawling out of the sand like zombies. I held my sword in both hands ready to fight them, only for it to disintegrate into dust leaving me defenseless. I looked back to where Burning Rage was standing only to see he'd disappeared. I then looked back at the corpses and saw the faces of those I'd killed. Each one had a look of agony frozen onto their faces. The corpses moved closer towards me, so I decided to use my fists but it wasn't enough. Not long after, I was overwhelmed by the fallen warriors and they each grabbed a piece of me and started dragging me into the sand. I woke up to a loud squawk in my ear and sat up straight in a flash and looked at my surroundings for the noise of disturbance. Dust sat next to my pillow staring at me I looked at my surroundings and saw I was in my room again. Looking at Dust again I stroked his wings. Thanks Dust things were about to get ugly for me, I said. I looked out the window at the sky to see the moon was still above the horizon. I looked at Dust and held my arm out for him to hop onto which he accepted. Why don't we start our day early today? I'm not going to get any more sleep and it's nearly sunrise, I asked Dust. His response was a nod. I walked over to the window and opened it Dust climbed off of my arm and flew off into the night. I watched the stars for a few minutes and wondered before I left the view to get changed. I came out of the bathroom wearing black pants a blue shirt with a black trim along with a red hooded jacket and my black fingerless gloves. I walked downstairs and I saw all the girls were sleeping in the library, each resting on a piece of furniture or resting their heads on each other. I smiled at this and decided to have some fun with three of them. I summoned my magic and rarities fur turned orange and her mane turned puke green. As for Twilight I made every bookshelf disappear and made holograms of the real ones on the ceiling, and lastly for Pinky, I made her face look like discords. This is going be good, I whispered to myself. I left the girls and walked into the kitchen to make breakfast. I looked in the cabinets and fridge inside. Wish they had meat but looks like I'll have to survive on fruit and veg, I said as I grabbed an apple and ate it. When I finished I tossed the core into a bin and walked out the front door into the cool morning air. I smelled the clear fresh air as I stood outside the library and relaxed my mind. I walked through the sleeping town and looked at the twinkling stars in the sky. I continued through town until I came to a small hill with a tree, it sat just on the edge of town that looked over the field that was in between the Everfree Forest and Ponyville. I sat under the tree and watched the remaining stars in the sky as they disappeared when dawn approached. It was a calming sensation which left my mind at peace. The sun started to rise above the horizon next to Canterlot Mountain. I then saw the most breathtaking sunrise imaginable. I crossed my legs and began to meditate closing my eyes and listening to the noises around me. The wind blowing through my hair, the water running through the river close to Ponyville, the dirt as my seat and the heat from the sun's rays as they approached me. After a while I opened my eyes to see the sun had almost broken above the horizon. I decided to capture the moment before it was gone. I summoned my sketchbook and drew it down as fast as I could. After I finished I wanted to do something fun for the girls, so I looked to the Everfree and thought. Perfect, maybe even Vinyl and Octavia might like that too, I said. I stood up and dusted myself off before I started walking back to the library. As I walked ponies started stepping out of their homes to enjoy the sunrise. I received many happy smiles and waves from many neighbors as I walked by and I did the same, I arrived at the library and just as I was about to grab the doorknob. H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Soren, I'd like you to meet Twilight Sparkle, Rarity, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Applejack, and last but not least Rainbow Dash, I said pointing out the girls. Nice to finally meet you all and nice to see you two again, he said to both Applejack and Rainbow Dash. The girls were just speechless that I somehow knew a legendary Wonderbolt, so I explained that he was just visiting Ponyville and Spike and I and the other boys just ran into each other and that Thunderlane and Soren have a history together. Hey Soren, can you go and gather the others and ask them if they can meet both the girls Spike and I in front of the Everfree Forest? There's something I want to show you all, I said. No problem man, he said as we fist bumped. As he left I was tackled to the ground by road. You know Soren, one of the elite Wonderbolts and you didn't tell me. Rainbow yelled while griping my jacket. We just met yesterday road and I would have told you, it just slipped my mind, that's all, I said pushing Rainbow off me. Um Ash why did you ask Soren to ask your friends to meet us outside the Everfree? Fluttershy asked nervously. You'll see, anyway I need to grab two other ponies, so I'll see you all later, I said as I walked out the front door. I was walking towards the Everfree with both Vinyl and Octavia in tow. As we arrived at the entrance I saw both groups of guys and girls. Hey everyone, I'd like you all to meet Vinyl Scratch aka DJ Pond 3 and Octavia Melody. I've invited them along because what I'm about to show you is really cool, I said. Hey, I know you from the gala, Pinkie Pie said pointing to Octavia. When Octavia saw Pinkie, Octavia hid behind Vinyl for safety. Wait, Ash told me about what I did at the gala and I wanted to say I'm so sorry that I messed up your career, Pinky said with a frown. Octavia was shocked at what she just heard and inched outward from behind Vinyl towards Pinky. I forgive you and thank you for apologizing, Octavia said as she and Pinky shook hands. I smiled at their forgiveness before I got everyone's attention. Come on you guys, let's go before wild beasts show up, I said as I started to walk into the Everfree Forest. Wait we're going in there, Comet said. Yeah, why, I asked. Because of all the dangerous beasts in there that's why, Rainbow said. Gee, never knew you were scared of the Everfree Road, I said. I'm not scared, it's just dangerous, Rainbow said. Don't worry guys, hardly any animals come to this area and we're not traveling too deep inside, I said. Alright fine, I'll trust you on this, Rainbow said as we all walked in. We walked for five minutes before we came to a clearing where a tree stump and a white tree entangled into a boulder sat in the center of the clearing. I told the others to stand where they were and watch and listen. I walked over to the stump and summoned a wooden flute. I carved once out of thin air and sat on the stump and began to play. As I played the forest came alive and started to play along with me. The music was heavenly and everyone was too enchanted by the music to be in shock by the forest playing along with me. They just swayed with the rhythm. Once I finished I began to play another song. After I finished my song I stood up and looked at my audience to see them clapping for me. I rubbed the back of my head and smiled as I walked over to the group. So what did you guys think of my performance? I asked. That was incredible, I had no idea that the Everfree Forest was so alive with music. Those songs gave me a ton of inspiration, Octavia said. It truly is a mystical place isn't it? I came across this place one day when I was still a wolf and the moon was full. I started howling and the forest sang with me, I said. This is amazing, I must make a time to study this place, Twilight said with giddiness in her voice. All of a sudden Spike burped out a scroll. Wonder what the princess wants, I said as Twilight picked up the scroll and looked at it. It's for you Ash, Twilight said as she handed the scroll to me. I grabbed the scroll from Twilight and opened it. Dear Ash Blade, I am sorry if I have disturbed your day in any way, but I must ask you to come to Canterlot immediately. There is something my sister and I must discuss with you and you alone. So please don't bring the elements of harmony with you. I believe they've had enough of an experience from yesterday and are rather tired, so let them know they should rest. Princess Celestia. I reread the letter to make sure I didn't miss anything then rolled up the paper and placed it in my jacket. What did it say Ash Mac asked. Celestia and Luna wish to see me in Canterlot, I said. We'll come along too, Pinky said. Sorry Pinky but Celestia wants me to come alone and she told me to tell you six to take it easy, I said. But I don't need rest I feel fine, Rainbow said. Well if you're fine maybe you can catch up on some of your weather duties. Besides, this is an order from Celestia and I'm sure your little stepsister Scootaloo is worried about you, I said. Crap you're right, what kind of stepsister am I? Rainbow said as she zoomed out of the clearing. I'm sure the rest of you girls have somewhere else you need to be, right? I asked. The girls nodded before everyone walked towards the exit of the forest. The ride to Canterlot was calm and quiet. I kinda wish I did bring the others with me but that was ruined because of Celestia's orders. It made no difference now as I'm standing in front of the Canterlot throne room thinking about what the princesses might say to me. I pull myself out of my thoughts and walk up to the large oak doors and bang on it so I can be heard. Come in, a voice called from the other side of the doors. I placed my hands on the doors and pushed them open to see both Princess Celestia and Princess Luna talking with each other in front of the throne. You wish to see me your majesties, I said as I walked up to them. Ash thank you for coming on such short notice and I hope you haven't had any difficulties in getting here, Celestia said in a motherly like tone. Apart from the looks of disgust from the nobles, everything went rather well. That reminds me, how do those nobles see where they're going with their muzzles stuck so far up in the air like that? I said. Yes, I sometimes wonder that myself, Luna said with a chuckle. Indeed, Celestia laughed. Glad to see I'm not the only one who thinks that but I believe we may be getting off topic. What was it you wanted to see me about, after I spoke both the princesses smiles disappeared, is everything alright? I asked. Perhaps you may like to take a seat, Celestia said pointing to a small coffee table off to the side. Three large cushions sat around the coffee table one of them a sunshine gold another was midnight blue and the last was grey, on top of the table sat a tea set. We walked over to the table Celestia sat on the gold cushion while Luna on the blue cushion, leaving me with the grey one. As I sat down Celestia poured us some tea. Now, about why you've been summoned here Ash, Celestia said. I began to feel nervous about what she was about to say. We know it was you who fought in the arena yesterday, Celestia said calmly. 
At these words my entire world just stopped, a chill ran up my spine but I just looked at the princesses with a blank expression. H. How did you find out? I asked. Your dreams gave it away and I was shocked when I found out it was you in that arena, Luna said. There is simply no possible way to describe our gratitude towards your bravery, but I just want to know how did you find out about the arena? Celestia asked while taking a sip of tea. It was the letter you sent Celestia, your writing was a bit sloppy and the fact that the girls didn't even say goodbye to me was unusual, so it led me to find out for myself. I was just outside the doors when you were talking about it, I said drinking my tea in one swig. I see, you're quite observant of small details. Anyway Luna and I just wanted to thank you for what you did. I know it must have been hard for you to do such a deed, Celestia said. I appreciate the concern your majesties and those leaders learned an important lesson. No one harms the ones I care about and gets away with it even if it meant chasing them through all nine circles of hell, I said. Ashblade who was it you and Burning Rage were talking to in your dream. And don't pretend you don't know what I'm talking about, Luna said sternly. I stared at Luna in complete shock before I took a deep breath and spoke. I'm sorry Luna but that is far too painful to talk about to anyone, I said. I understand, I won't pry into the matter, Luna said taking a large sip of tea. Who's Burning Rage? Celestia asked. He's my version of Nightmare Moon your majesty, but he's fueled by vengeance instead of jealousy, I said. This got a shocked reaction from Celestia. He's been with me for 13 years Celestia and in that time he hasn't made any attempt to break free, I said. This got Celestia to calm down a bit. I see, I'm glad to hear he hasn't caused trouble yet, Celestia said. All of a sudden, the throne room doors burst open to reveal Prince Blue Blood and two guards. These guards wore different armor than the royal guard. It was white with a gold trim and they were armed with spears. One's fur was a dark gray with a white mane and tail and a horn and the other was white with a dirt brown mane and tail and had neither a horn nor wings. I assumed these guys were Blue Blood's personal guard. Blue Blood, I hope you have a good reason to come barging in here because I'm in a meeting with someone important, Celestia said. Well I'm sure this pony can wait because my title is Prince after all, Blue Blood said as he walked in. The princess and I were actually talking first so you'll just have to be patient. I don't much care about your title, so if you don't mind please leave, I said turning back to the princesses. And just who do you think you are telling me what to do peasant? I am Prince Blue Blood. I could have you thrown into a dungeon for the rest of your life. Blue Blood yelled in anger at me. Like I said, I couldn't care less who you are and also, you're gonna need to come up with something far more intimidating than that. Because I'm not scared of some damp dark cell, I said without looking at Blue Blood. Guards get this one out of my sight now. Blue Blood screamed at his two guards. Your majesties may I have permission to use self-defense in this room? I asked. Celestia was about to speak but Luna was faster. Granted, Luna said with a smile. Sister what are you doing? Celestia asked in surprise. I wish to see how he can make a non-lethal takedown. Also, it will put Blue Blood in his place, Luna replied. I stood up and looked at the two guards who were ready to use their spears to fight. Beat him till every inch of his body is black and blue. Blue Blood cried. The guards stood either side of me ready to attack before one of them said. Sorry about this but we have to obey him even though he is a prick. Just please know this is nothing personal, one of the guards whispered to me. And I'm sorry about the pain you'll be feeling soon, I replied. Get him, Blue Blood roared. One of the guards made a trust with the blunt end of his spear, but before it could hit me I grabbed a hold of it and yanked it out of his grip. I then twirled it around so the blunt end was facing him and made a jab at him right into his chest, knocking the wind out of him. The other guard made an attempt to hit me in my back but I used the spear I was holding to deflect his attack and make a swing at his stomach, still using the blunt end of the spear. Both guards were on the floor gasping for air. I looked at the princesses and saw Luna with a blush on her face while Celestia had a look of surprise and Blue Blood was gobsmacked. All of a sudden, more guards appeared, dressed in royal guard armor, led by the same pony in gold and purple armor I first met when I first arrived. Princesses we came as the guard said. He looked around the room and saw both the princesses sitting at the table looking at him. And Prince Blue Blood looking at me stunned, the two guards on the floor and finally me holding the spear. I looked down at the spear then at him, then I realized the situation. Don't just stand there captain, kill him. Blue Blood yelled. Wait it's not but I was cut off as the pony in the gold and purple armor unsheathed his sword and teleported in front of me and made an attempt to swing at my head. I saw the attack and moved faster. I blocked the lethal attack then we entered into a power struggle, each one of us struggling for dominance until Celestia called out. Shining armor stand down, Celestia said. But your majesty T, he was silenced when Celestia raised her hand. Are you really going to try and kill Twilight's savior? Not once, not twice, but three times now, Celestia said. This thing saved my sister, the pony said. Your Twilight's brother, I said in disbelief as I pushed myself away from the guard. Yes, Ash saved her from Nightmare Moon, Discord and also the arena from yesterday, Celestia said quickly diffusing the situation. So let me get this straight, this thing saved my sister from Nightmare Moon, Discord and in the arena and he also fought against the Four Kingdoms best and won. The pony asked. Yes, I did do that and please don't call me a thing pal. I have feelings too you know, I said. Ashblade here is quite something wouldn't you agree shining armor. Believe it or not he was also the wolf you met in this room, Celestia said calmly while taking another sip of her tea. Really, I'm so sorry about everything I did, it's just your appearance makes you look like a threat the pony who I assume it was shining armor. Consider yourself forgiven and a word of advice for the future, get both sides of the story and be swift with it in situations like ours. By the way names Ashblade or Ash for short and I'm going to guess your name's Shining Armor, I said. Correct, Shining Armor Captain of the Royal Guard, but you can call me Shining, he said extending his hand for me to shake, which I accepted. Captain you're supposed to have this monstrosity thrown in a cell, or killed. Do it or else suffer a regrettable punishment, Blue Blood wailed. Excuse me for a moment, I said to Shining. I walked over to Blue Blood and as soon as I was in reach I shot him a dark smile causing him to sweat bullets. I reared back my fist and punched him square in the muzzle knocking him out immediately with blood dripping from both his nostrils and mouth. 
Apologies about that but that guy just don't know when to shut his trap, I said. Don't worry Ash, I'm pretty sure anyone would have done the same. Even I was about to do it, Luna said with a large smile. I like this one your majesty, first time I've seen any pony punch blue blood, Shining said as he patted me on the back. You're too kind Shining Armor, but anyway Celestia, was there anything else you wanted to talk to me about? I asked. Well I also plan to introduce you to Shining Amur, Celestia said. I see, uh should I be worried about him? I asked looking at the unconscious blue blood. We'll take care of him sir, we are his personal guards, the earth pony said as the both recovered from my attack. What's your name son? I asked. Swift Spear sir and this is my partner Holy Light and shamefully, we're Blue Blood's personal guard, Swift Spear said pointing to his unicorn partner. Not anymore because after you take Blue Blood to the infirmary I want you boys in royal guard armor next time I see you, I said causing everyone in the room to look at me in surprise. You mean we don't have to be Blue Blood's lackeys anymore? Holy Light said in surprise and happiness. Is that a problem? I asked. Absolutely not, we would be thrilled to join the royal guard, Swift Spear said with excitement. Then what are you two waiting for then, I said. At these words the two soldiers picked up the unconscious prince and carried him away. Ash why did you do that? Shining asked. What do you mean? I saw how unhappy those two looked working for Blue Blood and did you see the looks of happiness on their faces when I said they can join the Royal Guard? The look on their faces were similar to when a foal discovers its cutie mark. Also they had that fire in their eyes, a fire that meant they were willing to serve their country and die for it if necessary. That is something that is really rare to find, I said. Shining, the princesses and the remaining guards stared at me in awe. Wow you must have experience with soldiers, Shining said. Close but no. Anyway Shining, why don't you go tend to your latest recruits because I'd like to view Canterlot and get to know the place, I said. Good idea, would you like an escort? Shining asked. I don't need someone to look after me shining, besides they'll only slow me down, I said. Ash before you leave, I would like you to return to the castle after your walk. I would like you to go over to the training grounds and help train your new guards, Celestia said. Wait, my guards, I said shocked. But of course, since you are the sixth knight of Equestria you'll have as much command of the army as shining, but shining will take his orders from you, Luna said calmly. This caused both shinnings and my jaws to drop. I tried to form words but was too shocked. So in other words, Ash is my superior, shining asked gobsmacked. Sort of, but why are you so shocked, shining armor? You're not being demoted, you're just going to take orders from Ash now as well, Celestia said. I understand, Shining said in a casual tone. Without another word both Shining and I left. Once the doors closed we both looked at each other, neither of us knowing what to say. I'm sorry about that but that was just dropped on me too, I said in a guilty tone. Not your fault, but Celestia's right. It's not like I'm being demoted, Shining said in a calm tone. Wait, you're not mad? I asked in a surprised manner. No, why? Shining asked. Well in a situation like this, I would receive plenty of death threats, I said. Well I'm not like that but if someone hurts someone I care about, I would make Tartarus seem like a paradise to that pony after what I'd do to them, Shining said. Couldn't agree more with you there Shining, I said with a smile. Glad to see some pony agrees. Well I'm going to check in on our new recruits so I'll see you later, Shining said with a wave. See you at the training grounds, I said before I left. I exited the castle and pulled my hood over my head and walked towards the city. The streets were filled with activity and I thought of another way to be able to see the city. I looked at a two-story building on my left and decided to climb it. I ran at the building and left and climbed my way to the top. When I was on the roof I looked over the peaceful city until someone called out. Stop my necklace. Thief, stop that pony. I looked at the street below me and saw a pony wearing a grey hooded jacket with the hood covering his head running away from two other ponies. One was a stallion with a white coat and a blue mane, tail and mustache he had a horn, blue eyes and was wearing a black tuxedo and a molecule. The mare beside him was also a unicorn and had white fur and a white mane and tail and baby blue eyes. She wore a light blue dress that went to her knees and a feathered light blue wide brim hat and was yelling after the running pony. When I heard thief and saw the pony running I smiled. Finally something fun to do, I said as I began my pursuit along the rooftops. I placed my earphones in my ears and selected a song to get my blood pumping. I ran across the rooftops after my prey along with the stallion in pursuit. The thief made sharp turns and threw items into the stallion's path to slow him down, which worked but it didn't stop me. I continued my run along the rooftops. The pony was quite fast but I was faster. The pony showed no signs of stopping, so I added more speed. We came to a four-way crossing and the pony ran straight ahead forcing me to leap across the street and land on the block of building's roof. The land slowed me down but did not stop me. I poured on even more speed and caught up to the pony. I looked at the pony to see him throw off his jacket and saw a female griffin. She was wearing black pants and spiked heel combat boots, along with a black top which had a bird's skull on it. The top ended above her stomach and showed off her toned abs. The feathers on top of her head formed a fringe giving her a bad girl look. The griffin extended her wings and was about to take flight. I knew it was either now or never and I ran as fast as I could. As she flew to the second floor I jumped off the building and grabbed the griffin's arm and waist and held on. The griffin looked at me in surprise which quickly turned to anger. No free rides dweeb, she said as she used her other hand to scratch my face. I let out a grunt of pain and felt blood drip down my face. I looked at how high we were in the air, we were two stories up but the griffin flapped harder to gain altitude. I had to think of a way to bring us downward. I then remembered a griffin's weakness. Spike had told me about it on the carriage yesterday. Both pegasus and griffins have a weak spot in between their wings, so if I hit that spot the wings will lock up for a few minutes. I released my grip on her waist and swung on her on arm. I pulled myself upward and curled my free hand into a fist and brought the bottom of my fist down on the spot. Almost instantly the griffin's wings locked up and we fell to the pavement. I landed on the pavement and rolled along the ground while the griffin landed in a fruit stand scaring the customers. I picked myself up and looked myself over I landed on my leg and now my right foot bent in a funny position. I had a tear in the right side of my pants revealing a large gash. My upper body was miraculously untouched, except for my head. When I reached down and bent my right foot back into place letting out a yelp of pain. 
I looked at where the griffin had landed and saw her crawling out of the fruit stand. She was covered in cuts and a few bruises were beginning to form. She tried to move her wings but they were still locked up, she glared at me in anger. Listen I don't know who you are but right now I don't care. I just want to return what you stole to its rightful owners, I said. Fat chance loser, if you want it you'll have to fight me for it, the griffin said cracking her knuckles. Trust me when I say this, you don't want to fight me, I said. Oh but I do. I haven't lost a fight so far and I don't intend to start now, the griffin said showing off her claws. Don't say I didn't warn you, I said getting in a fighting stance. The griffin ran at me with amazing speed, close to rainbow dashes. She tried to slash me in the face with her claws again, but I just managed to dodge her attack and counter her attack with a jab to her gut. She cried out in pain and then punched me in the face right over my wound to my head. I stumbled back in pain then she delivered her spiked left heel into my grazed leg causing it to bleed. I cried out in pain but managed to grab her foot with my left hand and held her foot there. I started repeatedly punching her in her stomach ribs and face she grew angry and slashed at my arm and then my chest tearing the cloth leaving a fairly deep wound in my arm and very light cut on my chest. I released her foot as she went to slash at my face again. I grabbed her wrists to stop her trying to cut me, she then used her beak to try and poke my eye out but I moved my head to the side to avoid it and headbutted her jaw. I then kicked her in the thigh and sidestepped her. I pulled her forward and she fell and landed on her stomach on the ground. I grabbed her right arm and pulled it back slightly threatening to break it and placed my knee on her back so she wouldn't move. Give up, or do you want a broken arm? I asked her. All right, you win, the griffin said. Where's the item you stole? I asked. The griffin used her other arm to reach into her pocket and pulled out a thick golden diamond studded necklace. I grabbed the necklace and placed it in my pocket then I released the griffin and backed away from her while wiping the blood from my face. We stared at each other for an unknown amount of time until she spoke. I'm sorry, the griffin whispered. Could you repeat that I couldn't hear you, I said leaning closer. I said sorry damn it, want me to scream it for you, she yelled. No actually, I just wanted you to speak up so I could hear you. Not for you to yell it into my ear, I said as I held my ear from the pain. Why the hell did you steal this anyway, I asked. I was gonna sell it for food and shelter. Ever since my dad kicked me out of my home I've had nowhere else to go, she said in an annoyed tone. Sorry to hear that, I said. I'm actually glad to be rid of him, he was always a prick, she said as she sat up to look at me. What about friends? Couldn't you stay with any of them? I asked. The only friend that put up with me traded me for some new friends, she said letting out a few tears. So you're alone huh? I said. Yeah but what would you care? She asked. Well I know how it feels to be alone, I said. This seemed to grab the griffin's attention as she looked at me. I then explained to her about being abandoned as a baby and my being raised by wolves. Then how they were killed and then how I lost my arm in a fire. I gave her a brief rundown of up until I arrived in Equestria. When I was finished she was gobsmacked by my past. Guess you got me beat but how didn't you end up like me and ended up like you? She asked. I try to see the good in everything. There were times when I wanted to do something stupid but I knew it wasn't the answer. So I just ignored it and moved on, I said plainly. Damn, wish I had your point of view. Then things would be different between Rainbow Dash and me, she said. The name she said grabbed my attention then I remembered back at the Bronco that Rainbow mentioned a friend she lost a long time ago. What's your name? I asked. Hilda, why? She asked. I just happened to know Dash, I said with caution. Oh, Hilda replied. Want to talk about it? I asked. Why? Didn't Rainbow tell you how it went down? Gilda said annoyed. She got upset when I asked about it and changed the subject, I said. Guess the situation hit us both pretty hard, Gilda said. Do you want to talk about it? I asked. Might as well, you did tell me your story so it kinda seems fair, Gilda then explained to me when she went to visit Road but continued to be interrupted by Pinky and also how she roared at Fluttershy. Then she told me about the party and how she lost her temper. Rainbow caught her out on it and when she returned home she was kicked out. She had been alone ever since then and what she had to do to survive. When she finished she had tears in her eyes. I walked over to her and wrapped her in a hug. Gilda was completely taken by surprise but did not push me away. Instead she wrapped her arms around me and cried onto my shoulder. Thanks, she mumbled as I released her. You look like you needed it, I said. Guess I'm off to prison then, Gilda said as she stood. Who said anything about prison, I said. But I thou, Gilda began only for me to cut her off. Listen, what's going to happen is you're going to come with me to return the necklace to the owner. Then we need to make a quick trip to Canterlot Castle and then, we head to Ponyville so we can fix your relationship with Dash, I said. What, but no one will forgive me, Gilda said. You don't know that. If you tell the couple about why you took the necklace and apologize for it then they might forgive you and you leave Rainbow to me. I'll take care of her deal. I said holding out my hand. All right we have a deal, Gilda said as she accepted my hand. We retraced our steps until we found the couple sitting on a bench and I saw the mare was bawling her eyes out. I handed the necklace to Gilda and we approached them carefully until I spoke. Um, excuse me, I said gaining their attention but they gasped in shock at my appearance. By Jove are you all right? The stallion asked. I'm fine, but is it all right if we talk? I asked. I'm sorry my boy, my wife had a family heirloom stolen from her a little while ago, the stallion said. Well that's why we're here. I want to return what I stole, Gilda said showing them the necklace. Both of the ponies gasped in shock and surprise at this. The mare took the necklace from Gilda and held it close to her chest. I, I'm so, so sorry. If I knew this was an heirloom I would never have taken it. But I needed something so I could buy food for myself. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me, Gilda said as she looked at the ground. The couple whispered to each other for a bit before they looked back at us. Well, since you returned the necklace and apologized for taking it, we understand you had a good reason for taking it. So let's forget this incident ever happened, shall we? The stallion said with a warm smile. Thank you ever so much for this second chance, Gilda said. And thank you for returning this and for your help, Sir Ashblade. I'll be sure to repay you for your kindness, the stallion said as he and the mare bowed their heads. It was no trouble at all, mister, I said. 
Fancy pants and this is my wife Fleur de Lis, he said. Charmed Fleur de Lis said. Well I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again soon, but for now we must be on our way, I said. We shook hands and we went our separate ways. Sir Ashblade is in the human, Ashblade. Gilda asked surprised. Oh yeah I never told you my name, sorry, I said as I took the hood off. It's cool, I'm just surprised that I'm talking to a myth from the Griffin Kingdom, Gilda said looking me over. Myth huh, well I can assure you of one thing, I'm very real, I said as we continued towards the castle. Sweat mother of Celestia and Luna, what happened to you? Shining yelled when both Gilda and I entered the training grounds observation room. To my surprise both the princesses were there as well and they were horrified at my slashed and bleeding appearance. Nothing big, I'm fine really, I said waving my hand dismissively. Ash, it looks like you fought a griffin, Shining said in shock. Well he actually did, Gilda said gaining attention from the princess and Shining. Ash what happened? Luna asked with a slight growl in her voice while glaring daggers at Gilda. Just an incident that lead us to fighting each other, but it has been sorted out so you don't need to worry about it, I said calming Luna. Here, let me stop the bleeding for you Ash. I will need contact with your injuries to heal them, Celestia said as she charged her magic. All right Celestia, I said as I removed my top and jacket and tore the hole in my pants to make it bigger so Celestia could heal it. Celestia, Shining and Gilda just stared at the scars covering my chest and the metal arm connected to me. Damn, you must have gone to Tartarus and stayed there for a week before you came back, Shining said looking over my mangled body. Celestia's horn taped my wounds covering them in a magic aura healing my injuries except leaving scars on both my arm and face and leg. I'm sorry Ash but that's the best I can do for you, Celestia said as she looked at the freshly made scars. It's alright Celestia, I kinda like the scar going across my eye it makes me look badass, I said as I placed my top and jacket back on. Can you please wait outside for Ash, Shining asked looking at Gilda. Gilda nodded before she left. Once the door closed behind Gilda I turned my head back to face the princesses. Please don't be so reckless like that, Luna sighed. Alright Luna sorry about that, I said. Well Ash these are your new troops, Shining said pointing to the window. I looked out the window to see a small dirt filled arena with stone seats around the outside, there were guards doing training exercises, like hand to hand combat and sword training. But what these guys were doing was just sad. Are these guys new recruits or something? I asked. No they're trained soldiers, Shining said. Well I hate to break this to you armor, but this is pathetic. The Rouges in the arena did a better job than this. Also, why isn't there a single shield out there? I know unicorns can use magic but the others can't. Also a unicorn's magic must run out eventually, I said. Equestria hasn't seen war in a long time, and we never needed those kinds of shields before, Shining said. That's no excuse Shining, if war were to come tomorrow and these guys went into battle like this, they would be slaughtered for sure. Also a shield is one of the most important tools in warfare, I said in a stern voice. So what do you suggest we do? Celestia asked. Well, I suggest you all carry on with the training and I'll set up a new training program and provide shields for both Royal and Lunagard, I said as I began to leave. Where are you going now Ash? Luna asked. I'm going back down to Ponyville so I can get started on the new training schedule, but I'll return once I have everything ready, I said before I left the room. So what now your majesties? Shining asked. We do as Ash says and continue the guards training until Ash has made the adjustments, Celestia said. Understood, but I can't help but wonder about his past. Do you both know of it and if you do can you please tell me? Shining asked. I'm sorry captain but that's a story for him to tell, Luna replied. The ride back to Ponyville was silent between Gilda and I, it was obvious she was nervous about talking to Rainbow after such a long time. It's going to be fine Gilda, I promise, I said. I still don't like this, Gilda replied. Well it's too late to back out now because we're here, and it looks like the girls are at the station as well, I said looking out the window. What? Aw oh, crap aw oh, crap, I can't do this, Gilda said in a panic. Gilda calm down, just let me do the talking first okay? I said rubbing her arms. Okay, Gilda said as she began to calm down. The train pulled to a halt at the station and the passengers started to disembark. The girls waited for me to appear. I stepped off the train with the hood covering my face while the girls all gasped in shock and Rarity looked ready to pass out at the sight of my shredded clothes. Whoa partner what happened to you, Applejack said. I'm fine guys it's all good, but there's someone who wants to talk to all of you, I said as I turned to the still open train car. Slowly Gilda revealed herself to the main six. The girls gasped in surprise, then their faces turned into anger, even Fluttershy had a look of anger on her face, but Rainbow's was the worst. You, Rainbow yelled before she charged at Gilda. Before she could reach her I grabbed a hold of Dash's tail and held onto it. Cool your wings road, she just wants to talk, I said while holding onto Dash's tail with ease. She hurt my friends, and judging by those talon slashes on your clothing she almost carved you up. Rainbow yelled still trying to grab Gilda. If it makes you feel any better, I beat her up too so now we're square alright. So can you please let her speak? I asked. Rainbow looked at me in confusion then she flew back over to the girls. I stepped to the side and allowed Gilda to step forward. Um hey Dash look I understand you and your friends all hate my guts but I. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I was so rude to all of you and how I acted like I did. It wasn't cool, but ever since that day when we last saw each other, I've been alone, and it hurt a lot and I know the chances are slim to none but if you could give me a second chance then I will do my best to make it up to each and every one of you, Gilda said with a few tears in her eyes. Pinky and Fluttershy's expressions turned into guilt when they saw Gilda start to cry, Applejack, Rarity and Twilight looked at Gilda with a neutral expressions but Rainbow Dash still looked at Gilda in anger. Come on Road, what more do you want from her she said sorry, I said. I know what she said, but it doesn't mean I'll forgive her, Rainbow said. Dash do you have any idea what she's been through? I asked. Rainbow looked at me in confusion, before I was about to speak, but Gilda grabbed my shoulder and stepped in front of me cutting me off. She began to tell the tale about her father being a complete prick and beating her up for no reason. She spoke of when she came to see Rainbow again, and she thought Pinky and the girls might take Rainbow away from her and Road would forget about her. 
When she returned home after they last saw each other she was kicked out of her own home and told them everything she had to do to survive and today's incident as well. When she finished each mare had a look of shock and guilt on their face, Rainbow flew over to Gilda and wrapped her in a hug. Why didn't you tell me G? Rainbow asked. Because I knew you didn't want anything more to do with me after what I did to you and your friends, Gilda sniffed. You feather brain if you told me your problems then all of this could have been avoided, Rainbow said ruffling Gilda's feathers. So does this mean? Gilda asked. Yep apology accepted, Rainbow said releasing her grip on the griffin. Everyone let out a smile before Gilda raced over to me and pulled me into a hug causing everyone to stare at me in shock. Thank you so much Gilda said burying her face in my chest. No problem, I said smiling as I pulled the hood off my face and rubbed her head. Hey Ashi where did you get the cool scar? Pinky asked. The main six looked at me and stared stunned at the three new scars that went over my left eye. Gift from Gilda but I'm cool with it makes me look awesome, I said. Well before anything else happens you're coming with me to get your clothes fixed, Rarity said grabbing my arm and dragging me towards her boutique while the others followed us giggling all the way. Now Ash darling, you simply mustn't be reckless with your clothes like that, Rarity said as we arrived at her boutique. Okay Rarity, I get it jeez you'd make a fine mother someday, I said as I rolled my eyes just as the girls entered. Now Ash please take that shirt and jacket off and stand on the podium so I can take your measurements, Rarity said completely ignoring my comment. I did as she asked but when I removed my clothing Rarity let out a gasp of horror as she stared at my back. Rarity what's wrong? Twilight asked concerned for her friend as she and the others walked over to Rarity and looked at my back. I turned my head to see what was wrong and I saw mixtures of shock and confusion on everyone's face, each one staring at my back. Ash what does that mark mean? Rarity asked. All of a sudden my face became pale and I realized what they were staring at. It was a burn mark of a serpent that looped around itself and looked like it was crawling out of a hole in my body. Oh no. Author's notes. Hope you're all enjoying this. Send me a comment if you have an idea of what the burn mark means but don't worry I will reveal what it means in a later chapter. Chapter 10 The Alicorn Among Alicorns and Meeting the Beast Within Silence, it was all that was in the room. It felt like everyone in the room was frozen in a block of ice each one of the girls and Gilda staring at the burn mark on my back. My mind was flooded with images of all the horror I'd went through when I got it. I was startled out of my thoughts by Applejack as she brushed her hand against the mark. Sugarcube where did you get that and what does it mean? Applejack asked. Nowhere and it's nothing, I said plainly as I reached for my still shredded top and jacket. Ash what is it? TWI asked. It's a burn mark what else could it be? I said as I placed my clothes over me, covering the mark and turned to leave. Ash that's a brand mark if ever I saw one. Now please tell us what happened, Applejack said as she placed a hand on my chest to stop me from leaving. I said it's nothing to worry about. Now can I please leave? I said as I pushed AJ's hand off my chest and continued towards the door. Not until you tell us what that mark means. I mean it can't be that bad, Rainbow said as she zoomed in front of me blocking the exit. You don't know shit Rainbow Dash. That mark symbolizes four years of horror I went through. Four years I'd rather spend dead than go through again. Four years I'll never get back, I screamed causing everyone in the room to stare at me in fright, as if I was a monster and for poor Fluttershy to pass out. I took several deep breaths before I looked at the trembling rainbow speed demon sitting on the floor by my outburst. I'm sorry I shouted road but I'm not ready to tell anyone about that mark, I said as I teleported out of the boutique and back to my room in Twilight's library. It's been a week since Gilda has made her new home in Ponyville. She has been living with both Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo and has gotten a job as the bucking Broncos bouncer, and damn does she do an awesome job at it. I was glad Gilda was fitting in and working to make a difference. I on the other hand didn't show my face to anyone for the week, not even dust. Twilight and Spike brought me some meals but I barely ate anything, nor could I sleep. I was too wrapped in my memories. After the week ended I stepped out of my room and walked downstairs wearing my grey hooded jacket pants black fingerless gloves and white shirt. I stepped into the kitchen and I saw Spike and Twilight cleaning the breakfast dishes I let out a polite cough causing them to turn in my direction with surprised smiles. Ash Twilight said running up to me and giving me a hug. Spike was close behind giving me a pat on the shoulder. Glad you decided to come out Spike said. Good to be out, hey know where Dust is. He must be worried, I asked. He's at Fluttershies, she was taking care of him while you were up there, Spike said. Glad she did, I replied with a sigh. Ash, I'm so sorry for putting pressure on you like that, TWI said on the verge of tears. It's alright TWI, but I should apologize to both you and the girls for shouting like that, I said. Guess we were both in the wrong, Twilight said with a chuckle as she wiped away the tears. After we talked I sat down to eat breakfast, then TWI told me that she and the girls, Gilda and the guys were going on a picnic and since I came out of my room, it might surprise them if I came along too. I thought it over then smiled at the idea and agreed. Once we arrived I saw everyone sitting on a white and red picnic blanket enjoying themselves. I saw Fluttershy sitting on Big Mac's lap handing him a sandwich which he returned the gesture by feeding her a strawberry. Surprisingly I next saw Soren talking with Rode about something and Rarity wearing a yellow sun hat and sipping tea. Caramel and Applejack were looking into each other's eyes and feeding apple fritters to each other while giggling. I then saw Gilda who was eating a few sweets and had an apple in her talon. Pinky and Pierce were snuggling up against each other and Thunderlane was enjoying a sandwich. Fluttershy then looked over at us and when she saw me she shot off of Big Mac's lap and flew at me with speed close to Gilda's. She wrapped her arms around me in a hug, getting everyone to look at me and walk over. I was then bombarded by questions about me not being seen in a week, and apologies about prying into my personal life which I explained forgave and apologized for my outburst. After we finished and I got Fluttershy to let go of me we sat back down on the picnic blanket. So what has been going on with everyone during my solitude? I asked with a chuckle. Well, Big Mac and Fluttershy started dating and so did Applejack and Caramel at the same time at the beginning of the week. Caramel asked AJ out and the boys gave Mac a little confidence to ask out Flutters, Rainbow said. I see anything else, I asked. Job at the Bronco is awesome. I beat up two more thugs because they didn't like the music. I don't like it myself but it's my job to stop trouble, Gilda said with a smirk. 
Awesome to hear, Gilda. Glad to see you're fitting in here, I said. All of a sudden Spike came running over to us. TWY, TWY, I have a burp, Spike said in between breaths only to burp out a scroll. Twilight picked up the scroll and began to read through it. Dear Twilight, I'm sure you are as excited as I am about the upcoming wedding in Canterlot. I will be presiding over the ceremony but would very much like it if you your friends and Ash would help with the preparations for this wonderful occasion. Fluttershy I would like you and your songbird choir to provide the music. Oh my goodness what an honor, Fluttershy said. Pinkie Pie, I can think of no one more qualified than you to host the reception. Hip hip hooray, Pinkie said with a smile that could tear her face in two. Applejack, you'll be in charge of the catering for the reception. Well color me pleased as punch, Applejack said. Rainbow Dash, I would very much appreciate it if you could perform a sonic rainboom as the bride and groom complete their I-do's. Oh yeah, Rainbow said as she fist pumped. Rarity, you'll be responsible for designing the dress for the bride and her bridesmaids. Princess Celestia wants me to make a wedding dress for a Canterlot wed. Rarity couldn't finish before she fainted from overexcitement. Ash Blade, the groom has requested for you to be his best stallion. I was stunned by the news but confused at this. I didn't know anyone who was getting married. And as for you Twilight you'll be playing the most important role of all making sure everything runs smoothly, and if you like bring the six colts who I've heard so much about in your last letter. See you there, Princess Celestia, Twilight said then began to look over every inch of the scroll before she spoke. But I don't understand. Who's getting married? I'm just as curious as you are TWI. I don't know anyone who's getting married, I said. Oh I was probably supposed to give you this one first, Spike said with an embarrassed blush as he handed Twilight another scroll. Princess Celestia cordially invites you to the wedding of Princess Miyamori Cadenz and my brother, Twilight shouted. PFFT, wait you mean shining armor. I asked as I spat out my drink and looked at Twilight in shock. How do you know him? Comet asked. We met when I first entered Equestria and again when I last went up to Canterlot. Damn, he didn't tell me he was getting married while I was up there, I said. I can't believe he didn't tell me either. For Celestia's sake, I'm his sister. Twilight said flaring her nostrils. Whoa Twilight, look, if I was in your position, I'd be just as ticked at him as well. But maybe he has a reason he can't come to Ponyville to tell you, Comet said. You're right but that doesn't excuse the fact I don't even know who he's marrying, Twilight said. Okay, I'll have to agree with you on that one. Even I don't know who this princess is, I said. I just wish my BBBFF would tell me himself and send an invitation, Twilight said. Wait BBBFF, I asked. Big brother best friend forever, Twilight said. Oh I get it, I said with a chuckle. Well what are we doing sitting here for? Let's get over to Canterlot, Thunderlane said. On our way to Canterlot, Twilight told everyone about how special Shining is to her. As we neared Canterlot the train had to pass through a magenta-colored force field to reach the station. When we arrived everyone stepped off the train to see dozens of royal guards, when I stepped off the guards saluted me, getting all my friends to stare at me in wonder. At ease every pony, I said and just like that the guards ended the salute and let us pass. We walked past the guards and into the streets of Canterlot and I saw more guards than last time I'd been here. We reached the castle and Twilight separated from the group to go find Shining and I followed to just to make sure she didn't spill any blood. We walked into a courtyard and up some stairs and I saw Shining giving orders to some of the guards on the bridge that connected between this tower and another. I've got something to say to you Mr. Twilight said causing the guards to draw their weapons and aim them at Twilight. Whoa, stand down boys, I said causing the guards to lower their weapons. Puli, Ash, it's awesome to see you both again, Shining said as he dismissed the guards then wrapped Twilight in a hug, only for her to push Shining away. How dare you not tell me in Pony that you're getting married, Twilight said with an angry glare. It's not my fault, Princess Celestia asked for a major increase in security. Didn't you see all the guards at the train station? Shining asked. Yeah there's a big wedding coming up, maybe you heard about it, Twilight said. It has nothing to do with the wedding. A threat has been made against Canterlot. We don't know who's behind it and I need to keep the shield protecting Canterlot going with my magic, Shining said. CTWI, I knew he had a reason to send the invite instead of telling you himself, I said with a smile. Okay, I get it. You've got a tough job keeping Canterlot safe with your force field only you can create and I can understand that but I'm still ticked at you for marrying some pony I don't know. When did you even meet this Princess Miyamori Cadenza? Twilight asked. Twilight Princess Miyamori Cadenza is Cadence your old full sitter, Shining said with a smile. Cadence, as in the Cadence. As in the greatest full sitter in the history of full sitters. Twilight asked, completely forgetting her anger. You tell me, she was your full sitter, Shining said. Care to fill me in, because I'm drawing a blank here, I said. Cadence is only the most amazing pony ever. She's beautiful, caring and kind and how many ponies can just spread love wherever they go. I only know of one and my brother is marrying her. He's marrying Cadence, he's marrying Cadence, Twilight said as she grabbed my hands and spun me around with her. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. I turned my head to see a light pink furred alicorn with a yellow, pink and purple mane and tail and blue eye. She was wearing a pink dress with gold trim and a heart-shaped cutie mark made of crystal on the skirt. Cadence, sunshine sunshine ladybugs, awake clap your hooves and do a little shake, Twilight chanted as she ran up to the alicorn and did a strange dance. What are you doing? Cadence asked. Cadence, it's me, Twilight, Twilight said. But the alicorn's interest was more on me, as she looked me up and then circled me like a vulture. She looked at me like an artist would at a sculpture. So you're the human I've been hearing so much about, she said as she stopped in front of me. Yes and your princess Miyamori Cadenza, correct, I replied. Indeed, nice to finally meet another human after so long, she said. Oh you must have been around since the five nights, I said. Why yes I have, now if you both don't mind my soon to be husband and I have somewhere else to be, she said before she and Shining left, leaving Twilight and I alone. I don't know about you Twilight but something felt off about her, I said. You noticed it too, Twilight asked. Yeah, but we shouldn't jump to conclusions yet, I said with caution. Good idea, so what now, Twilight asked. For now we keep our eyes open, I need to go check on something, so I'll see you later, I said as I walked away. 
I roamed the halls in search of Princess Celestia or Princess Luna. I asked a guard for either one's location. He told me that Princess Celestia was in the lookout tower and Princess Luna was away on an errand. I thanked the guard before I left for the tower. I arrived at the tower, the door was made of brown oak. One half of the door had a sun on it and the other half had a crescent moon. I walked up to the door and knocked on it. Enter. I walked inside and I saw the room was like a study, except it had maps of Equestria, a simple oak desk and a bookshelf with a good amount of books in it. I turned my attention towards the balcony and walked over and saw Princess Celestia looking over her city with a telescope. Hello Celestia, I said gaining her attention. Ashblade, nice to see you. How was your trip? Celestia asked. Apart from Twilight wanting to spill Shining Armor's blood, calm, I said. I'm afraid that was my fault, Celestia said. Don't worry Celestia, the problem has been sorted out and I also met Princess Cadenza, I said. I see, and how did she seem to you? Celestia asked as she turned back to her telescope. Well something felt strange, as in I got a nasty eerie chill running all over my body, I said. Really, well I'm sure it's nothing, Celestia said. That's what I keep telling myself, but I can't stop thinking about it, I said. Maybe you need some rest after a long trip, Celestia suggested. Perhaps that's it. Oh and if I may ask, who is Princess Cadenza related to Celestia? I asked. She's my niece, sadly her parents have passed on, she said. I see, is there anyone else who's related to you and Luna? I asked. Yes, Discord is Luna and my brother, Celestia said looking at me. This was a surprise to me. I never expected that Discord was a brother to both the royal sisters. What happened to him to make him, you know? I asked. I don't wish to talk about it but I can tell you he once had a good heart, Celestia said. I understand. Do you know where Luna is by the way? I asked. She is out searching the countryside for any suspicious activity. I trust you know of the threat against Canterlot, Celestia said. Yes, Shining informed me about that, I said. Well, while Luna searches the land I must stay and guard Canterlot. But Lulu will return in a few days, Celestia said. I see, well, wait, Lulu. I said with a small chuckle. We gave each other nicknames when we were kids, she called me Tia I called her Lulu, Celestia said with a smirk. Well that is certainly adorable information there, but I think I will head down to the training grounds and inspect some of the troops, I said as I turned to leave. Then until we meet again Ash, Celestia said as she turned back to her telescope. After I left I walked down the hallway to the training grounds but I then walked into Princess Cadenza. Hello your majesty, are you heading down to check on my friends? I asked. Actually I wanted to ask you some questions, she said. All right, what do you want to know? I asked. About the guards training, do you think they have a chance at a fight? She asked. I doubt it really, but with the training schedule I'm working on then there's a strong chance they could win any battle, I answered as I looked at the corridor ahead of me. And would you betray this country to serve another more powerful one? She asked. Never, not even in my craziest nightmares, I answered. Too bad, guess your time's up was all she said before there was flash of green and I felt something pierce my gut. I looked down to see a green dagger sticking out of my gut. I turned to the princess next to me to see her eyes were slitted in a sickly green color, instead of being blue and rounded, then everything went black. I woke up to a warm gooey feeling on my body. I opened my eyes to see I was in some sort of green cocoon. I looked down at my wound to see most of it had closed. I considered myself lucky that I wasn't dead, because many people wouldn't have survived an hour of this. I searched my brain for answers and remembered I'd been stabbed by Cadenza. I needed to tell the others, so I looked around my cocoon and found a sort of window-like wall. I reared back my hand and made it like a spear and ran it through the clear wall. I pulled my arm back and tore a larger hole in it and climbed out only to fall ten feet to the floor below. I groaned in pain and looked at the ceiling to see the cocoon I'd escaped from, then to an area surrounding me. I was back in the castle of the two sisters. No time to think about how I got here and why I was trapped in that thing. I need to get to Canterlot and warn every pony about Cadenza, I thought my thinking was interrupted however by the buzzing of wings. I looked around but didn't see any insects but the noise kept growing louder until a pony flew by the entrance. Except this pony didn't have any fur and had a black sleek body like an insect's exoskeleton, it had holes in its hooves and insect-like wings, also with holes and very light blue eyes with no pupils or whites. It had a black curved horn jutting out of its head along with fangs and sharp teeth, it was also wearing dark purple armor. It then, unfortunately, noticed me and let out an ear-splitting shriek calling others. The creatures then flew over to me bearing their fangs. I tried to move but my stab wound prevented me from doing so. As they drew closer I thought I was done for. All of a sudden, a bright light appeared between me and the creatures, the light dimed immediately and the five knights were left standing in its place. Be gone foul creature or suffer our wrath, Corvo said in a voice that would send chills down any pony's spine. The creatures looked at the ghosts in fear before they fled the room. Link and Ezio walked over to me and placed my arms over their necks and hoisted me up and we walked down the halls. Boy you have no idea how glad I am to see you five, I said. As are we Ash, but we must be swift in where we are heading, Altair said as he walked alongside us. Where are we going? I asked. We are heading to the library, but you are going to a secret room in the library to meet someone important. Someone who can help get rid of the poison in you and give you new abilities, Arno said in a calm manner. Wait, I've been poisoned. Well that's just great, I yelled sarcastically. Please remain calm, it will take three days for the poison to kill you. It's a slow-acting poison yes, but undetectable unless your blood is analyzed. A painful death plus you've been out for a day already, Ezio said. Wait, a day. Surely someone must know I've been missing, I said. I'm afraid they have been too focused on the wedding to notice anything, Corvo said. Okay, so now what? I asked. You meet with the pony we mentioned and she will help you. Speaking of which, we're here, Link said as we entered the library. The library was just as enormous as I remembered, the knights helped me over to a bookshelf and Altair walked over to it and brought his foot close to the bottom left corner of the bookcase. The bottom corner had a gold plate on it like the other side, except for the mark on it. The mark on it was a picture of a sword with the sun and moon on either side of it. Altair gave a light kick to the emblem and it pushed inward, then the whole bookcase opened like a door. 
We cannot go any further, but know this, no one except the knights, stars world the bearded and the pony you're about to meet know of this room's existence. Also, this pony can give you untold power and she will also tell you the main purpose of the knights. Until we meet again Knight of Freedom, Link said before they disappeared. I looked at where they stood for a few minutes then walked into the dark corridor. As I walked in, the bookcase closed with a boom. When it closed, fire lit lamps were lit automatically along the corridor allowing me to see. As I walked down the corridor I saw the end and when I reached it the room opened up into a large circular room filled with books and statues of famous ponies of time. Also I saw doors that went deeper into the chamber. At the back of the room I saw five statues of the knights and a sixth statue of six alicorns in discord. I was able to recognize three of the alicorns as Celestia, Luna and Cadence. One of the three alicorns I didn't know looked strangely familiar but I couldn't place it. In the center of the room was a stone pedestal with a glowing orb on top of it. I walked over to the pedestal and looked it over. I could feel the orb calling out to me, so I decided to do probably the stupidest thing in my life, I reached out and placed my hand on the orb. At first nothing happened, but then I felt as though my soul was pulled into the orb and everything went black. Ah, uh, okay, no more touching ancient glowing things for me, I said as I regained coconsis. I picked myself up and looked around. I was in some sort of library filled with books and scrolls. I looked at the ceiling for only the shelves to look like they could go on forever. Okay, note to self. Don't reveal this place to twilight wherever this place is, I said aloud. You're back in the world between worlds, a mysterious voice said causing me to look around in panic. Who's there? I asked caution. Be at ease, I mean no harm, the voice said. I turned around and to my surprise I saw one of the alicorns from the statue I'd seen earlier. She had white fur and a crimson mane and tail and was wearing a pair of simple blue jeans and a white shirt with an inkwell and quill on it. She walked out from behind a desk and stood in front of me with a smile. I see the knights were able to lead you to this place, she said. Yes, but who are you? I asked. I've been called many names, creator, keeper of the archives, but my friends and family call me Faust, she said. Creator, creator of what exactly? I asked. Creator of Equestria and everything in it of course, Faust said with a chuckle. Wait, Equestria, I'm speaking with the alicorn who made Equestria and everything in it. I said staring at the alicorn in shock. Are you alright? She asked. Yeah, just a lot to take in so suddenly really, I said rubbing my temples. I see, but I'm afraid we don't have much time to answer any questions. Right, well the knights said you'll be able to rid me of this poison inside of me. I asked. Of course, I can't have you dying on Equestria now can I? Faust replied. Faust lit up her horn and I felt a tugging sensation in my wound. I saw a large green liquid appear from my wound and once the last drop was out my skin, muscle and veins started to pull themselves together. I cringed at the pain that I felt in that area and leaned on a bookcase for support. Once the pain stopped I looked at the wound but could not even see a scar there. Thanks, I said as I looked at Faust to see her dissolving the foul liquid into thin air. Not a problem, but now I must discuss something important with you, Faust said in a serious tone. About what Faust? I asked. The princess who gave you that wound was not my grandniece Princess Cadenza or Princess Cadence as she prefers to be called, Faust said with a frown. Wait, your grandniece, so that makes you Celestia and Luna's mother, I said with shock. Faust only levitated a picture frame over to me. I looked at the picture to see Faust, Discord, Celestia, Luna and the other two alicorns from the statue in a grassy field with a blue sky. Each one looked happy while they all looked at the camera. This is my children and I from a long time ago. I didn't know Cadence personally because I was sealed away before she was born, but I have been watching over them, Faust said. But Celestia told me she had no other siblings besides Discord and Luna, I said. That is my fault, I wiped Celestia, Luna and Discord's memories of the other two alicorn sisters when they were possessed by demons, Faust said. Demons? I asked. Yes, I did it to protect my children because they couldn't defeat the demons inside the other two. Even I was useless against them, so to stop them from trying and save the two and to keep them safe, I wiped their memories of their other sisters, Faust said. What about Discord, is he possessed too? I asked. No, he was heartbroken because after I left there was no one to comfort him, soon he became angry with the ponies that called him a monster and took his anger out on them. Celestia, Luna and the knights tried to help him but failed, leavening him with nothing but madness, Faust said. Must have been hard for him, I said feeling sorry for Discord. Listen Ash, one of my possessed daughters is attacking Canterlot as we speak. This is what I must ask of both of you. Please free my daughter, Faust pleaded. Wait both, I asked. Yes you and Burning Rage, Faust said. How did you know about him, I said in shock. I was able to sense him inside of you, Faust said. Alright but if you couldn't defeat the demons how can I and why didn't the knights stop the demons from possessing your daughters? I asked. They disappeared after they were possessed in the knights and I couldn't find them. And a rare amount of humans have a gift to kill demons but must get stronger to kill stronger ones, it will probably take years to achieve but rage can help with that, Faust said. How can he help? I asked. You won't be able to kill the elite demons, only wound them. But you can kill the lower ones because you have a special gift like the knights. Unlike you, rage has an ability that allows him to take a elite demon's soul and turn it into a power allowing you will get stronger, so it will allow you to kill demons as well. You won't win this fight unless rage kills the elite, Faust said. Okay, so how do I let him out? I asked. Easy, just ask, Faust said. I thought it through and decided to try it out. Can you hear me rage? I thought. And here I thought you would never ask me to kill, I say let's do this, he replied. So you heard huh, makes things easier for me, I thought. Just because I'm trapped in your head it doesn't mean I don't know what's happening pal, he said in an annoyed tone. So if we do this and I let you out, you need to play by my rules. That means no hurting innocents are my friends, only our targets clear. I thought. Done, just as long as I get to kill something, he said. Alright Faust we're in, now can you help me how to get back to Canterlot? I asked. Of course but first, you won't be able to take on a horde of demons like this, she said gesturing to me. So how do we fix that? I asked. 
They'll have to place years of new combat skills and new magic abilities in your body, also give you a new set of appendages and the knowledge to control them plus some equipment to fight with, Faust said. That's a lot of stuff to learn, I said. I know, but we don't have a choice in the matter. Before we begin, just know that this will hurt a lot, Faust warned. Like you said, no choice so let's get it over with, I said. We shall speak again soon, Faust said as she charged her magic into her horn then touched my head with her horn. I screamed in agony, as all the knowledge Faust mentioned came flooding into my head. Twilight was kneeling on the ground in the main room of the castle next to the others while the changelings swarmed the city of Canterlot. Shining was standing at the altar in some sort of trance, while the real Cadence and Spike were stuck to the ground by some green goo. Celestia was sealed in a cocoon suspended on the ceiling and in front of her was the cause of all this, Queen Chrysalis, Queen of the Changelings. She had black skin like her subjects, along with holes in both of her hooves, mane and tail. Her insect-like wings and her clothes were brown and looked more like rags than a tire fit for a queen. The top of her dress had two straps that went across her chest in an X pattern and her mane and tail were silvery seaweed green, her eyes were slitted and sickly green and her horn was long and jagged. She shape-shifted into Cadence in an attempt to take over Equestria, but Twilight found the real Cadence. Twilight and the real Cadence tried to stop the wedding and rescue every pony. When they reached the wedding they revealed that Chrysalis was posing as Cadence and then she told everyone about her plan to take over Equestria. After that Celestia and Chrysalis battled, but Celestia lost leaving the girls the only option left the elements of harmony. The Colts tried to buy the girls time, but everyone was soon captured. Hey, any pony see Nash? I mean, he ain't here with us, Caramel whispered. You're right maybe he went to get help against this crazy cheese grater, Rainbow said. Oh I really doubt that, Chrysalis interrupted with a wicked grin. What do you mean by that? Twilight demanded. The last time I saw your precious knight, he was dying in a puddle of his own blood with a poisoned dagger piercing his gut, Chrysalis said with an evil laugh. Most of everyone in the room was shocked by the news of Ash's death but Dash. The stallions, except Shining, and Twilight stared at the queen in anger. You're a liar. Ash isn't dead. I know it and when he gets here he's going to make you wish you never existed. Twilight yelled at the queen. You know I think I've kept you all around long enough. Time to get rid of the thorns in my side, Chrysalis said. Chrysalis then used her magic to lift Twilight of the ground and then summoned a black and green jagged sword. Farewell little Twilight, was all Chrysalis said before she raised the sword above her head and swung it down to kill Twilight. Twilight closed her eyes and waited for what came next, but the only thing she heard was the sound of metal breaking. Twilight snapped her eyes open to see the sword had shattered. In between Chrysalis and herself was a gray force field, everyone looked at the shield in surprise and confusion. Then the force field pushed Chrysalis towards the center of the room where it finally dispersed. Who dares summon a force field to protect this loathsome creature, Chrysalis demanded. That loathsome creature, as you call her, is my friend, a voice called. Chrysalis turned her head in the direction of the voice to see standing in the entrance a tall armored figure. It did not wear the royal or luna guard armor instead the armor was dark gray and decorated with leaves and vines etched into the chest plate with a symbol of a sword and the sun and moon on either side of it. The helmet was also different as well. It was flat at the top and it didn't have holes in the top for ears like the guards. The front of the helmet was pointed from top to bottom in vertical shape to curve but was too short in length to fit a muzzle. The helmet had a pair of holes on top of each other that went across the faceplate so whoever wore it could see and breathe. A sword was sheathed on the figure's back, the handle was blue and a pair of wings that had feathers like a bird on the top half and was webbed like a bat on the bottom half served as the cross guard, a silver wolf's head rested on the hilt. Well, I guess that means you're here to fight me. Sorry I have no time to deal with pests like you, Chrysalis said as she fired a spell at the figure. The figure didn't even move and took the spell head on. The spell hit the armor but didn't leave a scratch. Everyone stared at the figure in surprise. The figure began to walk forwards and Chrysalis snapped out of her trance and then fired several more spells at the armored stranger. The stranger took the spells head on like before but it did not stop or even slow his approach. Chrysalis was sweating now, but then she fired a large blast enveloping the figure causing a smoke screen. There that finished him, Chrysalis said with an evil smile as she wiped away the sweat on her forehead. But as she wiped away the sweat an armored hand reached out and grabbed her arm as the smoke cleared to reveal the armored figure again completely unscathed. Impossible. That blast was stronger than Celestia, Chrysalis said looking into the darkness of top visor of the stranger's helmet in fear. Guess I'm just a little stronger than that then, the figure said before it swung Chrysalis around and threw her into the wall opposite to the group of friends. The figure then straightened up and looked back at everyone present. They were all staring at the figure in awe and fear, except for Shining who was still in Chrysalis's trance. The figure then reached for its helmet and removed it to reveal Ash Blade. Sup guys, hope I'm not late for the wedding or nothing, I said with a smile. Ash where in Tartarus have you been and what's with the armor? Comet asked. Look guys, I'd love to answer your questions but right now, I've got a demon to eradicate, I said as I looked over to where I'd thrown Chrysalis. As I looked back at the pile of rubble I saw a black hand shoot out from the rubble, then the rest of Chrysalis and she looked surprised, and then pissed to see me. How are you not dead and how did you escape my minions? She demanded. Guess I got lucky, but you're not my target Chrysalis, there's a demon inside of you that I need to kill. So I'd like to get this over and done with if you don't mind. I'd like to separate it from you, I said. How you expect me to believe that? You're just trying to get me to lower my guard so you can finish me off, even if I did there's nothing in me to extract, Chrysalis hissed. I figured you would say something like that so that's why I made that, I said as I smirked and pointed at her hooves. Everyone looked down at where I was pointing and Chrysalis's eyes widened. She was standing in a circle with a pentagram in the center and runes around the edge. When did you, but Chrysalis didn't finish as I snapped my fingers. The circle activated and blue glowing chains burst from the ground and wrapped around Chrysalis's body restricting any movement. Chrysalis tried to wiggle out of the chains but it was futile, she then lit up her horn, but the magic in it fizzled up and died. Don't bother, this rune circle is the perfect prison for creatures with strong magic, I said as I placed my helmet over my head and walked up to her. I wrapped my left hand around her horn to stop her from moving and channeled energy into my right hand. I tapped the side of her head and magic seeped into Chrysalis and began the hunt to drive the demon out. 
I stepped away from Chrysalis and waited for the spell to do its job. It didn't take long before Chrysalis's eyes turned black and she began to thrash around like mad. All of a sudden, Chrysalis spewed up a black liquid the liquid bubbled up, then a dark crimson hand burst out of the liquid making everyone in the room except myself and shining armor jump and cringe. Another arm appeared and then pulled up a body. The body was a dark crimson like the arms. The hands and feet had razor-like nails and the creature had no hair on its head, but instead a pair of horns and sharp teeth with Chrysalis's green slitted eyes and a pair of large damaged webbed wings on its back. Enoemos rof Nikul, the demon said with a voice filled with torment. Back to hell, I said as I pointed at the demon. Snyrev tun stop the demon said. I don't care if it's nice or not, you have done great harm here and I will see you punished for it, I said still pointing at the creature. Enamebi Ejwasev Ymratahwdnauoi ho, the demon said as he let out an unholy shriek causing more insect-like ponies to swarm into the room, their eyes went black and they began to thrash about until they spewed out more black liquid like chrysalis. Then more demons appeared except without the horns and wings and had black eyes. I don't need an army to stop you just me and another me, I responded. Shall we? I asked in thought. Let's, rage said. All of a sudden I felt something tearing me apart in great pain, I thought I might die, I screamed in agony, but I held my ground and closed my eyes and waited until it was over. It didn't take long for the pain to end and I opened my eyes. I was a little shaky and then I looked around the room and I saw my friends. Cadence and Celestia were looking at me in shock and fear. I looked to my right and I saw another armored figure standing beside me who I assumed was Rage. He was wearing dark red armor with spikes on it. He wore a helmet similar to mine only with spikes running along the top and down the back of the helmet, along with a pair of horns on the sides. He held a pair of swords in his hands which were similar to my sword. The handles were black with skeletal wings on the cross guards and a snake's head on both the hilts. Since when did you get the weapons and armor? I asked. Same time you got yours. Now, shall we get rid of these pests? Rage asked. Right, you go for the elite and cut down any demons that stand in your path. I'll take care of the lesser ones, I said. Fine by me, Rage said. I couldn't see but I could tell he had a maniacal grin on his face. All of a sudden, the elite let out a cry and the group of demons sprang at us, one of them managed to knock me onto my back and tried to bite me, but Rage cut down his opponents with fury. Twilight managed to slip past the demons and tried to get to Cadence. Rage and I fought hard, I was still on my back as the demon was snapping his jaws inches away from my face. So you want something to chew on huh? Well I got three words for you buddy, dinner is served, I said before I drove my left hand into his open mouth. My arm went through the back of his throat spilling black blood which covered my arm and the floor killing the demon almost instantly. The others were shocked when they saw my arm push through the demon's throat. I then threw the corpse to my side and Comet then noticed that Twilight was missing. He looked around for her, then saw her creep past the demons but not unnoticed. A demon was sneaking up behind Twilight and was ready to strike. Twilight, watch out, Comet called. Twilight spun around and the demon made a lunge at her and used its claws to end her, but before the claws could find its mark, a metal bolt struck the side of its head killing it instantly. Everyone turned their attention towards the direction from where the bolt had come from to see me with my left arm raised and a small crossbow attached to the bottom of my wrist. I twisted my hand and the crossbow limbs folded backwards towards my arm. Okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy, Rage I'm gonna give you a clear line to the elite, I said as I selected a song on my iPod. I poured magic into my body and I began to feel myself change, my face grew a long gray muzzle and my hands and feet turned into paws and fur grew all over my body and white tribal-like markings appeared on my chest. My teeth became sharp and my ears became pointed I transformed into my wolf form, but didn't stop there. Long thin black spikes grew out of the backs of my legs and back and my claws extended a couple of inches. My eyes turned into a shiny blood red with no pupils or whites. I then looked around and the demons were hesitant of me. The girls, Spike Mac and Celestia stared at my form in confusion. The others looked at me in surprise but the elite demon shrieked at his minions again. Once more the demons charged at me but I was faster. I ran at them and as soon as they were in range, I used my four claws to slash at my prey easily tearing them apart. Some tried to attack me from behind but only to get impaled by the spikes on my back. As I finished off the first wave, one of the demons was still impaled on my spikes and was getting in my way, so I grabbed a piece of it and tore it from my back, sheeting the corpse. The elite demon summoned another wave, only these guys used weapons and again they attacked Rage and I. Demons climbed across the walls and I looked at my extended claws. I ran at one of the walls with faster speed than my first wolf form and managed to dig my claws into the wall and run across it like I was running along the ground. My friends were surprised at my ability and even on the walls the demons had no chance against me. Once I finished with the demons on the walls, I looked down at the fight in the ground and I saw that Rage had killed some of the ground demons. Rage was now going against the elite demon, but the elite, armed with a trident, was trying to blast Rage with magic from his horns. Rage was doing well against him, but wasn't breaking through his defenses I looked over at my friends and saw a demon go for the still glued to the ground spike. I leapt off the walls and landed upon that demon. I looked into its eyes with fury and reared my head back, roaring into its face giving it a fine view of my teeth. I then sunk my teeth and claws into its throat and chest tearing out organs, muscle and bones out of the body. Once I finished the demon, there was nothing but a hollow corpse. I looked at Spike while blood dripped from my jaws. Spike was freaking out watching the display of gore that covered me, so I switched back to my human form and used my magic to rid Spike of the goo that kept him in place. Are you alright? I asked. Fine, but what was that form you just used? I've never seen anything so bloodthirsty, Spike said in a shaky voice. I call it feral mode, but I'll explain it all to you once I'm done here, in the meantime let me know if any more demons try to get the drop on you, I said. Got it, and Ash kicked their ass like you did in the arena, Spike said. You got it pal, I said with a smile as I stood up and drew my sword and shield from my back. The blade had a dull shine to it and the shield was a large heater shield with the same color gray as my armor and had my mark on it. A demon came charging at me with a sword and I ran at him too, he was planning to thrust the sword into me, but before I was in range to get stabbed, I ducked and slid across the floor on my knees and held my blade out and tripped up the demon. I stood up and over the fallen demon then I twirled the blade backward and stabbed him in the chest. I turned to the rest of my opponents to see half the opponents fighting rage who decided to go for me. 
A demon wielding a halberd swung the blade at me, but I used my shield to block the strike and then my sword to cut the weapon in two. I then slashed the demon's chest and another charged at me with a mace, raised above his head. I blocked the attack again before I hit the demon in the head with the shield, stunning it and then I drove my blade through its heart. The others were impressed by my fighting ability. I saw Cadence was free and managed to free Shining from his trance but he was too weak to move. He watched both me and Rage as we fought the demons, without as much as a scratch. Another demon, with a sword locked itself in combat with me, this one was not stupid like the others, and knew how to fight. Our blades continued to send sparks as they clashed. We entered a power struggle and I was starting to overpower the demon before he fired a spell from his hand, like I can, and disarmed me. The blade flew into the air before it wedged itself into the ground behind the demon. The demon then charged at me, intending to finish me off but I had one last trick up my sleeve. I ran at the demon and the demon was about to make a swipe at my body to split me in two, but as he made his blow I jumped into the air over the attack and extended my right arm backwards and flicked my hand outwards, then a blade extended beneath my wrist. I then drove the blade into the creature from hell. Next we fell to the floor, but before we touched it I leapt off my fallen foe and rolled along the ground to reach my sword. I looked behind me to see another sword-wielding demon charging at me, so I grabbed my sword and in one swift motion I stood up and spun around and swung my sword at the demon cutting his sword in two, and decapitating the demon. The elite was furious as we continued to kill its minions. Quote exclamation mark. Uoidne liro one med dne, it yelled. The demons nodded at their leader, then, they surrounded me and charged magic into their hands. I looked around and there was no way of escape, just then the demons fired their spells at me causing an explosion, a cloud of smoke covered the area where the demons and I stood. Ash. Everyone except Cadence and Rage yelled. The smoke cleared to reveal a mass amount of demon corpses, each one had metal blades shaped like a feather sticking out of them, but Ash's body was nowhere to be seen. Hey that's a low move even from a demon, a voice calls. Everyone looked around the room for the source of the voice, but once everyone found it they all gasped in shock and amazement. There, flying in the air, was Ash with a pair of feathered and webbed wings like the ones on the sword and mark. I pulled out a feather from my wings and as I did it turned into a metal feather shaped blade. I then threw it at the elite and the blade went through the demon's arm, causing him to drop his trident and cry out in agony. Suddenly, I felt a great surge of energy build up behind me. I turned around and I saw Shining and Princess Cadence being lifted off the ground with glowing white eyes. All of a sudden a great wall of magic burst forth causing all the demons still alive, except the elite, to turn into dust. I flew over to a window and I saw more demons start to leave ponies' bodies and die as well. Now Rage. I yelled. Rage nodded and he dropped a sword and plunged his hand into the leading demon's chest and pulled out a cracked red orb, as big as his hand, with black wiggling tentacles causing the elite to collapse to his knees. Don't tell me that's what I think it is, I said as I flew down to Rage. Yep, that is a demon soul, Rage replied. It's fouler looking than I thought it would be. So, what now? I asked. Rage's only response was him raising the soul above his head and opening his mouth and dropping the soul into his waiting jaws and swallowing it whole. I'm sorry I asked, I said as I raised a hand to my mouth to prevent me from throwing up. Hey, a guy's got to eat something. Anyway, we need to do this again sometime, I enjoyed that, Rage said as he wiped his mouth. Well, as long as it gets you to leave me alone at night, and we don't have to try and kill each other plus keep Equestria safe, then sure, I said as I extended my hand for him to shake. See you around Ash Rage said as he accepted my hand and faded away. I looked at my friends and saw them free each other from their imprisonment. I took a step closer to them. But all of a sudden, the elite demon grabbed my arm. S-R-U-O-W-E-R-T-S-U-D-N-A-L-L-A-F-L-L-I-W-O-I-N-R-U-T-R-L-L-I-W-R-E-T-S-U-M-Y-M-R-E-T-S-U-M-Y-M-R-
Celestia looked at me then to Chrysalis and the unconscious ponies. Gather some guards and have them transported to the medical wing but make sure that they are guarded at all times I trust Ash has a good explanation for this, Celestia said to Shining. Boo, as you wish your highness, Shining said. He began to walk to the doors but as he passed me he looked at me and said, I hope you're right about sparing them. Don't worry Shining, I'm sure about this, I said as I patted his back to reassure him. He smiled at me before he ran out the door to find some guards. I looked at the remainders of the group and I saw a pink alicorn with a dirty tricolored mane and a torn dress looking hesitant at me. I take it you're the real princess Miyamori Cadenza, right? I asked. Um yes, but please just call me Cadence, she said. I see, my name is Ashblade and I'm the Knight of Freedom and the Sixth Knight of Equestria, I said. Oh you're the one that Twilight mentioned. I thought you'd be shorter, she said causing my friends to giggle. Okay, I believe I owe you all an explanation. So are there any requests for what anyone wants to know? I asked causing everyone to go wide-eyed at me. Yeah, you mentioned that feral mode to me before, care to tell me what the heck it is? Spike asked. My feral mode is basically a form I can only use as a wolf. It makes me more alert to my surroundings and faster, I'm also stronger and hungry for blood so think of it as a wolf going on a berserk rampage. I control the part where I can pick the target but not control on how the body kills, so I'm sorry if I freaked you out badly there Spike, I said. I'm cool Ash, don't worry, Spike said reassuring me. What about that armor? I've never seen metal like that before, Caramel said looking at my armor. Rock steel, it's almost as light as a feather and flexible so I can run and jump easily in this and it's incredibly strong so it will take a lot of power to injure me. But the joints are the weak points, I said, on Caramel. That attack where you jumped into the air and over that monster's attack and used that hidden blade had an elegant beauty to it. How did you learn to do that? Rarity asked. You're complimenting an attack. That's something I never thought you'd say Rarity. But anyway, Faust crammed years of fighting knowledge and spells into my head and I got say, it hurt, I said as I rubbed the side of my head. How did you get the wings and is this a feather or a blade? Rainbow asked holding up one of my feathers. They were kinda reserved for me and I'm still trying to get used to them. As for the feather, once I shoot a feather out of my wings, it turns into a blade for example, I said as I spread one of my wings and flicked one of them a feather then shot out and wedged itself into a broken pillar before the pillar split with a clean slice leaving Rainbow's jaw gapping open. But what about that rune circle? How did you know that Chrysalis would land there and also when did you set it up? Twilight asked. Actually I didn't know she would land there. After I threw her and while she and I were talking I stopped time and drew the rune under her while everyone else was frozen, I said. Ash, it's impossible to stop time. I should know I tried and there is no spell that can do that. The only thing time related is a spell to send you back in time, a week ago for a few minutes, Twilight said. Then how did I write the words, believe me now, just now on your hands with this gray lead, I said holding up a black gray lead. Everyone looked at Twilight's hands and there written on her hands was the words, believe me now. But this is impossible, Twilight exclaimed just as Shining Armor returned with a good handful of guards to help take the unconscious alicorn and ponies to the medical ward. Welcome back Shining, I said as he walked over to us. I miss anything important, he asked. Nah and if you want to learn about everything said while you were not here, ask Cadence, she can bring you up to speed because I don't want to repeat the answers, I replied. Ash who the heck was that other human? Mac asked. That was burning rage, I said causing Celestia to stare at me in horror when she heard the name. You all know how Nightmare Moon works right? Well think of burning rage as the same thing, but instead of taking over my body, he can separate from me into his own. But he can't survive outside of me forever, sooner or later he needs to take shelter inside of me, I said causing everyone to go wide-eyed at me. Ash, you told me that you and he hated each other and that he is something that can't be trusted, Celestia said. That's what I thought at first, but Faust helped us reach an understanding. I let him out to help me kill demons, he gets to slaughter as many of them as he wants but doesn't hurt any innocent ponies, so it's a win-win situation. He helps protect Equestria and he gets to feed his bloodlust, I said causing everyone to relax a bit. Hey Ash, I keep hearing the name Faust. Would you care to tell us who this pony is? Pierce asked. I believe that question is best left for Celestia to explain. She knew her better than I do, I said looking at Celestia. Everyone turned to Celestia with eyes begging for her to tell the story. Very well, you won't know this cadence but Faust is your grand aunt and discords, Luna's and my mother, Celestia said causing Fluttershy and Rarity to pass out from the news and bits of Twilight's mane to spring out while the others gasped and stared at Celestia. Your, mother, Twilight repeated in shock. Yes Twilight, she was also the one who made our lands and everything in it. She is the mother of all creation, Celestia said. Auntie Celestia, why haven't you introduced me to her before? Cadence asked. Because one day, before you were even born, she simply disappeared. She left us a note that said, I will always be looking out for you. We never talked about the subject again. We all loved mother and she loved us but her disappearance hurt us and drove discord mad, Celestia said with some tears welling up in her eyes. I walked over to Celestia and wiped away her tears and wrapped my wings around her for comfort. It took a while but Celestia calmed down and stepped out of my embrace. Thank you Ash, if I may ask why did you ask to spare Chrysalis and how did you know about the demon? Celestia asked. Faust told me about the demon and how to kill it. Also, it was Faust who asked me to save her, I replied. Do you know why, Celestia asked again. Yes, but I think it would be a best if we wait for Luna to return and Chrysalis to wake up to answer that question, because they will need to hear this too, I said. Very well then, I'll have someone send word to us when Chrysalis awakens, Celestia said. Great, now if I remember correctly we have a wedding to prepare for. I said looking at the future couple with a smile. It took two days to fix everything up again because the demons totally trashed the party, but once the preparations were complete the wedding was underway once more. Shining wore a red military coat and his uncle's emblem over his chest and black pants. I stood next to him along with Spike Thunderlane, Comet, Pierce, Mac, Caramel, and Soren. The girls stood on the other side, each one wearing a dress made by Rarity. Rarity dried her tears she'd shed from the beauty of the wedding and I then saw Applejack sneak out her trademark brown Stetson and place it on her head. I loosened up my blue silk tie on my tux that Rarity made for me. 
I was wearing a black tuxedo with a silver wolf on the right side of the coat in a sitting position howling. Just then, Fluttershy's songbird choir started to sing and Sweetie Belle, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo walked down the aisle wearing flower girl dresses and sprinkling flower petals over the aisle. I looked back at the entrance and I saw Caden step in. She was wearing a sleek white dress with a swan over her chest and a crown of daisies and roses over her head. She held a bouquet in her hands as she walked down the aisle. Ash, are you sure you don't want me to tell every pony about your heroics? Celestia whispered into my ear. And what let me steal the spotlight from these two lovebirds? Now let them have their day, I said with a smile. After the wedding and an awesome sonic rainboom from Rainbow Dash, it's like when you break the sound barrier but instead of it just creating a boom, it creates a boom and a circle of rainbow fire, then a rainbow forms in the wake, we headed down to the reception where Shining and Cadence danced to some soothing music. I was introduced by Twilight to her and Shining's parents Twilight Velvet Twilight and Shining's mother, and Nightlight Twilight and Shining's father. After the introductions they then thanked me for saving both their children, one of them multiple times now. After that I sat on the far side of the party, on a chair to a table watching the newlyweds. Just then, I saw Luna fly down towards Celestia and my friends. I rose from my seat and into the air and flew over to the group just as Luna landed. Hello everypony, did I miss anything? Luna asked. I'd say you missed a lot, I said as I touched down behind Luna. She then gasped when she saw my wings. Ash what happened, why do you have wings? Luna asked. But before I could answer, a guard ran up to us and bowed towards Celestia and Luna and then he turned to me. Sir I'm here to inform you that Chrysalis has awakened, he said. Thank you, better go get some rest trooper, I said. The guard left and I turned my attention back to Luna. I'll explain everything on the way, but right now both you and Celestia had better follow me, I said. Author's Notes Sorry this took so long I just started school again so expect a few delays in progress. And for those who didn't know demons have a tendency to speak backwards to increase their creep factor. So I decided to add this to my story. Also please leave your comments and if you like more guesses about the burn mark in fact make as many guesses as you want. It could be as random as you wish like it could be a mark from an alien abduction. I will be sure to read them all so till next time. Chapter 11 Reunited at Last Luna, Celestia and I were walking down the hallways of Canterlot Castle towards the castle infirmary where Chrysalis had awakened after the incident a few days ago. That was quite the situation you were in, but I still can't believe it. You now own a pair of wings, armor, a sword, shield, a hidden blade and phantom blade plus you stop time. I haven't seen the last three since the nights, but more surprising is that you let Burning Rage out to aid you in combat against demons. I wish I'd stayed, then I can have it those foul nuisances myself, Luna said with an irritated huff. Yes that would have been entertaining Luna, Ashblade and Burning Rage, ultimate demon slayers, I said in a triumphant tone causing Luna to giggle and Celestia to smile and shake her head. But you still didn't explain to me how you got this much power, Luna said. Well you can thank Faust for that, I said. What? Luna screamed in the royal canterlot voice. You saw mother, but how? I thought she was dead. Why did she come to see you? Luna asked staring at me in shock. To put it bluntly, if it weren't for her I wouldn't be here right now. While Chrysalis was possessed and disguised as Cadence she stabbed me in my gut with a poisoned blade, I said patting the area where I'd been stabbed. I see, but I just wish I could see her. It's been so long and I, I, Luna said as she started to well up with tears. Celestia noticed this and placed a wing over her for comfort. We continued our walk in silence until we reached the door to the infirmary. We walked inside and I looked around the room. It was as large as a hospital corridor with rooms on either side. I walked over to a guard and asked for Chrysalis's room, he pointed to the room with two guards posted outside then he turned to leave. We walked over to the room and the guards stood at attention before they let us past. Inside the room I saw Chrysalis sitting upright on a bed wearing a hospital gown looking at me in confusion. But when Celestia and Luna stepped inside the room and closed the door her face changed from confusion to happiness in an instant. Celestia, Luna, my two favorite sisters, Chrysalis said overwhelmed with happiness. Celestia and Luna looked at Chrysalis in confusion. Um Chrysalis, I'm afraid you may be mistaken, Celestia said. What do you mean? Both of you are my sisters, or are you both pulling one of your pranks on me again? Chrysalis said with an innocent smile. Listen, I don't know what you're on about, but we are not your sisters, Luna said. Come on stop it, you're starting to frighten me you too, Chrysalis said with a nervous smile. For the last time we are not your sis, but Luna was cut off as I placed my hand on her shoulder. Actually Luna, she is. It's also the same reason why Faust asked me to spare her, I said, causing every pony in the room to look at me in confusion. Listen, all I know is that a long time ago before Cadence was born there weren't two alicorns in Equestria, but five. Faust was the mother of the four other alicorns and a certain Draconiquis. Celestia, Luna, right now you're standing in a room with your long-lost sister, I said in the calmest way I could. Celestia and Luna were staring at me wide-eyed after I'd finished explaining. But, how? I told you before Ash the only siblings Luna and I had is Discord, Celestia said. Faust wiped yours, Luna's and Discord's memories after your other sisters were possessed by demons because she wanted to keep you all safe. After the two were possessed, you, Luna and Discord went out to get your sisters back. But you came this close to being possessed yourself, I said while showing them my thumb and my index finger millimeters apart before I continued. After Faust saved you three she tried to get you to stay put and let her take care of the threat but you wouldn't listen. So with the only option left she was to wipe your memories of the two, but she was going to return them to you after she saved them. Oh and that reminds me. I held out my hand and summoned two small bright glowing orbs. Ash what are those? Luna asked. These are yours and Celestia's memories. Faust thinks she's held onto them for too long, I said. I nudged the orbs over to Celestia and Luna. The orbs left my hands and floated over towards Celestia and Luna. The orbs then touched Celestia and Luna's heads before they faded away and Celestia and Luna's eyes glowed white. After a few minutes they returned to normal and after that they looked at Chrysalis who watched the incident with great interest. Celestia and Luna then wrapped her in a hug with tears of joy in their eyes. I shall take my leave. No doubt you three have a lot of catching up to do, I said as I left the room before anyone could react. 
I left and made my way back to the party and I saw to my surprise vinyl mixing some beats with Pinky on a DJ turntable. Twilight was singing and when she finished her song I walked up to the purple shades wearing DJ and the pink party mare. Yo scratch, I didn't know you'd be attending, I said with a laugh. Hey Ash Pink's here told me you got a new set of wings, mind if I see? Vinyl asked. Not at all, I said as I extended my wings. Whoa, even cooler than I thought possible, Vinyl whistled. Thanks. Hey, want to play a song for me? I asked as I held up my iPod. Plug it in and we'll see what it's got, Vinyl said with glee. I plugged in my iPod and found the song I wanted. Oh oh, are you going to play one of your songs, Ash? What is it? What is it? Pinky asked with an impossibly large smile. You're about to find out, I said as I grabbed a microphone and walked in front of the turntable gaining the audience's attention. Hello everypony, I'm sure most of you know who I am but that's not important right now. I wanted to play a song from my world tonight for the new couple. So hope everypony likes it. So without further ado let's get the song started. Everypony was so entranced in the music that some of them stepped onto the floor to dance, including the main six and the stallions. But the ones that were most into it was Shining, Cadence and Vinyl. I was glad to see so many smiles on everypony's faces. It made me feel warm in my heart. When the song ended everyone applauded me for playing the song and soon asked for an encore. Not wanting to disappoint them I selected another song for them. Once the song finished I grabbed my iPod and walked off the stage but Cadence, Shining, Vinyl and my friends blocked my path. What's up guys? I asked with a nervous chuckle. Best music ever Pinky said jumping five feet into the air. Who knew you humans made such amazing music thank you for playing those songs Cadence said. Damn Ash how many other songs do you have on that thing? Vinyl asked. As many as I need I said with a smile. That was truly amazing a voice said from behind me. I turned around and I was met with the royal sisters. Oh hello you too. How's Chrysalis? I asked in a casual tone. Resting at the moment, the doctor said she'll make a full recovery, Luna said. I'm glad, I said. Ash, we owe you a great debt today for not only informing us of our mother, but returning our sister as well, Celestia said. Sister, the other said in shock. We can discuss this later but for now we have a party to enjoy, I said. It has been three days since the wedding and boy was it something. After the party before Cadence and Shining left for their honeymoon, all of my friends, except for Vinyl, Shining Armor and Cadence, asked about Celestia and Luna's forgotten sister Chrysalis. To learn of all this left them in shock and surprise but the greatest shock came from both Shining and Cadence. For Shining to have almost have a member of the royal family killed and for Cadence to have another aunt. After my story Cadence and Shining left but not before giving me a thank you and a promise to repay me. Then, we left the party and returned home to rest. When we arrived I was greeted by Dust who didn't seem phased by my wings at all. The next day after Celestia placed my story about the demon incident at the wedding on the front page of the newspaper, along with the return of her sister Chrysalis, who had been restored with her title of Princess of Life. After I read the story I went for a walk around Ponyville and I ran into Gilda and she was surprised when she saw my wings. She then asked for a race sometime once I could control them better. I then headed to the forge to start creating some shields for the royal guards which leads us to the present. There, that's the last of them, I said wiping my brow. They look spectacular ash. I'm sure Celestia and Luna will love these, Caramel said as he held one of the finished shields. The solar guards, as I have come to call them had rectangular shaped red shields with a 3D golden sun design in the center. And the Luna guards also had rectangular shields except they were midnight blue with a silver 3D moon design on them with stars in the background. Yeah, anyway I better get over to Canterlot so I can begin the guards training, I said. So when do you think you'll be back? Caramel asked. Couple of months, but I'll be in touch, I said packing away my tools. And when do you leave? Caramel asked. All of a sudden a green ball of mist flew toward me before it stopped in front of me and turned itself into a scroll. I caught the roll of parchment and opened it. In half an hour, I said and I closed the scroll and placed it in my pocket. Wait back up, what was that? Caramel asked in a stunned tone. Celestia and Luna taught me a spell to write letters to each other that don't need to go through Spike. I wrote a letter to Celestia today to tell her that the shields should be done sometime today and I was right. I asked when she wants them picked up and taken to Canterlot, which will be soon. Guards will come to collect the shields at 12 o'clock. It will give me enough time to pack but not to say goodbye to the others. Can you tell them about what happened here for me? I asked. Sure anything for a friend, but I think Pinky will be miffed that you didn't tell her this. Also what's happening with Dust? Caramel asked. Dust is going to be coming with me, so don't worry. I've got to get ready, see you in a few months, I said with a smile as I walked out of the forge. Good luck, Caramel shouted after me. Dust and I arrived at the chariot drop-off on a balcony at Canterlot Castle while the wagons carrying the shields went towards the armory. I kept one solar and one night shield with me to present to Celestia and Luna. I walked down the corridors towards the throne room with dust on my shoulder, looking around the palace. We arrived at the room and two solar guards stood at the doors like every time I visited. I walked up to the great doors and knocked on them, I then heard some pony say behind the doors, come in. I opened the doors and I saw Celestia sitting on the throne with a stack of parchment in her magic grasp, she had a quill and parchment in her hands and was writing something on the parchment. Meanwhile Luna and Chrysalis were talking and giggling off to the side. Chrysalis was once again in the dress she wore when she was unconscious except without the burn marks and tears. I was about to say something before a ball of fire zoomed past me. I looked at the ball and watched as it curved around and flew back at me to attack. I got a closer look at it and I saw it was a bird covered in red and orange flames. Philomena, that's enough, Celestia said in a stern voice. The fiery creature halted its charge upon me and the flames covering its body dispersed, leaving orange and red feathers and it flew over to Celestia's side. I take it that phoenix is yours, I said. Yes she is, but how did you know Philomena here is a phoenix? Celestia asked. Phoenixes are a myth from my world and the fire covering her body without burning her gave it away, I said in a totally obvious tone. Right, well I believe you're here to start the troops training, correct? Celestia said. Yes and I brought a pair of shields for you to see, I said as I removed the shields from my back and presented them to the princesses who seemed impressed by the outcome. 
As you can see I have made designs for both the Solar and Luna Guard. Ash they are wonderful I'm sure they will serve a great purpose in our army, Celestia said. Squawk. Oh how rude of me. Princess Celestia, Princess Chrysalis, I'd like to introduce to you my companion, Dust. He will be staying with me while I'm training the guards, I said presenting the crow to the princesses. Oh I remember you, Luna said as she walked over to us and stroked Dust's wings. The bird cooed at Luna's touch. And it seems he remembers you, I said with a laugh. Just then the doors flew open to reveal a very annoying asshole of a prince. You, he shouted when he saw me. Oh lord, this guy again, I said with a groan at the end. Blue blood stormed over to us and with anger written all over his face. You're the reason my guards were forced to quit and you humiliated me. Blue blood yelled pointing a finger at my face. Forced them to quit. I gave them an option to join the equestrian army or continue working for you and they decided to join the army. Speaking of those two, I wonder how they're doing. I said thoughtfully looking away from blue blood holding a finger to my chin. Auntie, I demand that this creature be sold to me so I can have him beaten into submission, blue blood demanded. At these words my anger turned into a raging inferno and if looks could kill anyone who saw me, they'd be turned into ashes immediately. My gaze turned towards Blue Blood and I wanted to tear the bastard apart and leave the pieces in Tartarus, but before I could someone shouted. Blue Blood you know perfectly well we don't ALOW slavery in Equestria and I will not accept such acts in my own family. Celestia roared using the Canterlot royal voice. The force was so strong it caused me to skid along the floor, but Blue Blood was blown out the door. That was quite something, I said recovering from the force and rubbing my ear. Apologies Ash, it has been a while since I used the royal Canterlot voice and I only use it when I'm angry, Celestia said with an embarrassed smile and blush on her face. Ash, are you okay? Chrysalis asked. Yeah, just fine, I said turning away from the princesses to hide my face. Very well Ash, one of our maids will take you to your temporary quarters, Celestia said. Thank you Celestia. Oh and I will need some pony to look after dust while I am training the guards, I said. I'll take care of him, Chrysalis offered. Really, that's very kind of you Chrysalis, thank you, I said as dust flew off of my arm to land on Chrysalis's. You shouldn't be the one thanking me, I should be thanking you, besides, I love animals, Chrysalis said stroking dust's back. Then you and Fluttershy will get along just fine. Anyway, I should be going and it's great to see you all again, I said as I grabbed the two shields I'd brought with me which had been blown across the floor. I then followed the maid whom Celestia had called to take me to my room. He's hiding something, Chrysalis said as the doors to the throne room closed. Indeed, but what do you think got him so angry? He had a very frightening face on him, it showed a lot of pain, anger and guilt, Luna said. No idea, Chrysalis said in worry as she stared at the doors. What secrets do you hold Ash? Celestia whispered to herself as she rested her chin behind her hands. I followed the maid through the maze of hallways until I arrived at a room in the Luna wing of the castle. The room was as large as an apartment and had a four-poster king-sized bed with an empty bookshelf and a balcony that looked over one of the castle's inner gardens. I dropped my suitcase in my room, deciding to unpack later and first start training. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door so I walked over and I saw Luna standing in front of me. Hey Luna what's up? I asked. Um, I thought you might like some company on your way to the training grounds, Luna said. That would be appreciated, thank you, I said as I stepped out of my room and walked with her down towards the training arena. Ash are you alright? Luna asked when she noticed the sad look on my face. Yeah just thinking, I said. If you don't mind me asking what about? Luna asked. Something that happened a fair time ago, I replied. What exactly? Luna asked. I think it's best if you don't know, but I will say it relates to the scars on my chest, I said. Oh, I'm sorry, Luna said covering her mouth. It's alright, I just don't feel like talking about it, I said. Well Ash, there's a reason I wanted to walk with you, Luna admitted. Really, what was it? I asked. I wish to thank you myself for everything you've done for my sister and I so far. Without you we would never have known about Chrysalis or mother, so thank you, Luna said as she kissed my cheek causing me to blush a little. Glad to help Luna, I said holding my cheek. The rest of the walk was spent in silence except for when we started talking about all the different sketches we'd each done in lives. The discussion came to an end once we arrived at the doors to the training ground. Well good luck with your new troops Ash, Luna said as she walked away. I watched her until she was no longer in sight and then turned to the doors in front of me. Well here goes nothing, I said as I sucked up my courage and placed my hand on the door and pushed. The door swung open slowly to reveal solar and luna guards ranging from earth pony to pegasus to unicorn, each one doing the same pathetic training I'd seen them doing the last time I watched them. So what's the plan here? Rage asked. Put them through the same training as I did, I said. These guy are dead, Rage said with what I could feel was a smile. Only time will tell, I said smirking as well. I walked into the yard and stood in front of them not one of them taking any notice of me. Fall in, I shouted gaining every pony's attention. Immediately all the guards moved and stood in neat lines forming a cube in front of me. At least they got that part right, I thought. I'm sure you all know who I am and why I'm here. Well, for those who don't know my name is Ashblade. I'm the Knight of Freedom and I'm here to turn you into proper soldiers. The training I've seen you all doing is ridiculously poor. Soldiers in my world would either be rolling in their graves or putting bullets to their heads if they could see you now. Even the finest trainer in my world would be fuming with rage if he saw this. It is why you were all so easily defeated in the invasion three days ago. I'm here to break you down into nothing and build you all back up stronger, into true warriors. I shouted. And why should we follow you? You're not even a pony, a voice called. Would the pony who spoke come up and say that to my face, if they dare? I said with a voice filled with malice. A mare stepped out of the group of soldiers, she had grey fur and a blue mane and tail and was dressed in Luna Guard armor. She also had yellow slitted eyes, like the other Luna Guards and a pair of bat wings folded onto her back, she also had fangs. You got a name? I asked. Private Nocturnal Shadow and as I said before, I don't think you're qualified to lead us, the bat pony said. Shadow, what are you doing? A solar guard Pegasus said running up to the bat pony. He had a blonde mane and a blue tail, he also had blue eyes and a pair of feathered wings on his back. 
And who are you, trooper? I asked. PR, Private Storm Cloud, sir, the Solar Guard said with a shaky salute. All right, Storm Cloud, stand there and watch. As for you, Shadow, tell me, why do you think I'm not qualified to lead this army? I said in a stern voice. You're not a pony like the rest of us, and Shining Armor taught us well. Much better than you ever could. I bet you don't even know how to fight, Shadow said, folding her arms across her chest. Oh, really? Care to best me? I said in a taunting tone. Sure, and if I win, you leave and I take over the training schedule, Shadow said. And if you lose, which you will, you have to shut up, do as I say while training, and you clean the barracks for a week by yourself, I said. Done, but be warned I have never lost a fight, Shadow said. Just like three days ago at the Changeling invasion, huh? I said with a cocky grin. This got Shadow to glare at me with hate-filled eyes before she flew at me she tried to land a kick at my head. I simply moved my head backwards, just missing her hoof, but Shadow wasn't done yet. She followed up her attack with another kick from her other hoof so I grabbed a hold of it and pulled her above my head and slammed her into ground behind me. When she impacted, the ground made a small crack-filled crater. She let out a short cry of pain but stood up. She was a little shaky as she got on her two hooves and was still recovering from the blow. She shook her head and charged at me and landed a punch square on my chest, I didn't even flinch. She recoiled in pain as she held the hand she punched with. What the hell are you? That punch should have broken at least one rib. Shadow shouted. If that was the case I wouldn't have been able to stand up against Nightmare Moon, Discord, the kingdom's best fighters, Chrysalis are those demons. I would be as weak as you, I said swiping my legs under her and knocking her off her feet. I then placed a boot on her chest. So I take it I win or do you want to keep going? I asked. No, I know when I've been beat, Shadow said with a sigh of defeat. I removed my foot from her chest and helped her up. Do you need to get that looked at? I asked pointing to her hand. No, I'll be fine. Besides, I don't want to miss this training, Shadow said with a sharp smile. I nodded to her as she and Storm Cloud returned to their places in line. All right, thanks to that little demonstration we're behind schedule. Now you're all gonna follow my orders from here on out. Meaning, you eat when I say you can eat and you'll sleep when I say you can sleep you won't even scratch your flanks without my say so. I'm going to drag you all through Tartarus and when I'm done with you, none of you will recognize the army you've become. Just know these next few months are going to be a nightmare, I said gaining a few audible gulps from some of the guards. All right kids, class is in session. Later that evening, I was walking down the hallway to the castle dining room to meet the princesses for dinner. I reached the doors and opened them to see an oval table with six chairs around it with Celestia and Luna on the ends and Chrysalis on a chair close to Celestia on the left. Each one of the princesses was eating a salad with fruits. Luna noticed me and waved me over. I walked over to the princesses and sat on Luna's left. Hello Ash, how was the training with the guards? Chrysalis asked. Not too bad, one of them challenged me to a fight and lost, but we're all good now, I said. A fight with whom? Celestia asked. A Luna guard private called Nocturnal Shadow, I said. I've heard of her, she is quite the fighter with speed and wit, Luna said. Sounds like the perfect soldier, I said as a covered plate was placed in front of me. The butler removed the lid to reveal to my surprise a slab of hydra meat well cooked with a side of vegetables. Is that, I started. We are well aware that humans are omnivores and need to have a balanced diet of meat, fruit and veg. We have a cold room for meat in the kitchen for ambassadors who eat meat like griffins, Celestia said. I was about to thank the princess but the door opened to reveal a messy prince Blueblood, his hair was a tangled mess and his clothes were ripped and tattered. My guess after Celestia used the royal voice Blueblood had an unfortunate landing. When the prince saw me his face turned red with rage. I stood up grabbed my plate and looked at Princess Celestia. I think I shall eat with my troops tonight Celestia. Because of the new arrival I may do something I might regret, I said. I understand Ash, we shall see you tomorrow, Celestia said. Oh Ash, before you go, Dust is in your room enjoying his dinner in case you were wondering, Chrysalis said. Thank you Chrysalis I'll see you all tomorrow, I said before I teleported out of the room. I teleported into the guards mess hall and as soon as I appeared everyone in the room just stared at me. Many were eating and some were talking with their comrades before I arrived. After a few minutes of silence I spoke. You don't need to stare at me because I'm here, go back to what you were doing, I said. Immediately the guards lost interest in me. I walked through the crowd and found a vacant bench near the main entrance. I sat down at the bench and began to eat, it wasn't long before I had company. Holy light, swift spear, storm cloud, nocturnal shadow, what a nice surprise, I said as the four guards sat with me. Nice to see you sir, but what are you doing here? I thought with your title you'd be dining with the princesses, light said. First off you guys, no more sir okay. Just call me Ash, sir makes me feel like an old man and to answer your question, blue blood happened, I said. Damn, that bastard, he's still trying to get us to work under him again. But we continue to refuse, Swift said. Strong resistance is an important thing for soldiers, I said patting him on the back. See, sorry, Ash I want to apologize about earlier, Shadow said. Say no more Shadow, we've already settled that. Don't dwell on that okay. It's past now, I said, earning a toothy smile from her. Ash these drills you're having us do are intense but I feel stronger already. Where did you learn how to fight like this? Storm asked. An old friend of mine taught me. Not only that, he taught me history, how to read and write and all kinds of stuff, I said finishing half my food. Really what happened to him? Light asked. He died, I said. Oh sorry, how'd it happen? Light inquired. It's not a subject I like to dwell on, I said, finishing the food on my plate. Got it, Light said turning back to his own meal. Hey Ash what's happening for our training tomorrow? Shadow asked. All you need to know is that you're going to need all the rest you can get for these next few months, I said with a devious smile. Three and a half months later. Shining Armor was walking down the halls of Canterlot Castle, he and Cadence had just returned from their honeymoon and Cadence had wanted to meet with her new aunt. So Shining decided to inspect his troops. He'd been away for so long he thought he might surprise them. Shiny, a voice call out behind him. Shining turned around and he spots Twilight and her friends, along with the other six stallions that were at the wedding. Puli how are ya kid, Shining said giving his sister a hug. Fine, but when did you get back? Twilight asked. 
Just now really, Cadence is meeting with Chrysalis. She's excited about the fact that she has a new aunt. I'm on my way to inspect the troops, but what about you? Why are you lot here? Shining asked. We're on our way to see Ash. Three days after you all left for your honeymoon, Ash came up here to start the guards' training, so we came to check on him, Caramel said. Ash has been here training the guards, this I got to see, Shining said turning around and walking down the hall to the training yard. As the group walked through the castle Shining told them about his honeymoon with Cadence, all the girls except Applejack and Rainbow Dash couldn't help but squeal when Shining told them about the sunset dinner by the beach. They reached the training observation room where they saw guards from both Luna and Solar split into groups of species. One third of the training yard held the unicorns doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, another third held the pegasi doing wing-ups with three large bags on their backs. And finally the last third held the earth ponies using wooden swords and shields against each other and in the center, Ash was watching them all and it looked like he was singing something. Blazing horns, I sang. Blazing horns, the unicorns repeated in the same tone and sang. Spells and enchantments. Spells and enchantments. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Unicorn infantry. Unicorn infantry. Speed demons, I sang pointing towards the pegasuses. Speed demons, the pegasi repeated. Armored wings. Armored wings. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Pegasus infantry. Pegasus infantry. Iron hooves, I sang pointing at the earth ponies. Iron hooves, the earth ponies repeated. Heavy artillery. Heavy artillery. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Pick up your weapon and follow me. Earth pony infantry. Earth pony infantry. One, two, three, four. I sang dropping my hand. USHR, we got it. They all sang. One, two, three, four. USHR, we got it. Your left, your left, your left, right. Get on up. Your left, right. Get on down. One, two, three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Left, right. We'll follow, we'll follow all the way. Hey. They finished in union. What do you think that song was all about? Thunderlane asked. Beats me but look looks like Ash is going to spar with one of the guards, Shining said pointing to a solar pegasus guard walking up to Ash with two wooden swords and shields. I grabbed one of the swords and shields and got into a stance. Storm Cloud charged at me and made an overhead attack at me only to meet my shield. I then swung at him but he blocked as well. He then stepped to my right and bashed his shield into me stunning me for a bit. I saw him make an attack at me but I parried it with my sword. Our match lasted for 15 minutes each one of us exchanging blows but it came to an end when we entered a power struggle. I was overpowering him easily but he stepped to the side and I stumbled forward, and when I was next to him he raised his shield and slammed it into me knocking me onto my side and knocking me over. Stormcloud then leapt on top of me and knocked my sword away from me and pointed his sword at my throat this caused everyone in the observation room jaws to hit the floor. Not bad but you need to get rid of my shield as well otherwise, I can throw you off of me and reach for my sword and we'd be back to attacking and blocking each other again, I said as Stormcloud got off me. Sorry Ash, I'll remember that for next time, Stormcloud said as he helped me up. There won't be a next time Storm. I told you Shining Armor is coming home today and you were my last sparring partner for my time here. I'll still come in from time to time to check up on your training though, I said placing my hand on his shoulder. Oh right, I forgot, Storm said face palming. Just then the training arena doors opened to reveal shining armor and my friends. Just like clockwork all the guards stopped what they were doing and saluted shining armor. My friends walked up to me and shining looked at his troops in surprise and awe then at me. Are you training the right troops Ash because I don't think I know these guys, shining said. You see Storm Cloud, what did I say? When shining came home he wouldn't even recognize you lot, I said elbowing Storm. You were right, Storm laughed. Storm Cloud, damn I knew Ash's training would do something to you all, but damn, this goes past my expectations, Shining said looking at Storm Cloud's bigger build. Welcome back Captain, Holy Light Swift Spear and Nocturnal Shadow said in union while saluting when they walked over to us. Wow, you've really outdone yourselves, Shining said with warmth in his voice. All this was Ash sir, when we met he beat me in a fight, but now we're stronger thanks to him and only us four were able to beat Ash the rest were beaten or drew a tie, Shadow said. Wow I'm impressed, I think you'll have to train me sometime Ash, Shining said. I'd be happy to, but I believe it's time for me to go back to Ponyville. I want you four to show Shining here all you've learned and also the new additions to our arsenal, I said with a grin. You got it Ash, do you want us to show him the new project as well? Swift asked. Go ahead, I'll see you all around, I said as I walked towards the door with my friends following close behind me. On my way to my room the girls asked me about my time here and Pinky was ticked I left without a goodbye. Once we arrived at my room, I grabbed my bags which were packed the night before. I collected dust and said my farewells to the princesses and Shining before we left on the train for Ponyville. When I arrived Pinky dragged me over to a welcome back party at Sweet Apple Acers which she'd said in seconds. Everyone in Ponyville was there Pip and the CMC were awed out about my wings because they didn't get to see them at the wedding. The party continued well into the night before we all left to get some sleep. Man Pinky sure knows how to plan some of the best parties, I said while I had my eyes closed. Really, I think I might try one of them if I could, a voice says. I snap my eyes open and I notice I'm lying in the floor in Faust's library. I look around and I see the white alicorn stacking some books on a shelf. Oh hey Faust, um before we begin you should know that Celestia and Luna have been bugging me about you for the past three months. They've been asking me if they could see you, I said as I stood and walked over to Faust. I wish I could see them too, really I'd give anything to be out there with them right now, but I can't, Faust said in a sad tone. Why, you're not dead, otherwise you'd be a silhouette like the knights, that much I know. So what's keeping you here? I said folding my arms. Well basically I'm acting as a seal to stop a darkness from spreading over the land. This darkness is the same thing that caused me to call the knights here. The same darkness which controls the demons, the same darkness that possessed two of my daughters. His name is Heartless the Demon King, Faust said with fury. Heartless huh, so basically he's the one that the knights stopped all those years ago and the one the demons are responding to as well, I said. Yes and since you killed the elite who was hiding in Chrysalis, you just made a very powerful enemy. 
He's the one responsible for all the evil in this land at the moment, Faust warned. I'm not scared of him. So what you're saying is, all I have to do is kill this guy, I said in a sure tone. I'm afraid it's not that simple, you see the only way to kill him is if he kills himself, Faust said. Well that just makes things harder for me, no big deal, I said, still in a sure tone. I hope you're right because he's getting stronger. Soon he will break free and you must be ready for when it comes, Faust said. Alright now on to the main topic, I'm pretty sure you didn't summon me here to tell me about why you're here. Is it about your other daughter? I asked. Yes, it took me a while but I found her. She's up north in the frozen plains in a cave-like system, Faust said. Alright so all I need to do is kill the demon like last time, I said. Just then I felt rage separate from my body. What do you mean you killed it, I was the one who tore out its soul, Rage said. Oh right forgot you were here, I said. Anyway, I'm sure you two are more than capable of handling this situation, Faust said. Of course, uh Faust, what's your daughter's name? I asked. Dreamcatcher, but the name you know her by is Nightmare Moon, Faust said. Wait, Nightmare Moon, but I thought she was an emotion made by Luna not an actual being, and if she is a living being, how could a demon possess her, then possess Luna? One more thing, this demon killed the five knights, I said in shock. When Nightmare Moon came to the castle in the Everfree, it gave Luna the idea of combining their powers to destroy Celestia. Getting Luna to agree and the demon made Luna a part of Nightmare Moon, but now that she's been separated she will be weak. And don't forget you have rage here and you can separate the demon from Dreamcatcher and kill this demon as well, Faust said. Alright, I will need to let Celestia know of this, so there is no incident if I go missing, I said. Faust was about to say something but suddenly the room filled with water. I awoke to the feeling of ice-cold water on my body. I looked around and I saw Twilight standing next to me giggling with an empty bucket next to her. I put two and two together and stared at Twilight in annoyance. What the heck was that for TWI? I asked wiping the water off my face. I wanted payback or the prank you pulled on me three months ago. And I couldn't help myself when I saw you were still sleeping, Twilight said placing the bucket down on the floor. But I made it up to you by showing you that spot in the Everfree, I said with a little anger. True, but I still wanted to prank you back, she said with a smile. Well now you can make it up to me by changing the sheets, and no asking Spike for help. Also thanks to your prank you interrupted my talk with Faust, I said as I climbed out of bed and grabbed a change of clothes. The last part knocked the smile right off of Twilight's face. She looked like someone had just slapped her in the face. Wait, you spoke with Faust again, what did she say? Twilight asked looking at me in giddiness. I'm not telling you a thing until I get back, understand? Because you interrupted Faust and I, you also could have just destroyed Faust's library, I said as I walked to the bathroom. Gasp oh no oh no I, I didn't mean to I, I Twilight said in panic. Calm down Twilight, Faust is a mighty alicorn, I'm sure she placed a charm on her books to stop them from getting destroyed. And I believe she'll forgive you if she knows it was an accident, I said calming down somewhat. Okay uh, should I get started on the bed? Twilight asked with a still shaky tone. Not right now because I'm having a shower, but later on when you have time okay. Also can you tell the others I've got a mission for Faust to complete and I will be leaving soon? I asked. Sure thing, Twilight said before she left. I walked out of my room wearing my armor and weapons. I walked down the stairs where I saw the girls along with Gilda, Spike Pierce, Comet and Caramel sitting down waiting to say goodbye. Twilight told me Mac Thunderlane and Soren were busy and wouldn't be able to say goodbye but all wished me luck. I gave them all a goodbye before Spike handed me an apple for the road. I walked outside and extended my wings and flew off to Canterlot. I arrived at Canterlot and I immediately walked into Cadence and asked her to take me to Celestia. She led me towards her study, inside I saw Celestia talking with Luna but she stopped when I arrived. Hello Ash, are you here to pay us a visit because you missed us already? Celestia said with a chuckle. Actually it's more serious than that, I said. How so? Is it the reason why you're dressed in your armor? Cadence asked. Yeah, I had a visit from Faust last night, I said causing all three alicorns to go wide-eyed at me. Well what did she say? Luna asked with eagerness. She asked me to free your last sister and aunt from a demon. She's somewhere up north in the frozen plains, in a cave system, probably a mine, I said. There's only one mine up that far, it's been abandoned for a while though. It's the perfect place to hide, Celestia said. So what are you waiting for? Go help her, Cadence said. There's also something I need to tell you. The alicorn I'm going after is Nightmare Moon, I said causing the princesses to stare at me in shock and give off worried looks. Then I'm coming too, Luna said. Sister, Celestia said. No Tia, this is a fight I should have fought long ago. Now I shall have vengeance on the creature that is not only the cause of my thousand year imprisonment but the deaths of our beloved human friends, also the one who took away one of our sisters, Luna said. Good enough reason for her to join in my opinion, Rage said as he separated from me surprising everyone in the room he was in his casual clothes and gave everyone in the room a good look at his appearance. Burning Rage I presume, Celestia said looking him over. Princess Celestia an honor to finally make your acquaintance, Rage said with a bow. You just had to pick now of all times to separate from me, didn't you? I said looking at Rage. Hey, if I'm going to earn trust around here then I need to start presenting myself to ponies, especially the princesses, Rage said. Fair point, I guess. So our team is Luna, Rage and I, I said. Good luck to you all. Bring our sister home and burn the demon, Celestia said. It will be our pleasure your majesty, Rage said as he bowed again before he entered my body again. The trip was short thanks to Luna's teleportation. It was icy cold and we stood outside the entrance to the caves. It's here, I smell it, Rage said as he appeared once again wearing his armor. Well what are we doing out here? Let's get inside and kill this monstrosity, Luna said, her horn charged up and in a flash she was dressed in her own armor. It was black and silver with a silver crescent moon on the center of the chest piece and a midnight blue saber was sheathed on her hip, also with a silver crescent moon on the hilt. Now that we're all ready, let's go, I said unsheathing my blade and shield. We walked inside into S pitch black interior. All three of us summoned a light source, Rage used his burning hand, Luna used magic to light her horn and I summoned an orb of light. 
We walked down the hallways and it was freezing cold. We walked in further and soon we saw hundreds of bugs crawling across the floor, but it didn't stop us, we simply walked over them later blood slowly started to seep through the walls. If the darkness wasn't enough of a clue, are the bugs then the blood is. The demon is trying to scare us, Rage said in an amused tone. Indeed, perhaps it knows it has been beat, Luna added with a scoff. And this probably means it'll try to pick us off one by one. So stay together, we don't know what's ahead of us and the demon will probably use our greatest fears against us, I said with caution. The others nodded in union just as boulders started falling from the ceiling. Cave in, move, I yelled as I ran forwards and jumped to safety. I stood up and looked around, the boulders completely cut off my way out except for a small hole at the top too narrow to fit through. Luna, Rage, you two all right. I called out when I noticed that they weren't on my side of the cave. We're fine, but so much for not splitting up, Luna said. Hang on, we'll blast these boulders out of the way, Rage said. Hang on, Rage, if you do that you might bring the whole place down on us, I said. What about teleportation? Luna asked. I charged magic into my hand but the teleportation spell fizzled out. No good, the demon was smarter than we thought. I can't use teleportation here, I said. All right, we'll try to find another way round, Rage said. What about your time limit? When do you need to return to my body? I asked. I can stay outside of you for a day tops you should know that, I'll be fine, you need to be worried about what's down that way, Rage advised. Okay, just try not to split up anymore then. We'd have remembered the old saying divide and conquer, it's what it's trying to do, divide us then eliminate us, I said. Good luck down there Ash, we'll meet up again soon and if you meet our foe, be wary of it, Luna warned. Right, stay safe you too, I said before I went deeper into the mine. I walked down the dark passageways for what felt like hours with no sign of life I kept on walking until I heard hoof steps behind me. When I turned around nothing was there so I continued a while later I heard it again only louder but once more when I turned around nothing there after a third time I got over it. Who's down there? I called out into the dark only to receive no response. I turned around to continue on my way but when I turned my head I was met with a pair of cyan slitted eyes and a smile made of long sharp teeth. I jumped backwards and got into a fighting stance and sent a ball of light at the face. The face's body came into the light and I saw it was Nightmare Moon in all her terrifying glory wearing her armor like before. Company how nice it's been so long since my last visitor and a human nonetheless, Nightmare said keeping he smile plastered to her face. I doubt you even remember me, I said waiting for her to make a move. Should I, Nightmare said. I was the one who gave you that, I said pointing to the bite mark that was still on her arm when I bit her. Oh the little wolf who challenged me in my old home tell me are you here to finish me off? Nightmare asked in a taunting tone. Actually I'm here for the demon that's controlling you, Dreamcatcher, I said. Dreamcatcher doesn't live here anymore and there is no demon inside of me. Even if there was I'd be in control of it not the other way round, Nightmare said. Tell that to the last pony who said that to me, before I proved them wrong, I said then I charged at her and slammed my shield into her. But it only went through her. A hologram, I said to the fake Nightmare Moon before she disappeared and I sheathed my weapons. Right you are little hero if you dare come and find the real me I'll be waiting, Nightmare said with an evil laugh that echoed through the cave. I ran after the voice finding more holograms along the way to Nightmare Moon, but they kept on disappearing before I could reach them. Nightmare's shadow kept taunting me and laughing at me as it ran along the walls. I kept running, ignoring the voices and the holograms until I reached a large circular room. The roof was dazzling with sparkling crystals that made it look like the stars in the night sky. The ground was different though, it was covered in what I thought was water. But when I crouched down and placed my hand in the water, it came out red. I knew by the way it stuck to my hand it was blood. In the center was Nightmare Moon with her back towards me, knee deep in the lake of blood. I stepped into the blood and I sank to my knees as well. The ripples spread out and away from me towards the center of the room. Nightmare must have felt the disturbance because she twitched when the ripples reached her. Congratulations you found me, Nightmare said as she turned around to face me, still with an evil smile on her face. There are two ways I can extract the demon from you Dreamcatcher, one is peacefully the other is by force, don't make me use the latter. Like I said, Dreamcatcher doesn't live here anymore. Besides, your talents are wasted on Celestia. Why don't you join me instead? I can give you more power than you can possibly dream of anything you wish, Nightmare said as she walked towards me swaying her hips and tail with each step. Like hell, I'd sooner die than join you demon, I said drawing my blade and shield. Oh I hate it when negotiations go south. Well since you refuse to join then this place shall become your tomb, Nightmare said as she summoned the spear she used back at the Everfree Castle and a circular shield with a crescent moon on it. I charged at Nightmare Moon but it wasn't the easiest thing to do because the knee-high blood reduced my speed, while Nightmare did the same. She made a thrust with her spear at my chest but I simply knocked her attack away with my shield. I swiped my sword at her and a gust of wind came from my sword and sent Nightmare into the far wall. I was taken aback by the technique and looked at my sword in wonder but shrugged it off. I extended my wings and flew into the air but Nightmare was quick to get back up. Once she saw my wings she gave me a sly smile. She fired some beams at me but I dodged and weaved my way through the spells. I dodged the last spell and Nightmare had flown up towards me, she swiped her spear at me trying to impale me on one of the two spikes on her spear. I raised my shield and brought my sword into a downward facing block, the spear hit my shield and her shield pushed against my sword, she continued to push against me and I was pushed backwards and hit the roof while she still pushed against me. It's a shame you decided to go against me, I would have loved to feel those nice strong wings of yours around me, Nightmare Moon said as her forked tongue slipped out her mouth and under my helmet and tasted the side of my face. Delicious, Nightmare said when her tongue slipped back into her mouth. All of a sudden, I saw out of the corner of my eye, a presence enter the room. I turned my head to look at it and I saw it was both Rage and Luna. Luna looked up at us and when she saw Nightmare, she shot her an angry glare and drew her saber, but when Nightmare saw Luna she let out a large smile. Well, 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 if it isn't little Luna and also another human come to join our little party. I'll be with you in a sec, once I finish off with your boyfriend Luna, Nightmare Moon said. Luna extended her wings and flew up at Nightmare but Nightmare just used her magic to create a barrier between us. 
Now be a good little alicorn and watch the show, Nightmare taunted while Luna tried to cut the shield with her sword. I took this as a chance of opportunity. I put my feet on the roof behind me and used all my strength and pushed off the roof. Nightmare Moon was surprised by the sudden movement, she failed to stop herself so we splash landed into the blood below. I stood up and picked up Nightmare and sheathed my sword before I charged magic into my right hand to ready the spell that I used on Chrysalis. But before I could, Nightmare Moon hit me square in my chest with a spell that sent me flying into the center of the room. I landed in the blood with a tremendous splash but before I could recover, Nightmare stood over me. I looked up at her only for Nightmare to stab her spear into my neck, Luna let out a short scream when the blade pierced my neck but Nightmare smiled her victory, but the smile faded when the body turned to smoke. What? Nightmare screamed. All of a sudden I jumped up out of the blood behind Nightmare and wrapped my left arm around her neck. Wrong Night Moony, I said before I tapped the side of her head with my magic charged right hand. The spell worked instantly and Nightmare's body went limp. I caught her before she could fall into the blood. She started spewing out black liquid like chrysalis. Once she finished I flew over towards Luna and Rage and placed Nightmare down next to them. She'll be out for a while, I said before I turned back towards the spot of black in the sea of red. The spot grew and grew before an armored hand burst out of it, along with the rest of the body. The demon was heavily armored, except for his head. He also had a sword and sharp teeth with black soulless eyes and large webbed wings. The expression on his face said he was really pissed with me. Quote exclamation mark. Edot emit the demon roared. I drew my sword and shield and got ready to attack but I saw something move past my leg. I looked down at the blood only to see an eel with a human shaped skull as a head wrap its body around my neck and scream in my face. Its grip tightened around my neck making it hard to breath. I tried to pull it off but more eels latched onto my limbs and dragged me into the blood. Once I was under the blood, the eels pulled my limbs in different directions to stop me from moving. I started to lose consciousness but before I did, a blade cut the eel around my neck in two. Then another cut, another eel wrapped around my right arm and then again on the rest on my body. When the last one was cut something grabbed the back of my armor and pulled me upwards. Once I was above the blood I took a sharp inhale of breath and looked at my savior or in this case savior's rage stood next to me with his blades drawn while Luna pulled me up. Why do you always have to start the party without me, rage said helping me up. If you weren't so slow you'd get to fight more, I said gasping and with a cocky grin as I looked at our opponent. So how do we do this? Luna asked. Kill it grab the soul and then you devour it, I said pointing at rage. I like it simple, easy to remember, rage said as he raised his swords. The demon let out a cry before he brought the sword above his head and he swung it down at us created a large splash the force created a trench in the blood that speed towards us causing us to doge to the sides. I got to my feet and I saw more eels swimming towards me, as they leapt at me I used my sword and split them in two. I then looked at the others and I saw Luna had killed her eels but Rage had one of the eels around his neck. I extended my wings and I flicked a feather at it. The feather hit its mark and the eel fell into the blood dead. Rage nodded at me and thanks before he flew into the air and dive bombed at the demon and slashed his swords at the demon's chest. But the armor held. He looped around and went for his head, but the demon used his powers and swatted him away like a bug. Rage landed in a wall and was busy collecting himself when Luna flew at the demon to try her luck but she was also knocked into the lake of blood near Rage. I saw the demon turn towards them and prepared to strike. I flew at it and used the wind blade technique I used on Nightmare and knocked the demon into the wall. The demon let out a roar of pain and fury before he tried to push at the wall but his left arm was stuck in it and tried to pull free he swung his sword at me. The sword let out a shockwave I leaned as far backwards as I could go it looked like I was lying on an invisible surface the shockwave just missed me and impacted the wall making rocks and dust fly everywhere. I used my wings to stand up the demon had its back facing towards me and was trying to get his arm unstuck I saw the joints holding his amur together I flew over to Rage and Luna to check if they were okay. You two alright? I asked as I saw them stand up. Fine, bastard got me by surprise that's all, Rage said as he fixed himself up. What do we do now? Luna asked. I've got a plan, the joints holding his armor in place are on his back, so Rage I need you to keep it distracted, I said. Got it, Rage said. Luna wants Rage ah his attention I need you to stun him somehow, I said. I understand, Luna said. Once he's stunned Rage cut the joints on his armor and garb his soul and if you fall I'll step and got it, I said. Right, Luna and Rage replied in union. Rage took off and flew at the demon. The demon managed to free his arm from the wall and when he saw Rage approach him he fired a barrage of spells at him. But Rage either blocked the spells or dodged them when Rage reached him they entered a full-on battle of the blades. Luna waited for the perfect opportunity to strike when the demon was facing away from her, she charged her horn full of magic and fired a blast at him. The demon saw the spell flying at him and dodged towards the left out of the spell's path but the spell impacted Rage and he froze up the demon saw this and was about to deliver the killing blow. But before the demon raised his sword I flew behind the, the demon's back and cut the strings holding the armor together and flew Rage to safety. I placed Rage on the ground and turned back towards the demon. I raised my sword and pointed it at the demon while I sheathed my shield onto my back. The demon raised his sword and pointed it at me as well. We stared at each other for a few minutes before we ran at each other. When we were a meter apart we slowed down to a walk and passed each other. We walked a few meters before I twirled my blade around and slowly began to sheath it. Say hello to your fellow demons for me when you see them, I said as I sheathed the rest of my sword. Just then the demon let out a roar of fury before it split in two in a blooded mess and the two pieces collapsed to the floor and began to disintegrate leaving behind the soul that floated above the blood and the blood that covered the ground turned into water. I walked over to both a surprised Luna and a now standing rage and picked up the soul as I walked. Luna was beside the still unconscious dream catcher. Her fur was deep purple but instead of armor she wore a blue dress with a picture of a dream catcher on it. Her hair was the same color as before but it had no longer billowing but it still twinkled slightly and her teeth also lost their sharpness and returned to their normal form. How's she doing? I asked. Fine, she's just unconscious. That was spectacular ash and rage, you truly are great warriors the both of you. But if I may ask what is that foul thing? Luna asked looking at the demon soul. A demon soul, I said as I tossed it to rage which he caught he then removed his helmet and dropped the soul into his mouth and swallowed it whole like last time. 
Wow, that taste makes me forget the pain I felt, Rage said licking his lips. You eat demon souls, Luna said in shock. Well yeah, strange to you but tasty for me but I do eat normal food it's just demon souls are like a rare treat for me, Rage said patting his stomach before he disappeared into my body again. Well that was interesting, Luna said. Yeah but the souls helped me gain more power. Anyway, enough about that, what say we get Dreamcatcher back to Ponyville, I said. Ponyville, why there? Luna asked. Something tells me we need to go there, I said. Luna teleported us all to Ponyville Library, we were in the main room when we arrived. I placed Dreamcatcher on the couch and looked around. Spike, Twilight, Dust, Olicious, I'm back, I called out but the only response was a squawk. Dust flew down the stairs and landed on his perch in the room because of my blood-soaked armor. Hey Dust, do you know where Twilight and Spike are? I asked, Dust only pointed to the door with his wing. Thanks. Luna, care to follow me? I asked. Of course, but what about Dreamcatcher? Luna asked. It took Chrysalis two days to wake up, so I'm sure we have plenty of time, I said. I see, well let's go find the bearers and your friends and then tell Tia of our adventures, Luna said in a triumphant tone. Fine idea, I said as I walked to the door. Um Ash, I forgot to ask, but your sword does it have a name? Luna asked. A name, why? And also odd time to ask, I repeated. I know it's just my saber's name is Moon Glow. Rage's blades are fury and hate and I just wanted to know if yours had one as well, Luna said. When did Rage tell you that? I asked. While we were separated in the mine, he's a little annoying but not that bad, Luna said. Okay, well for my sword's name how about Whispering Wind, I suggested. Huzzit is a most glorious name, Luna said in her old tone of speak. I smiled and opened the door and when I looked outside, I saw the main six and Gilda along with Spike and the boys and behind them all, to my shock and surprise was Discord. Immediately my instincts kicked in, I extended my wings and lunged at Discord knocking everyone in my path to the ground. I landed on top of Discord and extended my hidden blade. What are you doing here Discord? I asked in a menacing tone. Ash wait Discord's with us, Max said grabbing my arm. What, have you all lost it or something? I asked looking at them in disbelief. He's been reformed, Fluttershy said recovering from being knocked over. Wait, him, reformed? I asked. Celestia asked to reform him after you left, Twilight said as she stood. I climbed off of Discord and pulled him up and looked him over. Wish Celestia told me that before I acted like an idiot, I said walking away from him. What's going on out there? Luna asked walking outside. When she saw Discord she shot him a glare and charged her horn. Take it easy Lulu, as explained I've been reformed by my new friends here, Discord said wrapping his arms around my friends causing Luna to dispel her magic. You know I only allow Tia to call me that, Luna said in an annoyed tone. You know something Ash, some of the things you've done sent goosebumps all over my body fighting demons rescuing Chrysalis. And to top it off you saw my mother is just wonderful to hear, Discord said about to wrap me in a hug. Don't even think about hugging me yet because we ain't on friendly terms yet and how did you know about all that? I asked causing him to drop his arms. Just because I've been turned to stone it doesn't mean I can't hear what's going on around me also. The first time we met, if I knew you were a human I would have surrendered to you immediately, Discord said. Why is that? I asked. Because you humans are impossible to get rid of, no matter what I do, the chaos your species creates from day to day would leave me completely satisfied, Discord said with a crazy smile. We're basically designed to survive whatever's been thrown at us, I said folding my arms. Just then there was a flash of light and in its place stood Celestia, Cadence, Chrysalis and Shining Armor. Well if it isn't my other sisters and niece, Discord said wrapping Celestia, Chrysalis in a hug and Cadence in a hug. Wait you remember me Discord, Chrysalis said. Well I was surprised that I had another sister when Ash here told you two and gave you back your memories, Discord said releasing the alicorns and pointing to Celestia and Luna. Perhaps this may help, I said as I summoned another orb of memories and placed it in Discord's head. Oh how could I have forgotten about Dreamcatcher, where is Dreamcatcher anyway? Discord asked looking around. Better follow me, I said walking inside the library. I walked inside and I saw Dreamcatcher sitting upright on the couch. You're up sooner than I expected, I said walking over to the black alicorn. Who are you? Where am I? Dreamcatcher asked. Dreamcatcher, I'm glad to see you're alright, Discord said wrapping Dreamcatcher in a bone-crushing hug. Discord let me go, need air, Dreamcatcher wheezed. I separated the two and helped Dreamcatcher sit back down and summoned some water for her, just as the others entered. Dreamcatcher, Chrysalis, Celestia and Luna said in union, kneeling beside Dreamcatcher and crying a bit. Chrysalis, Celestia, Luna it's such a relief to see you, Dreamcatcher said hugging all four siblings with a few tears. Hello Auntie Dreamcatcher, Cadence said shyly. Who are you? Dreamcatcher asked. I'm Cadence, you don't know me because you were possessed before I was born and this is my husband, Shining Armor, whom I recently married, Cadence said as she and Shining stepped closer. Well it's nice to finally meet you my dear, and you Shining Armor, husband to my recently discovered niece, Dreamcatcher said as she stood up and hugged them both. I'd also like you to meet my sister-in-law, Twilight Sparkle, Cadence said gesturing towards Twilight and the others. Oh I remember you six from the Everfree Castle when you used the elements on me, Dreamcatcher said looking at the main six. Use the elements on you, but that means you were Nightmare Noon, Twilight said in shock. Unfortunately yes I was thanks to that foul demon. It is a mistake that shall haunt me forever, Dreamcatcher said sadly. I'm sorry Dreamcatcher, but everything's alright now you're home now. And I believe the time has come to return your title as the Princess of Dreams, Celestia said. Ash, how could you go against another demon without us to back you up? You know that Nightmare Moon killed the Knights of Equestria, Rainbow yelled. I didn't go alone road, I had Rage and Luna with me. Besides, Nightmare Moon won against the Knights because there were two alicorns and one demon against them. They tried but failed to separate her from them but they needed the elements to separate one of the alicorns so the other could be separated from the demon, but thanks to you guys it worked, I said as I removed my helmet. So you separated me from the demon, Dreamcatcher said. That's correct, how are you feeling anyway? I asked. Glad to be free from that monster and it's nice to finally know the face of my savior, I am eternally in your debt, Dreamcatcher said as she bowed. 
We all are, Celestia said as she and the other princesses and Discord bowed to me. My friends stared at me stunned at what was happening and decided to bow themselves. Please, all of you, I do not deserve to be bowed to, a simple thank you will do, I said as everyone rose. You are quite modest Ash and I'm sure everyone will agree that's one thing we all love about you, Celestia said with a chuckle. True that, Comet said slapping me on the back but when he pulled his hand away he noticed that it was covered in blood. Ash what the hell have you been up to? Comet asked in shock. Sorry, didn't have time to clean myself off so I'm still covered in blood, I said handing Comet a clean cloth to wipe his hand with. Everyone looked at me and finally noticed the blood. Damn, must have been one hell of a fight Gilda said in an impressed tone and a smirk. Darling, you could have at least stayed clean when you fight such creatures, Rarity said. You try keeping clean when you have to fight in a lake of blood that goes up to your knees. And fighting a demon who is trying to kill you it's a lot harder than it looks, Rage said as he stepped out of my body again. When Rage stepped out of my body in his normal clothes giving everyone a good look at him, everyone moved away from him in surprise except me, Luna, Celestia and Cadence. Rage then took a seat on a chair and looked at the group staring at him. Burning Rage, Twilight asked nervously. The one and only, Rage replied. Everyone I'd like you to meet Burning Rage, Rage I'm sure you know everyone and now that everyponies met each other, I'm going to take a shower to clean myself off, I said as I walked towards the staircase. Oh Ash, wait, I want to talk to you about this, Twilight said as she summoned a gym bag and reached inside of it and pulled out a folded side with a diamond handle and a black obsidian blade causing the main six to gasp in surprise and Rainbow's jaw to hit the ground and the stallions to look at me in worry. This ought to be good, Discord said on a flouting couch munching on a bag of popcorn. You said it, Rage said sitting beside Discord eating some as well. Author's Notes Sorry it took me so long school has been a pain but I hope this chapter is to every pony's liking. Chapter 12 You're here for a reason and a day out with Luna. TWI I'm going to ask you this as calmly as possible, what the hell were you going through my stuff for? I yelled at Twilight, we were standing in the library along with Celestia, Luna, Chrysalis, Dreamcatcher, Discord, Shining Armor, Cadence, Rage and the rest of the main six plus my stallion friends, Gilda, Spike and Dust. When I was changing the sheets from the prank I pulled this morning I walked into your closet to find some sheets for the bed. But this bag was in the way, I had no intention of going through it so I moved it to the side so I could grab the sheets. But as I did I accidentally knocked the bag over. When it landed on the ground I heard a loud noise come from it. So, I opened it to see if anything was broken and I found these, Twilight said holding up one of my sides that was in the gym bag which Twilight held in her other hand. Okay, I guess I can't be angry at you for that, I said pinching the bridge of my nose as I made a mental note to hide such objects better in future. Now, explain to me why you have the same armor and weapons as the rogue fighter in the Griffin Kingdom Coliseum, Twilight said with a stern stare. I only responded by using my magic to lift a silver ring out of the bag and attaching it to my finger. The ring gave off a slight glow before my skin grew black fur and my hair turned into a long black mane. My face grew a muzzle and my eyes grew larger and turned blue and my ears turned into pony ears and appeared at the top of my head. Because he and I are the same guy, Twilight, I said in my disguised voice, causing the girls to look at me in shock. The guys, except Shining, looked at the ground but Gilda was completely shocked. You're the rouge that killed 50 of the best fighters from four kingdoms along with the undefeated sand demon, Gilda said with a still shocked expression. Does this affect our friendship? Because I killed some of your species. I asked with a slight sadness in my voice. No, because you did it to get back your friends. Which for me, you get a lot of respect. You must have some serious balls to do something so crazy, Gilda said with a small smile which made me smile. Ash why the hell didn't you tell us it was you, Rainbow said with an angry glare. How exactly would you have reacted if I told you Road, I said as I removed the ring from my finger dropping my disguise. Exactly how I reacted when you killed all those demons at the wedding, Rainbow huffed. That was different Rainbow Dash, I said. Oh yeah, how so, Rainbow said placing her hands on her hips. Because demons don't have any emotions and will do anything to satisfy their lust for power and control and feed their bloodlust. They don't even have any families, nothing to hold them back from annihilating an entire species. Whereas, for the gladiators in the arena, they felt more emotion than that, happiness, sadness and love for others. They had families to return to and lives to live and I slaughtered them all. Think of every single wife I made a widow that day, every child who will grow up without a father, all because of me. I did that to save you six and in the end even you saw me as nothing but a monster when I opened that cage door to free you. And don't even bother lying road, I saw how scared you were, I said as I collapsed onto the stairs and buried my face into my hands. Silence overtook the room, the only sounds were the voices from outside. Everyone looked at me not sure what to say. Luna walked up to me and sat on the stairs next to me and pulled me into a sidewards hug. Why didn't you tell us about your problems? Luna asked. Didn't know what to say really and it was a burden I had to bear. Once your hands are tainted with blood it can't be removed, the blood may have disappeared from you but it's still there, I said. How did you get this all done on your own sugar cube? Applejack asked. Ash wasn't alone on this, all seven of us knew what was happening. When Ash told us we knew what we were getting ourselves into, and we continued anyway, Comet said causing everyone to look at the seven stallions in wonder. The main six just stared in shock. Who else knew? Twilight asked. Just us three, Celestia said as she and Shining walked over to Luna and I. Why didn't any of you say anything? Twilight asked. We thought it best if we left it for Ash to tell you to leave. But I didn't expect taking a life would be so hard in the end, Shining said patting my shoulder. Oh please, you guys are just soft. I don't let stuff like that bother me when I kill, Rage said with a gagging noise. Gee, way to make the situation better, I said standing up and giving Rage a death glare. Ash, I just want to know, was killing really worth it to save us? Rarity asked. Rarity, you girls Celestia and Luna were the only ones that took me in when everyone else would have turned me away, you are basically one of the only things that keep me going, I said earning a small smile from the girls. Well I guess that's a good reason to do what you did, even though it was gruesome. But, in a strange way that was kind of awesome, Rainbow said as she flew over to me and punched my right shoulder. So does this mean we're still friends? I asked. My response was all six girls wrapping me into a hug. 
Soon everyone joined in the hug all except Rage who enjoyed the view from the floating couch. Thanks guys, I'm really lucky to have friends like you, I said as I separated from the group. I think we're the lucky ones to have someone who would go to Tartarus and back to save us, Twilight said. After I separated from the group hug, I grabbed my gym bag and turned around and climbed the stairs to go clean off the blood that was still clinging to my armor. Rage disappeared back into my body. I awoke the next morning to Celestia's sun stinging my eyes. I swear you're doing that on purpose Celestia, I said as I rolled over away from the light only to be blinded by the mirror's reflection of the sun. Admitting defeat, I got out of bed and gave an angry glare towards Canterlot where I was sure Celestia was giving me a cheeky smile. I had a shower and got changed into some blue jeans and an aqua-colored t-shirt and some black boots and my gray hooded jacket and I met Twilight and Spike at breakfast. Twilight asked how I was feeling after yesterday, which I responded to with a smile. Spike told me that Dreamcatcher was fitting in nicely at Canterlot and she would like to see me some time to talk. I was glad Dreamcatcher was adapting to her life in Equestria so far. After breakfast I cleaned the dishes and walked out of the library and into the sunshine. I was still ticked at both Celestia and the sun for waking me up so early, but just walked through Ponyville like normal. There were a few not too pleasant faces but I didn't let it bother me because of the waves I received from others. Just then I heard a commotion coming from an alley. Why can't you do anything right you cross-eyed freak with wings, I heard a voice say. No one wants you here, another said. Go jump off a cloud and die, another said. I walked towards the alley and looked inside to see three Pegasus stallions, one had dark gray fur with a pale mane and tail with a black leather coat and orange t-shirt with a dumbbell printed on it and brown pants. The other had blue fur and a black mane and tail and was wearing a black shirt and shorts with white trim and a football on the shirt. The third and final stallion had amber-colored fur and a dark brown mane and tail, he was wearing a white polo shirt with three basketballs on it and green pants. They were standing over a young gray pegasus with a blonde mane and tail who was wearing male mare clothing and she had gold eyes but one eye looked upward and the other looked downward and both eyes were filled with tears. I realized it was Derpy Ponyville's male mare and when I saw her crying I was about to intervene, but she flew off with tears in her eyes. I extended my wings and flew after her but she was flying at speeds that would make Rainbow Dash proud. Derpy flew higher and higher and I was just able to keep her in my sight. We were higher than Full Mountain when Derpy decided to just drop out of the sky, she zoomed past me so I tilted my wings forward and curved into a swan dive. I flapped my wings hard and fast but Derpy was falling like someone had tied a mountain to her, we were nearing the ground and she wasn't slowing down, if anything she was speeding up. Realizing what she was doing I put everything into my wings and got faster and faster, a cone formed around me and sparks lit up around me. Then I did the something that only Rainbow Dash could do, I pulled off a sonic rainboom. But, instead of a rainbow circle of fire it was grey which turned black and got brighter, then turning back to grey and a black and grey streak formed in my wake. I caught up to Derpy and grabbed a hold of her, she tried to struggle out of my grip and I saw the ground coming close up, so I tilted my wings and pulled away from the ground, only to almost collide with a house. I tilted sideways to avoid the house but lost control. I wrapped my wings around Derpy and I curved my back and braced for impact. We hit the ground and I formed a trench. Ponies rushed over to the landing site but the main six and stallions, Spike and Gilda were ahead of everyone. They looked inside the trench and saw something large feathered and leathered inside of it the thing began to unravel and inside everyone saw me hugging a still crying Derpy hooves. Ash Derpy, are you okay? Fluttershy asked as she flew down to us. I think I might have pulled my shoulder out of my socket in the impact but I'll lie, I said as I stood and helped up Derpy. Ash what's going on? Twilight asked. I'll explain all I can once we're in the library, because I don't know a lot myself, I said as I helped Derpy out of the trench giving me a view of the damage. The trench was fairly deep and small patches of black flames flickered around it. We walked inside the library which wasn't far away, because the crash site was next to it. Rainbow and Fluttershy helped Derpy sit on the couch while Mac helped me by pinning me down on the ground and Twilight used her magic to push my shoulder back into place. Once she did I let out a cry of pain that lasted a minute and almost threw Mac off of me. Thanks, I said as I stood and looked at both Mac and Twilight. No problem, now tell us what the heck is going on, because after you left the others came over to ask what we could do today. But, we hear a loud boom and after we went outside to investigate we saw you impact into the ground, Twilight said. It's because I was trying to kill myself, Derpy replied causing everyone to snap their heads in her direction in shock. Forgive me for asking darling, but why? Rarity asked sitting next to the cross-eyed Pegasus. Because I'm a freak and you all know it. I'm a useless nobody and no one likes me and nobody wants to be my friend. The world would be better off if I didn't exist, Derpy said. I got off the couch and walked up to the Pegasus and stopped in front of her. Everyone stepped away from Derpy and I and waited for what would happen next. I raised my right hand and slapped Derpy across the face causing everyone to stare at me in shock and horror. I grimaced in pain because of my recently healed injury, but hit it well. Ash what the hell did you do that for? Soren yelled at me in outrage but what I said next took everyone by surprise. Don't you fucking ever say that again, Derpy hooves, I said causing Derpy to look back at me with a red cheek and tears in her eyes. I kneeled on the ground in front of her and wiped away the tears in her eyes and used my magic to heal her cheek. Derpy, you are an amazing mare and you know it. If anyone's the freak here it's me, I'm not even a pony like you. I'm a creature in a world that I don't fit in with. If nobody cared about you Derpy, then why do you have the wonderful Dr. Hooves as your husband and your beautiful daughter Dinky? Derpy, if you killed yourself today, imagine how they would feel if they lost you, it would be hard on both of them. And if you think yourself is worthless, then why would I save you and why are you here? You wouldn't be here if your life didn't serve a purpose. You also have me as a friend to help you when times are tough and I always will be your friend, I said wrapping both my wings and arms around Derpy in a warm embrace. I released Derpy from my embrace and looked into her eyes, she raised her hand and slapped me across my face. You're no freak either Ash, Derpy said with a smile. And you don't only have Ash for a friend Derpy, you also have me, Dash said wrapping Derpy in a hug. I gave her a nod before I turned towards Pinky. Hey Pinky, can you get Derpy here a muffin please, I asked. Yepers, any in particular? Pinky asked pulling a notepad and pencil out of her mane. I never knew how she did that but like the girls keep telling me, it's just Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie. 
Just a blueberry muffin please, Derpy said sniffling a bit and wiping the tears from her eyes. Pinky disappeared out the door and reappeared just as quickly with a blueberry muffin in hand she gave it to Derpy who ate it with delight. Derpy, what caused you to want to commit suicide? Thunder asked. It was Dumbbell, Hoops and Score, they were making fun of me and said I should die and spare everyone, Derpy said gaining a fiery look from Thunderlane, Fluttershy and Dash. Those three, Dash said through gritted teeth. You know them, I asked. Yeah they used to pick on both Flutters and I, Rainbow said. Me as well, Thunder said. Well anyway, when I see them I'm going to give them a piece of my mind, I said as I stood. Thank you all for being so kind to me, but I should be going. There's a tone of letters to deliver, Derpy said. Okay Derpy, swing by if you want to talk again, I said giving Derpy another hug. I'll be sure to do that and thank you all for your kindness, Derpy said as she left. You know Ash, I don't think you needed to slap her, Caramel said. Probably right, but she slapped me back if that helps the case and I slapped her out of love, I defended. Fair point, Caramel replied. Just then a flash appeared in the room. After it disappeared Princess Celestia and Luna stood in the center of the library. Each one of us kneeled towards the princesses of both the sun and moon. Please rise every pony, there is no reason to bow like this, we're all friends, Celestia said. We all stood up and Twilight asked the question that was on everyone's mind. It's good to see you Princess Celestia and Princess Luna, but why are you here? Twilight asked. We were up in Canterlot when we heard a large booming sound come from Ponyville. We also saw a black and gray ring of fire cover the sky along with a shockwave that shattered a few windows in houses closest to Ponyville, Luna said. That sounds a lot like a sonic rain boom. But, only Rainbow here can do that and she was with us when we heard the boom, Twilight said. Wait, hang on, are you saying there is another pony who can pull off a sonic rain boom? Only it's black and gray and the shockwave reached Canterlot. I need to find this pony and challenge them to a race, Rainbow said rubbing her hooves together in excitement. Ah, uh, that was actually me, I said with a lame chuckle and rubbing the back of my head causing the group to turn towards me and for Rainbow's and Gilda's jaws to drop. Let me get this straight, you pulled off a move that only I can do and made it reach Canterlot. Rainbow said getting up in my face. I guess so, I mean how else could I make a trench like that? I did it to save Derpy, I said. Then I challenge you to a race and also since the boom you pulled off wasn't a rainbow one like mine, you'll need to give it a new name, Rainbow said. All right then, how about Shadowboom? Because of the dark colors, I suggested. Perfect, also makes it sound cool, Rainbow said. Great, but the race will have to wait on account of my arm still being sore, I said. Fair enough, but when it's properly healed we race. It's no fun if I beat my opponent while they're injured, Rainbow said. Forgive me for prying, but did you say you saved some pony, Celestia asked with a raised eyebrow. I then took my attention off road and turned it towards Celestia. I let out a sigh and I told her everything. I do not appreciate my little ponies being slapped but I can see you did it out of love, so I will not punish you for that and you have my thanks for saving Derpy, Ash, Celestia said after I told her everything. Thank you your majesties, but I must be off to the hospital to get some painkillers for my arm, I said as I walked towards the door only to be stopped by Rarity. Ash may I suggest instead of the hospital you head to the spa, Rarity suggested gaining a few gulps from Rainbow and Applejack. What's a spa? I did not know that these three words would seal my fate. Rarity let out a scream. You've never been to a spa, Rarity said as she began to hyperventilate. Uh, afraid not, I said backing up slowly. We need to get you to a spa, stat, Rarity said. Oh it has been too long since we last visited a spa Tia, can we go please? Luna begged. I don't see why not, I'm sure Chrysalis and Dreamcatcher are more than capable of taking care of the kingdom for a bit, Celestia said gaining a fist pump from Luna. Splendid, in fact why don't you all come along, Rarity said gesturing to the group. Gilda, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash made a beeline for the door, but were grabbed by Rarity's magic and pulled back into the room. Twilight told Spike to stay behind and watch the library which he accepted with a salute. Um, small problem, there won't be any privacy if two alicorn princesses are walking around Ponyville, Pierce said. Oh we can fix that, Celestia said as her mane and tail stoke blowing in a non-existent wind and turned into a blonde color. The dress she was wearing turned into a strawberry pink t-shirt with a v-neck that revealed a fair amount of cleavage in blue jeans. Luna's dress turned into a black t-shirt and midnight blue pants and her mane also stoked blowing and twinkling and turned into a light blue along with her fur. Both their horns disappeared behind an invisibility spell giving them the appearance of two pegasi. Wow that's impressive, I can barely recognize you, but we can't call you Celestia and Luna in public, so what do we call you? I asked. Nebula and Solar Flare, Celestia said pointing to Luna and herself. With names like that it's like you want to get caught, I whispered to myself. With everyone ready we set off. Gilda, Rainbow and Applejack had annoyed expressions on their faces the whole way. We arrived at the spa and it had a sign that read Aloe and Lotus Spa and Massage and a small staircase that led up to the entrance. We walked up the stairs and entered the building. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Aloe and Lotus Blossom the owners of this fine establishment, Rarity said as we entered. Standing next to Rarity were a pair of pony twins one of the ponies had a pink coat and a light blue mane and tail. The other had a light blue coat and pink mane and tail. They each wore dresses that went to the middle of their thighs with had a white blooming flower on both. The dresses showed a good amount of cleavage just like Celestia's and Luna's dresses and they wore white headbands in the exact same place as the other. Hello Miss Rarity, I thought your weekly visit was supposed to be for tomorrow, the pink furred pony said. It was aloe, but this is a bit of an emergency. Ash here has never heard of a spa, Rarity said gaining gasps of shock from both mares. Indeed a serious emergency, but are all of you together, the light blue pony, who I assumed to be Lotus said gesturing to our group. Yes, is that a problem? Rarity asked. Well some of you will have to pair up. Five of you can have separate rooms and three of you will have to share. During the massage part of your treatment, we will place you into girl and boy groups for privacy. During the sauna because we only have one, you will all be together. We will let you sort yourselves out right now and choose your grouping so you comfortable, Lotus said. Twilight, Rarity, Comet, Thunderlane and Gilda agreed to go in separate rooms while Pinky went with Pierce. Applejack would go with Caramel. 
Big Mac would go with Fluttershy and Rainbow at first was hesitant but agreed to go with Soren. Leaving me with both of the princesses, all right, now that everyone has selected who to go with, will the stallions please step through here? While the mares step into the room next to Allo, Lotus said showing the stallions and I to the boys' change rooms. Once we were inside I saw large cubicles for changing along the wall. And opposite them were lockers to keep our items safe and an open area for those who are more comfortable about being around naked stallions. I grabbed one of the white fluffy robes folded on a bench and walked into a cubicle and got changed. Some of my friends walked into a cubicle as well while the others changed openly. I walked out wearing a robe that reached the top of my kneecaps. I placed my clothes in a locker and walked out of the change room with the others in front of me. Suddenly they all stoked in Thunderlane and Soren's wings sprang up like a jack in a box hitting me in the face through the wing slits on their robes. Watch it you two, I said to the two stallions. Both of them stepped to the side to reveal a beautiful sexy sight. The main six in Gilda were wearing white fluffy robes that also went down to the middle of their thighs but both princesses wore the same but because of their height and their impressive bust sizes I was able to see more of their legs and cleavage, also their cutie marks. Celestia had a golden sun and Luna had a black blob on her thigh and a white crescent moon. I turned away from the scene and tried to calm down my boner that was growing in my robe. Not a bad view huh, Rage said. Keep quiet, you were not supposed to think of them that way, I shouted at Rage in my head. Think of us in what way? I snapped my head in Luna's direction and saw her give me an amused smile. Rage please tell me that she just did not do that, I thought in a slightly nervous tone. Sorry dude but that was her, Rage said. I pray she can't see my memories, I thought. They'll need physical contact for that but I wouldn't go into others' memories without permission, that's just rude, Luna thought. Yeah so is this, I thought. What are you two talking about? Celestia's voice said in my head. Not you two. Okay both of you out of my head now. I thought shooting both disguised princesses an angry glare. Aloe and Lotus came into the main foyer with some more ponies. Sorry for the wait but if you will follow us to the massage rooms we can begin, Aloe said. Everyone followed the ponies while I grabbed both princesses' arms to stop them. Don't do that again okay. People, or in this case ponies value their privacy and that mind reading trick violates it, I said in a whispered tone. Apologies Ash, I thought Luna had asked you for permission to do that, Celestia said. Well if you guys want to talk to me like that give me a signal like tap the sides of your heads, I said tapping the side of my head twice. Got it but what if it is an emergency and you can't see us? Luna asked. Then you have my permission to use that technique, but only for emergencies, I said. The princesses nodded at me before Lotus appeared behind a curtain towards the back of the rest of the spa. Are you three alright? Lotus asked. Just having a chat, I replied. I see, well shall we? Lotus said opening the curtain farther for us to enter. We walked inside and into a large circular room filled with steam and with doors all along the wall. Most doors were marked with an engaged sign colored in red. We approached one of the doors in the room that wasn't marked. We walked inside and my nostrils were filled with a soothing aroma from the candles. Alla lay some white towels in a pile on a table in between three marble cushioned massage tables facing each other. Just make yourselves comfortable and let us know when you're ready, Alla said standing next to Lotus and turned around. I was confused why she had turned around, then I looked over at the disguised princesses and I saw them begin to remove their robes. Immediately I turned around before I saw anything and I could feel the princesses give a sly smile towards me. You can get changed now Ash, Celestia said. I turned around and I saw both Luna and Celestia were lying on the marble tables with their breasts smushed against the table and made to be used as pillows. I looked behind them and I saw that a towel was wrapped around their lower private areas. See something interesting? Luna asked catching my gaze and giving her tush a little shake. I think I should be asking you that question because you haven't looked away from me like I did for you, I fired back with red cheeks. Both of the mares giggled like little girls before they turned their heads away from me. I grabbed one of the towels and looked at both sets of mares in the room before I undid my robe. The robe dropped to the ground and I turned away from the group and tied the towel to my hip and let it cover my button member. Okay you can look now, I said as I tied the knot to hold the towel in place. The mares looked at me and they let out gasps of horror when they saw my back. I turned around and I saw that Celestia had a look of sad shock on her face. Luna had a hand over her mouth but Aloe and Lotus were stunned by the scars crisscrossing my chest. You all alright, I asked with concern. How did you get that mark on your back? Luna asked with worry. I think it's best if you don't know, I said sadly as I climbed onto my table and rested on my belly and used my right arm as support for my head which hurt my shoulder a bit. Aloe and Lotus snapped out of their trance before they walked over to both Celestia and Luna. They started massaging their backs, the princesses let out happy moans as they felt the bases of their wings being squeezed and rubbed. Aw oh, this is nice, Celestia cooed as pops filled the air from her back. Glad you're enjoying this miss, Aloe said as she rubbed Celestia's lower back. I guess I'll get started on our night of Equestria, Lotus said as she lathered her hands with lotion and began on my back. Sweet Celestia's sun and Luna's moon. Rarity wasn't kidding when she said you needed this. Your muscles are so tense it's like some pony twisted two rods of steel together and kept twisting it until they couldn't anymore, Lotus said when she started to rub my muscles. Well I didn't have a happy life before I came here so it's obvious that relaxation wasn't on the list of things I did, I said as I moaned in relief as the soft hands eased the tension and popped every muscle in my back. Let me see, Allo said as she walked over to me and started massaging my lower back. Goodness, you were right I'm shocked your body is still in one piece when it's been like this for so long, Allo said surprised. Lotus gripped the base of my wings with her hands but as soon as she did my wings sprang outward startling everyone. Yes, sorry I didn't mean to do that you just surprised me, I said. It's quite alright Mr. Ash. I shouldn't have been so careless like that. The base of wings can be sensitive to the touch, Lotus said taking a few breaths. Quite alright but please just stick with Ash. Mr. Arsir makes me feel old, I said. Understood, Lotus said before she got back to work. We spent the rest of our time talking about our past. I kept my input to as little as possible. I asked Celestia and thought about how Chrysalis, Dreamcatcher and Discord were doing when they returned and I was glad that they were getting into the swing of things once more. 
But Discord was still a little troublesome, I knew exactly how she felt. I told everyone that I normally took care of my little brothers and sisters and how they were a troublesome bunch. I also told them about Razor when he would always lightly tug at my ear to get me to wake up in the morning. For a little pup he was certainly a lot of trouble, this caused everyone to laugh. After the massage was finished I stood up and stretched myself out and I felt no more pain in my shoulder. Damn, you two certainly know what you're doing, I said as I looked at the smiling mares as they handed me my robe. We were just glad to give you our assistance, they replied and bowed politely. Celestia and Luna placed on their robes as I turned away from them once more to give them some privacy. Once they were done, Aloe and Lotus led us out of the room and back into the steam-filled room. I turned around and I saw Luna staring at the table I lay on. Hey Nebula is everything all right? I asked. Oh yes just fine, Luna said startled out of her thoughts and she walked out to join us. We were showed to two doorways marked with mares on one and stallions on the other. Aloe told Celestia and Luna to enter the mares doorway while Lotus told me to enter the stallions. I walked inside to see a large white room with water pouring out of a giant gold lion statue, into a large waist-deep pool. In the pool I saw my friends relaxing. Mac was the first to notice me and waved me over. I removed my robe but the towel still covered my member. I sat down in the warm bath and sighed. So how was it? Soren asked. Not bad. I don't feel any more pain in my arm and my back feels like it did when I started Parker, I said. Great, but I wasn't talking about the massage. I'm talking about being in the same room with two almost naked princesses, Soren said waggling his eyebrows. I know what you're getting at and I'm going to say this, I didn't see anything too revealing all right. Even with their clothes on I could tell that they had amazing bodies, fit for goddesses like themselves. But nothing happened between us, especially when they saw this, I said shifting my back into view and thumbing my mark causing my friends to cringe at the sight. So that's the famous mark on your back that caused you to shout at the girls the other day? Pierce asked. Yep the most that happened was telling each other about our pasts like me with my wolf family, I said. What about that? Care to tell us? Caramel urged earning him a smack on the back of the head from thunder. The only thing you lot will get out of me is that this mark and the scars on my chest are related to the same thing, I said in an annoyed tone causing the stallions to look at the water in shame. Let's skip that. How about let's discuss who our first sex partner was? Soren suggested. You're a total perv, you know that, I said, but Soren just gave a shrug. Fluttershy, Mac admitted. Cloud Chaser, it was a one-night stand, Thunder admitted before everyone turned towards me. Never had one, I replied plainly. This caused all the stallions to stare at me in disbelief, but Soren's jaw went right into the water, so I reached forward closed his mouth and this caused him to cough and splutter. You're still, Soren tried to yell when he recovered from the coughing only for me to clamp his muzzle shut. I don't need you screaming it out for the whole spot to hear you y'all know that. I said as I released his muzzle. Sorry, it's just shocking that you're still a virgin. I thought mares would be going nuts for you by now, Soren said. Soren, I'm an alien compared to you guys. If I was a stallion then the mares might go nuts for me, but I'm human and before you ask, no there was no one for me back on earth, I said in a quiet tone. Okay, Soren said. Hey, I noticed this earlier but when you two saw both Celestia and Luna your wings shot up, why is that? Is it some kind of erection thing for Pegasus? I asked pointing towards Thunderlane and Soren. Yeah, we call it a wing boner and sorry for slapping your face with it Thunder said. No problem, I said. I noticed this too, your wings didn't spring open why is that? Soren asked. You two were born with your wings, I was given mine. It's the only explanation that comes to mind but it'll probably happen as I continue through life, I said as I leaned back and relaxed. Hey, what do you think the mares are doing? Pierce asked. Mare stuff maybe, I said earning a laugh from the others. Luna's paw. Solar flare, nebula, glad you could join us how was the massage? Rarity asked as Celestia and I walked into the bathing area. The walls were white and a giant golden hydra had stood in the center with water pouring into the basin from the creature's mouth. Quite relaxing, I believe Ash enjoyed it as well, Celestia said. She and I disrobed and she stepped into the bath with me not too far behind. What about his build, it was quite something, isn't that right Nebula, Rarity said with a devious smirk. He is muscular I will admit, but this isn't the first time I've seen him like that. Remember on Nightmare Night, when he wore that Spartan outfit, I said with burning cheeks. I looked at the bearers of Harmony and they all had burning cheeks. A Spartan's outfit, weren't the Spartans the most feared, strongest and respected warriors from Earth? Celestia asked. Yes according to Ash they were, Twilight said. I remember a story that tells of 300 Spartans going against 100,000 Persian soldiers. The Persians were better equipped, but the Spartans held their ground for 9 days it was called the Battle of Thermopylae, Celestia said. Wait, 9 days, 300 went against 100,000 and the conflict lasted 9 days. Gilda said dumbstruck. Don't forget the Persians were better equipped, Celestia said. CG, I told you Spartans have to be the coolest warriors ever heard of Rainbow said. Well the designs for Cloudsdale were based on ancient Greek design and Greece is the country that the Spartans lived in, I said getting looks from everyone. Even cooler, Rainbow said. It's amazing how our worlds are so similar, Twilight said. Indeed, but there are so many secrets about Ash that are nagging at the back of my head, like Ash's mark on his back, I've never seen anything so horrible before, Celestia said grimly. When Celestia said this the others lowered their heads. Is something wrong? I asked. I'd rather not remember that, Fluttershy squeaked. What do you mean? Celestia asked. It was our fault princess, we kinda gave Ash a bit of a push, Applejack said. Explain yourselves, Celestia said in a stern tone. We saw his mark and then we sort of pressured him to tell us about it. His response was him shouting at us and telling us that it meant four years of horror to him, Twilight said looking away in shame. I've never seen Ash look so scary and angry before, Pinky said rubbing her arms as if she was cold. After that he shut himself away in his room for a week, Rainbow added. I see, I am truly surprised by your actions. I believe you all have learned an important friendship lesson. Never overstep you friends' boundaries, Celestia said. The room was silent for a few minutes before Gilda spoke. Hey, I'm just wondering, but you know I have been hearing this a lot that Ash is fighting demons. Can you tell me about it? Gilda asked. 
I have a better idea, why don't I show you, I said as I used my magic and pulled a white glowing orb out of my head. Is that the memory from when Ash fought the demon that controlled Dreamcatcher? Twilight asked. It certainly is, but I hope none of you are squeamish because this will get ugly pretty fast, I warned as I made the orb bigger so everyone could see. After the memory ended Gilda and Rainbow Dash were awed out with how Ash slowly sheathed Whispering Wind and when it fully sheathed the demon was sliced in two. Applejack was impressed by his strength to push off from the roof and launch both himself and Nightmare Moon into the blood and everyone was startled when Nightmare Moon stabbed the spear into the fake Ash's neck. They jumped when Ash leapt out of the blood behind her. Twilight and Celestia were fascinated by the fact rage devours demon souls too. Rarity was disgusted by the fact and when the bugs crawled across the floor and the blood dripped through the walls. Poor Fluttershy lost consciousness when the eels attacked and Pinkie Pie was trying to revive her and succeeded only once the memory ended. Well that was informative, Rarity said while covering he mouth with a hand. That was awesome, but remind me to never get into a fight with Ash when swords are involved, Gilda said. True that. Hey do you think Ash could teach us something like that? Rainbow said. I would prefer if he didn't. For self-defense yes, but for other purposes no, Celestia said. It's interesting that Rage uses demon souls as a food source and to make Ash stronger, Twilight said scribbling down notes on a notepad she'd summoned. Don't remind me, Rarity said resisting the urge to be sick. Well I was impressed by that fancy wind attack with his sword and his strength. He certainly didn't get those muscles doing nothing, Applejack said. Well he's certainly strong. Before we left the massage room I stayed behind because I noticed that the table he was resting on had large cracks in it where his right hand was resting, I said. So you're saying that even though his arm was injured he is still strong enough to crush marble? Rarity asked shocked. Applejack let out a low whistle at that before Pinkie Pie surprised everyone by what she said next. Damn, a pair of feathered and webbed wings, magic abilities, crazy strong strength, wow I wouldn't be surprised if any pony thought of him as a human version of a male alicorn, Pinkie said cautiously. Wait Pinky, what did you just say? Twilight said in shock. I said, I wouldn't be surprised if any pony thought of Ash as a human version of a male alicorn, but that's crazy right? Pinky said. I looked at Celestia and she gave me a shrug knowing the question I was about to ask. But that's ridiculous, Rarity said. That's not exactly out of the question. I mean Pinky's right, he does have the same basic principles as an alicorn, the only difference is he isn't a pony, Twilight said. Everyone sat in silence for the rest of the bath before Aloe and Lotus came to get us for the sauna. Ash's paw. During the bath Soren told me that Rainbow has very sensitive hooves and Comet admitted that he really likes Twilight but was nervous about asking her out. So I told him her likes and dislikes and her strengths and faults giving him an idea of what to do. A male spa worker then told us to follow him, so we climbed out of the water put on our robes and walked back into the steam-filled room. He asked us to sit down in the center of the room, in some kind of pit with a bucket of hot steaming coals in the center and next to it was a basin of water with a ladle in it to put water on the hot rocks. We sat on the wooden benches that went around the pit and relaxed. The girls came in and they sat on some of the benches also. I crossed my legs into a sitting position and placed my hands on my legs closed my eyes and breathed through my nose and began to meditate. I could hear my friends talking to each other in aloe and lotus whispering and having a few giggles. I stayed like that until someone shook my leg I opened my eyes. Twilight was the one to have disturbed me and was telling me it was time to leave. I walked into the change rooms and retrieved my stuff. Before I walked out Rarity wanted to pay for the trip but the princesses and I were having none of it. We paid for the visit and I left them a generous tip but as I walked past them and heard them whisper about me. You know something Lotus, even though he isn't a pony, I can't help but wonder how big his tool is, Aloe whispered. Aloe you know we can't sleep with our clients but I will admit his feathers are so soft to the touch and it would be nice to see what he can do in bed, Lotus whispered to her sister while giggling. I turned to both of them while they were still giggling. Aloe noticed me first and she gave her sister a tap on her shoulder causing both to turn towards me with beat red faces. I shook my head with a small smile and raised my finger to my lips and gave them a wink, causing their faces to turn even redder before I walked over to my friends. Not bad for a beginner very smooth criminal, rage praised. Thank you both for today I. Are you two all right? You seem a bit flustered, Rarity said to the still blushing Aloe and Lotus. We're all right and thank you for coming to our spa, Lotus said as she and Aloe bowed to us before we left. We stepped outside and I stepped into the late morning sun beating down on us. I stretched out my wings and I saw ponies going about their daily business. Oh that was quite nice. I feel like a new mare what about you Ash? Rarity asked. Never been better, gotta hand it to those two they know how to stop all the pain in you, I said with a smile. Well we need to go. Mac and I have some chores to catch up on, Applejack said. Yep, Mac agreed as he and Applejack left. Oh Thunderlane, would you be a dear and help me put away some fabrics in my boutique? Rarity asked. Sure, Thunderlane replied before they left. Hey Soren, Gilda, I've got an awesome new trick to show ya, Dash said. I'm game, Gilda said. Same, Soren added as they took off. It's our day off today Ash, so kick back and relax for the day, Caramel said before he left. I've got an appointment to take care of so I'll check in later, Pierce said as he left. The cakes need me to back at the bakery, so later, Pinky said before she took off. I need to go check on Mother Duck's eggs, Fluttershy said as she flew off. Um Prince, sorry Solar Flare I want to discuss something with you. Would you mind if we went back to the library so we can talk? Twilight asked. I don't see why not, Celestia said. That reminds me, I need to pick up a book from UTWI, Comet said leaving Luna and I alone. You know something, I think they all left us alone on purpose, I said. So what do we do now? Luna asked. Well I might head over to Vinyl and Octavia's shop, see what they're up to and probably play some tunes like I promised, I said. May I join you? Luna asked. Sure, I said. We walked through Ponyville until we came to a purple building, the sign had a lavender treble clef and electric blue record on it invite neon lights. The sign said beats and things. We walked inside and I saw all kinds of instruments along the walls and CDs and aisles in front of me. At the back of the room I saw a counter with no one at it. Luna and I walked over to the counter and I rang the bell which was on top of it and immediately Octavia appeared from behind a door at the back, and her face lit up. 
Cash, it's so good to see you, Octavia said as she gave me a hug. You too, Octavia, I said returning the hug. Luna raised an eyebrow at the action. Octavia, I'd like you to meet Nebula and Nebula this is a good friend of mine, Octavia Melody. Best cellist in Equestria, I said. Oh I wouldn't say best, Octavia said with a blush. Oh yes, I have heard of you. Didn't you play at Grand Galloping Gala? Luna asked. Yeah but I'm here now and I have an amazing mare friend, Octavia said catching Luna off guard. You're, Luna started. Into mares, yep, Octavia said. Oh by the way, is Scratch here? I want to show you some songs from Earth, I said. Right this way Ash, Octavia said leading me through the back door. We walked inside and it led into a small hallway with five doors in it. Octavia led us to the closest one and opened it to reveal a recording room. Inside was a smaller room and behind a glass window was vinyl mixing some beats together, but I couldn't hear her. I walked over to the window and taped on it getting her attention, she looked up from her turntable. When she saw me her face lit up, she hit a button on her turntable and walked over to the door that separated us. Ash, it's so awesome to see you, Vinyl said as she fist bumped me but turned her attention to Luna. Who's your mare friend? Vinyl asked gesturing to a disguised princess Luna causing both Luna and I to turn red. She's not my mare friend Vinyl. Nebula here is just my friend, I said waving my hands in front of my face. Indeed, we're just friends, Luna said shying her face away from us. Sure, but what brings you here? Vinyl asked. I coughed into my fist before I removed my iPod and presented it towards Vinyl, her smile grew the same size as Pinkie Pie instantly. Is that the device that plays music Ash? Octavia asked with excitement in her voice. This item plays music, Luna asked. Sure dose, I said with a smile. Well plug it in already, Vinyl said pushing me towards a set of speakers. I plugged my iPod into the speakers and selected a song. Okay since Vinyl got to listen to my music last time I'll start off with a classic instrument song for Octavia, I said as I hit play. How was that? I asked when the song ended. It was beautiful, Octavia said in bliss. Got me hooked, Vinyl said. Any words I use are hopeless to describe that piece, Luna said. Well don't pass out from over excitement yet because this next one was written by a DJ back on earth, I said getting the white DJ excited. Too cool, Vinyl exclaimed as she threw her hands in the air. Even I found that enjoyable, but I just wish we could do something special, Octavia said. What do you mean? Luna asked. I don't know, we want to try something that will wow the audience, Vinyl said. Why don't you combine your music, I suggested earning raised eyebrows from the group. I'm sorry, I must have misheard you, but did you say, Octavia started. Combine our music, Vinyl finished. I did, is that a problem, I asked. Ash, no offense, but that would sound terrible, Octavia said. I think I just might make you eat those words, I said as I selected another song on my iPod. This person my friends, is one of my favorite musicians, this first song is called Moon Trance, I said with a grin. I like it already, Luna whispered. Who was that? Vinyl exclaimed when both songs ended. That my alabaster friend was Lindsay Sterling, a hip-hop violinist. The second song was Round Table Rival and both were made by Lindsay, I said as I unplugged my iPod and placed it back into my arm. That had to be the best thing I have ever heard, Vinyl squealed like a school filly. What about you Octavia? I asked looking at a speechless cello player. She loved it. Oh man Ash, you have got to show us some more songs, Vinyl pleaded. Sorry Vinyl but I need to grab something to eat for lunch, I said looking at the clock seeing it was 12.15. Okay that's cool, they'll tell Octa you said goodbye when she comes round, Vinyl said. Thanks Scratch, I said as I fist bumped the DJ. Luna said her goodbyes before Vinyl showed us out. That was truly memorable, Luna said as we walked outside. Glad you enjoyed it, what say we go grab some lunch at Sugar Cube Corner, I asked. As you say, it sounds like a plan, Luna said causing me to let out a light chuckle. We arrived at Sugar Cube Corner and Luna was drooling at the sight of the building. This is Sugar Cube Corner, Luna asked wiping the drool off her face. You know it, shall we, I asked, opening up the door for Luna to walk inside. Once we were inside I saw that the room had a fair amount of people in it. I walked with Luna to a booth in the corner of the store and sat down. This is quite the establishment, Luna said. Sure is, had my welcome party here, not to mention my first party in my lifetime, I said. Yes I was told about that, it's quite surprising as well, Luna said. Well what can you do, I said shrugging my shoulders. Hiya you too. We snapped our heads towards the voice to see Pinkie Pie. Hey Pinks, we just came in to get some lunch, I said. Okie dokie Loki, well just select an order and I'll bring it out for you, Pinkie said as she pulled out two menus from inside her mane. She handed them to us and then she bounced away. How was she able to do such a thing, Luna asked. Honestly, I have no idea, but I'm always told don't question and accept that it's just Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie and I'll sleep better at night, I said. I see, even though she's a bit odd she always makes me want to laugh, Luna said with a smile on her face. Damn her smile is beautiful, I thought. Why thank you Knight of Equestria, Luna thought. Gah, I told you don't do that signal remember. I thought in an angry tone, her only response was an innocent smile. I looked down at my menu and Luna did the same. Neither of us spoke to the other until Pinkie returned. You guys selected yet, Pinkie asked. I'll have a caramel dipping platter, I said. I was going to order that too, Luna said. Why don't I get you both a large platter for the both of you to share along with some milkshakes, Pinky suggested. Do you want to go with Pinky's suggestion Nebula, or would you rather them separate? I asked. I'm fine with it either way, Luna said tilting her head with a smile. All right Pinks, we'll go with a large platter please, I said. Back in a jiffy, Pinky said as she disappeared into the kitchen. We sat in silence for a few minutes just listening to the sounds of other ponies talking before I spoke up. So how's life in Canterlot been for you and the others? I asked. Okay, but I still feel like I'm in my sister's shadow though. She helps more ponies during her time in day court than Dreamcatcher and I do at night court, Luna said. What about the dream realm? I asked. What? Luna asked. You know the dream world. 
Both you and Dreamcatcher guard your subjects' dreams from nightmares, correct? I asked. Yes, Luna said. The other day, Pip told me that you and Dreamcatcher sent a dream version of me to stop a bunch of bullies from picking on him, I said. Yes, it was a terrible nightmare, but what about it? Luna asked. Well, you view your subjects' problems as if they were your own problems. You share the same suffering as your subjects, their fears. You help them solve them and even face them. Now tell me who else besides you two can do that. Because I can't think of any pony, I said placing my hand on Luna's, she either didn't seem to mind or didn't notice. I, I never thought of it that way, if I did I would never have sided with that demon and the knights, Luna said with a tear in her eye. No more of that, the knights knew that it wasn't you and they forgave you a long long time ago. Besides, we beat the demon that did this so there is no reason to be sad anymore, okay. I said as I wiped away her tears. As I did Luna held my hand on her cheek. Thank you Ash, Luna said with a smile. That's what a friend is for, to help chase away the doubts, I said as I rubbed her cheek drying her eyes. What are you two up to? We turned our attention to see Pinky with a plate with an assortment of chopped fruits on it. Nothing, I said as both Luna and I quickly retracted our hands. Okay, well here you go, Pinky said as she placed the food on the table. I'll be back with your drinks, Pinky said as she bounced back into the kitchen. Luna and I began to eat, Luna grabbed a strawberry dipped it into the caramel and ate it and let out a light moan of approval. I take it you like caramel, huh? I said with a chuckle. Yep, do you? Luna asked. My favorite, I said with a smile. We ate the entire contents of the plate clean, even the bowl holding the sauce was spotless, just as Pinky returned. Here you go you two, Pinky said as she placed a milkshake on the table. It was topped with two cherries and she placed two straws next to it. Ah uh, Pinky, I thought we asked for two milkshakes, I said in a confused tone. Yeah we ran out of ingredients and I used up the last of it to make that one, sorry, Pinky said as she scratched the back of her head and picked up the plate and left. We looked at each other then at the milkshake then back to each other. You can have it if you want, I said pushing the milkshake towards her. Oh no I couldn't, Luna said as she pushed it back towards me. Share, we said at the same time causing us to laugh a bit. I handed a straw to Luna and pushed my straw into the icy treat as Luna did the same. We started to drink and Luna placed her hand on mine. I looked at it then looked back at Luna. She had blushing cheeks and I could feel mine burning as well. We became so lost in each other's eyes that we didn't notice the glass had emptied until we heard the gurgling sounds which snapped us out of our thoughts. Luna placed her hand in the bottom of the glass and pulled out both cherries and offered one to me. I grabbed mine and tossed it into the air and caught it in my mouth stem and all. I worked my jaw around a few times before I stuck out my tongue and showed Luna the stem tied in a knot. Impressive, but can you do this, Luna said as she placed the whole cherry in her mouth and worked her jaw this way and that then she showed me her stem tied in knots at both ends of the stem. Certainly got me beat, I said with a laugh. For the next few hours we talked about ourselves, our likes and dislikes and Luna showed me a colored drawing of a tree on a hill surrounded by calm water and a night-filled sky above it and the water acted like a mirror. It looked surreal, if you hung it on a wall anyone would feel it was a window. I summoned my sketchbook and Luna was impressed with the drawing of the sunrise over Canterlot. We continued to talk until it was 4.30pm and we decided to leave. We walked over to the counter and I paid for the food like any gentleman would, before Luna and I left for the Golden Oak Library. As we walked I told Luna about the peaceful calmness during both dusk and dawn, and how the cool wind sort of makes me feel like I've been wrapped in a blanket. This got her to smile and lean into me. When we arrived I opened the door to see Twilight and Celestia in her undisguised. They were so distracted with what they were doing that they didn't even know we were there. I whispered an idea to Luna who giggled and rubbed her hands together in a devious kind of way. Luna summoned a video recorder and I flew off and returned with a thundercloud in hand. I gotta thank Rainbow Dash for teaching me this stuff, I thought. I snuck inside the room and placed the thundercloud over their heads and Luna stood to the side and got into position. Luna gave me the thumbs up before I nodded and gave the cloud a sharp kick resulting in a large thunderclap. Ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
Indeed. Now if we can get serious please, Twilight before we were, interrupted, Celestia said shooting Luna and I a death glare, which we responded with by giving her an innocent a smile. I was about to say we will have to talk about this another time, Celestia said. I understand, Twilight said. Celestia lit up her horn and she and the others disappeared leaving Twilight, Rage, Luna and I in the room. Well I must be on my way, Luna said. Good luck with Celestia, I said. Thank you and thank you again for the day. I truly had fun with you, Luna said before she lit up her horn and teleported back to Canterlot. Well as much as I enjoyed the laugh, I really don't want to be here when she hands you your punishment, Rage said holding my shoulder. Yeah you'd better leave then, I said. Good luck and pray it's swift, Rage said as he disappeared. Means a lot coming from you, I said as I walked over to a very annoyed Twilight and had her arms folded under her breasts. Okay what's my punishment? I asked. I'll have to sleep on that because I'm tired right now, so don't think you're off the hook, Twilight said as she walked into the kitchen just as Spike walked in the door. What's up with her? Spike asked. Tell ya later, I whispered. We finished dinner and I told Spike what had happened and he couldn't stop laughing. I went and got ready for bed, said goodnight to Dust and made sure he was comfy before I looked out the window and I saw it had begun to snow. I watched the snow for a few minutes then turned my gaze towards Canterlot. Good night, Luna, I whispered then turned away from the window and climbed into bed to sleep. Meanwhile in Canterlot Castle a certain moon alicorn was looking over the land, but her gaze was mostly focused on Ponyville. Good night, Ash, Luna whispered. Author's notes. The first part of this story is dedicated to Chloe Brown, a student at Fairhills High School who committed suicide because she bullied. My thoughts go out to her and her family. Chapter 13 Hearts Warming Even A Home to Call Home I woke the next morning with a smile. Dust was up and was entranced by the snow falling from the window outside. I got out of bed and walked over to Dust and stroked his wings. I think it may be too cold for you to go outside and grab some food this morning, I said looking at the thick blanket of snow that covered the ground. Dust just nodded in understanding before he flew onto my shoulder, I stroked under his head before I continued. Why don't you go ask Twilight or Spike for some breakfast and I'll join you in a second, I said. Dust nodded before I walked over to the door and opened it. Dust then flew off my arm and down the steps, I closed the door and went to get dressed. I walked out of my room wearing an aqua-colored long sleeve t-shirt and a crimson jacket. I walked into the library and I saw a note next to the horse figurehead in the center of the room with my name on it. I walked over to the note and picked it up before I began to read. Dear Ash. I figured out a suitable punishment for you after the prank you pulled yesterday. Also, somehow our friends got a hold of copies of the video you and Luna made and came in today unable to control their laughter. So you're going to clean up the entire house by yourself while Spike and I are out. The list should be prepared for you in the kitchen, so if you could get on it as soon as possible that would be appreciated. See you later. Twilight. P.S. Dust is with us too. I let out a laugh at the events that occurred yesterday. I remembered that Luna not only sent a copy of the video to her family, but to my friends and the main six. I was just able to stop myself from falling to the ground laughing before I left for the kitchen. I walked inside to see the kitchen had half of the dishes that were in the house covered in muck ready to be washed. Guess Twilight was seriously ticked and wants to make my punishment worse than I thought I thought to myself. I made myself a bowl of cereal first and then looked at the list of chores to do and to my surprise the list reached my feet. Man I feel sorry for you Spike, I said out loud and I rolled up the list and went to the cleaning closet and found the cleaning supplies. Let's do this, I said in a determined tone. An hour later I was about to start on the dishes. I decided to play a song to help the work go faster, once I found a song I hit play. I sang along with the song without missing a beat and bobbed my head in time to the rhythm. When the song ended I ticked off the last thing that was needed for the list. Hi Ash. I looked at the doorway to the kitchen to see both Twilight and Spike. Each one wore heavy clothing which matched their fur or scales and had a few bags in their arms. Hey you two, I didn't hear you come in. And you had better have made sure no snow was on you when you walked in here, I said with a growl. Not to worry Ash, there isn't even a snowflake, Spike said. Good, it took me half an hour to clean that room and reorganize the shelves in there, I said. Wait, half an hour, Spike said in a surprised tone. Yeah, I said. It takes me at least two to do that, Spike replied. Well took me an hour to clean the house, I said surprising Twilight. Spike slumped to the ground looking deflated. Now I think you're just showing off, Spike said in a slightly annoyed tone. Hey Spike, this was my punishment for the prank yesterday so don't think I'm trying to get your job, I said punching Spike's shoulder. Oh Ash, I got this for you from Rarity, Twilight said as she pulled a blue heavy winter coat out of the bags. GTWI thanks, but you shouldn't have, I said. You were going to need it anyway, Twilight said tossing the jacket over to me. I placed my blue winter jacket over my crimson one and slipped my wings through the wing slits on my back just like every piece of clothing that covered my torso. It's a perfect fit, like always, I said. Why don't you go and enjoy the snow outside? Oh you've done well and we need to leave for Canterlot later, Twilight said. What for? I asked. For the hearts warming you play Twilight and the others are going to be playing roles in it, Spike said. Hearts warming? I asked. Oh that's right I forgot to tell you. Well, it's one day a year where our families gather around the hearts warming fire and spend time with each other. We tell stories and sing songs, it's basically a day of the year where everypony spends time with each other. And this time our friends and their families are going to spend hearts warming eve up in Canterlot. And the girls, Spike and I will play a role in the play, Twilight explained. Sounds like Christmas, I said. Christmas, Twilight asked. Human version of hearts warming eve, I replied. Cool but ya know you forgot to mention the most important thing TWI, Spike said. What's that Spike? Twilight asked. We get presents, Spike exclaimed. Oh Spike, Twilight said as she rolled her eyes. Presents. Oh shit, I didn't know we were supposed to get gifts, I said as I started to panic. Ash calm down, Twilight said grabbing my arm. How can I TWI? I have to go out and get a gift for you guys, I said. First off Ash, most of the stores would be closed, there is no way you would be able to get any presents for everyone now. Also you've already done so much for us. 
It's our turn to repay you, even the princesses agreed to this. So it's kinda the reason why none of us told you earlier, Twilight said with an embarrassed smile. Wait, you didn't tell me on purpose, I said dumbstruck. Ah kinda, Twilight said with a sheepish grin. I didn't know what to say exactly one part of me felt relief but the other felt like I had been stabbed in the back. I see, I said calmly. You're not angry, Twilight asked. A little upset I will admit, but angry no, I replied. Okay so what now, Twilight asked. I'll probably pass the time with a walk through Ponyville, I said. Alright see you later then, Twilight said. I walked outside and I saw all kinds of Christmas or in this case hearts warming decorations hanging from homes and over streets. Children were building snow ponies and playing in the snow. I walked around Ponyville without a care in the world until something cold hard and wet hit me in my back. I turned around just in time to see a brown tail disappear behind a building. Curious, I walked over to the building and peeked around it to see Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo and Pip Squeak giggling, just as Scootaloo handed Pip a snowball. I looked up and I saw a large clump of snow on the roof over the folds just waiting to tip over. I gave the building a strong hit with my metal arm and the snow slipped off the roof and fell on the 4 CMC. Ah, the four screamed as they were buried beneath the snow. All four heads popped out of the snow and looked around in confusion before they spotted me leaning against the wall of the building with a smile on my face. Hey, no fair, Scootaloo called out. And hitting me in the back while I wasn't looking was, I shot back. Sorry Ash we were trying to get our cutie marks in snowball tossing, Pip said. It's a light Pip but I thought you guys were working on getting your Parker cutie marks, I said. We were but we weren't able to get them, Apple Bloom said looking at the ground in disappointment. Parker takes time Apple Bloom, don't worry you'll get them. All it takes is a little time, I said. But that's what every pony keeps telling us, Apple Bloom said throwing her hands in the air before she fell into the snow. And how right they are, there's an old saying in my world which rings true, the last flower that blooms is the most beautiful, I said. What's that mean? Sweetie Belle asked. To put it bluntly, those who get their cutie marks later than the rest, will probably get the best cutie marks ever, I said poking her nose causing her to giggle. So you're saying we're late bloomers and we will probably get the best cutie marks in the school? Pip asked. It's possible, but it's just my opinion, I said. But still, I want to get a cutie mark now, Apple Bloom whined. Well maybe this question will help, I said. What is it? Scootaloo asked excitedly. What are you all good at? I asked. Huh, they said in union. How does that help us? Scootaloo asked. You'll know when the time comes, I said. Just then I saw Rainbow and Pinky walking down the street towards us. Hey watch this, I said as I created two snowballs and held them in my magic before I grabbed one and threw it at them. Then grabbed the other and again threw it at them both of the snowy projectiles hit both Pinky and Rainbow in the face. Bullseye, Pip shouted. Rainbow and Pinky shook off the snow and looked around and saw me holding another snowball in my hand while tossing it upwards and catching it. This means war ash, Rainbow shouted. Bring it on, I shouted back. Pinky let out a war cry before she threw the first snowball that just missed me. Rainbow took her turn and hit me in my leg. I threw a couple back, each one missing. The CMC joined the fight. Over time more and more ponies joined in and pretty soon all of town square was turned into a battlefield. As the hours went on, many snowballs were tossed to either side of the square, both sides decided to call a truce. Rainbow, Pinky, the CMC and I walked back to the library with Mac, Soren and Gilda, who happened to join us for the snowball fight. That was a blast, Soren exclaimed. He up, Mac agreed. Man I haven't been in a snowball fight forever, I said with a sigh. Well you've got a damn fine aim I'll say that much, Gilda said. We continued our walk until we were at the library and I saw the other standing by the door and Rarity was wearing a giant hat that looked like a Christmas tree. There y'all are, Applejack said finally noticing us. Where have you all been? Twilight asked. Snowball war, Pinky said cheerfully. Aw oh man, I always miss out on the fun stuff, Spike groaned. Don't sweat it Spike, we'll have a match when we get back, I said cheering him up slightly. Oh and Rarity, what are you wearing? I asked pointing to the hat. My heart's warming hat, what's wrong with it? Rarity asked. A little over the top don't you think? I said. Heavens no, it is a perfect item for hearts warming eve, especially if we are heading to Canterlot, Rarity protested. If you say so, I said. Well now that that's done, shall we get going? Comet asked. Yes, Granny Smith is already at the station waiting for us and the rest of our families should be at Canterlot now, Twilight said. I looked around and I saw Pip saying goodbye to the Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo before he began to walk away with a sad look on his face. Hey Pip, where are you going? I asked. Back to the orphanage, Pip said while he walked away. Well, why don't you join us? I asked earning looks from everyone. Oh, Ash, I don't think Twilight was stopped as I raised my hand. TWI what's the harm in bringing one more? I asked. Well shoot, the more the merrier I say, Applejack said. True that, Pinky added. The rest of the group just nodded their heads. Fine, but he will have to be your responsibility, Ash, Twilight said. Fine by me, I replied. Everyone began to walk towards the train station but Pip tugged on my pants to get my attention. Um Ash, is it really okay that I go with you? I mean I'm grateful, but I don't think I belong in Canterlot, Pip said. Of course it's okay Pip, now come on before we miss our train, besides you'll get to see both Princess Luna and Dreamcatcher if you come with me, I said. As soon as I mentioned Luna and Dreamcatcher he instantly had a smile on his face and ran off to the station leaving me to shake my head with a smile. Everyone stood at the station platform waiting for the train to arrive, we talked with each other until the train was in sight to take us to Canterlot. The trip was filled with excitement about what everyone was going to do when they got there. While I sat with dust on my shoulder and in between both Gilda and Pipsqueak, who both looked a little down that they didn't have a family to spend the holiday with. But with a few words I got them to cheer up a bit. Isn't Canterlot wonderful this time of year, Twilight said once we arrived at the station and disembarked. Yeah, I wish it was hearts warming eve every day, Rainbow said. Not me, I think holidays like this are best left to be a rarity, I said giving Rarity a smile causing her to blush. Oh you flatterer, Rarity said with a smile causing the CMC next to me to gag, especially Sweetie Belle. 
I just laughed and smiled at the action. Quite the move for a beginner, Caramel whispered leaning on my shoulder. What do you mean by that? Rarity asked somehow able to hear us. I froze in my tracks and gave a deadly look towards Caramel before I looked at Rarity. It's nothing for you to concern yourself with, I said probably too quickly. Rarity just raised an eyebrow at me before she turned back towards the still walking group. Sorry man, Caramel apologized. It's alright, just try not to mention what I said at the spa while the girls are around, I said as we walked to catch up with the others. We left the station and walked into Canterlot City, the place was sparkling with festive decorations. There were decorated Christmas trees as tall as a two-story building, ornaments hanging in windows from tinsel that hung over streets and laurel wreaths on doors with gold bells attached. There's so much to look at I feel like my darn eyes are gonna pop right out of my head, Applejack said. I hope not that would be gruesome, I said jokingly earning laughs from everyone. I have an idea, why don't we play I spy while we walk, I'll go first. I spy an 8-foot candy cane, Twilight said looking at an 8-foot candy cane while Scootaloo had her tongue stuck to it while the rest of the CMC tried to pull her off. I spy a snow pony, Rainbow said. I spy some pony eating a gingerbread house, Pinky said as she zoomed off into a store and came out with a gingerbread house in hand. She then took an impossibly large bite out of it and two-thirds of it was in her mouth. And it's me, Pinky said with impossibly large cheeks. The rest of us looked at Pinkie Pie and laughed at her randomness. I looked up and I saw an eight-pronged star with a large tail on top of a building. I spy the miracle star, I said causing the others to look where I was looking. Miracle star, Twilight asked. Yep, a long time ago a miracle took place under that star and that miracle was one of the greatest things to have happened in life, I said. What was it? Scootaloo asked as she was finally free from the candy cane's icy grip. I'm afraid that's a story for another time, but hey we should get moving otherwise we'll be late, I said. This caused Twilight to get behind everyone and begin to push with super strength all the way to Canterlot Castle. Once we arrived a guard informed us that Celestia was in the royal theater. TWI led us towards the theater and once we arrived we saw that the room was decorated like those classical theaters. I saw Celestia directing ponies who were carrying stage props into their places while actors rehearsed their lines. I even saw Cadence and Shining wearing some phantom horse-like costumes and they were also making a terrible noise. Stop Cadence I told you before, a Wendigo's howl is supposed to be like a wolf's howl, Celestia instructed. I'm trying Auntie but I've never howled before so give me some credit for getting this far, Cadence said folding her arms. What are you two doing? I asked making our presence known. Oh hello everypony, Celestia greeted us with a warm smile. Princess, Twilight said running up to her mentor and giving her a hug. Hey where's ours? Shining said holding out his arms for his little sister. Twilight let go of Celestia and went to embrace her brother. She then did the same strange dance she did when I first met the fake Cadence, only this time Cadence joined in with the song and dance. Granny Smith it has been too long, Celestia said looking at the elderly mare. Darn tootin and you don't look a day older than the day we met Princess Granny said shocking everyone. You two know each other. Applejack said astonished. The Apple family was around when Ponyville was founded and I was there when it all began, it is where I met your Granny Smith, Celestia said. Oh those were the best years of my life, Granny smiled. Well this holiday is going to be a grand one. Oh and you never answered my question, what are you two doing? I asked looking at both Cadence and Shining Armor. We're practicing our Wendigo howls, Shining said. Howls, no offense to you both but that was terrible, I said. Think you can do better? Cadence asked, shooting me a challenging grin. In my sleep, I said. Well then please enlighten us Ash, Celestia said enjoying the conversation. All right, I said as I cleared my throat and let out a ghostly bone-chilling howl. Around me candles blew out, windows blew open letting the cold in and every pony's hair stood on end. So how was that? I asked. Terrifying, Fluttershy squeaked clinging to Big Mac in fear. How did you know how to do that? Shining asked rubbing his arms to keep warm. Oh that's right, I never told you I was raised by wolves and howling was one of my favorite things we did, I said scratching the back of my head. Wolves, but what about your family? What happened to them? Cadence asked. They left me for dead, I replied. Oh and your wolf family? Cadence asked. Murdered, I said. The room went silent but then the main doors burst open. Sister, I heard a windigo. Luna shouted announcing her presence Luna was wearing a blue winter coat and deep blue pants and a pair of blue earmuffs with a white crescent moon on them around her neck. Calm yourself Luna, Ash was giving us a demonstration of his howl, which perfectly matched a windigo's howl, Celestia said smiling at me. It was nothing, I said. Nothing, that howl sent chills up my spine and I even saw a discord shaking from the sound, Luna said as she walked down towards us. Wow, I never knew that howl would cause such a fright to the moon princess, I said with a laugh. Luna was about to say something but was interrupted. Princess Luna, Pip said running up to Luna and hugging her leg making Celestia, Cadence, Twilight, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie make a DAWW sound because of the moment. Well if it isn't my favorite little subject young Pip squeak, Luna said crouching down to hug Pip. It's great to see you princess, have you seen Princess Dreamcatcher? Pip asked. She's preparing for tonight's performance, Luna said releasing Pip from the hug and smiling at him. Okay, just means I get to spend more time with my favorite princess, Pip said. Well aren't you the adorable one, a voice calls. I look around for the voice and see discord wiggling out of Pip's ear, I reached forward and yanked the draconic whisk from Pip's head. What do you think you're doing? I asked while keeping a firm grip on discord. Rummaging through Pip's mind, duh, you should try it sometime it's quite interesting, discord said. I prefer I didn't, I don't even know what's going on inside that head of yours with all the chaos in there, who knows what will happen, I said. What's wrong with a little chaos? Rage asked separating from my body. See, even my good friend Rage here agrees, discord said snapping his talons and in a flash he was standing next to Rage at his normal size. How you two are such good friends amazes me sometimes, I said while I rolled my eyes. So these are the CMC huh? Rage questioned looking at the four foals. Kinda cute. Don't tell me you're getting soft, I said earning a glare from Rage. 
All right, that's enough. Ash, do you think you can play a Windigo in the play? Celestia asked. Ash in acting, this I gotta see, Rage said with a laugh. I can give it a try, I said. Wonderful, Celestia said. What about us? Cadence asked. You two will still be in the show but Ash will also play a Windigo and make the sound effects and maybe give you some pointers. If you wish your stallion friends can play as the secondary characters, Celestia said. We'd be honored your highness, Max said. I'll also send someone to have rooms ready for all of you to stay tonight, Celestia said. Well while you do that Tia I'll take these young ponies to the kitchen for some treats, Luna said earning her from the foals before they all left. Granny Smith would you mind walking with me? There is something I would like to talk to you about, Celestia said walking to the door. Not at all Celestia, Granny Smith said walking over to the alabaster alicorn and then out the door. Well I must be off. I am extremely busy so, until next time Rage Discord said. Indeed Discord, Rage said before Rage entered my body and Discord disappeared. Well now what? Comet asked. Well maybe you can fill me in on this play because I don't know a thing about it, I said. Oh that's right, well I'd better start from the beginning, Twilight said. Later that evening. Twilight told me the story of before the rule of Faust and Celestia, the tree tribes, the unicorns, the pegasi and the earth ponies and how they disliked each other. This story revolves around the three leaders and their second in command. Princess Platinum the ruler of the unicorns and Clover the clever Princess Platinum sorcerer. For the Pegasi Commander Hurricane and Private Pansy. For the Earth Ponies their leader was Chancellor Puddinghead and her secretary was Smart Cookie. The tree tribes had disliked each other for years, in exchange for giving rain to the land the Pegasi demanded food from the Earth Ponies and in exchange for both day and night the Unicorns also demanded food from the Earth Ponies. One day a blizzard descended upon the land and the Earth Ponies stopped handing out food to the other tribes and demanded for the Pegasi to stop making it snow. But the Pegasi claimed to have no involvement in it and blamed the Unicorns for using their magic to make it snow. The Unicorns denied it as well, so without a peaceful solution they decided to go it alone and leave their old land and go off in search of a new one. Each of the leaders set out with their most trusted in the tribes. They searched for days until they arrived in a new land, coincidentally they happened to arrive at the same place at the same time. Soon the leaders began to fight with each other for the land but as they fought snow began to cover the ground. Soon the new land became a winter barren plain like their old home. Seeking shelter, all the leaders found a cave and they all had to share it. Soon an argument broke out for a rock of all things. As the argument raged on the leaders of the three tribes began to freeze over with ice leaving the second in command which leads us to the present. Twilight is Clover the Clever, Applejack is Smart Cookie and Fluttershy is Private Pansy backed away as they watched Rainbow Dash as Commander Hurricane, Rarity as Princess Platinum and Pinkie Pie as Chancellor Pudding Head began to freeze over until they were completely encased in ice. But thanks to a little magic they were frozen in a crystal substance that allows them to breathe but not move. Twilight, Applejack and Fluttershy backed up into the center of the stage away from the growing ice that froze the leaders, until they bumped into each other letting out a shriek but took a breath when they saw each other. I took that as my cue and let out a howl causing the remaining three to cry out in terror and search for the noise. I put on a disguise that hid my wings and turned me into a windigo. I flew down from my place in the ceiling of the stage and over the audience and thanks to a spell from Twilight, every time I blew out air I covered whatever my breath touched in frost giving the audience the impression I was a real windigo. Cadence flew around with me also in a disguise while shining in his disguise used wires to hang above the stage. What are those things? Fluttershy asked shivering as if she was cold. They must be windigos, Twilight said. Windigos, Applejack and Fluttershy repeated. My mentor Starsworld the Bearded taught me about them, they're winter spirits that feed off fighting and hatred. The more hate the spirit feels, the colder things become, Twilight explained. Then this is our fault, we three tribes we brought this blizzard to our home by fighting and not trusting each other, now it's destroying this land too, Applejack said. And now our bodies will become as cold as our hearts, all because we were foolish enough to hate, Twilight said closing her eyes and waiting for the end. Well I don't hate you, I actually hate Commander Hurricane more than I hate you guys, Fluttershy said earning a laugh from both Twilight and Applejack. The laughs were a signal for shining, Cadence and I to look a little weaker from the laughter. Both Cadence and I flew over to the stage and started to circle above the three ponies like vultures. Actually I don't really hate her, I just really dislike her, Fluttershy continued earning more laughs. Well I don't hate you guys either, Applejack said. Nor do I, Twilight said. At that cadence, Shining and I made ourselves look like we were in a slight amount of pain before we circled faster. As the girls were talking the ice surrounding the girls reached their necks. No matter what our differences were we're all ponies, Applejack said as the ice covered them. But before the ice completely covered Twilight's horn a large pink flame burst from her horn shattering the three from the ice prison and began to push against Shining, Cadence and I, while we pretended to desperately push against it, only for us to be pushed back into the rafters. After we disappeared from the audience's view the blast of flame turned into a pink heart of fire. What was that? Fluttershy asked. I didn't know unicorns could do that, Applejack said. I didn't either. Nothing like this has ever happened before, but I know it couldn't have been just me, it came from all three of us joined together in friendship, Twilight said holding her hand out in the middle for a hand pylon, which the other two joined in. Just then Spike walked on stage to narrate the rest of the story. All through the night the tree ponies kept the fire of friendship alive by telling stories to each other and singing songs. Which became the winter carols that we all still sing today. Eventually the warmth of the fire, the singing and the laughing reached the three leaders. And their bodies began to thaw and it even melted their hearts. The three leaders agreed to share the beautiful land and live in harmony ever afterwards but over time they met a pony who had both wings and a horn and was truly wise. They found out that this pony created this land and she offered protection for the tribes. And all three tribes agreed for her to be their queen for she resembled all three tribes and together they named their new land. Equestria. The girls shouted as they raised the equestrian flag. After that the curtains closed and the audience let out cheers, the curtains opened again to show the main six and spike lined up in a row taking their bows. Just then bells started to ring and every pony began to sing. After everyone sang the curtains closed and the girls and spike walked backstage. We should be so honored that Princess Celestia chose us, she must really think we exemplify what good friends are, Twilight said as she and the others stood backstage while I watched from the rafters. 
All of a sudden, cold winds blew in from the windows. Applejack I thought you closed those windows, Rarity said. Don't blame me, Rainbow Dash should have flown up there and shut it, after all she's got wings, Applejack said. Why do I have to do all the high up chores? Why can't Twilight use her magic for a change? Rainbow asked. Soon enough the room was filled with squabbling from the six so I decided to do something about it. I let out a howl quiet enough to not be heard outside the room and loud enough for the girls to hear. The girls huddled together as the sound reached their ears. You know what, I got it, Rainbow said as she flew over to the windows and closed them getting laughs from every pony. I flew down from the raptors to join the laughing group. Mind letting me in on the joke? I asked. Oh hey Ash, don't worry it's nothing, but great acting out there, Twilight said. You lot did better, I said. I have to agree with the girls. I turned around and I saw Mac, Pierce, Soren, Comet and Caramel standing in the doorway that led out to the theater. Well I still say you're giving me too much credit, I said with a laugh. The stallions and I left the room to give the mare some privacy. Once we did I saw all the princesses and Discord talking amongst themselves with the cutie mark crusaders and Granny Smith. So you gonna ask Twilight out yet? I asked Comet. Well yeah, but it's just, well, Comet mumbled. It's shining right, I said. Yeah, Comet admitted. You let me take care of that okay, I said. Thanks, Comet said. No problem, I said patting his back before I walked over to both Shining and Cadence. Hey Ash great job out there, Cadence said. Thanks and you guys did alright with your howling, you made a large improvement from when I first heard it, I said. Thanks I think, Cadence said. Ah Shining, you know Comet tail right, I asked. Sure what about him, Shining asked. Well he kinda has a thing for Twilight, I said. Cadence squealed like a filly but Shining took a few seconds to process the information I sent him. When it got through he tried to lunge at Comet but I grabbed his tail and held onto him, but he dragged me across the floor. Even Cadence had trouble restraining him with her magic. Shining stopped Cadence pleaded. That won't work, I said. Then what will? Cadence asked. I took a breath and used my official voice. Shining armor stand down that's an order. I roared. Shining immediately stopped dead in his tracks directly over a panicking comet, allowing both Cadence and I to relax but still keeping a strong grip on him. Look Shining, I know what you're thinking but I can assure you that Comet is a good guy and will be good to Twilight. I trust him with my life and you also need to remember that TWI isn't a filly anymore, I said. I know that but Shining started. But nothing, a brother's job is to be there for his sibling not chase off suitors. TWI did try to chase off Cadence at first but that's only because it wasn't her at the time. And she didn't know you were marrying her besides who's to say it will work out between them, I said. Um I do, Cadence said. Not helping you know, I said. Right, Cadence said. Look the point is you need to let Twilight decide when or who to date, I said. The room was silent for a few minutes before Shining looked back at me. You're right I guess, I'm just overprotective, Shining admitted. Runs in the family, I said with a smirk before I released Shining's tail. Okay I won't tear your head off for wanting to date my sister, Shining said offering his hand to Comet. Comet shakily accepted the hand and stood up only for Shining to grab his shirt and bring him close to his face. But if you hurt her I will hunt you down to the ends of Equestria, Shining said releasing his grip on Comet. Just then Twilight and the others walked out from behind the stage door and saw all of us. What did we miss? Pinky asked. Nothing, every pony said at the same time. The girls gave every pony a suspicious look before they shrugged it off and walked down to join us. We left the theater and walked down the hallways towards the dining room to eat. Hey Ash, Cadence said. What's up Cadence? I asked. It's just that this may seem weird but Cadence said. Cadence you can tell me. What is it you want to know? I asked. Do you love any pony you know from this world? She asked. The question took me completely off guard, now that I thought about it do I actually like anyone? Just like that my gaze found itself on Luna talking with Pipsqueak and smiling that beautiful smile of hers. I don't know Cadence, I haven't exactly felt that emotion since I was with my family, I said. I see, Cadence said. We reached a path that went off in two different directions every pony went left while I took the right. Hey Ash aren't you going to eat with us? Pierce asked getting the group to stop and look at me. Nah I'm a little tired right now so I might head off to bed, I said. I insist that you eat something Ash, after all you put on an amazing show along with your friends for us, Luna said. Thank you for the compliment oh beautiful goddess of the moon. But I'm just a little tired from the acting so I'll be off to bed, I will see you all tomorrow, I said as I kept my right leg straight and bent my left leg and placing my left hand on my chest, and held out my right arm and bowed deeply before I turned around and left for my room. Whoa your majesty, you okay? You're as red as Big Mac, Applejack said when she saw Luna's face. I'm sorry it's just no stallion has blessed me with such words before, Luna said. Who is our little moon flower in love, Discord said waggling his eyebrows. Luna lost her blush immediately and her eyes lit with fury and fired a spell at Discord who dodged it easily and flew off with Luna not far behind. Get back here you slithering coward and face our wrath, Luna shouted in the royal canterlot voice as she chased Discord down the hallways. You know I can't exactly blame Luna, Ash certainly has a way with complimenting a lady, Rarity said. Yes I saw your face when we arrived in canterlot this morning red as a tomato, Gilda said with a laugh. Cadence looked back into the direction Ash walked off in before she looked back at the direction Luna ran off and then back to Ash. Haven't felt that emotion since your family my pink flank, Cadence said to herself with a devious smirk. I woke up to four small objects jumping up and down on my bed, my senses kicked in slowly starting with my hearing. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Four voices yelled in sync. I slowly opened my eyes to see Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo and Pipsqueak bouncing up and down on my bed. What is it you four? I asked in a groggy tone. It's heart's warming day, it's time for presents, Scootaloo said. What time is it? I asked while sitting up. Around 5.30 in the morning, Pip said. Let me get this straight, the sun hasn't even risen and you woke me up because you're too impatient to wait to open your gifts. I asked calmly. Yeah, they replied in union. 
back to bed with you four and wait for the sun like everyone else and if you're that restless explore the castle, I said gripping the folds in my magic and dropped them outside the door and closed it before I shifted over in my bed to try and fall asleep once more. After a few minutes I gave up and got changed and stepped out of my doors and into the deserted hallway. Oh good morrow to you Ash. I turned around and I see Discord hovering above me. Hello Discord, what are you doing up? I asked. The little foals you brought with you have been causing a great deal of chaos ever since they woke up, Discord said. That sounds like them, I said to myself. Oh by the way Ash, that little secret behind the mark on your back is quite the fascinating one and what that Alex did for you was quite noble, it brought tears to my eyes, Discord said. At these words I lost control of my body and I launched myself up at Discord and summoned Whispering Wind and slashed at Discord. But Discord just teleported behind me, I fired a blast of magic that knocked him to the ground and I flew down at him ready to skewer him to the ground, but he just dodged Whispering Wind once more. I touched the ground and moved with impossible speed and landed a hit on Discord's arm. I looked back at my attacker to see blood drip from the wound. My congratulations to you Ash Blade, it's been a while since anyone managed to spill my blood in combat but I think that's enough, Discord said. Trapping me in a lime green see-through box. I slashed and blasted my magic at the box resulting in cracking it. Before you go and break out of that box and try to kill me, you should know I won't be telling any pony about your little secret, Discord said. I immediately stopped and looked at Discord with burning eyes. Why should I believe you? It must have been a lot of trouble to find out about that, I said in a bloodthirsty tone. You can't blame me for being curious but I can see why you'd want such a thing hidden. So right here right now, I pinky promise you I won't breathe a word of what I know and what happened here. Cross my heart and hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye, Discord said in a serious tone. I thought it over before I sent Whispering Wind back to where I keep my armor and Discord dispelled the box. You break that promise and it's not just my wrath you'll face but pinkies as well, I said. I'm well aware of that thanks for the tip, Discord said as he teleported away from me. I looked at the empty space for a few minutes before I began my walk down the hall. Sunrise. I stood at a window looking at the light pink sky and the bright orb appearing beyond the horizon and the moon just about to leave. I continued my watch until the sound of hooves approached. I turned my head to see Luna in a blue dressing gown approaching me. Well good morning sleeping beauty. Sleep well, I asked with a chuckle. Quite well, there weren't many nightmares to get rid of, Luna said with a slight hint of red in her cheeks. I see, I said turning my gaze back to the window. If I may ask why are you up so early? I felt your presence leave the dream world, Luna asked. The cutie mark crusaders decided to give me a rude awakening this morning, I said with a small smile on my face. Yes I can imagine, I remember when was a filly, I used to walk on top of Celestia early in the morning while she was still in bed, I sang I'm walking on sunshine, Luna said. This caused me to let out a full-blown laugh and I had to use the wall as support. Ah oh man, I can see that now, I said as my laughs died down. I don't think Tia was too thrilled with it either, Luna said while she laughed. We looked into each other's eyes before both of us stepped closer to each other. So anything happened this morning? Luna asked. Not that I can think of besides keeping the CMC out of trouble, I said. But they are an adorable bunch, how much trouble can fourfolds be? Luna asked as we stopped in front of each other. Well considering that you just said that we're about to find out, I said. All of a sudden we hear cheers of joy come from around a corner. A little while later the CMC are riding a food cart like a go-kart and smash into Luna and I, knocking us up and over the still moving cart. Sorry, all four foals shouted out before disappearing down another hallway. That's how much trouble they can cause, I groaned. Right I'll need to remember that, Luna said. From the collision with the cart Luna ended up lying on top of me, we looked into each other's eyes with burning cheeks. I, I think I better stop those four before they get some pony seriously injured, I said. Um yes that would be a good idea, Luna said as she climbed off of me. I stood up and began to go after the runaway trolley but I looked back at Luna and decided to pull off a daring move. You know you look cute when you blush, I said before I planted a kiss in the lower corner of her lips. Luna let out a squeak of surprise and turned seriously red it was ridiculous. Well I've got some foals to catch and pray they haven't done any damage, I said then I extended my wings and flew off down the hallway after the CMC as they rode the cart. Luna stood paralyzed on the spot with her red face before she squeed and she jumped up and down. She regained her composure and walked down the hallway with a slight skip in her step but unbeknownst to her, a figure watched the whole incident in the shadows. So I was right. I managed to halt the cutie mark crusaders before they crashed and flew out an open window and told the girls older siblings about what had transpired with them. Boy, were they ticked and got even madder when I told them about my wake-up call, the girls ended up being grounded for a week. Pip got off lightly because none of us were his parents or siblings. Later every pony woke up and the families arrived. I was introduced to Fluttershy's mother, Rarity and Rainbow's family, and Pinky's family which was not what I was expecting at all, they were actually neutral and gloomy. I was surprised and asked myself how Pinky became Pinky from a family like that. I also met Thunderlane's parents and his little brother Rumble. The others' families were having other parties all around Equestria and couldn't make it. Once the introductions were over with, we left for the dining room. Morning your majesties, I said as we entered the dining room. All five princesses in shining armor were sitting at a table eating a breakfast of fruits and pancakes. Hello Ash, sleep well? Dreamcatcher asked. Perfectly, although it could have been better without the wake-up call, I said looking at the CMC who had hung their heads in shame. Well I can say that today will be better, Celestia said with a smile. Why's that? I asked. You'll see, but first let's eat and then we'll open presents, Celestia said. At this all the foals raced off towards the table to eat while the rest of us took a seat Pip decided to sit in between both Luna and Dreamcatcher. Pip started off the conversation by telling Dreamcatcher about Nightmare Night which she found delightful. Then waiters came in with our dishes, everyone was given fruits and pancakes while Gilda and my dish made a few ponies pale. Ash Gilda is that? Twilight asked. Bacon. Sure is, but I'm surprised you eat meat Ash Gilda said. That's right, none of you know us humans are basically omnivores. We eat a balanced diet of fruit, veg and meat, I said. 
Fascinating, Twilight said summoning a pen and notepad and started scribbling on it. Please Twilight not at breakfast, Twilight Velvet said grabbing both the notepad and pen and placing them next to her. But mom, Twilight whined. You can have it back later, but first we eat, Velvet said. The room was enveloped in silence after that until Discord appeared. Sorry I'm late, had a little matter to deal with, Discord said. I pray it won't cause us problems, Chrysalis said. Don't worry your pretty little head Chrissy, everything is fine, Discord said reaching over the table and patting her head. I told you I hate being called that, Chrysalis growled. Discord, why are you wearing that bandage on your arm? Celestia asked. I stopped mid-chew to look at the bandage on Discord's arm to see it was where I'd cut him. Oh I was just being careless and injured myself, nothing important, Discord said. With what exactly? Luna asked with suspicion. A knife, Discord said simply. Liar, what did you do? Applejack said slamming her hand on the table. Everyone but me gave Discord a cold glare wanting him to confess. I can't say, Discord said. What do you mean you can't say? Twilight asked. Because I made a pinky promise not to, Discord said folding his arms. Everyone was surprised by this until Twilight spoke. Pinky is there a way to undo the promise? Twilight asked. Are you loco in the cocoa? You can't undo a pinky promise, Pinky said in an insulted tone. Yes, but Twilight started. Nope, once the promise is made you can't take it back, Pinky said holding up her hand to stop Twilight. So there is no way to find out. Twilight said in a defeated tone and slumped her head on the table. Well you could ask the pony I made the promise to, but I can't say more than that because of the promise, Discord said. But that could take Ian's rarity wind. Then I suggest you start looking, Discord said lounging on a cloud. I believe that will do for the subject, but Discord answer me this, is this pony likely to be a threat, Celestia asked. Can't say for sure but I doubt it, Discord said shrugging his shoulders. Very well, then the only thing we can do is pray this won't get serious because only beings with a large amount of power, close, equal or higher can make an immortal being bleed, Celestia said earning gulps from the group. Okay, I believe that is enough gloom and doom shall we open presents. Dreamcatcher said earning cheers from the foals, Spike, Pinky, Gilda and Rainbow as they ran, flew off to the throne room. The rest of us all left the table and walked after the excited group to the throne room. Once we arrived we were greeted by a humongous pine tree that almost reached the ceiling. It was covered in decorations but my gaze of the tree drifted downward looking at every decoration hanging from the branches until my gaze reached the bottom. To my surprise not a gift lay at the foot of the tree, the group that came in earlier had looks of confusion on their faces as they circled the tree looking for the gifts. Hey what gives? Where are the presents? Gilda asked. Oh I didn't say they were here Gilda, Dreamcatcher said with a giggle. Then where are they? Rainbow asked in annoyance. Just then all five princesses turned their heads in my direction with smiles on their faces. I looked to my left and then my right to see no one on either side of me then I looked at the princesses. Why are you lot looking at me like that, I said in a nervous tone backing away slowly. Well in order to get to the other gifts you need to open yours first, Celestia said. Huh, was all I said before all five alicorns lit up their horns and all of us vanished leaving an empty room. Ah, I yelled as I fell ten feet from the air into a pile of snow. I groaned before I heard teleportation spells go off above me. I looked up to see the others about to fall on me I teleported out of the way before I was crushed. Lastly the princesses and discord glided down to the ground softly. I suppose you thought that was funny, I said in an annoyed tone. Apologies, we must have made a mistake in our spell when we brought you here, Caden said. And where exactly is here? I asked. Celestia twirled her finger around in a gesture for me to turn around. So I did as instructed but I was not prepared for what I saw. It was a large two-storied manor, something you would see in the Canterlot Rich District. But our surroundings indicated we were northwest of Ponyville on a small hill that overlooked the town. Whose house is that? I had heard that a home was being built here but I didn't know who for, I said. That's because it's yours Ash, Chrysalis said. I looked back at the princesses in complete shock thoughts were running through my mind at a million miles an hour. Mine, I said. My response was met with nods from not only the princesses but my friends as well. You guys I, I don't know what to say, I said. Then don't, let's get inside before we all freeze, Rainbow said shivering from the cold. Oh right, sorry, I said as I led the group to the front door. The front door was a grand double oak door and had my mark etched into the wood with gold door knobs. I gripped one of the knobs and turned it and opened the door. I was greeted by the warmth from inside. Everyone walked inside and I saw red carpet that covered the floor and stairs that led up to the second floor. Pillars rose up from the floor and made two rows of three that lead to the staircase and two doorways on either side of the room, and a staircase that lead to other rooms of the house. Nice digs, I could get used to living here, Rage said as he appeared. Every pony, I don't have the words to thank you, I said. Don't ash, this is our thank you gift to you. We even supplied the house with furniture so you won't have to pay for it, Chrysalis said. We even added our own little tidbits here and there, Comet said gesturing to my group of friends. You guys are the best, I said. I'll show you around while the others head into the lounge room to open their gifts, Celestia said. Thank you Celestia, I said as rage disappeared into my body and the others went into the lounge room. Let's start our tour in the kitchen, Celestia said as she led me to the door left of the staircase. The whole house was amazing, the kitchen was large enough to fit a staff of at least 10 chefs in there, the dining room which was next to the kitchen was so cozy and was beyond the doorway on the left side of the entry room. The door on the right of the staircase led into the entertainment room and in between both the kitchen and entertainment room behind the stairs was a gym. A door sat underneath the stairs that led to the wine cellar, basement. Celestia then led me up the stairs and I had my own library for the books on the nights which would be transferred to here where I would watch over them from now on. The bathroom was dazzling, the bathtub would be able to hold three ponies. The last five rooms of the house was the bedroom which I would get to see when I went to bed. And three other empty rooms to be turned into anything I wished. Finally the lounge room, the room itself was big enough to be a small ballroom, it had a fireplace and couches. A large decorated pine tree was in the center of the room where the others were unwrapping their gifts, I smiled as they each got a gift that lit their faces up, and it was magical. 
You guys, thank you all for participating in building my new home. I promise to make this up to you all next hearts warming, I said. Oh Ash, don't worry about it, in fact I have one more gift for you, Rarity said. Rarity haven't you all given me enough with this beautiful home? I asked. Certainly not, besides I made this for you, I really think it will suit you as well, Rarity said. Okay, I said in defeat. Rarity reached behind the tree and pulled out a large box with a brown ribbon tied around it. I don't know why but something about this just made me think of you, Rarity said handing me the box. I took the box and undid the ribbon and opened the lid to see a large black coat with a hood. I put on the coat and slipped my wings through the wing slits and pulled the hood over my face. Every pony was complimenting me on how good it looked on and Gilda let out a wolf howl which caused me to laugh. Wow Rarity, you were right it suits Ash perfectly. Oh and that reminds me, Twilight said handing me a thick sky blue book. I took the book in my hands and saw in gold writing the word memories I opened the book and I saw photos of our times together. From when I was a wolf as well as pictures from Nightmare Night and at the Canterlot wedding. As I looked through the photos I felt a few tears start to fill my eyes. Once I reached the point there were no more I closed the book and grabbed both Twilight and Rarity and wrapped them in a hug. Hey why don't we add another for the album? I asked once I released both Twilight and Rarity from the hug. That's a wonderful idea, Luna agreed. Twilight summoned her camera and everyone squeezed in. I stood in the center with Pip on my shoulders and dust on Pip's shoulder and Luna next to me. But I felt something missing I thought before it hit me like a ton of bricks. You two rage, I said getting the group to look at me. Me, rage said confused as he separated from me. Is there another rage? I asked sarcastically. Rage just gave a shrug and he stood next to me. Twilight levitated the camera in front of us and snapped a picture. The photo came out perfectly and I placed it in the book immediately and looked out the window to see the snow had stopped falling. Hey guys it stopped snowing, I said. Hey how about a quick snowball fight Thunderlane suggested earning cheers from the group before they raced out the front door. I stopped in my tracks when Rage wasn't moving. Come on Rage, let's go have fun, I said. Why do you want me out there, you have friends to hang out with. Why do you need me out there when I was nothing but horrible to you? Rage asked. Because I believe in second chances and you should too. Now stop moping and let's go, I said in an encouraging tone. But I doubt they would want me, Rage said. Hey, are you two coming or what Pinky said with her head in the doorway before she disappeared behind it. Need any more proof, I asked. All right I'm coming, Rage said as we walked to the front door. The snowball fight lasted the entire afternoon before the princesses and Discord left for Canterlot and my friend's parents also left for home. My friends had a quick snack with me then they left and I walked Pip back to the orphanage and apologized and explained to the earth pony that runs the orphanage called Goldheart about Pip's absence. She forgave me and told me she was glad he got to spend time with me and the princesses. I thanked the mayor then I went back home and read for the rest of the day. Once it was dusk I set up my dinner and ate it then I walked into my new room for the first time. The room was above the front door and the carpets were gray and the walls were midnight blue and a large circular bed was in the center facing the window doors that led to the balcony outside. Hanging on both sides of the window were a couple of sea blue curtains, a portable telescope sat in the right corner of the room ready to use and a bookcase sat on the left of the room next to a writing desk. Next to the bookcase were doors that lead to the master bathroom. The bathroom had gray shiny tiles on the floor like the other bathroom and cream white walls like the other bathroom. But the difference was that the tub sat in the corner and the gray tiles had been built around it and steps had been made to reach the top of the bath. The tub itself was big enough to fit all five princesses and still had room. A door was on the right side of the room that led into a walk-in wardrobe, it was also large enough to fit eleven ponies. The wardrobe had a place for everything like shoes, shirts, pants and coats, there was even a place for my armor and weapons. But the best part of the room was the glass dome above the bed which allowed me to see the night sky. The room was fit for a king in my opinion. I changed into my pajamas and placed dust in his new birdhouse which he found to be a palace fit for a bird, then I climbed into my bed. The bed was so soft it made me feel like I was sleeping on clouds. After a minute of watching the sky I fell into sleep's embrace. Are you sure? Celestia asked. No doubt about it I saw Ash give Luna a peck in the lower corner of her mouth and said, you know you look cute when you blush, Cadence said. Squee Luna is growing up so fast, oh mother would be so proud, Chrysalis said. Indeed, but why are you telling us Cadence, Dreamcatcher asked. Well I kinda think they are too shy to admit it, Cadence said. So you're saying we need to give them a push, Celestia said. Precisely, Cadence said with a smirk. Chapter 14 The Crystal Empire I opened my eyes to see a pair of light blue eyes staring back at me and filling my vision. Ah, we both screamed at the same time and I shot upwards only to hit my head against the company in the room. I groaned as I sat up slowly and looked around and I saw that I was back in Faust's library, the alicorn herself was rubbing her head from where collided with each other. Jeez Faust, don't do that. You nearly gave me a heart attack, I said rubbing my head. Deepest apologies Ash but you smell different for some reason, it's a pleasant smell though, Faust said. Maybe it's because of the new soap I used before bed, I replied. That must be it, by the way well done in freeing Dreamcatcher, also congrats for also gaining a place to call home for yourself and it's a relief that Discord is at peace once more, Faust said. Thanks Faust but if Discord pulls another stunt like this morning he's gonna wish he stayed a lawn ornament, I said with a voice filled with malice. Yes I saw what you went through as well, I can't believe a young mind can see so much horror and go through such pain and still call himself sane, Faust said. Aren't my memories from Earth safe from any pony these days? I asked myself. Don't think so. Oh and Faust the water incident when last we spoke was caused by a young unicorn by the name of Twilight Sparkle, Rage said as we separated. Yes I am aware of that but I can't blame her, she didn't know we were talking and it's not like I can put up a sign saying speaking with Faust do not disturb. Also no damage was done thanks to a little magic, Faust replied. Well Twilight will be glad to know that, I said with a sigh on the end. What troubles you Ash? Faust asked. Well it's nothing really, it's just every now and again I sometimes wish Rage and I were separated like Rage was his own man, I said. I kinda agree with you there, I mean there are things I want to do myself and not be connected with Ash here, Rage said. 
I believe I can help with that, Faust said. What? How? I asked with confusion. The next demon you need to kill is a cruel and foul ruler by the name of King Sombra, Faust said with venom in her voice. A demon as a ruler? How did that happen? Rage asked. Sombra was a demon sent by Heartless to take control of the Crystal Empire, a place of powerful magic led by a wise and fair couple, that is until Sombra came. He led an army of crystal creatures made of dark corrupted magic and conducted public executions of the entire royal bloodline. Elders, adults and foals alike, he spared no one and forced his subjects into slavery to dig in his mines for something. If there were any who stood against him they were killed on the spot, Faust said. As I thought about the poor souls who were suffering under the whip of this monster I looked at Rage who was having trouble hiding his anger. The flames on him were larger and were a little brighter and he was gritting his teeth. Where can we find this bastard so I show him my steel? Rage asked in a dark tone. He will return to Equestria shortly because he was turned to pure shadow and was banished to the Arctic North thanks to the knights and Celestia and Luna, Faust said. Forgive me for asking Faust, but how does this separate Rage from me? I asked. Sombra's soul is coursing with power and is very close to Heartless, you could call him his second in command. If Rage devours Sombra's soul the power it holds will be able to separate you both and Faust said. Strike a critical blow to Heartless, Rage said. But this also means that this Sombra will be powerful, I said with caution. Indeed, but I know both of you will prevail and Ashi will become stronger than ever when you pull this off, Faust said. Don't worry Faust, we got this, Rage said pounding a fist on his chest. Rage is right, I said. Good luck and give my regards to Dreamcatcher and Discord. One more thing Ash, a gift awaits you in your new closet, Faust said as she sent us off with a flash of magic. I woke up and looked around my new room. The window on the roof indicated the sun had just risen and was time to start a new day. I climbed out of bed and opened the window to the balcony to let dust out. I then had a bath and got changed into a pair of blue jeans and a white top. I was about to walk over to my closet to see the gift Faust had left me only I caught wind of something cooking. You smell that, I thought. Yeah smells like it's coming from the kitchen and it smells good, Rage replied. But aren't we the only ones in the house, I thought. Well we aren't going to find out like this, Rage said. I armed myself with my hidden blade and phantom blade and walked out of my room towards the kitchen. Without a noise I reached the door of the kitchen through the dining room and peeked inside. To my surprise I saw a cream-furred mare with a crimson mane and tail and green eyes wearing a skimpy French maid's outfit. She was standing over a stove cooking French toast. Just then another maid came in with a broom in hand, she had blue fur and a yellow mane and tail with amber eyes and also wore a skimpy maid's outfit like the other, but she had a pair of wings. Excuse me, but why are you two in my home? I asked as I walked into the kitchen while extending the hidden blade behind my back. Oh good morning master, the earth pony said with a smile, the last word caused me to tense up. Wait master, I asked retracting the hidden blade. Yes, Celestia sent us to be your personal housemaids, the Pegasus answered. Why didn't Celestia tell me any of this? I asked. She should have told you that we were coming last night but fortunately she thought ahead, the Pegasus said pulling out a piece of paper from her cleavage. I blushed as the mare handed me the paper and I opened it to read the contents. Dear Ash Blade. If you are reading this it means I forgot to mention to you that these two mares will be your personal housemaids. They are hard workers and a fun to be around. These two live in Ponyville so they won't live in the same house as you do and I apologize for the inconvenience. Also the crown will be paying them so don't worry about wages for them. Yours sincerely. Celestia. I pinched the bridge of my nose after I read the letter. You and I are gonna have serious words later Celestia, I thought. You have to admit they look hot, Rage said. Shut up asshole, I thought in an angry tone. I believe we should introduce ourselves, my name is Feather Duster, the Pegasus said as she curtsied. And I'm Silver Tray and it is an honor to serve you master, the Earth Pony said as she curtsied. Okay first off, some ground rules. Don't call me master or curtsy please, just call me Ash and treat me like a friend, so no bowing of any kind, I said earning nods from the mares. Breakfast will be served in a moment it's French toast, Silver Tray said turning back to the stove. Alright thank you, I said as I left and teleported my weapons back to my room. After breakfast I showed the girls the house and once finished I walked into my room to view my gift from Faust. I walked into my closet to inspect everything but nothing seemed out of the ordinary at first. When I looked at the area where I keep my armor I saw a second mannequin with beautifully made robes that covered armor plates, the metal plates were wrapped in leather to prevent sound of clanking metal. The robes were gray but mostly black and had a shoulder cape that draped over my left arm and a mask covered the face. A card lay in the chest area so I reached and grabbed the card and opened it. Dear Ash. I'm sure you know by now that Altair, Ezio and Arno were part of a creed of assassins to protect humanity, these robes are similar to what they wore and I felt that these robes would serve where your armor cannot. Like stealth they were designed to fit your wings and handle the hidden blades with ease, I hope they are to your liking. Faust. I placed the card on a seat in the room and snapped my fingers, in a flash I was dressed in the robes. I looked at myself in the mirror and placed the hood over my head and pulled the cape over my shoulder. I had to say my reflection looked awesome and I thought Rarity would pass out from overexcitement at the sight of my clothes. Before I placed the mask on I heard a knock at the door and I walked towards it. Come in, I said in a loud tone to be heard. Feather Duster opened the door and gasped in wonder at the sight of my new clothes. Not bad huh, I said giving a little twirl for the mare. It's impossible to describe. Oh there's a dragon at the door for you he says his name is Spike, Feather said. I'll see him now, thank you Feather, I said as I walked past her and put on my mask. I walked down the stairs and I saw Spike talking with Silver. Hey Spike, what brings you here? I asked. Spike looked towards me and his jaw dropped as he looked me over. Ash is that you? Damn, when did Rarity make you those? Spike asked. She didn't, these were a gift from Faust and these were designed by a creed of assassins which Altair, Ezio and Arno were part of, I said. Damn you humans have quite a way of making yourselves look cool, Spike said. Thanks, now what do you need Spike? I asked. Oh Twilight got a letter from Celestia this morning. She asked both you and Twilight to come to Canterlot, Spike said. I'll be right over, I said as I snapped my fingers and I was wearing my casual clothes once more. 
Why not keep the robes on? Spike asked. I want to surprise the girls with it, especially Rarity, I said. Gotcha and if I may ask why do you have maids here? Spike asked. I'll tell you on the way, I replied. We arrived at Twilight's house and I saw every pony there while Twilight was running around in a frenzy. Flashcards I should make some flashcards. Spike I'm going to need you to quiz me on everything I've ever learned, Twilight said handing him two huge stacks of cards that doubled Spike's height. That isn't going to be enough cards. TWI you need to calm down it's just a test, Spike said placing the cards on a table. Just a test, just a test. Princess Celestia summoned me to Canterlot for something important and you're saying it's just a test. Twilight shouted inches away from Spike. You may not be having a test at all Twilight, I said. Didn't you just hear me when I said that I was summoned to Canterlot for something important? Of course it's a test what else could it be? Twilight screeched turning towards me. All I'm saying is that I was summoned as well and I doubt I'm going to take a test because I'm not Celestia's student. But feel free to bring some stuff for a test if you want to. My guess is this summoning has something to do with my next kill, I said. Wait kill, you mean you saw Faust? Twilight squeaked in fear. Yes and you'll be glad to know she holds no ill will towards you and her library is safe, I said causing Twilight to breathe a sigh of relief. Hang on, is this kill supposed to be a demon because if it is I want in, Rainbow said pounding her hands together. Same, Gilda said cracking her talons. I don't know you two, things get really ugly when I fight demons and I'd hate to see anyone injured or worse, I said. We'll be fine besides, you went last time with Luna and Rage by your side, now it's our turn, Rainbow said. Um Ash, can you tell me about this demon? Twilight asked. I think I'll let Celestia explain, I could be wrong about you taking a test and it having something to do with my target, I said. After Twilight gathered all the materials she thought she'd need for the test she and I boarded a train for Canterlot. When we arrived we walked straight to the castle and the guards allowed us entry and informed us of Celestia's location. We walked off towards the throne room and as we arrived I saw Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, Princess Chrysalis and Princess Dreamcatcher all looking at a window, which showed Rage and I battling the demon that possessed Chrysalis. Along with shining armors and cadences bodies in a heart shape, sending out a blast of magic that killed the remaining demons. Ahem, Twilight said politely causing the princesses to turn towards us, you wanted to see us to probably give me a test and an assignment for Ash. I brought my own quills and plenty of paper to show my work, Twilight said as she unpacked her bags and grabbed a scroll. But she grabbed an end of it and it began to unravel, the scroll was so long it reached the princess's hooves, sorry, 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 Twilight repeated as she tried to roll up the scroll. This is a different kind of test, Celestia said as she rolled up the scroll with her magic and placed it back in her bag. The Crystal Empire has returned. Called it, I said. Wait, you knew, Dreamcatcher asked in surprise. Faust beat you all in explaining it to me, I replied. Care to fill me in, because none of my books say anything, Twilight said with worry. There would be few that remember that it ever existed at all. Even my knowledge of the Empire is limited, Celestia said as she lifted a glass lid off a pedestal behind her throne and brought a purple crystal before Twilight and I. Celestia hit the top of the crystal with magic creating a hologram of the Empire, showing ponies with crystal-like coats living happy lives. But what I do know is that it contains a powerful magic. One thousand years ago King Sombre a unicorn whose heart was as black as night took over the Crystal Empire. Immediately the hologram changed the Crystal Palace and buildings turned black and jagged and I saw an image of Sombra. He was a dark grey unicorn with a black mane that flickered like fire. His eyes were green where the whites were supposed to be with blood-red slitted pupils and purple vapors leaked from his eyes. He had sharp teeth and he wore dark armor and a red cape with a white fluffy trim with black spots. He also had a red curved horn poking out of his head. He was standing on a balcony of the castle overlooking the civilians in chains. Each one had either miserable looks on their faces or it was in pain as they faced the lash of a whip from one of Sombra's crystal minions. My anger for this coward was spiking beyond measure, I was ready to spill blood. He was ultimately overthrown by both Luna and I and turned to shadow and banished to the ice of the Arctic North while the five knights fought his army. But before he disappeared he placed a curse upon the Empire, a curse that caused the entire Empire to vanish into thin air, Celestia said as she dispelled the hologram and fired a beam of light magic at the crystal causing a bright rainbow to appear around it. If the Empire is filled with hope and love those things are reflected across Equestria if hatred and fear take hold, Celestia said as her eyes turned completely green and purple vapors poured from her eyes and she fired a beam of dark magic causing it to turn black. In its shadow three more black crystals grew out of the ground surrounding both Twilight and I. Celestia's eyes returned to normal and she used her magic to shatter the new crystals that surrounded Twilight and I. Which is why I need both of your help finding a way to protect it, Celestia finished. You want us to help protect an entire empire, Twilight said in an unsure tone. It is as I said a different kind of test but one I am certain you will pass, Celestia said returning the crystal to its pedestal. Both Rage and I are already on board Celestia. This bastard is going to die, that you can be sure of, I said. I'm glad to hear this Ash but if I may ask why kill Sombra. He is a unicorn not a demon, Chrysalis said. That's where you're wrong, he is a demon, he only looks like a unicorn. He made public executions of the entire bloodline. Also during his rule he ordered the civilians to dig in his mines for something. I don't know what that was but if that demon wanted no pony to find out about it then it must be valuable to him, I said. Sombra's a demon. It explains why he was so hard to destroy when we fought, Luna said in shock. Sombra isn't any ordinary demon Luna, he's Heartless's second in command, I said. Heartless, Twilight asked. He's the monster responsible for not only the demons that possessed Chrysalis and Dreamcatcher, but also the reason why Faust is imprisoned in the world between worlds. She is acting as a seal to imprison him, but it won't last forever. So for now Heartless sends his demon horde to do his dirty work to claim Equestria, I said earning gasps from everyone. So mother was forced to leave to save us, Chrysalis said saddened. I'm afraid so, but if we take out Sombra we strike a critical blow to Heartless. I have two reasons to do this, one is to help free Faust and the other is personal, I said cracking my fingers. Ash you know your task go to the Crystal Empire with Twilight and send the demon back to the abyss and if you wish make it suffer, Dreamcatcher said with fury. 
I snapped my fingers and I was dressed in my robes with my sword and shield on my back, along with my hidden and phantom blades on my wrists and my sides on my waist which earned gasps from everyone in the room. It would be my absolute pleasure dream catcher, I said with a grin. Ash, where did you get those robes? Twilight asked looking me over. Faust, I said simply. The robes sweep you well, Luna said with a smile. Why thank you Luna, but I believe we should leave. Are you coming Twilight? The option is there to back out and I won't hold it against you, I said. Ash is right Twilight, you don't have to accept, Celestia said. Twilight raised a hand to her chin in thought. How do we begin? Twilight asked with determination. By joining Princess Cadence and Prince Shining Armor in the Crystal Empire, Celestia said. My brother is there, Twilight said in joy. He is in your friends and the stallions plus Gilda will join you as well. I'll have every confidence that you'll both succeed and when you do, I'll know you're ready to move on to the next level of your studies, Celestia said. But what if I fail? Twilight asked as the princesses walked us to the doors. You won't, Celestia replied. But what if Twilight started? You won't, but Twilight in the end it must be you and you alone who ultimately assists Princess Cadence and Shining Armor, in doing what needs to be done to protect the Empire, just leave Sombra to Ashblade do you understand? Celestia asked. Um hum, Twilight nodded. Then go, you have no time to lose, Celestia said as the doors closed. Twilight and I met Spike outside the castle and he asked about the test. Both Spike and Twilight started singing. Not prepared for what? Spike asked as we arrived at the train station. But before either of us could answer we were greeted by the others who were impressed by my robes. Rarity was completely swooning over them which made things awkward for me. So how did it go? Applejack asked. Are we going demon hunting with Ash? Rainbow asked rubbing her hands together getting looks from Rarity and Applejack. Yes next stop the Crystal Empire, Twilight said earning hus from every pony. The trip was filled with me telling every pony about where we were headed and about Heartless along with Sombra as his second in command. This got the others concerned and excited as well as scared about the task. Damn that's a whole lot to take in, Comet said. Doesn't matter, just makes this trip cooler, Gilda said. Yep but there's a restriction that applies to all of you. Sombra is my kill okay. So none of you interfere, I said. But why? Rainbow asked. Because I said so, just be glad you're coming at all, I said in an annoyed tone. The room was silent and everyone was looking at me confused until Pinky spoke up. Uh how long will this ride take I'm so bored, Pinky wailed. I can't make the train go faster, but I think I can help pass the time, I said as I selected a song on my iPod. The train car was filled with music and the others sang along with the words, even Gilda sang. Not long after we reached our station, which was out in the middle of a frozen wasteland, we disembarked and the frozen winds rushed into our faces. But thanks to the thickness of the robes the cold didn't bother me as badly as the others. Tuli, I hear a voice call out of the swirling winds. I squinted my eyes to try and see into the blinding winds and soon a figure appears out of swirling ice and snow wearing thick arctic explorer clothing, the figure removes his goggles and scarf around his neck to reveal shining armor. Shining armor, Twilight cries running up and embracing her brother. Glad you made it, Shining said as he released his sister from the hug. Nice to see you armor, I said. You too Ash, nice robes by the way. Where did you get them? Shining asked. Long story, I replied. Well we'd better get moving, there are things we really don't want to run into after dark, Shining said with fear on his face and in his voice. What kind of things? Fluttershy gulped. Let's just say that the Crystal Empire isn't the only thing that returned, Shining said. All of us followed Shining armor through the blizzard as he explained the situation to us. Something keeps trying to get in, we think it's the Unicorn King who originally cursed the place, Shining said. But Princess Celestia sent me to find a way to protect the Empire, if Sombra can't get in then it must already be protected, Twilight said. All of a sudden a strange moan part roar erupted above the sound of the wind. It's one of the things isn't it Fluttershy said in a panic hiding behind Mac. We have to get to the Crystal Empire now, Shining shouted. All of a sudden an enormous black mist appeared out of the ground behind us with a pair of eyes that matched Sombra's. It's Sombra, run, I shouted getting all in the group to run except Spike, who stood frozen with fear. I noticed Spike was not moving, so I ran back to grab him. Once I was close enough I grabbed him by the collar of his heavy winter clothing and pulled him along. Once he came to his senses he ran on his own. We did not stop running and soon we saw a bright dome through the winds. Almost there, Shining said as he stopped and faced Sombra. As every pony leapt through the dome I turned around and I saw Shining squaring off against Sombra. Shining fired a spell at Sombra but it went through him harmlessly, then Sombra brought his entire form down upon Shining, covering him. Shining armor, I shouted as I ran at Sombra and charged a large amount of magic into my hand and fired it at Sombra. Sombra hissed in pain as the magic touched him and he recoiled slightly. I grabbed a semi-conscious Shining and lifted him onto my back and ran into the dome. I landed on my stomach and was breathing heavily as air filled my lungs as I rested. Thanks, Shining said. No sweat just promise me in future to never take on a demon without me around to back you up, I said panting. Done deal, Shining said. Shining armor, your horn. Twilight cried helping her brother off me. I looked at Shining's horn to see the same thing. Black crystals were growing out of it stopping him from using magic. I'll see if I can do something for you later Shining but right now we have to save the empire, I said. Right, Shining said as he helped me stand up. Once I stood I noticed that, that there was no snow about. Instead I saw grass and the sky was blue with fluffy clouds in it. Sparklerific Pinky said gazing over a hill. I walked over to the hill and I saw one hell of a sight. The Crystal Empire surly earned its name. Every single building was made of crystal, but the only problem, it was too bright. Uh, this is going to give me a headache, Gilda complained. I hear ya, I said. We walked through the empty streets towards the palace. Once we entered the throne room I saw Cadence sitting on the throne with the look of exhaustion on her face. Cadence, Twilight shouted as she entered. The pink alicorn smiled as we entered. Cadence walked over to Twilight and did their dance. When they finished Cadence almost collapsed from the exhaustion, but I caught her and helped her to stand on her own two hooves. Are you okay? Twilight asked. 
Cadence has been able to use her magic to spread love and light that seems to be protecting the empire. But she hasn't slept and barely eats. I want to help her, but my protection spell is useless against King Sombra, Shining said. It's all right, Shining Armor, I'm fine, Cadence said. She's not fine, she can't go on like this forever, but perhaps now you can do something against him, Ash, Shining suggested. Shining it took me a great deal of magic just to sting him when he was like that if I go up against him like he is now, I will end up a lot worse than you, but if I can solidify him, put him in his body again, then maybe I can do some damage, I said. And we're all here to help, Applejack said. Well with Cadence using her strength to keep her magic going and me keeping an eye on things in the Arctic. We haven't been able to gather much info from the Crystal Ponies, Shining said. Crystal Ponies, there are Crystal Ponies. Rarity exclaimed everyone gave Rarity a look that said, seriously. Um please continue. We believe one of them knows how to protect the Empire without using Cadence's magic, Shining said. The research paper, Twilight said. Huh, everyone replied. That must be part of my test to gather information from the Crystal Ponies and bring it to you, this is going to be great, I love research papers, Twilight said. Ain't that the truth, I said pinching the bridge of my nose. Don't worry big brother, I'm really good at this sort of thing, Twilight said as we left the throne room. I walked around the empire but there weren't many about. I tried knocking on the doors but every time the door was slammed in my face before I could speak. I was starting to get annoyed by this but for the ones that were in the streets, they looked at me strangely. A young colt asked if I was a human, which I answered with a yes before he ran off with a smile on his face. I was next to nothing about getting information. Howdy partner. I turned my attention to see Applejack walking up to me. Hey AJ, I said. So how's the search? Applejack asked. Not going well I'm afraid. Every time I try to talk to one of them they either slam the door in my face or can't provide an answer. What about you? I asked. I only managed to get something about a library, Applejack said. A library. Applejack that's perfect, I said. Uh how? Applejack asked. Simple, if the library has a history book about this place then we can find out about how this place was protected, I said. Well why didn't I think of that? Applejack wondered. You tell Twilight and the others, I'll head over to the library and see if I can find the book, one said. Got it, just head down the street and make a left, it's the building with the two griffin statues in front of it. Applejack called out to me as we separated. I followed Applejack's directions and arrived at the library and stepped inside. I saw that it was as large if not larger than the castle in the Everfree. I turned my head to see an elderly mare wearing a pair of reading glasses, reading a book. Um hi sorry to bother you but I'm just looking for a history book and then I'll be gone, I said. Of course, feel free to look about, she said. Thank you, I replied as I began to walk into the massive library. Just a moment, are you by any chance a human? The mare asked. Yes I am, is that a problem? I asked. Not at all, it's always nice to have the five knights of Equestria here in the Empire, I just didn't know there was a sixth, the mare said. She doesn't know about the five knights' deaths, maybe even the fact that they were banished for one thousand years. Sombra's curse must have done more than I thought, I said to myself. Well I really should find that book, one said. Of course, the mare said as she left. I turned to face the library and then I realized something. This will take too long I should have asked that mare if she knew where the book is located, but then again thanks to the curse I doubt she will be of much help. So option two it is, I thought. I closed my eyes and focused on finding the history book. When I opened them my sight was moving but my body didn't take a step. My sight lead me to some shelves close to the roof and my sight singled out a red book, in gold writing were the words. History of the Crystal Empire. I blinked a few times and my sight and my body were one again. I followed the path my sight had taken and found the book one needed. Got to love seeker spells, I whispered to myself. I flew down to the entrance with the book in hand and I saw the others arrive. Hey guys, found the book we may need, I said as I landed. Already, damn Ash you work fast, Applejack said. I had a little magic assistance but anyway, let me just loan this out so we can get back to the castle and figure this out, I said. But can't we at least look around here first, Twilight pleaded giving me the puppy dog eyes and a quivering lip. TWI you know we can't, but after we're done saving the empire we'll have a look around before we leave. Also I told you puppy dog eyes don't work on me either, I said. Ah uh, I forgot you're made of stone when it comes to that, Twilight said in defeat. True, now let's pray this book has the answers we need, I said. A crystal fair according to this book, it was established by their first queen and became their most important tradition, Twilight read the book to Shining Armor and Cadence when we returned to the castle. The fair was held every year to renew the spirit of love and unity in the empire so they could protect it from harm. The others, Ash and I could put it together, everything we need to know is in the book. That sounds pretty promising, Shining said looking at Cadence who was looking really weak. We'll get started immediately, I said getting Twilight and I to run to the door. Twilight and I arrived in a small room with the others, TWI placed the book on the table and began to sing. As we all sang we got started on the fair. The stallions and I put up the tents and did the heavy labor, while the girls stuck to their talents. Rainbow and Gilda practiced for the night's duel that was part of the fair and they wanted me to join but I declined. We finished the song just as we finished setting up the fair. Phew, I don't know how, but we did it in almost no time at all, I said wiping sweat off my face. Indeed, but let's make one last check to make sure everything is in place then the festivities can begin, Twilight said. What's this thing for? Applejack asked tapping a stone statue of heart on a pedestal shaped like a crystal. The last page of the book mentioned a crystal heart as the fair's centerpiece. So thanks to Ash, Caramel and Mac they cut one out of a crystal block, Twilight said. Nice work you three, time to get this fair up and running, Applejack said nodding to Caramel, Mac and I. I'd love to stay and help but I need to check in on something, I said as I began to walk away. And just where do you think you're going? Rarity asked. I want to know why Sombra and his demon buddies are so interested in the Crystal Empire and the best places to start are the mines that Sombra forced the Crystal Ponies to work in, I said. Okay just don't do anything reckless, Twilight warned. Have I ever done such a thing, I said before I flew off in search of the mines. 
I circled around the empire for a while looking for anything that would look like a mine, until I saw a path that lead to the edge of the empire. I landed on the ground and followed the path to an area that had a small collection of hills with mine shafts in each one, along with mine cart tracks leading out of them. Well if these aren't the mines I'm looking for, then I don't know what are, I said to myself. All of a sudden I heard the same roar I'd heard earlier when Sombra attacked and I saw that the shield around the empire was disappearing. Just then Sombra's shadow appeared and surrounded the empire. I flew up into the air and looked towards the entrance and I saw Sombra's head had materialized and he had an evil grin on his face just as he was about to enter the empire. Oh no you don't, not on my watch, I said as I flew off. I saw the barrier was slowly appearing but unfortunately Sombra noticed it too and rushed forward. I put on more speed and managed to once more pull off a shadow boom and reach the barrier at the same time as Sombra. ARRRHHH. I let out a war cry as I drew whispering wind and sliced off Sombra's horn. Sombra cried out in pain as I cut off his horn and I landed on the ground just as the dome finished rebuilding itself. I looked at the ground and I saw the tip of Sombra's horn on the ground. Keep your nasty body parts outside the dome, I said as I kicked the horn into the dome causing it to dissolve into dust. I flapped my wings and rose into the air and flew off back to the mines in a hurry. I prayed that the dome would hold for a few more minutes for the festival to work and for me to figure out what's in these mines. I landed in front of a mine shaft and walked inside, the mine was filled with glowing crystals that ranged from blue, green and red. I was fascinated by my find but was confused by the fact Sombra wanted them I grabbed a green crystal and pulled it from the wall, but as I did another crystal grew in its place. That's interesting, explains why this cave is full of these things but it still doesn't tell me why he wanted it though, I said as I tossed the crystal into the air and prepared to catch it but the crystal just hovered in the air. Okay that's weird, I said as the crystal fell and landed in my hand I tossed it a few more times and the crystal repeated the process of hovering in the air for a few seconds before dropping. Now this is starting to get good, I said as I grabbed another crystal only a red one this time, another crystal grew back like the last time. I tossed the crystal into the air but it fell like it should, however when I caught it, it pulled me towards the ground, I picked myself up and looked at the crystal lying on the ground. I reached down and gently pushed my hand against it, only the ground beneath my hand and crystal was crushed. What strength from this thing, it's no wonder why Sombra wanted these, I thought and went to test the last crystal the blue ones. I grabbed it and threw it into the air and caught it and pushed it against the wall with no results. I then decided to try hitting it with a spell. I used a simple blast spell and I fired it at the crystal only for it to absorb it. Okay that happened, I then thought about the crystal releasing the magic but all of a sudden a blast of magic shot from the tip of the crystal and bounced around the walls. I was dumbstruck by this, I thought about releasing magic from the crystal again and the crystal performed beautifully. Damn the princesses will like this, I said to myself as I placed all three crystals in one of the pouches on the waist on my robes and turned to leave the mine. I stepped outside the mine and I saw that the shield was fading in and out. Where the heck is twilight? Shouldn't the fair have worked by now? I said before I flew off back towards the fair. When I arrived I saw that the crystal heart that I helped cut out was covered and Applejack was diverting ponies away from it. I was about to fly down and ask before. Ash. I stopped and looked around and I saw Rainbow flying towards me. Road what's going on, the barrier's fading, where's twilight? I asked. It's the crystal heart it isn't some piece of stone that could be cut from any old stone, the crystal ponies need to power it in order to protect the empire, Rainbow said. So it's a battery and my guest TWI went to find it while you lot keep the fair going, I said. Got it in one, but what did you find? Rainbow asked. Something powerful and dangerous in the wrong hands. So failure is not an option here. Keep that fair going for as long as possible while I find twilight, I said. Roger that, I think TWI went into the castle. Oh by the way, awesome shadow boom, Rainbow said before she flew off. I flew towards the palace and entered by a balcony and I saw Cadence was getting weaker. I searched the palace but couldn't find her. Then I heard something. Twilight, twilight. The voice belonged to Spike and it was coming from the throne room. With a destination in mind I flew towards the throne room. Once I arrived I saw a large dark staircase that went downward, I decided to just fly down there instead of wasting my time with the stairs. I flew into the air before I dived into the pit the staircase went on for a while. I saw the bottom come up to meet me and I spread my wings and bent my legs and landed in a crouching position. I looked around and I saw Spike had just arrived as well. Twilight was standing at an open door staring at a wall behind the door. I walked forth and grabbed Twilight and pulled her away from the door, once we were far enough I saw Twilight was in tears. Twilight are you okay? I asked. Twilight spun around and wrapped her arms around me in a hug and cried into my chest, I placed my hand on her head and around her back and held her there and gently shushed her. I was back at Canterlot and Celestia was there and she said I failed her and that I killed friendship in you, she also said I was no longer her student, Twilight said in between sobs. Twilight have you ever known Celestia to be so cruel? I asked. No, she said. Whatever you saw was a lie Twilight. Friendship will never die, this much I am certain of and you won't fail this test alright, I said. You're right, Twilight said wiping away her tears. I smiled at Twilight and then I looked at Spike standing in the door like Twilight was. Spike get away from that. I yelled as I grabbed Spike's tail and pulled him away from the door and slammed the door shut. I looked at Spike and saw him sitting on the ground crying. We were home, Twilight said she was replacing me with you because you can do a better job than me and I was being sent away, Spike said with tears in his eyes. I would never dream of taking your job Spike because you have something I don't have, I said. What's that? Spike asked. Your brotherly charm and cooking skills, I said rubbing the scales on top of his head. Ash is right, you're like a brother to me Spike and I will never replace you and I'm not going to fail my test either, Twilight said as she fired a beam of magic at the gem above the door. The door glowed before it opened to reveal another room. Twilight walked inside and looked around. What's in there? Spike asked. Sigh stares, Twilight answered. You two had better get a move on. Cadence's magic is fading fast, both of you need to grab the heart while I deal with Sombra, I said as I extended my wings and took off. I flew upwards to reach the top of the stairs but to my surprise I saw bipedal creatures made of crystal and pulsing with dark magic materialize out of the floor. I drew my sides and waited for the creatures to make a move, one of the crystal monster's hands turned into a pair of swords and it charged at me. 
The creature struck at me first but I stepped to the left and drove my sides into the creature's back and rolled along it and threw the beast into the ground shattering it. I then connected the hilts together and knocked the next creature into the air before I impaled it on my side's blade and slammed it into the ground shattering it like the last one. They ain't so tough, I said to myself. I felt rage split from me and I turned around to see a shattering crystal creature and rage with his blades drawn in in his armor. True, hardly worth the fight, but they are sneaky, rage said as he twirled fury and hate. Let's head to where Cadence and Shining are and warn them about these things, I said. Right, but if I think what's happening is happening, we'd better hurry, Rage said as we ran down the hallway to the balcony. As we neared the balcony the walls began to turn black and I heard marching and clinking chains coming from inside the room where the balcony was. I stopped Rage and made hand gestures to enter silently, I then remembered a trick that Luna taught me that allowed me to turn my body into smoke. I focused on it and I could feel my body become lighter I looked at myself and I saw my body turned into a dark grey almost invisible fog. I moved to the door and tried to push it open but I just slipped through the gaps in the door I then looked at Rage who did the same as me only he was red. We entered the room and slipped into the shadows and looked around and I saw to my horror that Sombra was in the castle and was solid and the tip of his horn had grown back. He was surrounded by his crystal soldiers and I saw that all of my friends were in chains and on their knees in front of him. Celestia sent you pitiful lot against me, I'm actually really insulted, Sombra said in a deep voice. You won't get away with this Sombra, Shining said in defiance. Oh but I have and there isn't a thing you can do to stop my master. I've already sent my crystal guards after the one who went after the crystal heart. Soon, nothing will stand in my master's way. Once I regain full control of the empire our forces will take over Equestria with little ease, Sombra said with an evil laugh. I doubt that you and Heartless will be sent to oblivion when Ash gets his hands on you, Rainbow said. Ash, is he the human using a smoke spell and hiding in the corner waiting to strike along with his double? Sombra said looking over at Rage and I. As soon as he said that I dropped my spell and charged at him along with Rage but Sombra fired a blast of dark magic at us. I screamed in pain while the others looked on with worry at us as we collapsed. Some of Sombra's guards came over and placed some anti-magic shackles on me and Rage and dragged us over to him. I was placed in a kneeling position next to Rage and in front of my friends while two of Sombra's guards held us at blade point. So this is the great knight of Equestria that freed both princesses from their demons, those two were fools. But no matter, the old knights went to battle against me without getting caught or scratched from my soldiers. Oh how the mighty have fallen, Sombra said. Well you've fallen farther, if I was able to wound you twice before maybe you're getting old, I said earning a look of anger from Sombra and a kick to my face. Pathetic whelp, you're nothing compared to me, Sombra said as he summoned a red whip that was sparking with electricity. Sombra raised the whip above his head and brought it down on me causing me to half cry and half grunt after each lash. Stop it you monster, you'll kill him, Cadence shouted at Sombra. Be silent whore, I've got some for you too, Sombra said as he lashed his whip at Cadence. The whip slashed across Cadence's cheek causing it to bleed. Cadence, the others called out in worry. As they looked at Cadence with worry I looked at Cadence in shock before my gaze was directed towards Sombra as I got back on my knees. Listen here Sombra, you can beat me with that whip torture me, rip me apart throw me into a blazing inferno and laugh while I burn. But if you harm a hair on my friends then you'd better be ready cause I'm gonna send you back to Heartless as a corpse. I roared. My eyes blazed white with power and the magic that was being blocked by the shackles became so strong it overpowered and shattered both the shackles that held me in rage freeing us. The crystal guardians holding blades to rage and I shattered from the magic shockwave. As soon as the shackles broke I lunged at Sombra and wrapped my hands around his neck and squeezed but the force I used to lunge at him launched us through a window. Sombra and I fell from a terrific height and Sombra tried to throw me off him but my grip remained firm, the ground was coming up fast. I twisted my body so Sombra was below me and I held my knee in Sombra's face, once we hit the ground I crushed Sombra's jaw and rolled off him. I looked around and the crystal ponies were looking at me in surprise. I walked over to Sombra and stood above him and was ready to pull out his soul, but Sombra made a sword out of red crystal and swung it at me. I simply leapt backwards to avoid the blade, Sombra stood up and felt his destroyed jaw but used magic to repair it. I'm going to personally send you to the deepest darkest corner of Tartarus to suffer an eternity for that. Sombra yelled. Do your worst, I said as I drew whispering wind in my shield and made a come at me gesture with my hand. Sombra let out a screech that summoned more crystal guards while the civilians ran from the existing crystal guards. I was surrounded but I wasn't alone for long, Rainbow and Gilda flew down from the balcony and landed next to me with crystal swords in hand. Just then Rage teleported with Mac Pierce, Caramel, Thunderlane, Comet, Soren, Applejack and Pinkie Pie, all armed and ready to fight. Don't think today you were going to get all the glory, Soren said. I'm actually glad you guys decided to join, me but what about the others? I asked. They're taking care of Cadence, also Shining says to make sure Sombra's death is a painful one, Comet said. Sure thing, I said as I turned to our opponents. I've grown tired of this, kill them, Sombra said ordering his troops to close in on us. You ready, I shouted. It's party time, Pinkie said, as she yelled she pulled out a cannon from her mane and fired it at the enemy entangling the crystal guards in a load of party gear. While Sombra's minions tried to unravel themselves my group cut them down with ease but Sombra kept summoning more of them. One of them leapt into the air and tried to strike at my head, but I used my sword to block the strike. I pushed our blades to the side and brought mine back and slashed at its head, decapitating it with ease. Another came at me and made a thrust towards me, but I dodged it and slashed downwards cutting its arm off before I brought my blade up again and hacked off the other arm. I then slashed across its midsection cutting it in two. I saw Rainbow handling herself well and was cutting her foes down with ease, but I then saw a minion sneak up behind her and prepared itself to strike against Rainbow. I teleported behind her and thrusted Whispering Wind into it and watched as it fell apart before I turned to Rainbow. We're getting overrun here, Rainbow said. I looked around and I saw she was right even Rage was struggling and we hadn't been fighting for very long I then looked at the crystal monsters and I saw they were slightly glowing red and I figured they were absorbing our energy. I got an idea, I said as I sheathed Whispering Wind and my shield then drew my sides and connected the hilts together. I made sure both the blades faced opposite ends to make it look like a double-ended scythe. Get down, I shouted as I threw my scythe into the swarm of crystal minions. 
Everyone did as I said and the scythe spun around like a saw blade cutting down minions and circled our group like a boomerang before it came back to me. I caught the scythe and jumped into the air with a flap of my wings and slammed the blade into the ground. A small portion of the ground around is spiked up and impaled the minions. No sooner as the spikes appeared they disappeared leaving behind Sombra and a good portion of his creations. Very brave Sombra to stand behind your army and let them get slaughtered, but the demons I slayed before you had more of a spine, I taunted. If Sombra wasn't mad before he sure as hell was now, he stepped forth with his sword in hand as I did the same. Kill the slaves, I'll deal with this, Sombra ordered getting his troops to go after the crystal ponies. Guys, I shouted. We're on it. Good luck Ash Pierce said as the others left to go after the troops leaving Sombra and I to fight. I looked at Sombra and let silence envelop us both until I spoke. You won't win this you know, I said. You seem sure of yourself, Sombra said. I've faced demons before, why should be scared of you? I asked. I'm Heartless's general, one of his best. You should be scared of me for I have nothing to fear from a tiny insect like you, Sombra said. Clearly you don't know the human spirit even after a thousand years of banishment, I said before I charged at him. Sombra saw my charge and charged at me also and we met in the middle. As soon as our blades clashed against each other a shockwave shot out around us causing the very ground to shake and crumble. You have power I'll say that. I offer you this question, would you serve in Equestria or rule in Tartarus alongside me and my master, Sombra said. I choose to stand by my friends, I said. Then die, Sombra said as he pushed me away and charged at me as he prepared to strike. I blocked Sombra with my shield and pushed him away and slashed at him twice, only for Sombra to block both my strikes. Sombra brought his sword downward on me and I went with an upward strike and our swords clashed again. I tilted whispering wind and flipped our blades and wedged them into the ground with my blade on top. I then used the hilt off my sword to hit Sombra in the face, he recoiled from the hit and I slashed Sombra across part of his chest and his shoulder. The attack penetrated his armor and black blood spilled from Sombra's wound and splattered onto the ground. I smirked at my work but it disappeared as Sombra healed himself instantly. Don't you see boy, you cannot kill me, Sombra said with a laugh. So you're like Heartless, can't die unless it's by your own hand, I said. Correct. At least you apes have some brains, Sombra said. Well it just means you'll be practiced for when I fight Heartless, I said as I charged. Sombra and I connected once more, clashing steel against crystal. Sombra made a swing at my legs but I jumped over it and struck back at his gut as he didn't even block allowing the sword to thrust through him. More blood spilled from him but it didn't even weaken him. Sombra just sighed and impaled his sword into my left shoulder that was still flesh. I screamed as a result and pulled my sword out of him and slashed at his neck decapitating him. I leapt away from him and pulled his sword out of my shoulder and threw it away. I looked back at Sombra and to my horror Sombra's body just picked up his head and placed it back on. Damn, this isn't good, I thought. All of a sudden Sombra's horn lit up and summoned thousands of crystal spikes. Sombra used his magic to fire them all at me. I used Whispering Wind to deflect every one of them but I couldn't keep up with the speed of them. Eventually I missed one and I was hit in the chest. I missed more and more spikes. Once Sombra had finished crystals were jutting out all over my body, I was lucky I'd stopped them from hitting vital areas and the Amur in my robes helped but I knew I couldn't keep it up, I had to end this soon, otherwise I was a goner. As I removed some of the spikes that were in my way and restricted my movement, Sombra walked up to me. I was about to raise Whispering Wind but Sombra just kicked me in the chest causing one of the crystals to be pushed deeper into me. I landed on my back and Sombra knelt on my left beside me with his sword at my neck. You put up a good fight, it's been a while since anyone lasted this long, almost an hour, but this is it for you, just then a bell began to toll from somewhere within the empire. Do you know the old saying for whom the bell tolls, well it appears the bell tolls for you. Let's wait until the bell strikes twelve until I finish you, Sombra said as he grabbed me by my throat and lifted me up and held me above him and held his blade to my neck. I struggled to get air into my lungs and I had to think quickly I tried to use my magic for anything. I then noticed the black puddles of Sombra's blood were reacting to my magic. While Sombra was listening to the bell I fashioned his blood into a makeshift dagger and poised it at Sombra. The twelfth tolling of the bell, time to die, Sombra said as he reeled back his sword to impale my throat. Doubt it, I said as I used my magic to thrust the dagger into Sombra's back. Sombra screamed in pain and released me as well as dropping his sword. I looked at Sombra and was surprised by the effect, all of a sudden I heard someone call out from above. Hey up here. I looked up and I saw Spike was standing on a piece of the roof while holding a glowing crystal shaped like a heart. Spike what are you doing up there? I called. I have the crystal heart. Spike yelled showing me the heart. Hang on Spike I'll be right there, I said as I extended my wings and flew up to him. Bang. Ah, I felt pain run right through a bone along the edge of my wing. I fell to the ground with a crash. I looked at my wing to see it had a hole in the bone that connected to my back. I then looked around and I saw Sombra holding a black and copper brown handled pepper box with a smoking barrel. I realized that Sombra had shot me in the wing like I was a bird. You just stay there while I go claim what is mine, Sombra said as a pillar of black crystals grew underneath him lifting him towards the roof. As Spike ran down the roof with the crystal heart in hand he tripped and fell off the roof and dropped the heart. As Spike tried to reclaim it Sombra was nearing both Spike and the heart, it was like time slowed down as Sombra and Spike were tied to reclaim the heart. But at the last second a pink blur appeared and both Spike and the heart were gone. I searched the skies for them both. Once I spied them I let out a cry of joy Cadence was up on her hooves or in this case wings and was holding onto Spike while she held the crystal heart in her magic. But Sombra wasn't pleased with the action, he drew the pepper box again and was prepared to take another shot at the still flying Cadence. I saw this and picked up Whispering Wind and ran at the crystal pillar Sombra was standing on. In one swift blow I cut the lower part of the pillar toppling it and leaving Sombra buried beneath the rubble, but I knew it wasn't over. I injured him before but what was different about it then, I thought as I looked around and I saw the puddles of Sombra's blood. I remembered that Faust warned me that only Heartless can injure himself and I figured that blood is a part of oneself, it's just separated from the body. I walked over to the blood and placed the tip of Whispering Wind in it and used my magic to cover the blade in Sombra's blood. Once I'd finished I saw Cadence land with Spike in front of me. Thank you Ash for saving us, Cadence said bowing her head. 
Ash, we need to get you to a hospital, Spike said looking at my blood-drenched body and crimson wing. I'm fine, Spike, but you guys need to get the heart in place while I finish this little dance, I said. Right, just hang on, Ash, Cadence said as she and Spike turned and left. I heard the sound of moving rubble and turned and saw Sombra pushing bits of broken pillar off of him. He looked at the fleeing Spike and Cadence before he ran after them but I stepped in and slashed at Sombra's right arm severing it from his body. Sombra cried out and then looked at me before he looked at his arm and smiled at me. Haven't you learned when you cut off my head that I'll just put it back on? Sombra asked as he picked up his arm and placed it back on his shoulder. But when he released the arm it just fell to the floor and the smile on Sombra's face disappeared and he turned to me in anger. What did you do? Sombra shouted. I responded by showing him whispering wind covered in his blood. Blood is a part of you so it became clear when I hit you in your back with the dagger that I can use it as a weapon, I said with a smug grin. Sombra drew his pepper box from behind his back and shot me again in the chest. I felt the bullet go right through me, I covered the wound and gasped for air and threw up blood. I looked at the wound and saw that the bullet had managed to puncture my right lung. You have been even more of a pain than I thought possible. I'm going to enjoy killing you, Sombra said as he punched me in the face and knocked me onto my back. Sombra stood over me and pointed the gun at my head ready to pull the trigger. I just moved my head closer to the barrel till my forehead was touching the gun and stared defiantly at Sombra. Goodbye Knight of Equestria, Sombra said as he squeezed the trigger. Before the gun sealed my fate the ground lit up around us, I looked at the ground confused at first but then I saw all of the crystal ponies glowing. An even greater light came from the crystal heart while my friends held off the remaining crystal minions. What? No, stop. Sombra ordered, but his plea fell on deaf ears as the entire empire was soon glowing. Once the brightness reached its peak, a beam of energy shot out of the heart destroying the remaining crystal minions. The black crystals on the buildings shattered from the light and an aurora borealis spread across the sky from the peak of the castle. Sombra remained and became enraged and turned back towards me to finish me off but I was already on my feet. I knocked the pepper box out of Sombra's hand and wrapped my metal hand around Sombra's neck and lifted him off the ground. Know this Sombra, it is not for duty that I kill you now, I said as I shoved my right hand that was covered in Sombra's blood, which had leaked from his shoulder, up and under his ribcage and released his throat. Tell your master that I'm coming for him, I said as I summoned my magic. Not long after Sombra's body began to heat up and there was a look of fear was on his face as his body continued to get hotter. He started screaming in agony as his veins started glowing with heat, even his eyes shone white. He continued to scream while I remained unfazed, soon Sombra exploded leaving falling embers, spilled blood from our battle and his soul I held in my hand. Sombra's soul was slightly different than the others, it was larger than the others and had a small black orb in the center. I looked at the soul for a while and saw I had an audience. My friends, Cadence and the Crystal Ponies were looking at me with blank looks on their faces and my friends' coats were crystal-like. Just then the Crystal Ponies let out cheers and applause at my victory, I let out a smile before all the adrenaline wore off. I began to feel the effects of the battle I coughed up some blood then fell to my knees and then everything went dark. I felt like my head had been run over by a train. I opened my eyes to be greeted by a bright light. I turned away from the stinging light and more of my vision came back into focus. I saw I was in a hospital, I sat up slightly in my bed and looked around and saw all of my friends were sleeping on other hospital beds or in chairs, or curled up on the floor. Pinky, Pierce, Fluttershy and Big Mac all slept on the hospital beds with each other, Twilight and Rarity also slept on some beds while Comet sat in a chair, his head laid on Twilight's bed. Thunderlane also slept on a chair but his face was looking up at the ceiling with his mouth open and snoring lightly which I chuckled at. I then saw Shining sitting in a chair off to the right, his horn no longer had black crystals growing from it and Cadence slept peacefully on his lap. I looked at the ground and I saw Road was lying at the foot of Rarity's bed and snoring loudly which surprised me, how anyone got any sleep, and on either side of her I saw both Gilda and Soren. Finally Spike was curled up at the end of Twilight's bed with a peaceful smile on his face my guess, Luna was treating him to a nice dream. I removed the bed sheets that lay over me and I saw that my chest was wrapped in bandages and I was still wearing my pants. I then looked at my damaged wing and I saw that it was also bandaged. I then looked around and I saw the top half of my robes were folded neatly on a chair with my hidden blades and mask sitting on top of them and my other weapons in front of the chair. I then noticed a tray on wheels that was made to serve food and on it was three items, a cloth bag that had a slight red glow to it which I figured was Sombra's soul, the crystals that were in my pouch and Sombra's pepper box. I then thought about Rage and wondered why he didn't eat the soul already. Hey Rage you there, I thought. Well look who woke up after five days, Rage said. Wait five days, I thought in a surprised tone. Yep the others got a little banged up but nothing serious though, you lost a ton of blood, Rage said. Why didn't you eat the soul and split us? I asked in thought. I wanted you to be awake for that, also we forgot to tell the princesses about what it will do, Rage said. Right, well thanks for waiting, I thought as I sat up from bed but I didn't realize I had a canula in my arm that was connected to IV drip. As I stood up the canula pulled the drip towards the bed resulting in a light clang of metal. I remained still for a moment and looked at the others and I saw Shining had begun to stir. I removed the canula from my arm and went to put on my robes. I looked at Shining who had opened his eyes sleepily and looked at me then he shut them again. I placed on the top of my robes and I found no damage in them, my guess, Rarity stitched the holes closed after the battle. I looked at Shining again and I saw his eyes snap open and look at me, but before he opened his mouth I closed it with my magic. I brought a finger to my lips to signal for silence which Shining nodded in reply, I released my magic grip on him and walked over to my weapons and picked them up and put them on. I then saw Shining place Cadence on the chair he was sitting on without disturbing her, before he turned back to me. Glad to see you're up, you gave us all a fright when you blacked out, Shining whispered. Sorry, Sombra was a bit more of a pain to deal with than I thought, I said. Well it was scarier when your heart stopped, Shining said. Wait what, I asked. Three times actually, Shining said. My heart stopped three times huh, I asked slightly surprised. Ash. My vision was suddenly filled by a load of pink for giving me a good idea who it was that had yelled my name. MMEMFMFMFF Pinky get off, I mumbled my response was met by many hands grabbing the pink fur ball of energy and pulling her off me, but Pinky held on. 
PNPA. I shouted, causing the mayor to release me, and I was sent into some hospital machinery while the others fell to the floor. Oh gosh, are you okay, Ash? Fluttershy asked. I'll be fine, but I could have done without Pinky clinging to my face for dear life, I said as I stood up and looked at the crushed medical equipment. Hey, 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 sorry, Ash, Pinky said, offering me a sheepish smile. I rolled my eyes and looked around and I saw some of the girls were crying. Why are you guys acting like you've been to a funeral? I asked. You scared us half to death, you know that. Twilight screamed. My heart stopped three times, I know, no big deal, I said. No big deal, everyone screamed. Did Sombra melt part of your brain or something? Mac yelled. No, it's just if I die, then I die, no big deal, I said dismissively. How can you have such a small regard for your own life? Cadence asked. Cadence, why should I fear something that's inevitable? I asked. Cadence didn't answer me, she just looked at me in surprise. Anyway, I've been close to death hundreds of times now, it's kind of become a regular thing. When that happens you begin to lose your fear of death, I said leaving the others speechless as I reached for Sombra's soul and placed it in the crystals in my pouch. Hey Ash, what's with those crystals? Soren asked. These crystals hold great power in them and it's what Sombra was after, but I don't think it's a good idea if I show you why here, I said. Power, what power? Twilight asked excitedly. I'll show you once we all get back to Canterlot, I said. Actually Ash, Cadence and I aren't coming back with you guys, Shining said. Why? I asked. Celestia sent us a message after we delivered a report about the Crystal Empire and it said that we must stay and look after it. The report also included your injuries explaining why you haven't returned and everything you did here and I mean everything, Cadence said with a creepy smile. Oh Akai, well I guess I can show you too, I said pointing to Shining and Cadence. What why can't we see? Twilight asked stomping her hoof. Cause I originally wanted to show every pony at Canterlot, but since Shining and Cadence will be staying here I think they have a right to see first, I said. But dot but Twilight stammered. Chill Twilight, you'll see these things when we get back, I'll even let you study them, I said. What are you gonna use them for? Caramel asked. Something wicked cool that you and I will enjoy making, I said. Well what are we waiting for? I want to know what's so special about these things and what you'll do with them, Shining said. Oh before we do Ash, I want you to have this as a token of the Empire's thanks. One of my new subjects found this and brought it to me, Cadence said as she picked up the pepper box and handed it to me. Sombra's pepper box, I said as I took the gun. You know what that thing is, Thunderlane asked in surprise. Sure do, it's a human weapon, I said twirling the gun on the trigger earning gasps from the group. How the heck did Sombra get something like that? What does it do? Twilight asked. No idea for your first question and this did that to my wing and lung, I said pointing to the spots where I was shot making the others gulp. After standing around outside a room and trying to listen in on the conversation inside Twilight Sparkle gave up and went back to pacing. Twilight if you keep pacing like that you'll wear a hole in the floor, Rarity said. Yeah, after all Ash said that he would show us what them fancy crystals were for, Applejack said. I know but it's hard to be patient also I'm a little nervous about what happened with the crystal heart I might have failed Celestia's test, Twilight said. But before anyone could reply the doors of the room opened to reveal Shining, Cadence and I. And you're sure you can make those crystals work like that? Shining asked. I can only hope but I'll make sure I get the princess's permission before I start, I said. Well the topic with Sombra's soul is a little startling but do you honestly think he's trustworthy? Cadence asked. If he wasn't trustworthy he would have done something by now, besides Faust gave us the info and if she didn't find him trustworthy she wouldn't have told us this, I said. Fair point, Cadence said. Now what are you talking about, Twilight asked. All three of us looked at Twilight before I answered. Tell ya when we're back at Canterlot, I promise, I said. Ugh, oh, I hate it when secrets are kept from me, Twilight pouted. Don't worry kiddo, what Ash has is a secret worth the wait, I can promise you that, Shining said as we walked. Shall we go, I need to have a few words with Celestia about the two maids that I discovered in my house this morning, I said. Wait, you have two maids working in your home. You sly dog, Soren said waggling his eyebrows. Can't you keep that perverted mouth of yours shut? Comet asked sending him a glare. Wait, what do you mean maids? Cadence asked. The pair of maids that wore skimpy outfits. Apparently Celestia forgot to warn me about them, I said. Damn it Andy, that's not what I meant by a push, Cadence whispered. What was that? I asked. Nothing, Cadence said quickly getting me to raise an eyebrow. As we walked down the hall I looked at the statues that stood on either side of the hallway until one caught my eye, I stopped in my tracks causing the others to run into me. Hey why'd y'all stop in front of us like that for? Mac asked. Because of that, I said pointing to a statue off to the side of a female draconic was trying to shield herself away from something. S it's just a statue, Rainbow said. I stopped because I can sense a soul inside that thing, I said getting everyone to look at me weird as I walked up to the statue. How can you sense a soul in there? Twilight asked. It's like how I can hear and smell better when I'm a wolf but with a little magic I can see a soul in every pony, I said. Really, what's mine look like? Pinky asked excitedly. I was caught a little off guard by the request but closed my eyes and focused my magic into my eyes, once I opened them my eyes glowed white with power and I could see every pony's soul. It's pink and bouncing all over the place like a bouncy ball that doesn't, actually won't stop bouncing and it looks happy, I said earning a squeal of joy from Pinky as she jumped up and down. Whoa, do you think you can teach me that? Twilight asked. I'll try but it's possible that this trick only works on humans, but I will try, I said getting Twilight to squeal in joy much like Pinky. Okay what about the Draconiquis, what's her soul like? Rainbow asked. I looked at the Draconiquis and summoned my magic. I can't tell, the stone prison is made of Sombra's dark magic I can't tell what it's like, all I know is that there's one in there, I said. Then the soul must be good if it's trapped in dark magic, Pinky said. Let's get her out then, Rainbow said. Hold it, we don't know for sure, Twilight said. So what do we do, Applejack asked. Only one way to find out if it's good or bad, I said as I walked over to the statue and placed my hand on it. Ash are you sure that's a good idea? Cadence asked. Nope, but we're not gonna know anything if we sit around and do nothing. 
Just be ready for anything, I said as I filled my hand with magic and sent it into the statue resulting in cracks appearing on it. The cracks spread all over the statue and the cracks began to glow. Soon the rock statue exploded. I shielded my friends from the rocks by extending my good wing in between them and the statue. Once the rock stoked pelting my wing I lowered it and looked at the cloud of dust. Once the cloud cleared I saw the female draconic was on all fours before she stood up and cracked her joints. Are you okay? Twilight asked. Of sort of but believe me when I say you don't want to know what it's like to stay in the same position for 1000 years, she said cracking her back. I'll take your word for it, I said. Oh a human, been a while since I've seen your kind here you're kinda cute as well, she said as she appeared behind me and slithered along my back. I leapt away from her as did everyone else leaving her in the center of the group. Okay um, care to introduce yourself? I asked. Oh how rude of me, you can call me Aris the goddess of chaos and daughter of the god of chaos himself discord, Aris said with a slight bow causing the group's jaws to drop. Fuck, I muttered. Chapter 15 Tricks and Ancient Devices Author's Notes I tried to make this story as exciting as possible for you all so please forgive me and I hope you all enjoy. We were on board the train heading home from the Crystal Empire with a surprising addition to the group. The risk daughter of Discord himself was pretty much the female version of Discord. The only thing different was she had white hair that reached her shoulders instead of a beard and a female body. Twilight was asking her questions and when that ended she managed to talk to Gilda and they seemed to hit it off well. Even Rage had a chat with her and she was surprisingly less chaotic than her father but she was a bit surprised when we mentioned about him being reformed. I looked away from everyone and looked at my pouch that held Sombra's soul, the power crystals and the pepper box that had once belonged to Sombra and gave it a few pats before I looked out the window. Hey Ash. I turned to face the source of the voice and I saw Twilight was standing in front of me. Hey TWI, what do you need? I asked. I just wanted to check and see if you're alright, you did just get out of the hospital today. I'm grateful for your concern Twilight but I'm fine. Okay thought I'd just check Twilight said as she began to walk away. Hey TWI. Yeah Ash. Didn't you want to learn the soul sight? I asked. Twilight's face lit up with excitement and sat on the chair opposite me and listened with great interest. That's it TWI, keep concentrating, I said watching Twilight. Her eyes kept flickering and she was trying to keep them open until she opened her eyes fully and they were glowing white. Whoa this is incredible, Twilight said as she looked around. Terrific job Twilight, I said. Twilight's eyes returned to normal and she looked at me with a smile which I thought might split her face. You have to show me more human magic, Twilight said. Whoa, slow down young grasshopper, in order for me to teach you more I need Celestia's permission. Also, we're almost at Canterlot, I said as I looked out the window to see Canterlot Mountain in the distance. Iris, Discord screamed when we entered the castle. Nice to see you too dad, Iris said simply. What are you doing here? If Celestia, Luna, Chrysalis and Dreamcatcher see you then things will get ugly, Discord said. I ain't scared of those ancient old hags, Iris said leaning back on a cotton candy cloud she conjured up while everyone looked at Iris with a look that said, is she nuts? And just who are you calling an old hag? I looked past Discord to see Chrysalis walking towards us. Why you in fact Chrissy, Iris said getting in Chrysalis's face while Chrysalis looked ready to tear her in two. Seeing how this would end, I intervened. Okay I think it would be wise not to spill blood here. For now I suggest we go see Celestia, I said as I stepped in between the two pushing them away from each other. Iris and Chrysalis just gave a nod before Chrysalis led us to the throne room. When we arrived I saw Celestia looking at the Aurora Borealis that spread across the sky from the Crystal Empire. Princess Celestia, I said as I kneeled. Ash, I told you no more bowing, it's a little uncomfortable around friends, Celestia smiled as I stood and smiled at the princess in return. If it ain't Sun but herself, Iris said causing my friends to freeze and look at Iris in shock. Who exactly are you anyway? Celestia said with an unamused look. Iris, daughter of Discord, Iris said causing Celestia to raise an eyebrow at her. It's my fault she's here Celestia, she was trapped in stone, just like Discord, and the magic sealing her was dark magic so I was unsure of what to do, I freed her, I said. I understand Ash and you couldn't have known, as for you Discord, we shall discuss about why you have a daughter and why we weren't informed later, but right now congratulations to you all on liberating the Crystal Empire, especially you Twilight, Celestia said with a warm smile. Thank you Princess but the real heroes were both Spike and Ash, I just wish I could have done more, Twilight said looking at the ground in sadness. Twilight as I understand it you gave Spike the Crystal Heart because you weren't sure of how quickly you could escape the tower. You weren't about to risk the lives of the citizens of the Crystal Empire for your own benefit. Far better that I have a student that understands the meaning of self-sacrifice than her own self-interest, Celestia said. Does that mean? Twilight started looking at Celestia with hope. Celestia's response was a single nod, I passed. Twilight shouted as she jumped up and down and was wrapped into a hug by the girls. Uh, all this sweetness is going to rot whatever's left of my teeth, Rage said as he split. Nice one Killjoy, Rainbow said. Whatever, can we just get the whole separating Ash and me done please, Rage said. This grabbed the attention of everyone in the room. What do you mean? We looked at the entrance to see both Luna and Dreamcatcher walk in. He means this, I said as I pulled out a small bag in my pouch then pulled out the soul. Is that? Chrysalis asked in small surprise. Sombra's soul, yes, I replied. What does it have to do with separating you two? Dreamcatcher asked. It means that it will split us in both mind and soul. Rage will be his own man now, not an emotion that grew a personality, I said. How do you know that? Soren asked. Faust told me that this thing has so much power it must be split between two or it could overload us with magic. The results would be catastrophic, my body needs to adjust to the new magic in order to gain more, I said. So it's like growing into clothing, Rarity said. Exactly, I said. Why exactly didn't you split yourselves already? Celestia asked. We wanted to ask for your permission to use it, I said. Celestia was surprised by the request and held her hand to her chin in thought. Very well Ash you may proceed, but there is one condition, Rage must stay in Canterlot Castle under my supervision until I decide he is trustworthy, Celestia said pointing at Rage. 
I'm fine with that, Rage said with a shrug. I tossed the soul to Rage and he caught it in his hand before he lifted it to me. Here's tower separation, he said before he ate it. I looked at some of our friends and they looked a little green at the action. Then I looked at Rage, he was looking himself over before he shrugged at me. All of a sudden, I felt a burning sensation growing in my core and it was getting stronger and stronger I started swaying on my feet until I collapsed to my knees. Everyone rushed towards me but I held out my hand to stop them. I looked at Rage who was going through the same thing, soon the burn became unbearable and we started crying out in pain. The feeling got worse and worse until everything went black. I opened my eyes to see my right hand and I tried to move it but I could only make the fingers twitch. Slowly I regained control of my hand then arm, then the rest of my body. I got up onto my hands and knees and slowly stood up only to fall back down, but I was caught by Luna. Don't move too fast, Luna said as she helped me sit back down while she sat behind me and laid my head on her lap. Thanks. Ugh, that hurt, I said gripping my head. Should I kiss it better, Luna giggled. Only if you want to, I said with a smirk. Luna leaned down and kissed me on the forehead. Better, she asked. Yeah thanks, I said as I sat up and I saw everyone looking at us, what? I asked as I stood. Oh nothing, Soren said while Thunderlane whistled a tune next to him. No pony gave a response and pretended they saw nothing, I just rolled my eyes at this. All of a sudden, I heard a groan come from opposite me and Luna and I walked over to the source. I saw another human lying face down. He wore a black leather jacket and blue jeans and had a pair of skeletal wings on his back giving me an idea who it was. I kneeled down next to Rage and shook him gently. Rage, you all right? I asked. That could have been better, he replied as he stood. I got a good look at him, he was no longer on fire and he was completely covered in skin. He looked like a healthy human with skeleton wings his facial features had also changed. Instead of looking like me he was someone else with black hair that just touched his shoulders and also he looked really handsome. Damn Rage, you look good, I said with a low whistle. How? Rage asked. I summoned a mirror and showed it to him, when he saw his reflection the look of surprise was obvious. Is that me? Rage asked. Seems that way, I said. Damn Rage, that's one hell, a look you got, Applejack said. Indeed, Rarity said fanning herself. Thanks you too, but this is going to take some getting used to, Rage said. So are you both separated? Twilight asked. Rage closed his eyes for a bit but nothing happened when he opened them. Seems so, I can't get into your body anymore, Rage said. So how does it feel? I asked. Terrific, I can do what I want, when I want, this is amazing. Rage said as he flew into the air and did a few loops. Mind you Rage, if you pull anything I'll know, Celestia warned. Calm yourself Celestia, I think we're past that incident, okay. Besides I kinda owe Faust for this, so I'm still at your service, Rage said as he landed and then kneeled to Celestia. I trust him Celestia, also I have some things I need to show you, I said as I pulled out the three crystals in my pouch. Ooh pretty, Aris said getting up close to the crystals. But dangerous in the wrong hands, Rage said as he stood next to me. How so? Dreamcatcher asked. Maybe I should show you all in the training grounds, I said. We arrived at the training grounds and I laid the crystals out on a table in front of the group and I made a solid stone wall and set up a training dummy. All right, first off I need three volunteers, I said. I'll give it a shot, Twilight said. All right, TWI anyone else, I said. Sure, Comet said. Finally how about you, Caramel, I said. Oh, okay, Caramel said as he stepped towards me. All right, I want you all to pick a crystal, I said to the three. Twilight picked up the red crystal, Comet picked up the green one, while Caramel picked up the blue one. I led Twilight over to the stone wall, Comet to an empty part of the training ground and Caramel to the training dummy. All right, Twilight, tell me, can you break this stone wall? I asked, gesturing to the wall. With a blast of magic, yes, Twilight answered. What about with a punch? I asked. I'm not that strong, Twilight said. Try punching it with the crystal in your hand, I said. Are you crazy? Cause I'll break my hand if I did that, Twilight said. Just try, I encouraged. Twilight did as I instructed and held the crystal in her right hand, she reeled it back and punched the wall. Instead of Twilight crying out in pain, her fist smashed through the wall in a shower of rock causing everyone except Rage and I to stare gobsmacked at the action. Holy buck TWI, when did you get so strong? Rainbow asked as she zoomed over to us and inspected Twilight's hand, to her surprise it didn't have a scratch on it. That was actually the crystal's work, the red one gives you unmeasured strength, I said as I took the crystal from Twilight and placed it on the table. Comet, you have a simple one, just jump, I said. How high? Comet asked. Don't get smart with me, just jump, I said in an annoyed tone while folding my arms. Comet looked at me in confusion before he held onto his crystal and jumped, he managed to jump four feet in the air before he landed on the ground safely. The green one temporarily makes you weightless and allows you to jump to all new heights, I said as I placed the green crystal on the table before I turned to Caramel. Now as for you Caramel, I just need you to aim the tip of that crystal at the dummy and focus on releasing the energy inside it, I said. Caramel aimed it at dummy like I said and closed his eyes in concentration before a beam shot out of the crystal and lit the dummy on fire. Finally, the blue crystals allow you to store spells inside and the best part is, it's an unlimited source. These crystals have great power in them and it was what the demons were after in the empire, I said as I placed the crystals back in my pouch. Incredible, but if I may ask Ash what do you plan on doing with them? Celestia asked. Don't worry, you'll find out but what I will say is the results are going to be good, I said. Very well, I trust you Ash, Celestia said. Great, oh I just remembered Celestia, Twilight has an interest in human magic and she appears to be eager to learn more. So with your permission I'd like to help train Twilight in human magic, I said. I would prefer if you didn't teach her human magic Ash, Celestia said. Yes, I can understand your worry Celestia, but Twilight was able to master a spell on our way here called Soul Sight, it grants the user the ability to see every pony's soul if they have one, I said. I see, well as long as you're with her then very well, but Twilight I must ask you to be cautious, other attempts to use such magic have had serious repercussions, Celestia warned. Of course Princess, Twilight said with a bow. Also I need to discuss with you about the two maids that I discovered in my home a few days ago, I said. 
Yes, I understand your situation about the maids in your home and if you like I can have them relocated elsewhere, Celestia said. I never said you had to get rid of them, Celestia, I just wish you gave me a warning or talked to me about having maids in my home. They are a great help around the house but the only thing that made it uncomfortable was the fact they wore skimpy outfits, curtsied to me and called me master, it just felt wrong, I said. I see, I'm sorry about that and next time I'll bring such matters to you personally before I make a decision, Celestia said. Thank you Celestia, I said as I looked at Luna who had an angry expression aimed at Celestia. Are you alright Luna? I asked. Hum. Oh yes I'm fine, Luna said looking at me. Alright well we must be off. I'm sure Dust is waiting at home and I need to get started on a certain project, I said. Everyone said their goodbyes and my friends and I left the training grounds. Um everypony, Dreamcatcher said. What is it Dreamcatcher? Chrysalis asked. I just reread Cadence's message about the Crystal Empire and apparently we missed something, Dreamcatcher said holding the letter in question. Oh and what did we miss? Discord asked in an interested tone. Well when Ash and Rage were in chains, Cadence was struck by Sombra's whip and that's when Ash and Rage got free, Dreamcatcher said. So, what's so interesting about that? Luna asked. It's how they got free that matters, after Cadence got hit Ash was somehow able to use the Canterlot royal voice on Sombra and his magic became so strong it overloaded the anti-magic shackles on him and Rage, it sent out a shock wave that destroyed some of Sombra's crystal guards, Dreamcatcher finished earning shock looks from Celestia and Luna. Looks like Sombra hit a trigger on Ash, Rage said. What do you mean? Celestia asked. I mean Ash's mark on his back. Discord managed to find out the past behind it by force and that earned him the cut on his arm, Rage said pointing at Discord's arm. Discord then Pinky promised not to tell anyone about it. Then Faust found out and I can't say anything because it's a really touchy subject and personally I'd prefer to live a few more years than face Ash's wrath, Rage finished as he shuddered. Discord you bastard, Luna yelled in the Canterlot royal voice. Way to go Rage, Discord said in a sarcastic tone. Hey, I had to be honest but anyway we can't tell any of you a thing about Ash because it's really it's not our place to say unless he asks us to tell you, Rage said. Very well, we'll ask Ash at an appropriate time, but for now Discord let's discuss Aris, Celestia said with an angry expression on her face that made Discord gulp. It's been three weeks since we returned home. When we arrived at Ponyville, Comet finally asked TWI out on a date and from then on they'd been dating regularly. Now we head to the present where I was just working with some metal in the forge. Just one more piece then I'll call it a day, I thought as I pounded away at the last piece of metal. When I finished I took the metal into the back room and placed it with the other pieces I finished when we returned from Canterlot. I walked outside and stretched my limbs out, I thought about giving my friends a visit. But then I remembered they were busy helping prepare for when Princess Celestia was to arrive with the delegates from Saddle Arabia, so I was left to think of another method to entertain my boredom. Squawk. I looked around and I saw Dust fly down to me. Hey Dust, I was just about to find something to do, any suggestions? I asked Dust, he just turned his head to the Everfree forest and I followed his gaze and smiled. Good idea, I said as I walked towards the Everfree. My walk led me further and further into the dense foliage where branches acted like hands that reached out to try and grab me. I simply ignored it and swatted them away to continue onwards. I appeared from the dark and had my destination in my sights. The castle of the old royal family, I said when I spotted the ruins. I walked along the rope bridge that spread across the gorge that stood between me and the castle, then walked inside and went straight for the library. We arrived at said library and I walked over to the secret door and kicked the emblem in the corner and the door opened. I walked inside and I was once again greeted by the glowing orb and the six statues but to my surprise another statue was added. This statue was of me wearing my assassin robes, also the statue was wearing the hood and mask and had my wings outstretched. Whoa, I wonder who made that, but I got to say whoever did made a damn fine job of it, I said. Thanks. The sudden voice caused me to turn around and summon whispering wind ready to fight but my gaze was met with the knights of Equestria. Jeez you guys, if you weren't already dead I could have killed you, I said in annoyed tone. Thanks for the reminder, Altair said in a slightly depressed tone but I couldn't really tell cause his voice had no emotion most of the time. I'm sorry I didn't mean, but I was interrupted when Link raised his hand. It's alright Ash, we know you didn't mean anything by it, just be careful what you say when you say it and who you say it to, Link said. Right, so what brings you all here? I asked. You actually, we sensed a large amount of dark energy has been destroyed along with you splitting your soul from rage, Ezio said. Faust told me about it, you'll be glad to hear the Crystal Empire, Dreamcatcher and Discord are safe, I said. The Crystal Empire, that means you killed Sombra, I'm impressed, Corvo said. Indeed and it's fantastic news, the royal family is almost whole again all that's left is Faust, Arno said. Yeah but there's something that's been bothering me, I said. What is it Ash? Link asked. The demons, it's the second time now, they offered me a chance to join them, I said. Do you plan to join them? Corvo asked resting his hand on what I could sense was a weapon of some sort. I'd rather be eaten alive by scarabs thanks, it's just why ask me something like that, I said. They must see you as a serious threat which is good, if they fear you, all you need to do is not fall to their mind games, Link said. I'll be sure not to do that, I said. It's too bad we can't use the Alicorn Amulet to help train you against such things, Arno said. Alicorn Amulet, I said. The knights led me to a desk that had a bookshelf attached to it and a vast assortment of a chemical kit. The desk had a grey leather book on it with a swirl and stars on it. Is that what I think it is? I asked. Star Swirls Journal correct, Altair said. Corvo reached out and used his magic open the book and flipped through the pages. When the pages stopped I looked at a necklace that had a unicorn head and wings connected to a downward facing triangle and a bright red gem in it. The Alicorn Amulet was a charm that gave the wearer great power, but it was designed by Star Swirl to corrupt its user, Link said. Why build something that was designed to corrupt the user? I asked. It was made as a training tool to help us fend off corruption. But when the charm created a magical lock on itself it became too dangerous to use so it was locked away, Link said. How was it able to do that? I asked. Because the power source is a demon soul, it was one of Star Swirl's projects on harnessing demon soul energy, Corvo said. So why not destroy it? I asked. 
Starswirl wanted to repair it but he never got round to it so it was locked away until somehow it was stolen from the vault, Altair said. Well the bad news keeps on coming huh, I said. Not exactly, it's quite easy to destroy, just disassemble it with your magic, Ezio said. I'm afraid we must leave you Ash but feel free to explore and open your mind to curiosity. Anything dangerous will be labeled so keep your eyes peeled and use what equipment you may find, Link said as he disappeared along with the others. Dust and I stayed in the room for many hours I mostly read and had a small look around and found an old broken down automatic training ring. All it needed was a few power sources and replacement parts then it would run again. We left the room so I could go find the tools needed but not before taking Starswirl's journal with me, as I was walking through the forest I heard voices through the trees. Creeping quietly I peeked through the trees and I saw Fluttershy wearing some strange bunny outfit and was being carried by some birds while she was struggling but failing to get away. Oh please little friends, I don't want to be in this spooky forest, Fluttershy whimpered. Flutters, I said causing the poor mare to squeak in fear and turn towards me, but when she saw me she let out a sigh of relief. Oh Ash am I glad to see you, Fluttershy said as her birds let go of her and she gave me a hug. What's going on Fluttershy, why are you in the Everfree Forest? I asked. My friends were taking me to find Twilight there's an emergency back in Ponyville. But why are you here? If you don't mind me asking, Fluttershy asked. I was looking at some books in the Everfree Castle. Now what's this about an emergency? I asked. A unicorn called Trixie has taken over Ponyville and I was asked to go look for Twilight to help, Fluttershy said. Okay well let's go see if Zikora knows where she is and if we're lucky Twilight will be there too, I said. Okay, Fluttershy whispered. Um Fluttershy, what are you wearing by the way? I asked. Oh it's Rarity's dangerous mission outfit, Fluttershy said. Okay, well let's get moving, I said. I knew better than to judge Rarity and her choice in fashion so I decided to leave it and gestured to Fluttershy to run towards Zikora's hut. We arrived at Zikora's hut and I knocked at the door and I was greeted by the zebra herself. Ashblade and Fluttershy I trust everything in Ponyville is fine, Zikora said when she saw us. Apologies if we're interrupting something Zikora, but we're looking for Twilight, I said. Follow me my dearies and you'll see Twilight quickly, Zikora said as she beckoned us to come in. We walked inside and I saw Twilight drinking some tea at a table. Ash Fluttershy, what are you two doing here? Twilight asked in surprise as she stood. I've been in the Everfree Castle for almost the entire day, I said. And I had some help to sneak out of the force field, but Twilight I figured out how Trixie became so powerful, she's using the Alicorn Amulet, Fluttershy said. What? Both Twilight and I shouted. I can't believe I didn't recognize the Alicorn Amulet. How could I have been so stupid? Twilight said as she paced around. The more she uses it the more it will corrupt her, Fluttershy said. As was its purpose from the very beginning, I added. Wait, what do you mean? Twilight asked. The amulet was used as a training tool for the Knights of Equestria to fight against mind corruption. It was made by Starsworld the Bearded himself, but the amulet was banned from use when it developed a magical lock so that the only person or pony wearing it can take it off, I said. But how was the amulet able to do that? Twilight asked. It's because the amulet's power source is a demon soul one of the many artifacts Starsworld made when he was studying them, I said. But how am I supposed to beat that thing? It's too powerful. I can't take her on horn to horn, Twilight said. Twilight Sparkle, much work you have done. You've learned all of my lessons, all but one of Trixie's tricks of you in a fix then mix your magic and use the six, Zikora said. Twilight repeated the last line a few times out loud. Use the six of course, Zikora you're a genius, Twilight finally said. Zikora simply nodded and smiled. Now we need to get you two back inside Ponyville, Twilight said as she began writing on a piece of parchment. After a few hours of preparing everything I stood at the edge inside of the force field and gave the signal to Twilight and Zikora to come out of the hiding place outside the dome. Is everything ready? Twilight asked through the shield. Sure is, all that's left is this, I said tapping my hand on the shield. Any ideas? Twilight asked. That depends on how you want to enter. Do you want to stay out there and let Trixie come to you or come in and challenge her up front? I asked. I like option two, Twilight said with a smirk. All right, step back, I said. Twilight and Zikora backed away from the shield and I placed my palm on the shield. I then dug my fingers into it like claws and squeezed. Cracks began to appear on the shield around my hand until the entire shield shattered like glass. Just call me the doorman, I said dusting off my hands. Perfect job, Ash, Twilight said as she walked past me towards Ponyville. Suddenly a flash of light appeared in front of us. After it disappeared in its place was a blue-furred female unicorn. I looked at her for a moment because she seemed familiar she had a white mane and tail with blue eyes wearing a black one-piece show suite that showed off her curves and bust along with her cutie mark which was a star wand with a glittery trail pouring from the tip and a black evil overlord cape and around her neck was the alicorn amulet. You how did you break my force field? She yelled glaring at Twilight. I didn't, Ash here did it for me, Twilight said gesturing to me. You expect me to believe that a simple monkey was able to break the shield of the great and powerful Trixie? She yelled. Oh that's right, I remember you, I said earning looks of confusion from Zikora and Twilight but a look of shock from Trixie. The ape can talk huh, maybe I can keep your new experiment as a pet Twilight Trixie said summoning a caller. If you couldn't catch me before then I doubt you can now, I said. Trixie has never even met a beast such as you, Trixie said. Not like this, I said as I changed into my wolf form earning a gasp of surprise from Trixie. It's you again, Trixie yelled again with her eyes glowing red. You two know each other, Twilight asked. Before I arrived in Ponyville I met Trixie here while she was walking through the Everfree Forest, apparently she was looking for a new act for her little show. She overheard me talking to Dust and tried to place me in a cage and boy was that a dumb move, I said as I turned back into my normal form. Who are you calling dumb, you monster? Trixie yelled. I shot a hated glare at Trixie but before I could do anything more Twilight stepped in. Leave Ash alone Trixie, your fight's with me and I know about the alicorn amulet. I know you cheated, Twilight accused. Cheated, moi, Trixie said in an innocent tone. Yeah and I thought you might like to see what a real magical charm looks like, Twilight said holding up a gold necklace with an emerald green stone with spiral markings. 
Zikora gave this to me as a gift. Before it was nothing but a simple necklace but thanks to Ash the magic goes beyond any in our world including your measly little alicorn amulet, Twilight said putting on the necklace. Ha, huh, nothing is more powerful than the alicorn amulet and there is no pony more powerful than the great and powerful Trixie, Trixie boasted. Care to put your amulet where your mouth is? How about another duel, Twilight dared? Why should I? I already beat you, Trixie said. That's up to you, but I guess you'll never see the awesome power from beyond Ekis, come on guys, Twilight said as we turned away. Okay, okay, you're on, a second duel, Trixie said as she appeared in front of us again. We stood in town square, all of my friends were standing behind Twilight while Trixie stood opposite us with sips and snails, two colts from Ponyville. The rest of the ponies in town stood off to the side and I even saw Mayor Mayor in a cage. The entire town was completely changed. Dark clouds flew overhead and there were statues and banners everywhere of Trixie. Let's start with a simple age spell shall we, Trixie suggested. Let's, Twilight agreed. Snips, snails, Trixie said. On command the two colts stepped forth then Trixie fired a spell at them turning them into baby foals and they started to cry. I rushed over to them and picked them up then handed them to their parents and changed them back to normal before I went back over to Twilight and looked back at Trixie. An oldie but a goodie, now let's see what your little charm can do, Trixie said. No problem. Uh, Applejack, Rarity, could you help me please? Twilight asked. The two looked at each other in confusion then they stepped in front of a statue of Trixie. Twilight then fired a blast at them that covered them in smoke, once the smoke cleared a full version of Applejack and Rarity stood in their place. To top it off full Applejack still had on her Stetson which just slid down her face making her look adorable. Trixie looked shocked at the results before she regained he composure. Ho hum, so you can do an age spell big deal, Trixie said pretending to not be amused. Twilight fired another spell turning them back to normal, then another that turned Rarity into a foal again but was balancing on top of Applejack. Then another that made Applejack elderly and Rarity her normal age, again while still balancing on Applejack. Then another that turned them back to normal. That, that's impossible, Trixie said. That's nothing, Twilight said turning to Rainbow and fired a spell at her. At first it didn't look like anything had happened, but another pair of blue wings extended behind her. Rainbow looked up to be met with a pair of familiar magenta eyes. Yow, Rainbow cried as she flew up with her double and checked herself out. How did you? Trixie asked in shock. Duplication spell, ever seen one pony play ten instruments, Twilight said as she fired a spell at Pinkie Pie getting her to play ten different instruments at once. This, this can't be, Trixie said. Oh there's more, but first Comet could you stand next to Applejack please? Twilight asked Comet stood next to Applejack as instructed and put on a brave smile for his marifrind. For two of my last tricks I can turn a mare into a stallion and a pony into a completely different species, Twilight said. As she said that both Applejack and Comet began to panic, but Twilight fired the spell at them quickly. When it was over Applejack was turned into a stallion and looked as strong as Big Mac and let out a manly, e up. Comet was turned into a human. He was busy checking himself out before Twilight turned them back, and for the final trick, I can control all four elements, Twilight said gaining gasps from the audience. Her eyes turned white and balls of fire, water, earth and air circled around her. She performed a small amount of tricks before making the balls disappear. Trixie was in complete shock at what she had just witnessed. Well Trixie, looks like my amulet is more powerful than- Hey! Give it back! Twilight was interrupted when Trixie snatched Twilight's amulet with her magic. With this amulet I shall now rule all of Equestria, Trixie said with an evil laugh as she took off the alicorn amulet and exchanged it for Twilight's. Witness my subjects gaze upon an even greater and more powerful Trixie, Trixie said with an evil laugh. Suddenly one of the rainbow dashes zoomed down from the sky and grabbed the alicorn amulet. Hey, oh I don't need that old alicorn amulet, I have this, Trixie said as she fired a blast of lightning at rainbow. The spell hit right on target but instead of cries of pain I heard cries of laughter. Stop it that tickles, Rainbow said in between laughs. She was laughing so hard she dropped the amulet. Tickles, that was supposed to make you rife in agony, this amulet is defective, Trixie said. She spotted the fallen amulet and ran to it but before she could reach it a small black blur snatched it up. Trixie looked around for the amulet and she saw Dust was holding it in his claws, he flew over to me and dropped it into my hands and landed on my shoulder. That's an extra bird treat for you tonight Dust, I said as I stroked under his chin. Give me my amulet, Trixie demanded. No way, this thing is too dangerous to even exist, I'm getting rid of it, I said as I levitated the amulet up in my magic. The amulet vibrated wildly before I disassembled it with my magic. I cracked open the gem in the center of the amulet to reveal the demon soul. I snatched the soul out of the air and placed it in my pouch and destroyed the remains of the amulet. By the way Trixie, the amulet around your neck it's one of Zakora's doorstops, Twilight said wrapping her arm around Trixie and tapping the amulet the rock fell off the necklace and shattered the ground. But how did you do those spells? No unicorn can do those spells, Trixie said. You're right not even me. Zikora taught me so much about magic while I was in exile she even taught me when not to use it. My magic alone wasn't enough to take on the alicorn amulet head to head, so I needed to use a different kind of magic, the magic of friendship. And I knew the only one who could get the amulet off your neck was you, Twilight said as Apple Bloom, Granny Smith and Big Mac disguised as Applejack along with Sweetie Belle disguised as a younger rarity came out from behind the statue, while Fluttershy removed her rainbow wig. But what about the pony with the ten instruments, also the pony into a human, also controlling all four elements, Trixie said. The pony with the ten instruments wasn't magic it was just Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie. For the others I had to call in some help from someone who had powerful magic, Twilight said gesturing to me. I held out my hand and once again all four elements spun around in a circle above my hand. Finally the pony into a human trick was a disguise ring, I said turning to Comet as he tossed the ring to me. Soon the crowd of villagers surrounded is cheering for us. I high-fived Twilight before I looked around for Trixie. Unfortunately she disappeared while the crowds cheered for us. I looked up and I saw the dark clouds moving away and ponies started removing the posters and statues of Trixie, also letting Mayor Mare out of the cage, everything was going back to normal. We managed to get everything set up in time for when Celestia and the delegates from Saddle Arabia arrived. 
Surprisingly, Rage also came along because he was Celestia's escort, which I was happy for as it means Celestia was learning to trust him. Twilight was putting on one heck of a show for every pony by levitating Fluttershy's animals. But Fluttershy was terrified that something would happen to them and wouldn't let go of Mac. While Twilight was finishing up her show, I walked over to Rage. Hello, Rage, how's your life been in the castle so far? I asked. I have to walk around with a pair of guards following me, but apart from that, pretty good, Rage replied. Give Celestia time, I'm sure she'll come around with you, but for now here, I said handing him the demon soul. Where'd you get that? Also, we're split forever it won't work anymore, Rage said taking the soul. I know but you said this was like a treat for you. Also I don't know what else to do with it, I said. So what am I a soul disposable unit for you, Rage said jokily. Are you going to eat the soul or not? I asked in an impatient tone. Rage placed the soul in his mouth and swallowed it but he stuck out his tongue in disgust. What's wrong? I asked. The damn thing's gone stale, Rage replied causing me to chuckle. Um excuse me. I turned around and to my surprise I saw Twilight and Trixie. Only instead of wearing her evil overlord cape she wore a blue cape with stars on it and a matching wizard hat. Hey don't we know you? Rage asked. We do rage and I'll explain everything later, but what are you doing here Trixie? I asked with a small amount of anger in my tone. I, I just came to apologize for what I did today it was inexcusable and I treated you and every pony so horribly, it was the amulet I just couldn't control myself, it was like I had another being inside my head but I know it's no excuse and Trixie unders, Trixie was shocked beyond belief as I wrapped her into a hug. You don't have to explain to me Trixie, I know you weren't yourself at the time and for that I forgive you, but you must promise me to stay away from such artifacts okay? I said wiping some tears from her eyes as I released her. Trixie was crying silently but it wasn't tears of sadness leaking from her eyes but tears of happiness and relief. Twilight placed a hand on her shoulder and smiled. So what will you do now Trixie? I asked. Trixie has no idea, there's no way I can show my face in public again after this, Trixie said looking at the ground. You know, I have a vacant room. You can come live with me if you want, Twilight said. What? Trixie and I said at the same time. Are you sure Twilight? I asked. Yes, if Gilda could apologize and be forgiven and given a room with Rainbow then why not with me, Twilight said. You'll do that for me, even after everything I did to you, Trixie asked. Yes, but you'll need to face a punishment to earn the trust of every pony here and you have to be a little more friendly with others, Twilight said. Also, in case things get hairy with the citizens here and they might just come to me and I'll do the talking okay. I said with a smile. Trixie understands, thank you both for giving me this opportunity, Trixie said. Well now that everything is sorted, how about we grab a few mugs of cider at the Bronco with our friends and give them the news about Trixie, I said. Can't Ash, I need to stick by Celestia remember, Rage pointed out. You three go ahead, I'll tell Celestia where Rage has gone and I'll also tell her something, Twilight said. Hear that Rage, now come on, let's go get you a drink, I said as I wrapped my arm around him and led us to find our friends. Twilight walked over to the royal box and saw Celestia and the delegates about to leave after watching the show. Princess Celestia, Twilight called out running up to her mentor. Twilight Sparkle, my faithful student, Celestia said hugging Twilight then releasing her. You put on quite the show tonight, Celestia praised. Thank you princess, I came to let you know that Rage has gone to have a drink with Ash and there's something about Ash you need to know. He can use the Canterlot royal voice I know, Celestia said. Wait he can do that. Twilight asked in surprise. You weren't going to tell me that. Celestia asked confused. No I didn't know he was capable of that, when did he do it? Twilight asked. At the Crystal Empire, you might want to ask your friends about it, Celestia said. I will, Twilight said. Now what is it about Ash that you needed to tell me? Celestia asked. Hmm. Oh yeah well I saw Ash was able to use all four elements today and I think his magic is only growing, Twilight asked. Celestia held a hand to her chin and thought for a moment. This is interesting news, I'll have to let my siblings know of this, but for now this conversation must stay between us, Celestia said as she turned towards the waiting carriage. Wait, will you at least stay to have drink with my friends? Twilight immediately covered her mouth after she realized what she just said. Celestia just let out a chuckle before she turned back to her student. As tempting as the offer is Twilight I must decline, but perhaps I will join you in a drink next time. Oh and please tell Rage to be back at Canterlot before sunrise, Celestia said as she stepped into the carriage and flew off leaving Twilight to walk to the Bronco. It's been six days since the incident with Trixie and when we were at the Bronco the others didn't really approve of Trixie staying in Ponyville and living with Twilight. But, after a few words and some of force from Twilight and I, they calmed down and agreed to give her a chance. Trixie has been doing community service for Ponyville and helping in the library by telling stories to the children. As for me, I woke up ready to begin a new day. I plan to go to the Everfree Castle and try and repair the old automatic training arena I'd found in the secret room. It looked like it was going to be a perfect day, but I thought too soon and I heard a beep come from my iPod I looked at the screen. Oh no, 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 no. It can't be, I said as I looked at my screen and found out that not only my day but my entire week was going to be messed up. Chapter 16 A Trip to the Past and A Blood-Filled Secret Author's Notes Warning please read important. I fear I might have gone over the top on the gore in this chapter so fair warning and sorry if this chapter seems disturbing. Also sorry for the long wait. Spike was walking down the street looking at the list of groceries he had to collect from the market for Twilight. Aw oh man, why do I need to do the hard work? I also I have another mouth to feed now that Trixie's staying with us. Spike grumbled in thought. As Spike was looking down at his list he wasn't looking where he was going and bumped into some pony leaving him to recoil and rub his head. He looked at who he ran into and saw it was both Feather Duster and Silver Tray and both wore casual clothing. Feather Duster wore green pants that hugged her curves along with a turtle neck top with no sleeves while Silver Tray wore a simple yellow dress. Hi you two, Spike said with a small wave. Oh Mr. Spike, Feather Duster said. Just Spike is fine Feather. What are you doing here, collecting groceries like I am? Spike asked. No actually we're both returning home for the week, Silver said. Why? Spike asked. 
Master Ash said he needed the house to himself for the week and he asked us to take the week off with payment, Silver replied. Did he say why? Spike asked. No, but he looked a little sad when we saw him this morning, Feather said. I see, Spike said rubbing his chin with his finger. Well we must be going. I hope you have a nice day Spike, Silver said with a small wave. Hum. Oh yes of course, sorry for keeping you, Spike said with a wave. Not at all it's always nice to talk to a friend, Feather said as they walked away. When Feather Duster and Silver Tray were out of Spike's view, Spike went back to his thinking. I wonder why Ash wants to be alone for the week. The only time that happened was when the girls got nosy with Ash's past. I should tell Twilight when I get back, Spike thought as he walked through the market. Later that night. Princess Luna was walking through the dream realm, thousands of doors were lined up in two rows stretching out like a never-ending corridor that had no walls, only a vast void of stars and planets, surrounded the doors and Luna. This space was similar to the world between worlds but at the same time different. Luna was inspecting every dream that lay beyond the door checking for nightmares. Hello Luna. Luna turned in the direction of the voice and saw Dreamcatcher walking towards her with a smile on her face. Hello Dreamcatcher, how's the dreams on your end? Luna asked. I recently walked in on a wet dream with a stallion and Celestia give Dreamcatcher was cut off when Luna covered her muzzle with her hand. I'd rather not know what happened, Luna said with crimson cheeks before she removed her hand from Dreamcatcher's mouth. Your face says otherwise, Dreamcatcher said with a knowing smile. I don't want to know and that's that, Luna said trying to hide her blush. Luna you're going to need to learn these things sooner or later, Dreamcatcher said. Then later it is, Luna said as she walked away. Dreamcatcher just rolled her eyes and smiled as she followed her little sister. They walked past so many doors each one different and unique in its own form. The pair walked in silence each one observing the colors and shapes of each door until Luna caught sight of a pair of doors. One had a picture of a pair of swords crossing over each other with a flaming background, the edges of the door were flickering with flames, all except the ground. But the one Luna had an interest in was the door next to it. The door was black and had a few specks of light dancing across it and in the center was a white silver moon with a black silhouette of a wolf's head, howling at the moon. Beautiful isn't it Dreamcatcher said? Hum, Luna replied with a smile while she stared at the door. Rage's door is different Dreamcatcher said? Yeah, Luna replied not breaking eye contact with the door. Tell me Luna, is it the door you like or the human who dreams behind it? Dreamcatcher asked with a cheeky grin. What Luna said startled out of her staring trance by the words. Come on Luna admit it, you like him don't you, Dreamcather said with a small laugh. I don't know who you're talking about, Luna said turning away from her sister. You know who, he's tall and muscular, has black hair and green eyes, extremely handsome, owns a pair of wings which you can tell are strong just by looking at them, kind-hearted, loves to draw, I wonder if he ever drew naked mares before, Dreamcatcher said placing her finger on the side of her head as she said the last one. Cease with thy words, Luna shouted with even redder cheeks only making Dreamcatcher laugh. Oh come on Lulu, you know you like him, Dreamcatcher said calming down from her laughter. For the last time I don't like him. Now we can keep this up until dawn and when I wake up I'll be sure to send you back to the moon myself, or maybe we can get on with our duties, Luna said in an irritated tone. Fine, fine I'll go, but may I suggest you strip down to your lineage before you enter and give Ash a nice surprise, Dreamcatcher said as she disappeared just before a bolt of magic could hit her. Luna looked at the spot where Dreamcatcher stood with a look of annoyance on her face and a smoking horn. Her face relaxed and she turned back to the door that led to Ash's dreams, she reached out towards the knob but was hesitant to go in. Luna took a breath sucked up her courage and grabbed the knob and turned it. When the door opened Luna was looking at the backs of faceless humans. They all seemed to be cheering at something Luna walked inside, the faceless humans didn't even bother to move out of Luna's way as she just walked through them, as if they weren't even there, she kept on walking until she saw what the faceless were cheering for. It was an area like the training grounds in Canterlot, only larger. There was sand in the arena and sharp objects along the walls, like rusty saw blades, spears and anything to stab or slice anyone who gets too close. Also in the arena she saw Ash, he was looking at the crowds with a look of fear on his face. Luna watched curiously and saw that he was a young man barely over the age of 15 years. All of a sudden, Luna heard the sound of a rusty door being opened. Luna watched as ten creatures ran out of a steel gate on four legs. Each one looked like more faceless humans, but the creatures didn't wear fancy clothes like the other humans they had nothing covering the torso. The lower half was wrapped in bandages and rags and they were all bald on the top of their heads. The creatures also looked skinny and half-starved, but they acted more like animals. Their hands were nothing but a single claw. They let out cackles of wild laughter shrieks and howls that would be burned into Luna's memory for eternity. Some were muttering words that Luna couldn't hear, some were twitching and one was running around in a circle like a dog chasing its tail. The creature continued to run in circles until it ran straight at the wall of sharp objects and impaled itself on it. Luna was horrified by what was happening but couldn't look away from the mess of blood and gore. Kill him. A voice boomed out across the arena. The faceless humans let out cheers for blood, much like when Luna was in the Griffin Kingdom watching the gladiators kill each other. One by one the nine remaining creatures turned towards Ash slowly like a creaky rusty door to gaze at him. A mouth with no lips split across the faceless creature's heads, where a mouth would normally be, forming terrifying smiles. These mods were filled with sharp teeth and a long slender forked tongue, that looked like it was too long for each mouth and wiggled like a snake's. All of a sudden, the creatures left at Ash, Luna turned her gaze and saw him pick up a sword to defend himself which he held it in two hands. Luna saw he was trembling. A nightmare, Luna whispered to herself, she acted immediately but when she tried to use her magic but it fizzled and died. My magic isn't working, but this is impossible. I was able to stop Uncle Corvo from having nightmares, Luna said as she watched Ash use his sword to block against the creature's claws. Ash swung back at them but since he was younger smaller version of his present self, he was struggling to just keep the blade up. Ash put a lot of effort into blocking the attack but one of the beasts banged the sword out of his hands. Ash looked back at the beast to see a claw knock the wind out of him and threw him a few feet away from the monster. Ash looked up and a creature jumped on top of him its face centimeters from his. The beast opened its mouth and clamped down on Ash's throat making it impossible for Ash to scream. The other creatures joined in, tearing off flesh from parts of his body. 
Ash was buried in the pile of creatures. Ash tried reaching out to grab something but he began to feel his life slipping. Luna was horrified as she watched Ash get devoured by the creatures. When she saw his arm go limp she was ripped from the dream and landed back in the hallway of dreams. Luna looked at Ash's door and saw it disappear before she stood. Just what caused you to imagine something so terrifying Ash? Luna said as she left the dream realm. Three days later. It's on the tip of my tongue but I just can't remember. I know something was supposed to happen this week but I can't remember what it was. Rage said lounging against a wall off to the side of Celestia's throne. Give it a while, it will come to you, Celestia said as she saw the last visitor for day court leave. I've tried to remember it for at least three days now yet I'm only getting a blank, Rage said. Well it mustn't be that important if it continues to elude you, Rage, Celestia said. Yeah but it is still frustrating, Rage said. Celestia gave Rage a warm smile she was actually getting along with him and was giving him more breathing room. Just then, her ear perked up when she heard Luna and Dreamcatcher pass the throne room. His dreams are getting worse catcher and my magic is ineffective against them, Luna whispered. Well if you can't help him then what can I do? I doubt my magic would do any better than what you could do, Dreamcatcher said. What do you two mean his dreams are getting worse and whose dreams are they? Celestia asked causing the two night alicorns to jump and look towards Celestia. They walked inside and walked to the center of the room while Celestia rose from her throne and walked down the steps to meet them. Sorry Selly, it's just something that's happening in the dream world, Dreamcatcher said. What is it? I would like to know if one of my subjects is troubled, Celestia said. That's the thing Tia, it's Ash's dreams. At the beginning of the week Ash has been having nightmares and it has continued up to today as well. The only thing Ash is getting is at least two hours sleep every night before he wakes up, Luna said. What is happening in these nightmares? Celestia asked. Ash is in some kind of arena he is at a young age and faceless humans are cheering for blood to be spilled. Just then steel doors open and something comes out of them. The first time it was ten humans who were more like feral animals. The second time crocodiles, and both dreams end with him being eaten, Luna said with a shudder. Celestia was shocked by this as she tried to say something. So the Griffin Kingdom arena is hitting Ash harder than I thought, Celestia finally said. No sister it wasn't that arena, it was a completely different one, my guess it's from Earth, Luna said. What's this about the Griffin Kingdom arena? Dreamcatcher asked. They'll tell you another time, Luna said. What do you think Rage? Celestia asked turning to the spot Rage sat in but when her gaze reached the spot Rage had gone. The window was open above where he sat allowing a breeze to enter the room. I take it he knows and he's going to do something about it, Dreamcatcher said. Dreamcatcher, can you summon Discord and Chrysalis and have them meet us in Ponyville? Celestia asked. Of course, but what about you two? Dreamcatcher asked. We're going to Ponyville to get answers, Celestia said. Twilight was sitting in the library next to Trixie with five different books in her magic grip. Twilight had taken on her own role as a mentor for Trixie and Trixie was happy to be learning new magic. Spike was dusting off the shelves around the library when suddenly a flash of light went off and it disappeared just as it had appeared. Standing in its place was Celestia and Luna. Spike was so shocked by the sudden appearance he fell off the ladder. But before he hit the ground he was wrapped in a golden aura and sat on the ground gently. Once that happened the golden aura disappeared around Spike. Sorry for startling you like that Spike, we should have written to tell you we were coming, Celestia said as her horn had the same golden aura around it before it disappeared. Princess what brings you here, Twilight said running up to Celestia and giving her a hug while Trixie stared in disbelief. Hello Twilight sorry to drop in unannounced, Celestia said with a smile and hugging Twilight back. It's fine, oh I'd also like you to meet Trixie. I've been helping her with small magic spells to help her improve her magic, Twilight said walking over to Trixie and helping her stand up. Your Highness, Trixie said with a bow. Please don't be so formal Trixie, but I must continue on with why Luna and I are here. Have any of you seen Ash today, Celestia asked. No, in fact I haven't seen him since he left for home after you visited with the delegates from Saddle Arabia, Twilight said. Actually Ash hasn't left his house since then. He even told the maids to take the week off, Spike said. That is strange Twilight, will you gather your friends and have them all meet us here? Celestia asked. Of course, come on Trixie, Twilight said. Both Twilight and Trixie ran out the door leaving Spike with the princesses. I think I should get the boys and Gilda, they are friends of Ash too, Spike suggested. Good thinking Spike, we will wait here for the remainder of our family before we leave for Ash's home, Luna said before the dragon left. Soon everyone was rounded up and inside Twilight's library followed shortly by Chrysalis, Dreamcatcher Discord and Aris. Anyone care to tell me why my midday nap was disturbed, Rainbow said with a yawn. Indeed, I was in the middle of an extremely exciting game of cards with a bowl of pudding, Discord said. Ooh what type of pudding? Pinky asked. I believe it was a steak and kidney pudding by the name of Albert, but anyway why are we all here, Discord asked. We're here to discuss Ash, Celestia said calmly. Has the famous knight of Equestria joined the dark side, Aris said as she changed into a dark suit with a black cape and a black helmet that covered her head and she started breathing heavily. No, far from that and what is that you're wearing anyway? Dreamcatcher asked gesturing to the outfit. It's from one of the greatest movies ever made from Ash's world, Aris said changing back and everyone in the room giving her surprised and strange stares. As I was saying the reason why is because Ash has been having nightmares since the beginning of the week, Celestia said. Isn't that Princess Luna's and Princess Dreamcatcher's department? Big Mac asked. It is but my magic has no effect on the dreams so I can't dispose of them. Also the nightmares are getting worse, Luna said. So what do we do about it, Rarity asked. We need to ask Ash what is going on, Celestia said. Oh princess, no disrespect but are you sure that's the wisest idea? Thunderlane asked. No, but if we don't ask him we'll never get anywhere. Unless you care to tell us something Discord, Celestia said causing everyone's eyes to fall onto the older Draconiquis. Why do you think Discord knows something? Fluttershy asked. Because Discord invaded Ash's mind and found out the story of Ash's burn mark, Chrysalis replied folding her arms over her chest. And I paid the price thank you, Discord said blowing a raspberry at Chrysalis. What do you mean? Applejack said with an angry look on her face. 
Discord just pointed to the spot where his arm was bandaged giving everyone in the room a clear indication of what it was. Ash must have been mad at you if he did that, Gilda said. Yes well I did Pinky promise not to say anything, but the cat's out of the bag there. I cannot tell you anything more, Discord said. Well since we can't ask you we'll just have to ask Ash, Celestia said. Led the way Princess, Twilight said as she led her out the door first. The group of friends walked over to Ash's home Celestia's mind was filled with possibilities of what could happen, most of them not ending well. When they arrived they saw that one of the two doors that made up the front entrance of the mansion was open. Everyone walked up to the door, the air coming from inside the house was as cold as a tomb causing a few in the group to shiver. Max stepped inside first, he was the only one who had confidence in his step. What's the matter with y'all? You're acting as if this place is haunted, Max said. Easy for you to say, Comet said under his breath. Inside, curtains were spread across the windows. The only light was from the cracks of sunlight that the curtains didn't cover. Hey Ash, you here, Spike shouted gaining no response. This place is too fabulous to have curtains go across every window, Rarity said as she grabbed all the curtains in her view with her magic and pulled them away from the windows allowing more sunlight to enter the house. Much better, Rarity said pleased with herself. Let's check upstairs, Luna suggested. The group followed Luna as she walked upstairs, but there was no sign of life. Luna led them to the main bedroom, she grabbed the doorknob and was about to turn it. I wouldn't do that, a voice called. The main six, except Rainbow Dash, the Stallions, Spike, Aris, Discord and Trixie jumped and huddled when they heard the voice, but the rest were ready to fight. Show yourself, Gilda demanded. The lights on the second floor turned on and sitting up against the railing that protects every pony in the house from falling onto the staircase below was Rage. Only he looked like he was in pain and was clutching his side with a bruise on his cheek. Rage what happened? Twilight asked. Surprised at how he looked she walked over to him and helped him stand. Thank you Twilight. And to answer your question, Ash happened to me, Rage said grunting in pain. Wait, Ash did this to you, why? Chrysalis asked stunned. I'm kinda the last person Ash would want to see this week. He gave me warning to leave. But, I wanted to apologize for me mistreating him over the years, especially during this week in particular. I don't understand what's so important about this week. Soren asked. Rage just gave a cold look at him before he limped over to the bedroom door and knocked hard on it three times. Hey Ash, look I know how you're feeling right now and you want to be left alone, but our friends are here, well more like your friends and they're kinda worried about you, so don't you think you should tell them Avo? Crack. A black obsidian blade went right through the door causing everyone except Rage to jump in for Fluttershy to fall over. But, she was in so much shock she was as stiff as a board of wood. If they're so worried and you want to help me rage and make up for the pain I went through, then you tell the story to them, Ash's voice sounded from the other side of the door. The sadness and anger were clear in his voice. The group heard footsteps get further and further away from the door and soon silence overtook the room once more. Come on, Rage said as he limped away from the door with the side blade still stuck in it. Where are we going, Twilight asked recovering from the shock. Like Ash said, if you all want answers then you need to listen to the story I'm going to tell, Rage said as he walked to the stairs. Everyone followed Rage to the stairs, once they reached the bottom Rage turned to the group. Can you all wait in the living room while I grab something please? Rage asked. Everyone looked at each other before they nodded and went into the living room. A few minutes later Rage walked in with a large bottle of apple cider for everyone plus three more, all of them floating in his magic grip. What's all that for Rage? Caramel asked. Just in case you all need it after I finished, it's not exactly a nice story and I'm gonna need two of these to help me forget I told you this, Rage said as a bottle of cider floated over to each one of the friends and he held two of the other bottles. This is that serious huh Thunderlane said. Who are the last two for? Celestia asked. Ash, if he decides to join us, Rage said. Okay so now what? Rainbow asked trying to uncork her bottle. Get comfortable and I'll start off with some questions if you have any, Rage said. Yeah, why is this week so important to you and Ash? Soren asked. This week is the anniversary of the most painful week anyone should have to go through, this week marks the week of Ash's imprisonment six years ago and his release only two years ago, Rage said earning gasps of shock from everyone but Discord. Wait he was a prisoner, Twilight said shocked. What was his crime? Gilda asked. That's just it, he didn't do anything, Rage said. Huh, everyone said confused. If he didn't do anything then how come he was placed in jail? Applejack asked. Maybe I should start from the beginning when the tragedy of this story began, Rage said as he drew a rune in midair. What are you doing Rage? Luna asked. Don't worry, just be ready, Rage said as he finished the rune and it glowed. Ready for what? Iris asked. Just then everyone was sucked into a portal that opened above them. The portal opened up in a forest during spring and everyone fell out with a thud. That Rage said as he stood. Where are we? Twilight asked rubbing her head. More like when and where, Rage said. What do you mean? Twilight asked. We're inside Ash's memory archive, this is where all his memories are stored and if I'm not mistaken this is a happy memory, Rage said looking around. I thought you said this week was a terrible week to begin with, Rainbow Dash said. It is, we're just a few days early that's all. We're actually a few years earlier it's before Ash was imprisoned, Rage said. Then when are we? Dreamcatcher asked annoyed. Ask him, Rage said pointing into the forest. Everyone looked at the forest and saw a boy running through the trees and stopped right next to them, but he didn't even notice them. Is that? Comet asked. Yep, that's Ash at age 7, but in dog years he's at least 44 years old, Rage said. Ah oh, he's so cute, I just want to hug him and never let go, Chrysalis said cooing at Ash's younger age. Just then Ash bolted after he heard a twig snap. Whoa he moves fast, Soren said with a whistle. Come on, I know where he's headed, Rage said as he ran after the memory Ash. Everyone ran after Ash and he stopped when he reached a cave. Where are we, Trixie asked. Rage looked at her and smiled before he turned his gaze back to Ash. Home, Rage said as he walked towards the mouth of the cave. Once he entered Rage saw Ash looking around the large but empty cave. Guys you here, Ash called. The entire group were inside the cave now looking at Ash. Razor, Sooty, Nikki, Rose, Copper, are you here? Ash called. 
Who's he talking to? Trixie asked. You'll see, Rage said. Ash took a few more steps into the cave going over every inch of space. Suddenly, the sound of rocks moving came from behind a large rock, Ash moved closer silently without a sound. When he was close enough he placed his hand on the rock but as soon as he did five young pups leapt out from behind the rock and tackled Ash to the ground. Wolves are attacking Ash, Trixie said as she watched in shock. No Trixie look closer, Rage said. Trixie did as instructed and watched but to her surprise instead of harming Ash they were licking him and running around him in happiness. Trixie doesn't understand, why aren't they hurting him? Trixie asked. Well it's because that's his family, Rage said. His what? Trixie shouted. You heard me, Rage said turning to watch Ash. Okay you guys, you got me. Now can you let me up please? Ash asked. The pups complied as they backed away from Ash to let him sit up, once he did he started patting and rubbing the wolves much to their delight. Rage looked at his group and saw that Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Twilight, Fluttershy and Applejack were letting out tears of happiness. Celestia had a hand over her smile and was trying to hold back tears at how beautiful the moment was. While the rest smiled and watched, Rage looked at Ash again and saw one of the pups with a copper-colored coat, he knew the pup is copper, given the coat color, run further into the cave and come back with a ball in his mouth. Hey every pony, Rage said gaining the group's attention. Ever wondered why Ash is able to resist the puppy dog eyes? Yeah, how is he able to do that? Rarity asked. You're about to find out, Rage said pointing to Copper. Ash had finished patting one of the pups when he saw Copper approach. Copper dropped the ball on the ground and rolled it towards Ash with his nose before he sat on his hind legs and wagged his tail. No Copper you know how long it takes for me to wear you out from doing this, Ash said. Copper just looked at Ash before he nodded to his siblings. Each one nodded back and walked over to Copper and sat next to him. The group was confused by the action but Ash, Rage and Discord knew where this was going. Don't you five dare, Ash said pointing a finger at the pups. All at once the five pups cocked their heads to the side and let an ear flop down while the other ear stood straight. They each gave out little whines and wagged their tails. As soon as they did this Discord gripped his chest at his heart and fell backwards while he cringed from the cuteness overload. The others awed and cooed at how adorable the pups were, even Gilda was affected. Rage could see Ash was trying to stay strong but he was fighting a losing battle. Alright, alright, just stop with the cuteness, it hurts, Ash said as he picked up the ball, I swear you five are too cute for your own good, Ash held the ball out for the pups. The pups then crouched and wagged their tails in the air. Ash threw the ball as far as he could into the cave and the pups ran after it. This is going to take a while, Ash said as he sat on a stone and waited for the pups to return. Guess that makes sense since Ash was treated to those pups levels of cute our puppy dog eyes won't affect Ash because it's not cute enough Twilight said. How are such levels of cuteness possibly reached by five wolf pups? Luna asked. Even though they're young their knowledge of cute is superior to our own, Chrysalis said. Well it just means we'll have to be cuter, Pinkie Pie suggested. Yeah I doubt you can get any cuter than that, Rage said. So where are the parents? Mac asked. Bringing dinner, Rage said pointing to the forest. The group turned and saw a snow white wolf with ice blue eyes and a black wolf with red eyes dragging a deer carcass to the cave. Most of the main six and stallions were repulsed by the sight, except for Fluttershy because she understood the wolf's diet. She did feel sorry for the deer but didn't say a word. Let's skip to the end of the meal, Rage said. Rage snapped his fingers and in a flash it was night time and the small family were sitting around the skeleton of the deer. The pups were lying in a pile sleeping, while the mother watched over them. Hey Rage can you tell us the names of the family? Twilight asked. Yeah the white wolf with black lines running along his back is Razor. The white almost pink pup is Rose. The copper colored wolf is Copper, Sooty is the one whose coat color matches Octavia's. Nikki is the one with the light gray coat and white paws and ears, the white wolf is Snowheart the mother of the pack and finally the alpha is Night Stalker. Rage said pointing to each wolf. A fearsome name for the father, Luna said. True, want to know why? When Night Stalker went out at night to keep Ash's home protected, you wouldn't be able to see him. He would be like a living shadow, not only that, his eyes would stand out making him look more ferocious, Rage said. So what got Ash's name if I may ask? Fluttershy asked. That's a pretty interesting tale, not long ago when Ash was out exploring, he heard Night Stalker howling in pain. Ash was the one to answer the call, he ran to his father's location and saw Night was fighting a bison, Rage said. What's a bison? Fluttershy asked. It's like a cow, only bigger and that thing was four times Ash's size right now, Rage said pointing to Ash getting the group interested. Anyway Ash had to rely on his smarts to survive the beast. They were at an old campfire site and Ash grabbed some of the ashes that remained in the pit and held his stone knife at the ready. The bison charged at Ash planning to crush him but Ash threw the ashes from the fire pit into the bison's eyes blinding it. He dodged to the side and jumped onto the creature and stabbed his blade into the nape of the beast's neck making it a swift and relatively painless end, Rage said earning surprised looks from the group. But this still doesn't explain how Ash got his name, Twilight said. Yes it does it was the tools Ash used remember the ashes from the fire pit and his blade. Night Stalker saw the event and gave the name Ash Blade to Ash Rage said getting looks of realization from the group. Just then Night Stalker grabbed a few bones that belonged to the deer and walked out of the cave. Both Snowheart and Ash saw this and picked up the remaining bones and followed. Where are they going? Caramel asked. Follow me, Rage said as he walked after them. The group walked through the forest until they came to a small clearing. They saw Ash and his parents digging a hole in the ground and placing the bones in it then burying them. Once they were done they sat in silence. What are they doing now? Soren asked. They're burying their kill as a sign of respect, Rage said. What? The group said in confusion. You didn't think Ash was raised without manners did you? These wolves actually respected the food they ate you know. Why? Cause the food keeps them alive. When they were done eating they take the bones of their meal and bury them. Other wolves don't do this but Ash was taught to respect all creatures whether they try to kill you or they're your food, Rage said. That's surprising, Celestia said. Indeed, nature is quite fascinating here, Fluttershy said. For a few minutes no one said anything until Luna spoke up. Um Rage is this where it happened? Luna asked. Yeah, Rage said with a heavy sigh. What do you mean princess, Twilight asked. This is the place that Ash saw his family's death, Rage said. 
The group became sad at this, except Aris and Trixie. I don't think I'll be able to handle that, Celestia said and the rest of the group just nodded. I understand, but you should know, that day happened during the week of Ash's imprisonment and release, Rage said as he snapped his fingers and once again they disappeared. The group reappeared in what looked like a town during the night and they stood on a sidewalk watching cars and a small amount of humans pass. So this is an earth town, Twilight said excitedly looking around. Just then they saw Ash walk right past them looking depressed so the group followed him. What are those things, Thunderlane asked pointing to the passing cars. Cars, however there are hundreds of other names for them, but I'm not going to into them. This is one of the days of the week that added more to his pain, Rage said. Why a week? Celestia asked. This week is like Ash's bad luck week is in life-changing bad luck, Rage said. By life-changing bad luck, you mean what exactly? Mac asked. This week is made up of the worst days in Ash's life, the memory of the death of his family, his imprisonment, his release in another day, Rage said. All in one week, Pierce said surprised. Yeah different year same week and month, Rage said. But if he was imprisoned wouldn't his release be a good thing? Twilight asked. Depends on what happened on the day, Rage said. So why is this memory so bad, Thunderlane asked. The group rounded a corner and they were shot with a blast of heat. In front of them was a burning building and people scrambling around it while firefighters tried to extinguish the blaze. Is this, Rarity began. Yep this is the day Ash lost his arm, Rage pointed out. The group silently watched as they saw Ash run towards the burning supermarket and how he reacted when he heard about the child still inside. Trixie, Aris, Chrysalis and Dreamcatcher were stunned when Ash charged into the hellish blaze. The group followed Ash and they ran through the fire with no trouble and watched as Ash bobbed and weaved through burning objects. Ash found the five-year-old child and placed him in his coat for protection, then Ash ran back the way he came. Ash saw his exit was blocked so he looked around and found a brick. Ash placed the crying child on the floor and picked up the brick and tossed it through the window, he picked up the child and ran to the window to see a firefighter. All of a sudden a hiss escaped next to Ash, he looked down and saw a gas bottle. He turned to the firefighter and shouted to move and pushed him and the child away from the building while Ash dived just as the bottle went off. Ash was flung into a shelf and fell onto the ground onto his stomach, then a shelf fell on him causing the group to cringe at the sight. Ash's left arm was the only thing visible and it was burning like crazy. Ash flung his arm around trying to extinguish the flames and screams of pain were heard. Soon the fire made it to the bone and that's when the thrashing and screaming stopped. Just then, the roof caved in and Rage snapped his fingers and they repapered after the fire was extinguished. Firefighters were climbing over the rubble some of them were digging around, one of them managed to lift the shelf and he found Ash. I found him, the firefighter called getting the others to gather around Ash. One of the firefighters picked him up giving the group a good view of the damage done to Ash. His jacket was gone and his top was ripped and burned, scorch marks covered him while all that remained of Ash's arm was a charred skeletal remnant. The arm looked so fragile that as if just touching it would cause it to turn to dust. I can't believe he did that, Chrysalis said covering her mouth. To the family he was a hero, to everyone else he was the one that started the fire, Rage said getting the group to look at Rage shocked while Luna looked sad. How could he be treated in such a way after what he did? Comet yelled in outrage. I know life's not fair but he knew he didn't do it and there was no proof he did do it so he was free to go, Rage said as he snapped his fingers and they were in a black void. So how was he imprisoned if he didn't do that? Twilight asked. This is the part of the story that makes this painful I'm sure you've all been wondering about this, Rage said as a line of fire blazed across the void like ink on paper, the line of fire continued until it made the burn mark on Ash's back. About time, Rainbow huffed. Rainbow dash please, Rarity said to the brash pegasus hovering in the air. I was getting tired of not knowing what the heck that mark means, Rainbow said. I agree with you Rainbow, this secret should have been told sooner, but Ash was worried about what you all would think of him if you all knew, Rage said. So what's so bad about it, Gilda asked. This mark is by far the most inhuman thing to go through, the most disturbing thing in human history it's the symbol of, of Rage tried to force the words out of his mouth but every time he did it looked like he was going to be sick. Slavery, Discord said. The group snapped their heads towards Discord at what he said. It took a while for everyone to process the information, once it got through all their faces filled with dread. They turned their faces back to Rage who just nodded for confirmation, Rarity gasped in shock. Most of the group was too shocked to move, Rainbow lowered to the ground and was sitting on her knees she also looked like she saw a terrifying car crash. Slavery, Twilight choked. Yes I can show you all if you want but I must warn you this is something that won't be easy to just forget. If any of you want to back out then now is the time to leave just ask and I'll send you back to the lounge room, Rage warned. If something from this memory is hurting Ash then I want to help him get by it and the best way to do so is to see this memory, Luna said with determination. Yeah, Ash is our friend, he came to help us in the arena and now it's our turn to help him, Rainbow said standing up putting on a brave face. The group stood tall with determination in their eyes to see this through to the end, even Fluttershy was ready to face what would happen. Very well then, Rage warned as he snapped his fingers. The group appeared in a small room which was made of dark stone the only sources of light were hot coals in a small pit with a metal staff poking out of it and a single lamp hanging from the ceiling. In the light of the lamp was a human with a bag over his face. The human was wearing pants but his torso was exposed along with his left metal arm giving the group knowledge of who was behind the bag. Ash's hands were in shackles and chained to opposite ends the wall making his arms spread out, Ash wasn't even standing, in fact the chains were the only things holding him up. Wise Ash Trixie began as she stepped towards Ash. Suddenly the sound of keys being inserted into a lock and turning filled the room and a heavy metal door swung open. Two humans in identical items of clothing and armor, they also wore metal helmets to hide their faces, stood in the doorway. One of the humans walked over to Ash and pulled the bag off, showing Ash was asleep, while the other closed the door and walked behind Ash. Wake him up, the guard behind Ash said. The other guard nodded curled his fingers into a fist and punched Ash across the face causing Ash to cry in pain. As he woke up he looked around frantically for what woke him up then he saw the guard in front of him. Who are you and where am I? Ash asked with no kindness in his voice, only to get punched in the face again. You'll speak when I tell you to speak maggot, the guard said pulling on his hair forcing Ash to look at him. 
Fuck you, asshole. Ash shot back and was rewarded with a punch to the gut. What's this guy registered for anyway? The guard asked his colleague standing next to the pit of coals. He's been assigned to the pit, the guard said. All right, brand him and we'll take him to the pit, the guard said. Wait, brand him, Mac repeated. The guard behind Ash grabbed the metal staff from the coals revealing a wide circular end glowing red with heat. The guard stood behind Ash and placed the hot piece of metal on Ash's back. A-A-A-R-R-R-G-G-G-H-H-H. Ash screamed in agony. Fluttershy buried her head into Mac's chest and covered her ears to try and look away and drown out the scream while Mac comforted her. The rest of the main six, the Stallions, Gilda, Trixie and Spike watched on, scared for their friend. The princesses and Iris were unsure as to how to react, their faces showed sadness for the treatment Ash went through, shock for the brutality and anger at the ones that did this to him. Once the branding iron was removed from Ash's back, the guard unlocked the chains dropping Ash to the floor too weak to stand from the pain, so he was dragged out of the room. Where are they taking him? Twilight asked turning to Rage. Rage just snapped his fingers and they were in a different location they were standing in an area that looked over an arena. Luna recognized this place from Ash's dreams just then a large steel door opened and twenty humans walked in all carrying weapons and wearing pieces of armor. Opposite the warrior humans another door opened and Ash was pushed in and landed in the sand with an oomph. Ash was wearing the top and the jacket he wore when he turned back into a human in Equestria. This place was in Ash's nightmares, Luna said gaining the group's attention. I wouldn't be surprised, this place has horrors that would make the bravest stallions cower like little fillies, Rage said. Just then a horn sounded and the humans fought each other like a pack of rabid dogs. Ash just watched from the side and tried to stay away from the conflict. As he walked and watched he tripped over. Before he could get up one of the gladiators who'd been killed by his opponent fell on top of him. Ash struggled to get out from underneath the muscular and armored corpse, once he was free he saw he and another human were the only ones left in the arena. The human turned towards Ash his face saying his bloodlust wasn't satisfied armed with a sword in hand the human charged at Ash. Terrified Ash reached around frantically for something to defend himself with the human was extremely close now. Just in time, Ash found something, he held it in front of him and closed his eyes there was a disgusting squelch mixed in with a crack and the audience went silent. When Ash opened his eyes he saw the human that tried to kill him a foot away from his face, his eyes glazed over and lifeless. Ash looked at what he held in his hands and he saw he was holding a spear, the tip of it was piercing the human's chest while blood began to drip into the sand flowing along the spear and stained Ash's hands crimson. Ash began to shake with fear at what he'd done and pushed the dead body to the side. Once he did this he started mumbling apologies to the fighter while shaking him to get a response while the human audience cheered. What just happened? Applejack asked stunned at what she'd seen. Ash said he never killed a sentient creature before, Soren said. Technically Soren, that was an accident. He was acting out of fear, also AJ what happened is Ash just lost one of the most precious things life can give, his innocence, Rage said. Now this just ain't right. How is this legal? Caramel asked. It's not, Rage said. Then why isn't the law, Rarity started. What the law doesn't know they can't stop Rarity, Rage interrupted. Hey where are they taking Ash? Pierce asked. The group looked and saw Ash was being carried off by two more guards, Rage just snapped his fingers and they disappeared once more. The group stood in a large rectangular cell made of stone, the group looked around and saw a lot of things, a training ring for combat and exercise machines, a small forge, not as good as caramels, a small bookshelf filled with old textbooks, a toilet and sink with a wall for privacy at least, a few old instruments in a corner, a single small bared window with no glass to let heat or cold in and around 30 people in the cell. There were men, women and children of all ages in the room, each one occupying themselves in some way. Now where are we? Spike asked. We're in Ash's home for the next four years, Rage said. Just then the iron door unlocked causing everyone in the cell to huddle against the back wall in fear. Once the door opened Ash was tossed in. Got a new addition for you whelps, the guard said as he slammed the door closed and locked it. Once the door closed Ash tried to get up but was too weak to move. Seeing this, some of the people in the room walked over to Ash and tried to help him up. But, one accidentally touched the burn mark and Ash hissed in pain getting the person to flinch back. Looks like he was branded, get some water, someone said. On it, another said as he walked away. What did those monsters do to this poor boy, another one said only this time it was a woman. The group picked up Ash and carried him to a rectangular altar connected to the wall and placed him on his stomach. They removed his top and jacket earning gasps of surprise when they saw his metal arm. His top and jacket were placed next to him while the person who went to get the water came back with a metal filled to the brim. The man poured the water over the burn to cool it off the people held him down gently while Ash hissed in pain. These people seem to care for Ash deeply, Chrysalis said. Well duh, they went through the same treatment as Ash did, they know how it feels to be here. Also this just proves that there's always a flower even in the darkest of places, Rage said. Wise words Rage, Celestia said. The group turned back to Ash to see the people helping him up, he was offered some water which he greedily drank. How are you feeling? A person asked. Empty really I, I just killed someone out there, I was scared, I didn't know what else to do, I only meant to scare him off, Ash said as he began to cry. The prisoners watched in sadness as Ash cried. All of a sudden a boy pushed past the adults and looked at Ash in wonder. Excuse me put can I see that arm, the boy asked. John leave this boy alone, the women scolded. Ash just sat in silence as he watched the boy. Come on John, I think our friend here is a little tired, a man said lightly tugging on the boy. The boy named John waved goodbye to Ash before he left and Ash returned the gesture with a small wave of his own. You must be tired, I suggest you get some sleep, the same man said placing a hay-filled pillow underneath Ash's head and handing him an old brown blanket that looked itchy. Ash nodded his head in agreement, he laid his head on the pillow and placed the blanket over himself and soon drifted into slumber. A few hours of tossing and turning in his sleep Ash woke up with a sharp gasp and drenched in sweat. Nightmare. Ash looked in the direction of the voice and saw the same man who gave him the bed materials. He wore khaki pants and a white top, he had short-cut brown hair and a small beard, he also had hazel eyes that looked fierce. Yeah about today, Ash replied. I understand, I was the same when I first killed someone I was what was known as a green beret, the man said. What's that? Ash asked. 
It's a type of soldier, the man said. I don't even know what that is, Ash said. Do you know how to read and write? The man asked. Ash just shook his head in response. What parents don't teach their child to read and write, the man said a little annoyed. The ones that leave you in the woods as a baby to die and when you're raised by wolves you don't learn much of those type of life skills. The only things you can do is walk, talk and survive, Ash snapped back. The man was surprised by this and then a look of realization crossed his face when he remembered what he said. Oh, sorry, the man said. Ash didn't respond, he just sat against the wall and looked at everyone sleeping in the moonlight that was creeping in through the cell. Would you like to learn? The man asked. What? Ash replied confused. To read and write and while we're at it I can teach you other stuff like combat, the man said. I don't want to kill anybody, once is more than enough, Ash said. I understand but I also want to teach you how not to get hurt, also we have our own forge to make and sharpen our weapons if you're interested, the man said. Ash was silent for a few minutes he looked at the training ring and the forge then at the books in the bookshelf. You know I'd actually like that, Ash said. Very well, you are now my student and I will be your mentor, but remember just because you're young I won't go easy on you, the man said as he began to walk away. Wait you didn't tell me your name, Ash said. It's Alex, what's yours? Alex asked. Ash Blade, but you can call me Ash, Ash said. All right you'd better get some rest and I'll see you tomorrow, Alex said, as he walked away as Ash settled down again to sleep. The bond between a mentor and a student is a beautiful thing, no. Rage said. It certainly is, Celestia said smiling at Twilight in the corner of her eye. The smile did not go unseen by Twilight and it caused he cheeks to turn pink. Rage snapped his fingers and night became day in an instant and everyone was busy, some were hammering at something in the forge, the kids sat in front of a woman listening as she told a story, some men were also doing training along with some exercises. The group turned and saw Ash waking up, he rubbed the sleep from his eyes and looked around at the cell and how it looked alive and it was not long before Ash had company. Good morning. Ash looked for the voice and he saw the woman from yesterday smiling at him, her skin was dark but beautiful. A wrap covered the top of her head and she wore a long dress with an exotic pattern on it and she spoke in a foreign accent. Oh hello, Ash said cracking his neck. I brought you some breakfast, the woman said handing Ash a bowl of a strange liquid substance. Thank you, Ash said as he took the bowl and placed a spoonful of the bowl's contents in his mouth, but as soon as he did he regretted it. Ugh, I've eaten old meat tastier than this, Ash said placing the bowl to the side. I know but we don't have the luxury of eating the good food like those pigs eat out there, the woman said. Um can you tell me where I am please? Cause I wasn't told anything when I was pulled off the street, Ash said. We don't know either, all I know is that we're all slaves, the women replied sadly. Slaves, Ash said in confusion. Yes once you've been branded by the mark on your back you have to serve the ones that gave it to you and from what you told us they assigned you to the pit to fight. The women said. What about you? Ash asked. I serve them food and drinks and out the women cringed while her face twisted in pain. Are you okay? Ash asked in concern. I'm fine the baby kicked that's all, the woman replied. Ash looked down and noticed the rounded belly the woman had. How'd I miss that? Ash said immediately clamping his mouth shut but the woman only giggled much to Ash's confusion. It's alright, I know you didn't mean anything, the woman said calming Ash. Okay, how did they do that? Ash asked pointing to her stomach. The woman only smiled and looked at a man working out who had the same color skin as she did, the man saw the two and waved. Ash and the woman responded by waving back. He looks like a good man, Ash said. My husband is, but most women in this frightful place aren't as lucky as I, the woman said her face turning into a frown. Ash leaned back against the wall and shared her frown. My name is Rosa, the woman said with a smile offering her hand to shake. Ash blade but please call me Ash, Ash said as he took the hand and shook it. Oh yes I forgot, Alex has asked me to help in teaching you how to read and write, Rosa said. Wait, I thought he was going to teach me that, Ash said in confusion. He will instruct you in combat and other forms of teaching like mathematics and history. But to read and write would require a woman's personal touch, Rosa said with a warm smile. Okay, well thank you, Ash said as he got up. I recommend you finish that first it may taste foul but it will keep your energy up, Rosa said pointing to the bowl of foul slop. Ash grimaced in disgust but picked up the bowl and ate as much as he could, then he washed it down with water. Once he finished he got up and put on his top and jacket and walked off to find Alex. Ash looked around and found him sparring with another person with a pair of wooden swords. He was quite good at what he was doing. With one swipe under Alex's opponent's legs he knocked him onto his back and held his blade to his foe's throat. Ash was memorized by the move. Alex helped his opponent up and shook his hand before Alex turned to Ash. Glad to see you're up, I trust Rosa told you about your lessons, Alex said when he saw Ash. Yeah she did. If you think this is the best idea then I'll follow along with it, Ash said. Thank you for understanding, Alex said as he walked over to a wooden sword and picked it up. You know how to use one. Alex asked tossing the wooden blade to Ash. No, the only blade I ever used was a small rock dagger I made but no special training really, Ash said. Well you're gonna learn how to use a lot of weapons when I'm done with you, Alex said with a wicked smile. The group watched with interest as Ash was trained by Alex. And boy was it hard Ash kept getting thrown to the side or hit by the wooden sword leaving bruises all over Ash's body. When lunch arrived Rosa came along and began to teach Ash reading and writing skills. Guess that explains Ash's fighting techniques, Soren said. Yeah but Alex and Rosa weren't Ash's only teachers. A little while later a man was tossed in this cell. His name was Eli he was a musician who taught Ash how to play the flute and the violin, Rage said. I didn't know Ash could play the violin, Rarity said. This place actually ain't so bad, Pinky said. Yeah this cell is a nice place the only problem is that they're slaves and the foul food. This is why they act this way so during the day and night they are free. But every two weeks they are reminded of the fact they're slaves. Some people are picked out of the group and taken to the main room where they are forced to fight and serve the so-called masters, Rage said in disgust. Is it that bad? Gilda asked. That fight where Ash killed the man with a spear wasn't even a mere fraction of how terrifying this place is, Rage said. Will you show us? Celestia asked. Are you sure about that? Rage asked. The group nodded their response. 
Okay, just don't say I didn't warn you, Rage said as he snapped his fingers. The group appeared in the cell again and saw Ash. He was slightly older and had large build on him plus a few scars. They saw him talking with a new woman who must have been placed in the same cell sometime during when Ash entered and now. Just then, the door unlocks and the guards walk in. The fighters in the cell grabbed their weapons and Ash grabbed his staff and waits for what the guards will do. The guards scanned the room and spotted Ash, the new women and Rose's husband and grabbed all three of them then marched them through the door. Ash looks back at Rosa to see her start to cry for her husband's safety. Rage snaps his fingers again and they were in the main room. The humans were longing around and waiting for the competitors to enter. Just then, the doors opened and the human slavers cheered as 26 fighters including Ash and Rose's husband enter. The fighters spread out and waited for the horn but something was different a guard walked out with a cardboard box and placed it on the ground while another door opened and the sound of growling could be heard. The lid of the box opened and snakes slithered out Ash knew the snakes from his lessons to be king cobras. Ash turned around and saw crocodiles walk out the other door snapping their jaws at the fighters. Why are these poor animals here? Fluttershy asked with fear in her voice. Apparently to make the show all the more entertaining, Rage said. Ash stood back to back with Rose's husband waiting for either man or animal to strike first. After a few minutes the horn goes off and the humans turn against each other Ash is using his staff to knock out his enemies while Rose's husband is used a mace. Soon the two are separated and fight against the other gladiators. Suddenly, Ash is surrounded by three snakes each one sitting in a striking position with a flared head and fangs poised. Ash readied his staff and crouched ready to attack. The snake in front of Ash started swaying in a hypnotizing fashion but this action just made Ash tense up. The group watched with interest especially Fluttershy as the swaying continued for a few more seconds before all three cobras lunged at Ash. Ash was able to move faster and thrusted his staff at the cobra in front of him before he swung it at the cobra behind him to his right. Ash then went with an overstrike that brought the end of the staff down on the last cobra's head killing it all in one fluid motion. The group was surprised by the speed Ash used to strike at the cobras. Ash then looked around and saw Rose's husband lying on the ground a crocodile was crawling towards him with a hungry look in his eyes. Ash ran across the arena and just as the crocodile opened its jaws to try and bite down on Rose's husband Ash brought his staff down on the croc closing its jaws. The crocodile turned to Ash angry at him for disturbing its meal. Ash knew the croc was angry at him but he didn't care he just smacked the crocodile across its nose with his staff again and gave it a growl. The croc walked away while it whined Ash gave a nod before he turned to Rose's husband and helped him up. Thank you my friend, Rose's husband said. Thank me when we get back to the cell Havir, Ash said. All of a sudden a different horn blew and the door the guard with the snakes came out from opened once more. Oh shit I forgot about this part, Rage said. What do you mean Rage? Twilight asked. TWI let me ask you this do you know what happens when a human gives into madness and chaos? Rage asked. Ooh how exciting, Aris said. Actually Aris it isn't, Discord said the expressions on his face said he was spooked. Discord are you, scared? Chrysalis asked. I actually am Chrysalis what's inside those doors makes me scared of my own power, Discord said causing everyone to worry. Wait if Discord is scared of the chaos in there then how's Ash gonna react? Rainbow asked. You're about to find out, Rage said. Just then howls and shrieks sounded from the doors getting the gladiators to get as far away from the doors as possible also sending chills of fear down Luna's spine. It's the monsters from Ash's nightmares, Luna said. Are you sure Luna? Celestia asked. Yes I will never forget those noises, Luna said. Just then the creatures ran out the door on all four limbs only this time the creatures wore masks that covered the top half of their faces. The long claws were ice picks only tied to their hands. They didn't have long tongues but they did have the pointed teeth. Oh they don't look that bad, Aris said. Just then a gladiator ran at the mass of monsters only for the two of them to drive their ice picks into his chest and rip him apart in an explosion of blood bone and gore. Just then the monsters began devouring the corpse like vultures. The crowd cheered at the sight but the group stood mortified at what happened to the human. Rarity and Soren wanted to empty the contents of their stomachs but couldn't because they were in a memory. Fluttershy fainted at the sight even the princesses looked like they were about to lose their lunch. I take it back it's really bad, Aris said shocked. Oh yeah have a look at what Ash is doing, Rage said pointing to Ash who just finished throwing up. Ash wiped the vomit from his mouth and next to him he saw a sword lying in the sand from a previous battle. Ash dropped his staff and picked up the sword. What's he going to do? Gilda asked. Probably one of the hardest but kindest things he can do, dot put him out of their misery, Rage said. Ash charged at the monsters while they were still eating the corpse one of them noticed Ash's charge and charged at him. Once they were close enough the insane human tried to stab Ash with its ice pick only for Ash to defend himself with his metal arm by deflecting the attack. Ash struck back by stabbing the creature in the chest and pushed the psycho upwards then brought it down again. Ash looked up to see another psycho charge at him again the psycho tried to impale Ash but Ash just cut off his arm stepped behind the creature and held the blade backwards and stabbed him in the back right through the spine. Just then Ash saw the rest of the creatures start their charge one jumped in the air but before Ash could block it the creature got hit in the face by a spiked mace. Ash looked to his side to see Habir and the rest of the gladiators fighting the monsters. Interesting they all came to help Ash when he killed two of those things, Twilight said. Rage smiled at Twilight but his face became neutral when he saw Celestia glaring at the crowd of cheering humans. You're angry aren't you Celestia, Rage said. Indeed I am I'm also surprised the slaves in this place haven't fought back against these animals but I suppose there's a reason behind it yes. Celestia asked. You got it and I believe Ash is going to give an example, Rage said. The group turned to see Ash glaring at the humans watching him for entertainment. Just then, Ash saw the new woman from his cell arm being grabbed by one of the slavers. She was trying to get away but the man had a look of lust and desire on his face and began to try and tear her clothes off. Okay that's it, Ash said as he walked to the edge of the stadium while the gladiators were dealing with the last creature. Ash grabbed an old dried blood covered saw blade and pulled it out of the wall. What does Ash plan to do with that thing? Spike wondered. Spike's question was answered when Ash placed the blade in his metal arm and threw it like a frisbee. The blade flew through the air and over the arena and cut off the slaver's arm right at the elbow and freed the woman. The blade then dug itself into the wall behind them and the entire room was shrouded in silence. 
All eyes were glued to the scene just then, the man started screaming in pain but Ash smiled at his handiwork. The crowd began shouting at Ash in outrage for what he did. Hardcore, Gilda said while she smiled and nodded slowly. What did Ash just do? Pierce asked. I believe he just sent them a message, Celestia said looking at Rage. Rage just smiled and nodded. The gladiators in the arena stared at Ash dumbstruck at what he did but it was soon over when guards dropped into the arena with long sticks sparking with electricity. What are those, Trixie asked when she the sticks. Stun sticks, Rage said. Ash was backed against the wall while the guards closed in on him. One of the guards lunged at Ash but Ash just jumped to the side to avoid it. Ash used his metal arm to punch the guard in the head once the arm hit the helmet pieces of it broke off revealing part of the guard's face. The guard fell to the ground knocked out cold by the blow. Ash was astonished by how hard his hit was he failed to notice another guard tapped Ash's metal arm with the stun stick. Ash cried out in pain and blacked out and the guards loomed over Ash and began to drag him away. What's gonna happen to him? Chrysalis asked. Nothing nice, Rage said. Rage can you show us where he's going? Dreamcatcher asked. Rage just stayed silent for a few moments before he snapped his fingers. The group reappeared in a room similar to the one Ash was branded in except the pit of coals and branding iron were gone. Why are we here? Applejack asked. Just then the door unlocked and Ash was dragged inside and chained to the walls like last time he also wasn't wearing his top or jacket either. The group looked at the door and saw the man that had his arm cut off by Ash which was freshly bandaged. So you're the waste of life that had the gall to sever off my arm, the man said. You should thank me now you only have to worry about the one, Ash replied with a cocky smile. Rainbow Dash and Gilda couldn't help but stifle a laugh at Ash's cockiness but the man had the opposite reaction by punching Ash in the face. Be a little more grateful you pathetic animal I could have you fed to the psychos so respect me cause I am a god to you scum, the man said the room was silent for a few minutes suddenly, a soft chuckle broke out and got louder until it turned into a laugh. The laugh was coming from Ash the man took a step back from Ash as if he was crazy, stop that. The man ordered. God, Ash said as he lifted his head to show blood dripping down his face. Gods are kind and wise beings that care for us mortals while the demons take care of the real scum in life namely you. Also last I checked gods don't bleed like you do so that means you're mortal so the only respect from me is this, Ash said before he filled his mouth with saliva and spat it at the man hitting him square in the face. The group were surprised by Ash's act of defiance Rainbow, Thunderlane, Soren, Hilda had cocky grins on their faces at what Ash did. But the man was furious at Ash's action. He wiped the spit off his face as a guard brought in a whip made of chains with spikes running along it. When the group saw the whip they looked at Ash in shock at what was about to happen. But, Ash was calm when he saw it the man took the whip and stood in front of Ash. How dare you, the man said as he raised the whip and brought it down on Ash the spikes on the whip ripping off pieces of Ash's skin. Ash screamed in pain at the lash Twilight ran forward to protect Ash but only ran through him like she was a ghost. It's a memory Twilight this happened a long time ago, Rage reminded her. How dare you, the man said again as he lashed the whip at Ash causing him to scream in pain once again. How dare you, the man yelled again as he whipped Ash again every time the man shouted how dare you he whipped Ash. After a few more lashes the man dropped the now bloody whip and banged on the door. The guards outside opened to take him to the cooler and leave him there for a day then back to his cell. Yes sir but what about his injuries, a guard asked. Leave them if he survives the cooler then you can give his cellmates a first aid kit to heal him if the dumb beasts know how to use it that is, the man said with a laugh as he left. Rage snapped his fingers and they were in some kind of room filled with ice. Where are we now, Dreamcatcher asked. This is the cooler, Rage said. Wait the cooler that guy told his men to take Ash to the cooler, Spike said. He's over there if you're wondering, Rage said pointing to a large wall of ice the group walked around the wall to see Ash. He wasn't wearing his top and jacket and he was hanging from the ceiling by his hands. He was hanging his head because he was too tired to move it giving the group a good look at his wounds but keeping his face hidden. The wounds were still opened and bleeding slightly the group could see the slow breaths from the cloud of steam escaping from Ash's lips. How horrible, Rarity said covering her mouth from the sight of her wounded friend. Yeah and the decor doesn't help either, Rage said. Decor, Rarity asked. Rage just twirled his finger indicating her to turn around Rarity did so but when she did she screamed and frightened backed away. Rarity it's just a decoration get over it, Applejack said in an annoyed tone. I think you'll agree with me on this one Applejack, Rarity said while she trembled and pointed behind Applejack. The rest of the group turned around only to scream and jump away in fright. On the other side of the wall was a long row of decomposing corpses all frozen in ice. The group looked around the room to see every wall had bodies stuck in ice all hanging from the selling like ash was. It gets worse, Rage said. Worse, worse how could this get worse than it already is? Twilight asked. Just then the sounds the psychos made came echoing through the air vents. This room was built to break your mind or kill you in a slow and horrible way and Ash survived a day in this place, Rage said. It's a freaking miracle he survived five minutes, Comet said looking around. All of a sudden the room got really hot Rage turned towards Celestia to see her mane and tail had lost its pastel color and it wasn't flowing anymore. Instead it flickered and colored bright yellow and orange making it look like fire. Celestia I know you're mad but please calm down before we get roasted, Luna begged. Just like that the flames slowly returned to the ethereal mane it normally was. I'm sorry it's hard to cope when such a thing happens with such a kind soul like Ash, Celestia said. It's alright Celestia and we can end the memory here if you all want I don't want to show you anything that could make this worse, Rage said. Thank you for the concern Rage but I must see how this ends, Celestia said. Rage looked at the rest of the group who just nodded while Rage just smiled. Ash is clearly lucky to have friends such as you, Rage said before he snapped his fingers. The group was once more in the cell each one eating their dinner when the door flung open and Ash was thrown into the room. But before Ash hit the ground Habir and Alex caught him just in time Ash was followed by a first aid bag and both his top and jacket before the door closed. Lord he's freezing in these wounds how is he even alive after what he's been through, Habir said as he turned Ash onto his back and placed him on the altar. He won't be alive if we don't do something now, Rosa said as she brought the medical kit over. Right let's get started, Alex said. 
Three days later Ash woke up in pain coursing through him he used his left arm to move the three blankets that covered him once he did he saw the stitches that held his wounds closed. He's awake. Ash turned to see Rosa walking over to him followed by Alex, Eli, Kabir, the woman Ash saved and a few kids Ash befriended. Ash how are you feeling? Rosa asked her voice filled with concern for Ash. Terrible, Ash was barely able to speak because of a dry throat. Here Ash, Alex said handing Ash a cup. What is it? Ash asked weakly. Medicine to help ease the pain, Alex said. Ash took the cup and downed the contents in one go. Ash what happened to you when you came back here you were like ice not to mention the wounds, Eli said. I got whipped with a spiked whip by the guy whose arm I cut off. He then threw me into the cooler, Ash said causing the group to gasp. The guy you saved Rebecca from did this, Kabir asked. Ash only nodded his head in response. Ash I wanted to thank you for putting yourself at risk just for me, Rebecca said as she bowed in respect. You don't need to bow Rebecca anyway I think I've done enough lying around, Ash said as he tried to stand. Oh no you don't Buster you're not moving until your wounds heal am I clear, Rosa said pushing Ash back down to rest. All right Rosa, Ash said with a smile before he fell into slumber. He doesn't seem all that affected by the cooler, Twilight noted. He may not be showing it but I can tell it scared him deeply going through that, Rage said. How would you know? Comet asked. I was living in his head for 13 years Comet I do believe I know what he was thinking, Rage said in a matter of fact tone. Oh right, Comet said. Anyway Ash eventually healed and everything went back to normal except the battles were relentless. But the training kept Ash on top of it there is a particular memory that Ash cherishes from this place would like to see. Rage asked. The group nodded in acknowledgement Rage snapped his fingers and they were gone. The group stood in the cell Ash had a metal bar in his hand and was walking over to two iron poles sticking out of the ground that reached the ceiling. The poles had grooves attached to them going all the way up the poles. Ash placed the bar in the grooves as high as he could reach and took a few deep breaths. Now what's he doing? Soren asked. He's doing the bar climb, Rage said. What Soren said? Just watch Rage responded. Ash pulled himself up quickly so he was in the air for a few seconds. While he was in the air he pulled the bar out of the grooves and placed them in the grooves higher than the first getting him to go higher. He repeated this process until he reached the top Soren, Mac, Rainbow Dash, Gilda, Thunderlane and Applejack's jaws dropped while Luna fanned herself lightly with burning cheeks. An impressive show Rage but why is this a special? Celestia asked gesturing to Ash. Oh this isn't it Celestia, Rage said with a smile. All of a sudden the sound of a baby crying rang out causing Ash's head to snap in the direction of the noise and let go of the bar he fell to the floor and run over to the noise. Rose's baby is the memory, Rage said with a smile as he walked off after Ash. The group walked over to the altar to see the adults either keeping the kids away or forming a curtain with their backs facing the altar. The group got past the wall without a problem to see Ash looking at Alex as he held a small baby crying its heart out. Eli and Rebecca watched as well while Habir held Rose's hand while she lay on the altar. Congratulations you two it's a boy, Rebecca said. The new parents smiled at the news and nuzzled their heads against one another. We need to wrap him in something warm, Alex said. Will this do I wore it all day so it should be warm and comfortable for him, Ash said as he took up his jacket and offered it to Alex. It's perfect Ash, Alex said as he took the jacket and wrapped the baby in it. He has a fine set of lungs on him, Eli said as Alex handed the baby to the parents. So what will you name him? Ash asked. We were thinking of calling him Akachi, Rosa said. It's a perfect name for him, Alex said. Ash just watched the baby as it stopped crying and calmed down. The baby then reached out with one of his hands in Ash's direction. Rosa and Habir both smiled at the baby's action and gestured for Ash to come closer. Ash did so until he was standing next to the altar Ash then let out a smile along with some tears at the sight of the newborn. That was beautiful, Celestia said as she let out tears of her own. Indeed even though they aren't related they asked Ash to be the boy's uncle, Rage said. Really, Luna asked. Oh yeah Ash's skills with kids rivals his skills in combat, Rage said. The group watched silently no one wanting to disturb the moment until Spike spoke up. Rage how did Ash escape this place? Spike asked. The question caused Rage to tense up but remained silent. It's nothing you'll like and it will probably turn Celestia into a fuming ball of fire that would rival the sun, Rage said. I agree, Discord said. The group turned their gaze to Celestia much to her confusion. Why are you looking at me like that for? Celestia asked. Sister you almost lost your temper when Ash was in the cooler if this is worse than the cooler and you lose it then you could do great harm to Ash's mind, Chrysalis said. Will it get worse? Fluttershy asked. Nothing is more painful than this, Rage said. Very well I'll do my best to keep my cool but Luna, Discord, Chrysalis, Dreamcatcher if I do lose it I need you to stop me, Celestia said. The siblings nodded and then everyone's gaze found Rage and gestured him to continue. Rage snapped his fingers and the cell disappeared leaving them in a black void all of a sudden small memories came floating past the group. The memories slowed down enough to be seen some of them was when Ash was fighting in the arena. Others showed Ash when he was learning things from Eli and Rosa even playing with Akachi. But the more common ones were when Ash was training with Alex or just talking with him. During the four years of Ash's time here Ash and Alex got really close they were almost inseparable. During that time Ash learned how to make weapons for himself he learned forms of meditation and how to fight. The actions in the arena proved the lessons were helping. Even though Ash was taught how to kill all that time in the arena he never killed anyone on purpose. The psychas were a different story because of well, thought you know and Ash was actually in the right in killing them, Rage said getting nods from the stallions and dragon. But when it came to the other fighters Ash made sure never to shed their blood instead he'd knock them out he also made a promise to Alex. A promise, Twilight said. Yes Ash promised he would only use his skills to never harm an innocent being Ash has held that promise up to today and he would never dare break it, Rage said. What about me? Discord said gesturing to his arm. You're far from innocent Discord you violated Ash's privacy. I'd say you're lucky because if Ash wanted to kill you he would have done it before you could have blinked. The cut on your arm was a warning, Rage said causing the spirit of chaos to gulp. So how come the day Ash escaped is so bad, Mac asked. 
Rape snapped fingers and the group were in the arena once more a horn blew and the doors opened and the fighters walked out including Alex and Ash. The crowds cheered but the cheers stoked immediately when they saw Ash. He was armed with his staff and a sword in case the psychos came in. What's with the audience? Rainbow asked. You know when Ash cut off that bastard's arm rumors spread to the other cells and Ash became a legend and the audience now fear him, Rage said. They're lucky he wasn't there when Ash is like he is now, Dreamcatcher said. True that, Guild added. The horn blew again and the fighters were set loose but all of them charged at Ash except Alex who stood by his side. Why are they going for Ash? Pierce asked. The guy that had his arm severed off offered a reward for anyone who could bring down Ash during a battle. But Ash was not allowed to die because the man wanted the pleasure of killing him himself. And he would only do it when Ash was so beaten he couldn't fight anymore, Rage said. Now that just ain't fair, Applejack said. True but these guys don't care about fair they care about money and spilling blood, Rage said. What was the reward for beating Ash in a fight? Spike asked. The fighter would spend two weeks in a luxury room and have every need handed to them, Rage said. Damn, Thunderlane said. Yeah but Ash had the alleys in his cell so at least he wasn't alone in battle cause they valued their friendship with him more than that, Rage said. Now that's loyalty, Rainbow said with a smirk. The group turned to see Ash was placing in his earphones and scrolling through his music once he found a song he hit play. What is he doing? Trixie asked. He's choosing some music to listen to while he fights, Twilight explained. Hey Road do you know what his taste in music is? Gilda said. No all I know is he has a load of different songs for different things, Rainbow said. I wonder what he's about to listen to, Gilda said. Allow me to help with that, Rage said as he snapped his fingers. All of a sudden the room burst with music making the battle below seem more awesome. Ash bounced his head in time with the rhythm and closed his eyes before he walked forward. The first gladiator charged at Ash but Ash grabbed the fighter's weapon pulled it out of his hands with his metal arm he backhanded the gladiator knocking him out. Ash dropped the weapon and continued to walk forward. Another fighter lunged at Ash but Ash used his staff to hit him in the side of the head. As soon as the chores kicked and Ash's eyes snapped open and charged at the reaming fighters with great speed. A fighter charged at Ash but Ash just pole vaulted into the air using his staff and aimed a foot at the fighter's face. Ash's foot made contact and the group were able to hear the sound of bones cracking. As soon as Ash landed a fighter made a swing at Ash with a club but Ash ducked beneath the blow and used his staff and slammed it into the back of the fighter's head. Another fighter appeared and tried to injure Ash's side by thrusting a sword at Ash but Ash stepped to the side and the blade dug itself into the sand. Ash grabbed the back of the fighter's head and slammed the fighter's head on the hilt of the blade stunning him. Ash followed up with a punch knocking the fighter onto his back. Just then, Ash saw another guy come charging at him but Ash ran away from the guy but the fighter followed. Ash ran until they came to the wall but Ash jumped at the wall and used his staff to push himself off it and go higher. Once he was over the fighter he was running from Ash smashed his staff into his face knocking him out. Suddenly Ash saw another fighter come up and did some frantic karate moves Ash just stood there with an unimpressed look on his face. Ash held onto the top half of the staff while the lower half was planted on the ground. When the fighter finished his wild punches and kicks and got into a stance ready for Ash to make a move Ash just sighed and kicked the guy in the crotch hard. The guy jumped into the air a bit from the force of the kick and let out a high-pinched barely audible scream of pain. All the males in the room who saw the action along with the males in the group all covered their lower region and cringed. But Rainbow, Gilda, Aris, Applejack and the princesses couldn't help laugh at the sight. Ha 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 ho oh man brutal, Rainbow said wiping away a tear of laughter. Of oh, no kidding, Soren said. It hurts just by looking at it, Spike said. Ash used his metal hand and gently pushed his opponent's forehead with one finger and the fighter fell backwards and curled into a ball. Ash smiled at his work but then he heard a horn go off and the doors the psychos used to enter opened. All the fighters still standing moved away from the door even the one Ash kicked. Alex stood in between Ash and the cowering fighters just then the psychos sounds could be heard from inside. When Ash heard it he dropped his staff threw his sword from his back and stepped towards the door. The group was surprised by this as was the audience and watched with interest. Ash was in the center of the arena and watched the door without even blinking just then the psychos came running out. The group just watched Ash as he did nothing but stand there. What is he doing? Trixie asked. Just wait for it, Rage said. Wait for what exactly? Chrysalis asked. The psychos weren't far away from Ash now suddenly Ash took a deep breath. Shut it, Ash yelled. The psychos stopped dead from Ash's outburst and became silent shocking the group, audience, fighters even Alex. One of the psychos got onto its feet and let out a wild screech before it leapt at Ash and swiped an ice pick at him. But Ash pushed it away with his metal arm and then thrusted his sword at the psychos face and pushed the blade in until it reached the cross guard. Once he did he pulled it out and let the lifeless body fall before he turned back to the psychos and growled like a wolf. Just then, the psychos ran back into the door they came out of whimpering like dogs. Holy Celestia did he just do that? Spike asked, gobsmacked. Yes he did, Celestia said with equal surprise. Kill him. The group turned to see the man whose arm had been severed off by Ash had been the one who shouted. Just then, guards jumped into the arena through the audience sections and from the doors leading into the arena each one had a long weapon aimed at Ash. More guns, Twilight said surprised. AK-47s, Rage said. Ash was completely surrounded and some of the guards had their guns trained on Alex and the others. Ash just looked at the guards but kept his grip on his sword all of a sudden a door in the audience section was blown off its hinges. A group of people charged in with their own guns wearing thick armor with white writing on it that said SWAT and police written on it. What the heck is going on? Twilight asked. The cavalry has finally arrived, Rage said. The armored people fired at the guards while the guards fired back and the audience tried to flee. Ash was confused by what was happening but Alex grabbed him and pulled him through the doors they came through. Come on, Rage said as he jumped into the arena followed by the others. The group ran after Ash and Alex while Alex explained that the guys in armor were here to help them get out of here. The pair ran through the corridors and grabbed the keys to their cell along the way. When they reached the cell door Ash unlocked it and went in Rosa, Rebecca, Eli, and Habir and the others were confused why Alex and Ash were on their own. But, when Ash explained the situation they could not believe their ears and cried tears of happiness. Everyone left the cell and followed Alex as he led the way to the arena. 
Once they arrived they saw that the two sides were still going at it. Ash you and I are going to thin out the guards numbers and end this battle quicker and it's best if we do this unarmed so the police don't think we're with the guards, Alex said. Got it, Ash said as he dropped his sword and pulled his hood over his face. The pair ran out into the arena and began knocking out the guards the guards were too busy with the police they didn't notice Ash or Alex's attack. After a few minutes the guards surrendered Ash smiled at the victory. Ash had a few cuts from the guards and a wound in his leg from a stray bullet but he was still standing. Ash looked at the seats where the audience sat inside he then turned to see his fellow inmates getting tended to by the police. Just then, Ash heard a click come from behind him. Ash turned around and he saw the man holding a golden gun in his only hand and was aiming it at Ash. For years my grandfather's slave arena has run and entertained me and my friends. We watched as all of you slaughtered each other in this place all except you. For four long years you only killed the ones that aren't human anymore and that guy when you first got here. I threw everything at you so you could die and yet here you are still alive and watching as my glorious empire falls. But there's a bright side cause now I get to kill you and I'm going to take great pleasure in doing so the man said with a crazed smile. If this is my end then so be it but know this I'm prepared to die. I've been prepared to die even before I came here, Ash said calmly. Then why didn't you just give in to death? The man asked. Cause I'm living for some others, Ash said placing a hand on his chest. Not anymore give my regards to the reaper, the man said. Ash felt a force push him to the side just as the bang from the gun went off. Ash fell into the sand and something heavy landed on top of him. Ash shook his head and looked up to the man again aiming the barrel of the gun at Ash's head. A lucky escape but not this time, the man said. Just then AK-47 started firing Ash turned and saw the police firing at the man. Seeing he was beaten and couldn't finish Ash off he ran out the doors closest to him and disappeared. The police followed the man while Ash looked at the heavy object on top of him to see it was Alex. Ash moved his hand to his view to see it was stained crimson. Realizing something Ash pushed Alex off of himself and looked at Alex to see he had a hole directly where his heart is. Blood was leaking from his lips as well but the expression on his face was a relaxed smile with his eyes closed. Ash just sat there his eyes watering when he realized his mentor and friend had sacrificed himself to save him. Ash didn't even get to say thank you or goodbye. Slowly Ash did the only thing he could do he started to cry and scream and hug the body close and bury his head into his dead friend's chest. The group of friends watched the scene unfold with heavy hearts and teary eyes. Rage looked at Celestia to see her eyes scrunch tight while tears fell but her fists were clenched so tight Rage was worried she'd break her skin with her fingernails. The fists were also trembling with anger Rage placed a hand on her shoulder to calm her once she was calm she nodded to Rage in thanks. Rage gave a nod in return before he saw Luna walk over to Ash and kneel next to him in silence. When Ash stoked screaming his throat raw and crying he looked in Alex's hand and saw Alex's dog tags Ash picked up the dog tags and held them close. Just then, a policeman came out of the doors and saw Ash kneeling next to Alex's body. The policeman walked over to Ash and removed his riot helmet and placed a hand on Ash's shoulder. Ash didn't flinch at the contact but stayed silent. I'm sorry for your friend. I saw you both out there you put up a heck of a fight back there, the policeman said but Ash said nothing. If I may ask did he train you? Ash just nodded his head slowly. He must have thought you would help a lot of people, the officer said. That's what he always said if I chose to do so, Ash said. Well I can tell one thing if he died smiling then he was happy to save you, the officer said as he stood up and walked around Alex's body and stand in front of Ash. Ash looked up at the officer then back down at Alex's body. Did you catch him? Ash asked before he turned to the doors the man ran through. No but we will and when we do he'll pay for this, the officer said. Ash just nodded in understanding. Shall we get out of here? The officer asked. Ash nodded again and picked up Alex's body the officer helped him and they carried it to the exit. Rage watched them go before he snapped his fingers and the group they disappeared. The group reappeared outside the place holding Ash it was an old scrapyard on the edge of a town and it was night time. Ambulances and police cars were all over the place there were also people standing in front of cameras talking. Ash and the officer placed Alex's body in a black bag that was on a stretcher the bag zipped up cutting off Ash's sight of Alex. Ash watched as the stretcher rolled away and out of view. Ash then looked around and saw Rosa was holding Akachi and standing next to Habir talking to an officer. While Eli and Rebecca were also getting checked up on. Hey excuse me. Ash turned to see some people behind him with a camera and a microphone in his face. Can you tell us what happened in there? How long have you been in there? What was it like? The person holding the microphone asked. Ash slowly started to back away from them but they kept asking questions. Finally Ash lost his temper grabbed the camera with his left arm and crushed it. He then dumped it on the floor and walked away leaving a flabbergasted cameraman and reporter. Reporters no respect, Soren said in an annoyed tone. I agree with you there, Luna said. Ash continued walking he walked past a yellow line and passed all kinds of people and kept on walking. Once he walked into town he selected a song on his iPod to help him forget his sadness but the song only made it worse. But, he didn't change it because the song had truth to it. Ash softly sang along with the song as he walked and cried Ash kept on walking until he reached a park. The song ended and Ash laid underneath a tree and started to cry he cried until he fell asleep. The group watched Ash as he slept just then the world began to break and melt away. What's happening? Twilight asked as she began to disappear. End of the memory, Rage said. The group opened their eyes and they found themselves back in Ash's living room. Now you know. The group turned to the doorway leading into the entrance hallway to see Ash standing there with a neutral look on his face. Chapter 17 My friends are not targets. Author's notes. Treat for you all because you were so patient. Also an apology for the delay. I was locked in silence with my friends each one of us were unsure of what to say to each other. I just walked towards the others and sat on the floor and grabbed one of the bottles. I uncorked the bottle and lifted it to my lips and chugged its contents down. Ash, I had no idea. I removed the bottle from my lips and wiped my mouth and looked to see it was Applejack who spoke. You weren't really supposed to know it's why I didn't tell you in the first place, I said. Because it was painful to talk about Pierce said. 
That and if I told anyone I would be treated like more of an outcast here I get that enough cause I'm a different species but to learn I was once a slave, I said as I rested my face in my hand. I wouldn't care darling. I looked up at Rarity to see her smiling at me. After all it's not your fault you were placed in that horrid place, Rarity said as she stood and walked over to me. Rarity's right I don't care that you were slave ash my friendship with you matters more, Comet said. The others in the room gave me warm smiles I could feel a few tears escape my eyes but I couldn't care I smiled back at them. Hey Ash instead of hiding in your room maybe you could actually come out and we can have a fun day together, Twilight suggested with a hopeful smile. I'm grateful for the offer but I think I shall remain here for the rest of the week. Also I need to get my room back in order after what I did, I said as I stood up and turned around and began to walk out of the room. Oh okay would you like some assistance, Twilight asked again looking hopeful. I'm not going to ask or accept any help from you all to help me fix my mess. I know you may be worried about me but I can assure you I'll be fine because Rage told my story to you all. It's a huge weight off my shoulders, I said. The others remained in the room while I left each one not able to say anything. Come along every pony, we should get back to our day, Celestia said. The others silently nodded and walked toward the exit but Rage stopped in front of the stairs. Not coming Rage, Discord asked. No I need to apologize to Ash about something, Rage said. Apologize about what? Mac asked. Ever wondered why Ash hated me? Rage asked. Now that you mention it why did Ash hate you? Luna asked. Well when the demon and Dreamcatcher came to you they whispered poisonous words into your head right? Rage asked. Yes but what's the point? Dreamcatcher asked. Well I did the same to Ash remember when Ash had that dream of the Griffin Arena and we were talking, Rage said. You were talking about the slavers, Luna said in realization. Yes I tried to manipulate Ash into killing but he refused and now because Ash is giving me a chance to do some good. I figured I should admit my way was wrong and apologize to Ash, Rage said. The group was silent for a few minutes as they looked at each other. Good luck Rage, Celestia said with a smile before she left. The others offered their own smiles to Rage before they left as well Rage waited until everyone left before he took a deep breath and walked up the stairs. Sunday came around and life was back to normal I woke up and was finally able to stop the nightmares with both Luna and Dreamcatcher's help. I got out of bed and cleaned myself up and got changed and walked downstairs to the dining room where breakfast was waiting. I thanked Silver Tray and Feather Duster before I left to go get dust from Fluttershees. As I walked down the streets I saw Derpy putting mail in a pot plant. Hey Derpy, I said as I walked over Derpy turned around to my shock she had a black eye. Derpy what happened? I asked in shock but Derpy just looked away. Where are they? I asked as I cupped my hand over her cheek to turn her to look at me and healed her eye. I don't know but I told Rainbow, Derpy said. Okay this ends now Derpy go home and get some rest okay, I said the mare nodded before she flew off. I walked down the street looking for the stallions responsible I found them but they were arguing with Rainbow. I walked closer and began to hear what they were saying. What you did to Derpy was so not cool, Rainbow said. She deserved it, Poop said. And how did she deserve it, Rainbow said with a harsh glare. Cause she's a freak just like that Griffin and ape you hang out with, Dumbbell said. You have a problem with me I suggest you say it to my face, I said. The Pegasus stallion spun around and smirked at me. Well if it ain't the monkey himself what's the matter lose your banana, Dumbbell said as he and his friends laughed. I was actually looking for you three, I said. And why were you looking for us, Score said. Cause you hurt Derpy and I want you to apologize to her. Also to Thunderlane, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, I said with venom dripping from my voice. Don't you mean Rainbow Crash, Poop said. Look guys this doesn't need to get nasty all you have to do is apologize and stop picking on my friends and that's it, I said. You think we're gonna do as you say also you put some of our friends in the hospital after you fought them in the Bronco, Score said. I remember them your big bad Pegasus buddy was mistreating one of my friends I gave him a chance to walk away but he decided to fight I offer you this chance now apologize and that's it, I said. Oh no that ain't gonna happen what's gonna happen is I'm gonna beat you so badly your own mom won't recognize you, Dumbbell said. Oh believe me pal you don't want that, I said calmly. Oh but I do and to make things interesting if we win you leave Equestria for good, Dumbbell said. Fine then but if I win you apologize to my friends and you stop picking on them, I said without hesitation. So we have a deal, Dumbbell said with his hand outstretched. We have a deal, I said shaking his hand. So where do we meet? I asked. The field between the Everfree and Ponyville at 12pm don't be late, Dumbbell said as he and his friends left. I turned my head to Rainbow to see a frown on her face. What? I asked as I raised my hands. You didn't need to stick up for me like that, Rainbow said. I know but I wanted to also I need to give those guys a piece of my mind, I said. Rainbow's expression on her face softened into a smile and matched hers with one of my own. In all serious though will you actually fight them? Rainbow asked. I gave them the option to back out but they want to fight me so what can I do? I said. You don't have to fight, Rainbow said. And let them go back to hurting others know it's my job as the knight of freedom to make sure this doesn't happen. If these guys want to go with violence then violence it is, I said. You're right, Rainbow said looking at the ground. Hey Road if you want you and the others can come and watch if you wish might pick up some moves, I said. Rainbow face lit up in excitement before she zoomed off leaving a rainbow in her wake I smiled and shook my head before I left to go get dust. 11.50 AM. I sat in the field with dust waiting for the fight that was going to come soon I patted dust's back before I looked up to see the main 6 plus stallions, Gilda, Spike and Trixie. I see everyone's here, I said. Not everyone, Twilight said. I looked at Twilight in confusion before a flash of light went of leaving the princess's discord, Aris and Rage. Of course might as well invite your brother and sister-in-law TWI, I said. Ash what in mother's great name do you think you're doing? Celestia asked with a hard glare. My job Celestia that's what, I said as I stood. By fighting with my subjects. Celestia asked. First off I doubt you've got the whole story. Secondly this wasn't my idea it was my opponents I tried to do it peacefully but they wanted to do it in combat. You should know by now I don't go looking for fights, I said. Ash does make a good point, Chrysalis said. 
All right, Ash explained this to me, Celestia said. As asked, I told her the story from my end and when I finished, Celestia was rubbing her temples. Oh, why does this happen? Celestia asked no one in particular. I think it's going to get worse looks like a crowd's coming, Caramel said pointing to a large crowd approaching. Hey don't look at me I didn't tell them, Rainbow said. I know that my guess this is Hoops, Score and Dumble's doing, I said. We'd better get into our disguises, Luna said. Wait you're staying to watch, I asked surprised. Of course I want to see how this ends, Chrysalis said as her wings disappeared and her hair turned brown and her dress turned into a simple leaf green dress. It'll probably come to a street fight, I said. A street fight, Gilda asked. Fights that often end with brutal endings, I said. You humans are such strange creatures, Dreamcatcher asked as her coat turned pale blue and her hair stoked flowing and turned a light purple. I could say the same about you, I said with a teasing tone. Ash just try and make it as painless as possible, Celestia said. I'll try Celestia, I said. The crowd arrived and made a large circle around me I looked at the screen of my iPod to see it was 12 o'clock. I looked up to see Hoops, Score, Dumbbell, the brown Pegasus from the Bronco and some of his friends touched down in the circle, while the rest of his friends emerged from the crowd. Each one of my opponent's friends was armed with either a lead pipe, switchblade, crowbar or wrench. So I take it you're the reason we have a crowd, huh? I asked. Yeah we want to prove our superiority over you pathetic creatures why you scared or something. Hoops asked. After everything I've been through no, but this will certainly make your defeat all the more humiliating, I said. You remember me, the brown Pegasus asked. Yeah but I never got your name, I said. It's Thunderhead Freak learn to respect it, the Pegasus said. Hey the last guy who told Ash to respect him and, I turned to see Rainbow was the one who called out but was silenced by Applejack and Twilight. So 10 on 1 and you guys are all armed in all honesty I'm flattered. But, if this is gonna be a street fight you forgot one important thing, I said. And what's that? Score asked. A street fight needs music, as I said this I saw both Vinyl and Octavia light up with excitement. No one wants to hear you shitty music monster, Hoops said earning angry glares from the audience. Whoa did you kiss your mother with that mouth, I said causing the crowd to laugh much to my opponent's annoyance. Ah burn, Rainbow said. Hey Scratch how soon can you get a speaker out here, I asked tuning my attention to the shades wearing DJ. In a flash vinyl set as she and Octavia disappeared only to reappear behind me with a regular sized speaker. I scrolled through my songs and found the one I wanted before I handed it to vinyl and turned back to my opponents. You lot want to be the best how well first you gotta own the moment first. I shouted. I bounced my head in time with the beat and walked towards my opponents one of my opponents ran at me with a pipe and blade in hand. I grabbed the pipe as he tried to bring it down on my head. I saw him use the blade to try and stab me in the abdomen but I just used my other hand to push the wrist away from me. I then gave the hand that was holding the pipe a sharp twist the unicorn gave a yelp of pain. The guy dropped the pipe but before the pipe hit the ground I caught it and gave a whack at the sides of the pony's ribs resulting in a few cracks. My opponent fell onto the ground clutching his cracked ribs trying to ease the pain. I dropped the pipe and turned to the rest of my opponents. Next, I said. All of my opponents ran at me this time but I just smiled one of the thugs tried to hit me in the side with a long socket wrench. I just blocked it with my left hand and then yanked it out of his hand and gave the guy a kick to his stomach. I chucked the socket wrench to my other hand and used it to block an attack from another guy. I hooked the socket wrench behind his leg and pulled flipping the guy into the air. When he was in the air, I caught the guy's leg and pulled him up before I slammed him onto his back and twisted his ankle. A guy tried to stab at me in the face but I dodged backward and tripped landing on my back. The guy loomed over me and was ready to smash my face in with a plank of wood. But I just crouched my legs up to my face and put my hands on the ground either side of my head. Like a spring I kicked my legs out and extended my wings to push off the ground. My feet hit under the fighter's chin and the force I used caused me to leap off the ground and stand on my own two feet. I turned to see Rainbow's jaw drop just then a thug hit me in the back of my legs causing me to kneel. I looked at my attacker only to see a wrench smash into my sight I hit the ground and I saw my friends about to intervene but I gave them a signal to back off. I tried to stand up but I only got hit in my back by my attacker causing me to fall to the dirt once more. I grabbed a handful of dirt and rolled along the ground and threw the dirt into my opponent's eyes blinding him. I saw an attacker come up from behind my blinded foe so I stood up and ran at the blinded pony and pushed him into the other fighter causing a pylon. I then used my metal arm to knock out the two before I stood up. Once I did I could feel something warm on my lips I reached up and touched it to see red. I wiped my lips of the blood and I turned to see my remaining four opponents score, Hoops, Thunderhead and Dumbbell. I gave them a taunting gesture and that spiked their anger then all the stallions charged at me first up with score. The Pegasus made a diagonal swipe going downward with a crowbar then a swipe going across with a pipe but I dodged both. I grabbed the top of the Pegasus's head and pulled it downward while I brought my knee up to his face. Score grabbed his muzzle and screamed in pain Hoops was up next I just managed to duck his swing with an iron bar. He tried to hit me again but I grabbed the bar and punched Hoops in the gut he kneeled over gasping for air. Thunderhead was up next armed with a knife and socket wrench I charged at Thunderhead and slid across the ground and outstretched my legs and tripped Thunderhead backwards. I then followed up with the shin of my right leg coming in contact with his chest. I pushed myself up and I saw Dumbbell armed with a socket wrench and wrench charging at me. I just stood still and waited and waited once he was close enough I lifted my leg and the sole of my foot met his chest knocking him to the ground. The socket wrench flew out of his hand and into the air when it came down I caught it and held it at Dumbbell's throat just as the song ended. Now about that apology, I said just then the audience let out cheers for my victory. I looked at my friends who were stunned by my performance. Dumbbell stood up and I saw Derpy walk out of the crowd along with Dinky and Dr. Hooves. I said my hellos to the family which they responded with a hug. I then set the four Pegasus stallions in front of my friends on their knees and waited. Were Southery, score slurred through an injured muzzle. Our behavior was unacceptable, Hoops growled. Including mine at the Bucking Bronco, Thunderlane said. And we hope you can forgive us, Dumbbell with an angry sigh. There was that so hard and to think you wouldn't be in pain if you apologized sooner, I said receiving growls from the four in response. I left the group and walked over to Vinyl and Octavia. 
You my friend have skill, Vinyl said. Thanks Vinyl I'm impressed you were able to get a speaker out here without miles of cables, I said. Oh I just had to hook it up to an energy crystal and bing bang boom one portable speaker but the crystal needs to be changed every once in a while, Vinyl said. Thanks that's good to know, I said. That music was awesome. I turned around and I saw both Gilda and Luna still disguised as Nebula. Hey Nebula, Vinyl said. Hello Vinyl it's also good to see you too Octavia, Luna said. You too Nebula how have you been? Octavia asked. Can't complain but the music that was playing was interesting I've never heard anything like that, Luna said. Same Ash how is it you humans can make such wicked music and keep it from us if anything I'm seriously jealous, Gilda said. True that, Vinyl agreed. Oh yeah you guys have got wings and magic people in my world would kill for just one of those things, I said we shared a laugh before Gilda slapped me on the back causing me to cringe in pain. Ash are you alright? Octavia asked. No it must have been when that guy hit me in the back with the wrench, I said. Let me see if I can heal it, Luna said as she went to look at my back. A nebula no offense but you need magic to do that and you're not a unicorn, Vinyl said. You're right I'm not a unicorn I'm an alicorn, Luna said causing Gilda and I to snap their heads towards Luna. Ha 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 yeah and I'm Princess Luna in disguise, Vinyl said as she wiped away a tear of laughter. Actually I'm Luna, Luna said. I teleported myself, Luna, Gilda, Vinyl, Octavia and Vinyl speakers to a safe location away from the crowd. What the hey Luna I thought the point of a disguise was to not get caught, I said as I turned around to face Luna. Oh hush you now let me see the injury, Luna said turning me around and dropping her disguise causing Octavia and Vinyl to look at Luna in shock. P. Princess Luna, Octavia said as she bowed and grabbed Vinyl and forced her to bow too. Oh stop it you two that's not necessary and please call me Luna, Luna said causing two to rise as I felt the cool touch of magic on my back. What brings you to Ponyville Luna? Vinyl asked. I came to watch the fight and I must say it was quite the show I've never seen that move before with that big pegasus. Parker can expand your rang of combat if you use it correctly it took me a while to do it, I said. Well that'll do it, Luna said as the magic faded from my back. Thank you Luna and I believe I'll have to leave you because I need to head to the forge for something, I said. My friends waved me goodbye before I flew back to Ponyville as I flew I saw the CMC in the streets I flew down to them and landed not too far away. Hi Ash, Rumble said as he and the others ran up to me. As the group came running up to me I remembered after Heath's warming Rumble was named a cutie mark crusader. Hey guys what are you up to? I asked. We're trying to think of something we can bring to show and tell, Apple Bloom said. Oh, I replied. I got it, Pip shouted. Got what Pip? Rumble asked. We can bring Ash, Pip said. What? Everyone said. Think about it since Ash is a different species that hasn't been seen in a thousand years it's perfect, Pip said. You're right can you do it Ash? Sweetie Belle asked. Come on please Ash we don't have anything else, Scootaloo said. Alright since you ask nicely just as long as it's quick I have something I need to do, I said getting the CMC to cheer. We arrived at the schoolhouse and the group asked me to wait outside. I leaned against a wall until Pip stepped outside to get me I walked inside and removed my hood. I looked at the classroom and all the students were looking at me in awe and surprise. I then turned my gaze to the teacher and saw a mulberry colored mare with a two-tone of light pink mane and tail. She had green eyes and was wearing a white top and purple dress with three flowers on it and each one had a smiley face on it. I take it you're Miss Cheerly the cutie mark crusaders have told me a lot about you, I said extending a hand to the mare. Oh yes and it's a pleasure to finally meet you Ashblade, Cheerly said accepting my hand. I hope you don't mind my visit but my friends asked to be their show and tell so I thought it might be a good idea to answer some questions about my kind, I said. Well that would be great I'll admit I've been curious about humans, Cheerly said as she went behind her desk and sat down. Well why don't you start us off by asking the first question Miss Cheerly, I said. Very well a twilight told me you humans are incredibly smart and you're superior than us in technology and I was wondering if you could show us, Cheerly asked. Of course, I said as I unzipped my jacket and pulled out my metal arm earning gasps from the class and Cheerly. What happened to your arm? One of students asked. Let's just say I got careless while doing something noble, I said. Do all humans have wings like you do? Another student asked. No in fact the only reason I have wings is because I earned them, I said. If humans don't have wings then how do you control the weather? Another student asked. We don't our world is pretty much like the Everfree Forest even the sun and moon work on their own, I said earning gasps from the class. Isn't that bad because of all the dangerous animals? A student asked. Not really dangerous animals normally stay away from us also we don't have hydras, manticores, timber wolves or cockatrices, I said. So you're the dominant species on your planet, another student asked. Yes and do you want to know something else as humans don't believe in magic and technology is our ability, I said getting looks of interest from the class. What about cutie marks? A student asked. That's an interesting question because humans don't get cutie marks, I said getting the class's jaws to hit the floor. But what about you Ash you have one, Apple Bloom said. Yes but since I'm the knight of Equestria I was given this cutie mark, I said showing them my right shoulder revealing my cutie mark. I found out from Twilight that every pony has two places where they can get cutie marks both the shoulders and the thighs but other humans don't get them which means us humans can have as many special talents as we want, I said wowing the class. Hey Ash show them some weapons, Rumble said. Whoa hold on Rumble I don't think I'm allowed to do that besides it's up to the teacher, I said. Miss Cheerly is it alright? Rumble asked. I'm afraid I must stand firm on this one and say no, Cheerly said. The classroom let out awes of disappointment but I thought I might cheer them up. I may not be able to show you guys any weapons but how about I treat you all to a story, I said the class perking up at the suggestion. Please Miss Cheerly can heat the class beg. Very well as long as it's appropriate, Cheerly said resting her chin on the back of her hands. Don't worry Cheerly it's a story about a bit of my world's history, action, adventure, drama and romance does that sound good? I asked. Perfect, Cheerly said. Very well this is a story that happened during the third crusade, I said causing the CMC to rush to their seats and listen.
This story tells of the good King Richard or Richard the Lionheart, his brother Prince John, and the hero of our story, an outlaw by the name of Robin Hood, I said. How can an outlaw be a hero? Outlaws are bad guys, Diamond Tiara said. Maybe if you let me tell the story instead of interrupting, you'll know, I said, causing the filly to sit down silently when she did. I began the story. After I finished, the students let a cheer, even Cheerly was impressed by my story. I looked at the time and I realized I had to be at the forge to finish my project. I'm afraid I have to leave kids but I'm glad you all enjoyed my story, I said getting groans of disappointment. Now class what do we all say to Ashblade, Cheerly said. Thank you for telling us that story Ashblade, the class said in sync. I waved at the class before I exited out the door and took to the sky. I flew over Ponyville and landed at the forge and I saw Caramel making some horseshoes. Hey Caramel, I said. Oh hi Ash I never got to say that was one crazy fight Caramel said. Yeah but hey what are y'all gonna do, I said. So are you gonna finish your little project? Caramel asked. Yep, I replied. I can't believe you're going to use those crystals for this as well, Caramel said. Well we're going to need to get them into the field sooner or later, I said. Trusa need any help? Caramel asked. Caramel and I worked late into the afternoon but Caramel had to leave because he had dinner plans with AJ. So like any friend I wished him good luck and messed around with him a little but in the end we shared a laugh and soon I was left to finish. All I had to do was place the red crystal in place and then I finished I smiled at my work before I put it away and locked the forge. Once I locked the door I looked down the street to see a pair of familiar ponies looking around nervously while one carried two suitcases. Fancy pants, Fleur, I shouted to the two. Ash my boy it's so good to see you, Fancy said as they spun around and noticed me I also saw that Fleur's stomach had rounded slightly. Um Fleur are you pregnant? I asked in a polite tone. Yes two months and thank you for noticing, Fleur giggled. Well congratulations, I said as I hugged Fleur as she kissed me on the cheek. So what brings you here? Fancy asked as he put down a suitcase and extended his hand for a handshake. I actually live here Fancy but the real question is why are you here? I asked as I shook his hand. At this both Fancy and Fleur's smiles turned into frowns and I knew something was wrong. It's because of this, Fancy said as he took out a folded piece of paper and handed it to me. I took the paper and unfolded it to see its contents. Dear Fancy Pants. This will be your only warning unless we get the money then you, your wife and unborn child will have a short future. You have until sunset to comply meet us at the bridge in the park at Canterlot with the money. Also don't even think of going to the guards because if you do you forfeit yours and your family's lives immediately. I looked at the other side to see if anything else was written but there was nothing. Any idea who it is? I asked. No some pony came into my house and demanded the money but he was wearing a black hooded cloak so I couldn't see his face. I told him I don't have the amount he requested and even if I did I wouldn't hand him a bit unless I knew what he was going to do with it. But he refused to tell me, Fancy said. Well if this is a prank it's not funny at all until this matter is solved you are welcome to stay at my house, I said. Are you sure Ash Fleur asked. I'm sure as a knight of Equestria it's my job to make sure that ponies stay safe, I said as I picked up a suitcase and took the one in Fancy's hand. Ash we could be putting your life in danger, Fancy said. I don't mind and also my life was in danger when you showed me the paper, I said with a smile. Fancy looked at me in shock before he slapped himself in the head I just shook my head and led the pair to my home. When we arrived Fancy Pants and Fleur were impressed with my home and when I led them inside I introduced them to Feather Duster and Silver Tray. I showed them the guest room then I showed them the house after that we settled down for dinner. Fleur and Fancy were a little disgusted that I eat meat but understood that I couldn't change my diet. After dinner we went to bed. I woke up the next morning and led Dust out then I had a shower and got changed. As I walked out of my room I saw Fleur had just walked out of her room with a tired look on her face. Her mane was frazzled and she was wearing light pink almost white silk pajamas that had a fancy blue F over her right breast. Morning Fleur how'd you sleep? I asked. Heavenly the bed was as soft as home thank you for opening your house to us, Fleur said. It's always a pleasure to have guests by the way do you know where Fancy is? I asked. He left to have a shower, Fleur said. Well you're welcome to use mine if you wish, I said. Oh no I couldn't do that, Fleur said. I insist, I said. Oh very well, Fleur said with a smile. I left Fleur to head to my bathroom while I headed to the dining room to eat breakfast after I ate I headed to the gym to work out. After a few hours of working out I left the gym to go do some reading I walked upstairs and ran into Fleur wearing a white top with blue jeans. Have a nice bath, I asked in a joking tone. Yes actually and I must say your room is fit for royalty it was hard to leave Fleur said with a smile. I actually said the same thing when I saw it but I guess when the princesses build something for you like that expect it to be filled with luxury, I said causing us to laugh. Oh Ash I must say your parents certainly raised a good-hearted stallion, Fleur said. Yeah I guess they did, I said with a frown. Are you alright Ash, Fleur asked. Yeah I'm just lost in thought, I said recovering my smile. Well I'm gonna head to my library and read for a while, I said. Oh yes I was going to head out to see Rarity for some new clothes and I believe Fancy will be there, Fleur said. Well if you want some of the best clothes in Equestria then Rarity's the mare to go to, I said. I know I have been told of her work but never got to go and see it for myself, Fleur said as she walked down the stairs. As I watched her walk down a thought suddenly dawned on me. Ah uh, Fleur I just realized that you and Fancy being outside the house may not be the best idea because of yesterday, I said. Don't worry Ash I know how to go incognito sedose my beloved Fancy, Fleur said with a wink. All right if you need me when you get back I may be in my library, I said gesturing to the library door. I understand we'll see you when we get back, Fleur said as she put on a light blue sun hat and shades and left. I watched as the door closed before I left for my library. Fleur was walking down the streets towards the carousel boutique she smiled as she saw all the ponies being friendly with each other. She walked inside and she heard a bell ring from the door Fleur looked around and saw Fancy and Rarity engaging in small talk. I hope I'm not disturbing anything, Fleur said. Ah Fleur we were just talking about you, Fancy said as he walked over to his wife and kissed her. 
About moi I hope it's nothing about what I can do in the bedroom, Fleur said caused Fancy's cheeks to turn red while Rarity and Fleur giggled. Actually Fleur your dear Fancy Pants was just telling me about the good news and I believe congratulations are in order, Rarity said as she walked over to the supermodel and hugged her. Thank you Rarity and it's good to see you how have you been? Fleur asked. Oh saving Equestria like always alongside my friends and Ash and I must say he handles serious situations with ease. Just yesterday he took down 10 ruffians by himself while they were armed and Ash used his bare hands, Rarity said. That does sound interesting any idea where Ash learned his techniques? Fancy asked causing Rarity to frown. I'm afraid I cannot say, Rarity said. Rarity you surprise me I thought of you as the gossip kind of mare, Fleur said. Oh I am but it's just some things are better left unknown about Ash, Rarity said causing Fancy and Fleur to look at each other with a worried look on their face. What of his parents can you tell us of them, Fancy said. Well that bit of news isn't as bad but it's still bad but I guess it's alright just please not a word to any pony else, Rarity said. But of course, Fancy said. Well Ash never knew his blood-related parents because they abandoned him in the woods when he was a baby, Rarity said earning shocked looks from Fancy Pants and Fleur. How'd he survive? Fleur asked. A family of wolves found him and took him in and raised him, Rarity said. So the Knight of Equestria was raised by animals and he has a heart of gold, Fancy said in almost disbelief. The wolves taught Ash manners Mr. Fancy Pants and after every meal they buried the bones of their catch as a sign of respect and thanks. Other wolves don't have that kind of decency so I suggest you watch what you say, Rarity snapped. You're right my deepest apologies it's just hard to believe, Fancy said. I understand I wouldn't have believed it myself if I haven't seen Ash's memories, Rarity said. So what happened to them? Fleur asked. The wolves were killed by a hunter when Ash was seven, Rarity said. That explains Ash's behavior, Fleur whispered. Thank you for telling us, Rarity, Fancy said bowing his head. It's alright but enough stories I believe you're here for clothes, yes, Rarity said. Indeed if you would be so kind, Fleur said. I believe I got something special for you, Fleur right this way, Rarity said as she led the couple to a large curtain. This is the best creation in the store and Ash was the one that gave me the idea, Rarity said as she pulled on a rope the curtains pulled back revealing a long single shoulder strap white dress that faded into a perfect blue when it reached the bottom and glittered in the light. Rarity there are no words, Fleur said covering her mouth. And you said Ash gave you this idea? Fancy asked. Indeed I was also quite marveled by the thought when Ash suggested it I didn't even hesitate to start, Rarity said with pride. I'll take it Rarity and as soon as I get on the runway again that dress will be the first I model ponies will be lining up right outside the door for a dress such as this, Fleur said. I, I, I don't know what to say Fleur, Rarity said. Maybe you can show me what else you have dear, Fleur said as Fleur gestured to the store. I was sitting on a plush chair in my library facing the fireplace and I have been reading Star Swirl's journal for a few hours suddenly I heard a knock at the door. Come in, I said the door opened and I saw Fancy Pants enter. Hello Fancy Pants have a seat and tell me what can I do for you. I asked politely as I gestured to a seat next to the fireplace and opposite me. I thought it might be nice to talk after Fleur went and brought half of Miss Rarity's shop including the dress you helped design, Fancy said as he sat down causing me to laugh. Oh believe me Fancy I just suggested the colors Rarity brought the dress to life my sense of fashion would be very poor, I said. I see Rarity also told me about your skills with a sword and that when she and your friends were turned into a prize for the kingdoms you got them out by killing, Fancy said. Fancy just so we're clear I don't enjoy killing I only did it because my friends were in danger and there was no other way for me to free them, I said as I set down the book. I can understand that I was also told how you defeated Discord saved both Princess Chrysalis and Princess Dreamcatcher from demons. Also freed the Crystal Empire I'm just envies of all the attention you're getting especially from the mares, Fancy said. Hate to burst your bubble there Fancy but there are no mares lining up to get a piece of me. I'm an entirely different species compared to you guys no mare would want me I couldn't even get a girlfriend back on earth, I said. Wait are you still a virgin? Fancy asked I just gave a silent nod to the question. Well I was not expecting that. I would greatly appreciate it if no pony else knew, I said. Of course it's personal but that's a bit of a problem with my wife, Fancy said. Why's that? I asked. We swore we'd keep no secrets from each other and if she asks the right question then I have to tell her, Fancy said. Then just tell her you promised me not to say because it's personal to me, I suggested. Very well and I'll snap my horn off if I break our promise Ash and no one else will know, Fancy said as he stood up to leave. Thank you Fancy, I said as he walked towards the door. Oh and Fancy you treat your child with the same amount of love as your wife and be there for when the child needs you. You'll make a great father, I said with a smile as Fancy opened the door. Thank you Ash it's nice to know some pony has faith in me, Fancy said with a tear rolling down his eye before he left and closed the door. I looked at the door with a smile before I grabbed the china teacup that was on the circular table with a simple lamp next to my chair. I lifted the tea to my lips and drank the rest of it just as I heard a scream come from downstairs. I was on my feet in an instant and rushed to the door and opened it. I looked over the railing to see nine unknown ponies in black clothing and light armor with red sashes going across their hips. They also wore masks that covered the bottom half of their faces like my metal mask and they were all armed with swords or knives. Three of the unknown ponies held Fleur, Feather Duster and Silver Tray near the door. A fourth was holding on to Fancy by the pillars on the left side of the room. I thought about what to use to fight these guys and I looked at the teacup I still had in my hand and then summoned my hidden blades. I put them on I smiled at my arsenal and peeked over the railing and saw one of the masked ponies walk over to Fancy. Big mistake in thinking you could run from us fancy pants we always get what we want and if we're refused then we take it and all you had to do was give us the money we requested, the pony said. I've told you before I don't have the money also I wouldn't give it to you unless I knew what you were planning to do, fancy said. You don't need to know you only need to obey like a dog now give us the money now or I'll have your wife, your unborn brat and you maids butchered before your eyes, the pony said. I keep telling you I don't have the amount, fancy said. Well I say you're lying, the pony said as he pulled out a serrated knife and stabbed fancy in the gut the pony holding fancy let go of him and let him fall to the ground. No, Fleur shouted as she tried to get to her husband but the pony held firm on her. 
I couldn't stand the sight anymore I pulled the hood over my face and walked to the top of the stairs. You lot have to be either really brave or incredibly stupid to come into my home and start stabbing ponies, I said causing everyone to turn my way. And just who the buck are you, the leader asked. The owner of this house and I'm giving you one chance to put down the weapons and surrender, I said causing the masked ponies to laugh. Or what you'll kill us with a teacup, the lead pony said gesturing to the teacup in my hand causing the guards to laugh again. Five of you actually, I said silently. What did you say? The pony asked. I said I'll kill five of you with my teacup and the other five with my hidden blades but I'll keep you alive because I need answers, I said pointing to the lead pony. Kill this fool for me, the lead pony said. Five of the guards that were standing at the foot of the stairs turned around and charged at me along with the guard that held fancy pants. As the guards ran up the stairs I crushed the teacup in my hands and tossed the shattered pieces at the five guards. The shards hit the ponies in either their necks or chest causing them to fall. I ran at the five collapsing guards and jumped on one's shoulder I jumped into the air and flicked my blade outwards. I fell on top of the guard that held fancy and drove the blade into his neck. Everyone in the room looked at me in surprise as I gave a dark grin to the lead pony who was sweating bullets. All of a sudden, he pulled out a revolver from behind his back and aimed it at Feather Duster. I was shocked to see a revolver here but I snapped out of my trance as I saw the lead pony pull the trigger. I thought with split second thinking and poured magic into my hand and clawed at the air going downward just as the gun went off. But, I could see the bullet moving slowly the bullet got slower and slower until it stopped not too far from Feather. I looked around and I saw everyone was frozen in time and released the breath I didn't realize I was holding. I walked over to the bullet and turned it around and aimed it at the lead pony's hand that held the gun. I then went behind the three guards that held Fleur, Feather and Silver hostage. I took their weapons and used my hidden blades to stab them in the nape of their necks making the deaths quick and painless. I then stood at the side of Lead Pony and released my magic and the bullet headed back to the lead pony and hit his hand. The lead pony dropped the gun and screamed in pain and the three guards dropped dead releasing Feather Duster, Silver Tray and Fleur. What did you do? The lead pony asked in pain while he griped his hand. You're not asking the questions here I am and if you cooperate then I'll spare you now who hired you to do this. I asked. May the father of understanding guide me, the pony said. I raised a brow at what he said suddenly I heard a crack come from his mouth I pulled his mask down and I saw foam coming from his mouth. I realized he poisoned himself but I was unable to do anything soon he fell over and died. I looked at the group and I saw all of them were all over by Fancy's side I ran over and I saw Feather was about to pull out the knife. Don't do that Feather if you pull it out you could make it worse, I said stopping Feather. Then what do we do? He's dying, Fleur said with tears in her eyes. We'll get him to a hospital and I'll cover the bill Feather, Silver, I said causing the mares to perk up and look at me. I need you to go to Twilight and tell her what happened here and tell her to get a letter to Celestia. Then get Twilight to meet me at the hospital while I get Fancy to a doctor after you get Twilight you're both dismissed for the rest of the day, I said. Yes Ash, they replied with a nod. Hang on Fleur, I said as I picked up Fancy Pants and held him in my arms. Fleur grabbed my shoulder and looked at Fancy and cupped a hand on his cheek. I teleported us directly to the hospital everyone was startled by the sudden appearance. He needs medical attention, I shouted causing nurses and doctors to scramble. A stretcher came over to us and I set Fancy down on the stretcher and just like that he was off through the double doors. I saw Fleur sitting on a chair crying her eyes out and walked over to a chair next to her and sat down. I then placed a wing over her back we stayed silent for a few minutes until Fleur spoke up. Do you think he's going to be alright? Fleur asked. I don't know it's too early to know that yet but the only thing we can do is pray, I said causing the mare to nod. Fleur I going to make you a promise here and now I'll find out who did this and when I do I'll make them pay, I said. We sat in silence once more for 20 minutes just then the entrance doors burst open and all my friends were there. Ash how's Fancy Pants doing, Rarity asked. I don't know yet but it's been almost half an hour, I said. Where are the dweebs who did this? Gilda asked cracking her knuckles. Dead, I said causing the group to look at me in shock. I was gonna take one of them alive for questioning but he poisoned himself taking his secrets with him, I said. Ash can you show me the scene maybe I could help you find something, Twilight said. Me too, Rainbow said. Same I want to look at these guys, Gilda said. Hang on, I said as I stood and crouched in front of Fleur. Fleur I'm heading back to the house to figure this out meanwhile Rarity and my friends are here to help if you need anything just ask them okay, I said earning a nod from the mayor. Alright let's go but I hope you all have strong stomachs, I said as I teleported the three and myself to my home. Of what died in here, Rainbow said as she looked at us and we just gave her a deadpan stare. I don't know why these guys wanted Fancy's money but I do know this Celestia is going to be pissed with me, I said as I walked over to the lead pony and started to search his body. What are you doing Ash? Gilda asked. Searching for any papers that could lead me to this guy's identity or who hired him, I said. Hey look another gun, Rainbow said as she picked up the weapon by the trigger. We'll be careful with that, I said as I used my magic to yank it out of her hands and bring it towards me. These guys had those weapons too, Twilight said as she looked at the guards at the bottom of the staircase. Apparently but I don't know where they're getting them from or how they're building them, I said as I felt around the pony's neck. I felt something under his clothes I pulled out the object and saw it was a small red cross equal on all ends and it was on a chain around his neck. I yanked the necklace off the pony's neck and held it in my hand and looked at it curiously it seemed familiar. Hey Ash. I was startled out of my thinking and turned around to see Twilight. Do you have any idea why these five have bits of china stuck in them? Twilight asked. Oh yeah I killed them with a teacup, I said as I put the necklace in my pocket and went back to searching the body. I could feel eyes on me so I turned around and I saw the three staring at me as if I slapped them. What I didn't have much to work with so I had to use what I had, I said as I went back to searching the body. That is so awesome, Rainbow said squeezing her cheeks together. Wow Ash you make death seem like an art form, Twilight said. You know I'm beginning to think you just wanted to come to see how I killed these guys and decide whether it was awesome or not, I said as I searched a pocket and found a piece of paper in it. I think I got something, I said as I held the paper in my hands and began to unfold it the others walked over to me interested to see what I had when the others joined me I read the note out loud. Orders from above. 
Fancy Pants and his wife Fleur de Lis have taken refuge in the sixth night of Equestria aka Ashblade's home. I want you to infiltrate the home and kill Fancy Pants and his wife along with anyone in your way and if the opportunity arises kill the knight as well and you will receive a bonus. We can't have the knight messing with our plans. May the father of understanding guide is GMB. Well this just got interesting, I said after reading the paper. What plans is this talking about? Twilight asked. You should be asking the corpse that question instead of me Twilight, I said as I folded the paper. Do we show the princesses? Rainbow asked. Yeah but before we leave I need to grab something, I said as I walked upstairs to the library and grabbed Star Swirl's journal and wrapped it up in cloth before I joined the others downstairs. What's that? Twilight asked. A book one need to show Celestia and that reminds me did Celestia respond to the letter I asked you to send? I asked. Yes she'll meet us at the hospitable shortly, Twilight said before I teleported as the hospitable. When we arrived I saw Fleur had relaxed and everyone was sitting down trying to pass the time while Rarity sat with Fleur. Just then, a doctor came through the doors and called for Fleur I watched as Fleur got out of her seat and speed walked over to the doctor. Is he alright? Fleur asked. He has a pierced gut and he's lost a lot of blood ALS, the doctor started. Doc don't start playing 20 questions because I'm not in the mood right now just answer the question is he alright, I asked with an irritated look. Em yes he's in a stable condition and will pull through completely in a few days, the doctor said with a nervous gulp. Fleur let out a sigh of relief at the news before she turned around and gave me a hug which I returned with one of my own. Is it alright that I see him? Fleur asked after I released her from the hug. Of course the doctor said as he led the way my friends followed while I stayed behind. Ash aren't you coming? Comet asked. No I need to talk to Celestia about something tell Fancy I said get well soon if he's awake, I said. Comet gave me a nod before he left I sat on one of the chairs in silence and waited while nurses and doctors went about their business. I wasn't alone for long before a teleport light went off and Celestia stood in the entrance. Everyone who saw her gave Celestia a bow while Celestia returned with a nod allowing the ponies to be on their way. I stood up as Celestia walked over to me with a neutral expression on her face. How is he? Celestia asked. He's seen better days but he'll be fine the others and Fleur are seeing him now, I said. And the ones responsible, Celestia asked unsure of herself. There was nine of them all identical clothing and armed they took Fleur, Silver and Feather hostage so my hand was forced into lethal attacks. The leader I tried to take alive for questioning but he had a hidden capsule of poison in his mouth and died. He was also armed with this, I said pulling out the revolver for Celestia to inspect it. I'm sorry I had to take their lives Celestia I really tried, I said as I looked at the ground I was surprised when Celestia placed her hand on my chin and pulled it up so I faced her. I understand Ash when I first saw your fight yesterday I thought you were gonna fight those stallions over something meaningless. But when you explained it to me you did it to stop Sumpony from getting hurt in the future. And doing what you did today I understand it's just hard to believe some of my subjects have taken such paths, Celestia said as she handed me the revolver. It's like a parent or teacher worrying what path the child will take in life but as a parent or teacher it's your role to set the child on the path that's right for them, I said. Luna was right you certainly give good advice, Celestia said with a warm smile. I just try to help when I can Celestia, I said. Is there anything else you wish to show me Ash? Celestia asked. Yes the revolver I showed you is a human weapon from my world I don't know how it came here and there's also this, I said as I handed Celestia the paper I found on the lead pony's body. Celestia took the note and read it when she did her eyes were closed and she had a frown on her face. This is unpleasant do you know who this GMB is and what this father of understanding is? Celestia asked. No but the last part sounds religious the leader of the group in my home said it before he died, I said. I see thank you for informing me on this, Celestia said. There's one other thing Celestia it doesn't have anything to do with today but I figured you'd might want it, I said as I handed Celestia the cloth package. Celestia took the package and unwrapped it she gasped in shock when she saw the book. Ash where did you find this? Celestia asked. Where curious minds are normally found and that's all you're getting from me, I said with a teasing smile. Celestia just smiled at me and gave me a slight push with her wing. Well I must be off, I said. Where are you off to? Celestia asked. Well the bodies can't stay in my home forever can they I need to do something with them namely bury them, I said. I'll take care of that I want to run their faces by the records I may find something, Celestia said. All right Celestia oh and before I forget do you remember that project I was working on with the crystals I found? I asked. You completed it correct, Celestia said with a knowing smile. Yes I was hoping we could try it with these guys, I said as I handed Celestia a list of names. Celestia took the list and gave it a once over. Are you sure about these ones, Celestia asked. Yes I've made enough for all of them and I believe they will serve a great purpose for Equestria, I said. Very well Ash when shall I see a demonstration, Celestia asked. Next time I'm up in Canterlot, I said as I left the hospital. I walked into the library in the Everfree Castle and opened the secret door. I stood in front of the orb and reached out and touched it only for the same thing to happen like last time. I woke up in Faust's library only the alicorn herself wasn't there. Now where is that mare, I said as I walked through the massive labyrinth of shelves. I looked through the entire library until I saw Faust looking out some sort of window. I looked out the window and I saw the field that was in between the Everfree Forest and Ponyville. Just then, Faust used her magic and the view of the window changed and split into fifths. One showed Luna lying on her bed reading a book and with Tiberius on her shoulder looking at the book. Another showed Celestia talking with Twilight and the others in the hospital. Another showed Dreamcatcher on a balcony looking at the sky. The fourth showed Chrysalis sitting on the throne while she helped with Pony's problems. The last one showed Discord sitting in a strange tree deep in thought just then Faust started to softly and slowly sing. When Faust finished I saw a smile work onto each of her children's faces and let out a slight yawn. That's a nice tune, I said causing Faust to almost jump out of her fur. Oh hello Ash yes I used to sing that to them as a lullaby, Faust said. I know you miss them and they miss you too and I promise you'll be with them again, I said. Thank you Ash now tell me what can I do for you? Faust asked. 
Yeah, this you won't like my home was attacked a while ago and one of my friends was nearly killed. I was forced to kill the attackers and I found orders from someone to have him and his wife killed including me. The orders mentioned me not allowed to meddle in their plans and I fear it may involve the princesses, I said. What can you tell me about them? Faust asked. They were organized the leader was armed with this and he was wearing this, I said as I showed Faust the revolver and the necklace. Faust's eyes went wide when she saw the necklace. May I see that? Faust said pointing at the necklace I tossed the accessory to Faust and she inspected it. Templars, Faust whispered. What was that? I asked. This symbol represents the modern day Templars, Faust said. Of course I thought I saw that symbol before but modern Templars. I asked with curiosity. These Templars are nothing but power hungry dogs that will do anything for power, Faust said. Wait King Richard was the king of England and from what I've heard he was a good man, I said. Indeed but I'm talking about a separate group of Templars that were out for power and absolute order, Faust said. Absolute order talk about Discord's worst nightmare, I said. For a clearer version of the story I think I shall let the knights explain, Faust said as she used her magic there was a bright light behind me. When it disappeared the five knights were in its place. Queen Faust you summoned as, Ezio said as he and the others kneeled to Faust. Yes I wish it was under happier terms, Faust said as she held up the necklace. So they have come, Altair said. And they're planning something Ash thinks it involves my children in some way cause he was also wanted dead today, Faust said. Hang on one bloody minute here care to explain what you six are talking about along with these Templars that tried to kill me so we're on the same page and I know what I'm facing. I asked. Apologies Ash maybe we should explain from the beginning, Arno said. Saltair, Ezio and Arno told me their story from the first civilization, the pieces of Eden, the Holy Land, Rome and Paris even sharing their memories. Whoa so this secret war has lasted for a millennium and there was a civilization before ours, I said. Three actually the first civilization then Lynx then Corvos then ours but yes and now the war has made its way here, Altair said. And it's up to you to stop it here, Link said. This seems like a lot to take in, I said. Yes but every bit is true, Faust said. Ash we understand the promise you made to Alex and this will help Equestria even if the method is gruesome. Also don't involve the princesses it may make matters worse, Arno said. So do you accept the responsibility of an assassin, Corvo asked. I sat in silence and thought it over for a while. He'll do it if it protects Equestria but if I'm caught you lot had better come up with some words. Otherwise I won't be protecting anyone because you know how Celestia cares for her subjects, I said. Very well but before anything happens you should know that we were not the only assassins in Equestria. You might want to rebuild our brotherhood also remember the three tenets, Altair said. Three tenets, I asked. One, stay your blade from the flesh of the innocent, Altair said. Two, hide in plain sight, Ezio said. Three, never compromise the brotherhood, Arno said. I understand, I said. Good remember nothing is true everything is permitted, Altair said. Nothing is true, everything is permitted, I repeated. Chapter 18 High Flying Adventure I walked out of the Everfree after my encounter with Faust and the Knights and also made a special request to Zikora. I was on my way to visit Fancy Pants in the hospital to see if he was alright after the incident when I arrived I saw a pair of guards outside the doors. I walked over to them and they gave me a sharp salute which I returned. Are you Celestia's escort? I asked. No sir we're under orders to protect Fancy Pants and Fleur de Lis, a guard said. Understood carry on, I said as I walked inside. As I entered I saw Fancy Pants lying on a bed with Fleur by his side when they saw me smiles made their way onto their faces. How are you feeling Fancy Pants? I asked. It could have been worse if not for you. You saved us I owe you my life Ash Fancy said. I'm just glad you're all okay really, I said. Ash did you find anything on those ponies? Fleur asked. Yes papers ordering our deaths and a human weapon also Celestia is going to find out who they are so you don't need to worry about a thing, I said. A human weapon? Fancy asked in a surprised tone. I can't show you here because of the hospital rules so all you need to know for now is that the matter is being taken very seriously. So I'd say that the lowlife's responsible won't be able to hide forever, I said. That's reassuring to know, Fleur said. Yes well I need to go it's been a stressful day and I need to rest are you going to stay here Fleur? I asked. Yes thank you Ash, Fleur said. I understand get well soon fancy pants, I said as I turned towards the door but stopped when I heard fancy speak. Wait Ash before you leave if there is anything I can do for you all you need to do is ask, fancy said. I take you up on that offer if I need anything, I said before I left. I woke up the next morning with a creak in my neck I twisted my head in a direction and managed to hear the cracks from my muscles and bones. I let out a sigh of satisfaction before I let dust out and completed my morning duties. I walked downstairs and greeted Feather Duster and Silver Tray and informed them of Fancy Pants' condition which they were relieved to hear. After breakfast I was going to meet the girls at Rainbow's home because I heard that Rainbow Dash and Thunderlane were going to find out if they were admitted into the Wonderbolts Academy. I left the house and flew to RD's Cloud home immediately. When I arrived I saw the main six sitting on a picnic blanket I landed and greeted the girls before I sat down on the picnic blanket with them. Oh I wish the male pony would just come already I can't wait another minute to find out if Rainbow Dash got in or not Pinkie said as she hopped around Rainbow Dash's letter box. Pinkie Pie you're more nervous than Rainbow Dash, Twilight said. I'm not nervous at all when I get into the Wonderbolt Academy, Rainbow started only to be cut off from Pinkie. If you get in if you get in don't jinx it, Pinkie said. I'm telling you it's in the bag, Rainbow said. Don't jinx it, Pinkie repeated. She is the best flyer in Ponyville, Applejack said. In Ponyville I'm probably the best flyer in all of Equestria I wouldn't be surprised if they made me a Wonderbolt on the first day, Rainbow said flying backwards gently. There's more to being a Wonderbolt Skittles those guys are a military unit as well, I said. I know that boo, wait what did you just call me? Rainbow asked me with a stern glare. I called you Skittles it's a type of candy where I'm from that comes in a rainbow of color its catchphrase is touch the rainbow taste the rainbow, I said longing back without a care causing Applejack and Pinkie Pie to snicker at the new nickname. You know I like that catchphrase whenever I go to sucker punch some pony I can shout get ready to taste the rainbow, Rainbow said. 
Do what you will, I said waving my hand dismissively. Got a letter here for Rainbow Dash. Our attention was drawn onto the male pony as he held out a letter. Road rushed towards the pony and yanked it out of his hand and didn't hesitate to rip it open. As she read the letter the smile on her face disappeared. I didn't get in, Rainbow said heartbroken causing the girls to gasp in shock. Gotcha, Rainbow replied showing the large green check on the piece of paper. You guys are so gullible like I wasn't gonna get in, Rainbow said before she was tackled to the ground and squeezed into a hug by Pinkie Pie. I'm just so happy for you, Pinkie said while crushing Rainbow. Uh, thanks, Pinkie Pie I kinda need to get going, Rainbow said. Don't you mean we need to get going? We turned our gaze to see Thunderlane flying over to us with a piece of paper like Rainbow's. So you got in too, huh nice, Rainbow said once she got out of Pinkie's grip. Uh huh this is gonna be sweet, Thunder said fist bumping Rainbow. I've also got a letter for Ash Blade, the male pony said handing me a letter. I opened the letter and read the contents before I stood up. Well what does it say Ash? Twilight asked. I'm requested at the academy for something, I said. Really do you think you'll be training us? Rainbow asked. You'd better hope not, I said. Well let's hope it's not anything serious, Thunderlane said. Yeah but first I suggest you both get your hindquarters over to the academy before I kick them there, I said. Right, Rainbow and Thunderlane replied. Good luck, Applejack said. Won't need it, Rainbow called as she and Thunder took off. All of a sudden Pinky ran after them and pulled a massive megaphone out from nowhere and took a deep breath. Don't forget to write, Pinky screamed into the megaphone, do you think she heard me? Pinky asked. I think all of Equestria could hear you Pinky, I said trying to stop the ringing in my ears. Well you better get going to darling, Rarity said recovering from Pinky's shout. Right well first I need to take care of something so later, I said as I flew back to my home to set up for the week. I was flying through the clouds on my way to the Wonderbolt Academy I left dust with Fluttershy so that was taken care of. Just then my destination was inside a tall pillar of earth that reached the clouds. On top of the pillar stood a bunch of buildings and from what I could see a runway. I landed on the ground and looked around and saw Pegasi and a few griffins doing exercises. I walked across the grounds looking at as much as I could. You made it. I looked up to see Soren flying down towards me dressed in his Wonderbolt flight suit. Yeah now care to tell me why you asked me here, I asked. Well I figured that if you're not doing anything and you asked me about how the Wonderbolts trained I thought I'd invite you so you'd might want to come and have a look, Soren said. Really, I said in a tired tone. Well yeah you did turn the Pegasus guards into macho muscle warriors and it might be a good idea to see a demonstration on air combat, Soren said. Well I guess I could, I said. Sweet come on I'll introduce you to Spitfire, Soren said as he lifted himself into the air with me not too far behind. We flew over the grounds until I saw a small group of Pegasi. Among the group one saw a rainbow colored mane that belonged to Rainbow Dash, along with a silver mohawk belonging to Thunderlane. I shook my head with a smile thinking to myself on how easy it would be to spot those two in a large crowd. Both Soren and I landed on the ground behind the group and waited in the shade of a tree I sat down and pulled the hood over my head. So now what? I asked. You'll see, Soren said. Luki what we got here. The group of Pegasi stood in a straight line at attention just as a Pegasus mare with yellow fur and an orange mane and tail that looked like fire walked over. She wore a pair of aviator shades to hide her eyes she also wore a dark blue military coat that had metals pined to it. She wore a white shirt underneath the coat along with a tie and a skirt that matched her coat. Bet you all think you're Wonderbolt material don't ya? The mare said as she paced back and forth in front of the Pegasi. Yes ma'am, the group of Pegasi replied. You think you've got what it takes to be an elite flyer, the mare said. Yes ma'am, the Pegasi replied. Well let me be the first to tell you, you don't if you had what it took to be an elite flyer you'd already be a Wonderbolt. The mare said stopping in front of a blue Pegasus mare with a silver mane and tail. Thunderlane introduced me to her and told me her name was Cloudchaser. Still think you're something special? The mare asked glaring at the trembling Pegasus. No ma'am, Cloudchaser replied. Think you're hot stuff? The mare said as she went from Cloudchaser to staring down a white-furred stallion Pegasus with a short blonde mane and tail. He had extremely large muscles that dwarfed me and Mac but had tiny wings. You look like the worst flyer in the whole academy you'll probably quit after the first day, the mare said to Rainbow Dash. No ma'am I never quit ma'am, Rainbow replied. What about you bet you couldn't fly past the first flagpole without getting winded, the Pegasus mare said to the mare next to Rainbow. She had aqua green fur and a golden mane and tail and golden eyes. She was wearing a butterscotch hoodie that was unzipped halfway revealing a white singlet. She also wore a pair of aqua jogging pants. Try me ma'am, the mare said with a confident smile. This got my attention of the bold Pegasus causing me to raise an eyebrow at her. What's that? The yellow mare asked lowering her shades revealing a pair of fire amber eyes. Let me show you what I've got ma'am, the mare replied. Hussy you want a chance to prove yourself do ya, the yellow mare said. Yes ma'am, the mare said. Well then now's your chance give me 500 laps, all of you. The yellow mare yelled causing most of the group to groan. Now, the yellow mare yelled while she blew her whistle resulting in the Pegasi to take flight. An hour went by and every Pegasi was almost done. The ones in the lead were Rainbow and the Pegasus with Thunderlane not too far behind. Lap 499, the yellow mare shouted at Rainbow and the other Pegasus as they passed the start-finish line. The two Pegasi all of a sudden increased their speed Rainbow left behind a Rainbow in her wake while the Pegasus left a golden lightning bolt. The two rounded the last bend and came at a tie at the finish line. Not bad for a couple of newbies, the yellow mare said as she walked over to an instructor Pegasus. That Aqua Pegasus's attitude reminds me of myself, I said. What do you have a crush on that Pegasus or something, Soren asked waggling his eyebrows. No man all I'm saying is she has a strong will but defined also she may be a reckless that's all, I said after I slapped Soren on the back of his head. Yeah, yeah but what about Spitfire? Soren asked. The mare with the flaming orange mane, I asked. Yeah, Soren replied. She's beautiful strong fit and like any drill instructor intimidating but unfortunately not enough to scare me. Also I can tell that underneath all that yelling and screaming she's actually a nice mare. 
She puts on the act to get the students to cooperate and focus on what needs to be done, I said. Not scary enough for you, a voice says causing Soren to freeze in place. I just looked at the owner of the voice to see Spitfire. Hey Soren who's this? Spitfire said gesturing to me with an angry look. Oh well, H, hey Spitz this is, Soren started. Name's Ash Blade but can call me Ash for short, I said as I stood up revealing my size to Spitfire and took my hood off. Boss of the Knight of Freedom has come to pay a visit. So what do you think of the facility? Spitfire asked. Well if you want my expert opinion the exercises could be taken up a notch, I said. Excuse me we push things to the limit you can't get any higher than this, Spitfire scowled. Well if I was able to do it with the Royal Guards then I bet I could do it here, I said. Oh really how about a match one on one me and you, Spitfire suggested. Us uh, Spitz I don't think, Soren started. Are you sure about that? Just because you're a mayor and an officer I won't take it easy on you and you must know how many others have failed to beat me, I said. Oh I'm aware of that and it's been a long time since I've had any real competition. Plus I wouldn't want you to take it easy on me anyway otherwise it's no fun then, Spitfire said with a face of a predator ready to kill its opponent for food. All right your call, I said with a shrug. Soren take your boy over to the ring in 20 minutes while I sought something out, Spitfire ordered. Why yeah sure Spitfire B but it's just, Soren stuttered. Just what? Spitfire asked lowering her aviators once more. And nothing, Soren said. Good, Spitfire said before she left. Damn I hate it when I have to deal with her in her commando mode she's so scary when she's like that, Soren said. Maybe for you she seems like a nice mare, I said. Well I doubt you'll get on her good side anytime soon you just agreed to fight her, Soren said. Nah she's just wanting to see what I can do maybe even blow off some steam, I said. How do you know, Soren asked. Cause I've seen that look a thousand times now, I said. Twenty minutes later. Both Soren and I walked through a pair of double doors to see a boxing ring in the center along. There was some typical exercising machinery around the edge along and a blue door that leads to the changing rooms. Just then, Spitfire walked out wearing a blue sports bra with a yellow lightning bolt pattern that covered her DD cup-sized breasts. She also was wearing a pair of fitness shorts that hugged her toned legs. Her stomach was flat and had no trace of fat anywhere on her body. You're here good, Spitfire said when she noticed us. Why you think I wouldn't show? I asked. I had my doubts I'll admit, Spitfire said as she walked towards the ring. Well whatever so you ready? I asked. Sure let underscore, Spitfire was cut off when the doors opened and Rainbow Dash, Thunderlane and the Aqua Pegasus walked in but they froze when they saw us. Uh sorry we'll just go, Thunder said. Nah it's alright Thunder in fact would you like to watch Spitfire and I are about to have a little one on one match, I said. Wait one on one, Thunder started. With Spitfire, Rainbow finished. Yeah and having an audience would be cool as long as Spitfire doesn't have any complaints, I said turning my gaze to Spitfire. I have no argument I actually wanted to have some pony watch as well, Spitfire said. Hey Spitz what do you need? I turned around to see a new mare had come in. She had a blue coat and a white mane and tail with violet eyes and was wearing a Wonderbolt uniform. Hey Fleets I'm sure you know who this is, Spitfire said gesturing towards me. Of course Ash Blade right Knight of Freedom, the mare said. Yep but call me Ash and you are, I asked. Fleetfoot nice to meet you, Fleetfoot said as she offered her hand to me which I shook, so why did you call me down here? Fleetfoot asked. I was hoping you'd want to spectate my and Ash's little brawl, Spitfire said. You're gonna fight her, Fleetfoot asked. Yep but it's all in good fun, I said. Well good luck because she's never lost to anyone before, Fleetfoot whispered. Well I haven't lost to anyone in this world yet so this shall be interesting, I whispered back. You two done so we can get started I want to see what this human is made of, Spitfire said in the ring ready for me. Sorry about that Spitfire but yes we're done, I said as I climbed into the ring and took off my jacket then my shirt I could tell Spitfire, Fleetfoot and the Aqua Pegasus were surprised by my left arm and the scars covering me. I think I even saw Fleetfoot lick her lips at the sight. See something you like Fleetfoot, I said causing the mare to shake her head and look away in embarrassment. Wow those scars look like you went through hell, Spitfire said surprised while looking me over. I did now will you stop staring please, I said. Huh, oh right, Spitfire said shaking her head getting into a fighting stance. I also got into a stance and calmly breathed just then, Soren rang the bell and faster than I could blink Spitfire flew at me and landed a hit on my stomach. I stumbled back from the hit and was stunned by the sudden attack. Just then, I was taking blows left and right Spitfire was punching me in the head and gut giving me no time to recover. I managed to get my guard up and swatted Spitfire's punch away with my left hand and followed up with a punch to her gut with my right. Spitfire was forced backwards and placed a hand on her stomach from the blow. She saw surprised that the blow was more powerful than she thought I got my guard up again and waited for the next attack. Spitfire recovered but I was faster and landed some more punches on her. I leapt backwards and Spitfire flew at me again but this time I was ready. I dodged right and Spitfire flew into the ropes as she was bounced back into the ring. I stepped in and extended my right arm into a curve and Spitfire was tossed into it. Her face came in contact with my arm and her body was flung outwards and landed on the floor she recovered from the attack quickly and rolled away and got into a crouching position. Wow I gotta hand it to you no pony has lasted this long against me before, Spitfire said as she stood. Shall we call it a draw because this is heading nowhere, I suggested as I raised my hand. Yeah, Spitfire said as she held out her hand. We caught each other's hands in each other's indicating a truce. Let's get ourselves cleaned up, Spitfire suggested. Now that's an idea, I agreed looking at my sweat drenched and bruised body. I grabbed my jacket and shirt before Spitfire led me to the change rooms I saw private showers and lockers Spitfire walked into the shower then closed and locked the door. You peek and you're dead got it Spitfire said as the door closed. Noted, I said before I walked over to another cubicle and began to undress. I placed my clothes on a hook before I walked under the shower head. I twisted the knob and rinsed off the sweat on my body and cooled myself down. After I cleaned myself off I turned off the water and looked around for a towel only to realize I forgot to grab one from outside. I didn't hear any water coming from Spitfire's shower and I assumed she left already. 
I unlocked the door and opened it to see Spitfire standing outside my shower fully dressed with a cheeky look on her face. I was shocked to see her I then looked down to see I was in the nude and looked back at Spitfire. Nice dear, Spitfire replied. I felt my cheeks turn red before I slammed the door closed. What the fuck Spitfire I thought you said no peeking. I yelled as I had my back to the door. Yeah but technically you walked out and I was standing right here also it's nothing to worry about it's not like I've seen a stallion's bits before, Spitfire said with a laugh. But I'm not a stallion, I said. True but makes it all the more interesting, Spitfire giggled. Well screw you and while you're out there can you hand me a towel, I said with no kindness in my voice. Okay and look I'm sorry my curiosity got the better of me, Spitfire said her voice filled with meaning. Sigh just get me a towel and I'll decide if I should forgive you, I said. A towel was soon handed to me over the door and I quickly dried myself off and got dressed before I opened the door. I walked outside and Spitfire was looking at her hooves her ears flattened against her head I gave out a sigh before I spoke. Here's what's gonna happen you're not gonna say a word of what happened here to anyone and if you pull a stunt like this again I won't forgive you, I said. So are we good this time? Spitfire asked. Yeah we're good, I said. Thanks and hey I know we just met but I could use some help around here, Spitfire said. What do you need? I asked. Well we're down on a fitness and combat instructor and we've got one coming in four days time. So I saw and heard you have plenty of experience so do you think you could help us out until an instructor comes? Spitfire asked. I took a few seconds of thought before I came up with my answer. I'm okay with that I'll even get to teach Rhodes some moves, I said. Great I'll show you to your room and I'll even pay for your help, Spitfire said as she led me out the door. I woke up and had a shower and had breakfast with the other staff members. Soren was stoked that I was handling combat and fitness and showed me to the gym where I would be working. I decided to set the room up on how I wanted it before Rainbow's group arrived. Ash I thought you went home, Thunderlane said as he and the group walked in. That was the plan but it changed Spitfire has asked me to be your temporary combat and fitness instructor so while you lot are in this classroom you will address me as Sir God at runs, I said the group nodded in understanding. Alright then, now get your tails in line all of you. I shouted surprising the lot but they got in line. Just because you lot are Wonderbolts it doesn't mean you'll be doing high flying stunts all the time. The Wonderbolts are also a combat unit and need to learn how to defend not only yourselves but others as well. When you lot are with me I'm going to push you to the limit and beyond and I will treat you all as equals. So no special treatment for anyone got that. I yelled. Sir yes sir, the group said in union. To start us off I'll need a partner, I said I looked at the group until eyes rested on the muscled Pegasus. You come here, I said pointing to the stallion the stallion stepped forth and stood next to me, we're going to start with a simple takedown when you're dealing with an inexperienced fighter you'll need to neutralize the situation quickly, I said turning to the stallion, you got a name. I asked. I'm both biceps, the stallion yelled. Charmed, I said in an unamused tone, now biceps your role is simple all you need to do is hit me, I said getting a confused look from everyone. But, uh, biceps mumbled. Now, I roared. Biceps reeled back left fist and swung it at me but I just dodged to the side and grabbed his forearm with my right hand and his upper arm with my right. I ducked slightly and pushed my body against his and pulled on his arm causing him to flip over me. He landed on his back and onto the safety mat I brought out. I then placed my left foot on his right shoulder before I looked at the stunt class. What I just demonstrated there was a simple takedown for ponies bigger and stronger than you. Even if the pony is big and tough all you need to do is use their size and strength against them. And in this position I have two ways to neutralize biceps here. I can either break his arm or by knocking him out I won't show you how to do those cause for now I want you all to get your partners into this position and nothing more. Led ponies will work with their wing ponies on this so I'll let you all decide who goes first I said as I helped biceps up. If any of you have any questions let me know all right get started, I said to the group. Four days later. Fleetfoot was flying around the ground stretching her wings for the day she watched the clouds change their colors and watched the peaceful empty grounds. It was too early for anyone to be up so it was perfect time for her to relax before she was teaching her students. Just then something caught Fleetfoot's eye on the cliff face. She landed on a cloud and focused her gaze on the thing that caught her eye. When she got a good look she saw it was Ash climbing up the cliff as if he was a spider. What is that crazy human doing now? Fleetfoot thought to herself. Fleetfoot left of her cloud and flew over to Ash. As she got closer she saw Ash's wings were tied to his back with rope. What are you doing? Fleetfoot asked. Whoa, oh hey Fleetfoot and to answer your question I'm climbing, I said almost losing my grip. I can see that but why you have wings, Fleetfoot said. Flying can only do so much fleet I need to keep every part of my body in shape. And frankly thanks to the flying I haven't been climbing as much as I need to get back into that routine, I replied. Fair enough then so what why are you up this early? Fleetfoot asked. I normally do this sort of stuff at dawn. Also because my relief is coming so I don't have classes but why are you here? I asked. Relaxing before classes, Fleetfoot said. Right hey I noticed a pretty interesting rock figure of a hydra on my way up here. The wind currents coming out of that monster's mouth are crazy strong, I said. Oh you must be talking about the hydra's tonsils. It's rumored that in the belly there's treasure but every flyer that went in wasn't able to fly again. Not even the Wonderbolts dare to go in there because it's too dangerous. I've never seen anyone go into the belly of that beast and come out with the treasure or unscratched, Fleetfoot said. Sounds like a challenge, I said with a grin. What do you mean? Fleetfoot asked. My response was me undoing the rope that tied my wings to my back and leaping of the cliff and flying off. He can't be serious, Fleetfoot said as she realized what was happening flew off. I flew through the sky and came to the Hydra's tonsils the statue was a naturally made sculpture of a Hydra's head's necks and body. One head was pointing straight up in the air with tunnel of wind came out of its mouth. I flew towards the mouth and gazed down the hole to see spikes running along the edges. This just went from fun to awesome, I thought. I launched myself into the air and dived into the jaws the wind was insanely strong and I was in danger of being impaled on the spikes. I grabbed one of the spikes and climbed my way across it but the wind made things challenging for me. The conditions were perfect for me to train and Parker caused the wind blowing against me and the spikes within jumping distance. 
I jumped from spike to spike but the wind caused me to miss my target or lose my grip a few times. But, I found solid footing again and as I neared the end the wind became stronger. It was hard to pull myself forward but by digging my metal fingers into the rock of the cave I found a tunnel that went off to the side. I pulled myself into the hole and relaxed my head was spinning cause I was upside down in that tunnel for a long time and the blood was running to my head. I've hung upside down for long periods of time for training purposes but it still made me dizzy. I took a quick breather before I stood and looked around and saw a strange glow come from deeper within the tunnel. I followed the glow and rounded a corner to come to a small patch of roses. One half of the patch had yellow petals and was ablaze with golden fire and but didn't burn the roses. I brought my hand close to the flower but I didn't feel any heat coming from the fire. I placed my hand in the fire and removed it to see the fire gliding across my hands harmlessly before it disappeared. I then looked at the other half of the field to see faint blue glowing roses with midnight blue petals. Silver gray stars were on the petals and a bright white crescent moon was in the center. Damn ain't this something but how are you lot like this, I said before I looked around and saw a pair of holes in the selling. Sunlight came through one of the holes and covered the half of the roses that were burning. Wait a minute sunlight drifts in through one half of the cave and nurtures one half of the field in sunlight. So the other must be bathed in moonlight when the moon shines through the other hole. But that's still not enough for the flowers to act this way, I said just then a strange glow came from the center of the field my curiosity got the better of me and I walked toward the glow. Once I was at the spot I moved some flowers out of the way to see the source of the glow. Well that explains a lot, I said. Outside Fleetfoot was flying around in circles waiting for Ash to show up. Ah, uh, he should have been tossed out of there by now unless he actually made it to the center and found the treasure it's either that or. No bad Fleetfoot you need to stay positive here I'll wait a few more minutes for him before I decide anything, Fleetfoot said as she hovered in place looking into the spiraling winds just then she heard a ruckus come from the academy. She focused her gaze on the grounds and saw a tornado tearing the place apart. Oh no that's not good I'd better go check to see if I can help. But if I leave I won't be able to see if Ash comes out or not Fleetfoot was silent for a moment before she made her choice. Just hang on Ash I'll be back along with help Fleetfoot said as she took off. Back in the cave. I tucked the item into the satchel I brought with me before I decided to leave but then I thought about bringing a few roses along with me. I grabbed a bunch from each half and placed them into my satchel before I walked back to the entrance. I was met with the swirling winds from before and I figured how to get out of this safely. When no idea came to mind I decided to stuff everything and just jump into it. I placed my earphones in my ears and scrolled through the songs and hit play. I waited for the chores to kick in before I jumped into the swirling wind as soon as I jumped into it I was sent tumbling into the mess. I couldn't tell what was up or down so I extended my wings and managed to gain control. But I was quickly closing in on a spike and there wasn't enough time to turn so using my arms legs and parker skills I was able to doge the spike along with several more. As I looked around I saw the winds and spikes made a spiral pattern that lead to the exit. Using my wings I flew to the edge of the wall and placed my feet on the wall and began to run across the wall. Following the wind while keeping my wings extended so I stay on the wall I also used my parker skills to doge any obstacles in my path. As I ran the first got faster and faster as I neared the exit I left of the wall and with one large flap of my wings I pulled off a shot of boom. I shot out of the hydra's jaws like a cannon but I didn't stop I spread out my wings to form an air break. Once I reached the peak of the height the whole world stopped I leaned back and was plunging headfirst at the ground. I sent myself into a tailspin and looked at the academy and saw a twister about to wreck the place. I straightened out and pumped in more speed and flew at the tornado. I continued to fly at the tornado before I tucked my wings around me and turned myself a spinning arrow. I flew into the tornado and snapped my wings open creating a large past of wind going in different directions. The blast of wind made the tornado explode into a harmless gust of wind. I checked the area to see I destroyed the tornado and there were pegasi cheering for me as I landed. Well that was one hell of a rush, I said as I looked at the spot where the tornado was. You jerk, some pony yelled behind me before I felt pain in my right arm. Ow oh jeez, I said rubbing my arm as I turned around to see Fleetfoot with an angry glare on her face. What was that for, I asked in pain and annoyance. That was for getting me to worry about you when you flew into the Hydra's tonsils I told you what happens when you go in there and yet you went in anyway. Also I wanted to be the one to discover the treasure in there, Fleetfoot said with a cute pout. Sorry to tell you this but there wasn't any treasure just some flowers but then again I didn't search the entire cave, I said. Flowers that's it, Fleetfoot asked with a disappointed tone. They weren't any ordinary flowers Fleetfoot here I'll show you, I said as I opened my satchel and pulled out one of the two flower types. Holy Celestia they're beautiful, Fleetfoot said covering her mouth. Would you like one, I asked. Oh I couldn't, Fleetfoot said. It's alright I have more, I said. Alright I'll take the blue one, Fleetfoot said. Cool my favorite it of the two anyway, I said as I put the yellow one away and placed the blue rose behind Fleetfoot's ear. So you got a name for them, Fleetfoot asked. Yeah I decided to call the blue ones moon roses and the yellow ones sun roses I know it's not exactly spectacular but it's the best I can think of, I said. I think it's perfect and thanks it's really beautiful, Fleetfoot said. You're welcome now I need to find Rainbow Dash I can't wait to tell her I pulled off the impossible she'll totally flip, I said. I think she was heading to Spitfire's office for something, Fleetfoot said. Thanks I'll head over there now, I said before I flew off to the main building. I walked through the corridors towards Spitfire's office and along the way cadets and instructors either saluted me or thanked me for stopping the tornado. I returned the words and salutes with a thanks and a nod and kept on walking. As I neared the office I saw the door was open so I could hear the conversation inside. I leaned against the wall and listened in on the conversation. A tornado is a bit excessive for cloud busting but judging by your time it was obviously an effective tactic, I heard Spitfire say. Yeah well that effective tactic nearly took out my friends. No disrespect ma'am but there's a big difference between pushing yourself as hard as you can and just being reckless. And if being reckless is what gets rewarded around here if that's what it means to be a wonderbolt. Then I don't want any part of it, I heard Rainbow say. What are you saying newbie? Spitfire asked. I quit Rainbow said as she walked out. Rainbow slammed the door behind her once she walked out and I saw she had tears in her eyes. That took guts, I said causing Rainbow to jump. 
Oh hey Ash, Rainbow said wiping her eyes. Want to tell me what's going on? I asked. Only if we can walk and talk, Rainbow said. You did what, Applejack said. Rainbow told me of what happened today and how the rest of the main six and the stallions came to deliver a care package to Rainbow Dash and Thunderlane. But, while they were training Rainbow's partner unleashed a tornado and while our friends were in a hot air balloon. The group was caught in the tornado and were nearly killed. Thankfully everyone got out without any serious injuries. But being a Wonderbolt was your dream, Rarity said. Not anymore, Rainbow said. I'm sorry Rainbow Dash I know how much this meant to you, Twilight said placing a hand on Rainbow's shoulder. We all do, Soren said. Rainbow Dash. Everyone turned their attention to see Spitfire walking over to us. How dare you storm out of my office without giving me a chance to respond the Wonderbolts are looking for the best flyers in Equestria. But you were right being the best should never come at the expense of our fellow ponies. It's not about pushing ourselves it's about pushing ourselves in the right direction you've shown you're capable of doing just that Spitfire said before she nodded to two instructors behind her. The instructor stepped to the side to reveal Rainbow's partner Lightning Dust which was the Pegasus I kept seeing with Rainbow. Lightning Dust stepped forward and Spitfire got in her face before she ripped a golden lightning bolt pin off Lightning's uniform before she was escorted away by the instructors. You're no wing pony Rainbow Dash you're a leader, Spitfire said as she placed the pin on Rainbow's uniform. Oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh Rainbow blurted out while fluttering her wings in excitement. Spitfire smiled before her gaze fell on me, you could learn a thing or two about doing something reckless in future, Spitfire said. What do you mean Captain? Soren asked. She's talking about when I went into the Hydra's tonsils today, I said causing Thunderlane, Soren and Rainbow to gasp. You did what? Rainbow screamed. Did you find the treasure? Thunderlane asked excitedly. I responded by opening up my satchel and showing them the roses causing the group to gasp. If this qualifies as treasure then yes, I said. There are no words, Rarity said with a sparkle in her eyes while she held her cheeks. I handed some to our group for whoever wanted one before I walked over to Spitfire with a sun rose. I say this one suits you best, I said before I placed it in her hair. Thanks, Spitfire said as she touched the rose's petals I even thought I saw a hint of pink in her cheeks. Ahem this doesn't mean you lot can slack off now you two get up there and give me twenty. Spitfire yelled at Rainbow and Thunderlane. Yes ma'am, the two said before they took to the sky. I looked at our group and I saw both Soren was looking at Rainbow and Rarity was looking at Thunderlane I put two and two together and smiled. Looks like we got two new sets of lovebirds, I said. Wah, Rarity and Soren said shaken out of their staring. Soren likes Rainbow and Rarity likes Thunderlane, I said. The Pegasus and Unicorn blushed before they nodded their heads slightly. Well what are you waiting for you dummy go ask the kid out before someone else does, Spitfire said. What now? Soren asked in shock. Yeah and that's an order, Spitfire said. All right wish me luck, Soren said before he took off. What about you Rarity? Twilight asked. I find it more romantic if the stallion asks the lady out, Rarity said giving her curls a flick. If you say so, I said as I walked over to the edge. Where are you going Sugarcube? Applejack asked. I'm heading back to Ponyville I just need to take care of something, I said as I stood on the edge. Can we help with anything? Comet asked. Afraid not really besides it's nothing big, I said without looking at the group. Well take care, Pinky said with a wave. I gave a small wave over my shoulder before I jumped off the edge and spread my arms in an eagle shape and fell. As I dived I did one front flip before I spread my wings and flew atop the clouds. Show off, I heard Spitfire shout out to me causing me to smile before I flew beneath the clouds. He was lying about something, Applejack said. What do you mean Applejack? Fluttershy asked. That thing he said he was going to take care of that was a small thing he was lying, Applejack said. How do you know? Spitfire asked. I'm the bearer of the element of honesty I know when some pony is lying to me, Applejack said proudly. Must come in handy, Spitfire said. Sure does but anyway Twilight what do you think we should do? Applejack asked. Twilight held a hand to her chin and thought. It may be for the best if we don't know, Twilight said. Are you sure Twilight? Caramel asked. Yes you all remember when we asked about Ash's brand mark and what happened and how we wished we didn't find out when Rage told us, Twilight said getting sad looks from everyone. If Ash has something hidden and he doesn't want to tell us then maybe it's for the best. Yep, Mac agreed. Brand mark is it the burn on his back? Spitfire asked. How do you know about that? Comet asked. I saw it on his back when we were sparing, Spitfire replied. Well we'd tell you Spitfire but it's Ash's story to tell and word of warning if he does tell you, you won't like the answers, Twilight said. I flew back towards Ponyville and arrived at home I greeted Feather Duster and Silver Tray and handed them both a rose which they were both ecstatic to see. They thanked me before I walked into my room and closed the door before I placed my satchel on my bed. I reached into it and pulled out a golden glowing sphere with strange lines and marks etched into it. I was told by Altair that this item was known as one of the pieces of Eden this piece was known as one of the apples of Eden. Now why are you here and how did you get here? I thought. Obviously the orb was silent so I tossed the apple into the air before I caught it and walked over to my closet. I opened an empty drawer and placed the apple inside before I closed it before walked over to my satchel and picked it up and left. I walked out the door and was on my way to the florists to see if I can get the roses wrapped as a gift to Celestia and Luna. I walked over to the store and I saw a Rosaluck standing outside tending to the flowers. She was an earth pony mare with cream colored fur and rose red mane and tail. She was also wearing a light green top and a cream dress and she had a single rose cutie mark on her shoulder. Hello Rosaluck, I said as I walked over to her. Ash I keep telling you to call me Rose every pony does, Rosaluck said. I gave an unnoticeable frown at the request because the only one I called Rose was my wolf sister images of her flashed through my head I didn't hear Rosaluck. Hey Ekis to Ash, Rosaluck said snapping her fingers in my face. Hem, oh sorry Rosaluck I was lost in thought, I said. I can see that but I asked what I can help you with, Rosaluck said. Yeah was wondering if you could prep these for me to give as a gift to some pony, I said as I pulled out the roses causing Rosaluck to stare at them with wide eyes. Ash they're beautiful where'd you get them? Rosaluck asked. 
It's a long story and I'm afraid I don't have time, I said. Well whoever these are for you must really care about them right, Rosaluk said giving me a knowing smirk. Yeah anyway I'll pay you extra if you can get it done by the end of the day, I said I was glad I had my hood on so I was able to hide the red in my cheeks. I have a better idea you pay with bits like normal and if I can get these done by today I'll consider two or three of each of these roses as the bonus. Cause I don't think anywhere in Equestria has roses like these, Rosaluk suggested. Alright I'm down with that, I said as I handed the roses to Rose. I'll get started on these immediately, Rose said. See ya later Rose, I said as I walked away. I walked through Ponyville and decided to head over to Sweet Apple Acres so I followed the dirt path that lead to the homestead I walked up to the door and knocked three times and waited. Who is it? Granny Smith asked. It's Ash Granny Smith, I responded. Oh hello Ash Applejack and Mac ain't here if you were wondering but I hope Mac gets back cause that their roof on the barn needs a fixin', Granny Smith said. How about I take care of it I was looking for something to preoccupy myself with, I said. Oh that's mighty kind of you the tools are in the barn, Granny Smith said. I'll get started on it right away, I said. During my time on the roof I was starting to get hot so I took off my jacket and shirt and hung them on the weather vane. A little while later as I just finished hammering a new plank into place Granny Smith brought out one of her famous apple pies and a knife to cut it with. She called me down I grabbed my jacket and shirt from off the weather vane and flew down. I walked over to a small table that had the tools box on it along with my satchel. Granny Smith walked over to the table set the pie on the table for me to enjoy. I placed my top and jacket on a stool before I walked over to Granny Smith. Thanks for helping with that roof ash Granny Smith said. It's alright Granny Smith tell me do you know where Apple Bloom and her friends are I thought they'd be around here I said. Oh I sent those youngsters to grab something for me. They even told me that story you told them about that Robin fella Granny Smith said. Robin Hood yeah it's quite a nice story isn't it I said as I cut a slice of pie for Granny and myself but as a gentleman I handed a piece to Granny first. There you two are, Granny said looking behind me. I had a bite of the apple pie before I turned around and I saw both Applejack and Big Mac walking over. Sorry Granny we got a little distracted but I wasn't expecting to see you here Ash, Applejack said. I was actually looking for something to keep me busy and when Granny Smith mentioned the roof on the barn needs fixing. So I thought I might take care of the problem, I said. Well thank ya kindly Ash but I'm afraid we don't have the bits to pay you, Applejack said. Applejack I couldn't ask for anything more satisfying as payment. Then you're Granny Smith's apple pie so don't worry about it, I said. He up Mac agreed. Anyway I'm almost done with the roof so you guys help yourself to the rest of the pie, I said. Thanks Ash, Applejack said. I nodded to the pair before I flew onto the roof and started hammering away at the planks of wood. Suddenly I saw a flash come from an apple tree not too far away from the barn. I looked at the tree for anything but I couldn't see anything rubbing it off as my head messing with me. I went back to hammering at the wood just then I saw Bonbon bon came running over to us. Hey Bonbon, bon, I called out to the mare. Bonbon bon was wearing a hot pink skirt with three wrapped candies on it with a pink top and blue coat. Oh hey Ash, Bonbon bon greeted. After nightmare night I went to go see if Bonbon bon and see how she was doing and found out she runs the local sweet shop in Ponyville. We bonded well and I discovered that Bonbon bon has a quick temper but she's always fun to be around. So what brings you around these parts? Big Mac asked. I'm looking for Lyra she said she'd help me out with something but I can't find her, Bonbon bon said. I looked at the tree that I saw the flash came from before I sighed. Alright Lyra I know you're in the tree so come on out. I yelled. I waited a few seconds before a few branches shook and Lyra jumped out of the tree with a camera around her neck. She placed her hands behind her back and drew a circle in the ground with her hoof and was offering a sheepish smile. Lyra we talked about this you can't keep secretly taking pictures of me the first few times I didn't mind but now it's getting ridicules, I said. Sorry Ash I am trying it's just hard to stop, Lyra said. Well you can't apologize to me this time you need to apologize to her, I said gesturing to an angry looking Bonbon. Lyra walked over to Bonbon the look of sorrow and shame on her face. We'll talk about this later, Bonbon said before she looked at me, sorry for the trouble Ash. Bonbon called up to me. No problem Bonbon you two take care now, I said before they left. After I fixed the roof I went to go grab dust before I got the flowers from Rosaluk. As agreed I gave her the payment for finishing them today before I left for home and had dinner. I sent the bundle of sun roses to Celestia and the night roses to Luna before I tucked dust in and had a shower and got changed. I took the apple of Eden out of the draw and sat on my bed and stared at it my eyes soon became heavy and I couldn't keep them open. Soon after I fell asleep with the apple of Eden still in my grasp unknown to me the apple of Eden started to glow. Chapter 19 An Old Score to Settle I woke up with a start and frantically looked around to see I was back in my room and it was the middle of the night. I looked at the apple of Eden and saw the glow that was radiating off of it dim. Okay that was just freaky what the hay happened and who was that Desmond guy? I asked no one in particular. I picked up the apple of Eden and placed it in drawer before I got back into bed and closed my eyes to sleep. A week and three days later. Ever since Rainbow and Thunderlane came back from the academy this week has by far been the craziest one since I've been in Equestria. The week started with the dream after I got the apple of Eden. Then I had to deal with the multiple Pinkie Pies after Pinkie found a special pond that duplicates oneself. Then there was the Timberwolf attack and finally the girls went to the Crystal Empire to help it be the one to host the Equestria Games. Pony version of the Olympic Games, now the main six, the Stallions, Spike Gilda, Trixie and I were summoned to Canterlot for a few days. All of the main six had cold frines and honestly I couldn't be happier for them. Gilda and Trixie told me that they were happier not being in a relationship. Spike was happy as well but was a little downhearted because he felt left behind while Dust slept on the chair opposite me. Hey Ash. I turned my head to see Twilight was the one that spoke. Yeah TWI what's up? I asked. Do you have any idea why Princess Celestia called for us? Twilight asked. Who can say all we know it's important? I said turning my gaze to the window again. Ash is everything alright you seem a little distant, Twilight asked when she saw my mood. Yeah I'm fine Twilight just a little tired, I said with a small smile. 
Okay, Twilight said as she walked away. I looked out the window and sighed I was actually thinking about that dream I had with the collapsing city and this Desmond character. There were times when the screams from the baby and people from my nightmare would echo in my head. I wanted to talk to the knights but I couldn't get in touch with them and my schedule was too full for me to go see Faust so I had to wait it out. Hey Ash we're here. I was pulled from my thoughts by Spike as he grabbed my shoulder. I looked at my friends and saw them grabbing their luggage and leave the train car. I stood up grabbed my luggage and woke up dust before I left the car as well. When I was on the platform I looked at the large storage car I saw some ponies carrying out four large black rectangular boxes. One of the ponies knocked the boxes on something and dropped it. Hey be careful with that it took me days to make those, I said. Sorry sir, the stallion said. Oh Ash darling just what exactly is in those boxes, Rarity asked. All will be revealed in good time, I said with a smile. Once I signed the forms for the large luggage and paid for it I picked the boxes up in my magic grip and walked with the others to the castle. When we arrived I separated from the others and headed for the training grounds. Once I arrived I saw Shining practicing with a wooden sword and on a training dummy. Well this is a surprise, I said as I placed the boxes in my magic on the ground to the side and gaining Shining's attention. Ash, Shining said as he walked over to me and caught each other by the wrists. Good to see ya, Shining said. You too pal I also heard the good news about the Crystal Empire hosting the games you must be proud, I said. Yeah it feels amazing and are those the things you mentioned to me when we were in the Empire? Shining asked gesturing to the boxes. Sure are, I said. Can't wait to see them in action, Shining said. Same I've already selected the ones to be the first to try them out, I said. Seems like you've got everything sorted out, Shining said. Yep now do you know where Rage is I'd like to say hi, I said. I think he's in his room, Shining said. Thanks I'll ask the guards and servants where it is, I said. Got it, Shining said. And also Shining don't even bother trying to open the boxes okay. Cause I have a special lock enchantment on them, I said with a teasing. I was going to wait anyway so don't worry, Shining said with a laugh. I walked through the corridors and thanks to a few maids I headed to Rage's room it feels like a lifetime ago since I last spoke to Rage. I shrugged it off as I neared his room I gave a few knocks and waited. I knocked again but no answer I thought he couldn't hear me so I twisted the knob and walked in. I looked inside and to my shock I saw Rage was on the bed and on his knees naked and running Aris like there was no tomorrow. Aris lay on her back moaning and groaning in bliss. Yes yes harder fuck me harder, Aris cried out in pleasure. I was dead frozen watching the scene but I managed to regain my senses and back away but not soon enough Rage spotted me and stopped plowing into Aris. Why'd you stop I was so close, Aris whined but she saw his gaze and when she saw me her eyes widened in fear. I stood in silence unsure of what to do so I just calmly backed out of the room and closed the door before I teleported to my own room to get what transpired out of my head. Fifteen minutes later. After soaking my head in water for a few minutes and one hundred push-ups someone knocked at the door. Come in, I said. The door opened and Rage and Aris stepped in Rage was holding a bottle of whiskey in his hand and handed it to me. To help you out, Rage said. Thanks, I said before I took the bottle and took a quick drink. Just so you know I didn't mean to walk in on you on purpose when you were like that, I said. No one ever does, Rage said as he sat in a chair. Ash please don't tell dad if he found out will I don't know how he'll take it, Aris pleaded. I looked at Aris then at Rage. You're dating her behind Discord's back, I asked. Uh, yeah, Rage replied. Sigh okay here's what's gonna happen I'm gonna pretend what happened didn't happen and we never talk about it ever again, I said. Talk about what Aris do you have any clue what he's talking about? Rage asked. No idea, Aris said. The three of us laughed and I summoned three glasses for us and poured some whiskey in each. Soon we were talking like old friends who have suddenly been reunited after a long time. I told them about my week leaving out the Apple of Eden and the shower incident with Spitfire. Man what a week you had man, Rage laughed. Yeah it was crazy, I said with a laugh. Well this chat has been great but I need to go, Aris said before she kissed Rage on the lips and teleported away. So you and Aris huh, I said. Something wrong with that, Rage asked with a raised eyebrow. No man if anything I'm glad my little brother has found love, I said. Thanks that, wait little brother, Rage asked in a stunned tone. Yeah I've been doing some thinking and I realized that we are all the family we have after everything. You're technically me but younger so that makes you my little brother, I said. Gee I always wanted a brother of my own never thought I'd actually see one in you, Rage said. So does that mean we're brothers from now on? I asked holding out my hand. Rage stood up and walked over to me and took my hand and yanked me up into a hug I was surprised at first but hugged him back we stayed like that for a few seconds before we let go. Come on I need to find out why we were called here in the first place, I said. Yeah I doubt you like it though, Rage said. Why's that? I asked. I'll let Celestia explain mate, Rage said. Okay and you do realize you'll need to tell Discord sooner or later and that it better be sooner, I said. Yeah well hope it works out though, Rage said as we left. I walked into the throne room and I saw Celestia sitting on the throne room and on each side of the throne the roses I gave to both Celestia and Luna. The sun roses sat on the right side of the throne while the night roses sat on the left. I take it you like the roses I sent Celestia, I said. Yes thank you Ash I've been looking for a new decoration for the throne room and you seem to provide it. Also Luna was so happy she took one to her room for a little decoration of her own, Celestia said. Well glad to be of services your highness now why exactly are my friends and I summoned here? I asked. I saw the motherly look on Celestia's face disappear before she took a breath and spoke. Apparently the Griffin King is coming to Equestria apparently there's a problem in his kingdom and he needs our help in sorting it out, Celestia said. I looked at the ground and took in the words Celestia spoke and clenched my fists. I still haven't forgiven the neighboring kingdom's leaders because of their actions earlier in my time here. I understand you hold a grudge against the leaders Ash but for now please don't do anything to bring us to war. By all means be angry but don't do anything to break the peace mother set for us all those years ago, Celestia said. I took a few deep breaths before I relaxed my hands and looked up at Celestia. 
Just as long as he has a damn good excuse for wanting my friends I won't be angry at him but if he's a total ass like blue blood it may be hard to control my temper, I said. Thank you Ash, Celestia said. It was around sunset and I was walking through the corridors after dinner I managed to talk to Nocturnal Shadow, Storm Cloud, Swift Spear and Holy Light during the day. I asked them if they could test the item in the boxes I brought with me which they seemed excited to try. While they tested it out they reminded me of a song I have on my iPod. Now I was watching as the sun rested below the horizon and the moon came up. Hello Ash Blade. I turned my head to see Luna walking up behind me. Hi Luna what are you doing here? I asked. Can't a princess walk around in her own home? Luna asked with a smile. Sorry, I said sheepishly. No need to apologize but what are you doing here? Luna asked. Oh just working off the meal I ate and watching as day becomes night. The weather looks warm enough to fall asleep underneath the stars tonight. In fact I haven't been stargazing in a while, I said. Really, Luna said perking up. Yeah I used to do it all the time but sadly I've been so busy I haven't had time to admire it lately, I said. Well I know a great spot to stargaze if you'd like to join me, Luna said. I'd be delighted to, I said. Luna took my hand and in a flash we were gone. When we reappeared we weren't inside the castle anymore instead we were on top of the mountain that Canterlot stood on. I looked up to see thousands of stars sparkling in the darkness. There are no words to describe the beauty Luna, I said. T thank you Ash, Luna said with a smile at the compliment. Can I ask you a question Luna? I asked as I sat down on the soft grass that grew up here. Yes of course, Luna said. Is the night sky a large canvas for you and the constellations or your drawings, I asked. Why yes my most precious images go up there or of some pony important in my life, Luna said as she sat down next to me. Wow your own personal gallery and for the whole world to see it I'm actually a little jealous, I said. I appreciate your honesty, Luna said with a giggle. My eyes roamed the skies looking at each of the twinkling lights in the sky, before my eyes landed on what appeared to be an extremely large empty space dead center of the sky above us. Hey Luna why aren't there any stars in that area? I asked. Well I don't really know what to put in there I've tried and tried but nothing comes to mind I don't suppose you have any ideas. Luna asked. My eyes roamed the skies looking at all the different constellations and remembered what Luna said about something precious or important to her. I searched the skies one more time before I gave my answer. The five nights, I said. Sorry, Luna said. Why don't you put the five nights cutie marks up there as a sort of memorial, I suggested. Luna looked at the blank slate in concentration before her eyes lit up. That's a fantastic idea Ash and I believe I can even improve it, Luna said before she closed her eyes in concentration. I looked back up at the sky and one by one stars appeared in the patch of midnight blue more and more stars appeared and took shape. In the very center of the dark patch was Faust's cutie mark and going around it were others. I could see the main Sixa and the Coltrine's cutie marks, along with Trixie's a bird skull for Gilda, a feather quill and parchment for Spike and a cloud with thorns in it for Discord. A pair of crossed flaming swords for Rage along with a broken yin and yang for Aris. Even Octavia's and Vinyl's plus the five knights and finally Faust's children cutie marks all going around Faust's cutie mark in a perfect circle. I even saw mine right next to Luna's I was completely awestruck at the image set before me. What do you think? Luna asked. If there were no words to describe how your sky looked before. There definitely will be no words worthy enough to describe the beauty of this creation I'd say this is your masterpiece Luna, I said. I could tell Luna was extremely happy cause the stars shone brighter than they did before. I turned to look at Luna but what I saw instead was an angel sitting in the starlight looking at me. Luna and I moved closer and closer until our lips met. My first kiss was like nothing I ever expected before it was like electricity sparking through my body and fireworks going off in my chest at the same time. But alas we had to break for air I could see Luna had the same feeling I had. I wasn't expecting my first kiss to be anything like that, I said. It was your first kiss too. Luna asked surprised. You too huh, I said in equal surprise. No words came from either of us but we both could tell we wanted to kiss again so we did until we separated again. Maybe we should get inside the others maybe wondering where we are, I said I was about to stand but Luna gently grabbed my arm to get my attention. Um Ash could we actually sleep out here, Luna asked. I stared into her eyes and smiled before I laid down on the grass and Luna rested her head in the crook of my neck being careful not to poke my eye out with her horn. I then placed my right hand on her head and gently scratched behind her ear receiving a happy coo from Luna. I then remembered the lullaby I heard Faust sing while she was looking at her children. As I scratched behind Luna's ear I sang to her and it wasn't long before sleep overcame Luna. My head was rolling the same question around in my head over and over again. Where does this lead now the question repeated itself until my mind was made up. I love you Luna, I said and just like that all my doubts and worries disappeared and sleep finally claimed me. Luna where are you? Celestia called out to the endless hallways looking for her youngest sibling. Lulu this isn't time for a game of hide and seek you need to lower the moon. Celestia called. What's with all the shouting? Celestia turned around and saw Chrysalis walking up to her wearing her pajamas and a sleepy look in her eyes. Sorry Chrysalis but I can't find Luna anywhere and it's time for her to set the moon, Celestia said. Did you try her stargazing spot? Chrysalis asked. Celestia's cheeks turned red in embarrassment at the question. Honestly Celestia you were always like this shouting out ponies names when they weren't in their normal area, Chrysalis said. Hey I stopped doing that one, 500 years ago, Celestia defended. And yet you still do it to your siblings anyway I'll go see if Luna's at her little spot you go get ready for the king to arrive, Chrysalis said before she teleported away. That mare will one day wake up all of Canterlot if she keeps this up, Chrysalis said as she arrived on top of the mountain. When Chrysalis looked around she then saw something she didn't expect to see. There lying in the grass with their wings wrapped around each other was Luna resting in Ash's neck. Both of them with a smile on their face. Oh, my, Faust this is just too perfect to not take a picture of Chrysalis as she summoned her camera and took a picture of the two. Ah, oh, they look so peaceful together it's too adorable to disturb them, Chrysalis cooed before she teleported away. Chrysalis arrived back in the castle and ran off to find Celestia on the way she ran into Discord. 
She showed him the photo which he couldn't help but shed a tear. Chrysalis then went straight to Celestia's room and banged on the door. Celestia, are you there? Chrysalis called. Yes, I'm here. Did you find Luna? Celestia asked in annoyed tone. Well, yes, but that's not important right now. What is important is that you need to lower the moon and raise the sun, Chrysalis said. Chrysalis, if this is some joke, I, Celestia began. This isn't a joke, I swear. Could you just do it, please? Chrysalis begged. Celestia gave out a sigh before she disappeared behind the doors. A little while later, the moon went below the horizon and the sun rose, indicating the start of a new day. Okay, now care to tell me what is going on? Celestia asked. Chrysalis responded by showing Celestia the photo. Celestia took the photo and when she saw it, her eyes widened in surprise. Where did you get this? Celestia asked. I found them like that at Luna's stargazing point. They must have fallen asleep up there and snuggled up together during the night for warmth, Chrysalis said. Perhaps, but let's get an expert's opinion on the matter at breakfast, Celestia said. I slowly opened my eyes to see the sun rising over the horizon and for some reason it was a little difficult to breath. I looked down to see Luna was awake and on my chest smiling at me. So how do you sleep? I asked. Wonderfully, thank you, Luna said. Great, I said. We both entered an awkward silence. I was about to speak before Luna beat me to it. Where did you hear that song anyway, the one you sang last night? Luna asked. Oh well, I heard Faust sing it while she was watching you. She told me she used to sing it to you all as a lullaby, I said. Well, thank you. It's really good to hear that song once more, Luna said. I'd be happy to sing it again whenever you'd like to hear it, Luna, I said. Thank you, Ash, but I believe we should be getting back before every pony sends out a nationwide search for us, Luna suggested. I gave Luna a silent nod before we teleported back inside. When we appeared in an abandoned corridor, we walked down the corridor in silence until I spoke. A Luna about last night when we kissed, I said. Yes, Luna looked me with a serious expression. What does it make us now? Are we still just friends? I asked. I don't know when I well kissed you I felt more alive than I ever have in my entire life and believe me I've lived for a long time, Luna said. I got the same feeling and Luna I'll be honest with you right here right now, I said as I stopped and faced Luna. Yes, Luna asked her cheeks slightly pink. I underscore I underscore I love you Luna, I said the world stopped as I let the words out of my mouth. I don't know how or why but I don't really care about that cause deep down I ray underscore, Luna cut me off by grabbing my jacket and pushing her lips against mine. I was completely shocked by the action but soon adapted to the kiss and wrapped my arms around her back and held the back of her head gently before we separated. I feel the same about you Ash, Luna said. I smiled at Luna for a few moments before Luna and I heard voices coming from around the corner. Luna and I let go of each other and we stepped away from each other just as the occupants of the voices appeared revealing both Spike and Nocturnal Shadow. They were both talking and having fun with each other before they saw us. Hey you two what are you both up to? Spike asked. Nothing, Luna and I said in sync. All right then hey Ash Shadow was telling me about when you started training her, Spike said. Yeah our first encounter was quite something wasn't it Shadow, I said. Certainly was sir, Shadow replied. Shadow I told you call me sir when we're both on duty okay, I said with a warm smile. Sorry Ash force of habit, Shadow said. Private Shadow would you like to join us for breakfast, Luna asked. I would be honored your highness but I promised my friends I would join them, Shadow said as she began to walk away. Very well and Shadow tell the others to be ready before the king of the Griffin Kingdom gets here, I said. We'll do Ash, Shadow said as she left. So what do you think Cadence? Celestia asked. I'd say this picture is simply the cutest moment I've ever seen, Cadence squealed. Believe me Cadence I've seen cuter but still what does this mean? Twilight asked. I don't know if this means anything cause it's a picture. I'd have to be there to tell you but this just looks like the both fell asleep and cuddled to keep each other warm, Cadence said. That's what I said but they look happy don't they, Chrysalis said. I never thought Ash would be as lucky as to score a princess of Equestria not that I'm complaining, Caramel said before he was hit over the head by Big Mac. I still say we shouldn't be interfering in this, Mac said. Agreed you all remember trying to find out Ash's history imagine how he'd react to you lot were messing in his love life, Rage said. Can't be that bad can it? Shining asked causing most of the group to shudder. Okay what do all of you know that Cadence and I don't, Shining asked. From personal experience Shining Armor you don't want to know, Discord said. Just then the handles on the doors to the dining room turned and everyone dashed to their seats before the door opened. I'm telling y'all Ash I think I'm in love, Spike said as he Luna and I entered. Well you try hard and I'm sure you'll get her, I said rubbing the scales on top of Spike's head before I turned and greeted everyone at the table. Morning Ash how'd you sleep, Applejack asked as I sat down next to Luna. Splendid I even helped Luna make a new constellation, I said. A new constellation what's it called? Comet asked. Well we haven't exactly been able to pick one, I said. Well when night rolls around perhaps you two can show us then we can decide on a name, Celestia suggested. I was in the training grounds dressed in my armor and making some checks on the revolver I got from the ponies that invaded my home. I then placed it in my new holster that Rarity made for me I then secured the holster onto my right thigh before I secured my other weapons. I grabbed my helmet and walked off to the landing platform to greet the king. As I arrived I placed the helmet over my head and stood behind Celestia and Luna and next to Rage who was also in his armor. Just then, a small dot appeared in the sky and got bigger as it got closer. I squinted my eyes to get a closer look before I grabbed a brass telescope with a black handle I found in the secret room in the Everfree library and lifted it to the top visor of the helmet to see the dot was some sort of craft. Ah Celestia why didn't you tell me you had airships here, I said. Oh I thought you would have at least seen the loading dock that's placed just underneath Canterlot, Celestia said. I was very much surprised by the airship but I was expecting something more luxurious for a king. The aircraft landed and the gangplank was set in place before about ten guards walked down the ramp. Each one wore identical armor and their helmets had three red feathers on top of them and their faces were in perfect view. The armor was colored gold and brown and had the Griffin Kingdom's mark on it. Once they reached the bottom they separated onto each side of the gangplank. 
The king then appeared he wore a large brown gown that matched his fur and a red cape on his back and had a golden crown on his head. He also wore a heavy looking gold necklace around his neck and jeweled rings on each talon everything about him screamed royal. Except his right talon was in a sling and cast while his face looked tired and battle weary. King Donclaw what happened to you? Celestia asked surprised to see the king's condition. My story would be the reason for my visit Donclaw said in a deep voice. Come let's head to the meeting room where we shall discuss the matter, Celestia said as she and the princesses turned around and lead the way. The king gave both me and Rage a curious glance as he passed us before Rage and I followed the royals followed by Donclaw's guards who were intimidated by Rage and I. The walk through the corridors was silent before Donclaw spoke. Is it true that you two have three other siblings including Discord? Donclaw asked. Yes but he has been reformed back to good so don't worry, Luna said as we approached a pair of double doors. We walked inside and I saw a long oval-like room with windows all around the edge and a large circular table in the middle. My friends along with Spitfire and Fleetfoot were sitting at the table. The princesses along with Discord, Aris and Shining Armor sat together on one side of the table the king sat on the other end of the table with his guards behind him. As Celestia and Luna took their seats both Rage and I on either side of the royals. I was told the elements of harmony were returned to you Celestia now I see my sources are correct Donclaw said looking at the girls. The girls flinched away and their cold friends moved closer to them for protection. Their faces had looks of anger on their face telling him to just try and take them away again. While I rested my hand on my revolver in case he was willing to try anything. As I told correctly it was a rouge that won the match in the arena and returned the elements to my sister King Donclaw, Dreamcatcher said holding her hand out in front of me to stop me from doing anything. Please be at ease I no longer have an interest in the elements but I'm still not happy you broke the agreement Celestia to keep your soldiers out of the arena, Donclaw said. Celestia and Luna never sent me I actually went on my own, I spoke up. Everyone's eyes fell on me and the king looked at me strangely. You're the rouge fighter, Donclaw asked. Both Rage and I removed our helmets and placed them on the table before I summoned the disguise ring and put it on turning into my unicorn version of myself. I see so the equestrian enforcers have returned, King Donclaw said looking us over. Equestrian enforcers is that what you and your subjects call us? I asked as I took of my ring. Indeed your kind were considered a myth up till now, Donclaw said. If I may ask Donclaw why did you want the elements of harmony in the first place? Chrysalis asked. It was because of him, Donclaw said pointing at Discord who was munching on some fairy floss. He came to my kingdom and brought chaos wherever he went my subjects were in a panic from day to night. When we learned that Discord was turned to stone once more I knew we needed some form of protection from him and the only way to do that was with the elements, Donclaw explained. The expression on my face softened slightly at what he said but I still was still upset about the arena being there in the first place. I think we should be moving on to the main topic, Luna said. Yes now why did you come here asking for our assistance King Donclaw? Celestia asked. My subjects have rebelled against me because I refused to take the elements from you by force, Donclaw said. Well I appreciate the fact you said no but out of curiosity your highness why, Rarity asked. After the match in the arena my subjects started accusing Equestria of cheating and requested that we take the elements by force and raise Equestria to the ground. I denied it because I knew the legend of the Equestrian Enforcers. In the past when we tried to take Equestria it was the Enforcers that fought back and turned the old kingdom into nothing but rubble. I did not wish for something like that to befall my kingdom again. I tried to stop them but they called me weak even most of my own guard turned on me I was just lucky enough to escape Donclaw said. So what do you need our help for? I asked. I need you to stop the rebellions before something terrible happens Donclaw said. I looked to the princesses to see they were about to respond but suddenly a window broke from a griffin flying through it. The griffin wore armor similar to the king's guards only it was blue and silver it and going for the king and he was armed with a knife. I acted swiftly and pulled out my revolver and shot at the attacking griffin. But, instead of a bullet a bright blue bolt of magic shot out of the barrel and hit the griffin in the chest killing him. Everyone in the room was surprised by what happened and stared at the griffin with the smoking hole in its chest. I just twirled the gun around before I holstered it. Everyone we need to get moving there may be more, I said as I both rage and I put on our helmets but before anyone could react more griffins charged in and blocked the doors. Well look at this all the royals in one place our new king will be pleased, a griffin said presumably the leader of the group. If you think we'll let you do what you want you're sadly mistaken, I said as Rage, Spitfire, Fleetfoot, Soren, Shining, and the king's guards came over and brandished their weapons. Out of the way pests if you hand over your leaders we'll spare you, the griffin said. Watch your beak pal or you'll lose it, Rage said. Hey Celestia remember when I said when I was back up in Canterlot you'd see a demonstration of what I've been working on, I said. By ash now isn't the best time, Celestia said. Don't worry about anything okay I've got it covered, I said. Hey freak show I'm not done talking here, the griffin said. Perhaps but I'm done talking with you so how about we cut to the chase where some of the best soldiers I've trained kick your sorry butts, I said. What? The griffin said confused. Immortals fall in. I yelled. As soon as I yelled four figures dropped from the ceiling and landed in kneeling positions before they stood up. They were dressed in silver armor and the front of the helmets was shaped perfectly for their faces. They had holes on the end of the helmet's muzzle for breathing and eye holes but the eye holes were black and soulless. Each helmet had a metal horn on it and on their backs was a silver rectangular shield. The shields had a picture of a sword and a sun and moon on either side of it and also secured to their backs was a revolver rifle. But what caught everyone's attention is when the armored figures spread their metal wings making them look like alicorns. The armored figures also had a sword secured to their hips for combat. So you want to take us on now, I said. The griffin then shot a look of anger at me before he let out an eagle-like scream summoning more griffins surrounding us. Immortals cover our six rage and I will open the way anyone else who's got an itch to fight get ready, I said. The figures nodded before they flapped their wings and jumped into the air and over us and stood behind us drawing their swords and shields. I saw the princesses even summon their own weapons. Celestia summoned a golden halberd with a picture of a sun etched into it. Luna summoned Moon Glow Dreamcatcher summoned her spear. Chrysalis summoned a staff and Discord summoned a double-handled long sword. 
I turned to Rage and saw him draw fury and hate from his hips. Not gonna use your weapons Ash, Rage said. Not don't want to make it too hard on them, I said as I cracked my fingers. Suit yourself, Rage said with a shrug. Kill them, the griffin yelled. I got into a stance and bounced on my feet as I was attacked by three griffins. I charged at the first griffin and punched him in the gut with the force of a small cannon. I then did my hand-to-hand -hand combat on the other two with a few kicks at it as well. Once I knocked them down a griffin came up behind me and tried to stab me. But I just grabbed him and threw him up and over me but before he hit the ground I kicked him into his friends that were trying to get up. I then blocked another griffin's attacks then drove my left elbow into his chest causing him to lean backwards. I quickly spun around and punched him into the ground. I then was dodging blows from more griffins one of them went with his fists I just blocked his attacks. I grabbed his arm and moved behind him and punched his shoulder blade. I saw another griffin come up behind me but I just swept one of my legs under him but the griffin whose shoulder blade I punched was up and tried to punch me. But I just laid on my back and tucked my legs in before I kicked him under the chin and stood on my feet. As I got up I punched the griffin the first trip as he was getting up I was then taking on three griffins including the leader at the same time. I was either blocking or dodging their attacks quickly I wish I could see how awesome I looked while doing this. I then kicked the leader in the chest knocking him onto his back and saw one of the griffins tried to punch me in the head. I ducked beneath the blow and the griffin hit his ally before I jumped into the air. I punched one griffin and kicked the other griffin at the same time while I was in the air before I landed. I then saw the lead griffin begin to stand up before I ran at him and used his kneeling leg to hoist myself into the air. I knee him in the side of the head and looked at my fallen attackers and the leader with disappointment. I looked at the others and saw the armored figures cutting down their foes with ease. One of them was running on the wall before he jumped off the wall but was surrounded by griffins. He griped his sword and cut them all down in a 360 degree spin, he sheathed his sword and ran at a griffin and punched him through a wall. He then turned to see a griffin charge at him but the figure hit him in the chest with a blast of magic from his horn. I looked at the others to see they were handling themselves nicely suddenly, my instincts told me there was someone behind me. I just raised my fist suddenly and hit them in the face. I turned my head to see the lead griffin was up and was about to impale me before I knocked him out again. I turned to the group to see they were done with the rest the armored figures then stood in front of me and saluted while I saluted back. Well done you four I guess we can call the armor a success, I said. Thank you sir, the four replied dropping their salutes. Storm cloud, holy light, nocturnal shadow, swift spear great job out there you even got me to believe you lot were alicorns, Rage said as the four armored figures removed the helmets. I got to say that flying thing was awesome, swift spear said. Damn right wish I was born with wings I mean magic is awesome and all but still, holy light said. Join the club, shadow said. Holy buck that was just too awesome, rainbow said gapping at the group. H underscore how is that possible? Twilight asked in shock when she saw what the four were able to do. Before I could answer the ground started shaking violently causing us to almost lose our footing. What was that? Comet asked in panic. If there's one thing I know if the ground is shaking after you fought someone it's never good, I said. Well come on let's find out what the heck is happening. Spitfire yelled before she ran out of the room with us not too far behind. We ran to through the corridors and ten griffins crashed through the windows. I got this, I said as I pulled a cylinder object from off my hip and threw it at the griffins. The object flew through the air and latched onto one of the griffins I then created a shield between us and the griffins. The griffin tried to get the object off but they were turned into a pile of severed body parts in the blink of an eye and thin pieces of metal bounced against the shield. I dropped the shield and I saw some faces were a little green. Ash was that a spring razor? Celestia asked. Yeah but explanation later running now, I said as I began to run. We arrived at a balcony that looked over Canterlot in the ground at the bottom of the mountain to see a large airship with the Griffin Kingdom symbol on it. A small army stood in front of it the ship and the griffins had three catapults and were firing at the supports that held up Canterlot. Well that explains the shaking, Rage said as he saw the situation. I pulled out my telescope and looked at the army and saw the catapults I looked around and in the center I saw a set of golden stairs on wheels that led to a throne with a large backrest. A griffin sat on the throne as he watched his army. Next to him was a cage with a female griffin and two chicks gripping the female griffin tightly in fear inside it. I think I see the guy running this and it looks like he's got captives, I said. May I see? Donclaw asked. I handed him the telescope to Donclaw and he had a look. Razor Beacon he has my wife Petalwing including my sons, Donclaw said in shock. Gilda stiffened up at the name Razor Beacon I saw it. Are you alright Gilda? I asked. T that's my dad Razor Beak is my dad, Gilda said. Everyone looked at Gilda in surprise but Donclaw was fuming while he looked at Gilda. I know what you're thinking Donclaw and if you harm Gilda in any way then you will wish the rebels had their way with you, I said. Then what do we do then that's my family down there. Donclaw screamed at me. I have a plan Spitfire I need you to gather as many Pegasi and Thestral ponies and stop any griffins that are trying to get into Canterlot. Shining I need you to create a shield to protect the supports so Canterlot isn't in pieces at the bottom of the mountain. Also mobilize the guard to take out any griffins that get past Spitfire or are in Canterlot already. Immortals you stay with the princesses is for the rest of you do what you will. Rage and I will head down there and take out the catapults and rescue the family and kill anyone dumb enough to get in our way, I said. I like that plan, Rage asked. Ash your part of the plan is suicide, Shining said. Well it's not such a bad day to die, I said looking at the sky. Stop messing around Ash you both could die down there, Shining said. Shining don't worry I won't die I promise, I said. Pinky promised Pinky said. Cross my heart hope to fly stick a cupcake in my eye, I said as I drew a cross on my heart and fluffed my wings and held a hand on my eye. Pinky gave me a nod before I turned to Gilda who was wrapped in a sidewards hug by Rainbow. Gilda what do you want me to do with him? I asked. Gilda didn't answer me right away she was looked at the ground before she looked at me to answer with a fiery look. He stopped being my dad the day he kicked me out of my home he's a complete stranger to me now, Gilda said. I nodded to Gilda before turned around and stood on the balcony wall with rage. I turned around to look at Luna and saw a worried look on her face. 
I gave a two-finger salute to everyone here before I put my earphones in and selected a song on my iPod and turned to Rage. You ready to rock and roll? I asked as I held my fist out. Hell yeah, Rage's said as we fist bumped. We jumped off the balcony and flew at the army Rage and I separated and I flew at the catapult on the left but the Griffins were keen on defending them. They flew into my path and threw spears at me to try and bring me down but I used Whispering Wind to block the spears. When that didn't work they decided to go with swords soon I was slashing my enemies out of the air. But, when I entered a duel I had to be careful of not only my opponent but the Griffins throwing spears at me. I landed on the ground and engaged in combat immediately. I blocked an attack before I slammed my shield into him stunning him before I brought Whispering Wind down on his skull. I then flung the body away and spear flew at me. But, I moved to the side and caught the spear as it passed me and threw it in a random direction. I looked at the direction I threw the spear in to see a large griffin holding a large slightly curved blade with a handle in it. He managed to split the spear in two telling me I shouldn't take this guy lightly. The griffin twirled the blade around before he charged at me I managed to block his attack before I used my shield to hit him. But, he blocked it with his hand before he swung at me again his blade scratched along my armor. I stumbled backwards but I got back into the fight by attacking first. He blocked the attack he pushed me back and went for an overhead strike. But, I dodged the attack and spun around and managed to get my blade in between the space between the metal and where he was holding the blade and yank it out of his hands. I did a 360 degree spin as I fired a blast of wind from my blade. The blast of wind cut all of the griffins around me causing them to fall and die. I saw the catapult and sheathed whispering wind before I fired a fireball at the catapult destroying it. I then turned to the last catapult and transformed into my feral form and ran at the catapult leaving a trail of death behind me. I reached the catapult and I saw Rage was having a tough time. I turned into my human form and kicked a griffin that was sneaking up behind Rage and pulled out my revolver. I fired a rapid bunch of magic bolts into the griffin while he was still airborne then Rage and I both turned to the catapult and destroyed it. We turned our heads to the throne and saw Razorbeak who was looking at us in fear. You get the family I'll go for Razorbeak, I said as I holstered my revolver. And how will we get through that before he gets away? Rage asked gesturing to the griffins blocking our path. Leave that to me, I said as I pulled out my shield and held it in a defensive position. I charged into the griffin horde like an angry bull Rage saw my plan and ran after me slicing anyone who got in his way or tried to get me in my back. I looked at Razorbeak to see he was shouting orders to stop us. Two large griffins stood in my path both of them had large hammers and in perfect sync they swung at my shield. But, I was an immovable object combined with an unstoppable force to these two. I smashed my way past them like a locomotive and once I reached the stairs I placed the shield on my back and unsheathed whispering wind. Razorbeak was about to fly away but I grabbed him by his face and we went through the large backseat of the throne. We landed on the ground behind the throne and Razorbeak's face was filled with terror at the sight of me. I held the point of my blade at his throat and squeezed his head a little getting him to grunt in pain. Here's what will happen you're going to tell your troops to stand down and surrender otherwise your blood will be added to my blade am I clear blink twice for yes three for no, I said. Razorbeak blinked twice so I pulled him up and placed some shackles I summoned on his wrists before I threw him through the broken backrest before I flew up on the throne. I saw Rage had freed the royal family the mother bowed to us in thanks while the boys hugged us. They then said they wanted to be just like us when they grew up which both me and Rage found cute. I grabbed Razorbeak and pulled him to his feet he then ordered his troops to stand down. Rage and I then escorted the royal family and Razorbeak to Canterlot. Razorbeak informed the remaining troops of the surrender before I set him on his knees in front of Donclaw. Donclaw was overjoyed to have his family back. Ashblade, Burning Rage I can't thank you both enough for saving my family. Songs shall be sung of your greatness throughout the ages. We'll even have statues of you both made of solid gold, Donclaw said. Geez you keep complimenting us we'll probably get big headed, I said. Well keep complimenting me if you must, Rage said as I gave him a playful shove. Razorbeak looked away from us while we were talking before he spotted Gilda. Gilda help your old man out grab the keys and unlock these cuffs, Razorbeak said inching closer to Gilda. No, Gilda replied with a scowl. What don't you say no to your father bitch, Razorbeak said before Rainbow punched Razorbeak across his face. No one calls Gilda a bitch asshole, Rainbow yelled. Fuck off you useless cur, Razorbeak shouted back. I couldn't stand it anymore I grabbed Razorbeak by the throat and lifted him into the air and brought him down on the balcony wall. The impact was hard enough to shatter the rock beneath him. Give me one damn good excuse why I shouldn't tear your wings off with my bare hands and toss you over the edge of Canterlot, I said getting into his face. The look of fear was present on his face he was stuttering to get the words out of his mouth. I felt a hand on my shoulder and looked to see it was Rage. I let go of Razor Beak and some of Donclaw's guards took him away. I took a few deep breaths before I looked at Rage and the occupants of the balcony. Sorry about that had to let off some steam, I said. It's alright dude but I think I'm the one that's keeping you from lousing your cool, Rage said with a laugh. I removed my helmet before I spoke to Donclaw. What will happen to Razorbeak and his followers? I asked. I will give his followers a once-in-a-lifetime second chance but Razorbeak will have to face a punishment, Donclaw said. Understandable I wish you a safe journey and future, I said as I shook his talon. I wish you a happy life until we meet again, Donclaw said. I said my goodbyes to the family before Rage left to escort them to the princesses and inform them of the departure. I looked at Gilda and Rainbow who seemed to be feeling better. You guys feeling alright? I asked. Much Gilda said. I gotta admit punching Razorbeak in the beak felt so damn awesome, Rainbow said. I'll bet Gilda said as they caught each other's hands. You guys know where the rest of the girls are along with everyone else. I asked. Yeah I think TWI and the others are in the infirmary helping the injured while Shining and Spitfire are helping out the guards rounding up the remaining rebel griffins Spike and our cold friends are also helping them out and as for those immortals they stayed with the princesses in Discord, Rainbow said. Well I'm gonna go see if I can help them out, I said as I walked into the corridors. I can't believe you took all those griffins head on like that it was crazy you must be an alicorn, Gilda said. I wouldn't go that far I just did what I always did, I said. Well you certainly have something in there, Rainbow said. Probably luck, I said simply as we reached the infirmary.
We walked inside and I saw the rest of the girls helping out with the wounded. I walked past a few beds and wished the occupants a swift recovery until I walked over to Pinky. Did I keep my promise Pinky? I said getting her attention. Pinky turned around and gave me a hug not a bone crushing hug a normal hug soon the others walked over and were glad to see me still in one piece. After everything you've been through I'm surprised you're not dead you and Rage have a seriously hard time dying don't you, Applejack said. Either that or our opponents aren't skilled enough to kill us, I said. Are you hurt Ash? Fluttershy asked. I'm fine Rage is alright too the rebels beaten and the Griffin royal family rescued, I said. Thank goodness, Rarity said with a sigh. Anyway shall we go see the princesses? I asked. Yes everything seems to be okay here we'll head over right now, Twilight said. I walked into the throne room along with the others and I was imminently assaulted by an alicorn of the moon by wrapping me into a death hug. Ah Luna, grip too tight, I said as her grip increased on my spine. Luna saw my predicament and dropped me on the ground letting air back into my lungs. Auntie if the griffins didn't kill Ash then you certainly would have if you kept squeezing him like that, Cadence said. Oh Ash I'm so sorry, Luna said as she kneeled down to help me up. No problem you were worried I can understand that, I said as I stood and took off my helmet. You both did very well Ash and Rage, Celestia said. It just goes to show you can't kill us that easily, Rage said. Just then the doors opened to see Shining, Spitfire, Fleetfoot, Spike, Swift Spear, Holy Light, Storm Cloud, Nocturnal Shadow and the Stallions walk in. Ash, Rage you're both alive, Shining said. Well I think he promised we'd still be alive after this mess right, I said as I fist bumped him. Ash how did you get this armor to do all that stuff before, Twilight said gesturing to armor Swift was wearing. I'm calling it immortal armor because its appearance makes it look like an alicorn, I said. Fitting, Chrysalis said. So how does it work, Shining asked. Shadow can I borrow your helmet please, I asked. Shadow nodded before she handed me her helmet I removed the horn and pulled out a blue crystal from the Empire. As soon as I saw these crystals I knew I could do great things with them I placed two of three crystals into the armor depending on what species it will wear it. I placed the magic crystals in the horns of the armor at red crystals in the gauntlets. Finally I placed the green ones in the wings making their opponents believe they are actually alicorns, I said as I placed the crystal back inside the horn and screwed the horn back on. That is amazing, Twilight said. And a real pain in the ass to put together, I said. But what about these things, Rainbow asked gesturing to the rifle. They're the same as this only they can shoot further, I said as I pulled out my revolver. But how was that able to fire magic, Twilight asked. I removed the cylinder inside the gun and showed Twilight the blue crystals inside. I made cylinder removable for all the weapons for quick ammo change from regular ammo to stun and destructive, I said as I showed Twilight another three of cylinders the main ammo cylinder wasn't colored like the others. The green one was for stun ammo and finally the destructive bullets were blue. That's quite something Ash but what about the spring razor, Celestia asked. Oh, I found blueprints for them in my library so I figured I'd put them to good use, I said. Well that's quite something Ash and I believe I have an idea for you and your immortals, Celestia said as she walked over to us. Your immortals shall become your own personal squad. What, I said. Since your troops are quite a team and are capable of handling the most serious of situations. Whenever I get a message from one of the neighboring kingdoms of distress you and your immortals will answer it. Which means your troops will be moving to Ponyville I can have a small set of barracks set up in the backyard of your home. Also Rage will be assigned to your group as well but will remain here in Canterlot so he can hand you the orders, Celestia said. The request took me by surprise but it took Rage and my new troops by storm they were so excited on what was going to happen. Guess you're coming home with me you lot, I said to the troops. Looking forward to it Ash, Holy Light said as he held out his hand for a high five. I high five before I turned to the immortals. All right you lot grab your gear and let's get a move on train leaves soon so I expect you to be ready, I said. Right the four said in sync before they left. Then my friends and I left the room to go pack our things leaving the princesses discord and shining alone. So Luna where exactly were you last night? Celestia asked. I was out stargazing with Ash, Luna said. What about when you went to bed, Celestia said. We returned to our bedrooms, Luna lied. So you don't know anything about this, Chrysalis said as she showed Luna the photo of her and Ash sleeping with their wings wrapped around each other. Okay fine I asked Ash if we could sleep there last night but when it got cold we wrapped our wings around each other and Ash sang the lullaby mother sang for us, Luna admitted. Our old lullaby Ash sang at Discord said in surprise. Yes and while he sang he scratched behind my ears and it was so amazing I was asleep in seconds, Luna sighed as she remembered the feeling. How can being scratched behind the ears feel nice? Cadence asked. Why don't you see for yourself, Luna said gesturing for Shining to try. Shining walked over to Cadence and scratched behind her ear. How there was more pain than pleasure Auntie Luna, Cadence said as she flinched away from the hand. That's weird try with me Shining armor, Luna said. Shining walked over to Luna and scratched behind her ear only getting the same results. I don't understand when Ash did it, it was much better than that, Luna said. Maybe it's a skill only humans have, Celestia suggested. Maybe, Luna said. Well next time I see Ash I ask if what Luna said is true I think I'll enjoy it, Cadence said. What, Luna and Shining said in sync. You stay away from him Cadence you already have a husband, Luna said in a protective way. Relax you two I wouldn't leave Shining for anything or any pony he's too cute for me to leave also is that a hint of love I detect in your words Auntie Luna, Cadence said with a smirk causing Luna to clamp a hand over her mouth. Oh by Celestia's enormous flanks did you and Ash kiss? Cadence asked. Hey my flanks are not that big even if they were I'm proud of it because it makes me sexier than you Cadence, Celestia scowled. In your dreams, Cadence said. Actually she doesn't dream about stuff like that Dreamcatcher pointed out. Anyway did you kiss Ash? Cadence asked when she turned to Luna to find she wasn't there anymore. Dang it she got away, Cadence said with a pout. Author's Notes. A demonstration of how Ash fights. Chapter 20 All Hail Twilight and Rebirth of the Assassin's Brotherhood. It's been two weeks since the rebel griffins attacked Canterlot and after the incident both Rage and my face were in the papers the next morning. 
I was swarmed with ponies for the entire day all of them calling me a hero I tried to avoid the crowds. I also used my disguise ring to get around town until it stopped. Meanwhile Fancy Pants recovered and returned to Canterlot with Fleur along with some guards provided by Celestia. The Immortals barracks had been made behind my home it was a simple building. It had with two bathrooms, girl and boy bedrooms, lounge room and dining room also a kitchen. The crown was paying them still and they had the freedom of making their own meals but I invited them to come dine with me they accepted but only twice a week. In the present I went to bed early at 4 p.m. and fell asleep but that is when I opened my eyes and was in Faust's library. I stood up and looked around to look for Faust I took a single step but was tackled to the legendary alicorn. Oh my god oh my god I can't believe it finally my little Lulu has found love Faust said as she picked me up and swung me around. Faust I can't breathe, I said in the alicorn's grip. I managed to pry her fingers open but she was still spanning around and I was flung into a pile of books causing them to topple on top of me. I pushed the books off of me and gave an annoyed look at Faust as I rested my chin on the palm of my hand. Sorry Ash Faust apologized. Question Faust how do you know I was in love with Luna, I asked as I stood up and dusted myself off. I was watching over them before you went stargazing and made that constellation and sang my lullaby to her thanks by the way for doing that. Also I heard you say it before you fell asleep, Faust said. Geez if things weren't creepy enough in life, I said sarcastically. Hey I stopped as soon as you were both out, Faust said. Yeah alright but Faust listen I have a bit of a problem and I need your help, I said. What's the problem? Faust asked. I found a piece of Eden, I said causing Faust to freeze. It was hidden in the Hydra's tonsils below the Wonderbolt Academy and no one knows of it, I said causing Faust to relax a bit. Well done Ash I need you to hold on to it until the nights and I decide what to do with it, Faust said. Yeah there's also something I need to ask who's Desmond, I asked. I'm not sure but I think one of the knights mentioned him once, Faust said. I see anyway that's my news is there something you wish to discuss with me? I asked. Yes you know that journal you gave to Celestia, Faust said. It wasn't a bad idea was it? I asked with worry. No in fact I needed you to give it to her anyway. There's an unfinished spell on the last page of the book that Twilight Sparkle must finish, Faust said. Okay I'll wait did you say Twilight must finish it? I asked. Yes it's an important one I made a list of instructions for Celestia to follow once you wake up I need you to mail it to her, Faust said as she handed me a scroll. I can do that but if I may ask what's so special about that spell anyway what's it designed to do? I asked. Faust just smiled before she spoke. I slowly woke up to see the scroll of instructions in my hand and it was just about sunset. I immediately got out of bed and wrote a quick letter to the princess. The letter was to explain what the other scroll attached to the one was instructions from Faust for Celestia to follow. As I wrote I could not believe what the spell was supposed to do and why Faust wanted this. But, I just keep on writing and when I was satisfied with my letter I sent it imminently. I honestly wish I could have been there when they saw the letter. Canterlot Castle Dining Room Celestia was in the dining room with Luna, Dreamcatcher, Chrysalis, Shining, Cadence, Rage and Aris. Discord said he was going to be gone for a few days, for some strange reason. Celestia was about to dive into the double layer cake before her before a scroll appeared in front of her. Celestia wasn't exactly happy being interrupted when she was about to have her dessert but she picked up the scroll and looked at the scroll. The scroll had a grey ribbon on it and a silver wax seal with Ash's mark on it. It's from Ash, Celestia said. Who is it poetry for Luna perhaps, Aris suggested. If it was I believe the letter would be in my grasp instead of Celestia's, Luna said with an annoyed look. Luna's right ash mark the scroll is important with my name on it Celestia said as she broke the seal. Celestia unrolled the parchment and another scroll fell out and landed on the table. Celestia looked at the scroll on the table before she focused on the scroll Ash wrote. As she read the letter her eyes got bigger and bigger in shock and tears started to spill from her eyes. Once she finished she dropped the scroll and looked at the other scroll on the table. Celestia are you all right? Chrysalis asked with worry. We 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 got a letter from mom, Celestia said crying tears of joy. The room was silent no one said a thing until Rage spoke up. Well what are you waiting for open the damn scroll and read it. After all you haven't heard from her in how long and now you get a letter from her, Rage said. Rage is right open the letter Tia and tell us what mother wants. Luna yelled. Celestia nodded before she unrolled the ancient parchment and read it out loud. My dearest children. I know how all of you must be feeling right now and I want to apologize to you all without saying goodbye. But, if I didn't then you wouldn't let me leave so I had no choice and it was like some pony drove a knife into my heart when I left. But, I had to try and stop Heartless at least contain him just know I miss you all terribly and wish I could hold you in my arms once more. I think of you all every day and if it weren't for the window I created to see you all and how you were doing I probably have gone crazy about now. I know you wish this letter could go on but I wrote to you for a reason Celestia your student is quite an impressive mind and I need your help with something. Star's World's journal has an unfinished spell inside of it that Twilight must finish. This will be her final test as your student also a list of instructions for you to follow below. There will also be an explanation for what the spell will do. Your mother forever always. Faust. When Celestia finished reading she, Dreamcatcher, Chrysalis and Luna were all in tears at the small letter from their mother. Discord's gonna be sorry he wasn't here, Shining said. What are the instructions for Twilight? Cadence asked. Hemo yes, Celestia said before she continued to read. I woke up to the sound of pitter patter of rain on the dome window above me I looked up to see the clouds were in some check pattern. I just ignored it and thought Rainbow was trying out something different with the sky. I was about to fall asleep again because I enjoyed sleeping and when it was raining but my rest was soon interrupted by the knock at the door. Ash Twilight Sparkle is here to see you, Silver Tray said. Tell her I'm sleeping and if she wants to talk she'll have to come back later, I said. There was a bit of silence before Silver's voice returned. I'm afraid she's insisting, Silver said. Tell her I said tough luck cause I'm not getting up, I said rolling over in my bed. The room was silent and I was settling back into sleep. I could feel myself begin to float away into sleep but then gravity kicked in and I fell onto the floor hard. 
Ow, I groaned as I opened my eyes and saw I was my bedroom floor. I looked around and I saw Twilight and Spike were in my room. Twilight's horn had an aura around it before it disappeared, telling me she used magic to get me out of bed. Are you up now? Twilight asked. I swear, Twilight, what you have to say had better be worth waking me up from my sleep in, I growled. Look, I need your help, something is wrong, Twilight said. Explain it to me, please, I said as I stood and rubbed my head. There's no time we need to go now, Twilight said. Well, I ain't going anywhere without getting ready and breakfast, I said, walking to my bathroom. There's no time, Twilight said. Twilight is the world falling apart, I asked. No, Twilight answered. Are zombies trying to eat any pony, I asked. No, Twilight said. Are demons attacking, I asked. No, Twilight said. Is Discord spreading chaos, I asked. Not that I know of, Twilight said. Then whatever it is can wait until I get ready, I said. Boo, but fine, Twilight sighed in defeat. Silver, can you make me a breakfast to go please? I asked before I looked at Spike to see him holding his stomach. Also can you bring some gems for Spike looks like he missed breakfast as well. I asked. Certainly Ash, Silver replied. After I got changed I walked through Ponyville with Twilight and Spike to Fluttershy's cottage while I ate a blueberry muffin that Silver made. I still don't know what you had to wake me up I love sleeping in the rain, Spike said as he finished his bag of gems. I hear you there Spike, I said as I finished my muffin. It's not about the weather you two rarity had Rainbow Dash's cutie mark and said this was Rainbow Dash's cottage Twilight said as we walked up to the door of said cottage. Something strange is going on, Twilight said as she knocked on the door. The door opened and Rainbow's head poked out. Hey guys, Rainbow said in a tired tone when she saw us. Rainbow Dash why is Rarity doing your job? Twilight asked all of a sudden a loud bang came from inside and Rainbow disappeared behind the door. And what an equestria is going on in here? Twilight asked but when she opened the door all the animals were running wild. What in the name of Pony, I said shocked at the scene before me. Okay rewind this for me what the heck is going on? I asked as we walked through the door of Twilight's library and I saw, Mac Caramel, Comet, Thunderlane, Pierce, Gilda and Trixie looking at us. Twilight most of the girls had their cutie marks switched around, Pierce said. They also don't remember us dating them, Caramel said. Dash doesn't even remember I moved in with her and Scootaloo, Gilda said. Is Discord causing trouble again? Thunderlane asked. What's going on? Why is this happening? Spike asked. Last night when you were taking one of your 7-hour bubble baths I got a special delivery from the princess, Twilight said as she showed a Star Swirls journal and explained what happened and showed me the letter. Dear Twilight Sparkle. The spell contained on the last page of this book is Star's World the Bearded Secret Unfinished Masterpiece. He was never able to get it right and thus abandoned it. My mother believes you're the only pony that can understand and rewrite it and I agree. Princess Celestia. I cast the spell to see what it was but nothing happened but now I know something did happen the spell has changed the elements of harmony. That must be why their cutie marks are all wrong I was just so eager to please Celestia's mother I wasn't thinking, Twilight said while looking at the different colored elements of harmony. So just use the counter spell to switch them back, Spike said. There is no counter spell, Twilight said looking through the book. Why don't you use that memory spell you used to fix every pony when Discord was here, Spike suggested. Spike it's not their memories it's like their personalities have been taken out and placed into a different body, I said. Zakora's cure for the cutie pox, Spike suggested. That won't work either, Twilight said as she began to walk up the stairs to her bedroom. Well maybe it won't be so bad maybe our friends will grow to like their new lives. And you guys get to fall in love with them all over again and Gilda you could just ask to move in again, Spike said but the stallions and Gilda gave Spike a nasty glare. No Spike they're not who they're meant to be anymore their destinies are now changed and it's all my fault, Twilight said as she walked upstairs to her room. I gestured for Spike to follow me up and told the others to stay behind and let us handle it we walked upstairs and when we entered I heard Twilight singing. Oh Spike Ash what have I done, Twilight cried as she looked out her window. Ah oh, come on TWI you'll figure out a way to fix this these are your friends, Spike said placing a claw on her shoulder. Spike's right your friends would want you to try and fix this instead of give up, I said. You're both right they mean more to me than anything, Twilight said as she walked over to a fireplace and looked at a picture of all of us together. My friends, Twilight said as she began glow brightly. Twilight are you alright, Spike asked shielding his eyes from the growing light. I got it I know what to do, Twilight said. You do, Spike and I said in sync. I may not be able to remind them of who they are but I can show them what they mean to each other. They'll find the part of themselves that's been lost so they can help the friend they care about so much, Twilight said as she walked downstairs and packed the elements into a case and handed it to Spike. Wow TWI that was so sappy it just might work, I said. Come on, Twilight said in a confident tone before she ran out the door with us not too far behind. We ran through Ponyville and saw Fluttershy handing some bits to the balloon pony while she had a large suitcase next to her. Fluttershy wait, Twilight called. Oh hey everypony, Fluttershy said in a depressed tone when she saw us. Where are you going? Twilight asked. I'm moving back to Cloudsdale I don't know what's wrong but I can't seem to make any pony laugh Fluttershy said pulling out a whoopee cushion and making the farting noise. I could see Big Mac was heartbroken but I placed a hand on his shoulder before I spoke up. Well before you go Flutters do you think you could help us help Rainbow Dash she's struggling to keep her animals under control, I said. But I don't really know anything about animals, Fluttershy said. But you do know something about Rainbow Dash, Twilight said. I know she's a true friend and I'll do anything I can to help her, Fluttershy said. We then walked over to Rainbow's cottage but before we knocked I heard Rainbow shout for help. Rainbow Dash, Twilight cried out. I pushed the door open with a little force and saw Rainbow was tied up inside a large cooking pot while few of the critters inside did some tribal dance around it. Holy Saint Peter they're gonna turn her into soup, I said. Hurry Twilight can't you use your magic to get her out, Fluttershy asked. No Fluttershy you're the only one who can help Rainbow Dash needs you, Twilight said. Fluttershy gulped and nodded before she walked inside. Ah uh, hello little woodland creatures I know that you're all very upset and feel like giving Rainbow Dash a hard time. 
But we'd all really appreciate it if you calmed down and maybe rested for a bit Fluttershy said and one by one the animals stoked the ruckus and sat in front of Fluttershy calmly. Oh well look here are some nice juicy greens for you to munch on and some crunchy munchy acorns too, Fluttershy said and like that all the animals dived in. Oh, I guess you were all cranky because you were hungry, Angle turned around and bounced onto Fluttershy's hand and let out a few squeaks and the other animals joined in. Oh you're very welcome little friends goodness I can understand them. It feels strange like this is what I'm meant to do this is who I am my destiny, Fluttershy said as she began to glow. Twilight reached into the chest and pulled out the element and placed it on Fluttershy's neck. When she did the element glowed and returned to its normal color and her eyes went wide before they closed and she fell to the floor. WH what happened? Fluttershy asked. Fluttershy look your cutie mark, Twilight said as she pointed at Fluttershy's shoulder showing three pink butterflies on it. It worked it worked oh I'm so happy you're back to normal, Twilight said as she bounced around Fluttershy and Big Mac hugged Fluttershy before kissing her. Now we need your help Fluttershy, Twilight said before she started singing. We walked down the street with the entire town singing along and as we approached the end of the song Twilight lifted the girls up into a group hug. Twilight set them down while they were still hugging they held the hug until Twilight spoke. Wait a second that's it I understand now I know how to fix the spell, Twilight said. Great just try not to mess up the elements again okay TWI, I said. Twilight paid me no heed as she ran to the library with us right behind her Twilight opened the door and picked up Star Swirl's journal and I handed her a quill and ink well. From all of us together, together we're friends with the marks of our destinies made one there is magic without end, Twilight said as she wrote down the words in the book. When she finished she closed the book and smiled but then the element of magic began to glow and created a bright sphere around Twilight. The elements shout out a beam at Twilight and everyone was in a panic. The element of magic then grabbed me and pulled me towards Twilight and when it did we vanished leaving only behind a burn mark and the tiara that held the element of magic fell to the floor. I woke up to see mist all around me I stood up quickly to see the mist reached my legs and there was a starry void around me I was back in the world between worlds but I wasn't alone. Hello where am I what is this place? I heard Twilight's voice. Twilight is that you? I called out into the mist and saw Twilight come into shape. Ash how are you here? Where is here? Twilight asked as she ran over to me her voice filled with panic. It's okay Twilight we're in the world between worlds, I said. The world between worlds, Twilight repeated. I've been here countless times first when the knights unlocked my magic core and when I have my talks with Faust, I said. Wait Faust is here let's go find her and try to get her out Twilight said. You misunderstand TWI Faust sealed herself away to stop Heartless she'll return when she wants to, I said. Can I meet her ask her why she wanted me to finish that spell? Twilight asked. In time perhaps but right now there's something more important, I said gesturing to a shape in the fog. The fog moved closer and took shape of a familiar sun alicorn. Congratulations Twilight I knew you could do it Celestia said as appeared out of the fog. Princess I don't understand what did I do? Twilight asked. You did something today that's never been done before something even a great unicorn like Star's World the Bearded was never able to accomplish. Because he did not understand friendship like you do the lessons in Ponyville have taught you well you've proven that you're ready Twilight Celestia said. Ready, ready for what Twilight asked only for Celestia to start singing. Once we neared the end of the song Celestia spread her wings and rose into the air a bright glow appeared behind Celestia like the sun that shone down on Twilight. I looked at Twilight to see a piece of raw pure magic leave Twilight's chest and circle around her and lifted her up into the air. As Twilight rose into the air I kneeled and Celestia landed when a bright light appeared and when it reached its peak Twilight disappeared leaving me with Celestia. So how'd you get here Celestia? I asked. When Twilight completed the spell I was sent to this place and Ash I know this may be asking a bit much but can you show me where mother is? Celestia asked. As much as I want to Celestia I can't if you see Faust now Heartless will escape she had to make a deal to contain Heartless. She had to stay as far away as possible from you and your siblings and I'm not strong enough to fight Heartless yet so I ask you to be patient a little while longer I said causing Celestia's ears to flatten against her head which made me feel guilty. Have faith Celestia I'm working on a plan to let Faust out and keep Heartless caged until I'm strong enough, I said scratching behind her ears earning a smile from the mare as she pressed her head against my hand. Thank you Ash I needed those words and Luna was right when it came to scratching behind the ears, Celestia said with a wink. It wasn't anything special but I believe you should be going and explain things to Twilight before she freaks out, I said. Yes I shouldn't think again Ash, Celestia said as she disappeared. You know you could have said hi instead of asking me to lie to the poor mare I hate lying to others, I said. I'm sorry Ash it's just I want to see all of my children at the same time so they don't think I pick favorites Faust said as she walked out of the fog behind me and walked up to me. Spending all your time here must suck I know I'd go bat crazy if I saw something in front of me but could never touch it, I said. I may have to stay in this place for eternity but I wish I could get my children to come here like you can instead of like that then I wouldn't mind where I am Faust said. Well I meant what I said, I said. Sorry, Faust asked. When I said I'd find a way to get you out but keep heartless contained until I was ready I meant it, I said. I'm certain you did but if it were only possible Faust said. Never give up Faust I promise you I'll figure something out, I said as I placed a hand on her shoulder before I took a few steps forward. Don't make a girl a promise if you know you can't keep it Faust said. If there's one thing I do Faust it's I keep my promises, I said as I disappeared. I appeared above Ponyville and it was nighttime saw all of my friends and Celestia outside the Golden Oaks library bowing towards Twilight. I also saw on Twilight's back a pair of wings with lavender feathers that matched her fur. She was also a few inches taller and had an hourglass figure along with a bigger bust I flew down towards the group and landed behind Twilight. How does it feel Princess Twilight? I asked as kneeled towards Twilight. You knew about this, Twilight asked gesturing to herself. Thus someone had to tell Celestia to give the book to you remember after the incident at my house a while back remember that package I had before we returned to the hospital, I said. That was the journal, Twilight said. Yes, I said. But what do I do now is there a book about being a princess I should read, Twilight asked. There will be time for all of that later, Celestia said with a small giggle. 
And if you can't find one I'm sure Faust has one after all she's got every single damn book in her library, I said. Twilight just gave me a sheepish grin. My friends and I were up in Canterlot inside the same room the wedding took place in. I was standing next to Luna wearing my nighting tunic and cape. The girls wore their own special clothes rarity designed along with all the guys Soren included. He came over this morning and was shocked senseless when he saw Twilight's wings. Rage also wore clothes similar to mine but were red and black and we all stood on the altar while Celestia gave her speech. We are gathered here today in celebration of a momentous occasion my faithful student Twilight Sparkle has done many things since she lived in Ponyville. She even helped reunite me with my sister Princess Luna, Celestia said looking at Luna before she looked back at the crowds beside the red carpet that lead to the altar. But today Twilight Sparkle did something extraordinary she created new magic proving without a doubt she is ready to be crowned Equestria's newest princess. Phillies and Genlicolts may I present for the very first time Princess Twilight Sparkle, as Celestia finished the doors that lead outside open to reveal Twilight. She wore a magenta, gold and white dress that Rarity designed with her wings outstretched for authority. She was followed by four identical mares with white manes and blonde manes and tails. They also wore red dresses with white moons on it and carrying a lavender banner with Twilight's cutie mark on it. The mares were also followed by four unicorn solar guards and they all were singing as well. When Twilight reached the altar Spike handed Celestia a golden crown with the element of magic in it. Twilight then turned around and kneeled so Celestia could place the crown on Twilight's head. When she did Twilight stood and looked at the girls then me, before she looked at the crowd and the element gave of a pulse of light. The crowd cheered for Twilight as she walked out onto the balcony with the princesses the others and I and waved to the enormous crowd below. Say something princess, Celestia whispered to Twilight. Oh um a little while ago my teacher and mentor princess Celestia sent me to live in Ponyville. She sent me to study friendship which was something I didn't really care much about. But now on a day like today I can honestly say I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the friendships I made with all of you, Twilight said as she turned around to look at us. Each one of you taught me something about friendship and for that I'll always be grateful. Today I consider myself the luckiest pony in Equestria thank you friends thank you every pony, Twilight said as she turned around to face the crowd causing them to cheer before we walked back inside. Twilight I'm so proud of you, Shining said as he hugged Twilight. Are you crying, Twilight asked jokingly. Of course not it's liquid pride totally different thing, Shining said wiping away his tears. You know Shining my mentor Alex once told me it's alright to cry it's just proof you have a heart beating in you, I said. Truer words have never been spoken, Caden said. Best coronation day ever, Pinky said as she appeared out of nowhere and jumped in the air and stayed airborne for five seconds. Twilight was then wrapped in a hug her friends before they went down to the carriage bay and the guards split the crowds to the sides making a pathway. All of a sudden a gold and purple chariot with Twilight's cutie mark came out the doors and down the makeshift road. Twilight sat in it and waved to the crowds and sang along with the others. Later that night. I was sitting in the castle dining room with most of the royal family, my friends and Twilight's parents in rage. I was happily eating some chicken and everything was great except one thing blue blood. I heard Twilight's parents talking to Comet and they were thrilled to find out he was dating her. But when Velvet asked Twilight how good Comet was in bed Comet fainted on the spot causing many to laugh and for Twilight to scream at her mom in embracement. So anything new with you Ash like say a special sumpony. Cadence asked causing me to almost spit out my drink. I thought we moved on from the awkward questions, I teased. Ah oh, come on Ash you must have found sumpony, Rarity said with mischief in her voice. That depends, I said. On what? Cadence asked. If I want to say anything at all, I said as I stuck out my tongue at her causing her to pout but then her eyes lit up. That tongue looks quite flexible perfect for preach kissing, Cadence said causing Luna's cheeks to turn red and for me to stop eating. I'm afraid I lost my appetite if you'll excuse me I'll be off to bed, I said as I stood up and was about to walk to the door. Good riddance monster, Blueblood said earning him a glare from my friends. Hey Blueblood didn't you think it's your ugly mug that is putting me off my appetite, I said causing the room to erupt in laughter from the guards, maids, my friends and the princesses while Blueblood was so mad I thought I saw steam coming out of his ears. I high-fived shining before I walked to the doors I was about to walk out but not before I caught a last glimpse at Luna smiling at me. Midnight. I lay on my bed staring at the ceiling the bad gut-wrenching feeling since Celestia asked us to stay tonight hasn't left me alone at all. I normally was able to sleep but I just couldn't so I got out of bed and decided to take a walk through the castle to try and clear my thoughts. I checked on Dust to see he was happily sleeping on a bird stand so I left him rest. I then got into some clothing and left my room and walked around the corridors. There were a few Luna guards out tonight I gave them a small wave which they returned with either a nod, wave or hello before I passed them. I was walking inside a corridor that had a view of Twilight's old tower. I looked at the tower and remembered Twilight and the rest of the main six plus stallions would be staying there tonight. I was about to turn my gaze away when I saw nine figures running along the grounds towards the tower. I opened a window and jumped out and ran over to them but stayed out of sight. I hid behind a fountain and in the light of Luna's moon, I saw that these nine were dressed the same as the ponies that attacked my home. Templars, I thought to myself. The ponies reached the tower but didn't use the front door instead they went to the side where the balcony was and pulled out some grappling hooks. I snapped my fingers and changed into my assassin robes and was armed with my hidden blades and whispering wind. But I remembered if Twilight and the others saw me they'd want an explanation of why I killed these guys. I then remembered a trick that Corvo once taught me for situations like this. I snapped my fingers and looked down and saw my shadow was leaving the ground. My shadow crawled its way over my body coating me in black. I then pulled out my disguise ring and put it on turning into my unicorn self before I looked back at the Templars. I saw they managed to set their hooks on the balcony and started to climb. I ran out of my hiding spot and over to the doors and opened them and ran up the stairs silently. I reached the room on the top floor and looked through the keyhole and saw the room was a giant library with a massive hourglass in the center of the room. On the next level of the room was where the main six and their cold friends were sleeping, while Trixie, Spike and Gilda slept next to the base of stairs. The main six slept on the same bed as their cold friends while Gilda, Trixie and Spike slept on their own. I slipped inside and stayed in the shadows and moved to the balcony window and waited for the Templars to come. 
Suddenly, I saw nine shadows had finally appeared and climbed over the railing they walked over to the window. The Templars picked the lock and entered the room and looked around the room before they walked further inside. They walked past the hourglass and I followed but made sure to keep myself out of sight. The group walked until they stopped in front of Spike Gilda and Trixie. Sir what do we do with these ones? One of the Templars asked. Our orders were to clear kill everyone in the room, the leader said. But what about the dragon hour blades won't even tickle him, another said. That's why we have dragon's bane you dolt now you three take them out while the rest of you take out the rest I'll take care of the new princess the leader said I recognized dragon's bane was a type of poison specially designed for dragons. While six of the Templars went upstairs the other three made their way over to the Trixie, Spike and Gilda. I decided to make my move and crept up behind the Templars and went for the two closest. I extended my hidden blades and walked in between them and stabbed them in their necks and let them fell to the floor. I turned to the last guard who was about to turn around and investigate what made the noise. But when he did I stabbed him in the heart and laid him down gently before I went upstairs. I saw them reach the top one of them walked over to the bed closest which held Rarity and Thunderlane and pulled out a knife. I grabbed the Templar by his mouth and broke his neck and continued on to the next bed. The bed held Applejack and Caramel and the both looked very peaceful. The Templar drew a knife but I stabbed him in the spine and covered his mouth to stop him from screaming and laid him on the floor. The next held Fluttershy and Mac he raised his knife and brought it down on Fluttershy. But, I grabbed him and pulled him away and broke his neck before he even made a peep. I looked at the bed to see the blade just missed Fluttershy. Fluttershy just turned over in the bed causing me to release the breath I was holding. I then pulled the blade out of the pillow so Fluttershy wouldn't hurt herself during the night. I went over to the last three next was Rainbow Dash and Soren. I walked up calmly and grabbed the Templar's mouth and brought my blade across his neck causing him to gag and die. I saw one of the last Templars was about to go for Pinky who fell out of bed. There was not enough time for me to get to them and stop him so I used my phantom blade and shot a dart at the Templar's neck. I ran at the Templar before he hit the floor and alert his friend. I managed to catch the guy and pulled out the dart in his neck so I left no evidence I was here. I saw the leader draw his sword and was going for twilight but while I watched I forgot about the knife the dead Templar held was still in his grip. The knife fell to the floor letting the metal ring out the Templar spun around saw me. But I placed the guy on the floor but when I looked up the leader tried to stab me with his sword. I dodged to the side and saw the blade was made of some type of stone. I grabbed the pony by his shirt and threw him over the railing only problem he grabbed my arm and I went with him. We landed on the floor and I rolled away from the Templar and stood up and saw he was up as well with his sword in hand. I saw he was a unicorn so I had to be cautious with this guy's magic. We stared at each other for a few seconds before the Templar spoke. Who are you and why do you kill my stallions? The Templar asked. I didn't answer his question and remained silent. Are you here to protect the fake princess? The Templar asked. I still remained silent. It doesn't matter if you speak or not you're still gonna die, the Templar said as he disappeared. He reappeared on my right and slashed at my leg causing me to grunt in pain I heard the Templar snicker at me. I stood up straight and taunted him with index and middle finger for him to come at me before I got in a stance. The Templar scoffed at me before he charged at me but I blocked his attack and twisted his arm causing him to cry a little in pain and drop his sword. I kicked the sword away and pushed the Templar causing him to stumble onto one of his dead comrades. He picked up a knife and drew a sword that was on the corpse and threw the knife at me. I just simply moved my head to the side and watched as the blade flew by. I looked back at the Templar and saw the Templar charge at me ready to cut me in two. I ran at the Templar and rolled underneath the blade and stopped next to the sword I kicked away. The Templar turned around and had his back to the giant hourglass he was ready to spill blood. I looked at the blade next to my foot and stomped on the hilt launching it into the air before I caught it and threw it at the Templar. The sword impaled the Templar right below his horn and pierced the hourglass. His eyes rolled into his skull and blood leaked through the cracks staining the sand in the glass red. Your time has come, I thought smirking at my own pun before I walked over to the Templar corpse. I yanked off his necklace and taped my forehead and then closed his eyes, sleep in peace, I said as I did the motions. I then felt eyes on me I turned around and I saw both Trixie and Spike were awake staring at me in shock. I decided to just play it cool by placing the necklace into my pocket and turning around and walking away. I took a few steps away but Trixie screamed at the top of her lungs causing everyone to wake up but go pale when they saw the corpses in the room. When they went to go check on Trixie they saw me and I looked at the group before I sighed. So much for the leaving calmly I thought. I ran to the balcony and jumped off and turned around to grab a rope and slid down it thankful I was wearing my gloves otherwise I would have rope burn. Once I reached the ground I teleported to the infirmary. Everyone was asleep so I quietly and quickly grabbed a bandage for my leg before I teleported to my room. I took off my disguise ring and the shadow spell and began to wrap the bandage around my leg. Once I finished I then changed into the clothes I wore before and returned my weapons to their places before I heard hooves approaching. Sir Ashblade you must come at once, Sumpony said. I'll be right there, I called once I checked everything was hidden I walked over to the door trying not to limp and opened it to see a night guard. What's the problem? I asked. It's the elements of Harmony Sir and Princess Twilight Sparkle and their friends, the guard said. What's wrong are they all right? I asked. Yes sir but there has been a murder in their room, the guard replied. What do you mean if Twilight and the others are all right then who was murdered? I asked. That's just it sir we don't know who was murdered, the guard said. Have the princesses and rage been notified, I asked. Yes they're on their way, the guard said. Right let's fly there it'll be faster, I said as I spread my wings and took off with the guard next to me. I flew in from the balcony and I saw the girls were there all staring at the mess I made while the guys conferred them. Are you all alright? I asked as I walked over to them. Ash it's them again, Twilight said as she pointed to the lead pony impaled in the hourglass. I saw Rage looking at the pony as well so I walked over to him. I can't believe this happened again only to my friends, I said. Yeah but whoever did this has skill 4 quick clean deaths 4 took a single strike to kill but this guy was pretty beat up, Rage said. I looked at the corpse behind me and saw a vial filled with black liquid in his belt. I reached for the vial and picked it up and studied it closely. I then saw Celestia, Luna, Dreamcatcher, and Chrysalis arrive they saw my friends before Celestia wrapped her wings around the group in a hug. 
I then walked over to the group with the vial in my hand before I addressed Spike. Hey Spike which bed were you sleeping in? I asked. One on the left, Spike said. I nodded to Spike before I uncorked the vial and took a sniff quickly pushing it away and corking it again. What is that ash? Dreamcatcher asked. Dragon's Bane, I said handing it to Dreamcatcher. Twilight griped Spike tightly and the look of fear was frozen on Spike's face while I just walked back over to the hourglass and looked at the pony impaled on it. Get anything from this guy? I asked. Nothing no orders no identity nothing, Rage said. Just then the doors burst open and Shining, Cadence and Twilight's parents ran and Shining's face was ready to spill blood and all the guards moved away from him. Shining looked at me but I just pointed over to Twilight Cadence, Shining and his parents were overjoyed when they saw Twilight. They ran over to her and hugged her and I turned my gaze back onto the lead pony and grabbed the sword that held him to the hourglass. I gave it a yank but it wouldn't budge I gripped it in two hands and after a while I managed to pull it out and let the body fall to the floor. Man I really got you jammed in there huh? I thought before I looked at the blade made of stone, hey Rage look at this blade, I said. Rage did so but looked puzzled. Why do these guys have a sword made of stone? Rage asked. How would I know, I said as I walked over to the group with Rage. Hey Pinky you used to be a rock farmer right? I asked earning a nod from the now flat maned mare. Can you tell me what type of stone this is, I asked handing her the blade. Pinky took the blade and looked at it closely. I'm sorry Ash I've never seen this type of rock before, Pinky said as she handed the sword back to me. May I see it, Celestia asked. I handed the blade to Celestia for her to inspect it when she did her eyes widened in fear. Alicorn stone, Celestia said grimly. What's alicorn stone, I asked. Alicorn stone is a type of rock that was used to kill alicorns it's very rare to find and most have forgotten it exists, Celestia explained. I looked at Twilight and saw she was the one being gripped by her friends and family. So this was an assassination attempt but who stopped it? I asked. I saw who, Spike said causing me to tense up. Really who was it? Cadence asked. I don't know precisely because he well it was a shadow, Spike said. A shadow? Luna asked interested. Yeah but not the one connected to your feet it was like someone had just cut him out of the universe leaving a moving black hole that looked like a pony, Spike said. Can you tell us anything else? Celestia asked. Yeah he had a horn and he took something from that guy's neck, Spike said as he pointed to the lead pony. This guy must know more about these guys than we do, Rage said. So he saved us, Fluttershy suggested. Either that or he didn't want to split the pay with his comrades when he did away with my sister, Shining said. Shining armor, Cadence scowled. I'm just throwing out possibilities if this guy killed these nine then this guy is dangerous, Shining said. Well when that shadow was here he fought that guy that was impaled on the hourglass the guy didn't know who he is so it's obvious they weren't working together. Also that shadow was injured in his right thigh, Spike said. That's something we can use I'll send out guards to look for a unicorn with an injured thigh, Shining said as he stood. Well I think he's a hero, Twilight said. Why do you say that darling? Rarity asked. In front of our beds there is one corpse obviously this shadow was able to stop them from harming us, Rarity suggested. Perhaps but I want to bring this so-called shadow in for questioning if he knows something about these ponies that I don't then I want to find out what it is, Celestia said. Well I believe such investigations will have to wait it's nearly dawn, I said as I stood up. Has that much time passed already, Celestia said as she stood up. It's probably for the best if we have a nice calming breakfast before you all leave, Luna suggested. All my friends nodded in agreement before we left the tower leaving the guards to clean up. No one said a thing at breakfast which was understandable I know I wouldn't want to say anything either. After breakfast I went to my room to pack my luggage and collect dust once I did I heard a knock on the door. I walked over to the door and opened it and saw Luna. Hi Luna what can I do for you, I asked. I just wanted to know how you were feeling after all ponies similar to these ones attacked you home, Luna said. Honestly I'm thankful that shadow showed up when he did I should have expected that there were ponies that didn't approve of Twilight becoming a princess, I said. How do you know that? Luna asked. Alicorn stone sword remember if there is one thing you don't do is you don't carry gear like that unless you plan on killing an alicorn, I said. True but it's still terrifying to think this is happening, Luna said. Don't worry Luna everything will be fine, I said as I hugged her. Thank you Ash just hearing you say that fills me with confidence, Luna said as she looked up at me. Luna if I may ask why are we hiding our feelings from the others don't you think we should tell them? I asked. Yes how about next time we're all together and at the right time we'll tell them, Luna said. Great idea and I should let you know your mother found out about us, I said. She did, Luna yelled in surprise. Yeah and she's happy for us, I said. A smile made its way onto Luna's face that threatened to split her face before she kissed me we held the kiss for a bit before Dusk squawked snapping us out of it. What you jealous, I said teasingly Dusk just rolled his eyes while Luna giggled. Come we must be on our way, Luna said gesturing to the door. I gave her a smile before I grabbed my luggage and gestured for Dust to get on my shoulder which he did before I walked out with Luna. I met the others at the train station and said my goodbyes to Twilight's parents the princesses and Shining and hopped aboard. Surprisingly Rage asked to come along with us to provide additional protection and to get to know my friends better. Once we arrived I stretched out my wings and looked around and saw most of Ponyville came to greet their new princess. After a little ceremony for Twilight the girls returned home but Rage wanted to talk to me and the guys and Spike about something. We walked with Rage until we were outside Ponyville before he addressed me. All right Ash Spill what are you hiding, Rage said. What are you talking about? I asked. It was you who killed those ponies last night you made it pretty convincing but when Spike said the so-called shadow was wounded in the leg. And I saw you hiding the limping I knew it was you also Spike told me the guy had a sword on his back. And if you want proof show us your thigh if it's fine then I'll admit I was wrong and wear a pink tutu around Canterlot for a week, Rage said. I saw all the stallions were surprised by the accusation but looked at me waiting my answer I let out a sigh before I spoke. Okay you caught me I'm the shadow that killed those ponies, I said getting the stallions to gasp. Why didn't you say anything? Spike asked. None of you were supposed to know anything but since I'm discovered I'll tell you then you can tell everyone else, I said. 
I'll hear the story first before I decide to tell anyone, Rage said which the others nodded. Very well but I choose where I tell you okay, I said. Okay then where, Comet asked. Rage can you take them to the Everfree Library I'll meet you there once I grab something to help explain the story, I said. All right but if you run I'll tell, Rage said. I won't run I promise, I said. Rage gave a single nod before he and the others vanished I then teleported to my room and grabbed the Apple of Eden and placed it in a small pouch rarity made for me. I teleported to the Everfree Library and I walked in and saw the others standing around waiting for me. Okay now that we're here let's go in, I said. But we're already in, Soren said gesturing to the room. Not the and I was talking about before I show you stallions and dragon you must pinky promise me you won't reveal what I'm about to show you to anyone. You can reveal what I did once I explain but not where I told you. Cross my heart and hope to fly stick a cupcake in my eye, the stallions and dragon said as they did the gestures. I gave a nod before I kicked the emblem and the door opened causing the group to go slack jawed before I walked down the tunnel with the others right behind me. We walked inside and the boys were dumbstruck by the room. Hey what's that? Spike asked as he went to touch the orb. Don't touch that. I yelled causing Spike to freeze. It's a gateway to Faust's prison for humans I don't know how it will affect dragons and ponies and I really don't want to know, I said while Spike stepped away from the orb. Hey check it out Ash got his own statue, Thunderlane said pointing at my statue. The knights made that but anyway you want to know the story about why I killed those ponies right, I said getting the group to gather around. I told them the story from start to finish even about Altair's, Ezio's and Arno's past. I told them about the Templar Order and the Brotherhood the three civilizations before mine. I even showed them the Apple of Eden which they were awestruck by. So this secret war has made its way to Equestria and those ponies from your home and Canterlot those Templars were just war casualties, Comet said. And now you've been asked to end it here as well, Max said. You pretty much got it, I said. Well I've made my decision, Rage said as he stood up after sitting down while I explained and paused for dramatic effect. I want to join you, Rage finally said. What? I shouted. You said this is a war and I want to help you win it we're brothers now and brothers are supposed to look out for each other, Rage said placing a hand on my shoulder. I'll join too. I looked to see Spike was the one who spoke. Same here, Max said. I'm in, Soren said. Me five, Caramel said. Bring it, Thunderlane said. Count me in, Pierce said. Why not, Comet said. I was shocked by what everyone said before I pushed Rage's hand off. Are you all nuts? I'm not going to drag you all down with me if I'm caught and what about the girls? If I got one of you killed I'd never forgive myself and if you're discovered it could destroy your relationship and I don't want you to become killers, I said. Ash, we've watched the girls save Equestria many times now and we've never been able to do anything except pray. We all want to protect Equestria like them but we never had a way how to but when you explained the story I knew I would be able to do something. Even if it's like this if we can protect Equestria then I don't mind I just don't want to be living in a shadow anymore, Spike said. At those words I remembered when Luna said she was tired of living in her sister's shadow and that led her on her dark path I then turned to the rest of my friends to hear them speak. We can handle our mere friends if we're caught, Soren said. And you'll just need to help us not get ourselves killed, Comet said. And these Templars messed with our mere friends and as if they're that bad I wouldn't mind getting a little blood on my hands, Max said. I couldn't believe what I was hearing my best friends were telling me that they wanted to become assassins to serve Equestria not that I thought it was crazy. I stared at them before I took a breath and sighted. Just wait a minute, I said as I walked to the orb and touched it. Faust I need your help, I called out once I appeared in Faust's library. Hello Ash what do you need? Faust asked as she stood up from her desk. Well you see, I said as I began my tale when I finished Faust's eyes were closed and her face had a neutral expression. I see, Faust said. I'm sorry Faust I don't know what to do, I said as I held my head down. Faust just walked over to a shelf and opened a box and pulled out eight aqua colored crystals and four gold crystals. She then waked over to me lifted my head up and placed the crystals in my hand. Give these to each of your friends and rage then tell them to close their eyes and relax but there will be pain, Faust said. What will these do? I asked. They want to join the brotherhood then it's fine by me, Faust said with a smile. What? I said shocked. Ash you will need help in future like you did back in the tower with these eight they will be a great help to you. These crystals will give them some upgrades in combat but you will need to help them sharpen their skills, Faust said. I bowed my head to Faust inside. Understood Faust, I said. Don't worry Ash with your training and these crystals they'll be fine also you can use the secret room as your HQ. Also tell the ones who can't use magic those gold crystals will serve as a teleporter to get you back to the room, Faust said pointing to the gold crystals. I gave a nod to Faust before I left. I returned to the room and looked at my friends. Well what did Faust say? Rage asked. I walked over to the group and handed each of them an aqua crystal. Okay now what? Spike asked. Close your eyes and relax, I said. They did what I asked and the crystals began to glow but then the group started screaming in pain and their bodies began to glow. It continued for a while until the glow dimmed and the screams stopped. The group were all on their hands and knees before they stood up and opened their eyes and saw they were wearing assassin robes. Rage wore red and black robes with fury and hate on his hips and hidden blades. Spike's robes were green, purple and dark green and had a pair of revolver pistols on chest and a cookery on his hip and hidden blades. Comet also had hidden blades and yellow and purple robes with a pair of knives on his hip. Thunderlane had dark grey and silver robes with hidden blades and a short sword on his hip and some throwing knives crossing his chest. Soren had light blue and purple robes and hidden blades and sword and knife. Pierce had dark blue and silvery blue robes with throwing knives and machete and hidden blades. Caramel had dark yellow and chestnut brown robes with hidden blades and a tomahawk on his hip. Mac had maroon red and hay yellow robes he also had hidden blades and a war hammer on his hip. The group looked themselves over in surprise while I smiled. Welcome to the Brotherhood and remember nothing is true everything is permitted, I said to the group. Chapter 21 The Return and Old Friends Five weeks after Twilight's coronation I have been working hard to train the newest members of the Assassin Brotherhood. The girls have recovered from the incident nicely as well but some pony leaked the information about the assassination attempt to the press and it was all over Equestria. 
But, we worked past it now the main six, the stallions, Trixie, Gilda, Spike and I arrived at the Crystal Empire Station for an important summit. Who your very first princess summit you must be over the moon Twilight, Applejack said as we walked down the street. Oh I am excited but to be honest I'm a little nervous too, Twilight said. You're never excited it's like you want to jump and down and yell yay me. But you also want to curl up in a teeny tiny ball and hide at the same time we've all been there Pinky said ruffling Twilight's mane. I'm there almost every day, Fluttershy whispered. You got no reason to fret TWI everything's gonna be just fine, Applejack said only to be cut off. Twilight, sorry darling but I just realized you're not wearing your crown you haven't forgotten it in Ponyville have you? Rarity asked. It's in my bag, Twilight said looking over at Spike who gave the bag a few pats. I just feel a little self-conscious about wearing it I haven't really gotten accustomed to these yet either, Twilight said as she lifted herself of the ground but fell on her butt. You are a princess now Twilight embrace it I'm telling you if I had a crown like that I would never take it off why I'd sleep in the thing, Rarity said flicking her mane. Yeah that does sound like you Rarity but you forget Twilight's more how shall I say this humble about this, I said. Rarity just gave me a scoff while the others gave out a snicker at my words while I smiled. All of a sudden, I heard a faint whisper come from behind me calling my name. I turned around to see the voice was coming from the crystal heart. I walked over to the heart and the voice got louder as I got closer. When I reached out to touch it images flashed through my head of a large red centaur standing alongside discord then of me fighting the centaur. The centaur was much larger than I and he held Luna in his grip while I was half covered in blood and could barely stand. The images stopped and I was electrocuted in my hand causing me to yell in pain and thrown away from the heart and into a pillar. Ash you all right? Rainbow asked as she rushed over to me. Ah fine I think, just got a shock, I said as I stood. Oh sorry Ash I guess I made the enchantment too strong. I looked at the source of the voice to see it was shining. Well if you wanted a pony to feel plenty of pain leave it the way it is, I said jokingly. Shining why is there a protection charm on the heart? Twilight asked. It's there so another incident like Sombra's doesn't happen again, Shining said. Well it works but right now I believe we have some princesses to meet, I said. We walked to the doors of the palace but I looked at the crystal heart in wonder before Caramel got my attention. We opened the doors to the throne room to see two rows of three crystal pony guards all blowing into trumpets as the doors opened. We walked inside and a guard announced Twilight in my presence and I saw Celestia, Luna, Cadence, Chrysalis, Dreamcatcher and Rage were here. Twilight I haven't seen you since the day after the coronation, Cadence said as she gave Twilight a hug. We all have so much to discuss but it can wait until tomorrow you all look tired from your journey now off to bed all of you, Celestia instructed like any mother. All right mom, I said with a playful smirk causing Celestia's cheeks to turn slightly pink before we turned around where a pair of guards led us to our rooms. I couldn't sleep at all I was indeed tired from the trip but the images from the crystal heart were buzzing around my skull. I got up and got changed before I walked out of my room there were a few unicorn guards out all using their horns for light when they saw me they gave me a salute. I gave them a nod but all of a sudden a bad feeling rise up in my chest. I knew this feeling should never be ignored like when I first met Chrysalis when she was disguised as Cadence. Even when the Templars attacked my friends back at Canterlot, I summoned Whispering Wind and my hidden blades and kept my eyes and ears sharp for anything. My crown she's got my crown. I heard Twilight yell. I sprinted through the hallways to Twilight's room in hopes of finding the thief I came to a corner and I ran into some pony wearing a cloak. We tumbled along the ground before I shook my head to regain my senses and saw the thief. She had yellow fur and a yellow and red mane and tail along with a horn she wore an orange skirt with a pink and yellow stripe on it. She wore a pink top with a yellow, magenta and orange picture in the shape of a sun on it. She also wore a black leather jacket she also carried a satchel and I could see the element of magic in it. A human but how? The pony asked in shock. I don't know who you are but I believe you stole a crown that belongs to my friend now hand it over or else, I said. The thief fired a blast of magic at me and ran but I just backhanded the spell into a wall and ran after her. Twilight teleported in front of the thief but the thief teleported behind Twilight and the cloak the thief wore flew into Twilight. While the thief smiled and ran the first jumped onto a wall and over Twilight while she got the cloak off of her and followed me. The thief was startled when she saw both TWI and I catching up to her. Twilight suddenly, leapt at the thief and they both tumbled into a room. I ran inside and saw Twilight's crown was bouncing on the walls before it flew at a mirror that reminded me of the one in Canterlot when I first arrived. But, instead of breaking the mirror it went into it causing me, Twilight, the newly arrived mares, Griffionis, Stallions and Dragon to gasp while the thief smiled. What did you do with my crown? Twilight asked the thief. Sorry it had to be this way, the thief said as she teleported over to the mirror. Princess, the thief said before she walked into the mirror. You're not getting away that easy, I said as I rushed at the mirror. I heard everyone scream in protest but it was too late as I jumped through the mirror. Okay maybe that wasn't such a good idea, I said when I awoke and rubbed my head I opened my eyes. I checked myself and saw I still had whispering wind and my hidden blades also my wings and I tested my magic to see if everything was in working order. I looked around I was in some sort of cave but the odd thing is the cave looked strongly familiar. I did a quick look around before I looked at the back of the cave and saw something scratched into the wall. I knelt down to get a closer look at what was written. Here rests Razor. I was shocked beyond anything I remember carving those words into the wall myself I looked along the rest of the back of the cave to see other words resembling tombstones. Here rests Copper. Here rests Nikki. Here rests Rose. Here rests City. Here rests Snowheart. Here rests Night Stalker. I couldn't believe what I was seeing I was back on earth in the family's cave I was at a complete loss for words before I regained my senses looked at the graves. Hey guys it's been a long time 13 years huh as you can see I've changed a ton I don't know where to even begin telling you what has happened these last few years. I know you'd all think I was crazy but all I can say is that it's true. I've also met someone mom I know you'd like her she's not what you'd expect but she can control the moon. She's got a kind heart and a loving smile and I couldn't ask for anything more. Dad I think you'd be proud of how far I've come I've also made some interesting friends. Copper I think you'd like Pinky she always has a smile on her face and loves to play. 
Rose, you and Rarity would totally hit it off in your senses of beauty and fashion razor. Your little stunts remind me so much of Rainbow Dash, including your ego. City, both you and Applejack don't have a problem when it comes to getting dirty. And Nikki, your kindness and fluttershies is so alike you two could be related. I guess you want me to tell you my story so I will. I said I told them every single thing since the day I left and when I finished it was sunset. And that's pretty much everything about me and if you need proof I've still got my wings, I said as I fluffed my wings and stood. Listen everyone I'm going to get some dinner I'm starved, I said as I stood up and left the cave I came back with a caribou and ate my meal. The caribou was as delicious as I remember and I ate it with delight before I buried the bones paid my respects and went to sleep. I woke up and said my goodbyes to my family before I left I neared the edge of the forest before a thought hit me. I had to figure out a way to hide my wings and weapons. I made a pocket dimension for my weapons so I'm not seen as a threat then closed my eyes and sent out a pulse to sense if there was any magic nearby. I made sure the pulse was strong enough to check one-fifth of the world for magic so I could pinpoint the thief. I found a faint beacon of magic in a town that was close by that also brought back a few unwanted memories. I extended took a breath before I headed for the town. I walked for an hour before I sat down on the outskirts of the town and placed a spell on my wings to make them invisible. I walked through the trees and I saw the scrapyard I was held in for four years. I dared myself to go in and have a quick look around but I turned for the direction of the town. As I walked along the pathway I didn't see where I was going I ran into someone. Oh sorry I wasn't looking where I was going, I said as I looked who I ran into but to my shock at who I saw. Kabir is that you? I asked as I pulled off my hood. Ash my friend it's so good to see you, Kabir said as he wrapped me in a bear hug and lifted me off the ground. You too long time no see, I said. Yes three years is a long time where have you been? Kabir asked. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, I said. Believe me Ash I've heard plenty of crazy things in my life, Kabir said. Well you never heard my story, I said. True but come let's go home I'm sure Rosa and Akachi would love to see you again. How is Akachi if I remember correctly he should be five by now, I said. You memory is still as sharp as always, Kabir said as we walked down the path and into town. So tell me why are you here? Kabir asked. Oh well I got lost while walking and ended up here but what about you? I asked. I'm here to remember an old friend who died there but now is a time for smiles now that you're here, Kabir said. Well I was actually about to take care of something, I said. Come now Ash I'm sure whatever it is can wait, Kabir insisted. I raised a finger to my chin and thought about my answer. Well I guess a quick visit wouldn't hurt, I said. Fantastic tonight we dine on my beloved Rose's cooking and you can tell us your story of what happened to you, Kabir said as he wrapped his arm around me and led me down the path. Rosa we have company tonight. Kabir called when we walked through the front door of Jabir's home the house was homely and medium size perfect for a small family. Oh and who is our special guest this time Kabir? I heard Rosa call from another room. I'll let you see for yourself, Kabir said. Rosa walked out of a room and when she saw me she looked surprised to see me then overjoyed she walked over to me and wrapped me in a hug. Ash it is so good to see you where have you been and where did you get that scar on your eye? Rosa asked as she placed a hand over my left eye. Up and about in the rest you wouldn't believe, I said as I hugged her. Please come sit down and tell us, Rosa said as she gestured to the couch. It's kinda crazy story but ouch. I cried as I felt something pull on my wing. Pretty feather. I turned around to see a small boy holding one of my feathers. Akachi where did you get that and why did you hurt Ash? Rosa scowled. Akachi just pointed at me and Rosa and Habir looked at me in confusion so I just sighed and removed the spell on my wings causing Habir and Rosa to stare at me in shock. I'll explain, I said. We sat on the couch Rosa held Akachi on her lap and sat next to Habir on the couch opposite me while sat on a chair and told them about Equestria and my new purpose. You were right Ash I wouldn't believe it if you told me but because of your wings I now have proof, Habir said. Does this make you some kind of angel now Ash? Rosa asked. No I don't think so I'm still the same guy you met in the cell and when we last saw each other only I now have wings and use magic and fight demons, I said. Can you do some magic please, Akachi asked. Okay one trick and that's all what do you want to see? I asked. Something amazing, Akachi exclaimed. I gave him a smile and looked as a vase that sat on a table that had flowers in it and reached out with my magic and made the water inside the vase come out. I made the water do a few loops and tricks and also made the water change its shape into different objects. Once I was done I returned the water to the vase and my audience clapped. Wow that was neat can you teach me how to do that? Akachi asked. Sorry but great wizards never reveal their secrets, I said making him groan in disappointment. Akachi when I had my wings hidden how'd you see them? I asked. Well when I went to tug on your clothes I actually pulled on the feathers when I did the feather appeared in my hand you aren't mad at me are you? Akachi asked. No it was an accident, I said causing him to cheer up. Ash it's late and we would be most honored if you would stay tonight, Kabir said. Oh I don't know you guys I still have something to do, I said. I understand it's just Rebecca and Eli are coming to visit tomorrow and I was wondering if you would like to stay till then, Kabir said. Well if I can reconnect with a few friends then I guess why not, I said. I'll go get dinner ready I hope you don't mind Stu, Rosa said. I'd love to Rosa would you like some help, I asked as I stood up. Your help would be most welcome and maybe you can tell me if you found someone special in your life, Rosa said with a cheeky smile. I actually have Rosa it's Luna, I said as I walked over to her. The princess of the moon you mentioned you lucky dog you, Rosa said with a playful shove. Well since I was raised by wolves dating a moon goddess is every wolf's dream, I said causing us to laugh. I woke up the next morning on the couch and it was almost 11 a.m. I greeted Rosa and Habir before I had a shower and had breakfast. They told me Akachi had gone to school while I was asleep. Knock knock knock. Oh that must be them, Rosa said. I kept my back to the door and didn't hide my wings I pulled the hood over my head and stayed perfectly still. The door opened and Rosa greeted Eli and Rebecca the three walked in and when Rebecca and Eli saw me they looked at me in confusion before Rebecca spoke up. Rosa where did you find such a detailed statue it looks so lifelike, Rebecca said. Maybe it's because I am a living thing Rebecca, I said as I extended my wings and turned around careful not to bump into anything. 
Eli and Rebecca were shocked beyond belief and stumbled away from me in shock. Relax you two it's just me, I said as I pulled off my hood. Ashes is that you? Eli asked. Is there anyone as handsome as me? I asked. Yeah me, Kabir said as he came downstairs. Ash what happened why do you have wings? How did you get wings? Are you an angel or demon now or both? Rebecca asked in shock. It's a long story, I said. Well we came to talk now please tell us what happened. Eli asked. I explained my story to the two new arrivals and when I finished Kabir and Rosa told me how their life changed after we escaped and made a grand life for themselves. Rebecca told me she is now a secretary for a fashion model and Eli became a member of a band. I was happy for all of them but then happiness ended on a question. Sash why didn't you go to Alex's funeral? Eli asked earning him a smack on his head from Rebecca. I didn't know when or where it was gonna be but I would have come if I could. Also if I may ask what happened to that man whose arm I chopped off. I asked. Well the man's name is Jonathan Viper after he escaped he went into hiding so no one knows where he is all we know is that he hasn't faced justice, Rosa said. I clenched my hands tightly threading to break the skin with my fingers before I sighed just then Akachi walked in. Hi everyone get this a new girl by the name of Twilight Sparkle challenged Sunset Shimmer for the fall formal crown, Akachi said. Did you say Twilight Sparkle? I asked as I stood up. Do you know her? Akachi asked. Yes and it's important that I talk to her do you know where she is? I asked. No but she'll be at the school tonight for the fall formal I'm going so would you like to come? Akachi asked. Sure just let me know when we need to go, I said. So Twilight and her friends were cleaning up the mess in the gym and then you all started to pitch in and help right. I asked Akachi as we all walked to the school I had my wings hidden so I wouldn't draw a crowd. Yep she has this thing where everybody around her wants to help, Akachi said. That's the Twilight I know, I said. Come on we're already late, Akachi said trying to hurry us up. Relax son the world won't end if we're late, Kabir said. All of a sudden, a giant beam of green light shot into the sky. That came from the school, Rosa said. Let's go, I said before I ran in the direction of the light. We arrived at the spot and I saw the main six only in their human forms and a demon standing in a damaged entrance. Also in the entrance was a large amount of students who all acted like a bunch of zombies and two other but smaller demons. The taller demon was red and wore a red, yellow, and black dress and yellow and red mane and tail. Her eyes were black where the whites were and the only color was a ring of aqua in it but what caught my eye was the element of magic was on her head. You guys stay out of sight, I addressed our group. What are you going to do? Rose asked. What I was asked to do, I said before I climbed up a water pipe that lead to the roof. I reached the roof and ran across it without a making a sound until I was above the entrance. Spoiler alert I was bluffing when I said I was going to destroy the portal I don't want to rule this pathetic little high school. I want Equestria and with my own little teenage army behind me I'm going to get it the tall demon said gesturing to the students. No you're not, a girl said who I could only assume was Twilight. Oh please and what exactly do you think you can do to stop me I have magic and you have nothing, the demon said. She has us, a girl with rainbow hair said who I could assume was Rainbow Dash. The rest of the girls gathered around Twilight while the demon laughed. Gee the gang really is all back together again, the demon said wiping away a tear of laughter. Now step aside Twilight has interfered with my plans one too many times already she needs to die, the demon said as she summoned a sphere of magic. Not if I have any say in it, I said as I jumped off the roof and punched the demon in the face we fell to the ground but I rolled along it till I came to a stop beside Twilight and stood up. I can't leave you alone in my world for three days can I, I said looking at Twilight. Ash where have you been? Twilight asked. Portal dumped me in my old cave but where's the portal back? I asked. Over there it's that statue, Twilight pointing at an altar with a statue of a rearing horse on it. Got it, I said as I snapped my fingers and my weapons and wings appeared. Wait you can use magic too, a girl with a cowboy hat said presumably Applejack. Just then the demon got up and gave me a glare but the glare turned into surprise when she saw me. You how can you use magic here? The demon in surprise. Simple this is the world I was born and raised in so being a full-blooded human that visited Equestria has some perks. But, you demons are all the same power-hungry monsters that will do anything to get what you want, I said as I drew whispering wind and got in a battle stance. Ash you can't kill her when Sunset Shimmer put the element of magic it did turn her into a demon, Twilight said holding my right arm. Wait the element of harmony turned her into that, I asked in a little shock. Yes and we need to grab the element and leave soon before the portal closes for another 30 moons, Twilight said. That's all I need to do grab it, I asked. Try it Sunset Shimmer growled. Gladly, I said as I launched at her and tried to grab the crown. Sunset created a yellow and red sword and made an attack but I blocked it and got in a stance behind her Sunset charged and so did I. When our blades met sparks flew off them we were moving our blades so fast it was hard to see them until we entered a power struggle. I was easily overpowering her but Sunset stepped to the side and I went forward. Sunset tried to sever me in two but I just kicked off the ground and did a front flip as the blade went under me. I landed on the ground and as she made an attack I caught her blade in my cross guard and locked it in place. In one twist I snapped her blade in two she was shocked at what I could do and backed away. But then she held me in her magic grip so I couldn't move. She picked up the blade of the broken sword and held it at my throat. Don't you dare hurt him. I looked to see it was Twilight who shouted. Oh I wasn't going to kill him this one has skill he would make a great general for my little army it's you who I want dead Twilight Sunset said as she made another sphere and fired it at Twilight. All the girls ran at Twilight and hugged her for protection just as the spell hit. No, I yelled as smoke filled the spot. I stood there motionless at the scene I was hoping to see some life when the smoke cleared I saw all the girls were covered in a magenta aura and unharmed. The group backed away from each other to realize they were all holding hands with Twilight in the center. The magic contained in my element was able to unite with those that helped create it Twilight said causing the element of magic to glow and let out an aura that connected itself and the girls. The girls were then lifted into the air and began to change they each grew longer hair that made them look like tails. Their ears were replaced by pony ears while Fluttershy Rainbow Dash and a girl with pink hair presumably Fluttershy grew wings. 
Honesty, kindness, laughter, generosity, loyalty, magic, twilight said as each of them changed. Together they create a power more powerful than anything you could imagine but it is a power you don't have the ability to control. The crown may be upon your head sunset shimmer but you cannot wield it because you do not possess the most powerful magic of all the magic of friendship, Twilight said before she and the others got into the formation of a heart and fired a beam of rainbow magic at sunset shimmer. The rainbow turned into a tornado and engulfed her then spread to the other students and freed them from sunset's magic. It also hit the other two demons and freeing me in the process a bright light then engulfed the area blinding me temporarily. When the light stopped I blinked away the spots in my eyes and saw a large crater in the center of the lawn. I looked over to the edge of the crater to see my friends all passed out on the edge I ran over and saw a large dog run over. Twilight wake up the dog said shaking Twilight with its forepaws he had purple fur and a light green underbelly and ears and dark green hair on top of his head. Spike is that you? I asked recognizing the voice. Yeah surprised. Spike asked. Barry but why are you and the girls here? I asked. I ash the girls are still in the Crystal Empire these girls except Twilight and I are the ones from Equestria. Oh well this will get weird if the two groups met, I said. Just then Twilight started coming around. Hey Twilight how are you feeling, I asked. A little woozy but I'll be alright, Twilight said. That was incredible. I turned around to see it was Akachi who spoke. I never knew you got so strong Ash, Eli said. That nothing compared to the Griffin army I faced a few weeks ago, I said. You fought an entire army. I looked to see it was this world Rainbow Dash who spoke. Yeah but what's a guy to do, I said shrugging my shoulders. I looked at Twilight to see her walk over to the crater and look inside I walked over and looked inside and saw Sunset Shimmer lying face down in her human form. You'll never rule in Equestria any power you may have had in this world is gone tonight you showed everyone who you really are you've shown them what is in your heart Twilight said gesturing to the gathering students. I'm sorry I'm so sorry I didn't know there was another way, Sunset said as she lifted her head showing tears in her eyes. The magic of friendship doesn't just exist in Equestria it's everywhere you can seek it out or you can forever be alone the choice is yours, Twilight said. But all I've ever done since being here is drive everyone apart I don't know the first thing about friendship, Sunset said as she tried climbed out of the crater Twilight and grabbed one of her hands and pulled her up the rest of the way. I bet they can teach you, Twilight said gesturing to the girls. Those are my friends woohoo, Spike said clapping his forepaws. Did that dog just talk woe weird, Kabir said. Seriously a talking dog is the weird thing about all this, Spike said. Well I believe I should introduce you all Spike this is Rosa and Kabir with their son Akachi along with Rebecca and Eli everybody this is Spike. And I'm not even a dog I'm a ferocious fire breathing dragon, Spike said. Yeah minus the ferocious part though, I said causing Twilight to giggle and Spike to grumble. I believe this belongs to you, a woman said as she stepped out of the crowd with the crown in her hands. She had pastel colored hair and a motherly tone and smile telling me she was the human version Celesta. A true princess in any world leads by not forcing others to bow before her but by inspiring others to stand with her. We have all seen you are capable of just that I hope you see it to Princess Twilight the Celestia of this world said as she placed the crown on Twilight. I do, Twilight said causing the crowd to cheer. Hey you look familiar. I turned around to see this world Applejack had spoken. I'm afraid we haven't met but I know the you from the other world, I said. You're that fella that was on TV three years ago after that, I held up my hand to stop her from talking. If you're referring to that incident at the scrapyard I'd rather not talk about it, I said. Oh right sorry to bring it up, Applejack said. No trouble, I said. Hey Ash can we stay a bit longer, Twilight asked as she walked over to us. Why don't we need to leave soon, I asked. Twilight looked at the sky and looked sad. Oh yeah, Twilight said sounding depressed. I tapped a finger on my chin before it hit me. I've got an idea TWI, I said before I clawed at the air and dragged it downward and a small dome appeared over the school while the world outside stooped. Now we can stay longer, I said causing Twilight to give me a great hug. Everyone went inside and the party continued through the still night. The party was a blast although Twilight's dancing, if you can even call it that needed work but as usual all good things must come to an end. So after a quick picture it was time we said our goodbyes to everyone. You'll look out for her won't you? Twilight asked as she looked over at Sunset hiding behind the broken entrance. Of course we will though I expect some sort of apology for last spring's ball, Rarity said. Don't worry she'll be handing out a lot of apologies and it was great to see you all again but I have a world to protect, I said turning back to Rosa and the others. Ash as long as you're happy where you are then that's all I can ask for, Rosa said giving me a hug. Make sure you visit when you can Ash, Eli said. I will don't worry, I said as I shook his hand before I looked at Akachi who looked sad. Next time I'm here I'll bring ya a little something deal, I said causing him to light up in excitement. Deal, Akachi said. I ruffled his head before I walked over to the portal with Twilight. That crown really does suit you Princess Twilight, Spike said. I agree with him there, I said. You know what I'm am starting feel a little more comfortable wearing it, Twilight said. Well it's been a long night let's go cause I may have something to tell you all when we get back, I said. We walked through the portal but not before I removed the time dome around the school. I walked out of the portal along with Twilight and Spike and stretched my limbs before I looked at the group waiting for us. Twilight, Ash, Spike, Everypony said. You're back, Rainbow said inches from our faces. Welcome back, Pierce said. I knew you could do it, Pinky said hugging Twilight. Y'all had us so worried, Applejack said. E up, Mac agreed. Sunset Shimmer is she all right? Celestia asked with worry. She'll be just fine we left her in good hands, Twilight said. Also turns out the portal leads to Earth got to say hi to some people, I said. We're glad to see you're all right, Luna said. Are you sure that's all you missed, Cadence said. I looked at Luna and saw she was a little annoyed at her niece so wrapped my wing around her and brought her in for a kiss. She was surprised at first by the action but adapted to the kiss and wrapped her arms around my neck pulling me closer to her. The group just stared at us mouths agape until Luna's and my lips parted. You all happy now, I said as Luna nuzzled into my neck before she backed away. The group said nothing so I clapped my hands together causing most of them to fall onto their flanks before Rage spoke up. 
How could you not tell me about this dude? Rage said as he grabbed my shoulders and shook me hard. I managed to push him off before I addressed the room. We confessed our feeling the morning when the Griffin King came by. We'll happily explain it to you tomorrow because these last three days were exhausting, I said. The group nodded before we departed for bed. I got changed into some pajamas and was about to get into bed before there was a knock at the door. I walked over to the door and opened it only to have Luna pushed into me and the door slammed closed. The door was then locked and the keyhole glowed for a sec before it stopped and a single set of hoof steps walked away. Let me guess Cadence wants us to sleep together and she tricked you into coming here and she locked the door and enchanted the lock so we can't lock pick it did I leave anything out? I asked. No, Luna said. Well if you want you can have the bed I'll have the floor, I said. Actually do you think we could do it? Luna said with a blush. You mean have dot sex? I asked with a gulp. Luna nodded. I I don't mind Luna it's just you'll be my first, I said. Really? Luna said excitedly. Well yeah I was holding out for the one that I loved, I said. Luna assaulted my mouth with hers immediately I could feel her tongue prodding at my lips asking for entry which I allowed. Our tongues danced with each other in passion while moans traded between us Luna started pushing me towards the bed. Our lips separated and she pushed me onto the bed I sat on the bed and I saw take off her top revealing black lacy bra beneath to hold her eye cup breasts. She then removed her pajama shorts to reveal a pair of black lace underwear with a small white crescent moon in the center. I can see you're enjoying the view, Luna said with a smirk looking at my lower half. I looked at where she was looking and I saw my member was pitching a tent in my pants I couldn't help but look away in embarrassment before Luna turned my head back to her. There's nothing to be embarrassed about now let's get you out of those clothes. Luna said as she teleported all of my clothes up and placed them on a chair neatly folded. I sat on the bed naked before Luna but she had a shocked look on her face while staring at my member. Oh my Faust I'll be torn in half by that thing, Luna thought as she got onto her knees and got a firm grip on my member. I was completely losing my mind at what Luna was doing she started by giving me a hand job with those soft delicate hands of hers. A drop of pre escaped the tip before Luna took my member into her warm wet mouth and moaned at the taste. She tried to take the whole thing in one go but gauged when the tip of my pole reached the back of her throat. She pulled my cock out of her mouth and took a few deep breaths before I spoke. You all right Luna? I asked with concern. I'm fine let me try again, Luna said before she slowly took my member into her mouth again. Luna managed to take the entire thing before she started bobbing her head up and down on my rock hard cock. I could begin pressure build up inside of me but I was determined to hold it down for her but it was becoming too much. Luna, I'm gonna, dot com, I said shakily. The only response from Luna was her doubling her efforts by wrapping her tongue around my member and licking it from the base to the tip. I couldn't hold it any longer and fired my load into Luna's mouth Luna's cheeks bulged before she started swallowing my seed. But my cock was firing more than she could swallow. She pulled me away and last ropes of seed splatted her face and bare breasts she removed her bra and undies while she was giving me a blow job. Luna stood up before she started cleaning herself up with her hands. That was delicious, Luna said with a smile when she finished. Luna pushed my back onto the bed and climbed on top of me and positioned her hips above my head giving me the perfect view of her winking pussy. Satisfy me with your tongue, Luna ordered. As you wish my princess, I said as I brought my hands up to Luna's tush. I gently brought it down I didn't waste any time and shoved my face into Luna's dripping snatch and swirled my tongue around inside it. Luna screamed in pleasure while I continued to swirl my tongue around inside her before I got an idea. I let go of Luna's right butt cheek with my left hand and inserted my cold metal fingers into Luna's pussy then wiggled them around inside and moved my lips to Luna's clit. Her pussy walls clamped around my metal fingers and tried to pull them in further. If Luna wasn't screaming before she was now with the royal canterlot voice because of the cold on her warm sensitive inner walls. I started thrusting two of my fingers in and out of her before Luna couldn't take any more. Her juices gushed out of her soaked flower and all over my hand, chin and neck I managed to get some into my mouth and savored the sweet taste of blueberries. Luna climbed off of me while I climbed up and next to her. How was that Luna? I asked with a smirk. It was amazing I've never felt anything that amazing I just wish it could last longer, Luna said. Well why can't it? I asked curiously. Luna looked at me then at my hardening cock and gasped. It's getting hard after only a few minutes. Luna shouted in shock. Well yeah you make that sound like a stallion can't do that after they come once, I said Luna just stared at me in shock silence I stared back at her before I put it together. No way their sperm reproduction isn't that fast, I said surprised. For most stallions it takes a day for them to reproduce sperm but this opens up whole new opportunities for me, Luna said with a seductive voice. Luna began to get up but I pinned her down causing her to let out a surprised squeak. Nice try Luna but I believe it's my turn to be on top, I said flashing my canines at her. Luna gave me a sexy smirk obviously liking the new confidence before she relaxed on the bed. I lined up my member with her mare hood and took a breath and pushed and I heard Luna gasp in pain and stopped immediately. I looked down at where we were connected and saw a little blood trickle out of her mare hood. Luna are you? I asked. Not anymore and neither are you Ash just give me a sec to adjust, Luna said with a smile. Luna and I stayed still before Luna gave me a nod to go ahead I started to slowly thrust into Luna and slowly speed up. I got faster and faster while Luna wrapped her arms around me and clawed hard enough at my back to draw a little blood. I didn't mind that much and massaged the base of her wings with my left hand and squeezed her right breast with my right hand. Suddenly I felt something wet on my right hand and lifted my hand to my vision. I saw a white liquid dripping from my fingers I looked at Luna's right breast to see droplets of milk on it. I take it women from your world don't lactate, Luna said. Only when they have to feed their baby, I said. Well drink up, Luna said as she placed a hand on the back of my head and guided me to her right nipple. I latched onto her nipple and sucked greedily as I continued to massage her wings with both hands causing Luna to moan and yelp every time I pinched the nipple with my canines. I didn't stop thrusting into Luna. Luna became lost in her own world at all the pleasure hitting her body until she couldn't handle it he walls clamped down on my penis and started massaging it begging me to come. Soon I felt a familiar pressure build up in my core. Luna, uh, in or out, I said. Luna wrapped her legs around me before she spoke. 
In oh sweet moon and fill me with your seed, Luna screamed in the royal canterlot voice. I couldn't hold it any longer and unleashed my cream into Luna's love tunnel. My world went blank for a few seconds but Luna was completely lost. I managed to pull myself out of Luna and collapsed next to her wrapped my wing over her and brought her close. So how was your first time? I asked. It was better than I could have hoped in you. Luna asked. Same, I said simply. Luna snuggled closer into me before she spoke. How'd I meet a stallion who was so perfect? Luna said. Fate has a weird plan for all of us, huh? I said with a smile. Both Luna and I looked into each other's eyes and smiled. We both felt exhaustion from the activity began to take its toll on us before sleep took us. Author's Notes. First clop scene I've ever written so I hope it's acceptable. Wolf blood out.